Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 1 Dear students, have you all memorized the rules of reincarnation? On the reincarnation square, a middle-aged man wearing glasses swept his gaze across the faces of the young men and women before finally stopping on one person. He Chuan, recited once. He Chuan took a step forward and walked out of the crowd. Under everyone's gaze, he pondered for a while before replying. The four main points of the reincarnation rules. 1. No matter how many years you spend in the reincarnation world, the time flow in the main world will always be fixed at 168 hours. You don't have to worry that things will change after coming back from reincarnation. 2. Any performance of a reincarnator in the course of their life will affect the evaluation points. Under normal circumstances, the higher the achievement of the character in the world, and the more exciting the life, the more evaluation points will be obtained, and the rewards will be more generous. 3. The reincarnator can use temporary talents purchased. The specifications are not limited, but the first time of reincarnation can only use one. If the reincarnator carries multiple temporary talents without permission to reduce the difficulty of the reincarnation, the evaluation points will be cancelled. 4. This is the last and most important point. Under any circumstances, you are forbidden to reveal your identity as a reincarnator to the people of the reincarnated world in any form. As he Chuan spoke, he looked at the crowd, if you violate these points, it may lead to an irreversible disaster. All the responsibility will be borne by you personally. Very good. The teacher nodded in satisfaction. He Chuan had always been the best student in his class, and as expected, he did not disappoint him. The rules of reincarnation had only been issued for a few minutes, but he had already easily picked out the core part. This observation ability could not be found among all the students in the school. He was definitely a top student. It was a pity. This was a reincarnation world. Scores did not mean anything. Only reincarnators were the true rulers of this world. Everyone had the chance to become a reincarnator. Through the first time of temporary reincarnation opportunity that they received when they become adults, they received the reincarnator seal. With the help of the reincarnation square, they could enter all kinds of strange worlds and play the specially designated role of a background character. Every action of the temporary reincarnator in the world would affect the final evaluation point. The evaluation point determined the system rating when leaving the reincarnation world. Only those who had reached grade B and above could become eternal reincarnators and continue to grow. Reincarnators possessed abnormally powerful powers. Only they could withstand the strange creatures of this world. It was exactly because of this that reincarnators were the most dazzling existences in this world. Even if they had done something heinous, even if they had killed an entire town of ordinary people, the ordinary courts were not qualified to judge them. They stood at the top of the pyramid, detached from everything else. Right now, the hundreds of students in front of him were facing the challenge of the reincarnation assessment. For ordinary people, this was their only chance. It was easy to get, but was not easy to grasp. In the eyes of the teachers. Even He Chuan, who had a lot of theoretical knowledge, would find it difficult to get high marks. This was because knowledge was of limited help in the reincarnation world. Without the help of a family background, the chances of passing the assessment were very slim. How much help would the temporary talent provide? For example, those who could change the reincarnation's pattern, such as born in a wealthy family, or gifted in cultivation. Or those who gave more opportunities, such as reincarnated once in the reincarnated world without being forced back to the main world, or reset the reincarnated world. As long as they had it in their hands, even if they ran into a world with top difficulty, there was still a possibility of achieving a B grade. However, the prices of these talents were too expensive. It was simply not something that a child from a poor family like He Chuan could afford. Even the teacher in charge could see what would happen to such an outstanding student in the future. Driven by the enslavement of the reincarnators, their status was even inferior to that of their pet dogs. They worked hard for daily necessities and earned a meager amount of money. This was the only outcome, there was no other way out. 
After all, in a place where there were no moral and legal restrictions, ordinary people could only cower in the darkest corner and struggle for their lives. It could be said that this reincarnation determined their future. He could not help but sigh. Although he did not want to see his students end up like that, this was the survival law of the world, and he could not change anything. The homeroom teacher shook his head and said, Everyone has heard what He Chuan said. You should all know what to do and what not to do in your first reincarnation, right? Understand. Several hundred people said in unison. The homeroom teacher placed his hands behind his back and looked at a huge aqua blue ball in the middle of the square. He said softly, since that's the case, then everyone should prepare to go. As soon as she finished speaking, hundreds of people left one after another. He Chuan and everyone else arrived outside the reincarnation square and placed their palms on the huge ball of light. The aqua blue ball of light immediately shot out a dazzling ray of light and wrapped around his body. The reincarnation seal on his body resonated, and an empty voice sounded in his mind. Retrieving target's identity connecting with the characters of the reincarnation world connected successfully. The world you are about to descend into is, Parallel City. Do you want to receive the background information? Am I so lucky? He Chuan had never expected that he would be reincarnated into such a world. According to the knowledge he had learned from school, Parallel City, parallel ancient times, and the martial arts continent were the least difficult ones. They usually didn't have particularly high power systems whether it was technology or martial arts, their best strength was very limited. A level higher one, such as spiritual energy recovery world or supernatural ability awakening world, could easily destroy any medium level reincarnators by sending these lower tier civilians. Other than that, the more difficult worlds were the fantasy and immortal cultivation worlds. Here, the cultivators who had reached the peak of perfection were able to break away from the shackles of the native planets, grasp all kinds of laws, shatter the void, and explore unknown secrets. The primitive society could also belong to this category. It was more special and did not have a fixed difficulty. The primitive society in the cities was the primitive people. The difficulty was also very low. However, if it was the primitive society in the fantasy world, it would be a fight between immortals. After all, this was the period when the power of heaven and earth was at its peak. No matter how bad one's talent was, they would still be filled with the energy in the air and become a powerhouse. The difficulty would be raised to the maximum. Living in such a world, one would have to worry about whether there would be any big shots fighting over resources outside even if they went to the toilet. The aftershocks of the battle would shock one to death. However, this wasn't the most difficult part. The ultimate difficulty of this world was the terrifying recovery world that could cross dimensions, as well as the futuristic world where science and technology had developed to the extreme. These two worlds each had their own unique characteristics. The only similarity was that the difficulty was unimaginable. The knowledge recorded in the books was very little, and only a brief overview was used. The four types of difficulty were all encompassing, and if broken down, there were probably tens of thousands of them. To be able to randomly arrive at a parallel city world was really lucky to the point of exploding. Chapter, 2 Even though He Chuan was very lucky, he did not feel proud and complacent. He still decided to be down to earth and first understand the background of the world. Receive Exporting data waiting for verification Verification complete. Please take a look. He Chuan immediately read it carefully. The world's background was very long, and the content was also very extensive. From astronomy and geography to laws and regulations, it was incredibly complete. After reading through all of this information, He Chuan came back to his senses. He already had a preliminary understanding of the world he was about to reincarnate into. However, at the moment, he did not know what role he was going to play and what family background he will have, so he did not have any plans. The other students had already gone to buy temporary talents. This was a huge help. Sometimes, when one was reincarnated, there was a slight difference in the evaluation points, and when the calculation was done, the evaluation level could be raised to another level. It was possible that those who could not pass the assessment would be able to reincarnate it successfully. Unfortunately, he did not have the money. So he did not think about it. 
When the homeroom teacher saw that He Chuan was the first to return, he could not help but ask. He Chuan, why are you back so soon? You didn't buy a temporary talent. He Chuan shook his head, talent is too expensive, I can't afford it. My family still has to leave some money for food. This was an expected answer. The homeroom teacher sighed. He originally thought that the He Chuan family would sell everything they had to fight for a glimmer of hope for this only son to be reincarnated. He did not expect his family to be so poor. Then do you know which world you would be reincarnated to? Yes, my luck is good. It's Parallel City. City. The homeroom teacher raised his eyebrows in surprise. He did not expect that the best student in his class would meet the simplest one among the tens of thousands of worlds with different difficulty levels. In this way, the probability of success in reincarnation was much higher. He weighed the pros and cons and finally took out a silver card from his pocket and handed it over. There are ten reincarnation points in here. Although it's not much take it and buy a talent for yourself. Reincarnation points were the currency of this world. Whether it was among the reincarnators or in the market for ordinary people, it could be used. The current exchange rate for one reincarnation point was nine gold coins. One gold coin could probably cover the expenses of an ordinary family of three for three months. From this, it could be seen how valuable these ten reincarnation points were. After all, the reward for obtaining a grade D reincarnation evaluation was only a few dozen reincarnation points. He Chuan felt a surge of warmth in his heart. The homeroom teacher had already taken quite good care of him to be able to take out such a portion. But he did not take it. He stubbornly shook his head and said, Teacher, I want to pass the evaluation with my own efforts. Sigh you child. The homeroom teacher sighed again and did not insist. He knew He Chuan's character. He was like a stubborn donkey, not to mention that he was especially self-reliant. If he said that he did not want it, it was definitely not because he was embarrassed, but because he really did not want it. Just leave it like that. The homeroom teacher felt that it was not possible. Regardless of whether it was for He Chuan or for himself, this favor was very necessary. Once He Chuan became a reincarnator in the future, he would definitely remember this favor. So, why not? It would be a short-term investment. It would be a piece of cake. But how could he make him accept it? After thinking carefully for a while, he got an idea. A young and inexperienced young man like He Chuan would definitely not know how to reject a girl. He just needed to find an outstanding-looking female student, pretend to have a crush on He Chuan, and help give him the reincarnation point. Most importantly, if He Chuan really succeeded in reincarnation and his status rose, this fake crush might even turn into a crush that he admired. Who knows, it might even become a marriage. Killing two birds with one stone. The homeroom teacher felt that his plan was perfect. Once he thought of it, he immediately do it. He took out another card worth 50 reincarnation points from his wallet and immediately began to act. Not long after. The students in the class returned one after another. Most of them were sighing with complicated expressions. It was estimated that the world they were going to be reincarnated in was very difficult. Even if they had a temporary talent, they would not have much confidence in passing the test. Only a few people had smiles on their faces. During the conversation, they proudly revealed the place where they were about to be reincarnated. They were two parallel cities and a martial arts continent. Many people were very envious of them. They were trying to get closer to them at this time. They thought that if they didn't become reincarnators within an hour, they could still cling to them. He Chuan was the only one who didn't feel sad or happy. He stood on the side and watched everything quietly. This was a cruel game of survival of the fittest. Even at the lowest level world, the probability of passing the assessment was still less than 1 in 10, 0, 0. There was no point in fawning over others now. He had no interest in doing such a thing. At this moment, an announcement came from above the square. All examinees of the class, please enter the reincarnation square in an orderly manner. Students, please carry the reincarnation seal with you and open the assessment yourself. He Chuan clenched his fist slightly. The assessment had begun. 
The homeroom teacher rushed over at this moment. After wiping the sweat off his forehead, he said, Everyone, you heard it. Students who have prepared their temporary talents can begin their reincarnation. Regardless of whether you can pass the assessment, as long as you do your best and don't leave any regrets, it's good enough. These words sounded invigorating, and everyone was eager to give it a try. Although the probability of passing the exam was very low, who wouldn't feel that they were the lucky ones? Hundreds of people left the scene one after another. He Chuan was about to go over to reincarnate when he was suddenly stopped by the homeroom teacher. He Chuan, wait a moment. He Chuan turned around in confusion, what's the matter, teacher? There's a girl waiting for you over there. She said that she has something to say to you. The homeroom teacher revealed an ambiguous smile and pointed in a direction, there's no one around. You can have a good chat with her. You don't have to hurry about reincarnating. I understand. He Chuan nodded and walked over according to the homeroom teacher's instructions. When he got closer, he realized that there was a girl standing there with outstanding looks and beautiful clothes. When He Chuan came over, his cold eyes only glanced at her from the corner of his eyes. Then, there was a hint of contempt in his eyes. Teacher said you were looking for me, He Chuan's voice was calm. What's the matter? He Chuan, right? In order to protect your poor self esteem, your teacher asked me to pretend to be a secret admirer and give you 50 reincarnation points. The girl held a silver card between her fingers and waved it in front of him, revealing a sarcastic smile, however, how can a commoner like you be worthy of such a big fortune? It's impossible for you to pass even if you buy a temporary talent. He Chuan was expressionless, so. So, these reincarnation points should be used on people who are more suitable for it. The girl put the card into her bag, as for whether you want to tell your teacher about this, I don't care. When I become a reincarnator, he will know who is the most correct choice. With that, she threw two gold coins on the ground. The girl's attitude was arrogant and unquestionable, now it's a deal. I'll buy this card with money. It's more suitable for you to have a few days of a carefree life with them, you poor idiot. He Chuan didn't even look at it. Without hesitation, he turned his head and walked toward the reincarnation square. What a nut! Chapter, 3 Although two gold coins were a lot, compared to the reincarnation point, they were insignificant. This was a daylight robbery. Good-looking doesn't mean good-hearted. This is the kind of person that they called a beast in human form. He Chuan silently clenched his fists. Looking at her expensive clothes, she would actually rob a poor person like him. No, it was inappropriate. To be more precise, it was forcibly seizing. Although he didn't intend to accept the gift from his teacher, it didn't mean that he didn't care. It would be a lie to say that he wasn't angry at such behavior. But there was nothing he could do about it. Judging from the girl's gorgeous clothes, she must have been born into a rich family and had a certain background. This was a world where the strong preyed on the weak. Let alone possessing the things of the weak, even if the strong killed the weak, no one would spare a second glance. I must become stronger to prevent such a thing from happening again. He Chuan shook his head and took a deep breath. He did not take this small episode to heart anymore. Although he was not afraid of facing the darkness of this world, the most important thing for him at the moment was still the reincarnation assessment. There was no need to waste time on such a thing. He came to the reincarnation platform again and touched the light ball. This time, what appeared in He Chuan's mind was no longer the world's information, but the question of whether he wanted to undergo reincarnation. Yes. He did not hesitate. Then, with a flash of light, He Chuan was engulfed by the endless light and the world spun. He felt as if he had fallen into the air, like a lone boat floating in the sea, drifting with the waves. After a long time, accompanied by a cry, he opened his eyes and found himself in a place that looked like a hospital. Next to him was warm skin. When he looked up, he saw a young and beautiful woman hugging him and looking at him with a loving gaze. Hints related to reincarnation appeared in his mind. Character background, you were born into a well-off family. You were diagnosed with some strange disease by the hospital. The activity of brain cells is dozens of times more than normal people, 
but your body will fall into intermittent paralysis due to various complicated reasons. The present medical level is unable to treat it. According to experts, due to the limited number of brain cells, you will not live past the age of 20 due to the premature and large consumption of highly active brain cells. This disease was named after you. The first patient with Eclan syndrome appeared in this world. Your family did not treat you badly for this reason. Instead, they gave you double the care and care. He Chuan blinked his eyes. As expected of the reincarnation test. Even if it was the world with the lowest difficulty, it would still give you a hellish start. You won't live past twenty years old. What kind of concept was this? This meant that if He Chuan wanted to increase his score, he had to have some achievements before the age of twenty. If he wanted to reach B-class, he had to be worth at least a few hundred million and have a certain social status. In this era where people were about to turn 30 after finishing university, it seemed a little unrealistic. He had a headache because of this. While you were thinking about what you should do in the future, you awakened the deduction system. System. He Chuan was not unfamiliar with this concept and quickly understood it. The introduction of this system was very simple. It could deduce the direction of all things. The specific application was also very simple. When the young woman in front of him lifted up her shirt and carried him in front of her, He Chuan had a thought, and the corresponding notification appeared in front of him. You accept breast milk, receive sufficient nutrition, no accidents happen. You reject breast milk, due to the mother's lack of experience, resulting in the mother did not deal with the increased amount of breast milk in time, it eventually led to a series of diseases, leaving behind irreversible consequences. He Chuan's eyes lit up slightly. Divination. This was equivalent to being a seer, allowing him to know and advance the outcome of his decision. There was nothing much to say, he could completely change his fate at the crucial moment. Even if it was compared to top-tier temporary talent, it was not inferior at all. However, he was not complacent because of this. The system's ability could be big or small, but the specific effects would still depend on how he uses them. If he did not have a good plan for the future, this lifespan of less than 20 years would still be the biggest stumbling block in this assessment. I must find a cure for this disease. He Chuan set a goal in his heart. However, he still had to live the life in front of him now and play the role of a good baby. As the warm breast milk fell into his stomach along his esophagus, He Chuan gradually fell into sleep. Children were generally lethargic. Not long after, his mother was discharged from the hospital and brought him home with his father, starting a peaceful life. He Chuan slept for 18 hours a day. Usually, during his waking hours, he would constantly use the deduction system to explore the potential of his body. You tried to walk, but your bones were too soft to bear the weight of your body, so you broke your bones. You crawled carefully and paid attention to the ratio of the force applied to your hands and feet as you moved. You successfully moved a small distance. You tried to speak, but because your vocal cords were not fully developed, you failed. After repeated deductions, He Chuan grew very quickly as an infant. As time passed, the couple gradually discovered the uniqueness of their child. Their baby never cried. And a few days after birth, he could use his limbs to crawl for a short distance. Life was very regular. Every four hours, he would crawl to his mother's side, pick up his shirt with his little hands, and suck milk to feed himself. He was very sensible, more disciplined than an adult, and even knew how to comfort others' emotions. Sometimes he would wake his parents in their sleep at night and act cute with pitiful eyes. A few months later, the child was even more reassuring. He was able to take care of his own daily life at this time. He could even communicate fluently with adults in complete sentences, and he would say whatever he needed in advance without causing trouble for his family. Compared to babies his age who were still learning about the colors and sounds of the world, he had already begun to explore the world with his parents. This kind of advanced behavior made the baby's parents very surprised. They could not help but take little He Chuan to the hospital. This examination was incredible. The doctor found that little He Chuan's brain was different from normal people's. The activity level was dozens of times higher than normal people. The reason why he could walk and speak faster than a child his age was because of this reason. 
His brain activity was high enough, and his learning efficiency also increased. When the parents heard this, they were extremely happy. They thought that their child had extraordinary talent. Perhaps if they nurtured him carefully, he could become the next Einstein. Chapter, 4 Therefore, in the future, they would take care of little Hichuan more, and they would try their best to satisfy any request. When he was one year old, under continuous deductions, he Chuan was able to talk and sang. He completed the transformation from crawling to running and began to expand his range of activities. Two years later, he became a famous little genius in the community. He displayed extremely outstanding talent in chess and mathematics. He defeated all the old men and primary school students in the community, there was no match for him. In terms of mathematics, it was not a big deal. The best result was that he solved a junior high school level mathematical Olympiad question after reading the question. His opponent was a sixth grade top student, also a little genius. He was only a few seconds slower than He Chuan to get the answer. Even though there was a difference of nine years in age, this result was obviously unworthy of He Chuan's brain cells, which were dozens of times more active. After all, his lifespan was only twenty years. Three years was equivalent to one-seventh of his life. However, he was truly invincible in chess. No matter what kind of chess game he played, no matter how many people played against him, it was an instant kill. That's right, instant kill. Usually, other people would spend tens of seconds or even a few minutes thinking about their next move. In his hands, it was a one-second move without any hesitation. Moreover, his style was fierce. Every move was a hidden killer move. As long as the opponent was slightly careless, they would lose. In the community, there was once a retired professional chess player who played a game with little He Chuan. In the end, he admitted defeat in less than two minutes and said that he would never play chess again, which shocked everyone. It was hard to imagine that a three-year-old could do such a thing. It was also at this time that a message appeared from He Chuan's reincarnation seal. Life experience increased, evaluation points increased. I didn't expect there to be unexpected gains. He Chuan's original intention was to familiarize himself with the application of the deduction system. In the end, he obtained the evaluation points by accident. However, there was a price to pay for this process. Every time he overused his brain, his body would experience a small amount of discomfort. At first, only a portion of his fingers was numb and could not be controlled. After a few months, it became that his entire palm had lost consciousness. Fortunately, he would recover after resting for a while. It seemed that this illness was not particularly torturous. At present, his achievements were still very few. He had to continue working hard. The deduction system should not be used only for trial and error. This was the experience He Chuan gained after repeatedly deducing. His highly active brain cells could have the multi-threaded computing ability like a computer. At the same time, he could analyze countless possibilities. If he added the trial and error function of the system, he could think of a way to combine them. Perhaps it would have a good effect on knowledge learning. He Chuan was a man of action. It was also from this time that he often begged his parents to take him to the library to read and study. Originally, the young couple did not intend to agree. No matter how smart their child was, it was impossible for him to understand words without going to school, right? After all, speaking and reading were two different things. Moreover, they were also busy with work and could not spare time. In the end, He Chuan did something that everyone did not expect. He actually ran away from home and left the community alone one morning. When his parents came home from work in the afternoon and did not find their child, they were terrified. Fortunately, there was a note on the desk with an address written on it. It's time to lock this brat in the kindergarten. Let the teacher keep an eye on him. Father he crumpled the note into a ball and threw it into the trash bin next to him. At first, he thought that this child was a relief, but now it seemed that he was the most worrisome. Mother he didn't say anything. She quickly put on her shoes and went out to take a taxi. When the two of them found He Chuan in the corner of the library reading a medical book on the field of brain cells, they were both angry and shocked. How could a three-year-old kid do such a thing? It was one thing if he dared to go out alone, 
but he ran out just to come to the library to read? What was even more ridiculous was that he was not reading a comic, but a professional book that most people could only understand the words but could not understand the meaning. At first, they thought Chuan was just reading for fun. However, when the couple got closer and saw the paper filled with fine drafts on the table next to them, they became confused again. What are these symbols? Can someone explain? Are they copied or scribbled? He Chuan noticed his parents coming and smiled at them cutely. Then, he raised the two thick books with great difficulty. Dad, Mom, I want to borrow these two books to read at home. Is that okay? Father he pretended to be angry, you still have the nerve to smile. Do you know how worried we are when you run out by yourself? Don't be angry at him. Mother he glared at him and turned to hug he Chuan. She said gently, Baby, don't do this next time, understand? It's very dangerous. He Chuan nodded his head vigorously and decided not to leave any notes next time. He would read them secretly. If he told his parents that he was really reading these books, they would definitely not believe him. After all, even an adult would not be able to read these highly specialized books. However, He Chuan was different. He had a system. By using deduction to verify the various theories in the books, not only would the accuracy be guaranteed, but the deduction process would also appear in his mind, so much so that it would become a point of knowledge that could be absorbed. His learning efficiency was extremely fast. The brain cells that were active enough could also record all these things, allowing him to draw multiple inferences from one example. However, a deduction was ultimately just deduction. Medical research always had to be combined with clinical experiments. He Chuan soon fell into a bottleneck. He needed to do experiments to assist in verification. Moreover, as he gained more knowledge, there would be more and more such experiments. But how could medical experiments be done at will? Not only did they need extremely expensive equipment, they also needed a large amount of precious materials. At present, only the world's top scientific research institutions had such conditions. It seems that I have to find a way to enter the top institutions at the age of 10 oh no, if I can, I have to enter the top institutions earlier. He Chuan silently clenched his fists. He was now racing against time. He had to learn by himself in the limited time he had, and make a name for himself. It was too difficult. Even with the system, he was not 100% sure. The two parents did not know that their baby had a grand idea in his head and was planning to take him home. At this moment, an old man suddenly came over. Excuse me, sir and madam. Chapter, 5. Father he sized him up. This person looked kind, and there was a gentle and amiable feeling between his brows. He looked like a person who had taught for many years. He couldn't help but ask in a gentle tone, What's the matter, sir? I'm a professor at Concord Medical School. You must be this child's father. The old man smiled gently and said, I don't mean any harm. I just want to know who wrote the things on the paper on the table. The child just randomly drew them, why? Father he was a little confused. The old man was stunned for a moment. He looked at He Chuan in disbelief. It was written by the child. It wasn't taught by you. He confirmed again. I can't even understand these things, how can I teach it? Father he pinched He Chuan's little face, baby, what did you write again? Nothing. I just saw the unsolved problems in the book and the hypothesis put forward by the original author. I felt that he was too childish as if he hadn't used his brain before, so I tried to prove him wrong. He Chuan said in a childish voice, it turned out that he was completely wrong. The old man's expression was dull. Father he and mother he were also stunned. Did this child know what he was talking about? Yes, he was completely wrong. He was completely wrong. The old man smiled bitterly and his voice was filled with disappointment. I didn't expect that my years of research would be completely overturned by a child today. I sigh I have let down my teacher and my students who respect me. Ah! The two parents were shocked. This old man was the author of the book. In their eyes, someone who could compile and publish a book with such professional knowledge was definitely a great master in the field. Regardless of whether they knew him or not, 
he was worthy of respect. Moreover, from what he said, his son's scribble was correct. And he had overthrown his theory. The old man was silent for a long time before he looked at He Chuan, little friend, can you tell uncle how you came up with this? Use your brain to think, what else can I think? He Chuan looked at him in confusion, his clear eyes seemed to be asking a question back. Was it very difficult to use your brain to think about these things? This. The old man could not help but be speechless. This was indeed the most essential reason. Some people were called geniuses because they had intelligence and a way of thinking that was beyond the reach of ordinary people. They could achieve higher achievements in their fields at an earlier age. Obviously, he had met one today. And he was definitely a genius among geniuses. However, if he told his students that a child who looked only a few years old had solved a problem that had troubled him for thirty years, no one would believe him, right? The old professor shook his head, if people hadn't seen it with their own eyes, who would believe it? He Chuan's manuscript was very precious. It was not an exaggeration to call it the cutting-edge knowledge in this part of the medical field. With the permission of He Chuan and the nod of his parents, the old professor took the manuscript away, organized it, and published it. It was signed by He Chuan. As a result, it caused quite a stir in the field. Many related medical experts went to the old professor to ask who He Chuan was and how he could have such profound insights. When they learned that He Chuan was only a three-year-old child, everyone was shocked and triggered a new wave of enthusiasm. Although most people did not believe that such a genius would exist, the old professor did not need to make up such a story to deceive them, so the name of He Chuan as a child prodigy gradually spread. However, this topic was not popular to the extent that it went out of the circle. After all, there was no real product, no matter how good the theory was, it could not make the public have an impression of it. Therefore, He Chuan's life was still very dull. Every day, he would either read a book or sleep. But his parents began to worry about him going to school. Originally, father he wanted He Chuan to stay in kindergarten. However, mother he did not think that was necessary. Their own child could even solve the problem that had troubled the professor for many years, so what was the point of going to kindergarten? That was a complete waste of time. After all, it was only a place for preschool education. Father he did not bother about this anymore and began to use his connections to think of ways to get He Chuan to study in primary school. This matter was a little troublesome. It was similar to skipping grades and required preschool assessment. Moreover, he had missed the start of the school season, so He Chuan's school schedule was delayed by a year. During this time, He Chuan did not sit around. He went to the library every day and read most of the books in it. A year passed in a flash. At the age of four, He Chuan easily passed the skipping test and officially became a member of the primary school. Of course, he did not come here to study. If he were to count the time when he graduated, he would be more than ten years old at that time, and half of his life would be wasted here. So, on the first day of school, when the homeroom teacher asked all the children to go up to the stage to introduce themselves and say their dreams out loud, and each one had sneaked into the principal's office alone. Uncle Principal, I want to skip grades. The principal put on his glasses and smiled gently. Your name is He Chuan, right? He recognized the child who was known as the prodigy at a glance. He Chuan nodded vigorously. Standing behind the desk with only half of his head exposed, it was difficult for him to make eye contact with the adults. The principal moved a chair for him and carried it up. Tell me, why do you want to skip grades? The course is too simple. It's a complete waste of time, He Chuan said bluntly. I want to go to the sixth grade so that I can enter junior high next year. The principal could not help but be dumbfounded. At first, he thought that He Chuan wanted to jump to the second or third grade. To be honest, if this little guy insisted, he would give him two questions to test him. If he could pass the test, he would agree to it. After all, it was not the first time that such a student had completed the first or second grade of elementary school by himself in kindergarten. Although He Chuan was a little young, it wasn't that he couldn't understand. From the time he started reading at the age of three, one year was enough time for the prodigy to understand the two-year elementary school curriculum. 
but this request to jump from the first grade to the sixth grade was too outrageous. No matter how talented he was, he wouldn't be like this, right? Learning the entire elementary school curriculum in one year. The principal had never heard of such a case in all his years of education. He thought he Chuan was just fooling around and didn't take it to heart. He immediately called the teachers in his class to bring the little guy back. He Chuan still wanted to resist, but the little guy was too weak and couldn't resist at all. But he still said something unconvinced. Principal, just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean no one cannot do it. Who says I can't do it? Do you dare to bet with me? The principal was so angry that he laughed. Coincidentally, a few students outside rushed in to report. These were the sixth grade elites who were about to participate in the National Primary School Olympiad math competition. They were the group of people with the best math scores in the entire school. Originally, he had planned to personally come up with a question to give them targeted training. It just so happened that he Chuan, this child prodigy, felt that he could jump to the sixth grade and was still so persistent. He would not give up until he was defeated. Then, he would take this opportunity to let him compete. Therefore, the principal directly came up with three mathematical Olympiad questions. In order to let He Chuan suffer, he also deliberately increased the difficulty. Some of the formulas could only be learned in junior high school. Chapter 6 Under the principal's deliberate mixing of ingredients, as expected, the problem became extremely difficult to solve. At least in the eyes of the group of sixth-grade elite students, it was no different from a heavenly book. Each and every one of them were scratching their ears and cheeks, completely unable to think of a way to solve the problem. Ten minutes had passed, but their draft paper was still blank. Only He Chuan did not sit down, nor did he start writing. After he finished reading the problem, he stood to the side and did not move. The principal thought that he had chickened out, so he could not help but laugh and tease, didn't you ask to jump to the sixth grade? Why don't you dare to do it when you see the problem? My legs can't move. He Chuan frowned slightly. After a year of studying hard in the library, his condition seemed to have worsened. Now it seemed that the slightest use of his brain would cause his limbs to fall into short-term mobility disorders. The principal was slightly surprised and quickly asked about it. Only then did he learn that He Chuan had a strange disease that caused his limbs to be intermittently paralyzed. He quickly carried He Chuan to the sofa at the side and poured a glass of water. If you feel very uncomfortable, uncle will call your parents and ask them to take you to the hospital. It's an old problem. Just wait for a while. He Chuan gently shook his head, I'll do the questions first. After saying that, he picked up a pen and paper and quickly wrote down the answers to the three questions. In just two minutes, he had written down the answers to the three questions. He even wrote down a few alternative solutions and the core formulas and theorems that should be used. The principal took a look. Not bad, the result was right. Wait. Why are there some symbols here? Holy shit. Isn't this the university's formula? You must be joking. A four-year-old child used the university's formula to solve a problem. He was shocked. He was completely dumbfounded. A few primary school students nearby saw the principal's expression and couldn't help but come over. Hmm the first way to solve the problem so that was how it was. It was a formula that they hadn't learned before. No wonder they couldn't solve it. Hmm. The second what the hell were these symbols? Their expressions started to become the same as the principal's. It was just that the principal was well aware of the shock. And they were ignorant and confused. That afternoon, the principal took He Chuan here and there. First, he went to his home and asked his parents for their opinion, saying that He Chuan's IQ and brain power were far beyond ordinary people, he should not waste time in primary school, and should get a better and more elite education. This was a good thing, father he and mother he naturally would not refuse. The two young people were also very relieved to let the principal take their children away. Then, the principal drove He Chuan to the municipality. The news that their school had a little genius was reported layer by layer, and the deeds that were investigated were shown. This incident caused a serious discussion in the Municipal Education Bureau. After a round of investigation, several meetings were held overnight, 
but still, no one could make the decision. There was no other reason. He Chuan's experience was too shocking. He was only born a week and could already walk. He could talk and sing in six months. He started to talk to adults about his life ideals at the age of one. He solved junior high school's Olympiad math problems at the age of two. He defeated a professional chess player at the age of three. At the age of four, he looked through the entire library and produced a medical manuscript, which was still at the forefront of the field of knowledge. Such talent and ability cannot be described as genius. People believed that he was an alien who had been reincarnated in the wrong place. However, all of this was traceable. That was he clan syndrome that he Chuan suffered from. They could only attribute all of the causes to he Chuan's overactive brain cells. Only this could explain why he Chuan, who was self-taught and only four years old, used university formulas to solve problems. After a few discussions, the city leaders still did not dare to act rashly and immediately reported it to the provincial government. Soon, news came from above. They said that there was no need to rush to arrange He Chuan's future. Let him participate in the Olympics and see how he performed. The Olympics was held as scheduled. This was a national student gathering. Delegations from all over the world would participate in the competition. The competition was extremely fierce. If there was one point difference, it was possible to fall several places. The test paper was set by a well-known math education expert in the country, and it was much more difficult than the entrance examination. Moreover, the Olympiad maths examination was not only about the proficiency of mastering the formula, the most important thing was still the student's ability to think logically. The process was the most important. Sometimes the result was right, the process was all wrong, and you did not get a single point. But if the process was right and the answer was wrong because of careless calculation, then only a small amount of points would be deducted. He Chuan had the deduction system, so it was not a problem at all in this aspect. Moreover, it was only a sixth grade question, so it was not difficult at all. When the examination papers were handed out, he was still the first to finish the paper and walk out of the examination room. When the results came out, several days had passed. He Chuan was waiting in the hotel that was arranged. The principal was the first to bring the news. He wore presbyopia glasses and could not hide his excitement. He pointed at a form that he was holding tightly in his hand. Full marks. In this Olympiad competition, He Chuan beat the four members of the Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen delegations who had also won the first prize. These were the celebrity delegations that had occupied the top of the rankings for many years. It had been a long time since they had changed. Who would have thought that they would be defeated by He Chuan alone this time? Although the team's ranking was held back by a few other students in their school and could not make it onto the list. But with this achievement of being the first in a single person's ranking was enough for the principal to put this honor on the school's bulletin board and publicize it for a few weeks. There was a banquet in the evening, which the Ministry of Education invited all the students who participated in the Olympiad competitions. When all the students saw that the person who got the first place was a kid who was not even half as tall as them. Everyone was shocked. The leading teacher was dumbfounded. The big boss of the Ministry of Education was also dumbfounded. No one had expected it. The most inconspicuous person in the examination hall had now successfully stood in the most dazzling place, becoming an insurmountable mountain. Students who could participate in such a national competition were the most outstanding existences. It was not an exaggeration to say that they were geniuses. But at this moment, under the radiance of He Chuan, a four-year-old child, they appeared to be extremely dim. Life experience increase, evaluation points increase. The familiar voice sounded again after a year. However, He Chuan knew that he did not need to wait so long to hear this news again. Chapter 7. There were many media at the awards banquet. What they liked the most was gimmicky reports. Soon, the news of the four-year-old super child prodigy winning the Olympiad competition spread like wildfire under their promotion. The words he Chuan began to appear on television, in newspapers, and on the internet. Countless passers-by who accidentally saw this article were dumbfounded. This led to a round of discussion on what I was doing when I was four years old. 
As the saying goes, a layman watches a show, but an expert knows the ropes. Some experts and scholars also came forward and began to analyze the various physical, psychological, and social factors, showing how rare it was for a four-year-old like He Chuan to win an Olympiad competition for a primary school student, and it was an event that could not be replicated. When an event was certified by the authorities, the credibility of the event also increased. At this time, He Chuan's value began to soar. The towels he used and the food he ate were all hyped up to sky-high prices. Many people held the idea that, if my child eats the food they the genius eat, their IQ will also increase and rush to buy them. For a time, many products became in short supply. As the topic of Hichuan continued to rise, the country began to pay attention to this young genius. The relevant leaders directly went to Hichuan's family and began to discuss with his parents about Hichuan's future path. It was a waste for such a gifted child to walk the path of an ordinary person. Therefore, they expressed their hope that Hichuan could join the school of the gifted young, which was equivalent to directly attending a university's preparatory course. Not only was there no tuition fee, but there was also an additional scholarship of hundreds of thousands of yuan every year. When He Chuan saw this opportunity that came knocking on his door, he naturally would not let it go, so he agreed without hesitation. Thus, not long after, he went to Hong Kong alone. A slight increase in social status, the prodigy achievement has been unlocked. Evaluation points increased significantly. The reincarnation seal once again sent a notification. He Chuan smiled slightly. If the current situation continued, he might really be able to get a B grade. However, he did not become complacent because of this. Don't indulge when in favorable conditions, and you won't die at bad times. This was his motto. There was still a long way to go. If the trajectory of his life went downhill and he ended up begging for a living in his later years, his final score would also be lowered. Then, he went to understand the situation of the genius class. As the name implied, those who could stay in the genius class were all geniuses. The oldest was only 15 years old. The youngest was originally 13 years old, but now he was 4 years old, he Chuan. There was no deception here. Everyone was studying seriously. Everyone worked very hard and the atmosphere was very good. He Chuan was a little behind in the beginning. After all, he joined in the middle of the semester and his knowledge was limited. Although he had read all the books in the libraries, he was not omniscient. However, with the help of the deduction system, he quickly caught up and overtook them. In less than half a month, he became the best student in the genius class. Everyone looked at him in a new light. The higher-ups valued him even more and approved several hundred thousand scholarships for him one after another. However, he Chuan was preparing to do scientific research to solve his illness. This amount of money was nothing at all. However, as a student, he could not get too much funding, so he could only think of ways to earn money himself. He Chuan looked at literary and musical works. In fact, other than his identity as a reincarnator, he had another identity, which was a transmigrator from Earth. At the moment, he had reincarnated into a parallel world on Earth but there were still many big and small differences on the whole. Compared to the earth he had once lived on, it was just that the general direction was similar. Both belonged to the low-level technology civilization. In short, although He Chuan was familiar with many of the epic-making scholars that appeared here were similar to those on earth, there were also some aspects that have been lost. The history of each country and the current world structure had changed. It was unknown which historical stage had changed and lead to such a result. At the very least, there was no The Lord of the Rings, no Harry Potter, and no A Song of Ice and Fire in the literature history. In musical history, there was no Fate Symphony by Beethoven, no The Magic Flute by Mozart, and no Nocturne by Chopin. It would be a pity if these famous and magnificent works of centuries did not appear in this world. He Chuan lamented. He suddenly had an impulse in his heart. He had to take these legendary things that leave a deep impression out of his mind so that the people of this world could understand the beauty of his past. There are many benefits to having such active brain cells. I can mobilize my memories as I wish. He Chuan chuckled and made a plan in his mind, 
I'll leave 10% of the copyright income as research funds. The rest will be donated to the poor areas. The money in the reincarnated world was useless anyway. It was enough to ensure that his research would be successful. If he donated it, he might be able to gain a good reputation and improve his evaluation points. So, why not? Therefore, in the next few years, he Chuan spent his spare time writing. To be more precise, he copied. It was just a little different. It was a product of his use of the deduction system to polish his writing. Many of the plots had a little change. Strictly speaking, Harry Potter was no longer the original Harry Potter, but the world was still the same world. It was a story that could make the people of this parallel earth feel that it was not a story from far away. One by one, the classics compiled by his hands, caused a great stir in the outside world. Copyright cooperation and adaptation invitations came in waves. He Chuan directly counted the money until his hands went soft, and his bank card deposits directly increased from six figures to twelve figures. 120 billion renminbi. It was roughly equivalent to 18 billion US dollars. This was a fortune that ordinary people did not even dare to think about. He did not forget his original intention. He took out 90% of the money as promised and established the Charity Foundation for Poverty Alleviation. More than 100 billion were vaporized in an instant. But because of this, He Chuan became a world famous great writer, great musician, and a great philanthropist. The life trajectory has changed. The master of literature and art achievement has been unlocked, the evaluation points have increased significantly. The notification this time was slightly different, and the rewards were especially generous. According to his estimation, the now eight year old He Chuan should have already reached the B grade for reincarnations. However, he Chuan did not stop. Since things were developing so smoothly, he might as well rush forward and see where his limits were. Chapter 8 At the age of eight, He Chuan's fame had reached its peak. He had been known as a prodigy and genius since he was four years old. Now, he was being sought after by countless people as a master of literature and art, and his fans were spread all over the world. This name had already been deeply rooted in the hearts of people all over the world. His deeds have become a more legendary existence than the protagonists in his novels. Everyone thinks that only legends can write legends. However, there is a deviation from what was known. All the legends heard in the past were in books. Now, there was a legend living in the world. This was what they feel was the most wonderful place. Many people came with admiration and curiosity. They wanted to see He Chuan. However, after he graduated from the genius class, he ignored the admission notice of many famous universities and completely disappeared. At this time, He Chuan had already started to solve the difficult scientific research problems. He started to research solutions to his illness. During the few years he studied in the genius class, he crammed a lot of knowledge. Now, he had a vague idea of the reason for his illness. It was very complicated. It couldn't be explained in one or two sentences. In general, it was a biological mystery. It wasn't easy to solve this mystery. Even with the help of the system, it was still difficult. Parallel Earth Calendar Year 2014 He Chuan was nine years old and was running around doing experiments. The old professor he met in the library came when he heard the news. Using this relationship, he successfully rented a top laboratory in the country. During this period, he spent countless materials and experimented several times. Unfortunately, there was no progress on the topic related to He Clan syndrome. However, there are some new breakthroughs in the study of biology as a whole, but for now, the field of application is unknown. Parallel Earth Calendar 2015 It is like the end of the world. Various natural disasters occur frequently in the country. Earthquakes, droughts, torrential rains, ecological collapse, and grain production had been reduced by 90%, and livestock farming has also been hit. Parallel Earth Calendar Year 2016 The country's grain reserves were in short supply. It fell into a period of poverty and weakness, and the economy was depressed. Parallel Earth Calendar Year 2017 He Chuan was also affected. He did not have enough food to eat 
so he took the initiative to take advantage of a new breakthrough in biology. He stopped his original research and began to look for ways to cultivate high-yielding hybrid grain. This year, He Chuan was 12 years old. He looked a little mature, but now he was in a wheelchair. Due to the fact that scientific research consumed too much energy, he was now paralyzed for almost a third of the time every day. Now, he could only be pushed by his assistant on the streets that were no longer as prosperous as before. There were traces of disasters everywhere. The streets were dirty and messy. There was almost no place to stay. No one came to clean it up. He asked softly. Beside him, his assistant put on a mask for He Chuan, and at the same time, he replied, at the beginning, they had been sending people to clean it up, but not long after they were done, there was a flood. After that, there was a series of earthquakes. The disaster did not stop now, there are shortages of supplies and food everywhere. There is really no choice but to leave it alone for the time being. He Chuan nodded his head in understanding. His gaze swept across the street. There were not many shops that were open for business. There were only some temporary stations that distributed daily necessities. However, he did not see anything related to food. It seems that the problem is very serious. He Chuan sighed softly. Looking at the empty office building that reached into the clouds, he could not help but feel a little melancholic. The assistant pushed him and told him what had happened in the outside world in the past two years. The impact of this natural disaster was unprecedented. In the two years since the grain production was greatly reduced, the country had also made some moves. The number of imports that should be increased had also increased. The adjustments that should be made had all been adjusted, but the effect was always limited. After all, it was a large country with more than a billion people. The amount of food consumed every day was very frightening. It was unrealistic to rely entirely on import trade to solve the problem. Moreover, the impact of natural disasters was far beyond what can be seen. Natural and man-made disasters were always linked together. All kinds of disasters and the shortage of food supply have caused many people to fall into panic. At this time, who would still have the mood to work? The output has plummeted in all walks of life. The consequences were endless. Of course, the main problem was food. More than a billion people need to be fed. They don't have enough to eat every day, which was what needs to be solved. But the consequences of this natural disaster were very serious. It was no exaggeration to say that it has changed the environment of the land in the country to a certain extent. Large areas of the affected land were no longer able to grow the original crops. Now, even if they wanted to replant, there was no way. Unless they could develop seeds that were more adaptable and produce more, saving the people of the country from suffering. If I can solve this problem, there will definitely be a lot of evaluation points. He Chuan tried to stretch his body and found that his right hand had recovered. So he picked up his phone and made a call. I need an experimental plot. Over the years, as He Chuan's fame grew, he also got to know many people. Among them, there was no lack of high level leaders of the state. The higher ups attached great importance to such a talent like him. Naturally, they would not refuse this request. What surprised He Chuan was that. The state seemed to attach too much importance to him. When he arrived at his destination, he found that he had not only taken over the experimental plot but also a professional RD team was at his disposal. It was full of agricultural bigwigs, all of whom were full of glory. But now, they had become his subordinates. This honor was not something that ordinary people could have. Moreover, when the country was at its poorest, they had given him 30 million research funds. The leader said that no matter how much progress was made or how much money was invested, the country would give its full support. With such help, the experiment naturally went very smoothly. Hybrid rice A and B, the survival rate is less than 5%. Hybrid rice A and C, yield per mu is less than 300 kg. Hybrid rice B and C, unable to adapt develop, to the following types of land. Hybrid rice G1 and N7, perfect match. Looking at the results of the system's deduction, He Chuan did not need to do too many experiments to find the most suitable hybrid rice seed. 
the rest of the matters would be left to the group of agricultural bigwigs to do. In the end, in just half a year's time, the first generation of hybrid rice was bred, yielding two zero zero caddies per mu. One had to know that the maximum yield of ordinary rice growing in high-yielding fields was only less than 1,400 caddies. Now, the first round of cultivation had achieved a 50% increase in yield. As soon as this news was reported to the higher-ups, they were shocked. Was this a joke? Chapter 9 How long has it been? Other research projects often take 10 to 20 years. Which one does not need a long period to accumulate experience, do trial and error, and ultimately achieve victory? They have even planned to sign very disadvantageous import treaties with other big agricultural countries in order to ensure that the people at the bottom of the food chain were not endangered by hunger. As a result, He Chuan, this brat, directly turned into a savior, how many months did it take? Although it seemed impossible, when the golden rice was placed in front of them, they had no choice but to believe it. In fact, He Quan still felt that the progress was too slow. If it were not for the fact that plants had a specific growth cycle, he would have wanted to solve this problem in ten days. But now he had no choice but to take it step by step. Two months later, the second generation of fast-growing hybrid rice was introduced. It yields three zero zero caddies per mu. Although the taste was not very good, the requirements for the various values of the sown land were very low. In a word, the vitality was strong, the yield was high. It could completely be popularized on a large scale and solve the food problem. Not only that. In the next two years, He Chuan also found the first generation hybrid varieties of other foods. They included sorghum, peanut, corn, wheat, and a total of 127 agricultural products. The results were remarkable. The research and development team compiled all of He Chuan's contributions into a book. It was published in the form of a thesis. The whole country was shocked. He was once again praised by countless people and stood in the most dazzling place. He received the highest science and technology award, the Wolf Prize in Agriculture, the Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences, and a series of other top awards. In October, he was awarded the highest honor in the country, the, the Medal of the Republic, and was named the pioneer of agricultural hybrid research. He became the most attention-grabbing news figure of the year. Social status has been greatly improved. The, the National Scientist achievement has been unlocked. The final rating has been upgraded. He Chuan's goal had been achieved. At this moment, he had retired after winning merit and continued to focus on his research on He Clan Syndrome. However, the topic about him in the outside world had not ended because of this. This heroic feat of turning the tide and saving countless citizens from the disaster could be said to have added another thick stroke to his short 15 years of life. Many people began to understand He Chuan's life at this time. Although the details were few, each achievement and contribution made people feel as if they were looking up at a high mountain. Because they discovered that. No matter what He Chuan did, he could achieve extremely high achievements in a very short time. This could not be described as genius. No words could describe his talent. This was a person who surpassed common sense and broke common sense. Who else in the world could compare with him? Over the next six months, all kinds of agricultural products entered the market one after another. With the replenishment of such a large amount of food, the people returned to the peaceful life of the past. Although from time to time they were also affected by natural disasters. But after having an unusually abundant supply of food, everyone no longer worried that they would not live to see the next day. But a bigger crisis was looming. A global outbreak of the virus. The source of infection was unknown. People infected with the new virus have terrible symptoms and high mortality rates. As a last resort, Many governments have adopted a confinement policy to prevent the disease from developing. He Chuan's country has used a similar approach. But now, after the disaster, many places in the country have not had time to clean up the environment, and sanitation conditions were very poor. So, soon after the virus outbreak, the number of patients reached an alarming number of hundreds of thousands. The most terrible thing was that the disease has a short incubation period. 
During this period, there was no sign that you were infected. Because of this, the scope of the infection quickly expanded, and soon spread throughout the country. When He Chuan heard the news, it was already the second week of the epidemic. Worldwide, more than 20 million people were diagnosed and 4 million died. According to the outbreak cycle of the new virus, the remaining people were likely to die within this week. Countless experts and researchers were helpless against this. Because according to their research, the speed of mutation of the virus was astonishing. Moreover, the natural drug resistance was very strong. Ordinary drugs could not even alleviate the disease, and there was no possibility of treatment in the short term. According to speculation, even if the world's most advanced group of people were to work together day and night to develop a vaccine, it would at least take more than a year. But based on the current spread of the epidemic. Not to mention a year. I'm afraid that in half a year, there won't be more than a million people alive on Earth. A month passed quickly. The Earth's population fell by 10%. It was just as they predicted. Conventional methods couldn't stop the spread of the disease. There were too many ways for this virus to spread. It was useless to lock yourself in your home. Mosquito bites and plant pollination could inadvertently infect people with the new virus. Once infected, it was no different from being sentenced to death. There was no way to effectively treat it with existing methods. The best medicine could only give people two more days to live. The people of the entire planet were in a life and death crisis. No one could maintain personal integrity. Under the shadow of death, despair and helplessness filled their hearts. In the lab, He Chuan was wearing a thick protective suit. He pressed a button next to him and sent over a dozen virus samples to be frozen. Then, he left the lab and entered the disinfection room. He cleaned himself three times before he walked out and sat on the sofa in the lounge. At this moment, a nerve that had been tense for a long time was finally released. However, what followed next were the limbs that gradually lost consciousness. He Chuan was already used to his current state. He lowered his head and bit the button on his collar. The development of the special medicine has been successful. Send someone to get the data. I can't move now. Soon, the door was opened by a group of researchers surrounded by soldiers. They saluted He Chuan in unison. Then, they followed the instructions and placed a stack of thick papers printed on the table into the safe. Take the computer hard drive as well. Inside is the result of my fifth test today. The virus mutation rate has been suppressed by the drug. He Chuan looked at them tiredly, as soon as the pharmaceutical factory is built, start production as soon as possible. You can decide how long the clinical trial period will be. My personal suggestion is to put it in large batches directly, and try to get everyone vaccinated in the shortest time possible. As he spoke, he raised his voice, this is a vaccine for the eradication, not prevention. The faster you move, the fewer people will die. Don't wait until the next round of virus mutation, understand? Don't worry, comrade He Chuan. An old man bent his body forward and held He Chuan's hand, leave the rest to us. I'll try to get them to skip some procedures that can be omitted. He Chuan nodded lightly and closed his eyes wearily. Chapter 10 Parallel Earth Calendar Year 2020 Two months after the outbreak of the new virus, the special drug was released. It was He Chuan, a well-known writer, musician, biologist, agricultural scientist, and many other honors. Independent research and development. After the results were released, the world was in an uproar. At first, there were some countries that did not believe it. After all, there were so many countries with better medical conditions, and their experts couldn't do anything about it. How could you get the special medicine out in such a short time? But as the number of cases in He Chuan's country decreased day by day, the major news started to report the situation, and when the people recovered, they were all speechless. Then, at this time, they filed a patent application with He Chuan. They were willing to pay a high price to obtain the information needed to make the vaccine. He Chuan did not refuse. A year later, the new virus disappeared completely. It became the second virus to be completely defeated by humans after smallpox. No one had expected it. After saving his own country's people, He Chuan saved the whole world. 
social status has been greatly improved. The world-class scientist achievement has been unlocked. The final rating has been raised. It was also during this period that universities all over the world extended an olive branch to Yichuan. Harvard, Oxford, and Stanford were all among them. However, this time, they were no longer looking for him to be a student. Instead, they had invited He Chuan to be a visiting professor at their school. Other than that, the major scientific research institutions had also sent invitations. They were willing to allocate research resources and laboratories for He Chuan in order to have a chance to communicate with He Chuan. However, He Chuan rejected everyone. Today, after receiving a huge amount of patent fees, he was worth more than 10 billion US dollars. He was already in the top 100 of the global Forbes wealth list. With so much money, it was enough to support him to buy all the top equipment. He no longer has the worry of not having money. He Chuan could finally devote himself to his research. He was now 16 years old. He was only four years away from the end of his life. His physical condition was getting worse and worse. With just a little bit of thinking or using the deduction system to calculate, it would not take long before he was paralyzed. He had to solve this problem as soon as possible so that he could continue his life and improve his final reincarnation score. One year later, He Chuan encountered a bottleneck. As he studied more and more deeply, he felt that science was more and more formidable. Some people said that the end of science was theology. Originally, He Chuan did not care about this. But when the bell of death was approaching, he was still troubled by numerous problems and was at a loss about the disease, he felt that this statement had a slight possibility. Could it be that, he clan syndrome was really a trick that God used to play on him? His cells were tens of times more active than others and there was also the intermittent paralysis of his limbs. It was clearly two completely unrelated bodily reactions. How did they come together? The more he thought about it, the more he could not understand. The deduction system also did not have an answer. After all, the deduction could only help him verify the process, not directly obtain the results. Otherwise, he could directly deduce how I should treat my disease, then everything will be fine. More than half a year has passed. He Chuan on a similarly boring night slumped on the sofa. No way. No way at all. From a theoretical point of view, this disease was completely unsolvable. There was a limit to the number of brain cells one can use in one's life. When all the brain cells lost their activity, as the host, he would definitely die. Whether it was transplanting other people's cells or suppressing the activity of one's own cells, even if these two methods were technically sufficient and could be realized according to the deduction system's judgment, he would not live to be 20 years old. Is there a limit to the human body's genes? He Chuan clenched his fists. To be honest, Although with his current social status and wealth, the final rating would definitely be above B. But if it ended just like that, He Chuan always felt a sense of unwillingness in his heart. He had a vague feeling that this illness of his was the key to opening a certain shackle. As long as he found a way to solve it, there would definitely be unexpected gains. A thought suddenly flashed through his mind. Who said that people have to die? Since the end of my disease is death, why don't I just modify the ending? When the time comes, will the existence of the disease still have an impact? If you can't get rid of it, just accept it. He Chuan's thinking changed very quickly. So, in the year 2023 of the Parallel Earth Calendar, when the world sent representatives to celebrate the 18-year-old He Chuan's coming of age, through live broadcasts by the media, he put forward a sensational point of view. I have a dream. I want to transcend birth, old age, sickness, and death. I want to make human civilization becomes immortal. I want to unlock the gene lock that restricts human life. The people sitting there were either high officials or top scientists. They never dreamed. One day, a genius who surpassed the wisdom of the century would be able to speak like a madman. Everyone was in disbelief. But everyone was silent again. No one mocked or questioned. If it were anyone else, even if it was a country's president or the top few people in the field, they would say the same thing. They would just treat it as if they were drunk and talking nonsense. 
But who was this person in front of them? He Chuan. The new virus that all the infectious diseases and biology bigwigs couldn't solve was defeated by him in a week. It seemed. This kind of ridiculous words, coming from his mouth, wasn't it believable? He Chuan's calm but extremely clear voice sounded again. I'm not that great. Perhaps you don't know, but I have a special illness. It keeps my brain working at a high speed, but it also takes away my life. Now, I've reached the end of my life. In another two years, this world will no longer belong to me. At this point, his voice paused. Everyone's heart also hung up. Two years. It was neither long nor short. For a genius like He Chuan, there were too many things he could do. But for an ordinary person's life, it was too short. Moreover, he will only be twenty years old at that time. A twenty-year-old young man, who had yet to experience the beauty of this world, was going to die just like that? However, I'm not pessimistic. Life will find its own way to flourish. Regardless of whether it's far away, regardless of the length of time, aren't we all doing the same thing now? Many people felt the same way. They had devoted all of their efforts to scientific research, regardless of the results, regardless of the gains and losses, in order to allow the human race to go further and further, allowing the continuation of civilization. These few words directly spoke to their hearts. He Chuan smiled indifferently, everyone, now I want to be selfish for one last time. I don't have any salary for this research. All the funds will be invested in research and development. For you, it is definitely a decision of one-sided investment. Now, who wants to work with me? The first person to respond was the world's most authoritative and powerful laboratory. CERN, European Nuclear Research Council. Isn't it just money? We won't starve to death even if we earn less for two years. The five permanent representatives of the United Nations also expressed their support. After the banquet ended, an emergency joint meeting was held. Finally, the decision was made to recruit the top 100 scientists in various fields from all over the world. Plan Unlocked was launched. Chapter 11 what would happen if the world's most cutting-edge scientists were called out? The answer was that a large number of cutting-edge scientific research projects were shut down. Huge losses would be incurred every minute and every second. Not only that but some of the core scientific and technological secrets that they possessed might also be leaked because of this collaboration. The leaders of each country were not fools. They would naturally take precautions against this. After all, the leader of this scientific research project was He Chuan. Once it failed, the world would return to its original track two years later. No one wanted these secrets to be in the hands of their opponents. Signing a confidentiality agreement was the most basic thing. Apart from that, there were also a lot of regulations. He Chuan saw it, but he didn't stop them. He knew very well that not all of them gathered here for adoration. It was normal to have some personal thoughts mixed in. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that they all had ulterior motives. After all, his value had been fully demonstrated over the years. Now that there were only two years left, everyone wanted to take advantage of him. There were many people who wanted to use this plan to get his help and expand their original research results. Although it's mutualistic, there's still a chance for you to volunteer. He Chuan didn't care about this. All he wanted was the key that could open the door. Under these conditions, the research and development began. This time, the goal was a field that everyone was unfamiliar with. What was the gene lock? How was it unlocked? What would happen after it was unlocked? All sorts of questions made everyone not know where to begin. Nor did He Chuan give the answer to this group of people. He directly applied the knowledge he had learned in the reincarnation school. He randomly gave an example of a low-level martial world that used genetic evolution as a powerful growth system. After describing it, he let them freely imagine. Imagination was always a magical thing. Everyone was different. In the end, all kinds of plans were submitted. Some wanted to devour the genes of other species to strengthen the human gene chain. At that time, Humans could have the bite force of crocodiles, the arm strength of giant bears, and the jumping ability of kangaroos. 
it was equivalent to learning from each other's strengths. Some people wanted to use drugs to strengthen and mutate human genes. However, the direction of the mutation was a mystery. The person who submitted the proposal could not be sure. It seemed that they just wanted to try it out. The strangest thing was a genetic screening proposal. His goal was to build a human gene bank. It would record all the human gene strands. It would be graded according to the degree of excellence or inferiority. In the future, high-quality genes could only marry high-quality genes to ensure the stability of high-quality genes. There were countless such things. What He Chuan needed to do was to use the deduction system to judge the reasonability of these plans. After confirming, he would consider the subsequent development. In the end, a total of 74 plans were submitted, and He Chuan rebutted 71 of them on the spot. One of them included the one that divided people into three, six, and nine grades. This was the most trashy proposal of all. What he wanted was to break through the hole, ignore the pros and cons, and solve the shackles of the human race as a whole. It was not a problem of one or two people or one or two races. This idea was relatively broad, and the scope was too comprehensive. So much so that it took a lot of time just to collect data. As the days went by, he Chuan's physical condition deteriorated day by day, but there was no progress in his research. For a time, people all over the world fell into a pessimistic mood. He Chuan's influence had unknowingly spread to every corner of the world. There were even voluntary organizations that worshipped him as a god. The last virus that swept the world had taken the lives of nearly a billion people. Among them were their relatives, friends, neighbors, and teachers. All of them had gone through life and death. He Chuan's existence was not an exaggeration to say that he was the savior of the world. It was a very painful thing to watch the savior slowly go into decline, but there was nothing they could do. The leaders of the various countries were even more anxious. If He Chuan died just like that, it would be a huge loss to the entire human society. It was also because of this. The United Nations held a second emergency meeting. They mobilized all the funds available to continue his life. It was a pity. He Chuan, who had a deduction system, could not even find a treatment plan. Even if the best medical team treated him regardless of the cost, what use would it be? Although the treatment alone costs hundreds of millions of dollars every day, the results were not satisfactory. It could even be said that not even the slightest effect had been achieved and all the money had been spent. There was no other way. The United Nations could only hold another emergency meeting. This time, everyone in the meeting room was silent. The President of the United Nations sighed heavily. Mr. He Chuan's existence is beneficial to all of us. At this time, we should put aside the differences and prejudice between our countries and focus on making plans for the future. He is the wealth of all mankind. He can't be divided. You all know very well that as long as he continues to live, our civilization will be able to make progress in a short period of time. After a few words, a few people in the hall whispered a few words, but they still did not express their opinions or suggestions. The conference room fell into silence again. Actually, they had no other choice. They were not scientific researchers, so they did not even have the right to talk about solving He Chuan's illness. No matter how many times this kind of meeting was held, the result would not change. The President of the United Nations was well aware of this. He pondered for a moment before saying, Actually, I have a rather immature idea. If we really can't save him, the worst case scenario would be the unfortunate death of Mr. He Chuan. If we can preserve his genius genes before this, of course, I'm referring to the descendants, then it would not be such a pity for the entire human race. Everyone seemed to have realized something. It seems like we should do that. Mr. He Chuan has been obsessed with research all these years and it seems like he has never had a relationship. This since he has never even had a relationship, where would his descendants come from? Could it be that we are using artificial insemination? This idea is very good, but the premise is that Mr. He Chuan is willing to give you the seeds. I have talked to Mr. He Chuan several times. He is a very rational person. He should not accept your request. 
Why don't we recruit high-quality women aged 18 to 25 from all over the world and let them volunteer to be Mr. He Chuan's partner? There's still more than a year left. As long as he's not paralyzed in that aspect, it wouldn't be a problem for him to have a class of genius children, let alone one child. Who knows, there might even be someone with an IQ comparable to Mr. He Chuan. Why do I feel like you treat Mr. He Chuan like a seating machine? That's a good thing. Mr. He Chuan will definitely be very happy. There are quite a number of beautiful girls who like his books and music. It can be said that love will find a way. Why does something feel not quite right? This topic made a group of people discuss it for a while. In the end, the chairman made the decision. Since no one has a better idea, let's do it according to the current plan. I'll name it Tinder Operation. Remember to keep it a secret and don't let Mr. He Chuan know about it. The group of high-ranking officials nodded at the same time like children. There was a hint of caution in their eyes. Chapter 12 What? A pool party? Are you kidding me? He Chuan looked at the group of high-ranking officials with malicious smiles on their faces and was completely confused. What time was it now, and they still wanted to have fun? They actually wanted to have a pool party. Right now was clearly winter. Sir, I have never seen a second person who is more diligent than you. You work from morning till night. If this continues, your body will be exhausted. Why don't you relax? The director of the United Nations waved to the outside. Soon, a special bulletproof car drove into the research institute and stopped in front of them. He Chuan did not move. He frowned and said, if you are trying to curry favor for no reason, you are either a traitor or a thief. If you have anything to say, just say it. I don't like to beat around the bush. This. The director was a little embarrassed, but his expression did not change. He insisted, you will know what is going on when you get there. There is a surprise that we have prepared for you. It can't be a fright, right? He Chuan was very suspicious of this. Of course not. A middle-aged high-ranking official next to him smiled ambiguously and said, you'll definitely like it. He Chuan didn't quite believe it, so he directly used the deduction system. You get into this car, have a safe journey, and have a wonderful day. It seemed that everything was really fine. Only then did he relax, and sat in the car whose door the chairman personally opened. Aren't you guys going? He Chuan asked. The pool party would definitely be dominated by pretty girls. If he was the only man present, it would be too awkward. The director saw He Chuan's concern and was afraid that he would go back on his words, so he said, We'll be there soon. He Chuan nodded. Before he left, he did not forget to tell the people in the research institute that even if he was not there, the research could not be stopped. Hundreds of researchers promised to let He Chuan relax to his heart's content. As they watched the car slowly drive away, the group of people led by the director could not help but laugh. I didn't expect there to be so many people responding to the Tinder operation. This time, Mr. He Chuan will have fortunes in love affairs with women. Oh right, have you investigated the background of these people? I've already done that. The girls who were able to enter the party this time were all clean. Even those who had ex-boyfriends were excluded. Not bad, you've thought of everything. After He Chuan arrived at the destination, he found out that the party was held in a manor villa in the mountains. It was very high-end. As soon as he got off the car, two demure and beautiful girls walked up with sparkling eyes. Ah, so handsome. Brother He Chuan, you look even more elegant than on TV. They look like twin sisters. Thank you. He Chuan did not know how to answer them, so he could only say, you guys are also very beautiful. The twin sisters smiled and held each of his arms to welcome him in. The soft touch kept coming from their arms as they walked, making He Chuan's mouth dry. Cough. He tried to pull his hand back and let out a voice to remind the two girls that it was not appropriate to be so intimate with each other for the first time. In the end, they hugged it other even tighter. This made He Quan very embarrassed. At this moment, the phone rang. It was the director who called. When he picked it up, it was a voice message. I'm sorry, Mr. He Chuan. We have a last-minute meeting, so we can't go. 
have a good time. There was no chance of rejection or inquiry. The phone was busy. When he called again, it was turned off. Very good. He Chuan gritted his teeth. His brain was already working fast, so how could he not know what the United Nations was trying to do? It was nothing more than using the pool party as a cover to let him keep his seed. Damn it. He did not expect to experience such a disaster in the reincarnation world. Since ancient times, a hero could not overcome beauty. Although he was not a hero, he was a real virgin in both the reincarnation world and this world. To put it bluntly, he had never encountered such a situation. For a moment, there was no information flowing through his brain. Facing such a gentle attack, he didn't know how to respond. What should he do? What should he do? Bang! He Chuan suddenly widened his eyes, his body went limp, and he collapsed onto the ground. His brain actually overworked at such a time, causing his illness to relapse. FCK The two girls beside him seemed to have been prepared. They held him tightly in their arms at the same time, preventing He Chuan from falling. But this way, the degree of contact between them became even more erotic. Although He Chuan's limbs were paralyzed, it was not that he had lost his sensory feedback, it was just that he had lost his mobility. He only felt that he was in an incomparably magical and soft world. Words could not describe it. When he stepped into the backyard, the scene in front of him made him even more surprised. Although it was winter, the manor was equipped with a thermostat system. Moreover, the pool was a natural hot spring. Even in the open air, you would not feel cold if you took off your clothes. At this moment, there were more than a dozen beautiful girls with outstanding looks and slim figures, wearing all kinds of swimsuits, elegantly doing their own things. When the twins brought He Chuan in, they all looked over in unison. Some sized him up, some admired him, some adored him, and some were fanatical. When He Chuan looked back at them, he saw a lot of different emotions. Ha! Huh. There seemed to be a few familiar faces. He seemed to have seen them on TV. This was a famous European and American model. And this? A Japanese and Korean star. Eh, this young lady had a good temperament. She had the air of a big sister. What was the name of the little girl next to her? She seemed to be a genius girl from somewhere. She was wearing a black one-piece swimsuit, which was a little conservative. However, as she walked, the hem of her dress kept fluttering, making her look extremely youthful and lively. My name is Gu Xiao. I'm a student in the 26th year of the genius class. Senior brother He Chuan, nice to meet you. Gu Xiao's smile was very sweet and beautiful, like a pure white and flawless rose. When He Chuan heard that she was from the genius class, he had a good impression of her, so he also smiled. The two of them gradually found a topic to talk about. The other girls also came over to introduce themselves one after another. After they got to know each other, everyone tacitly left some space for Gu Xiao and He Chuan. When they were in the mood to chat, Gu Xiao suddenly took the wine glass at the side and shook it gently. Do you want to drink some? Okay. Night gradually fell. He Chuan was unable to move and was escorted to the room by a group of peerless beauties. They kissed him goodbye one by one and left one after another. In the end, only Gu Xiao remained. There was silence everywhere. She was in the room under the white moonlight, and a faint blush appeared on her face. After an unknown amount of time, she suddenly stammered, Senior, can you close your eyes? He Chuan sensed what was about to happen and could not help but swallow his saliva. After repeatedly struggling with his desires and rationality, he reminded the girl in front of him. You are a very good girl. You have a great time. There is no need for you to be with me that is about to die. He stopped mid-sentence. Gu Xiao covered his mouth with her small hand. She said in a serious and affectionate tone, Senior, I am willing. I, I like you actually, I'm already very satisfied to be able to see you, and now to have such an opportunity I'm very happy every sister who came here thinks so, you must not feel sorry for us. He Chuan stopped talking. The girl had already said so, what else could he do? Gu Xiao took off her clothes bit by bit, 
and her pure white skin was completely exposed in He Chuan's line of sight. Under his curious and nervous eyes, she sat down and found a spot to sit down slowly. It hurt. But this was her favorite senior, she had to persevere. The night wind blew the dark clouds, blocking the bright light. In the darkness, only the sound of deep breathing was left. Chapter, 13 For the next three months, He Chuan stayed in this villa without going out. It wasn't that he was lustful, but that the United Nations had planned this and didn't want him to leave. No matter what reason or excuse he used to ask to leave, they could always find a way to stop him. You want the follow-up on the progress of the Research Institute, right? Okay. The United Nations sent someone to install the most advanced projection equipment the next day. If you have anything to say, just say it online. Anyway, Mr. He Chuan, your health is not convenient, so it's quite good for you to cultivate here. He Chuan was speechless. It was actually inconvenient for him. Each day the time he was being paralyzed became longer and longer, it had seriously affected his work efficiency. Although he relied on his brain power and system deduction, scientific research could not be done without experiments. He had to advance both theory and practice simultaneously. Now that he had the help of 100 scientific researchers, it freed his hands. He just needed to keep an eye on the overall direction of his research. There were people looking after his clothes, food, shelter, and transportation. Everything he used was the highest standard. It could be said that he had enjoyed a luxurious life in this last period of his life. Moreover, there were more than a dozen girls who adored him. Every day, they would come up with different ways to make him happy. The treatment of the ancient emperors was only a so-a-so, right? Congratulations on obtaining a special achievement, the winner of life, your evaluation points have been slightly increased. There was still one more year before he turned twenty. He Chuan's reincarnation seal sent him a notification. At this moment, his limbs were completely unable to move, and he had completely lost the ability to move. Of the three plans that the research institute had originally been working on, two had been sentenced to death by the deduction system after trial and error. And the last plan had come to an end today. There was no feasible way. More than a dozen women who belonged to him surrounded the bed. After hearing the news, pain and despair mixed together and filled their hearts. At this moment, they were very clear. This result was no different from the scythe of death to He Chuan their husbands. One more year. The savior of mankind would completely disappear from this world. Gu Xiao leaned against the bed and gently wiped He Chuan's unresponsive palm with a forced smile on her face. She wanted He Chuan to remember her most beautiful appearance. However, as she wiped, she could not hold back her tears. They fell from her eyes and landed on the pure white bedsheet, forming an irregular flower. Silly girl, you're crying even after putting on makeup. You're like a colorful cat now. He Chuan looked at her exquisite face. He did not expect the atmosphere to be so sad, so he teased her. How could a smart girl like Gu Chiao not understand He Chuan's intentions? However, the more He Chuan acted nonchalant, the more they felt their hearts ache. Gu Chiao's nose twitched. She could not help but bury her head in He Chuan's arms and hugged him tightly. Is there no other way? He Chuan sighed softly. Just as he was about to reach out and hug Gu Chiao's back, he realized that he could no longer move. He could not help but fall silent for a moment. After a long while, he spoke slowly. In this era, or perhaps in the next era, I have already reached the end of my path in science. Genes were unable to be broken through. Hearing this result, Gu Xiao hugged him even tighter. Senior I don't want you to leave me. The girls standing next to her, although they were slightly older and more knowledgeable than Gu Xiao, couldn't help but cry when they heard this. At this moment, someone knocked on the door. The nearby girls went to open the door to check. It was the people from the United Nations. They had also received the news and rushed over. The head of the board of directors at the front was no longer as calm as before. He approached them and asked with concern. Mr. He Chuan, did your plan really fail completely? Yes, it did fail. There's nothing I can do. He Chuan nodded slightly and said, I have one last request. 
I want you to help me. Mr. He Chuan, please go ahead. The chairman said seriously, whatever it is, I will do my best. I want to read all the books in the world. Perhaps, the predecessors have thought about some things that we modern people have overlooked. Okay, I will go and apply for it, your body. It's okay. It's just that I can't move. My brain can still function. I understand. The chairman immediately acted. After he left, he made dozens of calls. The content of the calls only conveyed one message. Mr. He Chuan wanted to read all the documents. There was no discussion at all, and there was not much communication. Countries responded one after another, and they used the media to solicit books and documents from the public. For a time, people all over the world were busy. After all, no matter who it was, there were more or less a few books in their homes. Some people who liked to collect books had even larger reserves. But they still did not hesitate at all. They immediately sorted them all out. Even some of the out-of-print books that were passed down in the family were copied, packed up, and sent to Hichuan's manor villa. That afternoon, the roar of a helicopter's propeller could be heard outside the villa. The box full of books fell and soon filled up half the yard. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. Countless books were on their way. The United Nations immediately recruited volunteers from the community to help organize them. Within ten minutes of the call, the number of respondents had exceeded one million. They had two things to do. The first was to classify and compile a general catalog. The second was to select the books he Chuan wanted to read, scan the contents and upload them online for easy reading. Under the joint action of tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions of books were quickly divided and sorted out. Paper books filled the city. This was the testimony of the entire history of human civilization. It was the wealth of all mankind. At this time, it was delivered to Hikuan bit by bit. He began to deduce without any consideration of the consequences. Since he was already paralyzed, what else could he do? With this thought in mind, the things he deduced were also very complicated. Gu Qiao and the others accompanied him, taking notes for these deduction data days and nights. One day. One month. One year. A total of 365 days. They stayed together, spending the last days of He Chuan's lives with him. On a sunny morning. He Chuan finally felt that his time was coming. His hands and feet regained consciousness at this time. He knew that this was the last ray of light. It was the last struggle of the cells of his body. He had not slept or rested for four consecutive days, so he did not feel tired at all. He did not disturb the girls who were sleeping in a corner of the room. He got off the bed alone and went to the French window. He looked at the people who were still guarding him in the courtyard and smiled. The guards noticed this abnormality at the first moment and reported it immediately. In less than three minutes, the directors and secretaries of the various countries who were stationed nearby rushed over. They were all extremely surprised when they saw He Chuan, who seemed to have regained his vitality. Is Mr. He Chuan all right? This was a question that lingered in everyone's mind. Countless media outlets turned on their cameras at the same time, preparing to record this historic moment. But then, He Chuan took out his phone and placed it aside as if he had recorded something. Then, he faced the rising sun and closed his eyes. He fell to the ground with a loud bang. This was the end of a scientific giant, a genius that was rarely seen in 10,000 years. Chapter, 14 Science always gave people a pleasant surprise. I originally thought I wouldn't be able to solve the genetic puzzle at the end of my life, but I didn't expect it to play a little joke on me. I found the answer, but I won't live past today. Fortunately, I didn't waste my time in this life. Although I have experienced pain, I also have had a wonderful life. I enjoyed numerous things in life and witnessed the ups and downs of the world. I, have no regrets. It is a pity that I cannot give the girls who love me a complete future. I am sorry, please allow me to be selfish. But the end of life is not death, don't be sad for me. Don't ask why. There are more things that you need to discover on your own. Now, let's talk about that answer. 
it's more complicated to explain. I've recorded the contents in that deduction notebook. Those who are interested can take a look. Although it's long and lousy, I believe it can bring you some help. At the end of the notebook, I've marked the method of making a potion that can break through the genetic restriction. You can use it. However, I need to remind you that this potion is unable to unleash its full power. This world is too weak, it's unable to withstand this power. Only when it's brought to a higher level of the world will its effects be displayed. It might sound a little illusory, but to put it in a more realistic way, it's to experience it on another planet. For more specific things, you can explore on your own. The road of life is long. If you can really cross the galaxy and travel through the dimensions, perhaps one day we'll meet again. Ladies and gentlemen, take care. The recording stopped abruptly. At this moment, the room was already filled with people. He Chuan's corpse, which had already turned cold, was now sealed in an ice coffin. There was still a faint smile on his face. Gu Xiao prostrated herself on top of the crystal coffin. Her slender and small hands tried to caress his face through the barrier, sobbing uncontrollably. Senior you haven't heard me call you husband. Billions of people observed a moment of silence. This scene had been broadcast live through the media and spread all over the world. From then on, the world had one more day of remembrance that all mankind had to remember. It belonged exclusively to He Chuan, to commemorate the day he passed away. Not long after, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization began to compile a biography of He Chuan. It recorded his life of great achievements. He was the one and only young genius in the history of mankind. Facing the problem of hunger caused by natural disasters, he started from scratch and cultivated hybrid rice in just three months. Within a year, the famine was completely solved. Even the plague that swept across the world and left countless top researchers helpless was solved in less than a month in his hands. Not only that, but he also brought thousands of famous songs and hundreds of masterpieces to the world. The profits he had obtained had also been donated to the poor for free. The later research had even brought about the advancement of science in the world for hundreds of years. Even at the end of his life, he had unlocked the genetic restrictions of the entire human civilization. Even though he was full of glory, he had given himself to everyone. Numerous selfless feats were listed in detail, causing countless people to be shocked and moved. Many ordinary people originally only had a partial understanding of He Chuan through the special medicine for the new virus. Now, they suddenly discovered something. This twenty-year-old boy had actually done such a great performance in so many places without anyone noticing. Admirable. Honorable. Unfortunately, the million-word deduction notebook left behind by He Chuan was something that no one could understand. The descendants had to follow the method recorded in the book and put the gene reagent into production and use it in large quantities. It was just as he had described in his last words. Most of the people ate it, but there was no obvious effect. Instead, some of the social elites sent feedback, feeling that their physique and intelligence had improved significantly. The research data showed that. These people's cells had stronger activity. And their life cycles were longer. That was to say. They had some of the same abilities as He Chuan, but they didn't die prematurely because of excessive cell depletion. Decades passed in the blink of an eye. This was confirmed by the changing times. The first people who took the gene agent suddenly realized. That they weren't getting very old. They were now in their 70s and 80s. They actually still possessed the energy and skin condition in their 30s. This made everyone excited. Gene reagents could extend one's lifespan. The higher-ups of various countries all realized this. This was the greatest benefit of breaking through to the genetic level. As long as one had enough time to grow, even the weakest person could become an elite of society. This was a qualitative change. It was the embodiment of the overall progress of human civilization. It was also at this time that after so many years of research, some people finally managed to gain some understanding of that deduction notebook. They were shocked to discover that He Chuan had actually left a path for human civilization to enter the higher dimension. Even though they were unable to decipher the more specific content, this information was already enough to make them excited. 
Thus, technological civilization began to transform. Toward the genetic evolution civilization. After a few hundred years, genetic warriors became the mainstream of this world. Now, there was no longer any boundary between countries. There was only a coalition government dealing with matters of all sizes. A new era had begun. Everything had become different. Only in the most prosperous square of each jurisdiction, a tall, humanoid statue remains. Every year, countless people would come to pay their respects. His deeds were written in textbooks. He would be remembered by future generations. He was the ancestor of the genes, He Chuan. Even though his life had already dissipated, in this space-time, this will would remain eternal. Chapter, 15 Reincarnation has ended. Calculating the Evaluation Index On the reincarnation platform, tens of thousands of rays of white light gathered and formed He Chuan's body. He slowly opened his eyes. Looking at the familiar surroundings, he let out a long sigh. He was finally back. Even though this reincarnation did not reverse the final outcome of death at the age of 20. However, he believed that with his contributions and achievements over the years, it would not be a problem for him to be rated above B. The quota for permanent reincarnators had already been obtained. It all depended on what level he could reach in the end. Soon, a notification came from the temporary reincarnation seal. Reincarnation evaluation completed. Personal achievements, writer, musician, philanthropist, agricultural scientist, biologist. Rating has been greatly increased. F. B. Reward 100 reincarnation points and a self-created item, deduction notes. Social contribution, poverty alleviation, solving famine, eliminating world-class harmful viruses. Overall rating increased. B. A. Reward 10 0, 0 reincarnation points, gene reagent perfect quality, one portion. Character template reversal degree, 0% survived for 20 years, failed to change the trajectory of fate, score remains unchanged. Hidden achievement achieved, the replacement of the era. Unraveling the mystery of He Clan syndrome, leading the genetic warriors to completely change the direction of the world, becoming famous throughout the ages, final rating increased by one level. This reincarnation's evaluation, S. When the evaluation exceeds B, the temporary reincarnation seal will automatically transform into a permanent reincarnation seal. Additional S rank reincarnation evaluation reward obtained. 1. The deduction system is retained. 2. Obtain a one time talent, Heavenly Tao simulation. During the next reincarnation, you will be able to deduce your own future. 3. Obtain Valiant Heart, you will be fearless, and will not doubt yourself at any time, creating inner demons. S rank. Am I seeing things? He Chuan rubbed his eyes in disbelief and looked at it twice. There was no minus sign. It was a genuine S. The reward was beyond imagination. First was a total of 11 0, 0 reincarnation points. This was a huge amount of wealth. It could be exchanged for about 100 0, 0 gold coins. Without spending recklessly, a family of three could spend more than 20 0, 0 years. However, he would not foolishly go and exchange for it. After all, things that could be bought with gold coins could also be bought with the reincarnation point. However, things that could be bought with the reincarnation point might not necessarily be able to be bought with gold coins. The reincarnation point represented not only money but also status and position. This was an exclusive item for reincarnators. With so many reincarnation points, even if it was used to exchange for reset the reincarnated world, such a heaven-defying temporary talent, was more than enough. Next, there was the perfect version of the gene reagent and the deduction notebook. These were all things created by He Chuan himself. The medicine was fine, but it was useful after drinking it. However, the deduction notebook was a bit of a headache. He did not suffer from He Clan syndrome. His brain cells were not active enough, so he had already forgotten most of the contents. Reading it repeatedly now could only bring up a portion of his memories. As for using this to improve the gene reagent, or even to create a second or third generation gene reagent, that was unlikely. 
Even now, the deduction system had become one of the rewards. The strength of the deduction system was its computational ability. But this function was built on the basis of the host. In layman's terms, it was to see if your brain was spinning fast. The faster it was spinning, the more efficient the deduction would be. Based on He Chuan's current condition. If he was asked to start from scratch to study gene reagents again, it would definitely take hundreds or even thousands of years to succeed. This was something that couldn't be helped. However, it was better than nothing. The deduction system's value was still very high. It was far higher than all the other rewards added up. One could say that if this reincarnated character did not have a deduction system attached to it, then it was impossible for him to obtain an S-grade evaluation. Looks like I have to become stronger. He Chuan secretly set his goal in his heart. The deduction system was a growth type thing. The more powerful the user was, the more its effects would be reflected. I hope I can reincarnate into a world with a power system next time. Martial arts is the best, it can lay a foundation. Forget about the cultivation world. It's not easy to develop. The power level of genetic warriors is still too weak for this kind of world. Psy, in any case, don't go to the parallel city. All you can gain is theoretical knowledge. It's useless. He Chuan shook his head, turned around, and walked down the platform. Right now, he still had other things to do. After the assessment ended, he had to take the reincarnation seal to the school to register. Only then could he be considered to have an official identity. For those who have participated in the reincarnation assessment for the first time, go back to your original place and wait. The school has a unified arrangement. The guard at the door suddenly called out to him. He Chuan nodded and turned to walk to a corner of the square. All the students in the class were there. The expressions on everyone's faces were not very good. It could even be described as being in excruciating pain. If nothing unexpected happened, it was definitely because the score of the reincarnation assessment was not enough that they had failed the assessment. The only chance to become a reincarnator in life was gone just like that. At the front was the class teacher. He had a distressed look on his face and kept nagging. Sai, why hasn't anyone passed the assessment this year? It's been four consecutive years. How am I going to explain this to the higher-ups? I'm afraid that my title as an excellent teacher will be revoked next year. How can I live with my salary halved? He Chuan walked over casually and quietly stood at the back of the line. The class teacher still noticed him. Seeing He Chuan was like seeing a life-saving straw. He walked up with a smile. Student He Chuan. How was your reincarnation? Did it go well? Chapter, 16. Not bad, at least I passed the assessment. He Chuan did not elaborate. After all, the S-rank evaluation was too scary. If he remembered correctly, none of the students who participated in the assessment in the past had achieved this kind of evaluation. The highest rating was only an A. He had broken the record of many years of examinations. If he were to tell others, perhaps no one would believe him. After all, he was a person from an ordinary background. Where did he get such great ability? The homeroom teacher did not ask in detail and laughed out loud, you really did not disappoint teacher. Good. Very good. He patted He Chuan on the shoulder, his eyes filled with admiration. He thought to himself, that his original plan was indeed very successful, the fifty reincarnation points were not wasted. Although the price was a little high. But spending some money could exchange for career prospects, as well as a new reincarnator's good impression. After careful calculation, it was not a loss. The students next to him cast envious gazes one after another, there was an indescribable longing. No one had expected it. Once upon a time, the poor had suddenly become an unreachable reincarnator lord. From today onwards, they would walk on two completely different paths. The gap between their statuses would grow larger and larger. To put it bluntly, no matter how bad He Chuan's life was in the future, even if he became a weakling that was ridiculed by all the reincarnators, He Chuan was still an existence that they needed to look up to. The little things that fell out from under their fingernails could allow ordinary people like them to live in luxury for a long time. 
why not take advantage of the fact that the friendship between them had yet to fade and hug He Chuan's thigh? There were many people who had such thoughts. Who knows, they might be able to find a decent and stable job through this. For a time, many students who used to treat him with an ordinary attitude came to flatter him. He Chuan did not feel embarrassed. He dealt with all of them calmly. However, he kept a very low-key attitude and communicated with other students. He did not have the habit of showing off in front of ordinary people. After all, he had come up from the bottom. This kind of behavior was meaningless. Other than obtaining a pitiful, empty sense of satisfaction, it was of no use. Moreover, he had lived in the reincarnated world for twenty years. He had been in and out of the upper class and had interacted with high-ranking officials and nobles. What kind of world had he not seen? So many glories had filled up this vanity long ago. It was also because of this that when the others talked to him, they felt as if they were bathed in a spring breeze. This made everyone puzzled. He Chuan was clearly a child who had walked out of the slums. Moreover, he was the lowest of the low. How could he be so good with words? Facing so many people's adoration, he was actually able to be so calm and collected. It was as if he was in this kind of environment all year round. There was even a kind of indescribable superior temperament. Most people were very puzzled about this. After thinking about it, it could only be attributed to the fact that He Chuan was born with the temperament of a leader. Other than this reason, there was no other explanation. At this moment, a man took a step forward from the platform of the reincarnation square. Immediately, a shadow that was nearly a hundred meters tall appeared behind him. This unusual situation attracted everyone's attention. He looked dignified and swept his gaze across the crowd like a god as he spoke slowly. Students, I am the usher of this year's reincarnation grand examination. Please line up in your class and stay in your respective areas. Next, the students who pass the examination will be rewarded according to their ranking by the coalition government. The voice was incomparably loud and clear, and everyone couldn't help but raise their heads to look up. For a moment, the students were all shocked. FCK, 10,000 Avatar. Isn't this a divine ability that can only be obtained in the fantasy world? Which big shot is this? I don't know. This kind of reward can only be obtained by getting at least an A grade. I'm afraid that not many people in the entire administrative region possess it. The A rank of the fantasy world so terrifying. A big shot of this level came here just to give out a reward. That's impossible, right? It definitely isn't that simple. Could it be that our school has a reincarnator with an A rating this time? Don't joke around. Do you know how difficult to get an A rating is? Even in the lowest level of the urban world, it's impossible for you to reach an A rating even if you're elected as the country's leader. An A rating is even more unrealistic. Who cares? I didn't pass the assessment anyway. This thing definitely has nothing to do with me. How many people do you think passed the assessment this time? Can He Chuan enter the top 10? I don't know. He didn't say what his final rating is. I don't think so. It's true that He Chuan passed the assessment, but with his conditions, he definitely can't afford to buy temporary talent. Without the help of such external forces, it's already very rare for him to get a B rating for the first time. It's unlikely for him to get a higher rating. You don't know about that, right? My dad is a reincarnator. He told me that the fewer external forces a reincarnator used, the better. It's best if you don't bring in a temporary talent. That way, you'll get more points. In other words, the poorer a person is, the more likely they are to succeed in reincarnating. Nonsense, right? That's right, what's the use of a temporary talent then? That's different. First-time reincarnators like us don't have any experience at all. We definitely need a temporary talent to help with reincarnation. Secondly, there are those who meet with the world's high difficulty. Without the help of a temporary talent, they won't be able to hold on for long. The opportunity to be a reincarnator is so rare, who would be willing to waste it? I heard that reincarnators have a special forum. The information inside is even more than what is taught in the school. It's all a summary of the experiences of previous generations. 
however, it can't be leaked out. Only reincarnators have the right to see it. Sigh, I don't know who will get first place. The rewards given by the coalition government will definitely be very generous. Soon, the man on the platform received the list and began to read it out. He used the dharma behind him to transmit his voice to every corner of the square. 47th place, Chris, grade B, reincarnated into the world of martial arts, with a top grade temporary talent. Rewarded with 300 reincarnation points and one standard house. 46th place, Wan Yen Weiya, grade B, reincarnated into a parallel urban world, with a mid-grade temporary talent. Rewarded with 500 reincarnation points and one standard house. 45th place, Teto. As the announcement was made, beams of light shot out from the light ball on the reincarnated platform, landing on the person whose name was called. Not long after, a special person delivered the reward. Everyone looked at this scene with great envy. Those who were in the bottom few were rewarded with thousands of reincarnation points, so wouldn't the top few be rewarded with tens of thousands? As expected, the following rewards were even more generous. Third place, Xiao He, B grade, reincarnated in a parallel city world, carries low grade talent. Rewarded with 30 zero, zero reincarnation points, and a low-grade fire attribute special ability fruit. Second place, Deng Ken, B-grade, reincarnated in a world of martial arts, carries low-grade talent. Rewarded with 50 zero, zero reincarnation points, and one basic body tempering cultivation technique book in the immortal cultivation world. Speaking up to this point, he paused for a moment and slowed down his pace. First place. He Chuan, does not carry reincarnated talent. S grade. Rewarded with a manor and villa set. Number of spiritual fields. Reincarnated guards, team 1. Reincarnation points, 1 million. As soon as he finished speaking, everyone was shocked. Especially those classmates who had interacted with He Chuan day and night were all stunned. None of them expected that the person from the worst family in the class actually won first place. S rank. And he achieved it without talent. Everyone fell into deep doubt. This world, wasn't fake, right? Playing such a big joke on them. Chapter, 17. He Chuan looked helplessly at the golden beam of light that landed on his body. He had originally wanted to keep a low profile, but now, he was exposed in public. The coalition government was indeed rich and powerful. The rewards one after another made He Chuan, who had seen the world, feel a little dizzy. The first was the one million reincarnation points. This was even more powerful than the purchasing power of ten million gold coins. He could buy whatever he wanted to buy and realized the true freedom of consumption. In addition, there was a residence with a spirit field. The so-called spirit field was a special land that could grow spirit foods and spirit fruits. These were all things that the reincarnators on the market could not wish for. Long-term consumption of spirit foods could effectively improve the body's basic qualities and increase strength. Spirit fruit could stimulate intelligence and greatly enhance spiritual power. These were all things he Chuan needed. Especially the latter. If he wanted to quickly deduce, he would have to have a stronger spiritual power. In addition, the coalition government had even assigned a team of reincarnators to guard him. This was a bit exaggerated. He was not a leader, why would he need to be protected? He did not know what they were thinking. After a short period of surprise, He Chuan returned to his usual indifferent appearance. The coalition government would definitely not give so many benefits for free. If he was blinded by benefits, he would not be far from being controlled by others. Soon, the man personally delivered the reward. He looked at He Chuan's indifferent expression and nodded in satisfaction. Let's go out for a walk. He Chuan did not refuse. It was obvious that the other party had something to discuss with him in private. Thus, the two of them sat in the luxurious custom made sedan waiting outside the school, leaving behind a group of stunned students. On the way, through their conversation, he Chuan also understood the other party's intentions. This was the representative sent by the coalition government. He was specially sent to receive He Chuan. His name was Kuyuan. His status was very high. 
Among the reincarnators, he was considered one of the strongest. Sending him here also showed how much the coalition government valued He Chuan. He Chuan was still a little confused, I only got an S rank in the parallel city world. How did the coalition government notice me? Usually, doesn't the news often show who got an S rank? That's just publicity. Do you think it's that easy? There are hundreds of billions of people in the world, tens of millions of reincarnators, and the number of reincarnators every day is no less than six figures. Kuyuan smiled slightly, but in fact, most people's final rating is between E and B. There are very few people who can get above A, only a few hundred people. These two sentences made He Chuan's impression of this world change once again. It turned out that it was more difficult than he had imagined to get a high reincarnation evaluation score. However, after a moment of silence, he still said, that's not bad too, an S rank is not that hard to come by. No, 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 your score. Kuyuan explained, those people are old foxes who have reincarnated more than ten times. Their personal experience and strength are not something that someone who had just reincarnated like you can compare with. They can easily get an A or an S in parallel cities or martial arts worlds, but you are different. What's the difference? You are the only person whose personal strength matches the difficulty of the reincarnated world, and you even got an S-grade evaluation. Do you understand now? Kuyuan's expression suddenly became a little sorrowful, when I first reincarnated to an ordinary city, I only got an A-grade with the temporary talent living comfortably. Tell me how valuable you are, those people even called you the light of hope for reincarnated people. Ho Chuan was silent. The light of hope. That doesn't sound right. Kuyuan saw the expression on He Chuan's face and couldn't help patting his shoulder. Don't think too much, it's good for you now, the coalition government will pour a lot of resources on you, whatever you need, we'll try to meet it. He Chuan shook his head and said, I just want to be stronger and control my own destiny. It's a very realistic ideal. The smile on Ku Yuan's face became even brighter. He turned to look out of the window and said, We've arrived at the reincarnation bank. Let's go. I'll take you to witness how much wealth a million reincarnation points are. Soon, He Chuan stepped into the reincarnation bank under Ku Yuan's lead. It seemed that the higher ups had already informed him. The bank manager personally handled the business for He Chuan. In the shortest amount of time, everything was taken care of for him. In addition to the millions of reincarnation points, he also received the house deeds for the manor villa. When these things were really in his hands, it would be a lie to say that he was unhappy. In the blink of an eye, not only did he have so much wealth, but he also got to know Ku Yuan, a high-level figure in the coalition government. It could be said that his status had changed greatly with the success of his first reincarnation. At this time, two figures first appeared in He Chuan's mind. They were the parents of this world. They had worked hard to bring themselves up. They had worked hard for half of their lives. It was time for him, this son to let them enjoy a good life. After that, He Chuan was ready to go to the slums and bring his parents to live in the manor villa. Ku Yuan followed him and did his best. The environment in the slums was very bad. It was too dirty and messy to be described. Cars could not pass through at all. To avoid accidents, Ku Yuan sent the reincarnated guards to maintain law and order and cleared the road for He Quan to go home. At the end of the road stood a dilapidated wooden house. It was even divided into several parts and several families lived in it. He Chuan's house was the smallest one. However, there was no one in it at the moment. According to the neighbors, father and mother he had gone out to look for temporary work early in the morning and would not come back until the evening. This could not help but make He Chuan feel sad in his heart. Ku Yuan immediately looked at the reincarnator squad leader next to him and gave him a look. The other party immediately understood and pulled more than a dozen reincarnators to spread out and search for information at the nearby employment agency. Not long after, a couple with rough and dark skin, who looked to be in their sixties, was brought over. He Chuan rushed up without hesitation and hugged them tightly. He Chuan's mother's eyes were moist, and He Chuan's father was also in tears. They learned from the reincarnator's guards that their child had now become the most dazzling star of this year's assessment. 
the only reincarnator in history who got the S rating in his first reincarnations. The future is bright. Chapter, 18 The family chatted for a while. When relatives and friends heard the news, they all ran over to give their blessings. They all looked at He Chuan with respect and envy in their eyes. A reincarnator. This was an existence that many ordinary people had to look up to in their entire lives. They did not expect that a child who had successfully broken the shackles of the social class would appear in their family. It was truly the blessing of the ancestors. Many passers-by secretly regarded this child from the He family as a benchmark. Everyone was from the slum since your He family could nurture the descendants of reincarnators, why can't we? For a time, everyone's hearts were filled with motivation. He Chuan's appearance undoubtedly brought a shock to the beliefs of these people who lived at the lowest level. In this world, nothing is impossible. It just doesn't happen to you. If you work hard enough, you can still change the future. After that, He Chuan moved to a new house with his parents. On the side of the manor villa, the reincarnated guards assigned to He Chuan were already doing their protection assignment. According to Ku Yuan, this group of people would be responsible for protecting He Chuan's family and property, so that he would have no worries when he reincarnated. Everyone was powerful, and they were all professional bodyguards. Usually, they relied on this kind of protection work to earn reincarnation points. With the government's funding, they had spent a lot of money to invite them over. He Chuan expressed his gratitude for this. His parents were honest people who had never seen the world, let alone experienced wealth and honor. When they came to the manor and saw the luxurious decoration inside, they were all very restrained. When they were choosing the room, they chose the most simple room among the many luxurious ones. If he remembered correctly, this seemed to be a place for the servants to live. In the end, this caused the servants to become restrained. He Chuan repeatedly comforted them, but the effect was still not great. He had no choice but to let the two elders and the servants slowly get used to it. After a series of matters were settled, the sun had already set and it was time to rest. At this moment, Kuyuan stood up and took his leave. I've already arranged the manpower for the manor. Leave all kinds of matters to the butler. You guys can stay here in peace. If there's anything, call this number. As he spoke, Kuyuan handed over a business card. He told He Chuan to call the higher ups directly when he ran into a problem that he couldn't solve. There would be people assigned to handle it. Thank you for your trouble, Mr. Ku. He Chuan nodded, I want to start the next reincarnation as soon as possible. Is there any way to obtain the number of times? This is a little troublesome. Usually, if the reincarnators want to reincarnate again, they have to undergo a series of evaluations to avoid wasting resources. Ku Yuan thought for a moment, leave it to me. Since the coalition government has already planned to train you, they will definitely not be stingy in this aspect. After all, the faster you grow, the better it will be for them. What benefits will they have? He Chuan was a little curious. You'll understand the benefits of being strong in the future. Don't think too much about it now. Ku Yuan smiled slightly and didn't elaborate. He Chuan expressed his understanding. He took the business card and watched the other leave. Why do I always feel a sense of crisis? He Chuan tried to use the system's deductive ability to obtain some information. In the end. In the process of deducing the event, adding the parameter, not getting stronger, future, original world, the number of prediction development of the storylines is unknown, and unable to obtain the optimal solution. Forcefully deducing the prediction will take a trillion years. All right, I don't have enough brain power, forget it. He Chuan yawned. After working for so long, he was physically and mentally exhausted. He went straight upstairs to prepare the water, took off his clothes, and immersed his entire body in the water. The luxurious bathtub came with its own massage function. He Chuan enjoyed the subtle touch coming all over his body. At the same time, he opened the reincarnators forum and began to understand the knowledge that only reincarnators could gain. The forum was more lively than he had imagined. Every time he refreshed it, there would be many new posts. There were fights, insults, discussions, and sharing. Everything was there. He Chuan ignored these contents. 
After filtering out most of the popular posts, he finally found something he was interested in. The first was 100 knowledge points that a new reincarnator must know. This was an academic post. It listed a lot of problems that a new reincarnator might encounter, as well as suggestions. He was immersed in it, but halfway through, someone suddenly knocked on the door. Come in, the door isn't locked. He Chuan originally thought that it would be his parents who would come in and ask him if they had any equipment. However, a fragrant wind blew and a crisp voice that sounded like an aureole rang in his ears. Sir Reincarnator, I am the secretary sent by Mr. Ku and am in charge of serving you. Secretary? Serving? He Chuan turned around in confusion. The voice sounded familiar, but he could not tell who it was. The lights in the bathroom were not turned on. For the sake of extreme relaxation, he chose a dark environment. Right now, only the floor-to-ceiling windows that were close to the bathtub could be seen. The neon lights that were used for decoration flickered. Amidst the flickering lights, one could only see a young girl with a graceful figure and sexy clothes. She was carrying a crystal bowl filled with spirit foods and spirit fruits as she approached. She placed the thing in her hand on the edge of the bathtub and asked softly. Sir, do you want to eat something? No, I'm not hungry. Then shall I massage your shoulders? This bathtub has a massage function. He Chuan's voice was flat, go out, I don't need anyone to serve me. Go back and tell Mr. Ko to change your jobs. Bang! In the darkness, the young girl's body trembled as she knelt on the ground, her voice trembling. Sir Reincarnator, what did when you would do wrong? You can hit and scold her however you want please don't chase me away. He Chuan was a little helpless, get up then talk. The young girl only slowly raised her head, not daring to get up. At this moment, the neon lights suddenly brightened up a little, shining on her pretty face that had traces of tears on it. The two looked at each other and exclaimed at the same time. It's you. He Chuan was shocked. Wasn't this the girl who had occupied his fifty reincarnation points before he reincarnated? How did she come here? Chapter 19 Jiang Wenyue was also very surprised. After failing the reincarnation, she left the school disheartened. Her parents had gone to great lengths to find a job as a secretary for a reincarnator. They had even told her to cherish this opportunity. The other party was a young talent highly regarded by the coalition government. As long as she was highly regarded by the other party, it would not be a problem for her to reverse her fate. However, she did not expect that this young talent was actually an outcast that she had once bullied by relying on her family background's advantage. For a moment, Jiang Wenyue had mixed feelings in her heart. We both participated in the same reincarnation assessment, why was he the one who successes and not me? Why was he able to obtain such a good living environment? To live in such a luxurious mansion. Jealousy and envy mixed together. But what followed was a deep fear. She had offended He Chuan before, and now she was under him. Whether this rare job could continue was entirely up to him. If she wanted to continue to stay here and enjoy a high salary, she could only seek the forgiveness of this man in front of her. Jiang Wenyue spoke slowly. Sir He Chuan, I was insensible and offended you before, so I apologize to you right now. I'm sorry if you still have resentment in your heart, feel free to vent it on me. You can ask when you are to do anything you want. He Chuan chuckled and didn't say anything. He pinched a round spirit fruit between his fingers and put it into his mouth. Hmm, this thing was quite delicious. It was juicy and sweet. Jiang Wenyue was very uncertain when she saw He Chuan's movement. It seemed that she had to do something more practical to prove her determination. But what should she do? She suddenly lowered her head to look at her carefully selected lace dress. After hesitating for a long time, she finally gritted her teeth and raised her hand to brush her shoulders. Without the support of the shoulder strap, the dress fell down along the curves of her body. Only her underwear was left to cover her body which made her look even sexier. What are you doing? He Chuan's voice suddenly sounded. Waiting for you to take a bath. Jiang Wenyue was so nervous that she couldn't speak. Her nails were embedded into her thighs. 
He Chuan rolled his eyes, I'm not a disabled person that I need help to take a shower. Then then Yu Jiang Wenyue was a little uncertain about He Chuan's attitude. Put on your clothes. He Chuan said casually, tell me about your reincarnation process. Oh okay. Jiang Wenyue was still a little reserved. After putting on her short dress, she sat by the bathtub. In the end, He Chuan rolled his eyes again. What are you sitting here for? Are you trying to take advantage of me? Sit further away. Jiang Wenyue didn't dare to make a sound and retreated far away. After brewing her emotions for a while, she sank into her memories. Then, her calm voice echoed in the darkness. I've been reincarnated into a spiritual energy recovery world. Humans are facing a doomsday crisis. Only by exploring and using the special energy that suddenly spread out to strengthen themselves can they escape this crisis. Although the difficulty was relatively high, the strength system here was still in the stage of transition. Everyone was on the same starting line, and it was all based on talent. The life template that I met was a little bad, but my talent was not bad. It could be considered to be above the standard. It's a pity that I was too young at that time and couldn't cultivate. If I just waited like this, the geniuses in this world would definitely surpass me by several large realms. If I want to reach B-class and pass the test, I definitely can't be too far behind them in terms of combat strength. So, I used the temporary mid-grade talent I brought over to change my family background. I was prepared to use my family's wealth to quickly accumulate cultivation resources when I grew up. But one day, all my family members were killed. This was an accident that wasn't mentioned in the family background story. I was caught off guard. If I hadn't failed the exam and stayed after school that day, I might have died in this accident. After that, the development became a mess. After leaving my family, accidents became more frequent. I finally cultivated to the age of 18 and had a certain level of strength. I made a small name for myself, but in the end, I was targeted by a male cultivator who insisted on dual cultivation with me. I although it was only a reincarnation world, I was still unwilling, so I had a conflict with him and accidentally killed him. His family was very powerful, and there were several experts and prodigy in his family. I was completely no match for them, so I could only conceal my identity and hide to cultivate. But the world is unpredictable, and the first disaster of the end of the world has arrived. The original species on the planet have received a huge increase in mutation due to the recovery of spiritual energy. Their original habitat can no longer meet their needs. They have begun to invade human cities. The strength of the beast tide was much stronger than I imagined. I can't even deal with the weakest demon beasts. Ordinary spells can't even break their skin. I died in a chaotic battle. When the final reckoning came, the human population was reduced by 80%. The losses were heavy. I haven't done anything. My score didn't even reach an E. Sigh I don't know what I did wrong. It was supposed to be normal at the beginning. How did it suddenly become like this? After saying that, Jiang Wenyue didn't forget to complain. Obviously, she was very dissatisfied with the result of this reincarnation. He Chuan unconsciously frowned as well. Logically speaking, the template obtained through temporary talent was fixed. The disaster that should happen at the right time would happen at the right time, and it would never change. What the reincarnators needed to do was to improve themselves before this, avoid negative events, change their family or their fate, and obtain evaluation points. Just like what this girl said. He Chuan suddenly thought of the post he had just seen in the reincarnator forum. It seemed that it says, during the process of reincarnation, try not to do anything that would attract hatred or influence the decisions of the family. Otherwise, the development of the event might go beyond your imagination. He recalled the girl's arrogant and condescending attitude when she first faced him. He estimated that the former was more likely, and then it magnified through the butterfly effect, then became a massacre. This sudden situation led to the interruption of cultivation resources, causing the subsequent growth to be slow and unable to support the overall situation. With the chaotic development rhythm, it was impossible to obtain a high evaluation during the reincarnation process. Jiang Wenyue's personal experience alerted He Chuan. 
he could not just act according to the background template. The reincarnation world was full of dangers. If he reincarnated again, it would be difficult to be as smooth sailing as the first time. After all, the deductive system's functionality was not as good as before. It was very unrealistic to rely on this to avoid disaster. Suddenly, a notification came from the reincarnation imprint. You have received a chance to reincarnate. Immediately after, his phone rang. Jiang Wenyue helped him to get it from his room and put it on speakerphone. Then, Ke Yuan's voice came from inside. He Chuan, the matter of reincarnation has been settled. It could be used on any reincarnation square. If you still need help in the future, just call me directly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ku. It's too polite to call me Mr. Brother Ku. Ha ha ha, Brother He Chuan, I'll look for you for a drink some other day. Oh right, are you satisfied with Secretary Jiang Wenyue? Jiang Wenyue, who was holding the phone, could not help but tremble. He Chuan glanced at her, not bad. He he, I handpicked this. Out of the three hundred or so girls who came to register, she's the most beautiful and has the best figure. She's right beside me now. Ha! Huh. Didn't the guard say that you've already returned to your room? Oh I get it, little brother, you're busy. Every moment of the night is precious, I won't bother you anymore. Do do. The phone was hung up at lightning speed. Chapter 20 A few days passed in the blink of an eye. He Chuan stayed at home and did not go out. His daily life was taken care of by the secretary, Jiang Wenyue. He did not know whether it was an illusion or not. After that embarrassing phone call, this girl always dressed sexily and acted frivolously every time she came to see him as if she was deliberately seducing him. He Chuan ignored her. He was more willing to improve himself than to enjoy the beauty. During this time, he had been sorting out the harvest of his first reincarnation. After reviewing the deduction notes, he immersed himself in the knowledge of the reincarnation forum. There were right and wrong contents, and only the deduction system could filter out the correct information. The effect of taking the spirit fruit also showed up at this time. He Chuan clearly felt that his efficiency in using the deduction system had more than doubled. However, there was still a huge gap compared to his first reincarnation who had, He Clan Syndrome. If that He Chuan's brain was comparable to a quantum computer, then he was now just an ordinary calculator. It could even be stuck at eight-digit multiplication and division. There were not many ways to improve this. One could either keep taking the spirit fruits or enter the next reincarnation to look for opportunities. Let's just reincarnate. On the night of the seventh day, He Chuan logged out of the forum. After explaining what he wanted to do to the butler, the reincarnator guard drove him to the nearest reincarnation square. Retrieving target's identity connecting with the characters of the reincarnation world connected successfully. The world you are about to descend into is, martial arts world. Do you want to receive the background information? Yes. This time, He Chuan did not hesitate. A large amount of information flowed through his mind. Instantly, he had a rough understanding of the world he was about to reincarnate into. Low-level martial arts world. Looks like there's no need to prepare a temporary talent so as not to affect the score. Let's start the reincarnation. As soon as he said that, endless light engulfed him. The world was spinning again. When he Quan woke up again, he was already in a dilapidated temple. He looked down. Fortunately, this was not a newborn baby. He was already a seven or eight year old brat. Afterward, more information appeared in his mind. Character background, you were born in a rural family. You were born with no meridians and could not practice martial arts. Your body was extremely weak and will suffer from illnesses every few days. The plague was prevalent in the village and many people were suffering from it. It was difficult for them to recover. In order to avoid being blamed, the county magistrate who manages this area deceived the higher-ups and delude the people. He used the excuse of brewing medicinal soup to treat the illness to lure the entire village to a remote temple outside the city. In reality, he locked everyone in this place and left them to fend for themselves. Your parents could not survive the hunger and illness, and both of them passed away. You became an orphan, and just as you were about to die, 
the monk in the temple could not bear to see you, a little child dies, so he brought you along. Even though it was hard for him to survive, he was still very good to you. Every day, he gave you more than half of the food that he gained hard. Very good, it was another hellish start. Very much to his taste. He Chuan stretched his body and began to familiarize himself with his own situation. Crack. His bones and joints rang. Accompanied by a feeling of pain or numbness, he immediately gave up the idea of continuing to move. This was born with no meridians. Too weak. As weak as a chicken. This was really out of the question. He seriously suspected that he wouldn't be able to walk halfway when his bones suddenly couldn't bear the weight of his body and broke in the middle. So he Chuan closed his eyes and connected his mind to the reincarnation mark. There were three things stored in it. Deduction notes, gene reagent perfect version, and heavenly Tao simulation. Use heavenly Tao simulation. He Chuan ordered in his heart. This was something he obtained through reincarnation. It did not count as a foreign object and would not affect the final score. Soon, pieces of information appeared in his mind. This was a simulation of his future life. The story was very long. He was now more than seven years old. By the time the simulation reached the age of nine, the sky had already become dark. At night, in these ancient times in the open fields of the countryside, there would occasionally be wild beasts. It was even more dangerous in this remote place. Just as each one was considering whether to stop the simulation first, the story of the age of nine ended and he turned ten. The story only lasted for a few seconds before the last line of words appeared in front of his eyes. You're dead. He Chuan felt a chill on his back as if he had seen the end of his life. He would die in two more years. What kind of joke was this? Suddenly, a wrinkled hand pressed on his shoulder. He Chuan was shocked. He turned around only to find that it was the monk who had brought him along. The wind is strong at night. Don't stand at the door, let's go back. Yes, master. He Chuan nodded obediently and perfectly blended into his current persona. The monk closed the dilapidated temple door and blocked it with wood. Then, he brought He Chuan back to his house. On the way, they passed by a large hall. It was the place where they worshipped Buddha in the temple. The place that was supposed to be permeated with a solemn atmosphere was now filled with men and women in shabby clothes. He Chuan coughed from time to time. In his eyes, it was the constant interaction between the viruses. He did not take any precautions and slowly walked through the crowd. Everyone here was infected with the plague. No one was spared. It did not matter whether they were blocked or not. Fortunately, the mortality rate of the disease was not high. It was just torturing. Otherwise, they would not have two years to live. The monk returned to his residence and took out half of the broken pancake from the corner of the stone bed. He tore off a small piece with his cracked hands. After that, he took out the grey bamboo tube hanging on the wall and handed it to He Chuan. He Chuan had long been hungry to the point of making gurgling sounds alone. At that moment, he did not dislike it and directly put the pancake into his mouth to chew. In the end, he almost lost his teeth to the hard rock-like pancake. He had no choice but to take a sip of the water in the bamboo tube, soak it slowly, and then swallow it after it softened. During this time, He Chuan accidentally drank two more mouthfuls of water. Who would have thought that the bamboo tube, which was quite heavy when picked up, would actually drunk to the bottom? When he poured it again, only one or two drops of water remained. He Chuan looked at the monk in confusion. Was eating and drinking so tight now? After being surprised, he felt a little embarrassed. If he drank all the water, what should the monk do? The monk did not speak. The corners of his mouth curled up into a smile as if he wanted to tell He Chuan that it was okay, but it looked a little ugly. He silently tore off a cake that was not even the size of a finger and slowly put it into his mouth. After that, he climbed onto the head of the bed and sat cross-legged in meditation, silently reciting the scriptures in his heart. Sigh. He Chuan saw it and sighed slightly in his heart. This reincarnation seemed to be more difficult than he had imagined. Chapter, 21 Late at night, 
He Chuan sat on the stone slab in the courtyard and looked up at the sky. The stars in the sky and the occasional black clouds of wild birds formed a beautiful picture. I should use the gene reagent. After thinking for a long time, he finally made this decision. This body was too weak. Not only was he plagued by illness, but he was also born with incomplete meridians. In a world of martial arts, how painful was it to not be able to practice martial arts? Although in the reincarnated world, after using this medicine, it would have no effect on He Chuan in the origin world. However, for the sake of the final rating, he decided to go all out. In any case, he had the deduction notes. One day, he would be able to create his own gene reagent. It wasn't considered a waste. Gulp, gulp, gulp. He gulped down the gene reagent. A warm feeling spread throughout his entire body. A power that he had never felt before gradually spread throughout his body. It was like flowing water, flowing through his limbs and bones. After an unknown amount of time, He Chuan suddenly opened his eyes. A sharp glint flashed through his eyes. At this moment, he felt that his brain power was even stronger than his first reincarnation. Countless memories came flooding in. The originally unclear content became extremely clear. The most important part of it was the theoretical knowledge of infectious diseases that he possessed during his last reincarnation. For a time, the plague that was now rampant in the countryside was as simple as treating a cold in his eyes. However, the sanitary conditions of this era were restricting his ability to perform. There was no microscope or medicine here. If he wanted to get rid of the plague, he had to start from the medical path that existed in this world. He Chuan aimed his gaze at the Buddhist scripture pavilion in the temple. Although this place was dilapidated, there were times when it was glorious. There were many books in the temple, so there should be something he needed. After walking around, he found the book Hundred Herbs Prescriptions. This was a book that recorded how to use herbs to treat diseases. It listed the medicinal effects of hundreds of herbs. Whether it was right or wrong, He Chuan had to verify the details himself. His idea was to combine several herbs with different medicinal effects, and after refining and boiling them, he would get similar effects to modern medicine. It sounded like a fantasy, but with the deduction system, it wasn't difficult to do it. It was just a waste of time. Now that his brain had greatly improved, he could accept it. During the deduction, he obtained many pill formulas that might be effective. After that, he did a second deduction. You consumed Guiyuan powder and died of poison three days later. You consumed Mafei soup, nothing happened. You consumed Sanhua Dewdrop pill, your condition improved significantly. You recovered completely after a month. Very good, I found it. The only thing left to do was to collect the medicinal herbs. Now that he had consumed the gene reagent, his physical fitness was already above that of an ordinary person. Although he was only seven years old, he was no less than an adult in terms of strength. Therefore, he went up the mountain alone with the only sickle in the temple to pick herbs. In the beginning, he had a full harvest. But as he continued to explore, the herbs needed in the vicinity became less and less, so he had to change his mind and start practicing medicine in a nearby town. Making money. This way, he could directly go to the city to buy ready-made herbs. Unfortunately, the idea was very good, but the reality was very harsh. Who would believe that a fart-sized child was practicing medicine? After a few days of neglect, He Chuan thought of a way. He found a piece of white cloth, wrote a line of words on it with coal, and hung it on a bamboo pole. When practicing medicine, he placed it on the side as a sign. This time, not long after, someone stopped. The divine doctor descends to the world, and all kinds of diseases are not a problem. If the medicine doesn't work, won't take a cent. The passerby looked at the signboard and silently chanted. He could not help but laugh. He looked at He Chuan and said, Hey, kid, did you say that you are the divine doctor? You can cure all diseases. Is it true? Whether it's true or not, we will know once you go up and try. He Chuan sat cross-legged on the ground. He did not even open his eyes. He looked like an expert. This person hesitated for a moment before he finally made up his mind. All right. 
let me see how capable this so-called divine doctor of yours is. He squatted on the ground and stretched out his right hand. Come, check my pulse. Unexpectedly, He Chuan did not move at all. After taking a look, he casually threw out a piece of cloth with a series of medicinal ingredients written on it. It looked like a pill formula. External application. A young but indifferent voice came out of his mouth. The passerby laughed. You're so young yet come out to cheat people. I don't have any external injuries on my body. How can I apply external application? His voice was very loud, causing many people to gather around and stop in their tracks. A group of people who did not know what was going on also saw the white cloth hanging on the bamboo pole. Those who did not know how to read would ask someone who knew nearby. As a result, they all knew that the child in front of them claimed to be the divine doctor, and now he had been slapped in the face. For a moment, there was a flurry of discussion, and everyone blamed the child for what he did. However, He Chuan's expression did not change. This medicine was not prescribed to you. The passerby found it funny, if it wasn't for me, then who did you give it to? Could it be that there was a second person who came to you for treatment? He Chuan pointed at the yellow dog that was following behind him. I prescribed this medicine to it. This time, the onlookers laughed and felt that the child was starting to be unreasonable. You came to me for treatment, but in your heart, you did not feel that my medicine was usable. You were worried that you would be poisoned by the medicine, so you changed hands and used this medicine on the dog by the roadside. He Chuan suddenly opened his eyes and looked straight at the passerby. He asked in a more serious tone, yes or no. The passerby's expression instantly changed, and he couldn't say a word. How did this child know what he was thinking? The onlookers couldn't help but become curious and asked one after another. In the end, the passerby nodded with great difficulty, which surprised everyone. In order to verify He Chuan's words, someone took a trip with the prescription and really made the medicine. Then, he applied it to the yellow dog's festering wound. Not long after, the yellow dog that was lying on the ground and whimpering could actually stand up. This time, everyone was shocked. Could it be that this seven or eight year old brat in front of them was really a divine doctor? People in this era were still somewhat ignorant. When they encountered things that they could not understand, they would always attribute it to things that were fantasized like gods and ghosts. He Chuan also used this point to quickly build his image and raise his prestige. Very soon, an old woman dragged her hunched body forward to seek medical treatment. He Chuan saw that she was pitiful, so he gave her a prescription for free. After going back and giving it a try, it really worked. Thus, in the days that followed, He Chuan's path of practicing medicine became smoother and smoother. It didn't take long for the little divine doctor's name to spread, directly making him the most famous person in the nearby villages and towns. Social status rising, the divine doctor achievement has been unlocked, the evaluation points have increased slightly. Chapter 22 As He Chuan's reputation soared, he also received his first bucket of gold. With this money, the people in the temple could be saved. If he could get rid of the plague, he might be able to obtain another wave of evaluation points. Perhaps, there would be high-ranking officials and tycoons who heard of his reputation and would spend a large sum of money to invite him to treat his illness. However, wealth cannot save one's life, and medicine cannot change one's fate. In this world where martial arts were revered, medical skills and money were not a big deal. Therefore, after He Chuan bought enough medicinal herbs to treat the illness, he began to study martial arts. There were many books in the Buddhist scripture pavilion, and martial arts techniques were among them. Moreover, they covered a wide range of aspects. According to the classification of this world, it was generally divided into two parts, internal strength, and external strength. The so-called external strength was also known as Chinese boxing skills. It leaned towards fighting techniques, and when paired with the corresponding weapons, the power would be even stronger. This type of martial arts specialized in body techniques, and some specialized in body refining. There were all kinds of martial arts and all sorts of different types. As for internal strength, it was very simple. The people who cultivated internal strength all used the unique methods of their mental cultivation methods to absorb the energy between heaven and earth. 
Then, they would store this energy in their bodies and control it to produce a huge amount of lethality. Looking at these cultivation methods that each had their own merits, He Chuan was not very satisfied. The books in the dilapidated temple were a little low level. According to the classification of this world, they were all entry level martial arts, so learning them would not be very powerful. Even if they were cultivated to perfection, they would only be third rate warriors. If they encountered the weakest second rate martial artist, they would probably be instantly killed in a few moves. The growth rate of martial arts was obvious. This wouldn't do. He Chuan clearly understood the crisis that he would face in two years. If he was only a third-rate martial artist, he would probably have some difficulty even protecting himself. In the end, he definitely wouldn't be able to escape the ending of death. He had no choice but to create his own martial arts. To be more precise, he had to merge all the martial arts manuals into one martial art that was both internal and external. This was a field that no one had ever tried before. Hence, it was extremely difficult to implement. As a result, he, who had the deduction system, was making slow progress. However, it was not completely hopeless. After hundreds of thousands of deductions, he finally found a feasible path. Half a year later. A martial arts technique that covered body technique, mental cultivation, weapons, body refinement, and more than a dozen other martial arts directions appeared out of nowhere. He Chuan named it the Tyrannical True Cultivation Manual Lower. It was a simple and clear name. The reason why it had a suffix of lower was that he had divided this martial arts technique into three upper, middle, and lower, which corresponded to the three levels of a martial artist. At present, the martial arts knowledge he had obtained in the ruined temple's Buddhist scripture pavilion was only enough for him to deduce the most basic part. If he wanted to continue deducing, he had to summarize the experiences of the previous people and read more martial arts books. Unfortunately, he did not have this condition now. However, with the special nature of this cultivation technique, once it was successfully cultivated, there would definitely be no opponents within the same level. This was He Chuan's prediction. But it was also the result of his deduction. There was no other way, the tyrannical true cultivation manual was too comprehensive. For ordinary martial artists to cultivate a cultivation technique, they would need at least more than 10 years to have some small success and barely make it into the third-rate cultivator. Whether it was internal or external martial artists, it was the same. A person's life was less than a hundred years, how many ten years could there be for a person to cultivate a new martial arts technique? Therefore, if one wanted to become a second-rate or even a first-rate martial artist, one could only continue to explore and move forward in one direction. If one threw out the tyrannical true cultivation manual, which could cover all directions. Perhaps even the most talented martial artist would not be able to complete the lower part after decades of cultivation. After all, the more complicated the cultivation method was, the easier it would be to make mistakes during the cultivation process. At that time, one would have to repeatedly revise it. This was the most time-consuming thing. However, He Chuan was different. The deduction system could help him find the best cultivation method and greatly increase his efficiency. As a result, in just three days of cultivating the tyrannical true cultivation manual, he had already achieved the ability to draw qi into his body, allowing him to control the energy unique to this world. In less than a month, he had achieved a small success and entered the third-rate cultivator. If the martial artists outside were to see such a terrifying efficiency, they would probably exclaim in shock. To be able to do something that others could only do in a few years or even more than ten years in a month, was no longer something that a word genius could describe. Moreover, He Chuan had just turned eight years old. Days passed day by day. While He Chuan's martial arts were growing day by day, the patients in the temple were also gradually recovering because of the medicine he brought. However, this process was a little long. After all, it was an ancient world, and the sanitary conditions were really too poor. In addition, the dilapidated temple was not big, to begin with. And everyone meets each other every day. It was impossible to isolate and treat them, and they did not have such a concept. Therefore, the illness kept repeating and did not completely recover. It was not until two years later, when He Chuan was approaching the age of ten, that the plague finally subsided. 
In the eyes of these ignorant villagers. Such a feat was no different from a miracle. Everyone regarded He Chuan as the reincarnation of the living Buddha. He could not bear to see the suffering of the world, so he came down to save them. He Chuan neither admitted nor denied it. Hearing the news that the evaluation points in the reincarnation mark had increased again, he did not think it was a bad thing. Ignorance also had its benefits. At least, there were many things that he did not need to explain. Without having to suffer the illness, the ordinary people naturally missed the days at the foot of the mountain. Hence, at this time, some people began to want to go home and look for their relatives who they had been separated from by the plague. At the same time, they went back to make some preparations to repay the abbot monk and He Chuan who had taken care of them. The opinion grew louder and the abbot finally agreed to take them down the mountain and asked He Chuan for his opinion. Master, you guys go. I'll stay and watch the temple. He Chuan saw that they wanted to persuade them again and said, There is no god in an empty temple. If no one is left, there will be no god to protect the temple in the future. These words really worked. They did not insist and left under the leadership of the monk. Only He Chuan was left to guard the empty door. He stood on the stone platform outside the ruined temple and looked at the group of people who were walking further and further away. In his mind, he recalled the outcome of the simulation of the Heavenly Tao simulation and could not help but sigh. I can't change your decision. Sigh, I wonder how many people will come back alive in the end. Chapter 23 Jiang Wenyue's experience was a constant reminder to him. He Chuan knew that without absolute power, he could not change the future that he knew. He shook his head and walked back to the temple to continue cultivating. In the blink of an eye, the sun had set and dusk had fallen. I finally succeeded. He Chuan let out a long breath as a sharp light flashed in his eyes. After two long years, he had finally cultivated the tyrannical true cultivation manual to perfection. This meant that he had already become the strongest third-rate martial artist, without a doubt. Even if he encountered a second-rate martial artist with average strength, he could still exchange blows with the other party. Although he might not be able to defeat the other party, he would not be defeated easily either. This was the effect of the tyrannical true cultivation manual, it could cross realms to face the enemy. This was because he was different from ordinary martial artists who only took one martial path. After He Chuan obtained inner qi through internal strength cultivation, he used his deduction ability to directly use inner qi to temper his body, muscles, and bones. This allowed him to possess the overpowering destructive power of an internal strength cultivator, as well as the various offensive methods of an external strength cultivator, as well as a strong physique. Cultivating both inner and outer aspects was not as simple as 1 plus 1 equals 2. What was the big deal about fighting enemies across realms? If this cultivation method were to be spread out, it would definitely shock countless people. After all, in everyone's understanding, inner qi could not be controlled. It could only be stored and then used to harm the enemy through guidance. There was a time when it was not that no one had tried to use inner qi to temper their bodies. But without exception, all of them were torn apart by the powerful energy. Since then, the martial artist had been split into two. Although both of them could have more powerful strength, facing the threat of death, there were not many people who wanted to try. He Chuan was the only person in the world who had successfully combined the two. Unfortunately, such a great achievement could not draw the hint of the reincarnation seal. It seemed that no matter how powerful the technique was if no one knew about it, there was still no way to obtain evaluation points. He Chuan stood outside the temple once again. He looked in the direction where the abbot and the villagers had left with a profound gaze. Looking at the time, they should have arrived by now, right? At the same time, outside the grass temple village. The villagers who had been imprisoned for a few years and regained their freedom were chatting and laughing along the way. We're finally home. After eating wild vegetables for so long, we can finally improve our food. Hey! You are still thinking about food? If the divine doctor didn't save you, would you be able to come back? That's right. Shouldn't we prepare well and bring the little divine doctor back to the village before talking about other things? Hey, right, right, right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Look at my brain, I'll go back and prepare now. Wait, something doesn't seem right. The abbot monk held a bracelet made of Buddhist beads and looked around strangely, why aren't there any guards here? Shouldn't they be here to check on the people coming and going? Maybe it's because of the plague, so they left. One of the villagers shrugged nonchalantly, just in time, we won't have to explain. Yeah, it's getting late. Let's go back and clean up. Another villager nodded and echoed, later, get air Dan who had quick steps to take a chicken with him to send the abbot up the mountain. Let the little divine doctor have a good meal first and then pick him up tomorrow. Okay. The young villager named Air Dan immediately responded. The abbot monk was still a little uneasy, but he didn't say anything else. Dozens of people turned around and approached the village. A few villagers who lived near the village entrance shouted their family names as they walked into the house. In the end, they opened the door and saw that it was empty inside. Eh. Where's my wife? Xiao Hua. Xiao Hua. Where's my girl? Why isn't she at home? That's strange. There's no one at my house. Could it be that they went out? It's almost night. Where else can they go? At this time, a group of people also realized that something was wrong. In the past, smoke would rise from the top of every house at this time. However, it was so quiet today. Even the big yellow dog that barked at everyone at the village entrance was nowhere to be seen. Moreover, with the breeze blowing, there was a faint smell of blood. A rough voice was heard. Ha ha ha, the little girl in this village is really pretty. Look at her figure, look at her face. She is even more attractive than the women in the brothel. She looks like a virgin. She is so pure. Boss will definitely like such a good woman. Damn, I can't stand seeing her like this. Hurry up and bring her to the boss. Who knows, when he's happy, he might even reward us after playing with her. Such a conversation made everyone scared. They quickly quickened their steps and rushed in the direction of the voice. In the end, they were still a step too late. The square in the middle of the village was already littered with corpses. Their relatives and friends had all been killed by the knife. There was blood everywhere. The severed heads and limbs were mixed together and piled up randomly. There were old people, women, and even a few months old baby. Not only that, there was a temporary torture rack made of wood on the side of the square. There were more than ten young men hanging on it. Without exception, they had all lost their lives. Moreover, they had their fingers cut off cruelly, their tongues and eyes dug out. Even their abdominal cavities had been cut open, and their internal organs and intestines slid out of the wounds and hung on their thighs. It was hard to imagine what kind of torture they had suffered before they died. Chapter 24 The initiators of all this were a group of bandits. Now, they had already plundered all the valuable things in the village. Gathered all the women who were still somewhat beautiful here, and played with them wantonly. At this moment, the girl had already been escorted by a group of bandits to the front of their leader. She was completely naked. Her snow-white skin was exposed to the air. The bandits continued to jeer. They let their leader violate the poor girl in front of everyone. Xiao Hua. The girl's father shouted angrily, You bastards, let her go. Oh. The bandit leader had already noticed them, but he didn't care about these villagers. He laughed lightly and roughly opened the girl's legs, taking out the ugly thing beneath him. He ignored the girl's struggle and wailing. Under her father's gaze, he ferociously charged in. No. I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. The girl's father cried out in grief, picking up the brick on the side, and was about to go forward and fight with his life. The people beside him hurriedly stopped him. Facing this group of vicious people, wouldn't rushing up equal to courting death. Amitba. The abbot chanted a Buddhist chant, sighed, shook his head, and took two steps forward. Just as he was about to say something. In the end, a bandit suddenly rushed over with a long knife in hand. A cold light flashed past, and the abbot's head was directly separated from his body. Amidst the spraying of fresh blood. The round head fell to the ground. The villagers were all stunned. The abbot master. Was dead. 
The bandit leader looked at the rolling head on the ground, and a mocking smile appeared on his face. He slowly straightened his waist. You want to kill me? Hee hee, kill the other as well. Oh no, leave this girl's father behind, and let him see how his daughter serves us. The young girl beneath him had already lost all hope, and there was no expression on her face. The bandits laughed loudly and approached with all kinds of weapons in their hands. Run! It was unknown who shouted. The dull villagers suddenly came to their senses and hurriedly fled in all directions. But at this time, they realized that the bandits had already occupied the entire village. There were bandits everywhere. There were so many of them that there were no less than a thousand of them. They had been able to enter the village successfully. It was probably because the bandits had let them in on purpose. To escape at this time was as difficult as ascending to the heavens. Fortunately, there were a few families that had a cellar in their house. It was especially used to store grain, and there was a tunnel that led out of the village. It was exactly because of this. A few people took advantage of the chaos to escape the encirclement of these bandits and successfully escaped. Unfortunately, most of them were left inside. One of them was the girl's father. One could imagine what kind of mental torture he would experience. Seeing his daughter being humiliated by this group of animals, he probably even wanted to die. But the villagers who survived were very clear in their hearts. That group of bandits would definitely not let him die easily. What should we do? The village is gone, there's no place to go now. Why don't we report it to the officials, and let the officials come over to settle it? Are you stupid? That dog county magistrate won't care about our lives at all. That's true. Sigh, we've been locked up in the temple for so many years and never sent anyone over to see the situation. They must think that we're sick and dead. Let's go up the mountain and bring the news to the little divine doctor. Let's move to another place and take good care of him. I think it's fine. Should we leave now? Let's go. While it's dark, no one can find us. After the discussion, a few villagers made a decision. They returned to the mountain overnight and brought the news to He Chuan. When He Chuan heard it, he was first stunned before he flew into a rage. Bandits. They killed Master. Although he knew that this group of villagers would be in danger if they went out. He was also mentally prepared for the abbot monk not to return. But when things really happened, He Chuan still could not suppress the anger in his heart. A few villagers suddenly felt that He Chuan seemed to have changed into a different person. An indescribably powerful aura was released from his thin and small body, making everyone present unable to breathe. They watched with their mouths agape as He Chuan picked up the Buddhist monk knife at the corner of the wall and casually swept it. In the next moment, a sharp blade aura flew out and swept across the entire courtyard. For a moment. Booming sounds rang out one after another. By the time the dust settled, there were already no intact objects in the field. Whether it was trees or stone pillars. They were all turned into dust. He Chuan looked at the scene that he had personally created and had a rough understanding of his own strength. His eyes narrowed slightly. I want them to pay with blood. The surviving villagers were stunned by this move of his. However, after hearing what he said, they hurriedly stopped him. The little divine doctor, you can't do it. There are probably over a thousand of these bandits. You're just a child, how can you deal with them? Speaking up to this point, the voice of the villager also weakened. They didn't know what to do. After all, this was the little divine doctor. A living Buddha who descended to the mortal world. If he could cure people, then he could definitely kill people. Looking at the messy courtyard, they swallowed the second half of their words of dissuasion. Just because they couldn't defeat them didn't mean that he couldn't. You guys wait here, I'll be right back. He Chuan's voice became very cold. He didn't care about these people anymore and walked down the mountain. When he came to Grass Temple Village and saw the horrifying scene with his own eyes, the anger in his heart soared. There were several young couples among the villagers who went down the mountain today. Except for them, all of their heads were chopped off. They were hung on the branches next to them like trophies. Those who survived were worse off than dead. 
The man was tied up and his tongue was cut off. He could only watch his wife being pushed to the ground by the bandits. They took turns to humiliate her, but he couldn't say a word. All he could do was whimper. The women on the ground had lost the light in their eyes. At the same time, they were being played around by the bandits, but there was no reaction. They were like dolls. Chapter 25 The worst was Xiao Hua's father who was in the middle of the crowd. He Chuan knew this man. He was a simple and kind-hearted honest man. Usually, he would smile at anyone he saw. But now, he was held up by the bandits and forcefully assaulted his dead daughter. The bandits still looked very excited. From time to time, they would ask him if he was comfortable and if it was fun to play with his daughter's body. He Chuan couldn't hold it in any longer. He didn't say anything. He rushed into the crowd with his Buddhist monk knife in hand. His powerful inner chi was attached to the blade. Even if it was just a casual swing, he could condense a sharp saber chi and sweep them all out. The bandits died upon contact. They didn't even notice it. Suddenly, they found that their line of sight was slowly moving forward, and they suddenly fell to the ground. They tried to look back, only to find that they had been cut in half, and their internal organs were scattered all over the ground. What was even more ridiculous was that their two legs were still standing in the same place. For a moment, miserable cries rose and fell. The bandits stopped their evil deeds one after another and looked in their direction at the same time. They saw a ten-year-old child stepping on the minced flesh of their companion as he slowly walked forward. He was holding a sharp knife tightly in his hand and was covered in blood. He looked like a demon from the netherworld. When everyone saw this scene, they were first shocked and then confused. They were shocked that their companion had suddenly died. They were confused where did this child come from? Could it be that he killed them? That was impossible. How could this kid have such great abilities? The bandit leader also noticed this strange situation. He frowned and stood up from his seat, he shouted, Who are you? I'm the one who killed you. He Chuan replied calmly. He waved his hand again, and the sword chi spread across more than ten meters. This time, many people were already on alert, so they retreated a lot in advance. However, there were still a few unlucky people standing in front. Although they tried to block with the weapons in their hands, they only heard a sharp clang sound and were cut into two halves, along with their knives. More than a dozen bodies wailed on the ground. He Chuan did not execute them immediately. The people who were cut in half would not die for a while. Even their minds would still be very clear. They could only watch themselves lose their life bit by bit and welcome death in despair. This was also He Chuan's goal. Since you have done such a heartless thing, I will not let you have it easy. When they saw He Chuan kill people with their own eyes, even if the bandits were full of questions, they knew that he was not friendly. Almost at the same time, Hundreds of people attacked at the same time, waving all kinds of weapons at the ten-year-old child. In the chaotic battle, nothing could be seen clearly. No matter how bright the bonfire was, it could not shine on the figure that was drowned in the sea of people. He's actually an internal martial artist. The bandit leader's gaze was deep. The reason why he could become the boss was naturally that he had the ability to convince the masses. As the only existence among the bandits who was a martial artist, he recognized the power that He Chuan used at a glance. Although he didn't want to admit it, he knew it clearly in his heart. This kid's strength was definitely above his. To be able to release such a long sword chi, his inner chi must have been cultivated to the peak of a third-rate martial artist. Perhaps, he was already a second-rate martial artist. Facing such a strong opponent, a small third-rate martial artist like him naturally didn't dare to show his face and act like a hero. However, you are just a little kid, so what if you are strong? The internal cultivation of martial artists relies on the inner chi. When your inner chi is exhausted, aren't you just a lamb waiting to be slaughtered? I have more than a thousand men under me, you can kill as you like. Let's see how long you can kill. With this mentality, the bandit leader watched the fire from the other side and stood at the back. He allowed his underlings to be slaughtered like chickens by He Chuan. However, the situation went beyond his imagination. 
In the blink of an eye, hundreds of corpses lay on the ground. This kid was still as fierce as ever. The fierce bandits were all frightened by the slaughter. They didn't dare to step forward for a moment. However, at this moment, He Chuan also stopped. The leader of the bandits was delighted. He thought that his inner chi had been used up, so he quickly ordered, hurry up and move. Don't give him time to rest, this kid's inner chi has been used up. The bandits looked at each other, but no one dared to move. Seeing this, the leader of the bandits immediately said, anyone who can chop off his head will be rewarded with fifty tails of gold. The bandits immediately became spirited when they heard this. Fifty tails of gold. This was enough for them to play with more than a dozen courtesans from brothels. Charge. For a moment, hundreds of people seemed to have been injected with stimulants as they swarmed over. They howled and wanted to chop off He Chuan's head. I didn't expect my head to be so valuable. He Chuan smiled faintly. With a wave of the Buddhist monk's knife in his hand, a bloody scar suddenly appeared on the face of the nearest bandit. In less than half a second, his body slowly fell to the sides. This time, it was not only his internal organs that were scattered on the ground. There was also milky white brain matter. How how is this possible? The bandit leader looked at this scene in great surprise. He could split a person in half without using inner chi. And he used such an ordinary Buddhist monk knife. What kind of joke was this? When did the human body become so fragile? He fell into deep doubt. Looking at He Chuan, who was like a god of death, an absolutely impossible reason suddenly flashed through his mind, but he could only use this explanation. External Cultivator Only external cultivators who focused on training their strength and skills could do this. But didn't this mean that the little brat in front of him was a dual cultivator? The bandit leader instinctively denied this possibility. But the truth happened before his eyes, and he had no choice but to believe it. But just as he was in a daze, He Chuan suddenly exploded. It was as if he was tired of playing. He killed dozens of people in a row, broke through the crowd, and rushed in front of him. The bandit leader was shocked. He was about to attack, but the moment this thought arose, the Buddhist monk knife in He Chuan's hand was already placed on his neck. What was going on? After fighting for so long, he still had the stamina to maintain such a fast speed? The bandit leader was dumbfounded. He carefully swallowed his saliva, afraid that the blade would cut his neck. His mind was no longer thinking about how to kill He Chuan, but how to survive under He Chuan's blade. He Hero Don't kill me. Anything you want. Money, woman. I'll give it to you. Chapter 26 he Chuan's gaze was cold and he did not say a word. His heart was filled with killing intent as he injected some inner chi into his palm. It was as if he had noticed something. The bandit leader immediately changed his words. Wait. I can tell you a secret. It's about Grass Temple Village. He Chuan's hand froze. Speak. The bandit leader rolled his eyes and took the opportunity to speak, I can say it but you have to promise that you'll let me go. You're not qualified to negotiate with me. He Chuan snorted coldly and exerted force in his hand, sending the sword forward a little. The bandit leader was startled, thinking that his head was going to be moved. In the end, the blade only scratched a little bit of his skin. The pain made him understand that once the ten-year-old kid's patience was exhausted, he would definitely die. At this moment, all the bandits gathered around and glared at He Chuan. If you take one step forward, your boss's head will fall to the ground. He Chuan's tender voice spread throughout the scene. His sharp gaze swept across everyone and everyone could not help but take a few steps back. This group of bandits was already scared of him. Who had ever seen a fart-sized child kill thousands of people? Today was an eye-opener. Idiot! The bandit leader shouted, All of you get lost! Get lost! Do you want me to die? The bandits immediately did not dare to act rashly. They looked at each other and slowly retreated. He Chuan's tone became more serious. He did not have much patience anymore. I'll speak I'll speak. Faced with such a powerful He Chuan, 
the leader of the bandits had no choice but to answer. I wasn't the only one who massacred the Grass Temple village. I was also ordered by someone. He is the county magistrate who is in charge of this place, Zhang Muji. As he said this, he started to observe He Chuan's expression. Looking at the little brat's furrowed brows and confused expression, he understood that he did not know the cause and effect of this matter. It seemed that he was here to carry out justice for the heavens. He was only here to take revenge for the villagers of Grass Temple Village. In the eyes of the bandit leader, He Chuan must be a genius disciple of some martial arts aristocratic family, going out to train. He might even have even stronger martial artists protecting him. Because he had passed by this place and seen their atrocities, he had made a bold move. Otherwise, how could he explain that such a big child had such profound martial arts? And he had cultivated both internal and external cultivation. His martial arts skills were probably at the top among third-rate martial artists. He did not have the slightest chance of winning. Not to mention there was also a guardian who was hiding nearby and would attack when he Chuan encountered danger. Because of this, he did not want to escape and could only shift his hatred. When he Chuan heard the name Zhang Muji, he did not have much of an impression. However, he was not unfamiliar with the title of county magistrate. This was an official appointed by the imperial court. He was in charge of dozens or hundreds of villages and towns. In this remote place, it would not be an exaggeration to say that he was the local emperor who ruled the area. You're telling me that he sent you to slaughter the people in his area? Do you think I'm stupid? Can he bear such a huge responsibility? Can he hide it? However, when He Chuan verified it through the deduction system, it was confirmed from the side that the bandit leader was telling the truth. Could it be that the officials and bandits were really colluding? Seeing the bandit leader's cautious look and wanting to probe further, He Chuan was impatient. If you have something to say, then say it quickly. If you don't say it, then there's no need to say it. The bandit leader was shocked and quickly told him the whole story. At that time, there was an outbreak of plague in Grass Temple Village. When the report was made, several people had already died. More than half of the villagers were infected and couldn't be controlled at all. Failing to control the plague is a big crime. Once the higher-ups find out about it, the dismissal and investigation will be the light punishment. This Zhang Muji's nickname is Pockmark Zhang. He bought his way to be an official. How could he become one? Therefore, this Zhang Muji wanted to forcefully suppress the news, lock up all the people who were infected, and send them to the temple to await death. However, there are still some family members in the village who are not infected. In the past two years, they would run to the county office from time to time to ask about the whereabouts and situation of their family members. Zhang Muji didn't send anyone to the temple to check at all. How would he know if these people were dead or alive? He could only put up with it perfunctorily. He was worried that these people's family members would find out the truth and report it to the imperial court, so he went all out and found me. Actually, this has nothing to do with me. It was Zhang Muji who asked me to come over and kill all the people in Grass Temple Village. At the same time, he took over a few nearby villages and towns, sealed the news, and executed those who didn't listen. I had no choice he could apply for a crusade order at any time and ask the imperial court to send troops to crusade against me. I was also thinking about the future of this group of brothers. Look. This is the tax law that was just issued. I specially asked him to reduce the taxes of these few villages by half so that the lives of these people would not be so difficult. As he spoke, the bandit leader took out a yellow paper with a seal on it. The content of the tax reduction was indeed written on it, and the signature was also Zhang Muji. He Chuan took a closer look and suddenly felt that something was wrong. You said that he was an official who bought his way to be the county magistrate. That's right. The county magistrate is just an official who sits in the court to hear cases. Where did he get the right to change the taxes? Little brother oh no, big brother, you don't know, the higher-ups saw that Zhang Muji's prevention and control of the epidemic was beneficial and promoted him by one level. He has already become the county head magistrate. What about the imperial court? How did they do things? Letting a dog-like official like him climb up the ranks? 
The bandit leader looked at the Buddhist monk knife on his neck and carefully swallowed his saliva. That cough, the imperial court did send people over, but they were all brought by Zhang Muji to play around. After playing for a few days, their bodies were weak, so they naturally couldn't come to Grass Temple Village to check on the situation. He Chuan took a deep breath and clenched his fists unconsciously. This world was really ridiculous. It was one thing to buy and sell official positions, but there were actually officials and bandits colluding to take the opportunity to get promoted and get rich. It was really, really, really deserved to die. The bandit leader seemed to have felt something. No spare me. Whoosh. He Chuan suddenly moved the sword in his hand horizontally. The blade, which was full of crack, was wrapped with inner chi, and it cut open the throat of the bandit leader with incomparable ease. Warm scarlet blood gushed out. He clutched his neck in panic and knelt on the ground. He looked at He Chuan with fear in his eyes, as if he was still asking why he had killed him. Spare you. Then did you spare the women you played with? Chapter 27 The blood in the bandit leader's body was quickly drained. In the end, he was exhausted and no longer move. When the bandits at the side saw this scene, they were all stunned at first. Then, they looked at He Chuan, who was full of killing intent, and instantly lost the thought of taking revenge. Run. Only by running can one survive. However, most of the people in the field were injured, and it was difficult for them to move. After the previous battle, the square was filled with the corpses of the bandits. Their greasy internal organs and fresh blood covered the entire ground. It was as if they had fallen into a swamp, and they could not run far. He Chuan's knife slashed down. The few remaining bandits were suddenly reduced by more than ten. He stepped on mountains of corpses and seas of blood as if he was walking on flat ground. Every step he took landed on the half-dead bandits who had been cut in half. Every step would trigger a wail filled with pain. The remaining people could not help but despair when they saw this scene. No matter how tough the bandits were, they were just ordinary people who had some training. Compared to real martial artists, they were far worse. Facing He Chuan's pursuit, they had no hope of escaping. In just a few minutes, He Chuan caught up with them one by one and killed them all. Only after dealing with these people did He Chuan have time to turn back and check on the situation of the villagers who had been humiliated. Sigh. Miserable. He Chuan couldn't bear to look at them. When he got closer, he found that the wrists of the men who had been hung up had been cut open. Under the strangulation, blood dripped bit by bit. Now, their skin and lips were a little pale. They had already lost too much blood and were in a state of shock. The wound was behind the rope, and there was no way to bandage it and stop the bleeding. If the rope was untied, they would definitely die in this situation where there was no way to transfuse blood immediately. He Chuan kept deducing in his mind, trying to find a way to save them. Unfortunately, there was nothing he could do. The standard of medical treatment in this era was too low. Even though he had countless methods and theoretical solutions in his mind. However, in this place where there was no medical treatment, he, who was called the Divine Doctor, could only watch helplessly. He Chuan sighed softly and walked in front of them. He had something in his heart, but he did not know how to say it. However, one of them suddenly raised his head slowly and looked at him with an extremely weak gaze. It's the Divine Doctor. He Chuan nodded slightly. He hesitated for a moment before saying, I can't save you. Divine doctor you've done enough don't blame yourself. His sentence was divided into several parts. Each time, he had to rest for a long time, as if doing such an ordinary thing required all of his strength. I only have one wish please. Halfway through his second sentence, he had no strength left. He could only suppress his sleepiness and look at his wife, who was being abused by the bandits in turn, not far away. He felt an endless longing in his heart, and tears burst out of his eyes. He did not want to die. He wanted to spend his life with his wife. He wanted to watch his children grow up. He wanted to fish and farm in a secluded place. He wanted to enjoy his old age and enjoy his family. However, things didn't go as planned. This disaster took away all the good things. 
In the end, he fell asleep slowly with mixed feelings. He Chuan knew that he couldn't save them anymore. The other people were in the same condition. Although they still had their breath and pulse, it was no different from death. Sigh. He Chuan shook his head. He had to think of a way to save the others. The few young women on the ground had already sunk into a state of autism. There was no response to the outside world stimulation. He Chuan had no way at the moment. He could only take out clean clothes from the nearby houses and cover them. He would use the deduction system to think of a way later. Finally, only Xiao Hua and her father were left. Xiao Hua was already dead. She had been brutally treated by God knows how many bandits when she was alive. They raped and killed her. Her waist and buttocks were covered in blood. Milky white liquid kept flowing out from between her legs, dripping onto her ankle, which was bleeding from being strangled. Xiao Hua did not react at all. Her father, who was lying on top of her, did not react either. Only then did he Chuan realize. Xiao Hua's father's tendons had been broken by the bandits, and his limbs were unable to move. He was still in a state of humiliating Xiao Hua. He crawled on Xiao Hua's breasts which had been cut open by the knife. He looked at Xiao Hua's dead face and burst into tears. Uncle Hua He Chuan called out softly. Xiao Hua's father did not react. It was as if he had become a doll that could not move, just like those women. He Chuan could not bear it and was about to pick him up when he suddenly heard him say something. Kill me. What? Uncle Hua, what did you say? He Chuan did not hear clearly and asked again. This time, He Chuan heard it clearly and his hands stopped moving. After a long silence, he finally said, I have already avenged Xiao Hua. Uncle Hua, live well in the future. Let's just. Kill me. Uncle Hua suddenly roared. His body involuntarily trembled. He tried his best to turn his body and looked at He Chuan with bloodshot eyes. In his eyes. It was filled with a thirst for death. He Chuan did not speak. He stood up and slowly picked up the sword on the ground. He knew that Uncle Hua had made up his mind. Even if he could survive today, he would think of a way to commit suicide tomorrow. Thank you. Uncle Hua watched as the short knife fell. He let out a bitter laugh and closed his eyes. He was free. He Chuan looked up at the sky and the anger in his heart kept rising. The leader of the bandits was dead, but this matter was not over yet. Zhang Muji, just you wait. The debt of hundreds of lives in Grass Temple Village, you will use your blood to pay for it. The next day. He Chuan found that the women who had been humiliated had committed suicide one after another. Some had jumped into a well, some had hanged themselves, and some had taken poison. They had left very decisively, not giving him a chance to treat them. He Chuan buried the villagers in silence, as well as the abbot monk. He set fire to the grass temple village along with the corpses of thousands of bandits and then went up the mountain to inform the few people who were left. He left them some silver money, which they could use to change their place of living. The few people cowed out and expressed their gratitude. He Chuan himself left the place. He bought a pure black cloak and walked towards the county. Chapter 28 On the way, He Chuan walked as he tried to find out more information about Zhang Muji. If he didn't investigate, he wouldn't know, but once he did, he was shocked. This Zhang Muji was much more detestable than he had imagined. During his tenure as a county magistrate, there were countless cases of injustice, falsehood, and wrongdoings, but as the parents and officials of the common people, he actually dared to do such a thing as abducting women. Whenever he saw a beautiful girl, he would use his status to forcefully marry her. It was said that after he became the county head magistrate, every two days, there would be another concubine in his backyard. And this was already his eighteenth concubine. Everyone was furious at this kind of behavior, but they didn't dare to speak out. This was because this Zhang Muji not only had an official status, but he was also a late-stage third-rate martial artist. Although martial artists were divided into three steps, with first-rate being the strongest, it was as rare as a phoenix feather and third-rate being the weakest and were as numerous as the hairs on an ox. However, in this remote mountain county, 
third-rate martial artists were rare. They were already the highest strength in martial arts. Moreover, he was a late-stage martial artist. An outstanding third-rate martial artist. So much so that if anyone dared to say anything bad about John Muji, he would be able to rely on his martial arts skills to kill those who talked about him on the spot. There was nothing they could do. Faced with such a strong deterrence, the girls that he had taken a fancy to could only accept their fate. To avoid implicating the family, they agreed with him with tears in their eyes. Just right, I can use this opportunity to teach this bastard a lesson. He Chuan had obtained the best assassination plan through the deduction system. It was on the night of his wedding when he was most unprepared. Zhang Muji's evil deeds were uncountable. Killing him could be considered a merit. He Chuan's gaze turned cold. He hid in the darkness and hid on a certain rooftop. He silently watched the brightly lit county head magistrate estate not far away, looking for an opportunity to strike. At this moment, Zhang Muji was immersed in the lively atmosphere of the banquet, drinking and chatting with the guests. He was completely unaware of his arrival. He looked at the scene. Those who could come here to congratulate him were basically the same as Zhang Muji. They were either local profiteers or notorious officials of Lin County. All in all, none of them were good. They were all people who had obtained their current status by squeezing the fruits of other people's hard work, even their lives. They used their power to do whatever they wanted. Ordinary people would definitely avoid them. Therefore, almost two streets outside the county head magistrate estate were uninhabited. Or rather, those who lived there were all Zhang Muji's trusted aides. Now, they had all come to the mansion to congratulate him. Just right. Deliberately showing strength as a warning. He Chuan didn't wait for Zhang Muji to return to the bridal chamber before reappearing. Right at this time, he used his inner qi to wrap around two sharp daggers and fiercely swing them out. The sound of the air being torn apart was perfectly covered by the noisy conversations of the banquet. However, Zhang Muji was a real late-stage third-rate martial artist after all. The sense of danger hidden in his subconscious was still present. Even though he was a little drunk, he could still sense He Chuan's attack very keenly. He jerked his body and rolled to the ground. Clang! The dagger left a long trail and sank deep into the ground. Zhang Muji found it hard to believe when he saw it. Was this a second-rate internal cultivator assassin? He was scared. He stood up and looked around the courtyard, you have a strong inner chi, so you must be a strong martial artist. Why did you hide your head and tail? More daggers responded to him. The guests couldn't sit still. Most of them weren't martial artists, so their strength was very limited. In this kind of battle, they would only become cannon fodder. The slightest carelessness would result in instant death. So much so that a few seconds after the battle started, over a hundred people hurriedly fled, and the entire courtyard became a mess. Such a chaotic scene made Zhang Muji frown even more when he saw it. Wouldn't this make it easier for the assassin to move? At this moment when he was distracted. As expected, a blade ray wrapped with a powerful aura appeared from behind at this time. Zhang Muji had never expected that. His opponent's timing was so experienced. It was as if he knew when his attention would be distracted. It was also because of his carelessness that the tip of the blade swept across him. Zhang Muji could only turn his body to the side at this critical moment to avoid being cut in half. The price was to lose his entire arm. The intense pain assaulted him, making his mind extremely clear. Zhang Muji did not cry out in pain. Facing such an opponent who was stronger than him, he definitely could not panic. The more dangerous it was, the more he had to maintain his composure. Turning his gaze, a few people had already escaped from the courtyard and ran into the distance. That was the direction of the city guards, garrisoned with well-equipped troops. No matter how strong a martial artist was, they would eventually run out of strength. They definitely wouldn't be able to contend against an army. Perhaps, as long as they dragged it out for a period of time, they would be able to wait for their savior. But right at this moment, several white lights flashed in the dark night, accurately hitting those who had escaped. They felt as if they had been struck by lightning, their bodies stiffening as they fell to the ground. 
A young and tender voice filled with killing intent sounded. Those who leave the courtyard will be killed without mercy. Everyone could not help but tremble, and they immediately did not dare to run around. No one doubted the authenticity of this sentence. A martial artist possessed strength that far surpassed that of an ordinary person, and it was easy for them to do this. No one would use their own lives to test the strength of an assassin. Zhang Muji tore off a piece of clothing to wrap around his broken arm, and gritted his teeth as he asked, Who exactly are you, sir? What enmity does this official have with you? Even if I die, let me understand why. Official? A light laugh came from the darkness, do you still remember that you're an official? As the sound of his voice faded. A thin figure dressed in a black robe appeared in everyone's line of sight. He held a Buddhist monk knife that was full of holes. It was stained with blood and emitted an unpleasant smell. Everyone could not help but imagine how many lives this person who looked like a dwarf had taken. It was also at this moment. He Chuan took off the cloak on his head, revealing his tender face. He looked at Zhang Muji and asked calmly. Do you know who I am? Chapter 29 It was actually a child. Although the people present could not be called high-ranking officials or rich merchants, they were still famous in the surrounding counties and towns. They were used to being arrogant and bullying others like they were bullying a child. In the end, they were bullied by a child today. Zhang Muji was also dumbfounded. Who the hell are you? How should I know? Then, his vision blurred. He didn't know how this child did it. The next second, he Chuan had already kicked him to the ground. He held his sword horizontally and pressed it against his chest. If you don't know, then remember. The person who killed you, is an orphan from the Grass Temple village, he Chuan. Zhang Muji's eyes widened. Grass Temple village? Orphan? He immediately thought of the bandit leader. Damn it! He was definitely the one who sold himself. 30% of the taxes were not enough to feed these bastards. If he had known earlier, he would have done it himself. But now it was useless no matter how regretful he was. He Chuan did not give Zhang Muji any chance to beg for mercy. Swoosh! A muffled sound was heard. Inner Qi gushed out from the blade that was full of holes, directly cutting through his chest cavity. Fresh blood mixed with minced meat shot out, revealing the ghastly white bones inside. He Chuan aimed the Buddhist monk's knife at Zhang Muji's head and ruthlessly stabbed through it. After that, he even reached out his hand to hold Zhang Muji's heart. Under the terrified gazes of the surrounding guests, he dug it out bit by bit. With a cold snort, he crushed it. Everyone was so scared that they took a step back. They had already been numbed by this child who looked young but had exceptionally cruel methods. Would he be so excited to kill that he would kill me as well? This was a question that arose in the hearts of most people. There were still a small number of people who were smarter. They heard what He Chuan had said. Once the two keywords of Grass Temple Village and Orphan were selected, his intention was clear at a glance. There was always a reason for killing people. Normal people would not kill innocents indiscriminately. It was obvious that this child was here for Zhang Muji. What did Zhang Muji do? There were still a few people present who knew. After thinking for a while, they could guess what had happened. It was nothing more than Zhang Muji sending the bandits to massacre the Grass Temple village. However, a child was saved by some unworldly expert. Perhaps he was even a first-rate martial artist. Then, he taught him peerless martial arts and became a third-rate expert in a short period of time. He came here to take revenge on Zhang Muji. In this way, they weren't afraid anymore. After all, every injustice has its perpetrator and every debt has its debtor. Such a big child couldn't possibly be the kind of devil that would kill anyone he saw, right? But the result was still beyond their imagination. After He Chuan called out the family members of the woman that Zhang Muji married today, he said that he had something to ask them. He told her family to pick up their daughter and wait for him in the main hall. What the rest of them had to face was his incomparably tyrannical inner chi. With a single move, the internal organs of everyone present were shattered and their lives were cut off. He Chuan pulled a tablecloth from the side and wiped his hands that were covered in blood. 
His gaze was calm as he looked at the corpses that lay on the ground. In any case, there wouldn't be any good people who could mingle with Zhang Muji. There was no need to worry about killing the wrong people. Killing all these people could be considered as eliminating the evil for the people. However, after avenging the people of Grass Temple Village, he still had more things to do. So many corrupt officials had died in his hands. If he left them be, when the news spread out, he would at most end up with a reputation of serving justice. However, in exchange, he would definitely be targeted by the imperial court. This wasn't conducive to his future development. He might as well control the hearts of the people in this region before that happened. He would seal off the news in exchange for an opportunity to develop. He would wait until he had perfected his tyrannical true cultivation method and raised his strength further. In any case, Jean Muji was already dead. He could go and retrieve the county magistrate seal at any time. Once he obtained this thing that symbolized his status, no one would doubt him even if he said that he was the new county magistrate. The only thing he had to deal with was the officials and profiteers who did not attend the wedding banquet. This was a troublesome matter. If he wanted to find these people, he would have to rely on the ordinary people to report him. Therefore, Yi Chuan went to the main hall to see if the family had come. This was also a small trick of his. As long as he had not done anything bad, they would naturally not be afraid of him. But if he felt guilty, he would definitely run away. When he turned the corner and saw the family of three crying together, he couldn't help but frown. He Chuan suddenly realized. The woman that Zhang Muji married was actually about his age. She looked like she was at most eleven or twelve years old. What a beast! He could even move on such a young girl. When he thought of Zhang Muji's wretched old face, which was at least forty years old, he felt disgusted. When the middle-aged couple saw He Chuan coming over, they immediately pulled their daughter forward to welcome him and knelt down to thank him. Thank you, little hero for saving my daughter from suffering. We, husband and wife, are eternally grateful. He Chuan casually asked a few questions about their family's life. It didn't take long for him to realize that they were also ordinary people. They opened a small restaurant in the county to make a living. Their cooking skills were pretty good, and everyone knew about it. Zhang Muji would go to his place to eat from time to time. By chance, he ran into his daughter. Seeing that she was beautiful and pure, he forced himself to marry her. His daughter was very sensible. She was afraid that her parents wouldn't agree and caused Zhang Muji to vent his anger on them, so she willingly got married. Although the husband and wife were sad, they couldn't do anything about it. Zhang Muji was an undisputed existence in Qingyuan County. There was no room for them to resist. Fortunately, He Chuan appeared at this time and killed that evil thief. He Chuan was very cautious. After using the deductive system to repeatedly verify that what they said was true, only then did he believe what they said. In that case, he could use this family to find out how many black sheep still had not been cleaned up. Chapter 30 At this moment, a man in armor who looked like a military commander suddenly appeared at the door. He stood outside the door and very keenly smelled the bloody smell in the mansion. At the same time, he saw He Chuan and the others who were talking. He frowned and his hand was already on the hilt of his sword. What's going on inside? Who are you? The family members immediately panicked and didn't know what to say. However, the girl's father whispered something in He Chuan's ear. He explained that the person who came was the city guard commander of the county. He was a decent person and was completely different from Zhang Muji. He Chuan understood and turned his head to look at the commander. He smiled with interest. Why don't you go in and take a look yourself? How dare you? He pulled out his long sword with a stern look and shouted, Where is Lord Zhang? Who are you? You're quite cautious. He Chuan put his hands behind his back and said, I've already killed Zhang Muji, and so have those who came to attend the wedding banquet. What do you want? What? That person seemed a little surprised, but there was no anger or hatred in his eyes. He looked at He Chuan's extremely young and tender face. It would be a lie if he said that he didn't have any doubts. Such a ten-year-old child killed a late-stage third-rate martial artist like Zhang Muji. 
To be honest, not to mention that he didn't believe it, perhaps no martial artist in the entire world who had even the slightest foundation would believe it. At the age of ten, it was already good enough to be able to draw chi into one's body. However, the smell of blood that was constantly leaking out from the courtyard could not be faked. There were definitely many people who died in the backyard. It was probably just as the child said, there were no more living people. However, how could he do it by himself? An idea flashed through the commander's mind, and he thought of a certain possibility. There were many unworldly experts who frequently traveled the world, and they would punish evil and spread good wherever they saw injustice. Zhang Muji was notorious, and it was hard to survive if he met him. If nothing unexpected happened, this child was the disciple of that expert. Perhaps, he was watching from not far away. To be able to kill so many people without leaving a trace, it was very likely that he was a first-rate warrior. Such an existence was definitely not something he could deal with. Hence, he put his weapon back. You guys should hurry up and leave. Don't stay in the city for too long. Someone will probably notice something strange tomorrow. This news will spread very quickly. He Chuan's smile did not change, leave. Did I say I was leaving? Then what are you going to do? Being a county head magistrate is quite fun, I want to play for a few years. A few years? The commander was stunned. His first reaction was that this child's brain had gone crazy. How could becoming a country head magistrate be a child's play? But on second thought. Why would a child be interested in such a thing? It must be the intention of that expert. He just did not know what exactly they were going to do. Just as he was thinking, He Chuan's figure suddenly moved. His speed was astonishingly fast. In the dark night, only a shadow flashed by. When he reappeared, the commander felt a chill on his back, and his entire body was already bound by an unfamiliar inner chi. How is this possible? He turned pale with fright. Could inner chi be controlled so precisely? You must be joking, right? Just then, He Chuan's voice sounded from above. Don't be so surprised. You are the commander of the garrison troops, right? I want to be the county head magistrate, so what should you do at this time? A strong sense of oppression came over. This commander felt that he was as insignificant as an ant in front of this child. He gritted his teeth and hesitated for a long time before slowly saying, seal off the news and cooperate with your actions. Very good, a smart choice. Even if I help you block the news, it's useless. The imperial court will send people to check the political achievements every once in a while. How are you going to get away with it? This is not something you should consider. I have my own ways. He Chuan clapped his hands and jumped down from the high wall, pressing on his shoulder, the imperial court will not care about the life and death of a small county head magistrate. In this kind of world, it's not a big deal to have dozens or even hundreds of small characters die. Do you want to be such a small character? He kept silent. The meaning of his words was a little deep, and it was difficult to answer. I see ideals and ambitions in your eyes, what a pity. He Chuan looked at him, the only thing was the lack of guts. What exactly do you want to do? In the end, he still asked this question. To return a peaceful and prosperous era to the people. The commander turned pale with fright, you want to rebel? Maybe, at least not now. He Chuan yawned, I don't want to hear anyone talk about this tomorrow, can you do it? The commander looked down at the light blue inner chi wrapped around his body and smiled bitterly, do I have a choice? Of course. He Chuan smiled and said, I won't kill you because you and Zhang Muji are not on the same side. If you don't agree, I can just leave. The commander was silent for a moment, then what can I get? He Chuan knew that his target had taken the bait. He smiled and said, a chance to realize his dream. Countless people in this world have died. The seeds of hatred have long been planted in people's hearts. With the change of times, the dynasty will change sooner or later. Now they just lack a person to lead them. You don't want to devote your life to such a rotten dynasty, right? Follow me. Even if you can't change the world now, at least you can change Qingyuan County. The commander looked deeply at He Chuan, all right. I promise you, 
but you have to ensure the safety of my family. Once the incident is exposed, this crime will exterminate my family, I can't bear it. He Chuan snapped his fingers and retracted all the inner qi that he had released. The commander felt his body lighten, and his trust in He Chuan increased a little. That expert who did not show up was really powerful. Just based on his meticulous control, most of the martial artists on the first level probably could not do it. With such a person as a backer. It seemed. It wasn't impossible to overthrow this decadent dynasty. The commander shook his head violently. He was frightened by this terrifying thought of his. How could he think of rebelling? Chapter, 31 The next day. The commander did what he had promised. He secretly disposed of the dozens of corpses in the county head magistrate estate without anyone noticing. He Chuan thus smoothly took the position of county head magistrate. Of course, in such an abrupt situation, he still needed to use some excuses to convince the people. Thus, the commander came forward and announced to the entire city. County head magistrate Zhang Muji was ordered by the imperial court to assist his colleagues in petitioning the capital. His position was temporarily taken over by He Chuan. Actually, this was quite ridiculous. Logically speaking, if the county head magistrate was not around, the substitute magistrate would only handle the daily matters. How could there be such a saying about appointing a person to help? However, Zhang Muji's daily work was quite ridiculous. The people were not surprised and quietly accepted it. The trial site of the government office was covered in dust. It seemed that Zhang Muji had not come here to hear a case for a long time. When they heard that he was the deputy magistrate, there were more than ten people standing outside the door in the early morning, wanting to see the splendor of the new magistrate. When they saw that He Quan was a ten-year-old child, they were all stunned for a moment, then shook their heads and left. This was a very normal reaction. Who would believe that a child of such an age would be able to close the case? He Chuan did not care. He began to learn more information from the commander. It was still all right if he did not hear this, but when he heard it, he was shocked. It turned out that this dynasty was far more rotten than he had imagined. It had already rotted to the core. Almost all the officials were imposing exorbitant taxes and levies. So much so that they formed a system of exploitation in the dark, constantly squeezing the common people. The people were living in dire straits. If He Chuan wanted to truly take control of Qingyuan County, he would have to clear out a large number of people. Therefore, in the next few months, He Chuan directly used the power in his hands to start cleaning up the corrupt officials and local bullies in the city. Especially those who colluded with the gangsters for political benefits were severely punished. The lighter sentence was to be sent to prison, at worst, they will be executed. During this period, there were naturally many people who resisted. However, under He Chuan's powerful martial arts, they were quickly suppressed. There was not even the slightest ripple. For a time, the county was completely clean. The number of crimes was greatly reduced. The people no longer had to worry about whether their lives would be threatened when they went out. They had not expected that the substitute magistrate would be so fierce. Not long after he took office, these tumors that had been entrenched for many years were removed. Not only that, but He Quan also took out the money that Zhang Muji had exploited from the people for many years. He built a public academy and taught the children to read, write, and martial arts foundations. At the same time, he introduced the imperial examination system, selected talents thorough examinations, and gathered his subordinates to work for him. They even personally led the farmers out to cultivate the fields and teach them more scientific farming knowledge. In less than a year, Qingyuan County was already showing signs of prosperity. He Chuan was also known as Lord Qing Tian by the people. This title meant that he was honest, impartial, and devoted to the people. In this era of dynasty rule, it was extremely rare. Social status has risen, the Lord Qing Tian achievement has been unlocked. Evaluation points have increased greatly. When He Chuan heard the notification from the reincarnation seal, he knew that he could proceed to the next step. Now, he could be considered to have successfully consolidated his political power and gained a firm foothold in Qingyuan County. After gaining the hearts of the people, 
it didn't matter even if the news of Zhang Muji's death was leaked at this time. After all, who would report him at this time? Therefore, He Chuan began to expand outward at this time. Zhang Muji used to rule over hundreds of counties, townships, villages, and towns. Now he only controlled one, so of course, he had to take all of these territories. But it was a bit troublesome to do this. It was very inconvenient to move in this era. There was no specially paved road between Qingyuan County and its subordinate towns. As a result, if one wanted to go to other places, one would have to walk on the mountain road for several days. After cleaning up one place, I have to ensure that the news doesn't leak out. Otherwise, the corrupt officials in other areas will be on guard and they won't be able to catch them. Therefore, He Chuan had to go out personally and lead the city guards to go on an expedition everywhere. It took him nearly three years to clean up all the trash in this area. On his fourteenth birthday, the people were very grateful and brought all kinds of gifts to congratulate him. Most of them were very ordinary things. For example, eggs, fresh vegetables and so on. After all, the production of this era was limited. The ordinary people, especially those who lived in the ravines, could not earn much in a year. They were usually reluctant to eat these things. He Chuan did not mind. It was all the good intentions and blessings of the people. He accepted them all. Other than that, there were also many other kinds of gifts. The most unique one was the He Chuan clay figurine that the children had glued together. Everyone had especially moved it to the town god's temple and worshipped it. They wished that all the people in the world could meet a good official like Lord He. After that was a banquet. It was jointly organized by several restaurants in the city and invited all the people who could come. The wine tables were placed all over the streets and alleys. He Chuan showed his face in front of the people and after saying a few words, he returned to his residence and began to practice martial arts. In these few years, he had collected all the martial arts that he could get his hands on in the jurisdiction. The quality of these martial arts was much higher than the books in the dilapidated temple scripture depository. Therefore, he made a second deduction and successfully wrote the absolute art tyrannical true cultivation method middle. Now, he had cultivated to the level of perfection and successfully entered the ranks of a second-rate cultivator. He just didn't know what his actual strength was like. In the late, middle, and lower stages, what level was it? Suddenly, someone knocked on the courtyard door. He Chuan was a bit surprised. It couldn't be that they were here to give gifts in private, right? When he went out to take a look, it was indeed true. A young girl was standing in front of him with a shy look in her eyes. She was holding something that was covered by a black cloth in her hand. Big Brother Chuan, Chiao is here again. He Chuan smiled gently, how many times have I told you? I'm two years younger than you. If you want to call me, you have to call me little brother. The young girl stuck out her tongue and made a face. She smiled and lifted the black cloth. At the same time, she reached out her hand. Here, see if it fits. Chapter, 32 He Chuan received it and welcomed her into the courtyard. This young girl's name was Ku Xiao. She was the little girl that Zhang Muji had taken a fancy to and wanted to marry as a concubine. Now, things had changed. In the blink of an eye, she was already sixteen years old. She had grown up to be slender and elegant. Her appearance was delicate and pretty, and she had the temperament of a young lady from a prestigious family. Usually, she would go to the government office to deliver some homemade snacks and drinks to He Chuan. After a while, they became familiar with each other. This time, she gave him a robe that was completely handmade. The texture was exquisite and the material used was soft. It was much better than the one he was wearing. Thank you. He Chuan smiled and said, it must be very hard to make such a robe, right? It's not hard. Ku Xiao quickly shook her head. Try it, I sewed it according to the size I imagined, I don't know if it will fit. Then I'll go to my room to change. No need, there are no outsiders here, just change here. Ku Xiao's pretty face was slightly red and her eyes were uneasy, if it doesn't fit, I'll know what to change. All right. He Chuan turned around and took off his clothes, revealing his muscular back. 
This was the result of tempering his body with inner qi all year round. Ku Zhao's eyes were wide open. She covered her mouth with a surprised expression. Her gaze moved back and forth on He Chuan's body, and she couldn't help but think of some strange things. After He Chuan put on his clothes, his entire temperament was further refined. Indeed, a person depended on clothes and a horse depended on saddles. Although the current He Chuan's facial features were still a little tender due to his age. But he looked strangely mature and steady. Between his brows and eyes, there was always an indescribable attraction, as if people could put their trust in him. Ku Xiao could not help but sink into it. For a moment, she was in a daze. He Chuan shook his head and went up to knock on her forehead. What are you thinking about? Ah! Ku Xiao felt as if she had just woken up from a dream. Immediately after, several images flashed through her mind, and she suddenly ran away while covering her flushed face. He Chuan was a little speechless. After he tidied up his clothes, he realized that they fit him perfectly. There was no need to change them, so he did not call Ku Xiao back. Continue to cultivate. Days passed. He Chuan's cultivation was also increasing day by day. In the blink of an eye, he had completely comprehended the tyrannical true cultivation method middle, and there was no more room for improvement. It was also at this time that he had the idea of leaving Qingyuan County. Of course, he was not giving up on this place. Instead, he was going out alone for a period of time to pursue a higher level of martial arts. However, something unexpected happened. The imperial court suddenly sent a message. The gist of the message was that a young master from the imperial family's trading group wanted to come over and have fun. He wanted Zhang Muji to take good care of him. With Zhang Muji dead, this burden naturally fell on He Chuan. The city guarding commander knew that He Chuan was someone who wasn't afraid of power. However, he still advised him to endure for a period of time to calm down. It was best to take care of him. After all, this kind of person could inform the higher ups. When he returned, he would be able to report everything that happened on this trip back to the emperor. If they attracted the attention of that group of people, they would not be at ease. He Chuan did not say anything. He just told the commander to do his own thing and act as usual. Over the years, he had received many officials from the capital. He had used the deduction system to fool them all. Although the situation this time was a little different, it should not be too difficult to deal with a young master from an aristocratic family. It was just as he had imagined. The young master who had come over was a typical prodigal. He acted arrogantly and disregarded the law. Not long after he had entered Qingyuan County, he had caused complaints from the commoners. However, everyone knew very well that this was someone who had come from the capital. If there was a conflict, it would only make things difficult for Lord He. So they tolerated it. But in the end, the young master took this tolerance as his confidence to act recklessly. When he happened to see Ku Xiao, who was as beautiful as a flower, he actually became lascivious and took a civilian woman on the street by force. This time, everyone couldn't sit still. In Qingyuan County, who didn't know that Ku Zhao's sweetheart was Lord He? How dare you touch Lord He's fiance? Aren't you courting death? Immediately, a few martial artists stopped him. Together with his guards, they took care of him and sent him to the government office. This young master was dumbfounded. In such a big county, how could there still be an existence that could take care of his guards? One had to know that his guards were all third rate experts. Moreover, they practiced the martial arts of their families. They were definitely of high grade standards. Among them, there was even a second rate middle grade martial artist. In the end, they were still taken down. He couldn't understand. In fact, after He Chuan had painstakingly managed Qingyuan County for so many years, its reputation had long spread far and wide. Many martial artists knew that there was a clean place here that wasn't affected by the corrupt officialdom. Many martial arts experts treated this place as a good place to practice martial arts and retire. As a result, Qingyuan County was filled with hidden talents. Perhaps some unremarkable old man who was pushing a cart was a second-rate martial artist. However, the young master didn't panic at all. What was his identity? It was as if he was joking. 
To put it bluntly, even if it was the boss of Qingyuan County, Zhang Muji wasn't even fit to carry his shoes. Did he dare to lay a hand on him? He must be tired of living. Damn it! Let go of me! You bunch of unruly people! When I return, the first thing I'll do is to send someone to deal with all of you. On the law court, under the sign that said, Silence, the young master shouted loudly. Two rows of bailiffs stood beside him. They looked at the young master with only pity, not fear. He he. Teach us a lesson. Don't you even know where we are? At this moment, He Chuan's figure appeared from the side passageway. Without saying a word, he walked to the table in the hall and sat down. When the young master saw that the county head magistrate had arrived, he snorted coldly. Zhang Muji, right? Quickly let go of me. How did you do things? Letting those unruly people tie me up. You don't want that black hat anymore. He Chuan didn't even look at him. He picked up the punishment with slab next to him and threw it down. Fifty slaps, hit. Chapter, 33 The bailiffs immediately stepped forward with their hitting sticks. The guard beside the young master shouted. Stop! Zhang Muji, do you know who my young master is? You dare to torture him? He Chuan ignored him. If you had committed a crime in Qingyuan County, you would be punished. If you dared to snatch a civilian's daughter on the street, even giving him fifty slaps would be a light punishment. Four or five bailiffs directly held up the young master and pressed him to the ground to serve him with big boards. They did not hold back at all. Impudent. Let go of my young master. Those few guards were anxious. One had to know that if their master was injured, it meant that they did not protect him well. When they returned, they would definitely be punished. They might even be kicked out of the family with broken legs. This was something that they could not afford. Thus, they struggled with all their might, the veins all over their bodies bulging. Not long after, that second-rate martial artist actually used brute force to break the rope and regain his freedom. Just as he was about to attack and send the bailiffs who were using the punishment flying, his vision suddenly blurred. He only felt a strong force crashing into his chest. Amidst the muffled sound of bones breaking, his body could not help but fly backward. When he hit the wall of the government office, he bounced back and landed on the ground. When he looked into the hall, the county head magistrate actually stood at his original position, still maintaining the posture of a palm strike. You you are actually a second-rate puff. The strongest guard suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. Before he could finish his sentence, he fell to the ground and fainted. The two third-rate guards were stunned. How was this Zhang Muji so powerful? Wasn't he rumored to be a third-rate warrior? How did he kill their boss in an instant? He Chuan looked back indifferently, continue with the punishment. The small conflict did not change the outcome of the young master being beaten up. When the fifty boards fell, his entire waist and buttocks were covered in blood. He looked very miserable. But this young master was not convinced. His mouth was still full of profanities. He kept saying that he would make sure that everyone here died without a burial ground. He Chuan smiled slightly and had the bailiffs hit him fifty slaps again. This time, the young master could not even speak clearly. Tell me the purpose of this trip to Qingyuan County. Also, how many times have you done such a thing as seizing a civilian girl? The young master continued to wail but did not reply. You're pretending not to hear me, right? All right, fellas, hit him thirty more times. The young master trembled, don't don't hit me any more. if you hit me again, I'm going to die. If you're afraid of death, then say it. He Chuan heavily strikes the wooden block on the table and exerts more pressure. My family does business with the royal family. This time, I came out to purchase some exquisite goods that are not available in the north. I'm preparing to pay tribute to the nobles in the palace during the new year. What else? He Chuan did not care about the purpose of his visit to Qingyuan County. He cared more about how to convict him. The young master avoided his gaze, I've only done this kind of thing today once, really just this once. That little beauty is really too beautiful. I couldn't help it. The surrounding people discussed amongst themselves. 
This little brat is so arrogant and despotic. He must have done many things to bully the good. First time. Tui. Who would believe it? That's right. He did nothing good when he entered the city. Old Wang's horse was only traveling with him. Yet this brat said that it blocked his way and had the guards kill the horse without even paying for it. He he, in all the years that my lord has been in this position, he has never made a wrong or unjust claim. To dare to lie in front of my lord, he must be tired of living. This kind of person should be beaten up. If he is honest, he will naturally say it. He Chuan didn't believe it either, but he still operated the deduction system to verify it and quickly analyzed it before coming to a conclusion. He was lying. Looks like you're very dishonest. Then I'll beat you another thirty oh no, I'll beat you up another fifty times. The corners of He Chuan's mouth curled up slightly. In the eyes of this young master, this smile was no different from a devil. He subconsciously wanted to dodge, but the moment he moved, the wound on his body was torn open, and he immediately cried out in pain. But looking at the bailiffs who walked in again, he still endured the pain and shouted. The bailiffs glanced at He Chuan. He Chuan gently raised a hand, indicating that he could stop. Then he said faintly, My patience is limited. If you only know how to talk nonsense, you don't have to speak any more later. Yes, yes, I understand. The young master lowered his eyes. This sentence was very threatening. He was already a little afraid. He Chuan calmly asked, How many times have you done this? I can't count it. The young master was a little hesitant, but looking at He Chuan's eyes that seemed to be able to see through his heart, he still said this sentence. There was an uproar outside the hall, and the people cried out in surprise. How many girls have been raped by this beast? He Chuan also frowned. But he used the deduction system to make the calculations. So his thoughts were somewhat different from the people's. He couldn't remember clearly. This meant that the young master had done similar things no less than dozens of times. Even more than a hundred times. What did this mean? This meant that someone was backing him up. He was just a descendant of a merchant. How could he remain unharmed despite committing so many crimes? In this era, the status of a merchant was not high. Therefore, He Chuan followed this line of thought and interrogated him. At first, this young master was still vague and did not reveal much. Later, He Chuan directly broke his legs. He said that if he did not tell the truth, he would use the cruelest torture. Of course, this was to scare him. But the young master obviously could not help it. Previously, He Chuan had already left a very deep impression on him, so much so that after this, he promised to tell him what he knew. However, he asked He Chuan to temporarily close the government office and forbid the people from listening, otherwise, he would not say even if he died. He Chuan ordered the government office servants to do as he said. Only then did the young master slowly speak. It turned out that the family that this young master belonged to did not only do business in the country. In private, they also do human trafficking. As long as they met beautiful girls, they would capture them and bring them to the capital. The young masters would enjoy them first. After that, they would use their connections to send them to various parts of the dynasty and let the high officials and nobles play with them. When they were tired of playing with them, they would sell the girls to brothels and exchange them for money. After that, the money would once again be sent to the high officials in the capital. With that, half of the dynasty's officials would gain benefits, so naturally, no one would care. Even if it caused public resentment, the local government officials would only put on a show and capture this young master and let him go in private. These women would only be manipulated by others until they were old and yellow, ending their miserable lives. After he said this, everyone was furious. Chapter 34 The bailiffs gritted their teeth, wishing they could skin this beast alive. They could even imagine how helpless and desperate the girls who were captured were when they were humiliated. He Chuan was also filled with anger. He never thought that. He would be able to dig out such an inside story from this young master. He also never thought that the dynasty had already rotted to such a degree. It was not an exaggeration to say that they were all a jerk. Lord Zhang I have already finished speaking. 
Actually, when you took office, our family already sent someone to send a message over. Who knew that you would do something so incorruptible and reject my father? Sai, why are you trying to confront the higher-ups? Listen to my advice. This is called go with the flow, you can't change it by yourself. I came here this time because my father asked me to bring two boxes of gold, silver, and jewelry to show my respect to you. Don't worry. This Qingyuan County will definitely still be under your control in the future. As long as you don't stop my family hee hee, when the time comes those higher-ups were full, won't you also have a share of the credit? The young master smiled sheepishly as he fawned over him. Looking at He Chuan deep in thought, he felt that this matter was already more than half done. As long as this Zhang Muji was a smart person, he definitely wouldn't refuse such a request. He he. After you agree, see how I'll use my connections to deal with you when I get back. He felt the constant pain in his waist, hips, and legs. A trace of resentment flashed through his eyes. But at this moment. Creak. The door of the government office was suddenly opened. A large group of people gathered outside. They were excited. They were shouting that they wanted to kill him. What was going on? The young master was stunned, Lord Zhang, you. Who told you that my name is Zhang Muji? He Chuan put on a fake smile, now that everyone has heard what you said, as long as I don't do anything, you will be trampled by everyone and beaten to death. The young master's expression changed, you're not Zhang Muji. Then who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. He Chuan slowly approached with his hands behind his back, what's important is that you have to tell me the names of those who participate in the human trafficking chain. Bah! The young master suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. In your dreams. Why do you act like I'm the villain? He Chuan fluttered away and smiled lightly, it won't be that simple. Bring the torture instruments and the medicine box. The bailiffs moved quickly. Soon, dozens of torture instruments of different shapes were brought into the hall and arranged in several rows in front of the young master. I forgot to tell you. He Chuan gently rubbed his wrist, picked up the medicine box, and squatted down beside the young master, apart from martial arts, I also have good attainments in medical arts. Well, I'm not very good, but I can guarantee that you won't die after enjoying all the torture instruments. The young master's expression was dull. Let's see, where should we start? No no. The young master cried out, you're not a human, you're a devil. A devil. He Chuan stopped talking. He opened the medicine box and dug out the bottles and jars inside. He casually sprinkled a bottle of pale yellow medicine powder on the young master's wound. Soon, the young master only felt a numbing sensation on his wound. It didn't seem to hurt as much. This wasn't a good thing. This meant that He Chuan really had that kind of ability. He really had to endure the torture of dozens of torture instruments. He was born into a wealthy family, and he hadn't even bumped into on a daily basis. How could he withstand such an injury? A fishy smell spread out. Unknowingly, he had already been scared to the point of incontinence. I'll speak. The young master cried out. He Chuan's hand paused, and he looked at him with a smile. A wise choice. Very quickly, following the young master's narration, a list of names was obtained by He Chuan. Even Lin County has been infiltrated. He Chuan was very surprised. One had to know that the imperial capital was thousands of li away from here. To travel by modern means of transportation would take at least a few months to arrive. For a county to be able to bribe, one could imagine that this industrial chain had been formed for many years. It was definitely not something that could be accomplished overnight. The further down the list, the more prominent the people that appeared. They were all existences that acted as protective umbrellas. Among them, the one with the highest position was actually the senior grand secretary. This was an existence that was below one person and above 10,000 people. He did not expect that he would be covering up for such an illegal industry. It was truly unexpected. Looking at the half-dead young master, He Quan decided to give him a quick death. He would use his inner chi to break his heart and end his sinful life. You're really lucky. He Chuan snorted coldly. 
he did not have the slightest bit of pity and directly end the life of the other two guards. Since he had already offended this family, killing a few more would not make a difference. But the news would definitely be unable to be sealed. Many people knew that this young master had come to Qingyuan County. It was estimated that it would not be long before his backers would be alerted. Rather than waiting for death, it was better to take the initiative to attack. Thus, He Chuan colluded with the people who came to watch. If someone came to ask if the young master had come to Qingyuan County in the future, they would all say no. After that, he threw the bodies of the young master and the guards in the area where the bandits were running rampant, creating the illusion that they were being killed. This way, not only would they be able to completely conceal the truth, they could at least temporarily hold back the investigation process of the other party and confuse the public. After dealing with the follow-up matters, He Chuan carried out the assassination according to the people on the list. At the start, they were just small officials like the county magistrate. The dynasty did not pay too much attention to them and randomly sent a few secret police forces to investigate. However, as the rank of the officials who were assassinated became higher and higher, the news of a chivalrous hero doing good for the people started to spread. Some people could not sit still anymore. After being reported to the higher authorities, the imperial court finally put up a generous reward and began to send out martial artists to carry out a large-scale arrest. Chapter 35 However, with the help of the deductive system, He Chuan was always able to predict the actions of the imperial court in advance. No matter how dangerous the situation was, he could always turn the situation around. The common people gave this nameless hero a nickname, Night Slayer. As the name Night Slayer became more and more famous, something interesting happened. When some small officials bullied the people like usual, the people only had to shout, Aren't you afraid that Night Slayer will come looking for you? Then this official would probably hesitate for a moment before giving up on what he originally wanted to do, or even apologizing. This way, Night Slayer's fame went even higher, and the people would treat him as a guardian god against the dynasty officials. It was probably at this time. More and more martial artists went to assassinate some officials with bad conduct. As time went by, Night Slayer no longer referred to a single person, but a group. Whoever went against the dynasty and killed those corrupt officials would be a member of Night Slayer. Social status has been greatly raised, the inspiring a resistant spirit achievement has been unlocked, and final evaluation points have been greatly increased. He Chuan was surprised by this result, but he was also very gratified. It seemed that the martial artists of this dynasty were not so hopeless. They were still somewhat courageous. They knew how to resist oppression and protect the weak. They did not let the whales spread throughout the land. However, they were unable to change the current situation of the people's lives for a while. This was a long and arduous road. It would take a lot of time just to clean up the people in the human trafficking chain. It had been almost a year since he left Qingyuan County, but he had only assassinated a small part of them. Of course. During this period, He Chuan did not just assassinate people. Every time he went to a new place, he would collect a large number of local martial arts techniques to perfect his tyrannical true cultivation manual. However, the high-grade cultivation manuals in this world were all mastered by the commanders of the various armies of the dynasty, so it was impossible for them to take it out easily. As a result, what he obtained were all relatively basic cultivation manuals and he could only cultivate them to the level of a second-rate martial artist at most. Even though the tyrannical true cultivation method had become more comprehensive and had no blind spots, it did not allow He Chuan to break through to the level of a first-rate martial artist. Unless, he obtained a better martial art to carry on the deduction, and researched the tyrannical true cultivation manual upper. Then, the people on the list who were in the military camp started to have bad luck. At first, only a few adjutants and commander-in-chief had died. Later on, those military officers who had upper rank second-rate strength, and even some deputy generals who were only half-step away from first-rate cultivators, all died mysteriously in the middle of the night. Comparing their wounds. They were all killed in one move. They didn't even have the chance to resist. Only then did they realize. Night Slayer had attacked the military officers. This was a big issue. The dynasty's greatest reliance on ruling the world was the army. 
you killed my high-ranking military officers, how could I manage the people? Hence, the imperial court was enraged and further increased the intensity of the arrests. But in the end, only a few third-rate martial artists were caught. They were all wandering people who had voluntarily joined the ranks of killing corrupt officials. They had no idea who the real Night Slayer was. The people from the imperial court were flustered and exasperated. They began the order to kill without mercy. These martial artists were collectively escorted to the Meridian Gate. Along with their families, wives, children, old and young, all were beheaded and displayed to the public. The imperial court even said that if the martial artists in the world dared to collude with Night Slayer again, they would all end up like this. For a time, the martial artists in the world did not dare to act rashly. However, the legend of Night Slayer did not end there. There was still one person who constantly swam in the darkness, making decisions for the common people of the entire dynasty. This was the effect that the imperial court wanted. Basically, the only person who would still go against the wind and commit crimes at this time was that Night Slayer Master. The Empire's cultivators in charge of arresting followed the clues all the way, predicting in advance the next general who might be assassinated and would be lying in wait nearby. In this operation, they sent out a total of three lower-stage first-rate experts, one middle-stage first-rate expert, and more than ten late-stage second-rate experts. In addition, there were close to a thousand well-equipped crossbowmen and archers who were blocking and attacking from afar. They were trying to kill the Night Slayer Master here in this battle. In the middle of the night, the military camp was silent. Only the occasional chirping of cicadas would bring about a momentary clamor. Everyone was hiding in the dark, waiting for their target to appear. Whoosh! In the darkness, the sound of rushing wind could be heard. A figure flashed by, flying out of the bamboo forest high above, and quietly landing on a tent that was loaded with provisions. He Chuan looked around, and his gaze stopped at a few static weeds for a few seconds. The corners of his mouth curled up slightly, and he circulated his inner chi to his legs with a faint smile, approaching the largest tent in the military camp at full speed. Just as he approached, a loud shout suddenly came from the side. Attack! At the same time as the voice sounded, a cold blade light lit up from the curtain of the tent that had just been lifted. He Chuan was already prepared. He calmly rolled back and easily dodged the attack. However, the other party did not give him any time to catch his breath. He immediately had the soldiers cover him with a rain of arrows. However, a strange scene appeared. He Chuan's figure was like a ghost as he shuttled back and forth in the dense rain of arrows. The poisoned arrows did not even cause a small wound as they were all dodged. The various experts who had successively landed and sealed off his escape routes were all dumbfounded. Was this a joke? Even if they had learned two top-tier movement techniques, they would not be able to dodge such a dense rain of arrows, right? Was the Night Slayer Master's movement technique so good to such an extent? While they were shocked, they did not pay too much attention to it. So what if his movement technique was good? Today, there were so many first-rate and second-rate martial artists attacking at the same time. Let's see where you can run to. Kill. After the order was given, more than ten people swarmed forward, completely disregarding the one-on-one -on -one martial artists' morals in the martial arts world. They attacked He Chuan from all directions. However, He Chuan blocked them left and right. Not only could he deal with these many attacks with ease, but he could also find the right time to counterattack in the gaps. And the strength of the counterattack was extremely great. A second-rate martial artist was slightly careless and his head was directly cut off. He was no longer qualified to attack. At first, this group of dynasty martial artists only felt that He Chuan's martial arts were not bad and his inner chi was abundant. However, after the battle continued for a period of time, his inner chi would be exhausted and he would immediately be hacked to death. However, as time passed, everyone suddenly realized that something was not right. In the chaotic battle, He Chuan was actually as slippery as a loach. The others could not even touch him. However, if they were not careful, they would be severely injured. In just a few minutes, half of the second-rate warriors that surrounded him died. Although the first-rate warriors did not suffer any casualties, they could not do anything to He Chuan either. 
Chapter, 36 A long sword strikes from the side of your ribs. You can't dodge it in time and die from a piercing heart. Seeing the result of the deduction, He Chuan quickly reacted. Instantly, he leaned back in the posture of an iron bridge, dodging the incoming long sword. At the same time, he swung his knife backward. The opponent did not have time to react and his shoulder was instantly cut open by the Buddhist monk's knife, all the way to his waist. His body was split into two halves and fell down separately. His eyes were filled with shock. Even until his death, he still could not understand how He Chuan could accurately dodge his attack even though he was clearly not looking at him. The handle of the knife in He Chuan's hand fell to the ground and rebounded. He used this force to flip himself up and continue fighting. Four weapons came from the front. You dodged them one by one and killed one person at the same time. When the old force was exhausted and the new force was not born, you were suddenly pierced through the abdomen by a long spear from the back. You are dead. He Chuan dodged four attacks in a row. After killing one person, he immediately jumped up. After taking the gene reagent and being a second-rate dual cultivator, the potential contained in his body was astonishing. This jump landed directly on the back of the martial artist holding the long spear. Clang! The Buddhist monk's knife sank into the flesh. The incomplete weapon wrapped in inner chi cut through the martial artist's bones with incomparable ease. He fell down with a confused expression. Like his companions, he had no idea how He Chuan had managed to dodge the sneak attack from behind. If this is all your strength, then I won't play with you anymore. He Chuan shook off the remaining blood stains on the Buddhist monk's knife, raised his left hand, condensed his majestic inner chi in his palm, and lightly pushed. Not good. Quickly dodge. That middle stage first rate martial artist shouted and retreated repeatedly. Boom! The inner chi swept out in the form of a shock wave, but the target was not them, but the ground below. In the next second, dust flew everywhere. They could no longer see He Chuan's figure clearly. Immediately after, a miserable cry came from the tent. By the time they rushed over, the commander's head had already been cut off, and fresh blood sprayed out from the wound, splattering the entire table. Damn it! Don't let him escape! The strongest martial artist shouted angrily. If they let the Night Slayer Master escape, then no one would be able to survive. Kill. The scout sent news. He Chuan had already broken through the heavy encirclement. Moreover, the escape route happened to be the weak point of their deployed troops. It was as if they knew in advance that it was the same whether they place how many people there. The cultivators were furious. By the time they caught up, he had already disappeared without a trace. They immediately panicked. If they brought this news back to the imperial capital, everyone would probably be punished. Thus, they came up with a plan. Using the strange escape route of the Night Slayer Master, they boldly speculated that a spy within the imperial court must have leaked the news. This was equivalent to throwing the blame onto the imperial court. The officials of the imperial court were not as friendly as they appeared on the surface. In private, they had already been divided into countless factions fighting each other. They wished for the other party to die early so that they could profit from it. As a result, after they received this news, everyone started to take action. They tried their best to find out the fake spy. To be more precise, they were trying to prove that the spy belonged to their enemy's forces. They wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to take down their opponent in one fell swoop. Such a chaotic court gave He Chuan plenty of time to catch his breath. During this time, he continued to assassinate. As the number of officials who died at his hands grew larger and larger. The types of martial arts he collected also increased. Among them, there was no lack of martial arts that could allow one to cultivate to the level of a first-rate cultivator. It was also at this time that he stopped his assassination and returned to Qingyuan County to begin deducing the last tyrannical true cultivation manual. In three days, the prototype of the cultivation manual was deduced. In five days, it was mostly completed. In seven days, he began to cultivate. In ten days, he stepped into the first-rate cultivator. After becoming a first-rate cultivator, Chuan could clearly feel that something in his body had become different, 
but he could not tell the exact details. The most obvious manifestation was that the response from the deduction system had become faster. If I cultivate the tyrannical true cultivation manuac to perfection, will I be able to break through the shackles of a first-rate cultivator? This was what He Chuan was more curious about. Unfortunately, the imperial court started to cause trouble for him again. After the internal opinions were temporarily unified, they finally decided to send troops to attack He Chuan. The so-called punitive expedition was actually a carpet search. They did not know where He Chuan was, so they let the army sweep over from city to city. In the end, the generals of the imperial court army in charge of this operation did not want to do this hard job without money. Hence, every place they passed, they would use the reason of eliminating evil for the people, to collect large amounts of military wages and rations from the people. To put it bluntly, it was a robbery. It was just that this kind of excuse looked more like a bandit than a bandit. After this series of operations, the prestige of the Night Slayer became higher and higher. The people wished that these beasts would be taken care of by the Night Slayer one night. However, He Chuan did not show up at this time. He was immersed in the world of martial arts cultivation and did not care about what happened outside. Two years passed in the blink of an eye. The imperial army's footprints covered more than half of the dynasty. They were about to arrive at Qingyuan County. The people were complaining. Their dissatisfaction with the imperial court had reached an extreme point. During this period, there were quite a number of lone wandered cultivators who did not fear sacrificing to assassinate the head of the imperial army. The result could be imagined. That general had the strength of an upper-stage first-class cultivator. Just this alone was enough to make the vast majority of wanderer cultivators stop in their tracks. Not to mention, he also had tens of thousands of soldiers. Ordinary third-rate or even second-rate cultivators simply could not get close to him. Seeing that night slayers could not withstand a single blow, the imperial army general could not help but feel a little smug. He said that night slayers was a bunch of useless chickens and dogs. The so-called night slayer master was just trash that was praised by others. He only knew how to bully those who were not as strong as him. If you have the guts, come to the military camp and find him. The commoners did not feel good when they heard this. But they could not say a word of rebuttal. After all, the mysterious master of Night Slayer had disappeared for a long time. They had not heard of him showing his face anywhere in the past two years. Then, something unexpected happened. On the same day that the leader of the Imperial Army started to spout nonsense. When the sun reaches its highest point. A young man in a black robe, holding a knife full of holes, descended from the sky like a god. In front of all the civilians, he chopped off the head of the general and threw it to the ground. I heard that you asked me to try killing you. It seems easier for me to kill you than killing a chicken. The young man had a smile on his face. He did not show any fear in front of the thousands of soldiers who were carrying standard weapons. He said each word carefully. Who? Else. Chapter, 37. The people of the Imperial Army were utterly silent. Those vice generals also had first rate strength. Even the commandant, who had barely stepped into the first rate level, did not dare to speak. They were afraid that they would be targeted by He Chuan. It was too terrifying. He was taking the head of an enemy general among 10,000 armies as easy as taking something from a bag. Was this something that a human could do? Even an upper stage first rate cultivator could not do it. Could it be that this night slayer had already broken through the first rate level and reached the realm of being one with nature? This was a question that arose in their hearts at the same time. If that was the case, then this night slayer was not an existence that they could deal with at all. Don't look at the tens of thousands of imperial court soldiers inside and outside the city. To a martial arts expert of this level, they were not a threat at all. Ordinary soldiers did not have any means to stop him and it was difficult to even restrict him. The Night Slayer could kill all the generals and leave. Who would be at a disadvantage then? It would still be them. Hence, under this psychological attack, the generals of the Imperial Army tacitly did not dare to act rashly. No one dared to stand out. In the crowd, they silently waved to the back, 
signaling for them to retreat. Very soon. The thousands of imperial court soldiers in the city retreated like a tide. After meeting up with the troops outside the city, they did not hesitate and quickly moved north. However, He Chuan knew that the imperial court would not let this go. In the future, they would definitely send even stronger cultivators to encircle and suppress him. He might as well take the initiative and go against him. He Chuan stepped onto the city wall and looked down at the commoners before speaking slowly. Perhaps all of you have heard of me. Night Slayer is the nickname that the people in the world have given me. To be able to obtain your trust and recognition is my honor. In this tyrannical and corrupt dynasty, it's a pity that my personal ability is limited, and I have failed everyone's expectations. With just my strength alone, it's really hard to shake them. After saying this, he paused. The people below who were listening were a little confused and they stared at each other. What did he mean? Could it be that? Night Slayer Master was afraid of the Imperial Court. Did he not want to continue resisting them? In the next second, He Chuan used his inner qi to wrap around his voice and sent it out. That voice filled with intimidation sounded in everyone's hearts at the same time. Today, I want to rebel. Rebel against this decadent dynasty. Rebel against this distorted era. Return a peaceful world to all the people in this world. Crush that endless oppression and evil power. Bringing all the cultivators in the world a holy land for cultivation. No matter whether they are talented or not, they will all enjoy the best cultivation. Who is willing to fight with me for the future, for the hope in their hearts? As soon as he said that, the tens of thousands of people in the city were stunned. Did I hear wrong? Night Slayer wanted to rebel. This was a great crime that would kill nine generations. Everyone was silent. Faced with such a choice, it seemed that they would rather welcome the arrival of the light in oppression than creating the light themselves. He Chuan looked at these people with a hint of sorrow. Perhaps you haven't seen the starving people everywhere, the mournful people everywhere. Nor have you seen the bandits who colluded with the government, wantonly slaughtering unarmed civilians, and humiliating the women in their homes in front of them. It sounds far away, right? Then let's hope that they will never repeat their mistakes on you. He Chuan shook his head in disappointment and turned to leave. The instigation to revolt here was considered to have ended in failure. However, he could still go to Qingyuan County to try again. That was the place he had been running for several years. The respect the civilians had for him was perhaps greater than their fear of the imperial court. Two days later, when He Chuan returned to Qingyuan County, countless warriors and civilians had lined up in a long line, waiting for his arrival. Welcome Night Slayer Master. It seemed that they all knew his identity. He Chuan raised his arm and called out. I want to rebel, there is no glory or wealth, only the truth of the world. Who is willing to fight with me? His short words instantly received countless responses. A middle-aged martial artist brought his family forward. The five members of the Sun family are willing to fight with you, sir. Good. He Chuan's gaze was sharp. With a glance, he could tell that everyone in this family was a cultivator. The weakest one was a middle-stage third-rate cultivator. Compared to ordinary soldiers, they were much stronger. Me too. A youth dressed in green and white stood out from the side. The sword on his back was more than three feet long. The inner chi emitted from it made him feel high-spirited. He was already a second-rate martial artist at such a young age. Ha ha ha, even a little kid relied on his courage to step forward. Do we old men still have the face to stand behind others? Amidst the hearty laughter, a few old men also walked out. He Chuan took a closer look. These few were even stronger. They were already upper-stage second-rate experts. They were only one step away from breaking through to become first-rate martial artists. With them taking the lead, the number of people responding instantly increased explosively. In an instant, the crowd responded. Not long after, the number of applicants had exceeded 30 zero, zero. Among them, 4 zero, zero were martial artists. Although their strength was not equal, for an ordinary army, this number was already very exaggerated. 
With these cultivators, even if they were to fight against the 60-0-0 regular soldiers, they still had a considerable chance of winning. After this, He Quan organized the military affairs. He got the blacksmiths in the city to speed up the forging of armor for them. Not long after, the resistance army officially started an uprising. Under the gaze of the people, He Chuan listed out the ten great crimes of the dynasty. He wanted everyone to know. They were not fighting for themselves, not for power. They were fighting for the people of the world. Following this, they used Qingyuan County as their base and quickly expanded. In a short period of time, 30 000 people consecutively broke through more than 10 important imperial cities. They obtained a large number of military supplies. After the news spread to the north, the entire imperial court quavered and discussed it for a few days. In the end, they actually decided to transfer 300 000 troops over to suppress the rebellion. Chapter 38 Northern Border Legion This was an elite legion that fought against the barbarians all year round. It was not an exaggeration to say that it was the number one legion of the dynasty. Even if they fought against the guard stationed in the capital that enjoyed the most military expenditure, they had a 60% chance of winning. 300,000 elites versus 30,000 newly formed soldiers. One could imagine the result. No one was optimistic about the resistance army. When the northern border legion approached, even He Chuan's troops started to feel uneasy. No one expected that the first true battle would be a decisive battle. If they won, the dynasty would have no legion that could fight them. However, if they lost. He he. Under such a situation, it was inevitable that someone would suggest to He Chuan to retreat to the border and leave the territory of the dynasty to develop before making a move. He Chuan rejected it outright. If we retreat today and take a step back. Once we leave our homes, when will we be able to return? When will we see the day when the world is united? So what if they are elites? So what if they have more people? Those who fight for that shameless dynasty that only seek personal gain, even if they have great strength, they can only use half of it. We, the righteous army, are with millions of common people, why should we be afraid of them? After saying these words, everyone clenched their fists and was filled with energy once again. The next day, the Northern Border Legion arrived in the city. They were shouting to persuade them to surrender. He Chuan did not say anything and charged forward alone. He raised the sword in his hand. His majestic inner chi swept out, and there was no one who could match him. In the blink of an eye, hundreds of people fell under the sword intent. It slashed through half of the front line. The Northern Border Legion soldiers on the front line did not expect such a fierce person to suddenly appear. They did not dare to go forward to deal with him. As a result, He Chuan was like a god who had descended to earth and charged into the middle of the 300 000 Northern Border Legion's main forces. The resistance army's blood boiled when they saw this. They all roared, kill. A few thousand cultivators took the lead and charged into the formation, slashing wildly. The ordinary soldiers at the back followed. They used their longbows to throw arrows. The rain of arrows covered an even further area to stop the enemy's reinforcements from charging forward. The terrain here was narrow and the roads were blocked by mountains on both sides. There was no way for the army of 300 000 to rush forward. As a result, the tens of thousands of northern border legion soldiers at the front became rootless duckweed and were killed by a group of powerful cultivators. Was it difficult for 400 cultivators to kill tens of thousands of people? It was not difficult at all. Even the weakest third rate cultivator could kill well equipped soldiers in just a few breaths' time. In the end, the Northern Border Legion's frontline was instantly defeated and they retreated one after another. But at this time, the sound of war drums sounded. The marshal gave the order. Very soon, the surrounding heavy shield army formations changed direction one after another and blocked the charging cultivators. However, the rear was still in chaos. He Chuan's individual strength was really too strong. After he cultivated the tyrannical true cultivation manual to perfection, he had already surpassed the boundary of a first-rate martial artist. He could be said to be unrivaled in the world. 
No matter how elite the Northern Border Legion was, they would not be a match for him. Unless he was exhausted and did not even have the strength to kill. However, at this moment, a loud shout suddenly sounded in the sky. Enough. He Chuan narrowed his eyes and swept the Buddhist monk's knife in his hand with great force. A crisp sound was heard. There was another gap on the Buddhist monk's knife. This was the performance of the opponent breaking through the inner chi attached to the weapon. This kind of situation only appeared when he was still weak when he was killing the bandits. Oh. He Chuan stopped. Such an opponent was worthy of him knowing his name before killing him. The opponent did not continue to attack. The two of them looked at each other telepathically. You are Night Slayer. The person who came wore armor that was full of traces of killing. His eyes were sharp, I have long heard of your strength in the northern border. Seeing you today, you are indeed extraordinary. You're not bad either. He Chuan said calmly. This attitude made the other party frown slightly. I think you're a talent, you shouldn't do such a stupid thing. Why don't you give up your weapons and surrender? I can guarantee your life in the imperial court. Stupid thing. He Chuan laughed lightly, you know what the imperial court is like today. How can you say that overthrowing them was a stupid thing? Looks like I can't persuade you anymore. On the battlefield, weapons are used to determine who is superior. Forget it. The other party sighed and slowly raised the long spear in his hand, I, Marshal Fan Long, will not kill nameless people. Quickly report your name. So you are the rank 4th expert on the dynasty cultivator's ranking. No wonder you have such a big mouth. He Chuan smiled, you want to know my name? Beat me first. Humph. Fan Long stopped talking and attacked. The surrounding soldiers made room for the two of them early on. They retreated a few hundred meters and entered spectator mode. It's been a long time since the marshal made a move. How many moves do you think this Night Slayer can withstand? This kid is too young, it's already not bad if he can withstand two moves. I bet three moves, that kid didn't even take a deep breath when he charged in. He definitely didn't use his full strength. Do you guys think the marshal won't be able to beat him ouch? Why did you hit me? I'm trying to wake you up. How many barbarian leaders did the marshal kill on the northern border? Did you forget that he killed ten first-rate experts by himself? That's right, the marshal's killing this night slayer is purely bullying a child. Didn't you see that kid's hair hasn't even grown yet yet? The conversation came to an abrupt end. Because the victor had already been decided on the battlefield. In just ten moves, Fan Long, whom they regarded as the undefeatable marshal, had already fallen to He Chuan's feet. Now, there was a huge wound on his chest. Fresh blood flowed out. Fan Long's eyes were filled with disbelief. Such a young cultivator actually defeated him in such a short time. This. How was this possible? But that was the reality. He Chuan looked at him calmly. You have some ability, but that's all. Under the circumstances of possessing a tyrannical true cultivation manual, he was an invincible existence in the same realm. Not to mention having a deduction system, he would be informed of any threatening attacks at any time. Fan Long's loss was not unjustified. I've lost, kill me. His face was filled with loneliness. He did not expect to die in such a place today. He heard that Night Slayer was a chivalrous person. Losing to him was not considered losing his reputation. However, He Chuan did not make a move. Fan Long was known as a good general in the northern border. He treated his subordinates with kindness and sincerity. The soldiers who died in battle were given double compensation. If the imperial court did not give enough, he would even pay out of his own pocket. More importantly, his name was not on the list of human trafficking. I won't kill you, surrender so that you won't harm these soldiers and brothers. Chapter, 39 Surrendering This was undoubtedly an insult to a general. Furthermore, surrendering now meant going against the dynasty in the future. It was no different from rebelling. Fan Long could not accept both. Soldiers do not surrender. Fan Long looked at Hichuan deeply, moreover, I'm the only one who lost. 
The Northern Border Legion hasn't been defeated yet, and your 30 resistance army isn't even strong enough. When they're all dead and injured, you won't be able to kill all 300 Northern Territory cavalry. Enough people have already died. He Chuan sighed softly, since you won't give up, I'll let you experience it. Fan Long's pupils suddenly shrank. At this moment, he suddenly felt the power in his body tremble involuntarily. It was as if he had met a unique king and was making a submission gesture. He Chuan closed his eyes and slowly opened his arms. Immediately, the energy in the air resonated with each other and gradually interweaved into a storm vortex with an extremely strong aura. It lifted his body up and headed high into the sky under everyone's gaze. For a moment, the wind and clouds changed. The dark cumulonimbus clouds were blown by the strong wind and covered the originally bright sky. Rumble. Along with the deafening thunder. The battle below stopped. Everyone couldn't help but raise their heads and look up at the figure in the center of the vortex. Is this the power that the top cultivators possess? Countless soldiers looked forward to it. But as the saying goes, the layman watches the show, while the expert watches the door. In the arena, only Fan Long's strength was closest to the peak of a cultivator. He clearly knew where the limit of a first-rate cultivator was. After seeing this scene, he couldn't be more shocked in his heart, he was completely stunned. How is this possible? This isn't the power that a cultivator can have. Night Slayer how did he do it? Whether a cultivator cultivated internally or externally, they would always rely on external forces to strengthen themselves. No matter what, they would never be able to break through the shackles of their physical bodies. They would not be able to walk through the air and injure others through the air. However, Night Slayer had broken this common sense. It was as if he had mastered the power of heaven and earth, and he had triggered the wind, rain, thunder, and lightning. He had clearly done nothing but float in mid-air, yet he was able to give everyone an irresistible pressure. It was difficult for them to even catch their breath. Moreover, this feeling grew stronger with He Chuan's actions. At this moment, He Chuan spoke. He was like a god, his voice was like thunder, and every word was clearly heard in everyone's minds. You are all soldiers of the northern border, and you have contributed greatly to the resistance of the barbarians. I do not wish to commit any more murders. Surrender, and you will live. Fight, and you will die. He Chuan raised his hand high, opened his eyes, and suddenly pressed down. Instantly. Everyone felt as if their bodies were weighed down by a thousand tons. It was as if a huge mountain was pressing down on their heads. Not to mention gasping for breath, even moving was difficult. Along with the pressure formed by the storm. Many soldiers who did not have martial cultivation started to have physical reactions. One by one, they fell to the ground and fainted. In the blink of an eye, half of the 300 soldiers were destroyed. And the 30 soldiers of the resistance happened to be watching this scene from afar outside the storm. Everyone was excited. Damn it! It was so exciting to rebel with Lord He. No wonder he was so confident. He was completely unafraid of these 300 elite soldiers of the northern border. So he had such a move. Now, let alone 300 Even if 3 million people came, they would have to kneel down to them. Meanwhile, He Chuan continued to pressure them from high up in the sky. Fan Long. The life and death of your brothers are all in your hands. If you don't make a choice, they will soon suffocate to death. When Fan Long heard this, his heart was extremely conflicted. Choosing between treason and the lives of 300 soldiers. It was undoubtedly a very painful matter. He silently recalled the things he had heard about the Night Slayer when he was guarding the border in the Northern Territory. He helped the weak and devoted himself to the people. He could be said to be a hero. It was not impossible for him to surrender like that. At least, it was not considered aiding the tyrant. All right. I surrender. Fan Long gritted his teeth, however, I have one condition. Speak. He Chuan immediately stopped and heaved a sigh of relief. If Fan Long did not agree, he would not be able to hold on for long. 
I cannot bring the Northern Border Legion along with you to attack the Imperial Court. I agree. He Chuan retracted his aura and slowly dropped as he flew down from the sky. The storm energy that swept across the battlefield also dissipated bit by bit. The remaining people who were still conscious felt their bodies become lighter and regained their ability to move normally. Seeing He Chuan return to the ground, everyone could not help but take a few steps back. This young man was too terrifying. Fan Long also showed respect. He took out the Commander Tiger Tally and solemnly handed it to He Chuan. I hope you'll keep your word. I cross my heart. He Chuan laughed lightly and said a joke that ruined his temperament. Fan Long could not help but laugh. The animosity and awkwardness between the two were resolved with this laugh. The next day, the news that 300,000 elites were captured by the 30,000 resistance army spread out. Within a few days, they reached every corner of the dynasty. Instantly, all the civilians and cultivators were shocked. No one had expected that the side that could not win would actually capture half of the northern border legion at the cost of minimal casualties. This caused many people to have more confidence in the resistance army, and they all pledged their allegiance. In just half a month's time, the scale of the resistance army had increased several times, reaching 200 people. When the imperial court received the news, they were even more furious. They scolded Fan Long for being useless. They had thrown in so many elites of the dynasty. In the end, Fan Long actually returned to the capital at this time and requested to enter the palace to meet the emperor. Furthermore, he came as an envoy of the resistance army. This was undoubtedly a slap to everyone's face. However, the news that they brought was very useful. The general content was that the leader of the resistance army did not want to increase the number of deaths, causing the people to die. He didn't want the soldiers who were supposed to protect the country to die in this meaningless war. Hence, he proposed to fight with the people on the dynasty cultivators' rankings. He wanted to end this conflict by fighting with the top powers. As for how to respond to this topic, the imperial court was split into two factions. One faction advocated peace talks. After analyzing the situation, they felt that fighting would harm the interests of the dynasty. The other faction wanted to continue fighting. After some discussion, the representative of the faction that wanted to fight, the senior grand secretary, appeared and pretended to agree. However, he turned around and assassinated Fan Long in the dark. Furthermore, he sent out three legions from the east, west, and south to gather all the troops and kill in the area where the main force of the resistance army was. Chapter, 40 Soon, the news of the million powerful armies pressuring the border was spread to everyone's ears through the scouts. The resistance army was ready. The 500-00 did not show any signs of retreating. There were only 200-00 people originally. But now, there were 300-00 people from the northern border legion. In the beginning, He Chuan had followed Fan Long's request and did not plan to let this group of people participate in the battle. But who would have thought that the imperial court would actually kill Fan Long, who was the envoy? The two armies cannot kill the envoy when they fought. This was the principle that everyone adhered to. Now that the imperial court was so unreasonable, it directly ignited the anger of the 300 00 soldiers of the Northern Border Legion. Now, each and every one of them harbored hatred in their hearts. They howled and wanted to kill their way back to the capital to take revenge for the marshal. However, He Chuan did not want to fight head-on with the imperial army anymore. His own people knew their own affairs. The combat strength of these 500 00 people was still very limited, and they were not well adjusted enough. They were definitely not a match for the millions of soldiers. It was even more unrealistic to let him fight on his own. Although the method he used to suppress the Northern Border Legion could be replicated, the effect would definitely not reach the same level. After all, he had only used his skilled control of inner chi to trigger the energy contained in the surrounding air to form a collision storm. There was a pressure difference with the storm vortex. After the pressure became lower, it was naturally difficult for them to breathe. When the oxygen supply was insufficient, those ordinary soldiers without cultivation would definitely faint because of it. The truth was far from being as magical as they had imagined. As for the thunder. 
It was just a coincidence that there were cumulonimbus clouds nearby and they were sucked over. He Chuan had completely taken advantage of this group of people's lack of scientific knowledge and deified himself, forcing these people to be in awe of him. But the price was the rapid loss of inner qi. It would be very difficult to hold on for a while, not to mention increasing the range of the storm when facing a million-strong army. Thus, this path simply could not be taken. Through the deductive system, he also learned that if this method was used, the probability of defeating the imperial army was less than 10%. Thus, He Chuan changed his train of thought. It was better to take advantage of the main force of the imperial army going out to attack the rebel army. He would directly rush to the capital to steal home. You won't agree to a martial duel with me, right? Very good, I'll directly knock on your door and pick you all out one by one. He Chuan had always been a person who think of many things and did things quickly. After confirming his target, he did not say anything else. In the shortest amount of time, he single-handedly charged into the capital and rushed to the home of the senior grand secretary, the main culprit of the pro-war faction. In the backyard garden, a dignified-looking man was leaning against the arms of a few beautiful women. He hugged them from left to right and reached into their clothes to caress them without any hesitation. Day 6. Dong Chao, you're even more of a bastard than I thought. He Chuan leaped and landed in front of the pavilion and said something casually. He said the name of the senior grand secretary to test the other party's reaction. In the end, that person did not even look at him. He waved his hand, and the beauty next to him sipped a small glass of wine, then leaned over and kissed him. As their lips and tongues interweaved, the wine slid into the mouth through the gap. That person's face revealed a satisfied expression, and the strength of his hand increased a little, causing the beauty to involuntarily cry out. Her dress slid down with her movements, revealing her fair and graceful body. However, even though He Chuan, an outsider, had seen her naked, she did not show any signs of shyness. As if she was used to this situation, she reached out to untie the man's upper body, lowered her head, and used her tongue to tease his chest, which had become bare. The man enjoyed the beauty's service and closed his eyes in satisfaction. People live in this world for three things, greed, lust, and life. In this life, I don't lack anything. I just want to live longer and have more fun. What a pity, many people want me to die, but I don't want to die. What should I do? He he then I have to let them die. He suddenly opened his eyes and slowly looked at He Chuan, Night Slayer, right? You do have some ability to subdue Fan Long, but it's not enough for a young man to have some ability. You also need to understand what should be done and what shouldn't be done forget it, forget it, you should learn a lesson in this life and only talk about this wrong thing after you die. As his voice fell, a shadow flashed past like lightning. In just the blink of an eye, a person was standing between He Chuan and that man. To come uninvited, isn't that too impolite? There was a long scar on his face, as ugly as a maggot. He sneered, oh, I almost forgot, you are a stealthy person, you only know how to sneak attack and assassinate, naturally you don't care about manners. Sir, you spoke in a strange tone, could it be that you are a eunuch? He Chuan's expression did not change. He mocked mercilessly, TSK, I really can't believe that the rank 3 expert in the world is not a man. You. The scar-faced man's expression suddenly changed. It was as if he had really hit a sore spot. He immediately wanted to attack and kill this young man who spoke rudely in front of him with one palm. But in the next moment, a powerful hand grabbed the right wrist joint that he was about to attack. Then, he twisted it fiercely. Crack! A clear sound rang out. The wrist was broken from the bone. Even the skin and flesh were exposed, revealing the pale bones inside. The scar-faced man was greatly shocked. How was this possible? How could this young man's actions be faster than his own? However, the moment this thought was born, He Chuan's hand was already placed on his neck. In the next life, don't be a two-sided person. This was the last sentence he heard. Then, his vision went black. He lost his perception of the world. Screams sounded. Several beauties panicked. The man lying in the beauties' arms also panicked. 
he looked at everything in a daze. The third most powerful warrior in the world was so weak. This how could it be? But the truth was, He Chuan was like the Grim Reaper, approaching step by step. Even if he was not a warrior, he could clearly feel the murderous intent emanating from his body. He is the instigator of the human trafficking chain. If you can order him around, then you must be the mastermind, right? Dong Chao. He Chuan raised his hand again. Wait. Dong Chao shouted, What do you want? Money? Women? Or this world? I can get it for you as long as you don't kill me. It's a very tempting choice, but unfortunately, it's not what I want. He Chuan did not slow down at all. He placed one hand in front of his chest and pressed down hard. The sound of bones breaking could be heard. Under the terrifying gazes of the few beauties who had already curled up in the corner, Dong Chao's heart was taken out by him. However, the connecting blood vessels were not broken. He took out the heart and placed it on the collapsed chest, letting Dong Chao struggle and tremble. Hmm, the methods are a little cruel, but it seems that letting you die like this is still a little unworthy of the girls who were killed by you. He Chuan said this to himself. He took out his Buddhist monk's knife and took turns cutting his hands and feet, breaking the tendons on Dong Chao's hands and feet. Now, you can only watch as your blood dries up bit by bit. You can only feel that your chest is getting heavier and heavier, and it's getting harder and harder for you to breathe. You're dying bit by bit in despair, but you can't struggle. He Chuan recalled the scenes that he had witnessed in the Grass Temple village. A relieved smile appeared on his face, Senior Grand Secretary, when you did those bad things, did you ever think that there would be such a day? Chapter, 41 Dong Chao's face was deathly pale. The feeling of his vitality slowly draining away had already taken over his nerves. He did not have the strength to respond to any of He Chuan's words. He could only stare at him with eyes filled with hatred as if he was thinking of some vicious curse in his heart. But very soon, a deep sense of exhaustion assaulted him, making him unable to help but want to close his eyes. He Chuan sneered and crushed Dong Chao's legs with one foot. Ah! Dong Chao howled like a pig being slaughtered. The intense pain stimulated his nerves and made him extremely clear-headed. You you will definitely not have a good ending someone will avenge me. He used the last of his strength to say these words. He Chuan laughed. Killing won't solve the problem, nor will it end the hatred. However, it will relieve my anger. You want to kill me, right? Unfortunately, you won't be able to wait for this day. After saying that, he turned his head and no longer paid any attention to this person who was about to die. After so many years. The hundreds of lives in Grass Temple Village. The abbot who had raised him for so many years. And those pitiful women who had been sold. The anger that had been suppressed in the bottom of his heart for so long was finally released today. A few beautiful women beside him saw him turn around and retreated in fear. They hugged each other and hid in a corner. He Chuan put on a forced smile, don't worry, I won't hurt you. Quickly leave this place. They did not respond. There was only panic and helplessness in their eyes. He Chuan hesitated for a moment, but in the end, he did not care about whether these people would stay or go. People had to make their own choices. They could not just rely on others. Then, he began to search Dong Chao's mansion. Not long after, he found a few cabinets full of martial arts books in a secret room. They seemed to be very high-level cultivation techniques and were very useful for reference. He Chuan took them all. Apart from that, he actually found some top-secret letters here. There was no signature and no date. He Chuan opened them all and was greatly shocked. There was actually someone hidden even deeper behind this human trafficking chain. No wonder Dong Chao said that someone would take revenge for him. So that's how it is. Without saying anything else, he started to use the deduction system to analyze the contents of these letters in an attempt to find the target's identity. There were not many people who could talk to an official at the level of the cabinet minister, so it was not difficult to screen them. Not long after, a candidate was identified. The highly favored head eunuch of the Imperial Scripture Pavilion, Kong Lishin. A eunuch, what is the purpose of trafficking people? 
to befriend powerful people. This doesn't make sense. He Chuan was puzzled. If the prime minister of the cabinet did such a thing, it would be fine. He would use those poor women to befriend powerful officials and control all the officials in the world. After that, he would wait for an opportunity to rebel. He would become the emperor himself. However, eunuchs could not participate in court politics. Even if they forcefully overthrew the regime and took the throne, they would not be recognized by anyone. Before long, they would be removed from power. After all, how could there be a future for those who could not have offspring? Even the deduction system could not find the answer to this question. There was too little information, so there was no way to reason. Forget it, let's study these techniques first. He Chuan temporarily stopped thinking about this question. At the same time, there was a clamor outside. It seemed that the news of Dong Chao's death had spread out. He was not in a hurry to leave, so he might as well directly carry out the deduction in this secret room. Now that he had cultivated the tyrannical true cultivation manual to perfection, his strength had definitely surpassed the level of a first-rate martial artist. However, this did not mean that tyrannical true cultivation manual was an all-round cultivation technique. When he had first deduced the tyrannical true cultivation manual upper, he had not obtained many top-tier cultivation techniques. In the end, he had only fused the two types of cultivation techniques of kung fu and knife techniques. There was still a lot of room for improvement. There were a lot of books in the senior grand secretary's residence. And they were all of the high quality. Among them, there were probably the martial arts practiced by the third most powerful man in the world, the Scarman cultivation technique. Although this person was insta-killed by him in one move, he still had the qualifications to learn from him. I see. After a long time, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. He used a few days to complete the deduction of all the books in this place. He absorbed all the martial arts knowledge that could be used and fused them into tyrannical true cultivation manual. The results were remarkable. Among these martial arts, there was actually a very rare inner strength cultivation method. It specifically taught people how to control inner chi. This was a very rare thing. There were not many low-level ones in the world, let alone such a top-level cultivation method. After absorbing it, He Chuan had a deeper understanding of the control of his own inner qi. It was not an exaggeration to say that. He could now use the same amount of inner qi and produce an effect that was more than twice as strong as before. This was a little abnormal. The internal cultivations martial artists fought with the amount of inner qi in the first place. Now that he had such an ability, it was simply not giving anyone a way out. However, he was already powerful enough. There was not much difference between being a little stronger and being a few times stronger. After all, there was no opponent. It's time to investigate that head eunuch. He Chuan put on the hood on his back and left the secret room. Only then did he realize that the capital city had already been sealed. Dong Chao and the Scarman's bodies had long been cleaned up. The servants in the mansion and those beautiful women had disappeared without a trace. He did not know what the situation in the outside world was like these two days. What was the situation with the rebel army? He had to find a way to find out. He found the right direction and flew up the wall of the courtyard. His body disappeared into the darkness and he ran towards the biggest tavern in the city. Chapter 42 The capital city was located in the north of the dynasty. The war was in the south, and news could not reach them for a while. However, the news of the senior grand secretary's tragic death spread throughout the entire capital city. This was news that shook the entire dynasty. Everyone was shocked. Who would have thought that under the protection of the third-ranked expert on the martial arts rankings, someone would be able to kill them all? In the past, no one had. And it was impossible. But now, there was a night slayer who could suppress 300-00 Northern Army Corps. Only he could do such a shocking thing. For a time, the high officials and socialites in the capital felt uneasy. They no longer felt that the number one city in the world was a safe place. They were all worried that the next target of Night Slayer would be them. In a short period of time, the number of security guards inside and outside the palace had increased by dozens of times. 
not even a fly could fly in. Looks like there isn't any valuable information in the tavern. He Chuan put on his hood and left the place silently. Since there was no news from the resistance army, he would take advantage of this opportunity to directly destroy the palace in one go. Thus, early the next morning, under the watchful eyes of countless guards, a beautiful figure streaked across the bright sunlit sky. Without any hesitation or concealment, he charged straight into the scripture pavilion. No one could stop him. Because this person's Qingdong skill had reached a level that ordinary people could not reach. FCK. They couldn't even shoot a bow. Who could stop him? At this moment, outside the Imperial Scripture Pavilion, an old man over the age of seventy was standing at the top of the hundreds of white jade stairs with his hands behind his back, watching the figure rushing over from afar. Friend, isn't it a little impolite to come uninvited? His voice was sharp and thin, without a beard. His hands were even holding up making an orchid finger shape, making him appear extremely feminine. He Chuan floated down, and his gaze was calm, you are the head eunuch, Kong Lixian. That's right, it's me. You have something to do with human trafficking. Young master, you must be joking. Kong Lixian had a faint smile on his face, although I am crippled, I have trained in martial arts. With this ability, I have become the second best in the world. Why do I need to do such a dirty thing and ruin our reputation? All right, then take it that I've made a mistake. He Chuan also laughed, from your tone, you sound very powerful. All the top-notch martial arts in the world are in the palace's scripture pavilion. Those left in the public are just ordinary martial arts. Kong Le Xian's gaze was sharp, I have trained for fifty years and trained in all the martial arts in the world. Even though I am not fighting for the first place, I am still the second best in the world. As he said that, he paused for a moment and then said in a more serious tone, it has never changed. Oh, that's quite impressive. He Chuan casually said that, but he was thinking about something else. He originally thought that he would need to spend a lot of time searching all the martial arts in the world to perfect the tyrannical true cultivation manual. He did not expect that there would be such a good thing in the palace. Just nice, all of them could be packed up and taken away. In the end, the Imperial Guards arrived. They were the Imperial Guards that guarded the Imperial City. Among all the legions, they were the most powerful existences with average strength. Those that could be selected were all second-rate warriors that were one in a hundred. Facing the enemy in formation. Even if a first-rate late-stage warrior were to come, they would probably die here. He Chuan only glanced at them and did not have any intention of paying any attention to them. He walked straight into the scripture pavilion. He wanted to read. But how could the royal guards allow him to act so rashly? Without saying a word, they swarmed forward. However, before He Chuan could make a move, Kong Le Xin waved his hand and stopped everyone. Then, he looked at He Chuan and said very domineeringly, Fight with me, if you win, I'll let you in. I don't want to fight now. Then how about I let you have a move? Are you sure? Cut the crap. All right then. As soon as he finished speaking, a blade flashed. Everyone turned to look at He Chuan. But no one could see whether he had used his blade or not. Kong Le Xin was also a little surprised. Night Slayer had used his move. But where did he slash at? He was about to say something. Suddenly, an inaudible sound rang out. Content warning, mentioned blood. It was as if something had been torn apart. The next moment, his expression changed drastically. He raised both of his hands to cover his neck. There was already a thin slit there. Then, it burst open. Blood gushed out uncontrollably. In an instant, it soaked his clothes. End. Ugh. Kong Le Xian looked at He Chuan in surprise, but his body could not help but kneel on the ground. Then, he fell forward and rolled down hundreds of steps. Dark red blood flowed all over the ground. The royal guards looked at this scene in disbelief. When Kong Le Xian's bloody body fell in front of them, a few people reacted and quickly went forward to check. Dead dead. Everyone was in an uproar. The world's second-ranked martial artist could not even withstand one move from Night Slayer. 
What kind of joke was this? Was this something that a human could do? Say, you're already so old, why are you acting all high and mighty all of a sudden? I thought you were so powerful, but you couldn't even react to 30% of my strength, Sai. He Chuan shook his head with a regretful expression. He turned around and continued to walk into the scripture pavilion, leaving behind a sentence. If you don't want to die, then let the number one martial artist in the world come to find me. The royal guards stared at each other, none of them acting rashly. They just watched as Night Slayer swaggered into the most mysterious other than the Emperor's bedroom in the Imperial Palace, Imperial Scripture Pavilion. Someone in the Royal Guards was afraid of being blamed and punished, so he asked in a low voice. General, what should we do? The person who looked like a general at the front hesitated for a long time before saying, keep the corpse of the head eunuch and guard here. What about the Night Slayer? Are we not going to care? Care? What are we going to care about? Damn it, didn't you see that the head eunuch was killed with one move? What's the use of us going? But if his majesty blames us. Then send someone to inform his majesty and ask him to make a decision. Yes, sir. Chapter, 43 In the Imperial Palace's Scripture Pavilion He Chuan was already immersed in a sea of books, unable to extricate himself. As expected of the Emperor's collection of books, the quality was indeed extraordinary. Those outsides couldn't be compared at all. In only a few minutes of deduction, the tyrannical True Cultivation Manual had once again improved quite a bit. He Chuan's eyes lit up. His motivation to read books increased again. As the knowledge of top-tier martial arts was absorbed by him. The tyrannical True Cultivation Manual covered more and more aspects, and the content became more and more complex. Not only did the revision of the tyrannical True Cultivation Manual Upper gain a lot of content, but even the other two books, Middle and Lower, were also adjusted a lot. He Chuan could not help but lament that there was no end to learning. A person's insight and thinking always had limitations. The reason why many low-level cultivation manuals could not be cultivated to a very high realm was that they could not figure out how to proceed in the future. In other words, it was a bottleneck. After integrating the strengths of hundreds of knowledge, he was surprised to find that martial arts actually had the same goal. Whether it was internal martial artists or external martial artists, the cultivation realm they had to reach was the same level. It was just that they used different methods. After summarizing so much experience, He Chuan felt that he had also entered a bottleneck. If a first-rate martial artist or below was classified as a Ho Tian stage martial artist, then he would belong to the Xientian stage martial artist and be one level above everyone else. However, if he wanted to go further, it was far from enough to just rely on absorbing the knowledge from their martial arts. After all, they were no longer on the same level of cultivation. No matter how many Ho Tian stage cultivation manuals He Chuan read, the only thing he could increase was his knowledge. There was no increase in his level of strength at all. At this time, he had to break through on his own. For example, he had to develop a version like, Tyrannical True Cultivation Manual Ultimate. Only then could he continue to cultivate and step into a higher realm. But this was too difficult. Even if he had the deduction system to help correct his mistakes, he didn't have much confidence. I should read the book first, I'll think about this in the future. He Chuan shook his head. The most important thing at the moment was still the matter of subverting the dynasty. Only after this matter was done would the final evaluation point for this reincarnation not be low. At this moment, outside the scripture pavilion, the royal guards had already sent many more people to surround him. This group of people was still on alert. They pointed their swords at the scripture pavilion, but no one dared to take a step up. Time slowly passed. When the sky was filled with stars, the door of the scripture pavilion finally opened. He Chuan appeared at the door with a smile on his face, taking a deep breath of the fresh air outside. Everyone looked as if they were facing a great enemy, nervously holding their weapons. The emperor has arrived. The shrill cries of eunuchs came from behind the crowd. The royal guards hurriedly made way. However, there was no so-called emperor in that direction, only a few eunuchs kneeling on the ground. Just as they were wondering, Night Slayer's voice suddenly sounded outside the scripture pavilion. 
You are the number one in the world. Everyone looked up. An old man in a dragon robe had his back facing them. He stood outside the door of the scripture pavilion and looked at Night Slayer. Everyone was shocked and quickly knelt down and shouted. Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! The old man did not say a word. He just casually waved his sleeves and a strong wind blew over, lifting everyone up. This move stunned everyone. As expected of the Emperor. Just based on his meticulous control of inner strength, he has probably far surpassed the standard of an ordinary first-rate cultivator, right? The Emperor's cultivation has improved again after coming out of seclusion this time. Previously, he was an outstanding first-rate upper-class warrior. Could it be that he has already reached the legendary stage where man and nature unite? Ha ha ha, the Emperor has personally made a move. This Night Slayer will definitely die here. Humph, treacherous officials and traitors, still dare to rebel. They really don't know the immensity of heaven and earth. The appearance of the old man gave all the royal guards a shot of reassurance. He Chuan also narrowed his eyes slightly. They had to treat him seriously. This person was at least ten times stronger than Kong Le Xian. Who would have thought that the number one in the world was actually the emperor of the dynasty? Really huh? Wait a minute. The results of the deduction system about the secret letters found in Dong Chao's secret room showed that there was a high probability that Kong Le Xian was behind the human trafficking. But today, when he asked, the other party denied it. Although that person was a eunuch, as the number two in the world, he had his own pride and would not lie to him. Moreover, he also used the deduction system to analyze Kong Le Xin's attitude and tone and confirmed that what he said was true. If that was the case, there was indeed someone else involved in human trafficking. However, wouldn't that prove that the deduction was wrong? However, how could the deduction system be wrong? What if it was said that the letter was sent to Dong Chao by Kong Le Xin's emperor? He did not dare to read the contents of the secret letter. Of course, he did not know the cause and effect. Naturally, he would deny it. He Chuan felt that he had solved the mystery. He looked at the old man sharply. There was only one truth to this matter. You are the one who orders the human trafficking, right? Oh. The old man did not expect He Chuan to say such a thing. After a slight shock, he turned and smiled, so what if I am? So what if I am not? Aren't you here to kill the top warriors of the dynasty and subvert the imperial power? This is not as important as the truth that I want to know. He Chuan stared at him. The truth? The old man laughed and walked to the edge of the stairs. He looked down at the tens of thousands of royal guards with their hands behind their backs. He looked at everyone and asked with his inner chi spreading out, generals and soldiers, what have I done in my 234 years on the throne? Tens of thousands of people answered in unison. Fighting one against a hundred. Killing the national thieves. Saving the country and in danger. What have I done? Breaking the evil cultivator's palace. Saving the people of the world. Breaking the southern D. Killing the western Rome. Destroying the eastern barbarians. Retreating the northern barbarians. Unifying the world. The old man revealed a satisfied smile. He turned his head and looked at He Chuan. Is such a feat still important to the truth you want? Chapter, 44 Content warning, mentioned blood human trafficking. What do you want to say? He Chuan's expression was calm. The smile on the old man's face disappeared and he became expressionless. I have cultivated the most sacred secret technique to extend my life. It has been more than 200 years now and I have saved countless people. Now, whether it is a merit or a fault, whether it is right or wrong, it is not up to you, a little child, to question me. Putting on airs. He Chuan waved his saber, since when did seniority speak for itself in the world of martial artists? Be straightforward. Were you the one who did it? If you don't say it, then let's fight. Young man, you are indeed a little too arrogant. The old man shook his head and sighed softly, I am well aware that the path of martial arts is full of hardships. Seeing that you have such a cultivation at such a young age, 
I don't want you to lose your life in vain, what a pity. As he spoke, his gaze suddenly became unusually fierce, you must be overestimating yourself. Looks like it really is you. He Chuan frowned, you are already the ruler of a country. Why would you do such a thing and harm your own people? These questions will be left for you to ask after you go to hell. The old man no longer said anything and suddenly attacked. He struck out with his palm, and surging inner qi swept over. You channeled your qi to resist, but you were possessed by the yang flames contained within and were severely injured. So there was a trick within. He Chuan's aura became heavier. He stepped on the ground with one foot and leaped up with the force of the recoil, landing on the roof of the scripture pavilion. The old man's speed was not slow either. In the next second, he landed on his back and struck out with his palm again. However, He Chuan was already prepared this time. After dodging sideways, he immediately returned the blow. At first, the old man did not mind. He casually wanted to use the inner qi at his fingertip to deflect the blade. As a result, instead, half of his palm was cut off by the terrifying inner qi attached to it. Ah! He cried out in pain. He already had the intention to kill. At that moment, he no longer held back and used all his strength to attack. However, He Chuan's strength was far beyond the old man's expectations. This young martial artist, who was only in his twenties, actually possessed an inner qi strength that was not inferior to his. What was even more terrifying was that his physical fitness was shockingly strong. He did not look like an inner cultivator at all, and his reaction speed was also faster than an ordinary person's. After several rounds of confrontation, not only did he not get any benefits, he even fell into a disadvantageous position. Could it be that after more than 200 years of cultivation, he was going to fall at the hands of such a little child today? The old man roared angrily. His eyes suddenly glowed red, as if he had gone berserk. His entire aura had increased by quite a bit. However, He Chuan still had a calm expression. Even though this was the only opponent he had encountered since he came to this world that was worthy of being taken seriously, under the situation where the deduction system was fully activated, the pressure was still not very great. Unfortunately, he was unable to defeat this old man in a short period of time. Hence, on the summit of the Forbidden City. It was a life and death duel between top martial artists. This battle lasted for three days and three nights before the victor was determined. Half of the imperial palace was destroyed in an instant. Amidst the ruins, He Chuan was covered in injuries as he stepped on the dying emperor's chest. He clenched his fists and looked at the old man's almost withered face. In the end, he did not attack again. Why do you do human trafficking? Do you know how many families you have destroyed? He <laughs> he. The old man laughed hoarsely, 150 years ago, this emperor's heart was exhausted. After the imperial physician checked my pulse, he said that my foundation had been damaged due to overwork and I would not live more than two years. This emperor has worked for the country and the people for more than a hundred years. I created such a great career, but in the end, I ended up exhausted to death. If it were you, would you be willing? He Chuan was silent, so. What does this have to do with you selling human beings? The old man did not speak. The light in his eyes gradually dimmed, as if he was going to die at any moment. He Chuan quickly saved him. He took out a bottle of medicinal powder and fed it to the old man. The old man was in a trance. I didn't expect you to have such medical skills. Forget it, since I'm about to die, I'll tell you this secret. When I killed the evil cultivator Soul Hall, I accidentally obtained a peerless secret manual. The cultivation method described in it is very marvelous. Not only can it prolong one's life, but it can also break through the first tier and step into the innate realm, stepping into the realm of heaven and man as one. However, there is a drawback that cannot be replaced. One must drink the blood of young boys and girls regularly to maintain one's cultivation. Otherwise, one's cultivation will disperse and they will die. In order to survive and see this dynasty continue for thousands of years, this emperor had no other choice. He Chuan shuddered when he heard this. So, you established such a human traffic chain. 
Not only can it maintain the relationship between the courtiers and you, but it can also capture the children of those young women who were born by accident and let you drink their blood to practice your cultivation. The old man nodded slowly, that's right. He Chuan's eyes were filled with fury, what a good plan. The courtiers won't betray you, and you won't be stabbed in the spine by the common people if you hide in the dark. They only think that bandits are vicious, profligate, and despicable and that the officials are corrupt. Who would have thought that all of this was done by a high and mighty emperor like you? This is not the result that I want. The old man sighed softly, originally, what I wanted was for the group of officials under me to continue serving the country and the people, to regularly clean up the bandits and profligate families in the region. After those women were captured for a few years, they would look for an opportunity to be found by the government and put back to stabilize the overall situation, but I didn't expect Sai. But I didn't expect that those people were so corrupt that they would do anything for money. He Chuan sneered, you think you have control over people's hearts, it's really really. He raised the saber in his hand. It went straight into the other party's brain. It's really not enough to die. He Chuan suddenly felt that his bottle of medicine was really wasted. In order to survive, he was willing to sacrifice the lives of others. It was something that happened for more than a hundred years. God knows how many people died during this period. It was probably an astronomical figure. He shook his head. There was nothing to be nostalgic about, so he left the palace. Not long after, explosive news came from the palace. It shocked the entire capital. The emperor had passed away. Chapter, 45 This year, He Chuan was 18 years old. He had overthrown the dynasty that ruled this era. There was no need for any propaganda. Night Slayer's fame had reached its peak in a very short period of time. Legends about him circulated among the people. It was said that Night Slayer was the son of heaven and knew immortal spells, shouldering the heavy responsibility of saving the people of the world. In any case, he had to be as great as possible. And the outcome of the battle in the capital also gave many ambitious people a chance. Now, the top few experts on the dynasty's martial artist list had died in Night Slayer's hands. Their internal strength was dispersed, and they were already paper tigers that were strong on the outside but weak on the inside. For a time, the flames of war rose everywhere, and the flags of the resistance army were raised in many areas. In the name of saving the people of the world, they launched an attack on the local imperial court army. In reality, they just wanted a share of the pie during this period of imperial decline. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned. He Chuan, as the first person in the world to stand up against the imperial court and single-handedly massacred the imperial capital, was already the target of everyone's expectations. The common people only recognized one leader of the resistance army, Night Slayer. They ignored everyone else. And those ambitious people had no choice. They had originally used the name of the resistance army to stir up trouble. If they provoked this group of common people and made a big deal out of it, they might even be targeted by Night Slayer. At that time, the gains would not make up for the losses. No one wanted to provoke a terrifying expert who could slaughter warriors. In the end, what this group of ambitious people did was actually do all the toil for He Chuan to reap all the benefits. They helped him clean up the local imperial court troops. A month after the Great War in the imperial capital, the various parts of the dynasty had already declared their recovery and were no longer under the imperial court's control. The only areas where the imperial court troops were still active were the areas outside Qingyuan County. There were a million border troops gathered there. All of them were first-class elites. None of the ambitious people dared to fight this group of regular troops. Only He Chuan's resistance army spread out their formation here. Using the terrain that was easy to defend but hard to attack, they continued to fight. Even so, they still lost over 200,000 soldiers. The resistance army was greatly weakened and ran out of ammunition and food. If there were no more variables, the remaining 200,000 of them would probably die on this battlefield. Just as the imperial court army was about to take down the resistance army in one go. He Chuan had returned. Everyone stop. He stood at the top of the canyon and looked down at the battlefield. He said calmly, there is no point in fighting anymore. 
The leaders of the East, West, and South divisions shouted and attacked at the same time. Traitor, hand over your life. Take my mountain-shaking fist. What's the point? The clash of weapons is what's the point. These three people were all first-rate martial artists. If placed in a pugilistic world, they would all be top-notch experts. In the end, they were all pushed back by He Chuan's palm across space. I don't want to kill anymore. The emperor is already dead. You all have no reason to continue fighting. How could these generals believe it? Humph, the emperor is the number one martial artist in the world. You brat, you are still wet behind the ears. How dare you talk nonsense here. Night Slayer. Don't think that you can do whatever you want just because you have a few tricks up your sleeve. Let me tell you, if we work together, even if a Heaven Man Unity Realm martial artist comes, we can still kill him here. You hid your head for so long and only dared to show your face. Don't even think about leaving today. If you don't believe me, you can go and verify it yourself. He Chuan was expressionless, soldiers, retreat. The resistance army did not hesitate to retreat from the battlefield. They did not have any lingering feelings. The imperial court army still wanted to give chase, but He Chuan immediately stepped into the air and slashed horizontally with his Buddhist monk knife. A terrifying might emerged from the knife. Rumble. The earth trembled, and the sky collapsed and the earth cracked. Everyone did not know what had happened, and they hurriedly dodged the huge rocks that had fallen from above. When everything was settled, they shockingly discovered that a deep ravine had appeared in the ravine from above. It cut off their path. Everyone was stunned. This was caused by Night Slayer. Are you kidding? Are you sure this was done by a human? These people had not seen He Chuan's power, so they could not react for a long time. He Chuan had already left and returned to Qingyuan County to recuperate. A few days later, the Imperial Court military sent out a few waves of flying pigeons and sent them to the capital to confirm if what He Chuan said was true. However, the Imperial Court was in chaos. The factions were killing each other and fighting for the right to inherit the throne. They did not have the time to care about this. It was only a few months later when the external resistance army grew stronger and stronger and threatened the position of this group of people that they finally stopped. After a few joint discussions, the leaders decided to temporarily ally, put down their conflicts, and work together to resolve the external problems. The first thing they wanted to do was to take back the three armies of the east, west, and south to defend the imperial capital. Thus, they sent people to reply. A few days later, the leaders of the armies who had been waiting for a long time finally received an answer. They picked up the letter and looked at it. The emperor had indeed passed away. Moreover, he had died at the hands of Night Slayer. They were immediately stunned. No wonder they had not seen the shadow of Night Slayer after dozens of battles. It turned out that he had gone to the capital stealthily. Looking at the contents of the letter, the three generals cursed loudly. Defend the imperial capital. Wasn't that courting death? Those who could become the commander-in-chief were naturally not stupid. They knew clearly what these people were planning. They were just borrowing their military power to protect themselves. When the time came, they would be the ones risking their lives, and they would be the ones enjoying the glory and wealth. Who knows, they might even lose their military power and put on a show of dying on the streets that night. They were not going. They were determined not to go back. If they went back, they would have to fight with the resistance army. Fight like a chicken. Didn't you see that the commander was as fierce as a knife? Now the prime minister of the cabinet was gone. So was the head of the imperial administration. Even the Fking king emperor was gone. The situation was over, so what was there to fight about? It was better to surrender. Go back to your hometown and live a few years of peace. Thus, they directly ignored the requests of those people in the capital when they had reached a consensus. That night, the generals went to Qingyuan County to surrender. The next morning, when the soldiers saw that the generals were gone and the captain had run off, they all panicked. When they learned that they had surrendered to the resistance army, they did not care that they were still wearing the clothes of the imperial court army. They directly stopped. 
Sigh, I'm not fighting anymore. I surrender too. The scene of millions of people surrendering was truly spectacular. Such an outcome was something even He Chuan had not expected. He originally thought that taking back the territory and army would be a time consuming matter, but he did not expect it to be so simple. With that, expanding the territory became a matter of course. Very quickly, the resistance army regained back the Qingyuan County and started to expand rapidly. Within a few days, they had regained the territory they had before being surrounded by the three armies. Furthermore, their territory was still growing. When many people heard that Night Slayer had personally reclaimed the territory, they opened the city gates to welcome him. They were really happy. The unlucky ones were the ambitious ones. They did not get anything and have worked for nothing. Chapter 46 Under the influence of He Chuan's terrifying rallying power, it was inevitable for the resistance army to overthrow the old dynasty. The officials knew this and a portion of them stopped resisting. They did not care about the others. When millions of strong armies arrived outside the capital, they opened the city gates and welcomed He Chuan into the palace. This time, everyone became obedient. Those who were originally afraid of He Chuan slaughtering the city. Those who wanted to stir up trouble. There were even those who wanted to send people to assassinate him. Made no more movements. This was because on the streets of the city that afternoon, the ministers who wanted to follow He Chuan knelt on the ground and respectfully invited him to take the throne. At the same time, they also handed over the names of these people. For a moment, everyone was anxious. In the end, He Chuan did not make any big movements for a few days. The only thing he did was to make himself the emperor. On the first day he sat on the throne, he changed the country's name to Chuan. After that, he quickly issued a decree, ordering all the soldiers of the resistance army to put down their weapons and stop the crusade to return peace to the people. Even though these people had ulterior motives and did not want to listen to He Chuan's words. However, facing the trend of unifying the world, there was nothing they could do. Their reputation was not as high as his, and their strength was not as strong as his. Even their logic did not stand on par with his, so what was there to fight about? A small portion of the princes who wanted to seize the opportunity to establish themselves as king was also suppressed by He Chuan with iron blooded methods, and all of them were assassinated. A year later, the world was peaceful. Furthermore, during this period, he issued a number of decrees for the officials of the original dynasty to personally arrange. Among them was the part about improving the people's livelihood and changing the official system. This involved the interests of many people. If this was in the past, it would definitely be very difficult to implement. However, these officials were afraid that He Chuan would pick on them, so they did not dare to give him any obstacles. In the face of absolute power suppression, they worked very hard. In the first month after the decree was issued, there was quite a big response from all over the country. Countless corrupt officials in small places like counties and townships were dismounted one after another, and their properties were even confiscated. The selection of new officials was done through the imperial examination system promulgated by He Chuan. This was a model that had been tried out for a long time in Qingyuan County. Even for the whole country, he was able to adjust it easily. With the help of the deduction system, the best plan was soon born. After a few years, these hard-working officials gradually found that their power had been taken away by He Chuan unknowingly. Now, other than the power they had in the central territory of the imperial capital, they have nothing. They were now facing the biggest problem. That was the birth of the imperial examination system, which directly replaced the old with the capable. Seniority had become unimportant. He Chuan, the monarch, paid more attention to ability. It didn't matter how long you had been in this position, or how many generations you had passed down. As long as you were not smarter, and had no more capability, you'll have to directly step down. Originally, there were still some people who had fantasies. They didn't think it was worth it. But when the imperial decree arrived on their residence, this fantasy was also destroyed. No one thought to resist, only helplessness and compromise. There was no other way. This was a world of martial arts, where martial arts were supreme. To put it bluntly, in front of He Chuan, they were just lambs waiting to be slaughtered. 
Can lambs resist the tiger? That would only kill them faster. Everyone wanted to preserve a bit of dignity at this time. If each one dug up old debts and investigated how many bad things they had done in the past, the result would be obvious. Thus, in the short period of time after that, the officials in all positions changed. At this point, the old forces were completely wiped out. After the biggest corrupt officials all left their positions, the prosperous and stable Great Chuan Country was finally created. The Great Chuan Country developed at a terrifying speed. Under the leadership of the new ruler, He Chuan, the farmers had their fields, the merchants had their land, the officials had their hearts, and the travelers had their homes. There was peace in the country and happiness for the people, this saying was talking about this kind of scene. Many people felt as if they were dreaming. How could it be that in just a few years' time, the world had changed? Hadn't they been living on the edge of life and death before? Now, everyone had enough to eat, and everyone had money to earn. Without the oppression of the powerful, without the constant fear. The Night Slayer Emperor is truly the emperor of all ages. This was the heartfelt evaluation of the commoners. A wise emperor, a holy lord, there weren't enough words to describe it. Only the words, the emperor of all ages was worthy of the change he brought. Changing the trajectory of the world, obtaining praise from many people, gaining a significantly high reputation, and finally increasing your rating. He Chuan wasn't satisfied with this. If I only lead the dynasty and allowed the people to be rich, the evaluation points wouldn't be that high. He Chuan had learned many examples of reincarnation in the forums and understood that for this world that was based on martial arts, this level was far from enough. He had to bring more influence to martial arts. At this point, a new law had appeared in the Great Chuan country. All citizens who reached the age of seven had to receive martial arts education and train their bodies. In order to make this law more effective, He Chuan had specially developed a set of martial arts that even people with zero foundation could practice. After integrating all the martial arts in the Imperial Palace's scripture pavilion and making some adjustments, he ordered to build new martial arts schools across the country to only teach this one martial art. Martial arts for all. This was the basic national policy that he had just set. However, such an action did not receive praise but ridicule from countless martial arts aristocratic families. In their opinion, how many of those commoners had the qualifications to practice martial arts? Doing so was a waste of resources. Many people in the martial arts world were laughing at He Chuan. They even wanted to be the leader of the second batch of rebels. After all, most of these people came from rich families and did not gain many benefits from the change of dynasties. Some of their business even shrank because of the lives of other commoners. They did not have a good impression of the current monarch. If they could catch He Chuan making a mistake at this time and rebelling before the political situation was completely stable, they might be able to replace him. However, what they never expected was that. In a short period of time, those ordinary people who did not have talent were able to achieve achievements that shocked everyone. The most outstanding one was a commoner who did not have any martial arts foundation. And he was only an eight-year-old child. After cultivating this cultivation technique for four months, he jumped to become a second-rate warrior. He broke the cultivation records of all martial arts aristocratic family geniuses. Chapter 47 can martial arts talent be inherited or not? No one knew the answer to this question. For many years, people who practiced martial arts argued endlessly about this. On the whole, most people thought that it would be inherited. After all, the reality was there. The one with the highest cultivation in martial arts was the royal family of the country, followed by those martial arts aristocratic families, and finally, those ordinary martial artists who came from commoners. The latter's strength was usually at the third-rate martial artists, even second-rate martial artists rarely appeared. It could be said that in the many years since the establishment of the old dynasty, there had never been a martial artist who truly had outstanding talent among the people. However, this time, He Chuan's policy of allowing all people to practice martial arts had ruthlessly slapped the face of this group of pretentious martial arts aristocratic families. Under this reform, the common people burst out with unimaginable vitality. Almost every day, 
there were people who broke the previous record of martial arts cultivation speed and became second-rate warriors, or even first-rate warriors. Countless geniuses began to show themselves in the people's eyes. In just ten years, the number of first-rate warriors had surpassed the old dynasty by more than three times. Not only that, some talented warriors had even broken through the first-rate limit. They had successfully stepped into the realm of being one with nature. They came from all over the world. Some were born poor and couldn't even eat in the old dynasty. Some were extremely skinny and looked no different from skin and bones. There were even some who were injured due to the chaos of the war and became permanently disabled. But even so, after cultivating the cultivation technique he Chuan had passed down, they had climbed to a peak that was once unreachable. This gap was like gaining a new life. So much so that He Chuan had accumulated a large number of fanatical supporters over the years. Walking along the streets and alleys, everyone would always talk about He Chuan when they were chatting. If anyone dared to say a bad word about him, they would face the pursuit of countless martial artists. Social status has increased by a large margin, the saints of martial artist achievement has been achieved, the final rating has increased. Upon hearing this notification, He Chuan wasn't surprised. This was because he wasn't hiding anything. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that, from a certain point of view, this cultivation method was even stronger than the tyrannical true cultivation manual. After all, this was a cultivation method that could be used by everyone. Such an existence was already very mysterious. Not to mention, it could also endlessly dig into the other party's potential. As long as the potential was large enough. It was so big that it surpassed He Chuan's physique, which had consumed genetic medicine before. The final achievement was absolutely unimaginable. Of course, there was still no way for him to surpass He Chuan. His strongest point was the comprehensiveness of his martial arts. Even if one thoroughly studied one aspect, there was still no way to surpass him. It was not an exaggeration to say that no one knows martial arts better than him. This isn't too good. I haven't even triggered a hidden achievement. If it stays like this, I definitely won't be able to reach S rank. He Chuan felt that there was still room for improvement. His first reincarnation changed the direction of the development of the entire human civilization and laid the foundation for him to obtain an S rank. If nothing unexpected happened, he would need to achieve a similar achievement in this martial arts world. The martial arts in this world were already very mature. It's not realistic to change it. Why don't I try to break through? Hence, after this, He Chuan suggested that all the people in the country give their opinions on how to improve martial arts. Initially, everyone felt that there was no need. After all, it was written by the sage emperor. This martial arts was absolutely perfect. How could they have the ability to improve it? However, under He Chuan's repeated insistence, there were gradually people who made suggestions. To be more precise, it was the part where they hoped that the martial arts could be increased. Among them, the most difficult one was to make one's inner qi externalize, attach it to the elemental energy, and control the lightning and flame. This was already a power that surpassed the world of martial arts. It was extremely difficult to achieve. Perhaps, even if one could achieve it, they wouldn't be able to use it in this world. It was just like genetic medicine. However, this was exactly the effect He Chuan wanted. Only if one couldn't use it would it be useful. Otherwise, how could he get an S rating? Hence, He Chuan took this as his goal and started deducing all the cultivation method resources he currently had in his hands. However, this process was extremely bumpy. As he continued deducing, all sorts of problems appeared. Every time, he would have to spend a large amount of time and energy solving them. Until 140 years later. The scale of the martial arts world was unprecedentedly huge. There were more than 30 billion martial artists, and the number of first-rate experts was as numerous as the hairs on an ox. There were already a total of 40 million people. Martial artists like He Chuan who had stepped into the Xientian realm had also reached the scale of more than 10, 0, 0 people. All kinds of sects rose up under the support of the policies, and they were full of vitality. At this time, He Chuan's hair was already white and gray. He did not know what kind of realm he was in. Right now, 
He could easily release his inner chi hundreds of meters away, and he also had the power to split mountains and rocks. It was a piece of cake for him to walk in the air, and he could even fly around the boundaries of the capital city. This level far surpassed the strongest group of Xientian warriors in the martial arts world. But it was only limited to this. Since ten years ago, he had felt that his cultivation had begun to stagnate, as if he had encountered a bottleneck. The deduction had also reached its end at this time. After so many years of trial and error, he had only reached a useful conclusion. Inner Qi could not be compatible with any elemental power. This meant that the end of martial arts was his current strength. There was no place for him to continue improving. Faced with such an outcome, He Chuan could not help but feel a little lost. Could it be that there was no way for a low-level martial arts world to become a high-level martial world? Could it be that the only thing that determined the strength of the world was a strange energy that filled the air? And no cultivation technique could make up for the difference in the strength of this energy. He did not think so. He felt that there was another way. Moreover, the deduction system gave him a positive answer. There was a certain possibility, but he had not found it. However, Time did not allow He Chuan to think about more things. He was already over 170 years old, and he had been lying in bed for a long time. His thick inner chi could not bring any help. His body's functions had already been reduced to the minimum a few months ago, and he could die of old age at any time. In this era where the average lifespan was 60 years, the reason he could live until now was because of the gene reagent. He Chuan was unwilling, but he could do nothing about it. He did not practice the evil technique that the emperor of the old dynasty had learned. The end of his life was the final result. But will it end just like that? Wasting more than 100 years of time and getting nothing? Even though he was in the reincarnation world, the 365 days of each year were spent bit by bit. So much effort was wasted just like that. If it was anyone else, they would not feel good. A complicated emotion grew in his heart. He Chuan was depressed for a long time. One night, a voice suddenly sounded in his mind. Why don't you use the cultivation technique left behind by the emperor to extend your life? This is a reincarnated world anyway, it doesn't matter how many people you kill. You are already the ruler here, who will punish you? Chapter, 48 This was the voice of the devil, and it was also a thought that had been buried deep in his subconscious for a long time. He Chuan's turbid and dim eyes suddenly lit up, and he looked out the window at the bright moonlight shining in the sea of flowers. Should he kill or not? For the sake of the S rating, and for the sake of improving the martial arts in this world, what was wrong with sacrificing a small number of people in front of the interests of the majority? Once this idea appeared, it grew uncontrollably like seaweed. As long as he made it a little more obscure, no one would find out that those people were secretly selling human beings, and it would not result in a decrease in the final score. But if he did this, how was he different from the group of people that he hated and hated? He Chuan fell into a deep struggle again, and he was in extreme pain. But at this moment, an inexplicable sense of righteousness welled up in his heart. It was the effect of the valiant heart. To be fearless, he would never doubt himself at any time and create inner demons. He Chuan's gaze gradually became firm. I don't need anyone's help to be able to walk further down the road. So what if my life has come to an end? I'm not dead yet, right? What's there to be afraid of? He Chuan has almost become obsessed like the old emperor. He Chuan let out a long breath. If he did not have a valiant heart, he would have been driven by such thoughts and become an unpardonable evil man. At that time, even if he could come up with a so-called stronger technique, others who learned it would only end up like him, suffering from qi deviation and falling into endless slaughter. Once the world fell into chaos, the reincarnation score would probably be even lower. He could not think of unorthodox ways. He Chuan regained his confidence and forced himself to lean against the headboard of the bed, continuing to think hard. After deducing for an entire night, he faced the morning sun and took a deep breath. This world is ultimately just a low-level martial world. Under the situation where the energy quality of this world cannot be improved, perhaps I can use the cultivation technique to compress the energy absorbed and treat my body as a world. If that's the case, 
can I be considered to have the power of a high-level martial arts world? No, the strength of inner chi is constant. Regardless of whether it is compressed or not, the power of the same amount of inner chi will not change after it is released. This is only a disguised increase in the amount of inner chi when I attack. Once I encounter an even stronger power, I will definitely be crushed instantly. Another possibility was rejected by him. He Chuan slowly opened his eyes, and a deep sense of exhaustion welled up within him. Looking at the bright sunlight outside, he sighed lightly. So many methods are useless. Could it be that my deduction direction was wrong from the start? He Chuan frowned tightly. Should he not be entangled in the energy of inner qi? What he wanted was more powerful energy. But it did not have to be inner qi. If he could successfully shatter the void and ascend to a stronger world. Then wouldn't the current cultivation method be useless after losing inner qi? After all, no matter how comprehensive the tyrannical true cultivation manual was, it was impossible for it to be so comprehensive that it could operate energy that he had never come into contact with before. If that was the case, the tyrannical true cultivation technique that he had worked so hard to perfect for so many years would be wasted. Even if he were to preserve it through the reincarnation rewards, he would not be able to cultivate it in the next reincarnation world. Thinking up to this point, He Chuan's eyes could not help but light up. He seemed to have a new train of thought. What he needed to do was not to raise the quality of his inner chi. This was unrealistic. The world was so big. How could he raise it by himself? The only thing he could do was to modify the tyrannical true cultivation manual. He could turn it into a cultivation technique that could accommodate any power system as long as it was slightly modified. This could be considered as breaking through the upper limit from another angle. In this way, as long as he successfully modified the cultivation technique and found a way to shatter the void, it would be equivalent to pointing a path to a higher level for the martial arts of this world. Let's do it. He Chuan was full of energy again. But he didn't have much time left. It was unknown how many more days he could live. He could only do his best and try his best to figure it out in the last few days of his life. Hard work pays off. Finally, after four days and four nights, He Chuan successfully modified the tyrannical true cultivation manual and also revised the cultivation method that he had taught everyone in the world. This was thanks to the experience that he had accumulated over the past hundred years. If he had not experienced that period of time, he would not have been able to deduce a nearly perfect plan in such a short period of time. Let's try and see if we can shatter the void. All the energy in He Chuan's body gathered on his fist and he struck out with a loud bang. There was not a particularly big scene, nor was there an expected explosion. There was only an undetectable cracking sound. Then, a large hole suddenly opened in the space in front of him, directly sucking him in. Half a day later, the subordinate who came to deliver lunch found the posthumous edict left on the table. It explained the reason why He Chuan had disappeared. If a martial artist wanted to be reborn, this was a necessary path, and it was also his own choice so that everyone shouldn't be sad for him. Other than that, there was also a method to shatter the void. Any martial artist who felt that they had no way to continue advancing could try it. However, there was a certain amount of danger. It was very likely that they would not be able to find a world to go to. Very quickly, this news spread throughout the world, shocking countless experts. No one had expected that there was actually a higher realm above the innate realm. Shattering the Void For a time, many top-tier warriors whose cultivation had stagnated and their lifespans were about to expire joined forces. After reading the improved version of the cultivation technique that He Chuan had passed down, they shattered the Void together. The powerful force tore a huge hole in the space. The space was filled with strange energy. Everyone rushed in without hesitation. In just an instant, the chaotic force scattered them. The warriors who were originally at the peak of cultivation were like a piece of paper in front of this power, being torn apart one after another. Only a few survived the impact and explored in unknown directions. Ten, zero, zero years later. The great Chuan country was still standing on this continent. The monarch was elected. Everyone advocated martial arts. Traces of the martial arts from the wise emperor were left in every aspect. 
nowadays, shattering the void was no longer a rare thing. And there was no danger. Thousands of years ago, a portion of the first batch of warriors who shattered the void successfully went to a higher level world. After they succeeded in their cultivation there, they especially worked together to create an ascension passage, which was used to guide the cultivators who ascended later. A group of young students who had just entered the capital's martial arts academy was being led by their teacher to tour this magnificent ascension building. A towering human-shaped statue stood outside the door. The teacher stopped not far from the statue and saluted with the highest standards in the martial arts world. Then, he slowly said, This is the legendary emperor of all ages, the martial arts sage emperor. The nameless cultivation method he left behind is still a compulsory martial art for everyone. Even after shattering the void, it is still the most important martial art. There is no other one like it. Everything we enjoy now is obtained through the laws he set. It can be said that without the martial sage emperor, we would not be where we are today. A beautiful female student raised her hand. Teacher. The book said that the martial artist sage emperor shattered the void. Is it possible that he is still alive now? I believe that he is still alive. Although at that time, he was not as happy as we are now. The shattered void has no coordinates and it is very likely that he will be devoured by the void. The teacher smiled slightly, however, a person as stunning as the martial artist sage emperor is rare in the world. He is an existence that is hard to come by in ten thousand years. Even in other worlds, he is an existence that can turn the tides. This little difficulty will definitely not hinder his progress, let alone a mere 10,000 years of lifespan. Chapter, 49 Reincarnation Completed Calculating Reincarnation Points in Progress With a flash of light, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes in the reincarnation space. It was over. Reincarnation did not allow him to go to the second world. Thus, after shattering the void, he did not have any time to explore and directly returned to the main world. However, he didn't have any regrets. At the very least, this would be enough to prove that his final deduction was correct. This way, his final rating would definitely rise by another level. Reincarnation Evaluation Completed Personal Achievements, Divine Doctor, Lord Ching Tian, Resistance Army Spiritual Leader, Saints of Martial Artist, Shattering the Void Rating increase significantly, F, A dash. Reward 1,500 reincarnation points, genetic constitution retained. Social contribution, exterminating bandits, rectifying the local security, overthrowing the corrupt government of the old dynasty, destroying the human trafficking trade chain, and leading the people to practice martial arts. Overall rating increased, A, S dash. Reward 20, 0, 0 reincarnation points, self-created item tyrannical true cultivation manual, full version of heavenly blessing version. Basic character reversal, 100%, survived the crisis in a small ruined temple, overthrew the dynasty, and became the ruler of a country. Overall rating, S, S. Additional rewards of reincarnation points received, 70, 0, 0 reincarnation points. He Chuan was a little nervous. He had already concluded what he had done. His rating had also reached the same S as the previous reincarnations. He just did not know whether the void shattering would have a positive or negative impact on future generations. If it was negative, his rating might even regress, and that would not be worth it. Hidden Achievement Unlocked, Pioneer of the New Era Completely subverting the understanding of the people in the martial arts world, guiding them on a path that they had never walked before, completely changing the direction of the world, making contributions that will last forever, and finally raising the rating by one level. This Reincarnation Evaluation, S. Additional S Rank Reincarnation Evaluation Reward. 1. S Rank Energy Infusion. 2. Magic Tool Demonic Buddhist Monk Knife 1. 3. Obtained Random Heavenly Tao, able to summon any Heavenly Tao rules to strengthen oneself, obtaining corresponding benefits. 4. 150, 0, 0 reincarnation points. He Chuan heaved a sigh of relief. It seemed like the cultivation method he deduced did not let down his efforts of over a hundred years. It had brought about a very profound change to the martial world. Following that, he started counting the rewards. 
Compared to a large number of reincarnation points, the other special rewards were even more precious. First was the physique of a genetic warrior. This allowed him to have a rapid deduction efficiency in the origin world. It was even more realistic than eating spirit grain spirit fruits for a few months. The degree of preciousness could be seen. The second was the heavenly Tao blessing version of the tyrannical true cultivation method. He Chuan took a look. Actually, this was to give the tyrannical true cultivation method a buff. In the future, when he cultivated in the origin world, no matter what kind of energy he absorbed and converted into cultivation, he would be able to obtain a large increase in efficiency. As for how high the efficiency was, he would have to experience it personally to know. The other was the S0 rank reward. As the name suggested, the energy infusion was a way to quickly become stronger. It was a very straightforward thing. The demonic Buddhist monk knife was a little special. There was no introduction, nor was there any explanation. When he held it in his hand, it was ice cold. Although the blade was incomplete, its entire body had a strange, dim luster, making one shudder at the sight of it. However, this was a weapon that He Chuan had used for more than a hundred years. He was already used to it, so he did not feel much about it. Furthermore, with the support of the Valiant Heart, he was not affected by the murderous aura on the blade at all. Lastly, there was the random Heavenly Tao. It was somewhat similar to the one-time talent, Heavenly Law Simulation, that he had obtained from his first reincarnation, but it was much stronger. He would be able to use it when he reincarnated in the future. After he finished counting, He Chuan did not hesitate to use the S-rank energy infusion. In the next second, on the reincarnation platform at night, a dazzling light suddenly lit up, drowning He Chuan's figure. He felt that he was bathing in a warm ocean, and every cell in his body had become greedy for it. He quickly absorbed the nutrients from the outside world. Soon, the energy infusion ended, and the light dissipated bit by bit. He Chuan's body had obviously grown a lot stronger, and his skin was even more white and tender, just like a newborn baby. His face, which could only be described as delicate, had now become incomparably handsome. A few girls passing by could not help but stop by the side of the street, glancing at him from time to time. When he turned his head, they shifted their gazes away in panic, pretending to be chatting. He Chuan walked down the reincarnation platform and took a deep breath, feeling the surging power in his body. At this moment, he had about a hundred years of cultivation strength. It was equivalent to the strength of a high-rank Xientian expert in the previous world of martial arts. It was about 70 to 80 percent of his strength when he was at his strongest. As expected of an S-rank energy infusion. One had to know that it was very difficult to increase one's strength after the Xientian realm. Even with the deduction system, one had to cultivate for more than 100 years. Moreover, with the convenience of having the identity of an emperor, there were countless heavenly materials and earthly treasures that he could be enjoyed. Now, the energy infusion was done in just a few seconds. Is this a reincarnator? He Chuan muttered to himself and could not help but smile. That's right, this was a reincarnator. A reincarnator that was getting stronger and stronger. At the same time, the results of He Chuan's reincarnation immediately alerted the officials of the Reincarnation Intelligence Gathering Department. When they saw the S symbol on the screen, everyone was shocked. What was going on? How long had it been, and yet another S rank appeared? When the detailed information was brought up, everyone was numb. He Chuan. It was him again. Didn't this kid just reincarnate for the second time? Why did he get such a high rank again? Was this a joke? Kuyuan received this news at the first moment, and he was both surprised and happy. This little brother that he had just acknowledged for a few days was indeed a dragon among men. The two consecutive S ratings for his reincarnations, and this time, it was an even rarer S. With such a result, even the principal of the reincarnated school would probably be shocked when he saw it. Ha ha ha, I have to prepare well and get some good stuff to send over. Kuyuan immediately ran over to apply for a reward. Faced with such an outstanding reincarnator, the association would not be stingy with resources. It was for this reason that shortly after He Chuan returned home, Kuyuan came to visit with a lot of things. Chapter 50 
Brother Ku, you came quite quickly. The association has been paying close attention to your matters. They'll know anything that happens. Ku Yuan looked very happy, your reincarnation was too powerful this time. You even gained an S. Do you know how many big shots have come out in the middle of the night? He Chuan smiled faintly, it can't possibly be that everyone knows, right? Everyone really knows. Ku Yuan pointed at the car outside the villa and pouted, look, those are the resources that they have just discussed after the meeting. They want to give you additional resources. I hope that you will continue to work hard, let's go over to check it out. No need, let's go in and have a chat. He Chuan was a little tired and did not want to move anymore. This reincarnation has made you become much more mature. Ku Yuan looked into his eyes and casually asked, how many years have you experienced? More than a hundred years. It's hard not to grow. He Chuan did not say much and brought him to the living room to sit down. Leaning against the soft and comfortable sofa, he let out a long breath, it's still more comfortable at home. Ku Yuan smiled, you're tired already. Could it be that you encountered an ancient world, where you have to expend a lot of effort to compete with seven or eight princes for the throne? If only it was only playing tricks. Unfortunately, I was in the world of martial arts. I started from scratch and overthrew an entire dynasty. Awesome. Ku Yuan could not help but give him a thumbs up. For a newbie who had just reincarnated for the second time, such a result was extraordinarily difficult. I was just lucky. He Chuan rubbed the space between his eyebrows and said, I'm just afraid that the next world I encounter will be too difficult, and even luck won't work. At that time, I'll just waste a chance to reincarnate. Just nice. This time, I'll help you solve this problem directly. Ku Yuan grinned, the Reincarnators Association has decided to spend a huge amount of money to add a reincarnating protection mechanism for you. In the future, the difficulty of the world you reincarnate in will be raised bit by bit, and it won't be random. He Chuan was slightly surprised, the association has such an ability. To manipulate the reincarnation data. That definitely won't work. It's nothing more than using the temporary talent of reset the reincarnated world, to change it. This will cost a lot of reincarnation points, right? It's fine, for the sake of your steady growth, spending some money is worth it. This. He Chuan hesitated and did not speak. The people in the association treated him too well. He had never heard of anyone who could receive such treatment. After being an emperor for so long, He Chuan deeply understood that the world was bustling for benefits, and the world was rushing toward benefits. No one would treat anyone well for no reason. It was all related to benefits. Gifting him things like this was only because he had received a series of S ranks and above evaluations. Did he have great potential? He Chuan doesn't believe it. Ku Yuan seemed to see his concern and said with a smile, of course, there are conditions. In the future, you are not required to meet the standard of S rank every time you reincarnate, but as long as you obtain a physical item related to the Heavenly Tao, you have to hand it over to the association, is that okay? Ho Chuan was relieved. So there were special requirements. It was said that only items with an S rank or above evaluation could be produced things with the suffix, Heavenly Tao. It went without saying how rare this item was. It could be said that there was a price but there was no market for it. It was not a loss at all to exchange it with resources that could be bought with reincarnation points. It just so happened that he currently had one in his hands. But should he give it to him? If he didn't tell anyone, the other party wouldn't know either. This was equivalent to taking the association's resources for free. After thinking about it carefully, he decided to give it to the other party. After all, he was a little uncomfortable owing someone a favor. It was more practical to treat it as a transaction. No one owed anyone anything. Thus, He Chuan directly took out a jade slip from his reincarnation seal. There were six words written on it. Random Heavenly Tao. Brother Ku, take a look. Is this what the association wants? Ku Yuan was stunned for a moment. Then, he took the jade slip seriously and studied it carefully. A few minutes later, he shook his head regretfully. This is not considered a real item. Moreover, it is already bound to you. 
It cannot be used by you. It was bounded. This was the first time He Chuan had heard of this. Kuyuan explained, a higher level part of the reincarnation rewards will be like this. This is purely because the heavenly Tao of the previous reincarnation world approved of you. That's why they gave you this blessing jade slip. Others won't be able to use it even if they wanted to. I see. He Chuan came to a realization. After thinking for a moment, he took out another item from the seal, what about this? Tyrannical True Cultivation Manual. Kuyuan read out the words on it. Yes, this is a cultivation technique I created myself. When I was evaluated, it was said to be the Heavenly Blessing version, but I don't know if it counts. Kuyuan was already numb. Self-created cultivation technique? You're really a great immortal. Many things that even experienced reincarnators couldn't do were done by a newbie like you. If this matter were to spread, who knew how many reincarnators who claimed to be proud of themselves would bang their heads against the wall? Wait a minute. It seemed to be quite profound. Let's try to cultivate. Damn it. Why did he know all these words when they were separated? but he could not understand them when they were combined. Wasn't this a cultivation technique from the lower martial world? How could he not understand it? A few minutes later, Kuyuan's forehead was covered in sweat. He glanced at He Chuan from time to time, but he did not say what he wanted to ask. No, it was too embarrassing. Would he lose face if he asked a junior? During this time, he had read the first section of the first chapter of the tyrannical true cultivation manual more than ten times. He had even tried to do it many times. But he still could not get to the main point. But if you were to say that it was the problem with this technique, it was actually not the case. He could completely feel the uniqueness of this technique. It was just he just could not put his finger on it. There was a very strange feeling. Brother Ku, what's wrong? He Chuan looked at him with a strange gaze. Ahem nothing. Kuyuan touched his nose and said, it should be able to be counted as one. I'm not too sure either. I'll just make a copy and take it away. He Chuan nodded and suddenly remembered something, he could not help but ask, Brother Ku, you said that the difficulty of my reincarnation in the future will gradually increase because I used a temporary talent to modify it. If I modify it too many times, will it affect my reincarnation score? Chapter, 51 No, how would it affect the scores? Who did you hear it from? I saw it on the reincarnators forum. They said that if you want to get high marks in the reincarnation world, it's best not to use external help. For example, temporary talents, use less if you can. The first half of this sentence is right. It's right not to rely on external help but this external help doesn't refer to temporary talents, but reincarnators who might reincarnate into the same world as you. Ha! Huh. But that post has millions of likes. There are so many posts on the reincarnators forum, and the vast majority of people are not as good as you. Do you think there's a need to trust these people's experiences? In the future, if you have any questions, just ask me. Don't simply trust the comments of those rookies on the forums. He Chuan was silent. He instantly had deep doubts about the knowledge that he had previously filtered through the deduction system. Just how much rubbish information was in there. At that time, his physical fitness was not good, and the deduction system's functionality was also very poor. There was no way to perfect and correct this knowledge. Fortunately, he didn't make any major mistakes. With his current genetic warrior body, it wouldn't take long for him to rescreen the knowledge. It could be remedied. However, after hearing Kuyuan's words, he had more expectations for his next reincarnation. When that time came, what should he do? This was the first question to be asked. Recalling what he did in his first life, it was nothing more than calling on all the scientists in the world to work with him from the genetic aspect to research drugs that could modify the human body. The second life was even simpler and more straightforward. He could break through the final shackles by deducing various martial arts cultivation techniques. In short, the two reincarnations were to allow him to break through his limits and obtain greater strength to adapt to the deductive system's ability. At the same time, it would lay a solid foundation for him to enter a higher dimension of the reincarnation world. However, 
these two attempts were not considered successful. There were still certain limitations. After all, S was not the highest rating. It fully showed that there was still room for him to continue improving. Moreover, the room for improvement was very large. Just changing the trajectory of the world was far from enough. If he wanted to continue improving, he might have to change his way of doing things or his background. The first two times, he had started from a low position. Not only did he come from a humble background, but he was also sick. What if he was born with a golden spoon in his mouth? Wouldn't that save him a lot of development time? He Chuan immediately thought of using temporary talent to make changes. In any case, he did not have any concerns that it would affect the final rating. He could use it however he wanted. There was no place to spend the 1 million reincarnation points he had on hand. Therefore, he asked Ku Yuan where he could find a place that sells temporary talents. Then, Ku Yuan recommended a business circle in the reincarnation forum, saying that the people in it accounted for 70% of the market for temporary talents. Since it was Ku Yuan's recommendation, He Chuan believed it. After Ku Yuan finished copying the tyrannical true cultivation manual and went back, he returned to his bedroom and lay in the jacuzzi. While enjoying the rare moment of relaxation, he opened the business circle that Ku Yuan mentioned with his mobile device. A window suddenly popped up. It was filled with a dazzling array of shop icons. There was a hidden chat interface on the far left. When it was opened, one could see the content sent by other reincarnators. There were insults, curses, and information. He Chuan thought for a moment and spent 100 reincarnation points to put up a bounty to filter the best answer he could receive. I'm a newbie who just passed through two reincarnation worlds. I'd like to ask where can I buy a prop or a temporary talent that can change my birth condition. This was a realistic era, and 100 reincarnations points was not a small number, so many people clicked on it. In the end, their eyes were instantly dazzled by the two glittering S rank badges on the subject's avatar. The message also became strange. FCK. It's an S bigwig. FCK. He really only reincarnated twice, it's a newbie bigwig. FCK a new big shot, does he even know how to talk? This is a newbie bigwig. The person above can publish a book called The Self-Cultivation of Boot Licking. It said that big shots above S rank are not to be trifled with, they can shout and kill at will, and they can kill people through space in 30 seconds. I don't believe it, but it's already been 29 seconds, if you have the ability, then go ahead. Have a safe journey, brother. Mom asked me why I was on my knees while browsing through the forum. He Chuan, the topic lord owner, can I ask you how did you manage to reincarnate to get an S grade or above? I forgot to set it. He Chuan looked at these irrelevant answers to the bounty and cannot help but shake his head, he quickly set the account to only show the information to friends. After this wave of activity had passed, suddenly, the people who came in later did not send similar answers. They thought that the people in front of them were joking. Therefore, the answers were much more normal, and all kinds of recommendations appeared. He Chuan sifted through them one by one and repeatedly went into the shop provided by the other party to check. In the end, he found that they were all a bunch of low-end talents and props. He was not interested at all. He had no choice but to add that he did not lack reincarnation points and that they could recommend as many good things as possible to him. In the end, the first group of people ran out to lead the pace again. The group of people who did not believe in them thought carefully. Would a newbie who had only reincarnated twice not lack reincarnation points? This was a big shot. Definitely a big shot. They had seen a big shot with their own eyes. The other group of people still did not believe it. They expressed that there was no newcomer who could get an S rating. 2. That was simply impossible. Stop bragging here, if you have the ability, let the person reveal the information. He Chuan could not help but be speechless. It was not that he did not want to reveal the information. He might as well just leave it alone and enjoy his bath in peace. In any case, he was not in a hurry. However, He Chuan's silence did not make the group of people stop talking. Instead, the debate became more and more intense. In the end, the popularity of this bounty skyrocketed. 
it directly jumped to the front of the group of bounty hunters. Then, it was targeted by the administrator. This kind of character was different from the ordinary people who browsed the forum. They controlled the information resources of the entire forum. In reality, they were also big shots. It was easy to get the information that He Chuan was hiding. When he opened it and saw the two shiny S badges, he was stunned. That's a new B with 2 S rank. Chapter 52 S rank was not like cabbages that could be obtained just like that. Under normal circumstances, if one could obtain an S rank from the first 10 or so reincarnations, they could be considered the best among the reincarnators. A new bee like this, who had obtained S ranks for their first two reincarnations definitely had extraordinary potential. Should he be roped in? The administrator felt that it was very necessary, so he simply sent this message to the administrator's private chat group for everyone to discuss. First generation reincarnated old boy, brothers, I just found a pretty good user in the forum. What do you think? Picture. When He Chuan's personal information panel screenshot was sent out, someone immediately replied. 100 reincarnations only for SS, oh, 2S badges. Not bad, this level is more than enough to get a master title in the small circle. Why haven't I seen it before? First generation reincarnated old boy, look at the number of reincarnations. 100 reincarnations only for SS, FCK. Only reincarnated twice. Which association's family's young master has come of age? So fierce. First generation reincarnated old boy, I've checked. There's no large family with the surname he. His family's probably just a middle class petty bourgeoisie. 100 reincarnations only for SS, FCK FCK. Are you kidding? This is much more exaggerated than what I did back then. First generation reincarnated old boy, are you dumbfounded? Ha ha ha, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. The other side sent a blank sticker as if he didn't know what to say. First generation reincarnated side. The person he was chatting with was a top-notch genius. Moreover, he was the type with extremely high talent. During his first reincarnation, his luck was so bad that he descended into a terrifying dimensional world. This was a place with top difficulty to be reincarnated in. If it was an ordinary person, they would have been gotten an F, in a few days. However, he displayed amazing perseverance and talent in that world and obtained a B rank. Although his results were a little different from the assessment standard. However, due to the high difficulty of the world, the Reincarnators Association made an exception and allowed him to pass. They had even provided him with a large number of resources. His second reincarnation did not disappoint the others. He went straight to the cultivation world and got an A. After that, he advanced by leaps and bounds and became the first man to receive an SS rank. However, even with such extravagant data, he was still slightly inferior to He Chuan. He Chuan, who was also a newcomer, received an S rank on his first reincarnation. Although the difficulty of the world was not high, it showed his outstanding talent. The most valuable thing was that even though he was reincarnated to a world with higher difficulty, he still obtained a higher S rating. Not to mention the new students outside, even if there were more than a dozen people in the management group, no one dared to guarantee that he would have such an ability. Terrifying. Dreadful. The younger generation was horrifying. First generation reincarnated even suspected that he was out of touch with the times. Now, there was actually such a powerful reincarnator in the new generation. Suddenly, another person came out and asked. The Reincarnators Association Northside's vice president, this seedling is not bad. Do you know where he lives? First generation reincarnated raised his eyebrows in surprise. This person's identity was extremely special. It could be said that he was a man who controlled nearly half of the planet's resources. Even he was interested, it seemed that He Chuan's talent was indeed shocking. 100 reincarnations only for SS, what? Old Dao, don't tell me you want to take in a disciple again. The Reincarnators Association Northside's vice president, I do have this idea. It's rare to have a fresh graduate who can continuously get an S rank. I can't let him go. 
Why, do you also want to take him in as a disciple? 100 reincarnations only for SS, I want to, but this kid's reincarnation statistics are scary. He might surpass me after two more reincarnations and I can't control him. The Reincarnators Association Northside's Vice President, First Generation Reincarnated, send me his address. First Generation Reincarnated. If I knew, I wouldn't have posted it in the group. Would I give you a chance? Besides, old Dao, what's your identity? Can't you find out about this? The Reincarnators Association Northside's Vice President, I didn't check, but I don't think he's a reincarnator from the North Side. Currently, the highest grade of students graduating here is only an A. If there's an S, I would have found out immediately. First generation reincarnated was a little surprised and quickly asked, is this batch of students so difficult to bring up? Not even an S. The Reincarnators Association Northside's vice president, it's always been like this. Do you think everyone is like you, getting an A in the cultivation world? How can a high grade be so easy to be obtained? Opportunity, foundation, and ability are all indispensable. 100 reincarnations only for SS, that's right, that's right. Do you think everyone is like you? It's easy for you to say. First generation reincarnated old boy, FCK, you've said that a lot in the past. 100 reincarnations only for SS, come on, was there ever a person as talented as he Chuan in the past? First generation reincarnated old boy, Forget it, I'm too lazy to argue with you. Old Dao, help me check He Chuan's personal information. I can't get it, it seems to be encrypted. The Reincarnators Association Northside's Vice President, He He. First generation reincarnated old boy. What do you mean by He He? 100 reincarnations only for SS, He He, just mean I don't want to talk to you. What else could it be? Old Dao is planning to take in a disciple. Why would he give you a chance? First generation reincarnated old boy, we have to compete fairly. The Reincarnators Association Northside's vice president, a person who can't even get an address isn't qualified to compete with me. First generation reincarnated old boy, FCK. First generation reincarnated's eyes turned red. At this moment, someone immediately stepped forward to smooth things over. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, seniors, I know this He Chuan. Can you listen to what I have to say? The eyes of generation first generation reincarnated turned bright. He quickly typed, hurry up and say it. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, I heard that he came out of the slums he didn't even use a temporary talent when he reincarnated for the first time and got an S rank. Judging from his character, I don't think he's someone who's trying to curry favor. If the two of you were to take him in as a disciple like this, I'm afraid you would be rejected. First generation reincarnated, then tell me, what other ideas do you have? Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, he's very powerful and definitely has his own ideas. In my humble opinion, I can pull him into the administrator group first. After we get to know each other better, we can talk about taking him in as a disciple. Blade Demon Little Seven, oh, it's rare for our great sword master Lu to praise someone. It seems that this He Chuan is indeed not bad. However, I remember that when he first entered the administration group, a certain someone obstructed him for a long time. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, you have a mischievous character. I'm afraid I still don't know you until now. Blade Demon Little Seven, Lu Qingfeng, I've given you face, haven't I? Come out and fight. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, I'm not interested in fighting with my defeated opponent, it's boring. This time, it was Blade Demon Little Seven's turn to be angry. Blade Demon Little Seven, you, surname Lu. Don't think that I don't know what you're thinking. It's nothing more than waiting for He Chuan to enter the group before you build a good relationship with him and let him go to your association, right? Let me tell you, with me around, He Chuan will definitely not go to your association. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, let's wait and see. When he said this, the other big shots couldn't sit still anymore. Chapter, 53 Who were Blade Demon Little Seven and the Sword Master Lu Qingfeng? The former was written in the textbook. His attainments in blade techniques were extraordinary. If he claimed to be number two, 
no one dared to claim that they were number one. Even if he became an ordinary person in the reincarnation world, he could rely on his own understanding of blade techniques to fight against experts. The other Lu Qingfeng was not inferior either. The slightly different thing was that Lu Qingfeng had entered the path of swordsmanship. Now, he had entered the mysterious realm where no sword was better than with sword. Moreover, he had become the president of the Union College of Reincarnation at a young age. He possessed the information of hundreds of millions of reincarnation students in the South. Those who were talented enough but failed the assessment because they were unlucky enough to enter the high-difficulty reincarnation world would be given an additional chance to reincarnate as long as Lu Qingfeng took a fancy to them. It is not an exaggeration to say that he is a talented young man to be able to wield such power in his twenties. Of course, this is nothing for in a blink of an eye and vice president who wields supreme power. But these two young men have their own strengths. In the way of the sword and the way of the blade, no one is better than them. When it comes to being a master, no one in the group is more suitable than them. In a blink of an eye felt that he couldn't do it. Neither could vice president. Not to mention 100 reincarnations. There was nothing they could do. The only thing they lacked was that they didn't specialize in one thing. It was impossible to teach even if they wanted to. They could only give them support in terms of resources, as well as their own special understanding and unique experience of various reincarnated worlds. But for a truly ambitious reincarnator, did these things have a great attraction? The answer was no. If there really was a heart that yearned for the strong, then this kind of experience talk would become dispensable to them. This was because things that had not been personally experienced could not be considered experience at all. They could only be called knowledge. To do a question, one had to search for the answer according to specific conditions. Not to mention the incomparably complex reincarnation world. Want to rely on experiences to get a high rating? Impossible. The few seniors in the group who had the intention of taking in disciples could not help but sigh silently at the thought of this. Their hope was slim. However, they would not give up before trying. After some discussion, they decided to invite He Chuan into the group first. According to the rules, any decision had to have the support of more than half of the people before it could be passed. Thus, in a blink of an eye tagged everyone again and let them understand before making a decision. Other than those who were unable to reply because they were in the reincarnated world, everyone basically responded. In the end, they agreed. Everyone was shocked by He Chuan's only two reincarnations data. First S. Second S. Such a panel, even among reincarnators around the world, could not find a second similar existence. Those with the same rank had reincarnated many times more than He Chuan. Those with the same rank as He Chuan were even worse than He Chuan. It was not an exaggeration to say that He Chuan was the strongest newbie reincarnator in history. Therefore, at this moment, He Chuan, who was leisurely strolling through the various shops in the forum, suddenly received a notification. First generation reincarnated old boy invites you to join the group chat, first generation secret base. Do you accept? Hmm. He Chuan raised his eyebrows. First generation reincarnated old boy. Why did he have such a silly name? The group chat name was also very strange. What was the first generation secret base? He subconsciously thought of something with color. Could it be that it sells movies? He Chuan was not interested in this. What level of beautiful girls in the reincarnation world had he not seen before? Did he need to watch porn to release himself? Trash. He reported it. He clicked on the profile picture and reported the information huh? Wait. What was wrong with this person's interface? He had reincarnated more than 200 times. Holy shit. An entire page of S-rank. He Chuan wiped his eyes. After confirming that he had not seen wrongly, he could not help but twitch the corner of his mouth. What was the concept of reincarnation more than 200 times? He was not clear about it. But with a simple calculation, he could tell. Even if he reincarnated continuously, it would still take nearly five years in the origin world. If it was the time in each reincarnated world, it would be at least 20,00 years. Such a long period of development, 
coupled with so many S ranks, his strength was absolutely incomparably terrifying. Perhaps even a single breath could destroy the martial world that he had just reincarnated into. A big shot. Definitely a big shot. His background was probably much bigger than Kuyuan's. However. Why was such an existence looking for him? He was just a minor character. How could he attract the attention of such a big shot? After thinking about it, he still agreed to the invitation. Whether it was a blessing or a curse, a disaster could not be avoided. Facing such a figure, there was no need to make wild guesses. He would just have to take things one step at a time. In the end, when he had just entered the group, a message popped up. You have been promoted to a forum administrator. You have obtained a large number of operating rights to manage the internal affairs of the forum. You can go backstage to check out the details. What was going on? How did I become an administrator? Looking at the group again, there were already quite a few people who had sent him messages. Lu Qingfeng from the Southern Union College, Brother He Chuan, I have attended classes in all the major colleges in the Southern region. You should know me. It is better to meet by chance than to invite you. It is fate that we meet here today. Why don't we meet at the Immortal Restaurant tomorrow and have a drink? My sister has just graduated like you. Coincidentally, she has been reincarnated into a martial arts world. Her results are quite good, but she still has some questions. I have not been to a low-level martial arts world for a long time and do not know the details. I would like to trouble you to teach my untalented sister. Blade Demon Little Seven, Lu Qingfeng, you're awesome. You're even willing to bring out your own little sister. You're ruthless. I'm all alone, there's no one for me to offer. Brother He Chuan, you're one of us now that you're in this group. You should come and visit more often in the future. Oh right, where do you live? I'll send you some local specialties later. I'll also take you to experience a spa that you've never been to before. First generation reincarnated old boy, He Chuan, welcomes little friend He. Ha ha ha, I see that your profile picture is quite handsome. Do you have a girlfriend? If you don't, do you want me to introduce you to a dozen or so? If you think it's too little, I can even introduce you to a few dozen. The Reincarnators Association Northside's Vice President, He, how many times a year can you meet young and beautiful girls? I'm afraid they're all old aunties. Suddenly, a person with a profile picture of Rose sent a voice message. Old Dao, do you want to die? The voice was cold yet pleasant to the ear. It was full of the aura of a big sister. However, the tone was full of threats. It was not difficult to imagine how gloomy the other party's expression was at this moment. Even though they did not see the person in person, everyone present could not help but shiver. Rose is here I misspoke, misspoke, forget I said anything. Vice President immediately admitted defeat. Rose's nature was cold. She rarely showed her face and didn't treat anyone well. Once she got angry, no one could bear the consequences. He couldn't either. Facing this 26-year-old woman who had become the dean of the Southern Union College, Vice President felt that it was better to keep a low profile. Rose did not say anything else. Vice President also heaved a sigh of relief and continued to send messages. He Chuan, little friend he, let's add a contact number. I'll bring you to the headquarters of the Reincarnators Association later. The girls in the support department are all single. They have good figures and beautiful faces. If you like anyone, you can feel at ease and chase after them. If you meet someone you're not sure of, I'll help you set them up. He Chuan was a little confused. This was the administrator group. Why did it feel more like a matchmaking group? All of them were introducing him to girls. There was even one who was even more outrageous. He actually wanted to take him to go whoring. Amazing. Are these all big shots? Why are they all so indecent? Chapter, 54 However, at this moment, someone suddenly sent him a voice chat invitation. It was the woman with the rose portrait. After picking up the call, that charming and noble voice sounded. He Chuan. Hmm. Why are you looking for me, sister? The other side was silent for a while as if he had been duped by this title. 
After a few seconds, he said. No matter what these people in the group say, don't pay attention to them. If there are any problems, leave it to me to handle. What's wrong? Is there any problems? He Chuan was puzzled. A few of them want to take you as a disciple, and a few want to rope you in. Other than those who were still in the reincarnation world, basically, everyone in the group has the same idea. I don't understand. This can be considered a good thing why shouldn't I pay attention to them? You're from my academy. If they want to get involved, they'll have to ask me for permission first. I see. He Chuan laughed bitterly, then what about you, sister? Do you want to take me in as your disciple or rope me in? What do you think? I don't know. A woman's heart is like searching for a needle at the bottom of the ocean, it can't be figured out. Aren't you afraid that I'll get angry if you say that? He Chuan laughed, girls who love to get angry tend to have endocrine disorders. They're not pretty. Judging from the few school photos with side faces in your space, you're definitely a great beauty. So you won't get angry over this. Have you always been so straightforward? Yes, what's wrong? Nothing. Rose took a light breath as if her state of mind was a little shaken, but she still maintained her calm tone and said, in the future, if you encounter anything that can't be solved, you can leave me a private message. I'll handle it when I see it. He Chuan's eyes lit up. He started to use the power of the deduction system to verify the credibility of what the other party said. Within a few seconds, he received the result. The deduction showed that. The woman with the rose portrait was most likely the dean of the Southern Union College. It was the school he graduated from, he had the identity of a member of the Union College. In this way, He Chuan could understand why she did this. It was because she didn't want him to be snatched away by those big shots. But He Chuan still couldn't understand. What was so good about him? Was he worth so many big shots fighting over him? Didn't he just reincarnate twice? His results were pretty good. But was there a need? He Chuan didn't want to delve into the reason behind it. There was only one thing he wanted to do at the moment. That was to buy something that could improve the background of the original character. So, he directly asked Rose. The other party straightforwardly told him the name of the shop. After confirming that there was nothing else, she directly hung up the phone. What a cold and elegant sister. He Chuan smiled slightly and didn't care too much. He personally didn't have any opinions about the competition between these big shots. He wouldn't comply, nor would he resist. Only in this way would they have a certain degree of interest in him. In the balance of competing against each other, they would find a balance point and bring him endless benefits. Not to mention, there was also Rose who had taken the initiative to come forward to act as a shield. It couldn't be better. So what if they were big shots? They would still be a tool. He shook his head lightly. One day, he would stand at the same height as them. After doing all this, He Chuan began to browse through the shop that Rose had mentioned. With the addition of the administrator badge. The person in charge of the Chamber of Commerce immediately added him as a friend and took the initiative to ask. Sir, may I ask what you need? The other party asked very politely. He Chuan thought for a moment, tools and temporary talents that can raise the basic background of a person in the reincarnation world. Oh, about that I'll go check it out, please wait a moment. Okay. After a while, the other party sent out a few pictures consecutively. Born in a wealthy family, temporary talent, allow you to be born into a wealthy family. Life background random machine, one-time consumable item, can be used before reincarnation. You can choose one of three life backgrounds randomly generated as the life background in the corresponding world. After the life background was confirmed, it can be reset once. Lucky strike, temporary talent, everything is going well in your family, everything went smoothly, it is very difficult to encounter negative accidents. Golden spoon, one-time consumable item, guaranteed to be born into a noble family in the next reincarnation. If the world background does not have a dynasty, it will automatically be replaced with a family of the same level. Just from the introduction, it seemed that the effect of Golden Spoon was more in line with his expectations. The other things had a certain degree of uncertainty. For example, 
the first temporary talent only said that he will have a lot of money, but it did not clearly explain the level of this wealth in the world. If he could not even reach the top 100, then it would not be considered the so-called high start. Eliminated. Life background random machine, was very random. If he got three trash life backgrounds, it would be the same even if he reset it. Then, he would have wasted more than 100, 0, 0 reincarnation points. That's right. Such an item was sold for more than 100, 0, 0 reincarnation points. Even he Chuan, who had millions of assets, felt a little pained looking at it. It was not very stable, eliminated. Needless to say, Lucky Strike, was a growth type temporary talent. However, it did not have any effect on the beginning of the game, so he did not consider it. Only the last golden spoon was left. He Chuan hesitated for a moment and asked, Is there anything better than the golden spoon? Sir, even if this item is discounted, it will still cost 800 zero, zero reincarnation points. Are you sure you want something better? I'm sure. He Chuan gritted his teeth and typed out these two words despite his surprise. Danger can never be overcome without taking risks. Resources were only valuable when they were spent. It would not increase your strength if you kept it in your hands. If he could use this talent to break through to SS rank in one fell swoop, then the follow-up earnings would definitely be more than this. The person in charge of the Chamber of Commerce was silent for a moment as if he had gone to inquire about the product again. But this time, he did not have to wait for long. Soon, he received a reply. Sir, currently, the only item better than the Golden Spoon is the Supreme version of the Golden Spoon, but the only one has already been reserved by someone else. You see. What a pity. He Chuan typed regretfully, what's the difference between the two versions of the Golden Spoon? The person in charge quickly replied, actually, the difference isn't that big. It's just that the Supreme version is on the basis of the ordinary version of the Golden Spoon, and there's an additional advantage of, would be doted on. So that was the case. He Chuan was silent. This was indeed a very important advantage, it was a pity that he couldn't get it. Then I'll just choose this. He Chuan directly transferred the money to pay the bill and bought the golden spoon. Chapter, 55 At this moment, a banner noticed that everyone could see suddenly popped up in the forum. Congratulations to new user, He Chuan, for becoming the forum administrator. He Chuan glanced at the administrator group. This was something caused by first generation. It was said that he wanted to increase the prestige of the new administrator. This was great. Everyone knew of his existence. As expected, a huge uproar was instantly stirred up. What kind of people were there that the forum did not lack? Old people. Old people who added bricks and tiles to the forum and continuously contributed to it. What were they doing it for? Wasn't it for the day that they could gain the appreciation of the administrator and become a part of it? rising up from there. But in the end, after working so hard for so long, there was no news at all. Today, an unknown kid suddenly came and snatched the position that they dreamed of. Who could stand this? Instantly, all kinds of discussion threads came one after another. They began to analyze what kind of person he Chuan was, to actually be able to change from a new user to a forum administrator. Some said it was a conspiracy. Some said he had a backer. Some said it was a mistake by the administrator. Very few people said it was because of his talent, and those who knew of He Chuan's deeds even publicized his achievements for everyone to judge for themselves. However, He Chuan had already hidden his information, so few people would believe things that could not be verified. As a result, these things were quickly drowned out in a series of crusades. Jealousy made people unrecognizable. Driven by this kind of emotion, anything could be said. As a result, posts related to He Chuan remained high in popularity. This was nothing, there were more sarcastic kinds of protest posts. The abuse came one after another. One of the most senior forum posts was the highest. It described in detail what he had done for the forum over the years, and complained about how unreasonable the administrator evaluation and promotion mechanism was. He had worked so hard for so long without getting anything, and an unknown kid had inexplicably become an administrator. 
this kind of grief and indignation was displayed vividly between the lines. It caused many spectators to complain about him. It made him angrier. Later, he directly applied to Ad He Chuan as a friend, wanting to directly privately scold him to vent his anger. Unexpectedly, he really succeeded. Then I won't be polite. I'll just write a small essay. I'm going to scold He Chuan for a long time. Ten minutes later, when he finally finished typing the content, he pressed the enter key and waited for dozens of seconds. Looking at the unresponsive dialogue box, he felt as if his fist had punched into cotton. Could it be that he's not online? The old man moved his mouse and clicked on He Chuan's profile picture to check his status on his personal page. In the end, he was instantly dazzled by the page that popped up. FCK. And it was golden. What was that? It was actually so dazzling. Two badges. S rank. S rank. What the FCK? What kind of joke was this? A newbie on a forum had such a reincarnation badges. Even he doesn't have one. He suddenly broke out in a cold sweat. He rubbed his eyes repeatedly. After making sure that he wasn't seeing things. His entire back was drenched in sweat. Oh no. This guy can't be scolded. He's a big shot. A big shot who's been reincarnated twice and got an S rank badge and above. He was dumbfounded. Apart from shock, there was only fear. What should he do? Would he be able to survive on this planet in the future? No, he had to withdraw. He immediately began his remedial work. He withdrew all the words that he had spent so much effort to insult. He continued to display the hand speed of someone who had been single for decades. But it was still too late. The first few messages could not be withdrawn because they were more than three minutes. So when He Chuan saw that there was a message in the background to check, he was dumbfounded. Kid, listen carefully. I've run this reincarnation forum for so many years, and I've never been afraid of anyone. I don't care how big your background is or how superior your family background is. What doesn't belong to you, quickly hand it over consciously. Otherwise he he, there was an old man who didn't know his place. He thought he was from the joint committee so he could challenge me. The other party withdrew a message. The content was vague and unclear. He didn't know what to express at all. Why did he withdraw all of a sudden? He Chuan was a little puzzled. He wanted to know what happened to that old fellow. In the end, the other party suddenly added another sentence. I'm sorry, boss. I sent it to the wrong person. Send it to the wrong person. He Chuan did not believe it. Who sent the wrong message in a row of dozens of times? Wasn't that stupid? He thought of something and used the deduction system. With the support of his current brain power, he quickly got the result. So you're scolding me. Then why did you withdraw it? Oh, I blocked my personal information, only my friends can see it, no wonder. He Chuan grinned. Interesting. Insults, threats. If this was in the reincarnation world, he would have torn the other party to shreds long ago with the murderous aura he had been infected from the martial arts world. Forget it, it's better to restrain oneself in the original world. He was still very weak now, and he could still recognize this point. He couldn't do whatever he wanted. However, this wasn't a small matter. People like him who were jealous of him were definitely not few. The safety of the manor where his parents lived had to be guaranteed. Moreover, the source of the personnel could not be only from one place. They should be changed periodically to ensure that they would not form a group. It would be troublesome if they kidnapped his family while he was reincarnated. After all, the human heart was hard to predict. Moreover, it was these unfamiliar reincarnators who had to be even more cautious in doing things. Let's recruit a batch of them from the forum first. With the help of the deduction system, there was still a basic guarantee. However, it would have to wait until tomorrow. With the current momentum of the forum, if he posted a reward for recruitment, he would probably be scolded. It was better to let Rose and the others find out and deal with it before he does it. He Chuan stretched lazily and put down the tablet in his hand. He got up to rinse the foam and dry the water stains. 
However, when he turned around and was about to get a towel, Jiang Wenyue suddenly ran over. She was wearing an extremely sexy bunny girl costume. She held the towel and toiletries with both hands and leaned her body slightly, seducing him with the seductive cleavage in front of her chest. Master, please take your time. Chapter, 56 Content Warning, Mention Nudity SX He Chuan's gaze was slightly slanted as his gaze swept across her voluptuous chest. He could not help but feel a primitive desire in his heart. Where did this little girl learn how to please others? He pulled a towel over to cover his body and frowned slightly, what are you doing here? Jiang Wenyue answered obediently, I heard that Master has received an S reincarnation rating, so I'm here to help you take a bath and change clothes. How did you know? As Master's personal maid, of course, I have to keep an eye on Master's reincarnation, Jiang Wenyue said matter-of-factly. Speak properly. He Chuan narrowed his eyes slightly. Jiang Wenyue was an arrogant woman. She called him Master, and she acted like her status was lower she either had a conspiracy or she had a request. Since the status between him and her was so far apart, the conspiracy could basically be ruled out. Then, there was only the request left. However, Jiang Wenyue smiled and gently pushed him onto the plush mat at the side. She stretched out her soft and tender hands and placed them on He Chuan's shoulders, gently massaging them. Master, you're too nervous. Let Wen Yue come and help you relax. Although she said so, the movements of her hands were not as simple as a massage. Her slightly sharp fingertips occasionally brushed past He Chuan's chest, causing waves of shivering numbness. After a few moments, He Chuan could not hold it in anymore. He grabbed her wrist. Jiang Wenyue, you're playing with fire. He warned her sternly. But Jiang Wenyue raised her head and puffed out her chest, looking back at him with a provocative gaze. It was as if she was saying, if you have the ability, then come at me. If you don't have the ability, then stay obedient. He Chuan sneered. Since you delivered yourself to me time and time again, then why should I be polite? He pushed Jiang Wenyue to the ground, and the two of them hold each other tightly, rolling a few times on the fluffy carpet. When he stopped moving, He Chuan used his strong arms to support himself by her side, his palms supporting the back of her head. His other hand pressed on her chest, massaging it wantonly. Jiang Wenyue did not resist, nor did she close her eyes. She just stared at He Chuan. There was surprise, astonishment, and satisfaction in her eyes. What was hidden the most was the trace of contempt and disgust that had never disappeared. Their breathing gradually became heavier, and they breathed on each other's faces. They looked at each other and did not say anything. The dim light shone through the open door and onto Jiang Wenyue's face, reflecting the beautiful face that had been decorated with shadows. Her lips were slightly open, and her breath was like an orchid, full of fatal temptation. At this moment, He Chuan was actually a little moved. He could not help but raise his chin slightly and lean over. ENN An undetectable moan came from between Jiang Wenyue's lips and teeth, as if it was a natural murmur, but also as if it was acquiescence to He Chuan's excessive action. He Chuan kissed deeply. Their lips and tongues intertwined, and an indescribable wonderful sensation traveled along their nerves and filled their entire brain. It's not too late to regret now, He Chuan's warm voice rang in her ear. Jiang Wenyue did not say anything, only responding with an extremely clumsy and unfamiliar action. He Chuan ignored her and reached out to tear her clothes wantonly. Unknowingly, Jiang Wenyue had already become as naked as He Chuan, who had shed his towel. The sexy uniform that she used to tease He Chuan had finally fulfilled its purpose and turned into a crazy trophy. It was as if she had never experienced the feeling of being touched by a man. Every time He Chuan's slightly rough palm touched her skin, she would subconsciously clench her hands, close her legs, and tighten her entire body. He Chuan seemed to have realized something but still did not say anything. He used a gentler kiss and touch to let Jiang Wenyue relax bit by bit. After the other party had completely adapted to his touch, He Chuan finally bent his body, moved his hands down, and placed them on her legs. Jiang Wenyue subconsciously used her hands to press it down. He Chuan laughed lightly and looked at her frivolously. Didn't you want to use me to get to the top? 
Why, are you going back on your word? Jiang Wenyue's eyes struggled. She hesitated for a long time, but in the end, she let go of his hands. He Chuan immediately lifted her legs. His movements were sudden and violent. Then, he adjusted his body and let Jiang Wenyue clamp his waist. This posture made her feel ashamed and angry. She no longer had the courage to look directly at He Chuan. Jiang Wenyue turned her head. Her face was like a peach blossom, adding a bit of coquettishness to it. It seemed that she intended to let the gentleman take her without resisting. However, there seemed to be some dissatisfaction in her eyes. As expected, you only treat this as a transaction, huh? He Chuan suddenly changed his mind. He bent down slowly and continued to kiss and caress her. It was just that the part he caressed this time was slightly different. Have you experienced this feeling before? Jiang Wenyue felt a sudden attack on her lower body and could not help but take a deep breath. As He Chuan's actions became more and more frequent, the pleasure of being teased was coming like waves after waves, continuous and surging. This was far from what a kiss could compare to. She felt as if she was floating in the clouds, free and at ease. However, the feeling of being suspended and helpless surrounded her at all times, as if she could fall at any time. The complicated feelings made Jiang Wenyue unable to resist. Even though she had tried her best to endure, she still let out a flirtatious moan from her tongue. After an unknown period of time, Jiang Wenyue finally could not endure it any longer. She firmly pressed down on He Chuan's hand which still wanted to violate her again. The stubbornness in her eyes gradually softened and turned into submission and desire. He Chuan knew that the time had come. He slowly raised his palm. The water stain on his fingertip reflected a little light even in such a dark environment. Of course, Jiang Wenyuan knew the origin of the water stain and immediately blushed. But this time, she didn't dare to turn her head again. He Chuan smiled slightly and lightly patted her butt. Jiang Wenyue very cooperatively raised her legs and even used her hand to hook them to prevent her from falling off. The smile on He Chuan's face became even brighter. He bent down and pressed his body tightly against hers before suddenly asking softly beside her ear. Do you want to increase the security? He purposely lowered his voice on, increase the security, and spoke in a vague manner. Jiang Wenyue, who was already in a state of confusion, only heard the first two words and answered without thinking. Yes I I want to. I also want to increase the security. How can a group of reincarnator guards protect such a large house? Who knew that He Chuan would turn a deaf ear to her pleas? He suddenly straightened his body and said in a serious manner, Sai, it's not good to ask Brother Ko for manpower. It's better to think of a way on your own. Jiang Wenyue was on the verge of tears. Didn't I say that I want it? Why did you suddenly mention security? She looked at He Chuan's serious face. She didn't dare to disturb him, but at the same time, she couldn't bear the desire in her heart that was like an ant climbing up. She could only carefully pull He Chuan's arm and suggest in a low voice. Can we think about security matters tomorrow? I we first. Jiang Wenyue hinted shyly, believing that He Chuan would understand what she wanted to say. In the end, He Chuan grinned. He, always trying to seduce me. Now you know how I feel, right? He stood up, put on his bathrobe, and walked out of the bathroom, leaving Jiang Wenyue the view of his back from far away. In the end, he only threw one sentence. Endure it, or you can solve it yourself. Don't worry, I won't peek. Jiang Wenyue was confused. Chapter, 57 she really couldn't believe it. He Chuan actually ran away at this time. Why? She was clearly not bad looking. She was completely naked and he didn't care. Damn it! Was he even a man? Jiang Wenyue's chest heaved up and down, and she lay on the ground for a while before regaining her senses. She waited until her body's most primitive desires had subsided before she had the strength to stand up. During this period, he Chuan really didn't look at her at all. The bedroom was quiet, and even the lights were dimmed to accommodate sleeping as if she had been completely forgotten. When she put on her clothes and went out, she was surprised to find He Chuan sleeping. Bastard! 
Jiang Wenyue gnashed her teeth in anger, and another strange thought arose in her mind. Why don't I take advantage of this moment to run over and rape him? After the rice is cooked, with his kind character, he probably won't leave me alone. When the time came, she might get a second chance to reincarnate and become a reincarnator that everyone envied. Should she do it or not? Jiang Wenyue hesitated for a long time, but in the end, she left in a huff. In the end, she could not suppress the pride in her heart. Facing He Chuan, who had such a bad attitude, she really could not continue to lick his boot and send herself out. Creak. The sound of the door closing was heard. He Chuan, who was resting with his eyes closed, slowly opened his eyes and looked straight at the tightly shut door. It's not bad, she's not beyond redemption. The corner of his lips curled up slightly. If Jiang Wenyue insisted on seducing him and continued to do that thing, he would not object and would even enjoy it. However, in the future, he would definitely not treat Jiang Wenyue as his woman and compare her to Gu Xiao in the reincarnation world. After all, this was a disguised threat, using his sense of responsibility to seek benefits. He Chuan would never be such a fool. This was also the reason why he resisted the desire in his heart and did not touch her. To be honest, if he did not have a valiant heart, he might not be able to resist such temptation with his willpower alone. There was nothing he could do. Jiang Wenyue had a very good appearance and figure. In his eyes, she was of the best standard. Such a woman was full of charm. Basically, any man would fall for her. Now that Jiang Wenyue had taken the initiative to give up, perhaps she could truly understand that the things she exchanged for with her body would not last long and that she could sincerely take care of his parents in the future. If that was the case, perhaps one day, when he had enough abilities, he could help her get another chance to reincarnate and retake the test. I'd better go to sleep. Drowsiness hit him, and He Chuan closed his eyes again. He still had business to do tomorrow. The next day, He Chuan rarely slept in. He didn't get up until noon. This time, Jiang Wenyue reminded him to wear normal clothes when he ate. Although it was still a slightly sexy and charming uniform, it was much better than the bunny girl's sexy clothes from yesterday. At least it covered all the places that needed to be covered. After eating, He Chuan immediately went to the forum to broadcast bounty for security. It was just as he had expected. Rose had already helped him settle the matter of new administrator. First generation, vice chairman, and a few other administrators collectively came forward to announce his reputation. So many passers-by were full of praise, so naturally, they had nothing to say. As a result, the popularity of those posts denouncing He Chuan quickly dropped. This also allowed the recruitment of security personnel to proceed smoothly. Not long after the bounty was posted, the number of respondents gathered reached four digits. If he was to review them one by one, it would take a long time and effort, and it would take days and nights to finish reading them. He Chuan created a set of examination papers for this purpose. Only those who had answered all the questions and met the score could be selected successfully. The purpose of this examination was to select the personalities of these reincarnators. Those who were more violent and easily angered and impulsive would definitely not be selected. Those with introverted and weak personalities would also not be selected by him. With the help of the deduction system, the selection process was very fast. In just half a day, he had selected nearly 70 reincarnators who met the requirements. In terms of strength, they were slightly weaker than the guards given to him by the Reincarnators Association, but fortunately, there were many of them. After He Chuan finished adjusting the security of the manor villa, he started his third reincarnation. This was the opportunity to receive the rewards from the previous reincarnation. He did not need Kuyuan's help to apply for it, which saved him a lot of time. When they arrived at the reincarnation platform, familiar lights and voices appeared one after another. Retrieving target's identity temporary talent has been used, adjusting the difficulty of the world connecting with the characters of the reincarnation world connected successfully. The world you are about to descend into is, spiritual energy recovery early stage. Do you want to receive the background information? No. Use the golden spoon. Item has been used. Updating the background adjustment of your birth. The adjustment is complete. 
you will become a prince of the dynasty. It seemed like this was a world with low combat power, and the feudal system had not been broken. Then I might as well break my own record once more and try to get a SS back. He Chuan chanted without hesitation, use the rule of the random heavenly Tao. Random heavenly Tao has been used. Congratulations, you have received the blessing of, thousands of gold are gone and returned law of karma. Oh. The law of karma buff. He had never heard of such a thing before, so he read the introduction carefully. You can get a return of a random multiple for consuming anything. Interesting. Begin reincarnation. How to apply this heavenly law was something he would have to wait for practice before he would know. He could not wait to enter the new world. As the dazzling light flashed, he opened his eyes again and found himself in a dilapidated city. The streets were chaotic, and all kinds of things were piled up everywhere. The aisles were extremely narrow. There was also a disgusting stench in the air, like the smell of feces and rotting corpses mixed together to ferment. He Chuan couldn't help but frown. Wasn't he reincarnated as a prince? What the hell was this place? Chapter 58 Receive the background information. He Chuan muttered in his heart. Before proceeding with the follow-up actions, he needed to obtain more information. The next second, the reincarnation seal replied. A translucent panel appeared in his mind, on it was the recording of the information about this world. He Chuan patiently read through it. In general, this world was different from the previous one. It was originally the same as Earth, without any power system. Everyone was an ordinary person, and they didn't even know martial arts. The only ones who could fight were the army, and they were only equipped with standard cold weapons, which were very backward. The people lived in a relatively primitive era. They were ruled by a centralized monarch at the top of the pyramid. But one day, volcanoes erupted everywhere, and earthquakes and tsunamis never ended. So much so that when everyone thought the world was going to end, these disasters came to an abrupt end. In exchange were strong winds that lasted for half a year. After the strong winds swept over, the land regained its vitality as never before. Plants flourished. Even weeds could grow to several meters tall. They were so tough that ordinary sickles couldn't hurt them at all. Animals were the same. In human society. In the past, a person who could move a 200-pound object could be called a Hercules. Now, even a 10-year-old child could easily lift a 100-pound object. When he became an adult, his strength doubled and increased. With a little training, it was not impossible to break the limit and lift a 100-pound object. This change surprised countless people. It was not until the wind stopped that the feeling of becoming stronger gradually subsided. It was also because of this that they finally understood that the wind had brought something unprecedented. In order to remember it more easily, they named it spiritual energy. Spiritual energy was very magical. Although it was invisible and could not be touched. But taking a deep breath could make you feel refreshed and clear. Since then, many people began to study how to use spiritual energy to do more things. It was also during this period that people emerged from all over the world to control magical and powerful forces. They could use spiritual energy to cultivate themselves, constantly improve, and use spiritual energy to protect and harm others. Ordinary weapons could no longer hurt them, it was easy for them to break rocks and metals with their bare hands. Such existences were known as the awakened ones. They had eaten the first wave of benefits from their recovery gotten from the spiritual energy. They had become the top fighting force in the entire human race in a single leap. Under the influence of strength, their ambitions continued to grow. They did not want to be restricted by others anymore, so they joined forces to subvert the old dynasty and create the world that belonged to them. At this point, a new era had begun. The Awakened Ones, ha! Huh? He Chuan subconsciously clenched his fists. Feeling the surging power in his body, he could not help but fall into deep thought. His body had already been nourished by the spiritual energy in this space for more than ten years. His basic standards in all aspects were definitely not weaker than in the world of martial arts. However, compared to the awakened ones here, the difference was definitely not just a little bit. From the looks of it, this place was much stronger than the martial arts world. 
The stronger the overall strength of the world, the more dangers there are. Only by becoming stronger can one protect oneself and obtain a high score. If you want to become stronger, you have to awaken first. But how do you awaken? He Chuan saw it very thoroughly. Very quickly, he sorted out what he wanted to do. However, he did not know where to start with the new concept of awakening. There was no introduction or explanation in the background. Even if he wanted to use the deduction system to find the answer, he would not be able to start. Moreover, in this world of spiritual energy recovery that had just started, no one could be his teacher. Everything was in an unexplored state. It was not just the question of how to awaken. There were also questions about how to cultivate after awakening, the direction of cultivation, if he found that the direction was not suitable for him in the future and wanted to restart, could he cultivate again, and so on. He did not know that more than 99% of the people in the world did not know, and neither did the small group of lucky people who had become awakened. These questions had been discussed countless times by them. However, after more than ten years of hard work, there was still no progress. So many people thought that the awakened ones were blessed by the heavens. Only when they were destined to be given could they obtain greater power. This was more metaphysical. He Chuan did not believe it. In his opinion, this kind of statement was just the spiritual sustenance of the incompetent. Using illusory reasons and excuses to make them feel better. There must be a specific way to awaken. It's impossible for it to appear out of thin air. He Chuan frowned and pondered. It seemed that the awakened were a group of people who, by chance, found a way to strengthen their bodies by absorbing spiritual essence. Perhaps it was similar to how he was when he was searching for a way to break through the shackles in the previous world of martial arts. However, there was another problem. If that was the case, wouldn't he have to create a method to awaken under the condition of zero foundation? He Chuan shook his head. To be honest, he did not expect that the beginning of his reincarnation would require him to experience something that he would only do in the later stages of his reincarnation. Finding a method to awaken that everyone could use. Wait a minute, it didn't seem like there was a need for that. After all, he had the tyrannical true cultivation manual. In theory, as long as he made a few modifications, he could cultivate it in a higher dimensional world. However, this wasn't something that could be done just like that. The rules of every world were different. It would take a lot of time to study it thoroughly. Even with the help of the deduction system, he wouldn't be able to complete it in a short period of time. However, He Chuan felt that it was still necessary to give it a try. Who knows, it might be possible to awaken after cultivating the tyrannical true cultivation manual. Who said that one could only cultivate after awakening and absorb spiritual energy into the body? Couldn't one awaken after cultivating? In any case, it was all about becoming stronger. What was the point of prioritizing? In this world that had just been reset by spiritual energy, nothing was limited and solidified. As long as you dared to think and do it, it was possible to succeed. This matter has to be done slowly, I can't rush it. He knew very little about this world, so he couldn't immediately modify the tyrannical true cultivation manual. As He Chuan was thinking, more information immediately appeared in his mind. Chapter, 59 Life Background, You Came From a Noble Background You are the youngest prince among the eighteen children of the current emperor. Although you are young, you are the only legitimate son. However, because your emperor father does not love your biological mother, who is the empress, he does not care about you. When you were ten years old, he issued an edict that stripped you of the right to inherit the throne and made the first prince the crown prince. The first prince was born from another concubine. He had never been on good terms with you. He was jealous of the power you once had. That was why after he ascended the throne, in order to protect his own interests and prevent you from making a comeback, he and his mother secretly used all sorts of methods to continuously oppress your living space. After all of this was known by your biological emperor father, not only did he not stop it, he even tacitly allowed this kind of behavior. Even when seventeen of your brothers and sisters came of age, they were each given the highest quality of territory and duke title. When it was your turn, he only gave you the title of a fourth-ranked viscount noble. You were endlessly angry and asked for fair treatment, but the result was the complete opposite. 
As the biological emperor father, he directly assigned you to a city far away from the capital, stationed on a desolate border, the poorest and most dangerous city, Glory City. After reading the information in the reincarnation seal, He Chuan couldn't help but feel a little absent-minded. Why does it feel like it's still the beginning of nightmare difficulty? His entire person was in a bad mood. Didn't I use a prop? I spent 800-00 reincarnation points, and more than half of my savings were used up. And this was the result. He Chuan was very unhappy. But he had no choice. Who asked him to use the normal version of the golden spoon? Being born into such a complicated family like the royal family, it was normal for him not to be pampered. It was this kind of outcome where the cost was not proportional to the benefits that made him feel a psychological drop. He felt that he had bought the golden spoon at a loss. Next time, I must buy the supreme edition. He Chuan silently complained. However, since he had already come and used the item, even if the beginning was not to his liking, he could not just sit around and wait for death. The number of reincarnations was even rarer than the millions of reincarnations points. This could be seen in the reincarnators association behind Kuyuan. They were willing to spend a large number of reincarnations points to invest in resetting the world's difficulties, but they did not say that they would give him an unlimited number of reincarnations. What did this mean? This meant that the reward for the number of reincarnations was even harder to come by. Even for them, the number of times they could spend was limited. They could not spend an unlimited amount on one person. Let's strive for another reward for the number of reincarnations this time. He Chuan did not want to trouble others. After all, what others gave him and what he asked for were two different things. The former was a kind gift from the other party, used to smooth over relations, while the latter was something he owed. He didn't like to owe people favors, so he took matters into his own hands, to have ample food and clothing. Actually, on the bright side, this reincarnation might not be as tragic as described in the life background. There might be other possibilities. For example, the emperor doing this was a different kind of protection for him. While he was growing and tempering himself outside, he was far away from the hidden currents that could not be seen in the capital. After all, there were many factions in the court and the various major powers were deeply intertwined. They all had their own princes that they supported. Once someone became the heir to the throne, they would definitely be attacked by the other powers. They would think of ways to trip you up. Moreover, they were all underhanded moves, and they would not give themselves away on the surface. After you fell into the trap, he would then impeach you on the grounds that he had lost the bearing of the emperor. Over time, even if the emperor was unwilling, the candidate for the throne should be reconsidered. Thinking about it this way, his cheap father who was the emperor didn't seem so bad. However, He Chuan didn't care about this. It didn't matter what the emperor thought. As long as he did not bother him in the future. It was just the throne, what was the big deal? It was not like he had never been an emperor. Moreover, he was only an heir. Whether he could become the emperor, in the end, was another matter. The only pity was that he did not take advantage of the fact that he was still the heir to the throne to get more benefits. Up until now, he was only a viscount of the nobility. The only wealth he had was this dilapidated city in front of him. What was the use of this? He Chuan shook his head slightly. He felt that if he wanted to modify the tyrannical true cultivation manual, he might as well give up his territory and travel around the world. It was more practical to broaden his horizons than to stick to one side. So, he immediately took action. He counted the money he had left and prepared to buy some dry food and equipment necessary for survival in the wild. In the end, reality gave him a severe warning. After a long turn, he found that the city was not only in bad condition. Even the resident population is sparse. On average, for every five houses, at most one house was occupied. And there are not many shops on the street with their doors open. Finally, he found a tavern, but the counter is still empty. He Chuan shouted twice before someone responded from the room. A middle-aged man ran over, panting. I'm sorry, sir. I'm a little busy today, so I'm temporarily closed. He Chuan casually threw a small piece of gold on the table and asked, I just want to buy some dry food, I don't eat here, can
can you prepare some for me? This. The shopkeeper's eyes lit up when he saw the gold, but he hesitated and did not take it. Sir, for the time being there's no wine or meat in the shop. Huh? How is that possible? He Chuan did not understand. People who opened a tavern could have no meat or vegetables, but how could they not have wine? Sai sir, you're from outside, right? Sort of. I suggest you leave early if you can leave there are only some dried leaves and rice bran left in the restaurant if you don't mind, you don't have to pay for it. Just bring some to eat on the road. Rice bran? That's what you're eating. He Chuan frowned slightly. Wasn't that something that even pigs wouldn't eat? It couldn't be that bad, could it? The people in the city were so poor. Seeing his expression, the shopkeeper sighed and said, Sir, you don't know this. Glory City is surrounded by mountains on all sides. It lives in a secluded valley. To put it nicely, it's full of spiritual energy. If you live here for a long time, you might even awaken. But as you can see, how many outsiders are there in the city? In my opinion, Glory City is a cage raised by strange beasts. Those who live here may be eaten at any time. Chapter, 60 Strange Beast What is this thing? He Chuan was stunned for a moment before he realized what was going on. The recovery of spiritual energy did not only affect humans. All living creatures in this world would be strengthened to a certain extent. Moreover, the intelligence of wild beasts was far inferior to that of humans. What was strong was their physique. As a result, after being nourished by spiritual energy for many years, they became even stronger, far surpassing the current humans. Only the awakened ones could contend against them. As the shopkeeper continued to explain, He Chuan also understood how tremendous the number of beasts living in the mountain range near Glory City was. It would not be an exaggeration to say that it was endless. What was even more terrifying was that at the end of each year, wild beasts that did not need to hibernate would go berserk due to a lack of food, launching a large-scale beast tide invasion. Glory City used to be an important city of the dynasty. It had millions of soldiers and was prosperous and peaceful. However, it had been destroyed by the beast tide for a long time now. Its population had been greatly reduced and the people had suffered heavy casualties. Counting the days, there was only about a month left until the next beast tide attack. Speaking up to this point, the shopkeeper sighed deeply. With the current military situation in the city, it's impossible to stop the beast tide that's even more powerful than last year. I really don't know what will happen. What about migration? Haven't you thought to migrate? The shopkeeper laughed bitterly. Everyone who can walk has left. Now, other than the elderly, children, women, and children who remain in the city, there are only outsiders like you who don't know anything. He Chuan frowned and asked, Then haven't you asked the imperial court for help? Have the higher up sent people to help you leave? We did, but no one responded. They always say that the mountain path is complicated and difficult to move on. It's easy to attract a beast tide when there are too many people moving. The imperial court is discussing countermeasures, but after discussing for so long, there is still no news. The shopkeeper paused for a moment. As if he had just thought of something, he suddenly said, Oh right, there was an announcement these two days. It said that the imperial court sent a prince to guard Glory City. It made us feel at ease. He Chuan's expression froze. He had not expected that the topic would change to him. At ease about what? For him to resist the beast tide. What kind of joke was this? He did not have the ability to do so. I feel that no matter how powerful this prince is, he won't be able to resist the beast tide of the entire mountain range, right? He Chuan gave a fair assessment. He did not intend to expose his identity. Hearing this, the shopkeeper immediately shook his head and started chatting. Is that right? I think so too. A brat who is still wet behind the ears. His age is obvious. Even an awakened one would not be that strong. In my opinion, he is just a prince who is not favored in the palace. He offended someone and was demoted to Glory City. On the surface, that would make the prince advance and retreat with the commoners. How nice would that sound? 
If Glory City withstood the beast tide, it would be a meritorious assignment from the Imperial Court. Everyone in the world would have to praise it. If they did not survive the beast tide and all died, then there would still be princes to be blamed. The Imperial Court would not be scolded. Sigh Imperial Court. Bah! How would they care about the life and death of small figures like us? The more the shopkeeper spoke, the angrier he got. He almost kicked the wine jug next to him. He Chuan did not say anything. He was already in no mood to talk about such a topic. After bidding farewell to the other party, he walked on the cold streets again and began to think of countermeasures. How should he survive the attack of the beast tide? Based on the information he had and the abilities he possessed so far. Only after perfecting the tyrannical true cultivation manual and starting to cultivate, and increase his strength, could he have a certain probability to protect himself. The others, he couldn't care less. Should he just run? But if he did that, it might affect the score of his reincarnation. After all, this was the starting point of his reincarnation. Although there were no clear instructions, he Chuan faintly felt that it was definitely better to face the difficulties brought about by reincarnation than to avoid them. One month. He Chuan pondered whether this amount of time was enough for him to successfully cultivate the tyrannical true cultivation manual and raise his strength to the level where he could block the beast tide for Glory City. Soon, the deduction system gave him the answer. Success rate, 0,002%. Very good, the probability of 2 out of 10 million. It was almost the same as nothing. He was an Iron Man. He couldn't do it, he couldn't do it. It was better to change the method. He Chuan calmed his heart and began to use the deduction ability. All the muscles in his body instantly tensed up. All his attention was focused on the calculation in his mind. He didn't know how much time had passed. When he opened his eyes again, the sky was much dimmer. It was dusk. From time to time, the cries of giant birds and beasts could be heard in the distant sky. Just by feeling the sound waves coming from the sky, one could experience an extraordinary deterrence. In the face of this kind of group evolution, humans were still a little insignificant. Such feelings surged into his heart, and He Chuan once again confirmed his idea of becoming stronger. However, before that, he had to follow the hints given by the deductive system. Thousands of gold are gone and returned. This was the result of spending a lot of time deducing and verifying the answer. There was no more introduction, only such a short sentence. He Chuan, however, came to a realization at a glance. That's right. Other than deducing the system, he also had the heavenly law buff in this life. As long as he spent something, he could get a rebate. There were no restrictions. Such an awesome law of karma, if used well, it would not be worse than the deductive system. And in this way, he did not have to leave. Since this city was his territory, he would run it well and make it the best feng shui paradise in the dynasty. When that time came, people from all over the world would naturally visit. If he wanted to know anything, he could just ask these people. Why did he have to go through so much trouble to run around the world? He Chuan immediately decided to spend money. No matter how much money he had, he would spend it all to show his determination. Today, this young master will be a prodigal until he only wears underpants to go home. However, just as he was about to return to the city lord's manor to get the money, he found a large group of people gathered at the door. They all knelt on the ground in unison. Sir, please do us a favor and let our family escape the city for our lives. It sounded like a petition. In front of this group of people stood a long-bearded man dressed in embroidered clothes and jade. His face was stern as he berated them. How dare you! You dare to act rashly in front of the city lord's manor? Do you all want to die? The imperial court has already sent the 18th prince to lead us to defend the city. If we leave now, it will shake the morale of the army. The leader will be treated as a traitor and will be killed without mercy. Chapter, 61 Such an attitude made everyone's heart pound and they felt uneasy. The leader was a wealthy merchant. He did not kneel on the ground. At this moment, he was standing at the very front and facing the long-bearded man with great pressure. Faced with such a threat, 
he had no choice but to put in a good word. Sir, you are right. This surname you was indeed thoughtless and offended you. Since this is your first offense, I won't hold it against you. The long-bearded man frowned, leave quickly. If you come to cause trouble again, don't blame me for being merciless. The wealthy merchant looked at the long saber at his waist and couldn't help but swallow his saliva. However, he still braced himself and said, Your lordship, it's not that I don't trust the soldiers and his highness the eighteenth prince. It's just that I'm a merchant, I rely on the few goods at home to support my family. Now, I can't even sell them in Glory City, I can't even exchange a bag of food for them. The beast tide can last for a few months at least or half a year at most. If it continues like this, even if our entire family doesn't die in the mouths of mutated beasts, I'm afraid we'll starve to death at home. The long-bearded man was calm and collected. Don't worry, I've long given the order to prepare and store food for the citizens of the city. When the time comes, we'll naturally not forget your portion. Although the quota is a little low and the ingredients aren't that exquisite, it's enough for your daily needs, you won't starve to death. As he spoke, the man went up and patted the rich merchant's shoulder. He smiled faintly and said, Glory City is the place where you were born and raised, your ancestors have lived here for generations. If you leave this place when it needs you the most, even if you can live a rich life in the future, can you sleep peacefully at night? The rich merchant's expression froze. For a moment, he didn't know what to say. When he Chuan heard this, the inference system actually automatically activated and paired with the heavenly Li buff, it gave him two results. Let the people leave, the law of karma can be activated, all the gold is gone. The reward received for distributing wealth, rich merchant's reward. Do not let the people leave, no reward, waiting for the next opportunity to be triggered. He Chuan's eyes lit up slightly. It was really like giving a pillow when one was dozing off, giving him whatever he wanted. He did not expect that this would trigger the effect of the law of karma. As expected of the heavenly law. It seemed like everything in the city was determined to be his wealth. As long as there were expenses, there would be compensation. Although after these merchants left, it would be difficult to open up the trade routes in the city, perhaps the lives of the people would be even more difficult. But there were more urgent matters at hand, and he had to distinguish between priorities. If the business collapsed, it could still be rebuilt, but if all the people died, then the city would have no value. Thus, He Chuan immediately went forward. He said lightly. Let them go. The long-bearded man was first enraged when he heard the voice. Who the FCK would be so blind at this time to dare to challenge him? In the end, he turned his head to look. He saw a handsome youth slowly walking over. His expression instantly changed, and he hurriedly knelt down on one knee to pay his respects. Your Highness. Your subordinate did not welcome you at such a distance. Please atone for my sins. When the surrounding commoners heard this form of address, they were all shocked. Their bodies, which were already kneeling, buried their heads down, almost prostrating themselves on the ground. The wealthy merchant who was not kneeling was also shocked. He looked around, and then without hesitation, he imitated the commoners and made the same gesture, showing respect and submission. He Chuan saw this. Hmm. It seemed like the old feudal dynasty had not changed. All of you, get up, there's no need to kneel. All of you are born equal. No matter who you are facing, you should maintain your dignity. He Chuan waved his hand, go back to what you were doing. If you want to leave, go ahead. Survival is the most important thing. Everyone was dumbfounded. Your Highness, what are you talking about? Equality? Dignity? These words made the beggars even more convincing. In front of you, how could we dare to have dignity? Do we want to die? Wait. I think they were even allowed to leave. Is this for real? It can't be, right? He didn't even mention a single request, and he was so straightforward. At this moment, both sides fell silent. The commoners felt that He Chuan was fishing for a way to enforce the law. After they left, they would let the long bearded man lead the troops and use the excuse of running away. But they didn't dare to ask. 
As commoners, they were still unspeakably reserved and uncomfortable when facing the nobles. As for the long-bearded man, he wasn't sure what to do. They didn't know if the prince was sending him a message or if he really thought so. Sigh. Annoying. As expected of a man who had once been the crown prince. His words and actions were so hard to understand. Just when everyone couldn't figure it out, he Chuan spoke again. This time, he directly made it clear. He told everyone that he couldn't resist the beast tide. This prince's identity was in name only. He didn't have any power or influence. Coming here was actually no different from waiting for death. If everyone wanted to live, they had to leave this place and find a way to Freedom City which was close to the border of the country. Only then would there be a chance of survival. These words were very sincere, and many people were moved. Because it was just as He Chuan had said. The size of Freedom City was much larger than Glory City. Moreover, its geographical location was very special. It was close to three countries. It became a necessary place for merchant caravans to pass through. Because the sky was high and the emperor was far away, even the central officials could not get information about Freedom City in real time. So the local people were allowed to govern themselves. Over time, it formed a very free business atmosphere. No matter who it was, they could live in Freedom City. They did not need identification. They would not ask you where you came from. As long as you had money, you could have a warm little nest there. Because of this, Freedom City became a sacred place where all the countries put out bounties on criminals. Any country in the world would reject a wanted criminal. It didn't matter. Just came to Freedom City. However, Freedom City was a mix of fish and dragons, it had all kinds of people. However, this wasn't a bad thing. What came with it was extremely strong strength. In the past, when the Beast Tide had invaded, all the citizens of Freedom City had become soldiers. In order to protect the only pure land that could survive, the wanted criminals had all stepped onto the battlefield. That reckless fighting style had caused heavy losses to the strange beasts that had come to invade. Later on, the trading firm had invested in upgrading the defensive equipment in the city, turning Freedom City into an iron wall. Other than the birds and beasts that could fly into the city, the other strange beasts were completely helpless. Such a powerful city defense could be said to be the best of the few kingdoms. If they could get there before the beast tide arrived, it would definitely be much safer than staying in Glory City. Unfortunately, they had to pass through many mountains and hills along the way. They would definitely encounter many strange beasts. These existences could only be dealt with by awakened ones. As long as they were unlucky enough to encounter one in the wild, even ten burly men wouldn't be enough to defeat it. This was everyone's concern. The wealthy merchant also brought it up at the right time. To show the difficulties of their group. He Chuan immediately waved his hand. No worries. I have a way to avoid the strange beasts, just do as I say. Now, call those who are qualified to live in the Freedom City over. The wealthy merchant hesitated, he still didn't feel safe. He Chuan chuckled, don't worry, I have no interest in using you or finding trouble with you. To take a step back, with my status, is there a need to take so many detours when I want to do something? The rich businessman thought so. Without hesitation, he immediately asked his subordinates to inform the others in the city to come over. Chapter, 62 When they heard that there was a chance to live, everyone became highly effective and efficient. The long-bearded man had brought out a chair from the residence and came to He Chuan's side with a flattering expression. Your Highness, are you really going to let these people out? Of course. He Chuan glanced at him, who are you? This subordinate is Su Ku, the chief of the military staff of Glory City. Your Highness, I went to pick you up when you came last night, have you forgotten? Yes, I remember, what's the matter? Forgive me for being blunt, these are the rich people of Glory City and control more than 80% of the industry resources in the city. If you let them go just like that, the city will definitely be short of resources. When that time comes. Su Ku paused for a moment. He believed that even if he did not explain clearly, the prince would understand what he was trying to say. As long as these people were all captured, 
all their assets would be confiscated. The chances of fighting against the beast tide would increase by a few points. Although it was somewhat immoral, as long as the city was defended, it was worth it to bear this bit of blame. In the end, He Chuan shook his head gently. No need, just do as I say. Don't touch a single cent of their assets. Later, get someone to lead the team and send them out. Su Ku was stunned for a moment, Your Highness, I didn't hear wrongly, right? You still want to send someone to send them to Freedom City? Because he was too shocked, he spoke very loudly, causing the group of people, including the wealthy merchants, to look over. He Chuan looked at him with a faint smile, Is there a problem? No no. Su Ku was instantly terrified. He didn't dare to say anything else, afraid that he would be called out to send those merchants out of the city later. This wasn't a good thing. If he encountered a strange beast, he would definitely die. When the wealthy merchant heard this, he was also greatly shocked. The people were even more astonished. They never would have thought that the city lord He Chuan would actually dispatch a portion of the city guards to escort them to Freedom City when the beast tide arrived. He was the prince. The ruler of Glory City. A high and mighty figure. In this kind of crisis, shouldn't everyone be ordered to defend the city to the death to protect his interests? Shouldn't he make an example of the others and punish anyone who dared to leave the city? Even though everyone was in a state of panic, as long as you gave the order to strictly guard the city, who would dare to leave? Who could leave? The wealthy merchant sighed. Although this new city lord came from the royal family, his kind heart was truly rare. In this chaotic and materialistic era, selfishness was the benchmark for everyone. No one was willing to give up their own interests to seek the safety of others. Today, he saw one. Unfortunately. After the beast tide, it will no longer exist. Along with Glory City, which had experienced countless tribulations, it will become dust in history. Sigh. The wealthy merchant sighed softly and looked at He Chuan with a hint of gratitude and regret. Not long after, more than a thousand people gathered outside the city lord's residence. He Chuan immediately told them about the method to avoid the strange beasts. This was a trick that had been verified by the deductive system. Although there was no guarantee that they wouldn't be attacked by the strange beasts along the way, the safety index was definitely much higher than when they rushed all the way to Freedom City. Everyone listened very seriously and wrote everything down with a pen and paper to prevent them from forgetting. After he finished explaining all the details, He Chuan began to arrange for everyone to leave the city. If you all go out together, the commotion will be too great and it will easily alert the beast tide. First, split up into groups and leave the city in batches. Including the soldiers that are escorting you, each group cannot exceed ten people. Leave the city in batches and leave at intervals. If you meet each other on the road, don't stay too long and spread out as much as possible. Act according to the method that I have taught you. Everyone nodded. All right, go back and prepare. He Chuan looked at Su Ku, go and make arrangements. Open the four city gates and let them go in different directions to divert the time. Yes. Your Highness. Su Ku received the order and left. There were more than a thousand people outside the city lord's mansion. In fact, including the family members, there would be even more. Perhaps it would exceed five figures. Therefore, it was very difficult to arrange the trip. He Chuan could not handle it by himself. He needed help. Of course, he was not idle either. When Su Ko went to do things, he followed him in secret to see if he had tampered with his orders. After observing him for a period of time and seeing that he was lying on the rocking chair and doing his best to send his subordinates, He Chuan was basically certain that this person was not the crown prince's spy here. He could trust him. Although Glory City belonged to him, the people here did not have a good impression of him. From the commoners to the commanders of the army that guarded the city, none of them were familiar with him. The most important thing now was to gain the people's hearts, build a good relationship with these officials, and develop them into his trusted aides. As for their character, he would think about it later. The concentration of power was the most important thing. He Chuan knew very well that he could not command this group of people just by relying on his identity as a city lord and the title of Viscount. 
he had to do something that could conquer them. Therefore, at night, when the matter of leaving the city had come to an end, he Chuan called Su Ku over and asked him to bring a group of people to accompany him on his patrol in the city. It was already winter, and the cold wind was piercing to the bone. Su Ku wrapped his thick robe tightly and could not help but shiver. Looking at He Chuan who was walking in front, he could not help but complain. Your Highness, let's go back, it's too cold outside, your body is made of ten thousand gold. If anything happens to you in the cold, even if your subordinate dies ten thousand times, it will not be enough. There are soldiers guarding the city walls at all times. No birds nor beasts will fly into the city to hurt people. Are you very cold? He Chuan asked casually. Yes. Su Ku pretended to be miserable and sniffled, I'm almost freezing to death. If you're cold, those people are even colder. He Chuan did not look at him. His eyes stopped at a few houses that had lights, let's go and have a look. Su Ku followed reluctantly. The house they were going to was very small and old. A corner of the window was broken, and the wind was blowing into it. Looking through the broken window, they saw two elderly couples huddling together in a corner, covering their bodies with straw to keep them warm. The source of the light was a half-broken candle, which was placed on the ground next to them. They could clearly see that they were only wearing thin clothes on their thatched bodies. Every time the wind blew, their bodies could not help but tremble. At this time, they could only use their hands to protect the candle. While blocking the wind, they greedily absorbed the tiny trace of heat. He Chuan frowned deeply. After a few seconds of silence, he left without looking back. Su Ku and the others quickly followed, feeling uneasy. Chapter 63 He was a little flustered. To be honest, he wasn't moved at all when he saw this scene. But this prince in front of him couldn't be certain. He had lived in luxury since he was young and had lived in the most affluent imperial city for many years. It was impossible for him to have seen such a scene. With his shallow understanding of the prince, he would definitely be kind-hearted and unable to bear it. When the time came, who would be the one to vent their anger? It would be him. He might even be punished for his mismanagement. But could this be blamed on him? These people looked miserable, but in reality, they were the true portrayal of the people at the bottom. It was nothing out of the ordinary. In any other city, there were many more families like this. However, the blame that he had imagined did not come. Although He Chuan's expression looked a little grave, his tone was still calm as he asked, Su Ku, how are the supplies in the city now? Su Ku answered in fear and trepidation, there are not many reserves in the military camp, barely enough for the soldiers to survive the winter. We haven't had time to investigate the other places yet. If nothing goes wrong, most of them should have been taken away by the merchants. I understand. He Chuan nodded slowly, work hard tonight, ask the brothers to go to the warehouse in my mansion to take out dry firewood and charcoal. Send some to each house. We'll search the entire city tomorrow to determine the specific amount of reserves. Your Highness, you're not thinking of taking care of the civilians in G City, are you? Su Ku said tentatively, forgive me for being blunt, but it's already good enough that we can survive this winter. If we forcefully take care of these lowlifes, perhaps we won't even have to wait for the beast tide. Everyone will freeze to death and starve to death. Why are you talking so much nonsense? Take it from the people and use it for the people. If you're not willing to do it, step down yourself, I'll choose someone else. He Chuan frowned, showing his might without being angry. The domineering aura of an emperor from his previous life could not help but be released. Su Ku did not dare to say anything else. At the same time, he could not help but sigh in his heart. As expected of someone who had once been the crown prince. It was really rare to have such an imposing manner at such a young age. There was no more talk. He accepted the order and left, beginning to send his subordinates to do this matter. When the people successively received such warmth in the biting cold winter, they were all very surprised. No one had expected that the new city lord, who was a noble, would actually care about their lives and give out such precious resources. Although the amount was not much, it was enough for them to barely survive the night. However, this goodwill was silently engraved in their hearts. 
the impression of the people has increased. The final evaluation point has increased slightly. When He Chuan heard the news from the reincarnation seal, he knew that he did not do anything wrong. This was the right direction. The next morning, Su Ku appeared at the gate of the city lord's mansion and reported to him excitedly, as if something good had happened. Your Highness. The goods in the city have been counted. Tell me about it. Hee hee, it's all on the list. Su Ku took out a piece of origami paper from his pocket and handed it over, take a look. He Chuan received it and took a look. The first half was a letter, and the second half was a list of goods. Those merchants are really hiding deep. Su Ku rubbed his hands and smiled, they didn't even tell me that they left something for you. If we didn't find it, then it doesn't matter if Glory City still exists or not. When they come back, they can still take it away and continue selling it. If we find it, it will be given to you as a favor. He Chuan chuckled, merchants seek profits. Of course, they won't do a loss-making business. The goods that can't be taken away and my good impression, they'll at least get one of them. Su Ku gave him a thumbs up. Your Highness is indeed thoughtful, it seems that you've already expected all of this. He Chuan smiled slightly and didn't say anything. The content of the letter was probably to thank him for sending people to escort the group of merchants to Freedom City, so he especially left behind a large number of rice noodles and winter clothes. Su Ku thought that he was farsighted. But He Chuan knew that this was the butterfly effect brought about by the law of heaven, the law of karma buff of thousands of gold are gone and returned. It was quite interesting. At first, he thought that it was an immediate compensation for spending something. He did not expect it to be returned in this way. Although it came a little slow and he might not be able to find it, the biggest benefit was that he did not need to explain. No one would doubt him. Reasonable. Now it was a bit like an investment. It was a small gamble. Whether or not he could get the final profit depended on his own ability. Not bad. He Chuan liked this kind of challenging thing. Otherwise, with unlimited free resources, even a pig might be able to get an SS rank. Oh no, unlimited resources wouldn't gain a high rating. Doing so would instead be self-defeating. Unless one obtained resources and did not use them but hoarded them, then this buff would be meaningless. There was no need to think about this now. Satisfied. He Chuan's thoughts sank slightly, and he started to use his deduction ability. Continue to distribute resources, can activate the law of karma, thousands of gold are gone, reward received for distributing wealth, or return of kindness. Do not distribute resources, there are no special changes in the world timeline, waiting for the arrival of the beast tide. It was still the same notification. If he chose the former, he did not know when the reward would be given to him. If something unexpected happened along the way, there might not even be any emergency supplies. As for the latter, it was growing steadily, waiting for the arrival of the beast tide. The rich merchants left a lot of resources behind, giving them to the remaining citizens in the city. It would not be a problem for them to eat for a few months. He Chuan did not think for long before he resolutely chose the former. Continue to spend the wealth. He looked further ahead. The beast tide these few months was nothing at all. It was just a small stumbling block at the beginning of his arrival in this place. After he passed it, what should he do? He Chuan was very clear in his heart. Only by continuing to develop and making Glory City bigger and stronger was the fastest way to raise the final evaluation point. Hence, he issued an order. From today onwards, all citizens in the city could receive a certain amount of survival supplies from the city lord's mansion. This included the food and clothes that everyone needed the most. Once this news spread out, the entire city was in an uproar. Chapter, 64 Was Glory City rich? The answer was no, but it could not be completely denied. There was a time when Glory City was glorious, but now it had declined. So much so that for ordinary people, wanting to eat a full meal became extravagant hope, and wearing cotton-padded jackets became a fantasy. Therefore, while the people were shocked, they also had some doubts. Could it be that a wise city lord had come to Glory City this time? Was he thinking of them wholeheartedly? To be honest, 
they did not dare to believe it. That was because before this, the imperial court had sent officials and soldiers to escort a large number of supplies to aid Glory City every year. However, because the journey was too far, the beasts were rampant along the way, and there was the risk of being plundered by the mountain bandits. As a result, less than 10% of them would fall into the hands of the commoners of Glory City. Since the imperial court could not provide them with relief, they could only rely on themselves. However, the strange beasts were all around Glory City. Other than the experienced hunters who dared to go out to hunt some small wild beasts, it would be very difficult for ordinary people to return if they went out alone. Therefore, the lives of most people depended on the merchants who frequently came and went to sell goods. Working under them would earn them a meager salary. Then they bought living resources from these merchants. Originally, He Chuan sending all the merchants away had already cut off the livelihood of the people. Although they didn't say anything and didn't come to the city lord's mansion to cause trouble, they were only afraid that He Chuan would use this as an excuse to make a fuss. What if the city defense army arrested them? Then they would all be executed for plotting a rebellion. With one wave of operations, they would be able to reduce the loss of a large amount of food. Moreover, they could make an example of them and quickly build up their prestige. The civilians were not stupid. They had already fought with several city lords many times before. This level of scheming was not something trivial in their eyes. However, the development of things had exceeded their expectations. What did He Chuan mean by this decree? Was it for real? Does he know how many common people there are in the city? Giving it away like this? Not preserving the city guards anymore. No one was sure what He Chuan was thinking. After a discussion, they all decided to hide in the dark and wait and see what would happen. Last night small favor did not win the trust of the common people. Everyone was afraid that after taking the supplies, the new city lord would come up with some tricks to mess with them. This was a normal move, but in this special city, it was very sudden. No one dared to be the first to receive the supplies. This thought caused He Chuan to not see anyone outside the city lord's mansion for several hours after he gave the order. Everyone was still living at home, struggling for their lives. He Chuan did not know the reason, but he was not in a hurry. In any case, the food was there. Every day, he would cook a big pot of fragrant porridge and bring a rich side dish. If no one came, he would let the city guards eat, and it would not be a waste. Soon, a few days passed. Many people in the city had eaten most of the food stored in their homes. During the night when they could not eat their fill, the cold wind was even more piercing. Thus, on the morning of the sixth day, a little girl wearing a single garment finally stumbled from the end of the alley and knelt in front of the city lord's mansion to kowtow. City lord, I beg you to save my mother. He Chuan was not at the door. It was the guards who received her. The little girl's face was purple, her lips were white, and she looked like she had been frozen. The guards quickly followed the order that He Chuan had passed down earlier and brought her to a shed that had been specially built for distributing resources. They brought her charcoal and food. Eat something first, brother guard has already gone to call the city lord for you. The little fellow nodded heavily. Seeing the porridge in front of her as if seeing the timely rain in the middle of the drought, she immediately wolfed it down. Not long after, her body temperature gradually warmed under the orange-red glow of the charcoal, and her complexion became much better. At this moment, He Chuan, who had received the news, also rushed over. The guard timely introduced, Little girl, this is the city lord. When the little girl saw He Chuan, she hurriedly put down the bowl and chopsticks in her hands, knelt on the ground, and shouted. He Chuan squatted down and personally helped her up. He patted the dust on his trouser legs and asked kindly, what happened to your mother? Mother she ate a few wild mushrooms and then fell to the ground, motionless sob sob. The little girl wiped her tears as she spoke. When she said, motionless, she finally could not hold it in any more and burst into tears. He Chuan frowned slightly and glared, send a few people to her house and bring the child's mother over. Yes, your highness. The guards were even more respectful of He Chuan's identity as a prince. Not long after, they brought her over. He Chuan knew medical skills. After a careful examination, he found that there was not much of a problem. 
It was just that she had accidentally eaten a poisonous mushroom. However, the poison was not very strong and it did not harm her life. After getting someone to feed half a bowl of porridge, the little girl's mother immediately woke up. I where am I she said in a daze. The little girl threw herself into her arms and sobbed. Mother Kyer thought thought that she would never see her mother again. The woman comforted her child and looked away at the same time. Suddenly, she saw He Chuan. The woman was shocked and hurriedly knelt on the ground with her daughter in her arms, Greetings, City Lord. There's no need to be so polite. He Chuan had a faint smile on his face the entire time. It was like a spring breeze, don't eat anything recklessly next time. Sigh the woman sighed softly, if I wasn't so hungry that I fainted, who would be willing to take such a risk? He Chuan was a little curious, didn't I issue a decree? All citizens of Glory City can come to the city lord's mansion to receive all living supplies. Could it be that the news didn't reach you? The woman hesitated for a moment but didn't say anything. The city lord had just saved her, so it wasn't easy for her to voice out her doubts. He Chuan didn't force her and directly ordered his subordinates to move the supplies. Among them were four bags of wood, two bags of rice, a bag of flour, a quilt, and four sets of thick clothes. Apart from that, there were many other miscellaneous items that were necessary to survive this winter. If you don't have enough, you can come to me to get more. He Chuan sent someone to send the mother and daughter back. They had to make sure that they were safe and sound, he instructed, remember to hide the food, don't tell anyone. If anyone asks, just tell them that you only have firewood and a quilt. Be careful of others, nowadays, people who are extremely hungry are no different from wild beasts. The woman was stunned. Before they left, she hesitated for a long time and finally only said one sentence. Your Highness, you are a good person. He Chuan smiled. Chapter, 65 Ever since the rescue of the mother and daughter, similar incidents had occurred more and more often. They were a group of people who couldn't stand the hunger and had no other choice but to come over to test the waters. When they saw the white grain in front of them, it would be a lie to say that they weren't excited. However, He Chuan gave these people a smaller share. Other than the standard of wood and bedding, which was the same as that of the mother and daughter, the food was given out daily. Want to eat your fill? Then come to the city lord's manor on time and report. He Chuan deeply understood that humans were lazy animals. Only pressure could force them to move forward. They could not give out all their food at once. Although the people were wary, as ordinary people, how could they expect to reach this level? After making sure that He Chuan did not have any tricks on the surface, they were delighted, and their respect for He Chuan also rose. As more and more people received favors, the reputation of He Chuan among the people in the city improved day by day. Now that they could eat and wear well, the overall crime rate had dropped a lot. It was also at this time that everyone's lives gradually returned to normal. They began to contribute to the construction of the city. However, most people had nothing to do because of the departure of the businessmen. Only a small number of people with special skills gathered together and spontaneously formed a team under He Chuan's jurisdiction. Among them were hunters who were familiar with hunting and could move in the forest. Under the guidance of He Chuan, the city lord, they went out of the city to collect wood and other materials. On one hand, they could store them so that the people in the city could keep warm when they needed them. On the other hand, they could also let other people who had nothing to do create city defense traps outside the city. Although it was unrealistic to use these things to fight against the strange beasts of this world, He Chuan's main purpose was to spread his wealth. There was no point in keeping resources in his hands. Only by spending them would he be able to obtain a greater profit. However, if he often walked by the river, how could his shoes not get wet? On a calm winter day. As usual, a hunting squad was searching for usable firewood in the forest not far away from Glory City. They didn't dare to cut the wood. The noise would attract the attention of the exotic beasts. By then, no one would be able to escape. They could only search carefully for the fine firewood buried in the snow in the white world. But today wasn't their lucky day. After going deep into the forest for some time, the snow fell heavily. Almost every second, countless snowflakes fell, 
covering the footprints they had left when they came. Some experienced hunters sensed the danger. If this went on, they might get lost in the woods. They had no choice but to finish their work early and return to Glory City. But an even more unfortunate thing happened. They didn't know when, but an unknown beast had already set its eyes on them. Its body was tall and mighty. Its tail alone was two meters long, even thicker than a child's body. Its head was abnormally fierce, and its sharp teeth were exposed. It was even stained with dark red blood and minced meat, making people shudder. No one would doubt whether it had the ability to pierce through its own bones. Such a huge creature was blocking their way back, ready to attack at any time. The hunters were stunned. Weren't strange beasts very territorial? They wouldn't easily leave their own territory, much less enter the territory of other creatures. How could they encounter such a strong exotic beast in such a place not far from Glory City? Could it be that the beast tide was ahead of schedule? This thought gave them a fright, but they couldn't panic now. Only with enough reason could they survive in front of the strange beast. Don't panic. Don't turn your back on it, stand up straight. A middle-aged man was the first to speak, there's blood on this beast's mouth. It should have just finished eating not long ago, perhaps it won't make a move on us. Follow me and slowly retreat. Everyone followed his instructions. As expected, the strange beast still had some misgivings when faced with the cautious actions of so many people. From time to time, it would let out threatening roars, trying to scare away one or two cowards, and then tear the group in front of it into pieces from its weak point. But the result disappointed it. Those who could stand here were all experienced hunters. More or less, they had all experienced similar situations. Their mental fortitude was strong enough, and they knew how to deal with it. Even if they were scared to death in their hearts, they could still maintain a relatively calm appearance, and wouldn't be a burden at the crucial moment. As time passed, the group of people shuttled back and forth in the forest. They tried to use this method to exhaust the patience of the strange beast and give up on the hunt. Unfortunately, the strange beast didn't seem to want to leave just like that. It had been following closely in the dark. The snow was getting heavier and heavier, and their vision started to become blurry. The hunters only realized later that they had lost their way. No, we have to find a place to hide from the snow. The middle-aged hunter made a prompt decision. He looked around and said, if we follow the mountain wall, we should run into a cave at that time, we'll use thorns to seal the entrance of the cave and set up a bonfire to scare this beast. The other hunters all felt that it was feasible. However, someone still raised a question. What if there are strange beasts in the cave as well? Then wouldn't we be feeding them directly to the mouths? Most of the exotic beasts living in the cave are currently in hibernation. We just need to be careful. What if it's not a hibernating strange beast? If our luck is really that bad, then we'll just accept it. The middle-aged hunter glanced at him, are we going or not? If there are any objections, we'll go our separate ways. The person who answered could only grit his teeth, all right. The strange beast was extremely fast. It was impossible for them to escape. Thus, a dozen or so people slowly advanced along the dark cliff. The strange beast was still lurking in the nearby forest. Although it didn't show itself, everyone knew that it definitely hadn't gone far. Not long after, they finally found a cave they quickly drilled into it and set up a defensive structure in the shortest time possible. As the bonfire lit up, the pungent smoke formed a barrier, protecting the hunters in the cave. Sigh. Everyone looked at the strange beasts outside that didn't approach them and heaved a sigh of relief. They should be fine now. And, let's explore the situation inside the cave first and see if there's any other way out. Two people, come with me. Wait, what do you think that is? A young man suddenly pointed to a certain spot in the cave. The others all looked over. There seemed to be something flickering with the light of the fire, reflecting a weak luster. Was it the eyes of a strange beast? Chapter, 66 Two days passed in the blink of an eye. The city was still as calm as before. Outside the city lord's mansion, the food that the people needed for that day was distributed as usual. 
He Chuan stepped on the city wall and looked down at the scenery outside the city. His mind kept deducing, trying to find a good way to resist the beast tide. At this moment, Su Ku ran up. Your Highness, something has happened. He panted and said, a team of hunters hasn't returned for two days. There's no news at all. Have you sent people out to look for them? He Chuan asked. The mountain is sealed by heavy snow now. The roads are very difficult to walk on. The people we sent out haven't returned either. He Chuan frowned slightly. This matter was a little difficult to handle. If the city guards were dispatched to clear the snow on the roads and receive the hunters, doing so would have the risk of attracting the strange beasts. However, if they were allowed to do nothing, the prestige that they had just accumulated in the hearts of the people might be completely gone. What should they do? In the end, just as he was feeling troubled, the city lord's manor started to make trouble first. An old man rushed to the food distribution center, pushed aside the people who were queuing up, and shouted angrily. You bunch of heartless bastards! All of you have hands and feet, how can you have the nerve to take this food? Yes, you have eaten your fill and are warm. What about the soldiers guarding the city? Cough cough what about the city lord? You bunch of blood-sucking worms cough cough why can you take things for free with a clear conscience? Cough cough cough. Because he was too emotional, the old man kept coughing and clutching his chest with a pained expression, so much so that he could not speak the rest of his words. The people next to him immediately surrounded him and reached out to support him. In the end, they were forcefully pushed away by him. The dirty hands that have taken the city lord's things do not have the right to touch me. These words caused many people to be dissatisfied. It's not like we didn't help the city lord. The traps outside the city and the renovation of the houses in the city, which of these things were not done by us? That's right. Old sir, I respect your age and don't want to quarrel with you. Just ask a question, do we not have the right to even eat a full meal after doing so many things? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm afraid that some people don't have the body to do things and are too embarrassed to eat, so they want to drag everyone along with them. Faced with such accusations, the old man's attitude remained firm. Idiot, what an idiot. Do you really think that the city lord needs you to set up traps? Repair the houses? When the beast tide arrives, will those wooden toys be able to withstand a slap from the strange beasts? Ah! What if the city falls? So what if these houses are as beautiful as a landscape painting? Won't they still be in ruins? The reason the city lord did this was to make you feel at ease and not develop the habit of slacking off because of this relief. Are you really using chicken feathers as an order? His words rendered everyone speechless. Could it be that it was really like what this old man said? The city lord was doing this for their own good so he let them use the method of doing things to exchange for food? Thinking about it carefully, it seemed that there was indeed such a possibility. After all, who could exchange two hours of work for a day's rations? This was something that didn't exist when they were working under the hands of merchants in the past. Old man, you're right. At this moment, someone walked to the front of the crowd and looked at the food in his hands with reluctance. Then, he put it on the table in the grain storage. I'm not eating this food. Leave it for the soldiers guarding the city. Before the soldiers who were putting food on the table said anything, the people behind them came forward one after another and put back the food they had just received. I can't take these clothes either. The soldiers have worked so hard outside and fought so hard for us. How can we let them fight with only their clothes on? And me. At this moment, He Chuan and Su Ku, who were alarmed, rushed over from the city wall. However, when they saw this scene, they were a little dumbfounded. What was going on? They didn't want relief. Were these people stupid? Weren't they all starving? Weren't they all freezing in the middle of the night? They were already in such a miserable state, yet they still returned the things to them. They didn't want their lives anymore. Moreover, it was fine if one or two of them did this. What the hell were they doing if all of them didn't want it? Then how was he going to get the return? The city lord is here. A voice suddenly came from the crowd. Instantly, everyone turned around and silently retreated to both sides, making a wide path for Hichuan. 
At the front was the old man. When he saw He Chuan, he immediately knelt on the ground in fear. This commoner dares to openly disobey the city lord's orders. I don't ask for forgiveness, please punish me. He Chuan was a little helpless, old man, why are you doing this? The old man gritted his teeth and said what he was thinking. There are no eggs left intact after a nest is overthrown. These people who only care about themselves and only care about the people in front of them can't understand. How can an old man like me who has half a foot in the coffin not understand? Sir, listen to this commoner's advice. Don't give out any more supplies. When the beast tide arrives, whatever you do will consume resources. If you don't save up now, you won't have the chance to save up in the future. If all the soldiers guarding the city die, how many more days can we commoners live? The beast tide is coming menacingly. Once the city is breached, we will all be buried with Glory City. He Chuan nodded slightly. He finally understood what the old man was thinking. It was nothing more than thinking of using steel on the blade. Ordinary people like them who did not go to the battlefield should not waste too many military resources at this time. However, what He Chuan wanted was to waste. What he wanted was to squander. He immediately said righteously. Soldiers protect Glory City, not for this piece of land, and certainly not for me. They are protecting you, the common people who live on this piece of land. If you are not here, what's the difference between this city and a dead city? What's the point of us protecting it? Hearing this, the old man's eyes were already filled with tears, but he still wanted to stick to his point of view, but city lord. He Chuan directly interrupted him and said sternly, I'll give it to you, just take it. Don't make me angry over this small matter. I have my own ways to resolve the military's resources. The old man fell silent. In the end, he still did not dare to disobey He Chuan, who had come from the imperial family. When the people heard these words, the gratitude in their hearts could no longer be described with words. Where else could they meet such a wise and considerate city lord? Unknowingly, the seed of loyalty had already been buried deep in their hearts, waiting for it to take root and sprout. Congratulations on unlocking the, the virtuous peep achievement, your evaluation has been raised slightly. Chapter 67 A familiar notification sounded. It was still a small reward. This made He Chuan understand that managing the civilians in the city was not enough to give him a high rating. He still had to start from many aspects. After returning to the city lord's manor, he started to prepare the relevant matters. However, before he could start his deduction, the leader of the militia came over and said that he had something important to tell him. Only then did He Chuan remember that a group of hunters had gone missing. After asking, it was indeed this matter. But it wasn't a bad thing. On the contrary, it was a great thing. That group of hunters had been chased by strange beasts on their way to hunt. They had accidentally come to a mountain bandit's cave there was a large pile of food and military armor inside, but there was no one guarding it. If nothing unexpected happened, it should have been plundered by the bandits and hidden here. However, due to the heavy snow sealing the mountain or the threat of strange beasts, they were unable to take it away. In the end, they were able to take advantage of the situation. Now, all the resources had been brought back to the city by them. When He Chuan went over to take inventory, they would be able to use them at any time. When the militia leader spoke up to this point, the corners of his mouth curled up into a wide smile. He was extremely happy. The city lord was truly fortunate. Whatever he lacked, the heavens would be able to give him. With such a batch of supplies, let alone spending this month, even spending this winter would not be a problem. Let's go and take a look. He Chuan's mood was also much better. He knew that this was a reward from the heavenly law. He did not expect to save this group of hunters along the way. This saved him a lot of trouble. When he arrived at the square in the center of the city, he took a look. Whoa! It was indeed a large number of resources. Boxes of all sizes took up almost half of the space in the square. According to the captain of the militia, this was not all. Almost half of the resources were left in the cave and had been sent to be transported. He Chuan looked at the list that had just been calculated. After roughly knowing the amount of the resources that were returned this time, 
he began to reward the meritorious subjects. After all, someone else had found the materials on the surface. A small portion had to be given to the hunters who had lost their way in the forest. Everyone received the rewards they deserved. Especially the middle-aged hunter who was the leader. He received three times the number of materials and a piece of land as compensation. The result of doing this directly aroused the motivation of more people in the city. They all joined the militia and wanted to do more for Glory City. At this moment, Su Ko suddenly ran over and whispered a few words into He Chuan's ear. He Chuan frowned slightly. He immediately asked the militia captain to continue to coordinate the transportation of the resources while he and Su Ko left in a hurry. When they walked further away, there was no one around. He Chuan slowly opened his mouth. Is what you said true? Your Highness, it's absolutely true. Su Ku slightly bent his body and carefully said, The military camp is now in chaos, I suspect that a few leaders are planning a rebellion. He Chuan suddenly stopped and looked at him thoughtfully, Then why did you come to tell me? Aren't you the chief of the military staff? In other words, the relationship between the leaders and you is definitely not bad. What made you give up your years of friendship with them and choose me? Your Highness Su Ku smiled bitterly, I don't have any friendship with them, it's just a show. Everyone wants to rope me in, but I can't follow anyone. You want to find someone with more power as a backer? No, I really want to follow your highness. Su Ku's expression suddenly changed. He said obsequiously, although you don't control the military power in the city now, with your ability and identity, it's easy for you to control these few small commanders of Glory City. He Chuan smiled and didn't say anything else. He continued to walk forward. Basically, he could rule out the possibility that Su Ku and the few commanders had set him up. To be honest, with his current strength, he really had to be more cautious and not put himself in danger. Therefore, after he came to the city's military camp entrance, he didn't go in directly. Instead, he let Su Ku go in and spread the word, asking the commanders of the few legions to come and see him. Glory City had a total of four legions. They corresponded to the names of the four city gates of the Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise. Among them, the Azure Dragon Legion commander had the greatest contribution and formed his own faction. He had more troops and horses than the other three legions combined and held the position of commander of the four legions. However, there were also divisions of powers in the military camp. Although the Azure Dragon was the strongest, the other three legions never listened to his commands. They were led by the White Tiger Legion, who had been supported by the past city lords. For many years, they had been fighting against the Azure Dragon Legion. There was no other reason. In the end, it was because the character of the Azure Dragon Legion was not good. Denial. Independence. Not only did they like to criticize the soldiers of the other legions, they also used their positions and power to take advantage of their position. They took up more than half of the resources that were allocated to the camp every year for personal consumption. Almost every day, they lived luxurious life. As the saying went, if the upper beam is not upright, the lower beam must be crooked. No matter how great his achievements were. If he started to drift after sitting in this position, it would lead a large number of people astray. His subordinates were also addicted to enjoyment like him. The rules of the military camp were lax and lawless. There were even people who forced women of the city. Such a way of doing things naturally caused the other three corps commanders to be dissatisfied. Both sides had a long-standing grudge, but because they were both generals of the empire, they did not dare to clash with each other. Su Ku was well aware of the open and hidden conflicts between the two forces. Therefore, when He Chuan sent him in to spread the news, to be honest, he was also in a bit of a dilemma. Which commander should he inform first? This was a small, but very serious question. No matter who he went to first, he would be ostracized by the other side. But on careful thought, it didn't matter. Just call over two soldiers and let them spread the word for him. In the past, he might have been disgusted by the commanders on both sides. But now, it's different. He defected to He Chuan. He Chuan is the prince. The city lord. Just try to disgust me again. Chapter, 68. 
So, when Su Ko led the four commanders out of the military camp. Their gazes were all focused on He Chuan. Looking at his slightly immature face. One of the commanders couldn't help but smile contemptuously, then he said in a strange tone, I didn't expect the city lord to be so young, but he can't even walk a few steps. To think that the brothers even prepared good wine and delicious food for you in the tent, but you didn't have the fortune to enjoy it. When Su Ku heard this, his back instantly broke out in a sweat. FCK. How disgusting. The first thing he said was to start a fight. Aren't you hinting to the city lord that I was the one who told you to come out to welcome him because I said he couldn't walk? What the FCK is wrong with you? When did I ever say that? He Chuan on the other hand. He didn't seem to care at all, or he didn't seem to be able to tell. He asked in a flat voice. Who are you? These three simple words were full of contempt. It directly made the other party embarrassed. A few seconds later. He looked a little angry as he snorted coldly. Not only did he not introduce himself, but he also didn't bow either. Instead, he questioned. I've risked my life to guard this glory city for the city lord, but I didn't expect that you couldn't even remember a name. If other soldiers heard this, who wouldn't be disappointed? At this time, Su Ku came over and whispered, Your Highness, this is the Azure Dragon Commander. He Chuan understood. He knew this person's character and didn't think highly of him, so he said indifferently, then you should feel cold. As he spoke, he turned to look at the other three people, do you feel cold? One of them looked at the defeated Azure Dragon commander and couldn't help but smile. He took a step forward and cupped his hands in salute. Your Highness has just arrived at Glory City, it's normal that you don't recognize us. We definitely don't think that way. I'm Lin Cheng, the commander of the White Tiger Army. Greetings, City Lord. The other two commanders also stood on the same level as Lin Cheng. I'm Fu Chen, the commander of the Vermilion Bird Army. Greetings, City Lord. I'm Han Baan, the commander of the Black Tortoise Army. Greetings, City Lord. He Chuan nodded in satisfaction, very good. Since that's the case, from next month onwards, your salaries will be doubled and your soldiers will be given priority in the distribution of resources. The eyes of the three of them lit up. This city lord was capable. He was really giving them something. They knew very well that this was a move to win them over and also to give a slap. They were the ones who won them over and the Azure Dragon Commander was the one who was slapped. As expected. Now, the Azure Dragon Marshal's face was as black as coal, and his anger was obvious. He suppressed the anger in his heart, he asked fiercely, City Lord, isn't this inappropriate? Why are the three legions given priority in resource allocation? Aren't my Azure Dragon Legion soldiers too? Do I have to line up behind the commoners in the city? Are you teaching me how to do things? No, I just want to remind the City Lord. The Azure Dragon Marshal did not even call himself a subordinate. He narrowed his eyes and said, If there is a rebellion due to the lack of resources, I cannot bear this crime. Are the resources given to you not enough to eat? The Azure Dragon Marshal replied, The Azure Dragon Legion has the most people, and they have to bear the most military affairs. If there is an accident because they do not have enough resources, how are they going to deal with this? He Chuan smiled. To put it bluntly, he felt that there were too few resources and wanted more quotas. And he even threatened him in the open and in the dark. How despicable. Did he think the new city lord did not know that the Azure Dragon Marshal liked to corrupt? Interesting. Looking at He Chuan's faint smile and without the desire to reply, the Azure Dragon Marshal was furious. City lord, the supplies of the army is not a small matter. I hope that you will consider it carefully. If you really let it go and cause a rebellion, I cannot bear this responsibility, and neither can the vice generals in the legion. If that's the case, why don't we return to our hometown and become a commoner waiting to die? The smile on He Chuan's face grew wider. Oh, did this mean that if he did not agree, he would leave with the core members of the Azure Dragon Legion? TSK TSK TSK. He Chuan still did not reply immediately. He silently deducted in his mind. These marshals, did they count as his property? 
Very quickly, the deduction system reported back. Disbanding the army was also considered to be a form of giving away money. It could activate the law of karma and there will be a return. Moreover, letting him leave with his direct line of descent would be more beneficial for him to reorganize the forces in the barracks. It would be a good thing for Glory City. Hence, he Chuan grinned. All right, then I'll allow it. When the Azure Dragon Marshal heard this, he was happy. Hee <laughs> hee, the little brat still wants to fight with me. If I want you to give me resources, you have to obediently give me resources. If I want you to do something, you have to do it. Who does the city lord count as? Does he have military authority? Does he have the ability to order me around? Wouldn't I be able to control you with just a flick of my finger? The contempt in Green Dragon Marshal's eyes deepened. He said with a fake smile, Then thank you, city lord, just send someone to deliver the resources to the barracks later. Someone will come to meet you. What supplies? He Chuan pretended to be surprised. The Green Dragon Marshal frowned, didn't you say that you would send more resources? When did I say that? Didn't you say that you were going to retire and return to your hometown? What does it have to do with resources? He Chuan looked at him with disdain, look at you, you're not very old, could it be that you're suffering from dementia at this age? Ha 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 ha. The other three marshals laughed out loud. They stood at the side in a comfortable position and started to watch the good show of Green Dragon Marshal. You! Green Dragon Marshal said in disbelief, you want me to leave the military camp? You are the one who wanted to leave, everyone heard it. Don't slander me. He Chuan corrected his words. The Azure Dragon Marshal was furious. He gritted his teeth and said fiercely, do you know what will happen if I leave the Azure Dragon Legion? I know, it's just a group of people, it doesn't matter. He Chuan looked at Su Ku, come, Chief of Staff, help the Marshal to handle the dismissal. Remember to ask him to report the name list first, don't miss a single one. All right. Su Ku happily agreed. The development of this matter was too interesting. Chapter, 69 The other marshals who had been watching the show were all shocked. The Azure Dragon Marshal who had stayed in Glory City for more than ten years was going to leave because of a few words. You must be joking, right? None of them expected it. The Azure Dragon Marshal himself was even more surprised. He had clearly only used this method to coerce the young city lord in front of him in exchange for benefits. Why did this person act as if he didn't understand human language and really agreed? FCK. If I leave, how will you defend the city? Don't you know that with a wave of my arm, more than half of the Azure Dragon Legion will leave with me? Relying on the other three garbage legions to defend? What are you thinking? Can you stop the beast tide? He really didn't understand. Why would he Chuan actually nod his head and agree? This was great. Originally, he wanted to establish his authority and make this city lord unable to step on him. But now, he actually made himself unable to step down. Could it be that he really didn't want the martial position anymore? To be honest, he couldn't bear to part with it. But if he acted shamelessly, how would he be able to stand in the army in the future? Wouldn't the other three marshals laugh at him to death? The Green Dragon Marshal gritted his teeth and steeled his heart. He felt that he couldn't take this lying down. Damn it, so what if I left? Am I afraid of you? Just treat it as a temporary departure. Wait until you discover that the military camp can't do without me in two days. Let's see how you're going to beg me to return. With this thought in mind, the Azure Dragon Marshal took off his armor and helmet on the spot. He called for someone to help him organize his personal belongings in the military camp and prepare to leave immediately. Don't regret it. Before he left, he even said some harsh words. At this moment, after hearing the news, the clerks in the city rushed over to urge him to stay. Marshal. You can't leave. What will happen to Glory City if you leave? What will happen to the civilians in the city? Yes, Marshal, anyone can leave, but you can't. City Lord, you can't do this. I'll say this today, if you insist on letting the Marshal resign, I won't do this anymore. I won't do it either. If the Marshal leaves, Glory City won't be able to hold on. 
what are we still doing here? Waiting to die. When the Azure Dragon Marshal saw these people coming over to speak up for him, he smiled smugly. His expression looked like he was provoking He Chuan. Did you see that? There were so many people who didn't want me to leave they were all high officials in the city. So what if you're the city lord? Don't tell me you're going to kick us all out. Then you, as the city lord, are probably going to die in name only. He Chuan didn't say anything and was laughing happily. What the hell? What were these people doing? Were they still the people working under him? They usually did not show their faces. Who would have thought that when something happened to the marshal of the military camp today, they would be blown out instantly? Now, everyone knew that they were on the same side. If he didn't clean up all of them, wouldn't Glory City belong to them in the future? TSK TSK He thought that it would take a lot of effort to remove the Azure Dragon Marshal's faction. He didn't expect these people to jump out on their own. However, before he could say anything, Su Kuk couldn't sit still. He felt that He Chuan, a young prince, had never seen so many people trying to force their way in the palace. In order to prevent His Highness, who had just relinquished, unable to withstand the pressure, he took a step forward and stood in front of everyone. Everyone, this matter was not instigated by the city lord. If it wasn't for the marshal's aggressive attitude, it wouldn't have come to this. It's fine if you want to redeem it. First, let the marshal admit his mistake. As for the final decision, it will depend on whether your highness is satisfied. Su Ku's words were already very biased. He was completely on the opposite side of the Azure Dragon Marshal. If the other party did not step down this time, he would probably suffer a lot as the chief of staff in the army in the future. This also made He Chuan look at him in a new light. He did not think that this seemingly cunning middle-aged man would really show loyalty. He thought that this person would only be able to take advantage of the situation and maintain a neutral attitude from beginning to end. When Green Dragon Marshal heard this, he was even more displeased. He had always wanted face, and it was in front of so many people. How could he give in? If you have the guts, then kick me out, you will bear the consequences yourself. The other civil officials also expressed their stance at the same time. If the Marshal were to step down, they wouldn't be officials anymore. This group of people looked as if they were certain of Hichuan's action. They were certain that he wouldn't dare to lay a hand on their group of important officials. But the result was completely out of everyone's expectations. It's impossible to take back what was done, it's the same with words. He Chuan chuckled, since you have such deep feelings for the Azure Dragon Marshal, then please leave together. As he spoke, he paused for a moment before adding, Oh right, since you're leaving, leave more thoroughly. Since you guys aren't from Glory City anyway, just go back to your hometown. Don't stay here, I don't want to waste resources to support you guys. Crack. The group of people were all stunned. They looked at each other. They could see the shock and surprise in each other's eyes. Especially, the Azure Dragon Commander. The smile on his face froze. It turned into extreme surprise and disbelief. He really wanted to chase him away and they wouldn't let him stay in the city anymore. Was this kid a hothead? But no matter how much he couldn't believe this was the truth, He Chuan ordered the Marshal of the Three Legions, White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise, to send people to send them away. After this, the barracks also became chaotic. From the Centurions to the Sergeants, all of them wanted to leave with the Marshal. It had to be said that after so many years of hard work, the soldiers of the Azure Dragon Legion only listened to his commands. They were not very appreciative of He Chuan, the city lord. Based on this situation, the marshal would probably take half of the legions away with him. However, He Chuan didn't care. He didn't care about that. He had the buff to protect him, so he would make up for these losses. It all depended on whether he could find it or not. He believed that with the help of the deduction system, it wouldn't be a big problem. Chapter, 70. In the blink of an eye. More than half of the soldiers in the barracks left. The enormous Azure Dragon Legion soldiers did not take much time to leave the other marshal could not help but feel a little sad seeing this scene. The strongest legion had left, so this glory city could it still be defended? Should it still be defended? 
to be honest. Although they had never been on good terms with the Azure Dragon Marshal and had constant friction with each other. However, when faced with such an external crisis, they did not want the city's defensive forces to be reduced to such a degree. Putting aside the factions, they were all soldiers guarding the city. However, up until now, there was only a sergeant standing outside a tent, and he had never moved. One person. The mighty army was now only guarded by one person. It would be laughable if word got out. He Chuan slowly walked forward. Aren't you leaving? The sergeant immediately bowed. Reporting to the city lord, I am a soldier of Glory City, not a soldier under the command of the Azure Dragon. He Chuan raised his eyebrows, you really think so? The other party nodded heavily. This morning, when that old man in the city was causing trouble, I was there too. He is my father. After listening to what you said, I have decided that you are a good city lord who truly serves the country and the people. Worthy of my lifelong loyalty. As he spoke, he suddenly knelt down on one knee and cupped his fists, Sir. As long as you give the order, I will die without a second thought. After hearing his words, the few marshals standing not far away looked at each other and suddenly felt they might lose their positions because of this. At that moment, they no longer thought about those miscellaneous things. One by one, they went forward and knelt on one knee like the sergeant, vowing their loyalty. The captains and deputy generals of the legion also ran over and expressed their positions. All right, this is your own decision, He Chuan replied helplessly. At this point, the power of the remaining three legions in the military camp had been taken by He Chuan. However, everyone understood that all of this was only temporary. Everyone present was clever. They knew how to judge the situation. At this time, they were standing on He Chuan's side not because of his identity as the city lord but his title as a prince. They were counting on He Chuan to ask for reinforcements from the imperial court. He Chuan did not consider what these people were thinking. He asked Su Ku, the military chief of staff, to distribute all the armor he had just harvested to the remaining three legions to strengthen the military strength. Since this thing was of no use to him, he might as well give it away and activate the law of karma to get more returns. Such a generous act naturally made the three marshals very satisfied. More or less, they gained some trust. After that, the atmosphere in the military camp was unusually easygoing. The vicious fights that frequently happened in the past never happened again. Everyone stayed in their posts, each doing their part and doing their best. Not only that, after Glory City lost that batch of civil servants, it seemed that their efficiency in handling government affairs had increased significantly. Many invisible obstacles had been reduced. This time, Su Ku finally understood. It turned out that all of this was within His Highness' expectations. He had long guessed there was a spy among the civil servants sent by the Azure Dragon Marshal to infiltrate the internal affairs. Taking advantage of the Azure Dragon Marshal's request for resources this time, he took advantage of the other party's character flaw and directly pushed the boat with the current, driving out all the army's pests. By doing so, not only he gathered the army's morale but also made those who stayed behind feel a sense of belonging to Glory City. Moreover, they could use of the resources they had just obtained more effectively. They would be able to avoid being embezzled by people like the Azure Dragon Marshal, so as to fill their own pockets. It was really killing two birds with one stone. Su Ku was deeply shocked. Initially, he thought that the prince, He Chuan, who had been pampered all year round, had a bad temper. He disregarded everything and wanted to bring down the Azure Dragon Marshal, who had dissed him. Ultimately, he did not expect his seemingly unintentional and casual move to bring so many positive effects behind the scenes. No wonder it was said that accompanying a monarch was like accompanying a tiger and the emperor's heart was like the sea. He had to think twice before doing anything. He did not seek to figure out the emperor's intentions but only hoped he would not make a mistake in it. Looking at it now, it was not an exaggeration at all. After all, he was once the crown prince. Although he is no longer the crown prince, his intentions are not something that a small subordinate like me can guess. Su Ku sighed softly. Thinking back on what he had done, he started to feel lucky again. Yups. He did not do anything wrong. 
his choice was not wrong at all to follow his highness. In the next few days, the soldiers in the army were all familiarizing themselves with the newly distributed weapons and equipment and researching new battle strategies. In case they were not used to the battlefield when the time came. The remaining three legions in the army were not small either. Although the White Tiger mainly led the Vermilion Bird and Black Tortoise, in reality, they were still in charge of their affairs due to their lack of energy. This made them look like a pile of loose sand. He Chuan had to find a new marshal to prevent the situation from happening. Initially, he was going to choose one of the three marshals. After that, he would nominate someone from the next rank to replace the vacant marshal position. However, after he understood it, he realized that. Whether it was the Vermilion Bird, Black Tortoise, or even the White Tiger Legion, they all had the same characteristic. That was stability. This was not within He Chuan's considerations. Stability meant they could only have good command ability and not make mistakes in battle. However, their overall view of the big picture was not enough. They were not the type of strategic talents. The position of marshal required one to have a view of the big picture. If one did not have the ability and forcefully occupy it, it would only delay military affairs. He Chuan had no choice but to announce throughout the city. He welcomed everyone to bring out talents and let those with talent come out to benefit everyone. There were no conditions and ages restriction. There were no requirements. If you had the ability, you could be the marshal of one of the three armies. This kind of appointment model was unprecedented. In everyone's eyes, it was very new. Hence, countless people responded. The applicants lined up from streets to alleys to the city lord's manor gate. They all came to join in the fun, from an 80-year-old man to an 8-year-old child. Even Su Ku volunteered and eagerly came to do the test questions he Chuan gave. He wanted to see if he had the honor. In the end. Among the people who came to do the written test. Not even a single one passed. Chapter, 71 Even he Chuan himself did not expect this result. Was the question that difficult? It was not that difficult right? The deduction was based on his own standard to create the test question. How could no one pass it? Could there be a mistake? With the thought of the test, he did it himself. Then, Yi Chuan scored 87 out of 100. It was considered an excellent result. But it was not considered top-notch. It meant that there was still room for improvement. It was impossible that no one in Glory City was better than him in leading troops, right? Hence, he waited for another day. But the result still disappointed him. Among the people who came to take the test, there were not many who could reach 70, let alone 80. If even he could not surpass it, how could he lead the three legions? He Chuan had no choice but to put this matter aside for the time being and continue to look for ways to spread his wealth. There were still a lot of resources in the city. Especially the military. Due to the departure of the Azure Dragon Legion, even if the remaining three legions had two sets of equipment, their armors and weapons would still pile up like a mountain. It was too wasteful to leave these resources to rust. He had to think of a way to use them up. He Chuan did some calculations and the result was that he could let the experienced hunter team bring the materials to Freedom City. He could contact the merchants who had benefited from He Chuan and sell these surplus resources. He did it as soon as he thought of it. He Chuan immediately called Su Ku over and told him about this matter. My lord. Your highness. Please don't. Su Ku was shocked, we finally saved some resources in our hands, we can't sell them. It doesn't matter, if the old ones won't go, the new ones won't come. You have to learn to be willing to part with them. He Chuan smiled faintly, just do as I say. Su Ku scratched his head and still wanted to say something, but seeing He Chuan's determined expression, he didn't dare to say it and felt very uncomfortable. He Chuan could not help but laugh. If you want to say something, just say it, I won't punish you. Su Ku was still a little hesitant, then your highness, make a promise. Stop talking nonsense. Either do something or say it, choose one yourself. Sigh. I'm going all out. Su Ku had no choice but to pat his thigh to cheer himself up and then slowly say his thoughts. 
Your Highness, why are you doing these thankless things every day? Selling resources is easy to say, but do you know how difficult it is to do it? The previous encounter with the mutated beasts had already left many people with lingering fear. Now, everyone doesn't dare to leave the city too far to search for resources. It's still unknown whether the hunters have the courage to bring the goods out. Moreover, even if there are fearless hunters who are willing to travel with goods and successfully arrive at Freedom City, will they come back after exchanging the goods for gold coins? You can't trust the consciousness of these people too much. Su Kuk talked a lot. He Chuan heard it, but he didn't care much. What he wanted was the result of these hunters not coming back. To spread one's wealth, of course, one had to lose before one could get their wealth back. Doing business was called an equivalent exchange, it wasn't a loss at all. If it could be done, it didn't matter. Not only was money easier to carry than goods, but it could also be exchanged for what one wanted. It was more widely applicable. Along the way, it could also verify the loyalty of the hunters to him and the attitude of the merchants heading to the Freedom City towards him. Killing two birds with one stone, why not? Thus, Su Ku only saw He Chuan's enigmatic smile. After saying a lot of thoughts, seeing that the prince in front of him did not express any opinions, he could not help but feel uncertain. Am I thinking too much? The probability of these things happening is very small. Or maybe I'm too short-sighted. His Highness already knows how to deal with the follow-up matters. Although Su Ku was a little unsure, he still could not understand. Why did he feel that His Highness was still confident in winning even though these very realistic questions were placed in front of him? Was it an illusion? He hesitated for a moment again. He Chuan did not answer his questions. He patted the chief of staff who had just served for a short time, smiled lightly, and left. Don't think too much, just give the order. Su Ku looked at He Chuan's retreating figure and sighed. He had no choice but to do as he was told. That afternoon, the news spread throughout the city. There was nothing he could do. Not everyone in the militia was a hunter. And the number of hunters was not large. It was impossible to transport so many goods. Therefore, they could only use the method of a hunter leading the group and letting ordinary people follow them to transport the goods together. There were very few people who responded. Everyone knew how terrifying the strange beasts were, and no one dared to run around at this time. In the end, it was the people in the militia who volunteered, and in the end, a group of a few hundred people was assembled. It was the same as the original escort of the merchants. Everyone left in batches. While avoiding being wiped out by the strange beasts, they also reduced the risk of being discovered. Along the way, the White Tiger Legion's marshal, Lin Cheng, also sent his own direct line of soldiers to escort them. This was what Su Ku had requested. On one hand, it was to prevent the militia from never returning. On the other hand, it was also to ensure their safety. After changing out of their worn-out battle armor, they were now wearing new equipment, and their strength was no longer the same as before. As long as they formed a battle formation, it wouldn't be a problem to defend against the attacks of ordinary strange beasts. Using it to escort the supplies team out could also increase the chances of success. By the time all the hunter teams left, it was already late at night. Lin Qing dragged his tired body back to his own home. While eating, he talked about this matter with his sister, and his heart was filled with emotion. I don't know what the current city lord is thinking, he's really unpredictable. As he spoke, he picked up a piece of food and put it into his sister's bowl, eat slowly. Brother, Big shots always have their own ideas, let's do our things well and not make mistakes. His sister smiled and reached out to touch the table several times before she finally caught the chopsticks. You're right. Lin Qing then took her other hand and placed it by the side of the bowl. Then, as if he suddenly remembered something, he asked, Sister, don't you often read those braille books at home? How's your learning going? I don't know his sister's expression didn't change much, she said in a calm tone, I've been staying at home and have never gone out, I don't know anyone, it's useless to know this knowledge. I have a test question that the city lord personally came up with, do you want to try it? N brother, read it to me. Okay. Listen carefully, the first question, if you. Chapter, 72. 
Lin Ching read the questions one by one, letting his sister answer them one by one. What surprised him was that not only did his sister answer the questions smoothly, she didn't pause when answering. Moreover, the way she solved the questions was all in directions he had never imagined. Unique. Unique. It was as if she looked at every question from everyone's standpoint. Wasn't this what the city lord meant by looking at the big picture? Lin Cheng was a little annoyed. If I had such a brain, wouldn't the position of Michelle be in my hands? However, on second thought. It was also a good thing that his sister had such an ability. Why not let his sister give it a try? However, Lin Cheng hesitated as soon as the idea was born. He sighed slightly as he looked at his sister's lifeless eyes. His sister was exemplary in every aspect. She was beautiful and delicate, and her personality was gentle like jade. She was gifted with talent and insight far beyond the average person. Logically speaking, she was a very dazzling existence wherever she went, but she was blind. Lin Chang's mood became a little depressed when he thought of this. However, out of selfishness, he still asked his sister how she felt about the current city lord. The blind sister nodded lightly. He is a very good and very powerful person. He dares to give up on business and has the willpower to open the granary to save the city's citizens. He even dared to force the marshal of the three armies away before the beast tide arrived and disarm half of the army. Now, the one with abilities have a chance, letting everyone have the qualifications to become a marshal. Everyone will rely on their abilities, which will be fair and just. Among the past city lords, no one can compare to him in terms of controlling people or controlling the situation. He is worthy of our loyalty. Lin Cheng was stunned for a moment. Looking at the worship on his sister's face while narrating, he was a little confused. Sister, what you said why doesn't it sound like a good thing? Is it that great? Of course, brother, can't you tell? The blind sister's expression became serious, and she said thoughtfully, letting the merchants leave to separate the classes and remove the basic conflicts. They don't care about the losses in the army, but they still want to open the granaries. It's to capture the people's hearts and make everyone stand on the same line. Forcing the marshal of the three armies away is because the Azure Dragon Legion's reputation isn't outstanding. After being kicked out, they can make the barracks return to their hearts and no longer fight amongst themselves. Everything he does has a deep meaning. It's all for the good of Glory City. How can it not be great? Lin Ching fell silent. He really didn't think so much. He initially thought that this city lord was so young and didn't know how complicated the world was. When he encountered a matter, he would just casually handle it. Who knew that there were so many mysteries behind this? Shallow. He was thinking too shallow. Lin Cheng sighed and felt a little ashamed at the same time. He didn't expect that after being a marshal in the army for so many years and being supported by successive city lords, his understanding of matters was even worse than his blind sister, who had always stayed home. Sigh. He was a little embarrassed to return as the White Tiger Corps Marshal. However, Lin Ching ultimately discovered his sister's ability after this incident. He immediately asked her if she wanted to meet the city lord. Not to mention the position of a marshal of the three armies, at least it made her ability shine. The blind sister naturally agreed happily. She was initially very interested in this city lord, who had an unusual way of doing things, so she would accept such a request. So, early the following day. Not long after He Chuan woke up and was about to review the messy matters that had piled up in the city over the past few days, Lin Cheng brought his sister to visit him. After a brief introduction, He Chuan also knew why the other party had come. He did not mind the blind sister's physical flaws or that she was a woman. He completely ignored the rules of the military that did not recruit women. He very seriously took over the answers recorded by Lin Cheng's blind sister and read them carefully. Through the deduction system, he got a shocking score. In other words, the blind sister's answer was 97% perfect in the deduction system's eyes. This was definitely a terrifying result. Perhaps there would not be a second person like this in the entire city. No. Not the entire city. Perhaps there would be very few people in the entire dynasty who could be on par with the blind sister. 
It was said that when God closed a door for you, he would open a window. It was indeed the case. The blind sister who had lost her vision was far more thoughtful than an ordinary person regarding this level of imagination. He Chuan naturally would not hide her ability. However, the battlefield was ever-changing. The marshal needed to make corresponding judgments based on the situation. In this regard, the blind sister lacked the conditions to achieve it. After discussion, He Chuan decided to make Lin Qing the new marshal and manage all the legions. At the same time, his sister was given the title of military advisor and displayed her skills on the sand table. Both of them were very satisfied and knelt to express their gratitude. He Chuan casually helped them up and turned to talk about the most significant problem they were facing. Beast Tide Miss Linya, you should know that the strength of the Beast Tide is not something that can be dealt with by ordinary means. I know very little about it, and I'm currently worrying about it. Do you have any suggestions, miss? Lin Cheng, who was standing at the side, clenched his fists. The city lord's test was a little too big. What if his sister could not answer it, or if she could not answer it satisfactorily, wouldn't her position, which had just been verbally assigned, be revoked again? Lin Ya only pondered for a moment before she began to answer. I think that there are three steps to deal with the beast tide. Oh. What three steps? He Chuan followed the conversation and asked. First, use the Awakened as the vanguard to cut down their edge. Second, equip the Heavy Shield Legion with magic cannons set up at the back of the battle formation to cover the attack. Third, to use resources obtained in a war to support that war. Lin Ya was beaming with joy. Her three sentences were sonorous and powerful as if she had built a vast world in her mind. Chapter 73 as she narrated, He Chuan gradually understood what Lin Ya meant by the three strategies. The first two were easy to understand. While the Awakened were in charge of the attack, they would also develop magic cannons as defensive tools to assist in the fight against the Beast Tide. The last one was a little more complicated. To put it simply, the Beast Tide didn't come all at once. Instead, it was divided into many waves. The timing was uncertain, and the quantity was uncertain. Since it was such an invasion pattern, they could accumulate resources in the battle as the defenders. For example, they could sell beast meat to Freedom City in exchange for gold coins, and then buy military supplies and even defensive weapons. As long as they could do that, it would become easier and easier to defend in the future. However, the beginning was always the hardest. Putting aside how to deal with the first batch of strange beasts, the city didn't have any awakened ones needed for the first step. That's right, not a single one. If it were any other city, an awakened one wouldn't be a particularly rare existence. After all, the recovery of spiritual energy had been going on for dozens of years. Although the cultivation technique wasn't complete, there were quite a few people who had successfully awakened. Otherwise, the strange beasts would have long occupied the territory where humans lived. However, the current situation in Glory City was the awakened ones weren't willing to come to this place that was considered a dead city to die. This also made the first step very difficult to carry out. Without the awakened ones, there was no way to form a vanguard force that could threaten the beast tide. If the beast tide rushed directly to the city, even if magic cannons were developed, the shells wouldn't be able to cover it. Lin Ya made a suggestion. Near Glory City, there was a dojo that operated in a gray area. They used a medicine called Hanshi Powder to stimulate the human body's potential. Together with the guidance technique, they could cultivate in a state similar to awakening. Such people were called pseudo-awakened. The difference between awakened and pseudo-awakened was that the awakened had innate special abilities. They could either control fire or create frost, but the latter didn't. Even so, the pseudo-awakened possessed extremely powerful physical combat strength and could fight head-on with strange beasts. As long as they bought the Hanshi powder and obtained the guidance technique from the dojo, a large batch of pseudo-awakened would appear in the city to strengthen its defenses. However, Hanshi powder was considered a prohibited drug in the country. Not only was it prohibited from being sold, but it was also challenging to obtain. The price had always been high in the black market. The current state of the city's treasury was simply unable to afford it. 
Linya had no other choice at this point. These problems were not things that she could handle. She could only hand them to He Chuan, the city lord, to handle. He Chuan thought for a while but was not in a hurry to solve these strategic difficulties. Instead, he pulled Linya and asked her some more questions about martial artists. To him, these were even more crucial. Perhaps he could find clues to perfect the tyrannical true cultivation manual. Unfortunately, he was disappointed. Linya knew very little about this. She only combined some of the information she had heard from Lin Cheng with the knowledge she had obtained from the Braille book and came up with a hypothesis. She didn't know precisely what the awakened system in this world was like. Lin Cheng did not know either. He was not awakened and had never left Glory City. His knowledge of the outside world was limited and he could not help He Chuan. He Chuan had no choice but to deal with the current matter first. He was short of money. He did not know how the people who went to Freedom City were doing. Where would the rebate come from if they did not bring back the money? He Chuan shook his head. This matter couldn't be rushed. He could only wait slowly. Wait for the opportunity to come one day and make him rich in one go. This was the only way to continue the plan. Thus, two days later, the day was still going on smoothly. However, the strange beasts outside Glory City roared more frequently. It seemed that the food in the mountain forest was harder to find. As a result, those dangerous existences began to stir and had the idea of hunting the creatures in the city. The beast tide might arrive soon. The militia went out more cautiously. Everyone was very nervous. They were afraid that the battle horn would sound at the next moment. It was also at this time that the hunters who went to Freedom City to trade returned. Chief of Staff, Su Ku, came to report at the first moment. The wealthy merchants in Freedom City were very generous, and when they heard that the merchant team was assigned by He Chuan, they directly used their connections to increase the price of the military supplies and sold them to the two neighboring countries that were at war. The profits were extremely bountiful. However, because the merchants had taken 20% and they suffered losses on the way, they only got a little more than 60%. Even so, they still filled up the treasury that was lacking money at the moment. With such a large sum of money, the original plan could be started. Immediately, Lin Cheng ordered his troops to prepare to look for the dojo in the gray area. I don't know if this counts as a rebate. If it doesn't count, then there should be more profits in the future. Before he left, He Chuan suddenly thought of this problem. The loss on the road and the merchant's share should count as his loss. Logically speaking, he should be able to trigger a rebate. However, by selling it to a neighboring country, it was already a huge profit. The transaction price far exceeded the market price, and it was even more than the rebate from before. It didn't make sense. He might as well ignore it. Perhaps he would gain something from this trip. What he needed to consider now was the expedition. It was very likely that it would attract the attention of the strange beasts. However, according to Lin Cheng, it would be fine after they walked out of this forest. Further away was a natural Gobi Desert. The environment was extreme, even strange beasts rarely set foot there. As long as they reached there, they could basically march freely without any worries. Hence, under He Chuan's orders, the army was split into dozens of batches and dispersed out of the city. At that time, they would gather at the designated location. Chapter 74 In the mountains, strange sounds rang out continuously, and the cries of beasts rang out incessantly. In the face of a potential crisis, everyone was walking very cautiously. He Chuan's team was full of elites, including Lin Cheng and his sister, as well as the remaining two corps marshal and the chief of staff, Su Ku. Apart from that, the ones escorting them were also the elites of the military. Their strength was robust, and they could resist even one or two strange beasts. However, whether they were there or not wouldn't affect the efficiency of their journey. After all, it was impossible for them to be attacked by any strange beasts in front of Hichuan's deduction system. But the other teams might not be so lucky. Hichuan had brought out 8,000 people this time, but when they arrived at their destination, only about 6,000 people came one after another. If nothing went wrong, a large portion of the people who didn't come would never be able to arrive. 
The remaining people were trapped, waiting for an opportunity to escape. He Chuan couldn't wait for everyone to gather before making his move. After leaving a few people at their station to wait, he led his troops to the depths of the Gobi Desert. No one on the team knew the exact location of the dojo. They could only rely on He Chuan. The deductive system had to have enough information to make subsequent judgments. He first found a vantage point and observed the entire Gobi Desert. It was not difficult to know where the dojo was. Where there were people, there had to be water. He just needed to find where there was water. Then, He Chuan analyzed a wave of knowledge he had learned in school, and with the help of the deductive system's verification, he found the place most likely to be the dojo's location. They immediately rushed over, but when they reached the top of the hill and looked down, they saw an unexpected scene. This was indeed a good location for the dojo. However, at this moment, the pseudo-awakened who lived here were surrounded by a group of bandits. It was a bit funny to say that they were robbed by the bandits, who were ordinary people. Lin Cheng looked carefully and suddenly said in surprise, isn't that the Azure Dragon Legion? Indeed, I didn't expect they would be reduced to such a state after not seeing them for a few days. It seems like they want to seize the dojo's territory. Su Ku also saw through it. Then, he looked at He Chuan and asked, Your Highness, what should we do? Should we go down and take a look or wait and see? Let's go directly. He Chuan chuckled, by helping the dojo resolve the crisis, we might be able to borrow the guiding technique that Miss Lin Yat talked about. If we wait and see, they might not give it to us. The few of them smiled knowingly. On the field, the Azure Dragon leader raised his spear and faced the dojo's door. Don't be stubborn. I am the leader of Glory City's Marshal. I came here today just to reorganize the army. If you don't open the door and receive my order, no one in your dojo will survive. His attitude was very unyielding and arrogant. Relying on the army behind him, he directly spouted nonsense. He did not hide his meaning of, if I want it, you have to give it to me. The people in the dojo were not fools. As awakened ones, even if they were fake, they were all outstanding people. They were as smart as monkeys. How could they not guess the intentions of the Azure Dragon leader? However, there weren't many people left to guard the dojo. Although they had some strength, the strongest dojo master was still in seclusion, so it was impossible for him to come out and assist them. Once they started fighting, even if they could defeat these troops, their side would suffer heavy losses. This was the best case scenario but the possibility of all of them being wiped out was higher. Therefore, no one dared to act rashly and could only wait. However, the Azure Dragon leader's patience was clearly very limited. After hearing that there was no movement inside the door, he immediately sent troops to charge. With a loud bang, the door did not move at all, as if something hard was pressed against the back. The Azure Dragon leader was furious and immediately ordered the archers to simultaneously fire tens of thousands of arrows. When the people in the dojo heard the commotion, they immediately retreated to the back of the building. However, at this moment, there was a commotion behind the Azure Dragon Legion. Miserable cries and cries of alarm were heard continuously. At first, the Azure Dragon leader didn't notice it and was about to give the order. However, a small soldier at the back stumbled over and bumped into his horse. Then, the armor on his body scratched the horse's body, causing the horse to be frightened and directly throw the Azure Dragon leader to the ground. FK the Azure Dragon leader cursed. With the help of a few people, he stood up and lashed out with his whip. Then, he shouted angrily, What are you panicking for? Men! Drag him down and beat him twenty times. The small soldier was scared out of his wits as he sat on the ground in a daze, not knowing what to do. The few deputy generals beside him tried their best to stop him. They wanted to know why the small soldier was so flustered. After asking, they were all dumbfounded. An invasion from outside? Well equipped? Really? At this moment, shouts and killing could be heard everywhere. Not only at the back of the battle formation but also many flags on the side of the mountain. At a glance, there were at least 10,000 of them. What was even more frightening was that many unknown troops in black armor were already charging over and surrounding them. Although there weren't many of them, 
when combined with the flags of the small troops on the mountain, it was a very oppressive feeling. When He Chuan's group of people slowly walked over, the Azure Dragon leader could no longer hide the shock on his face. How could it be you? Why can't it be us? Su Ko laughed, seeing such good equipment, are you envious? Are you jealous? You didn't expect this, right? This is all thanks to you. If you hadn't left, we wouldn't have been able to let everyone wear such good equipment. The Azure Dragon leader was highly jealous but still refused to admit it. I don't have this much equipment. What a joke. I, the Azure Dragon Marshal, have never lacked resources. Lin Cheng was expressionless, you've already removed your position as Marshal and are now wandering outside. How dare you call yourself the Azure Dragon Legion of Glory City? Lin Cheng. Stop acting like a wolf. The Azure Dragon leader shouted angrily, when I was leading the army in battle, you were still playing with mud. Do you have the right to talk to me? If he doesn't, what about me? He Chuan smiled and took a step forward, it's really fate, Lord Leader. I met a stray dog like you when I was out for a walk. The Azure Dragon leader gritted his teeth, who do you think you are? A brat who is still wet behind the ears. Don't think you are great just because you became the city lord. Over the years, the city lord has changed over and over again. But look, when had the position of Azure Dragon Marshal changed? Impudent. Su Ku snorted coldly, you dare to be rude to his highness and speak so arrogantly. Do you know that this is a crime worthy of beheading? Ha 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 ha. The Azure Dragon leader laughed loudly, his highness. You think he's still his highness after being demoted to Glory City? Don't make me laugh, alright? Why don't you go out and ask around? Who doesn't know that staying in Glory City meant a dead end? Chapter, 75 Su Ku and Lin Qing frowned, feeling that things were not simple. What do you mean? Su Ku asked. What do I mean? He he. The leader of the Azure Dragon sat back on the horse, turned the horse's head, and gave everyone a meaningful and sarcastic smile, you'll know when the time comes, let's go. You want to leave? Have you asked the sword in my hand? Lin Cheng shouted. Instantly, thousands of soldiers around him shouted in unison and pulled out their swords at the same time. For a moment, the sound shook the sky. It gave the soldiers of the Azure Dragon Legion a fright. The Azure Dragon leader himself was a little apprehensive. To be honest, he didn't dare to fight. Ever since he left Glory City, his army had been attacked by strange beasts several times. They had no choice but to break into pieces and flee for their lives. Right now, less than one-tenth of his army was gathered under his commands. Moreover, they were a tired army. He had even lost a lot of his original weapons and equipment. White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise, the three legions that were originally far inferior to him, had now changed into uniform armor. It looked like they were forged from the very rare black-scaled element. It was said that weapons forged from this material could easily cut through the thick and tough outer skin of strange beasts. When made into armor, it could even withstand heavy attacks from strange beasts and still remain intact. In theory, as long as a person could withstand the powerful force of the strange beasts hitting the armor, they could rely on the armor and weapons forged from the black scale to kill strange beasts one on one. Such excellent equipment was incomparable to the old Azure Dragon Legion which was in a sorry state now. Once they started fighting, they would be giving themselves up. Immediately, the Azure Dragon leader had the intention to retreat. But on the surface, he still pretended to be calm. Not letting go. He narrowed his eyes, think carefully. Although my troops are not as well equipped as yours, they are not existences that can be easily controlled. If you fight with me, when you lose your troops and generals, it will only make Glory City fall faster. You. Lin Cheng was extremely furious, but he knew that the other party was right. Moreover, he wasn't the one who could make the decision. Even if he was angry, he couldn't make a huge mistake just because of a moment of impulse. Hence, he turned his head and looked at He Chuan, following the city lord's opinion. Let them go. He Chuan waved his hand lightly. Humph, at least you know what's good for you. The Azure Dragon leader left without turning back, leading the vast army behind him. 
It was obvious that he was afraid. However, he still refused to admit it. Su Ku and the others were all filled with anger. Looking at his back as he left, they all came to He Chuan's side. Your Highness, we let him go just like that. Su Ku hesitated for a moment and reminded, raising a tiger will lead to a disaster. Lin Cheng was also very supportive of this. He cupped his fists and said, Your Highness, as long as you give the order, I will lead a thousand troops and bring that bastard's head over. He Chuan glanced at him, Do you really have the ability? Lin Cheng hesitated for a moment, Two thousand troops. As long as there are two thousand troops, I will definitely live up to Your Highness' expectations. It's useless even if I give you five thousand men. He Chuan shook his head slightly, the older the ginger, the spicier it is. He has been the Azure Dragon Marshal for so long, he won't be completely useless. As he spoke, he sighed softly. Actually, he also wanted to destroy the Azure Dragon Legion here to save himself some trouble in the future. However, according to the deduction system's judgment, if he really did that, the success rate would be less than 10%. Although he didn't know the exact reason, He Chuan wouldn't doubt the accuracy of the deduction system. He didn't want to take such a risk. Moreover, the most important thing now was still the three strategies that military advisor Linya had developed. Obtaining the guiding technique was the most practical thing. Coincidentally, the people in the dojo had learned of the Azure Dragon Legion's departure. After having a conversation across the area, they also learned that He Chuan's group was the True Glory City Legion, and even the City Lord was among them. However, the troublesome thing was that the people in the dojo were more cautious and still did not open the door. Although they were grateful to He Chuan and the others for helping them out, it was still a different matter. The dojo was not open to the public. Now that the dojo master was in closed door cultivation, they could not make the decision. Fortunately, when Lin Cheng and the others felt that they were going to return empty handed, a burst of hearty laughter came from the depths of the dojo. Ha 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 ha, the city lord of Glory City has graced us with his presence. Please forgive me for not welcoming you. In the next moment, an old man with a long beard suddenly appeared in front of everyone. His clothes fluttered in the wind, as if he was a fairy or an illusion. Just by standing there, one would feel that he was unfathomable. He Chuan did not act arrogantly. He cupped his hands and bowed according to the rules of this world, Senior, you are too kind. We are here because we have something important to ask of you. All right, all right, all right. If not for the city lord's help, I'm afraid that my dojo, which I have been running for many years, would be in a mess now. The old man stroked his beard, if you don't mind, the city lord can come to my dojo to discuss it. As he spoke, he walked back to the dojo. With a wave of his sleeve, the door opened automatically. He Chuan was about to enter when Lin Cheng and Su Ku pulled at him at the same time. Your Highness, be careful. Your Highness, this person is unfathomable. If he harbors ill intentions, you'll be in danger if you go. Lin Ya, who was beside him, had a confused look on her face. She still did not know what exactly had happened. He Chuan smiled calmly, it's fine, wait for me outside. Take the army and station them somewhere else. Tell Miss Linya about the surrounding environment. If the Azure Dragon Legion returns, she will be in charge. Lin Cheng and Su Ko looked at each other. They did not dare to disobey He Chuan's orders, so they could only grit their teeth and agree. Then, He Chuan slowly walked into the dojo. The moment he stepped through the door. Bang! The wooden door fluttered without any wind and closed tightly. Su Ko was still a little worried. That old man's skills are really strange. Will something happen to his highness if he enters just like that? Since things have already come to this, it's useless to talk about this anymore. Lin Cheng shook his head and looked around. Then he said, let's go to the mountain and guard. Send people to keep an eye on it at all times. Once there's any movement in the dojo, we must save the city lord at all costs. Chapter 76 how should I address you, my young friend? Inside the dojo, the dojo master stood by a tree and waited quietly. He Chuan answered politely and then told him the purpose of this trip. Senior, 
I came to visit this place because I heard that there is a unique guiding technique that can help people become awakened. I wanted to borrow it. I wonder if it would be convenient. Guiding technique? The hall master was slightly surprised and asked, City Lord, don't tell me you want to use Hanshi powder to awaken your subordinates. Dojo master, you have a sharp mind. He Chuan did not hide it, the beast tide is coming. If I want to protect Glory City, this is the only way. Good. The dojo master looked at He Chuan with appreciation. He waved his hand and called a few disciples from the hall to prepare the things He Chuan needed. After He Chuan thanked him, he asked another question. Senior, can you tell me about the origin of this pseudo awakened one? Of course. The dojo master smiled amiably. The path of cultivation in the world starts from the recovery of spiritual energy, it starts from the appearance of the awakened one, but ends here. Why is that? He Chuan asked at the right time. You'll have to ask your emperor father. The dojo master's gaze was deep, and he did not say much, everyone has their own destiny. Wealth and honor depend on heaven. Those with outstanding talent become the awakened ones that everyone admires, but most people are ordinary people with mediocre talent. They can only spend their lives doing nothing and become the victims of this era. Oppression, bullying, and starvation are everywhere. Under such circumstances, there are naturally people who resist. The world is so big. In the end, there are still a few ordinary people who are not so talented, but are exceptionally lucky to become one of the awakened. They are different from some ambitious people. They have no intention of becoming the rulers of the dynasty. They are dedicated to the common people of the world and work hard for countless ordinary existences. While those lofty and arrogant awakened people are working hard to study cultivation techniques and strive for the title of first place, they are researching how to make ordinary people become awakened. It was under such circumstances that the Wuji Dojo appeared. He Chuan frowned. He was a little curious about what his cheap father had done, but this Dojo master didn't make things clear, which made him feel a little uncomfortable. However, as the other party narrated, he gradually understood what kind of situation the awakeners and pseudo awakeners in this world were in. At the same time, he also understood what kind of enormous existence this Wuji Dojo was. It was no exaggeration to say that no matter how barren or how dangerous the regions in this world were, they still existed. Including this place, it was only a branch of Wuji Dojo. The headquarters would allocate resources according to the quality and number of awakened in each region. No wonder Hanshi powder was classified as a prohibited drug. With such a large force lurking in their empire, who wouldn't guard against it? Coincidentally, a few disciples who had been arranged to help Hichuan prepare Hanshi powder and the guiding technique returned with the items in front of him. Hichuan took a quick look. According to the experience from his two previous lives, there was still a lot of room for improvement for the Hanshi powder and the guiding technique. After improvement, they might not be so called pseudo awakened after consuming them. This thought could not help but make He Chuan excited. If he could mass create the awakened, would it still be difficult to defend the city? The answer was no. Without saying anything else, he directly requested a quiet place from the dojo master, indicating his intention to comprehend the guiding technique. The dojo master was also very straightforward and gave up his own room. He also instructed that without He Chuan's request, no one was allowed to enter and disturb him. In the blink of an eye, several days passed. He Chuan did not eat for a few days in a row. He only drank some water and continued to carry out high intensity deductions. Under such painstaking efforts, the optimized guiding technique was finally completed. As for the Hanshi powder, his body was unable to withstand the pressure and he had to rest for a while before he could continue. He Chuan brought the guidance technique to the dojo master for him to review. Hmm. This is. At first, the dojo master didn't pay much attention to it and thought that He Chuan was simply returning it to him after reading it. However, after flipping through a few pages, he saw something completely different from what he remembered. What what is this? A modified version of the guiding technique? Wait. What kind of cultivation method is this? How come I've never heard of it before? The dojo master's expression changed from calm to shock, 
then from shock to surprise, and finally to stupefaction. After a long while, he finally believed the truth. The guiding technique that had been leaked from the main dojo and claimed to be unchangeable in this generation had actually been modified by a teenager. Moreover, it was extremely perfect. It was several times stronger than the original guide technique. No. Several hundred times. Even though it was hard to believe, the truth was right before his eyes. He had only tried the cultivation method recorded in the book, and in an instant, he had ingested much more powerful spiritual energy than before. Such a performance was really too exaggerated and too surprising. He didn't understand. How could a young man who wasn't awakened be so capable? After thinking about it, he could only attribute it to the saying that talent between humans was different. At that moment, the dojo master had no choice but to pay attention to this young man. Upon hearing that he could improve the formula of Hanshi powder. Without saying a word, he asked people to supply the extremely expensive and rare Hanshi powder to the maximum extent of consumption. Moreover, he gave up the alchemy room in the dojo that was exclusive to him which no one ever set foot in before for He Chuan to use. This kind of treatment was unprecedented. At first, there were some disciples in the dojo who were not convinced. But when the improved guiding technique was made public, their attitudes immediately changed 180 degrees. They directly transformed into He Chuan's guardians. They gave him food and drinks every day. If He Chuan encountered a trivial matter, they could immediately rush over and take care of it along the way. Two days later, he Chuan brought the purified Hanshi powder out of the alchemy room and successfully awakened an ordinary person who had just entered the building and had not yet become a pseudo-awakened through the old channeling technique and Hanshi powder. Everyone was dumbfounded. What did they see? Hanshi powder guiding technique. Could create an awakened. Chapter, 77. How is this possible? The dojo master's confused and confused gaze kept wandering around He Chuan and the disciple who had just become awakened. His mind was a little confused. Was this real? Was he dreaming? When he saw the innate ability glow on the awakened disciple's body, the dojo master fell silent. He had to accept this fact silently. He didn't say a word. Looking at He Chuan, he couldn't help but feel dejected and defeated. Each generation was more powerful than the last. The dojo master didn't expect he had studied the awakening method for more than ten years without making any progress. Today, it was done by a young man who had just come of age. In the end, it was still. Sigh. How did he do it? The dojo master could no longer describe his feelings with words. Faced with such matters beyond his knowledge, it seemed that he did not even have the right to speak. He wanted to ask, but he was too embarrassed to ask. What if He Chuan said, is it difficult? And then explained a bunch of things that he did not understand. What should he do then? Pretend to understand when he doesn't. Forget it, forget it. Dignity was more critical. His face would look even uglier if he were exposed. The crowd was filled with exclamations. Many people had already gathered around He Chuan and asked him a few questions one after another. Everyone was concerned about whether people like them, who were pseudo-awakened, would have the chance to become awakened after taking the upgraded Hanshi powder and cultivating the modified guiding technique. He Chuan gave them the answer. No. He even imparted to them the cultivation method he had developed over the past few days. Whether it's an awakened or a pseudo-awakened, the difference is only reflected in the innate ability. In fact, the point is to rely on spiritual essence to improve oneself. Improve where? How to improve quickly? Many of you are confused about this, so much so that you are blindly strengthening your physical strength, trying to make a breakthrough in the simplest and most violent aspect. What about the result? Do you have a chance of winning if you meet an awakened? At this point, he Chuan swept his gaze across the crowd to see their reactions. Among the group of several hundred people, everyone had heavy expressions. Only a few of them had relaxed expressions. It seemed that they were the only lucky awakened in this dojo. They had never lost when sparring with others on a daily basis. He Chuan paid attention to this detail and instantly thought of more things. 
looks like what I said is right. However, don't be too happy for the few awakened ones. I think using the same cultivation method as the pseudo-awakened ones to train your body without thinking is a complete waste of your talent. Immediately, the expressions of those few people became awkward. The feeling of being called out and criticized was really uncomfortable. But they had no way to refute. Who asked this man in front of them to use only a few days to refresh everyone's understanding? Whether it was improving the Hanshi powder formula or optimizing the guiding technique. Either of these two requirements, even if placed in the entire world, there might be no one who could achieve them. In the past, if someone brought up such a topic, everyone would only treat it as a fantasy. But now, such a legendary existence was standing before them, teaching them how to cultivate. Who dared to say anything more? Then, He Chuan slowly began to narrate. He poured everything that he could think of into everyone present. Everyone was silent, and the expression on their faces gradually became focused. Even the dojo master was abnormally engrossed in listening. He kept using his fingers to write on his palm as if he was taking notes. As someone who was ranked first in both strength and talent in the field. The dojo master had to admit that listening to He Chuan's words greatly benefited him. It was novel and impressive. In short, He Chuan divided the power level of this world into nine sections, starting with one and the highest being nine. With each increase in level, the power level would be five times stronger than in the previous section. After some multiplication, the power could reach nearly 400 zero zero times. It was said to be the limit that this world could bear. Thus, a level 1 awakened was no different from an ant in front of a level 9 awakened. And people who cultivated by absorbing spiritual energy were generally divided into two types. Martial cultivators and spiritual cultivators. These were two branches of cultivation. As the name implied, the former cultivated martial arts and specialized in the physical body. The latter specialized in the control of spiritual energy and specialized in innate abilities. It sounded like these were the pseudo-awakened and the awakened in the past. However, in reality, the awakened in the past were not specialized. They loved to increase the strength of their physical bodies. It was as though if their bodies did not have strong muscles, they could not protect themselves. As a result, the strength of innate abilities did not increase for a long time. What's more, even the way he used it was wrong. For example, in the dojo, an awakened managed to crystallize his body. He was directly used as a negative example and was dragged onto the stage for a demonstration. Originally, this person used the crystallized part as a shield to resist the damage. However, he Chuan had taught him how to use the crystallized part to refract light and achieve the effect of invisibility. Other than that, he could also gather the intensity of the light and shine it on the eyes, instantly blinding the other party. From He Chuan's tone, this was still the way to use it at the initial stage. When his control ability improved and his crystallized body reached 100%, there would be even more miraculous derivative abilities. To be more precise, it was the way to use it. This was a path that the Awakened One had never thought of. It was to the extent that it instantly transformed him into He Chuan's diehard fans. They followed behind and asked questions crazily. There were two other Awakened in the hall, and they weren't too different either. It was as if they were seeing this world for the first time, and there were countless questions to ask. The remaining pseudo-Awakened were also eager to give it a try. They were also very eager to learn. As martial cultivators, could they possess the power to contend against the spiritual cultivators? When He Chuan was free, he gave this group of people an accurate answer. Yes. The pinnacle of martial arts was to become immortal and shatter the void. At that time, even if spiritual cultivators possessed the power to destroy planets, they wouldn't be able to cause any harm to this kind of martial cultivator. Of course, that was a power that could only be possessed in higher dimensional worlds. He Chuan only gave out this idea to let everyone long for it. Hence, the reincarnation mark also gave a precious notification because of his teaching. Gaining a rich life experience, evaluation points has been increased. Chapter 78 Although the improvement this time wasn't much. But for He Chuan, it was the first step to opening the door to a new world. He believed that in the near future. 
when more people accepted his theory, it would usher in an even greater wave of gains. At that moment, after settling the matter at hand, He Chuan didn't plan to stay any longer and prepared to lead his troops back to Glory City. The dojo master wanted him to stay for two more days to discuss his cultivation experience. However, He Chuan rejected him with the beast tied as a reason. The dojo master had nothing to say. He generously asked his disciple to bring out another batch of Hanshi powder. After modifying it according to the new formula, he passed it to He Chuan. He Chuan did not stand on ceremony. He had mixed a lot of private goods into his improved guiding technique. It incorporated many of the subtleties of the tyrannical true cultivation manual. Getting some resources wasn't a big deal. After the dojo master sent He Chuan off, he stood at the door and looked around for a long time before sighing slightly. This favor can't be repaid. The stronger a person was, the more they didn't like to owe others a favor. It was easy to become obsessed during cultivation, causing one to feel depressed and unable to break through. The dojo master's thoughts changed slightly, and he suddenly thought it through. Wouldn't it be okay if he just handed over the hanshi powder and the guiding technique to the main hall? This wasn't a favor that he alone owed. It's time to go back. The beast tide is just around the corner. Although this place is remote, it might not be safe. At this moment, a horn sounded from the edge of the cliff. The army was about to leave. His gaze was deep as he looked in that direction. The thought of taking He Chuan away suddenly appeared in his mind. Every two seconds, he shook his head gently. He Chuan did not hold anything back from them and taught them everything. Such a selfless person would not let the people of Glory City be in danger. Little friend He Chuan, I wish you a safe journey. I'll see you again when you come back. In the blink of an eye, the army passed through the Gobi Desert and returned to the mountain forest. Once again, they were divided into smaller groups. On the way back, He Chuan paid attention to his surroundings while recounting his gains from this trip. After reading the guidance technique, he got the inspiration and felt he could perfect the tyrannical true cultivation manual and allow it to be spread and used to cultivate in this world. Perhaps he could even awaken and obtain an innate ability to play with. It didn't matter if he didn't awaken it. Once he had the strength, there would be no restrictions on his travel. At that time, he would be able to do even more things. Your Highness. At this moment, Lin Cheng and Su Ku rushed over from behind and caught up with the team. They arrived at He Chuan's left and right sides. The two of them looked at each other and hesitated. He Chuan stared straight ahead and asked casually, Did you mess up? Su Ku scratched his head, Not really. You asked the soldiers to record the terrain around the city as much as possible. However, after they come and go twice many places have not been explored. I'm afraid it will be difficult to make the sandbox. No worries. He Chuan waved his hand gently. It's good that you have a general idea. Treat the empty spots as a gathering place for the beasts to guard against. After the magic cannons are produced, it will be easier to deploy the cannons in the city defense area. Sigh, it's just that the sacrifices are a little too big I'm afraid that more than a thousand people have been killed in this exploration. Lin Qing sighed, looking a little pained. He Chuan didn't say anything. Lin Ya, who was standing at the side, suddenly frowned and said, Brother, these sacrifices are all for the future. The magic cannons are extremely heavy, and moving them in the middle of a battle is impossible. If we don't set up defenses in advance, the losses will be even greater. That's not what I mean. He Chuan's voice was calm, I'm not asking a few people to sacrifice for the majority of people. It's just that there's no way to avoid the sacrifice on the road to salvation. Those who are merciful don't fit to be generals. I don't want to tell you such a simple principle in person. Do you understand? Lin Cheng was shocked, your subordinate is muddle-headed. I hope your highness will not blame me. He Chuan did not care about this. If Lin Cheng were not a kind person, he would not have fought alongside him. Su Ko came out at the right time to change the topic and mediate the atmosphere. He asked about what happened to He Chuan in the dojo. This question was excellent. He Chuan's answer shocked them. Modified Hanshi powder. Improved the guidance technique. 
it could create an awaken that was out of reach in their minds. All of this seemed like a fantasy. No one could accept it in a short period of time. Even reason told them that. They could not trust He Chuan's words. But He Chuan had no reason to lie to them. Thus, he held on to the hope of becoming awakened. Su Ku asked expectantly, Your Highness, as long as you take the Hanshi powder and use the guidance technique, can you really become an awakened Ah, uh, no, become a spiritual cultivator? As soon as he said this, the soldiers at the side pricked up their ears to listen. An awakened. This temptation was unusually great. Not necessarily. He Chuan shook his head and said, although it has been optimized, it only makes the awakening possible. In fact, the probability is not high. Then, if we fail, won't we only be able to walk the path of martial cultivators? Su Ku's excitement seemed to have dropped a lot, that's too brutal. It doesn't seem to suit me. Look at how beautiful you look. Lin Cheng had just offended He Chuan, and he was eager to have a chance to make up for his mistake. He immediately said, this Hanshi powder was brought back by His Highness. How can it be yours? Su Ku laughed, I'm just saying. It's okay. If you want to be awakened, you'll have a chance when we get back. He Chuan patted his shoulder, after we get to the city, boil these medicines into a pot and let the people and soldiers in the city choose to take it. Su Ku was shocked. Your Highness, this Hanshi powder is so precious. It's not an exaggeration to say that it's a rare treasure. I heard that even if you take it repeatedly, it will still have an effect. Are you sure you don't want to keep it for your use and want to distribute it? Yes, but before distributing it, remember to clarify that the possibility of awakening to spiritual cultivators is not high. Let them think it over carefully. He Chuan did not say too much. This Hanshi powder was too low grade for him. You couldn't even compare it to the gene reagent from his first life, so he had no interest in taking it. Why not increase the strength of the lower city defense so that everyone had the possibility of becoming awakened? At the same time, he could also get a wave of rewards for distributing his wealth. Hearing such an answer. Lin Cheng and Lin Ya, the sibling Su Ku and even the surrounding marshals and soldiers were all stunned. Just how selfless was the city lord? He was able to unconditionally give such a precious thing to everyone to use together. Was he not feeling distressed? Chapter, 79 Time always passes by unintentionally. He Chuan and the others returned to Glory City another day later. In the blink of an eye, the anticipated day of the beast tide was getting closer and closer. As a result, the citizens' emotions in the city became increasingly depressed. Unease, panic, nervousness, and many other negative emotions envelop people's hearts. Facing a powerful, strange beast, they didn't have any ability to resist. It was also at this time. Su Ko followed He Chuan's orders and began distributing the Hanshi powder. He set up a new tent in front of the city lord's residence. He brewed medicinal soup and distributed notices. He let everyone in the city know. The city lord gave them a chance to choose their fate. To become an awakened one. To fight for freedom. This slogan made everyone excited. For a moment, people came in an endless stream. Although most people didn't have the luck and could only walk the path of martial cultivators. But to them, this result was already a thousand or ten thousand times better than before. A few people who successfully awakened an innate ability were even more grateful to He Chuan. After obtaining great power, a large group gathered outside the city lord's manor, wanting to help He Chuan defend the city. Facing such a request, he Chuan naturally wouldn't reject it. He directly added them to the new legion and placed them under his control. To further increase the battle strength of the new legion, he even distributed all the weapons in the city lord's manor. However, too many people had taken the Hanshi powder. The total number of the new legion soldiers was 3,000, no less than the White Tiger Legion. The weapons stored in the storage weren't enough for them to distribute. We still have to find the rebate. He Chuan's train of thought was apparent. With a large number of martial cultivators, the difficulty of finding the rebate would also be reduced. As long as they formed groups of three to five people, they would basically have a chance of winning if they didn't encounter groups of strange beasts in the wild. 
he immediately called over a few squad leaders of the new legion and asked them to cooperate with the group of people who went out to do their daily operations. Not long after, they did indeed gain something. A group of militia digging trenches found a black iron vein that was accompanied by fine gold. This was even more precious than the raw materials of the previous batch of new equipment. Obviously, this was another reward for returning the money. Although the items were precious, they were not of much use to Hichuan. There were no blacksmiths in the city. No matter how precious the black iron refined gold or was, it was just a pile of glowing stones. Hichuan had no choice but to try to find a solution through the deduction system. Unfortunately, he was disappointed again. The black iron refined gold was too complicated. It required a lot of time to analyze and calculate. With his current physical condition, it would take him at least 10 days to half a month to get the results. Thus, He Chuan directly changed the direction. He wholeheartedly devoted himself to deducting the tyrannical true cultivation manual. He had already thought of this before. Therefore, it didn't take much effort. One day and one night later. Not only did he successfully complete the tyrannical true cultivation manual, but he also absorbed the spiritual chi that belonged to this world. After that, he completely integrated the middle and lower volume, and his strength soared. Now, when he started cultivating, he already had the strength equivalent to a first-rate martial artist of the previous world. It was indeed an exaggeration. Moreover, He Chuan had yet to become an awakened one and had the ability to control spiritual cultivation. Even if a united with the nature realm martial artist came, he would probably be killed in an instant by him. As a result, what you asked was what you'll get. Just as he was about to cultivate the contents of the upper volume of the tyrannical true cultivation manual, he suddenly felt a mysterious and enigmatic aura. Immediately after, he could not help but fall into a state close to an epiphany. He didn't know how much time had passed. When he regained his senses, He Chuan shockingly discovered that he could already control flames. What was even more impressive was that the spiritual energy in his body had increased dozens of times in an instant, and he couldn't help but vent his raging power. Could it be that I've awakened? Is this my innate ability? He Chuan didn't have any experience, nor did he have any references that he could learn from. He could only rely on analysis to judge according to the power system he had created. He was currently at the level of a level 2 awakened. He might be a little stronger, but he definitely couldn't reach level 3. He wasn't just a little weaker than the dojo master of the Wuji Dojo. However, he had already surpassed the peak of his previous life. There shouldn't be any problems with the deduction now. He Chuan closed his eyes again. After his strength increased, his physical fitness also improved further especially his brain power. It didn't take him long to get the result of the deduction. It turned out that for him, the difficulty of forging a weapon with black iron adamantin was not because he didn't have a blacksmith but because he didn't have enough heat to melt the black iron or his flame and the forging technique. As long as he had both. Whether martial or spiritual cultivators, they could use this material to forge equipment. Moreover, it could withstand a certain amount of spiritual energy without damage. It was much more powerful than the equipment made by ordinary blacksmiths. Coincidentally, in the knowledge he had obtained in school, the ability to control fire that he had just awakened was usually used to strengthen himself and forge weapons. After one of the prerequisites for forging weapons was resolved, only the art of forging iron was left. Unfortunately, there was no way to know where to obtain it through deduction. After thinking about it, he could only ask the erudite dojo master to see if he had anything related to it. He Chuan had always been a hands-on person. Basically, he would not let others do things for him that he could do on his own to avoid forming the habit of laziness. Thus, he went out personally. He went to the Wuji Dojo alone. However, when he arrived at his destination, he discovered that the place was already empty. There were no signs of a fight nearby. It seemed that they had left on their own. He Chuan climbed over the courtyard wall and went inside to search. He did not find anything of value. Instead, he saw an envelope pressed under a teacup in the main hall. The gist of the letter was the beast tide was about to arrive. 
So, the people in the dojo moved to Freedom City to avoid disaster. If the visitors were interested in visiting the dojo or had something to ask, they could go to the inns or taverns in Freedom City to look for them. Looks like I have to make a trip to Freedom City. He Chuan thought for a moment, then returned to the house in the backyard and rummaged through a set of pure black clothes. After disguising himself as a swordsman who had traveled worldwide, he left the dojo and walked towards Freedom City. He had to keep a low profile. His eldest brother was now the crown prince in the capital. He should have taken control of cities around Glory City and was waiting for him to walk into a trap at any time. At that time, he might make use of the situation to make a fuss and execute him for disobeying the orders of the imperial decree and not staying in Glory City. Such a method was reasonable and legal. No one would have any objections. There would not be any waves at all. Chapter 80 He Chuan knew too well the intrigue of the royal family. He did not need the help of the deduction system to avoid these risks. Freedom City was located to the west of Glory City. It was close to the border and had to cross the Gobi Desert. This distance was not considered far for an awakened like He Chuan. As long as he put the spiritual energy to his feet, he could significantly increase his traveling speed. It was estimated that within one to two hours, he would be able to cover half a day's journey for an ordinary person. However, what surprised He Chuan was that there were many traces of human activity in the Gobi Desert in the middle of winter. Following these traces, he took a closer look and realized they were actually familiar faces. Azure Dragon Army The Awakened Ones had powerful perceptive abilities. They could hear what these people were saying from a great distance. He Chuan originally did not intend to care about them. Who would have thought? He suddenly heard the Azure Dragon Marshal talking about him. It's all that kid He Chuan's fault. Would there be so much trouble if he hadn't been demoted to Glory City? Another voice sounded a little submissive as he probed, Sir, there's only half a day's rations left in the army. What should we do? What should we do? What do you want me to do? The Azure Dragon Marshal sounded very angry, who would have thought that the Crown Prince would kill us? Can you imagine that? Ha! Huh. Sai, Sir, since ancient times, the royal family has always been fickle in favor. Even if we can't disobey the crown prince's orders, we have to leave a way out before we trip He Chuan. Way out? Heh, now even Freedom City has our bounty on it. Where else can we go? The Azure Dragon Marshal was fuming, the crown prince has already made a plan. After we incite our Azure Dragon Legion to leave Glory City, he will pin the crime of treason on us and turn us into rats in the street. Everyone wants to step on us. Sir, I do have an idea. Don't dawdle. Hurry up and say it. The beast tide is approaching. After we leave Glory City, the city's defenses will be empty. As long as you are willing to put down your ego and tell He Chuan everything was ordered by the Crown Prince, there might still be a chance. Scram. If I go back now, how will the soldiers look at me? How will they lead the troops in the future? Besides, do you think he is a fool? Will he believe such words? He he, sir, think about it. We are indeed rats in the street, but how good can he Chuan be? Isn't he also alone? Whether he believes it or not, if we said we want to protect Glory City, he still has to rely on us. As he spoke, the man's voice paused, after we survive the beast tide, won't Glory City be yours? Do you really want me to rebel? The Azure Dragon Marshal thought for a long time before he said the second half of his sentence, do you know that this is a crime that implicates the nine generations? It affects the entire family. But isn't that the crime that you are now carrying? Whether it's true or false, what's the difference? Wang Cheng, you have to be clear. The Crown Prince saying we're conspiring against him is just putting a cap on it. If we return to the capital and confess, at most, we'll be considered deserters and be imprisoned for a few years. Sir, can we still return? The tent fell into a short silence. It seemed that the Azure Dragon Marshal was also struggling with this problem. When He Chuan heard this, the corners of his mouth had already curled up slightly. Everything turned out to be a trap the Crown Prince had secretly dug for him. 
he wanted to make Glory City's defensive troops insufficient so that he would be dead in the mouth of the beast. No wonder Green Dragon's marshal had agreed so readily at that time. He did not hesitate at all. Unfortunately, he had also been plotted against by the crown prince now. He could not go anywhere and only struggled for his life in the wilderness. He had initially wanted to rob the dojo to extend their life, but he had stumbled upon it by chance. As the old saying goes, it was cutting off one's nose to spite one's face. Speaking of which, this big brother was quite ruthless in doing things. In order to make him lose the chance to go back and fight for the throne. He could push all the people in Glory City to die with him. He had to be said to be very bold. He was a person who could do great things. Unfortunately, his methods were a little dark. They were too dirty. At this moment, the Azure Dragon Marshal and Deputy General also walked out of the tent. They had just discussed and decided. Return to Glory City. On the surface, they pretended to surrender. After they survived the Beast Tide, they would stab He Chuan from the back and occupy Glory City. Then, they would use this as capital to defect to other countries. This plan was a little too big. Although Glory City was located in a mountain range, its strategic location was essential. As long as they occupied this place, they could cut off the communication between Freedom City and the Imperial Court, turning Freedom City into an isolated island. Freedom City was such a huge piece of meat. It was impossible for the two countries bordering it and currently at war not to know about it. The war maniacs and ambitious people would not let go of such an opportunity. If Green Dragon's marshals succeeded, they might be able to escape from the predicament and escape the trap set by the Crown Prince. Unfortunately, He Chuan had heard it. This plan was doomed to fail. After thinking about it, He Chuan did not alert the enemy. He had initially planned to destroy the Azure Dragon Legion, but he temporarily let them go because he was not strong enough. Now that these people were rushing to Glory City to die, he naturally would not stop them. But at this moment, an accident happened. A monstrous beast cry suddenly sounded in the direction of Glory City in the east. He Chuan couldn't help but frown. Could it be that the beast tide had begun? No, it had only been half a month. The strange beasts could still find food in the forest. It was impossible for them to leave their territory so quickly. There must be another reason. He turned his gaze and looked around. Then, he saw an intersection of the White Mountain Range that blocked the Gobi Desert had collapsed. Avalanche? As soon as this thought appeared in his mind, he saw countless large-scale strange beasts fleeing on the horizon, trying to escape this disaster. But he didn't expect that the disaster would come again and again. Soon after, a powerful tremor came from under his feet. For a moment, the mountain shook, and the earth trembled. The fragile layer of rocks was shattered under the impact of this natural energy. Even the earth was torn apart. Chapter, 81 This earthquake must be above level, 10, right? He Chuan had never seen such an exaggerated natural disaster. He could only try his best to stabilize his body and escape from the danger zone. Fortunately, there were no volcanoes nearby. Otherwise, an earthquake of this magnitude would definitely trigger an even more terrifying volcanic eruption. At that time, there would be nowhere to run even if he wanted to. The Azure Dragon Legion's encampment was also in a state of panic. Everyone was at a loss. Fortunately, they were in an open area, and the cracks did not spread to this side, so they escaped the disaster. The earthquake came suddenly and left quickly. In less than ten seconds, the world regained its stability. However, He Chuan knew that there would be aftershocks, so he had to be careful at all times. The avalanche in the distance was still ongoing. Layers of snow had collapsed in various parts of the mountain range and were now connected into a single row. He Chuan frowned slightly and carried out his deduction habitually. It had been snowing heavily for a long time recently, and the mountain's peak was covered in thick snow. The place near the foot of the mountain would definitely become a mess. According to his deduction, such a natural disaster's appearance would significantly impact the strange beasts living there. Who knows, it might cause the beasts to escape together. At that time, it would definitely be a life-and-death test for Glory City, 
which was blocking the way. At that time, Linya's idea of using resources obtained in a war to support the war could no longer be implemented. The only way was to decide the outcome with a single battle. Without the help of the magic cannons. Even though Glory City's defensive capabilities had greatly increased, and there was a troop of several thousand armament soldiers. However, to the massive beast tide, it was still insignificant. The appearance of these two vicious natural disasters made Hichuan lose the idea of going to Freedom City. It wasn't easy for Glory City to develop to its current state. If he lost it just like that, he would definitely receive a very substantial rebate. However, such a return would absolutely not allow him to obtain an S rank score. When the time came, he would not even have the ability to fight against the Crown Prince, who controlled the resources of the world in the Imperial City. He Chuan immediately made a decision and rushed back to Glory City to take charge of the overall situation. It was just as he had expected. The city was now in a mess. There were broken walls everywhere. The houses that had been dilapidated for a long time had now collapsed and turned into ruins. Many people were injured, and their combat power was significantly reduced. Many of the supplies piled up in the warehouse had been destroyed as a result. Not only that. Many strange beasts living in the mountains and forests had been disturbed by the earthquake and were running around. From time to time, they would attack the damaged city walls. Some of them could climb or jump and even rushed into the city, wantonly slaughtering the civilians who hadn't taken the henshi powder yet. The martial cultivators were running for their lives, they hadn't cultivated for long, so it was still difficult for them to kill the strange beasts. As a result, the number of casualties in the city continued to increase, and wails could be heard everywhere. Especially that six-meter-tall tiger-type strange beast. Its fur was so thick that even a few spirit cultivators who had awakened innate abilities couldn't penetrate it, let alone those martial cultivators. The latter were only armed with black-scaled spirit weapons. The strange beast tore the battle line apart in just a short moment. Damn it! Is there no one who can teach this beast a lesson? It would be great if the city lord was here. He definitely has a way. Damn it, quickly stop it. This beast is heading towards where the children are staying. FCK, I'm going all out. Charge. More than ten martial cultivators gritted their teeth and charged forward. In the end, they were swatted apart by the strange beast with a single slap. One of them was the most miserable. He was directly pressed under the enormous soles of its feet. It was unknown how many bones had been shattered. Right at this moment, a flash of fire appeared. He Chuan descended from the sky. His palm was filled with incomparably violent power, directly slamming into the head of the strange beast. Immediately, the tiger-type strange beast whimpered, and its body went limp as it fell to the ground. The scorching energy had already crushed its brain. It was no longer possible for it to stand up and hurt others. He Chuan swept his gaze across the city. There were still quite a few small-sized strange beasts in the city, so he immediately gave the order. All spirit cultivators, lead a team of martial cultivators to seal the city gate and block the gap. The rest of you, follow me to kill those strange beasts that enter the city. Yes. Everyone's shouts shook the sky. Clearly, they had been inspired by the scene of Hichuan killing the enemy with that move. However, motivation was motivation, and ability was ability. These martial cultivators were all awakened ones. Without innate abilities, even small strange beasts were hard to deal with. As a result, all the strange beasts in the city were killed by He Chuan himself. The others could only play a delaying role. The situation outside the city was a little more serious. Even though there were a large number of awakened ones to deal with the onslaught, because they didn't have the ability to kill, the strange beasts accumulated more and more. The strength of these awakened ones was weaker than He Chuan had imagined. He didn't expect they couldn't even deal with a beast tide of this level. The gap between them wasn't just a little bit. They hadn't reached the scale of the beast tide yet, but it was already so difficult to deal with. Wouldn't they be wiped out instantly if they encountered a real beast horde? That wasn't possible. Right now was only the threat brought by the beginning of the disaster. Perhaps they would face a new round of challenges in another day or two. 
He Chuan stepped on the city wall and looked down at the group of strange beasts that were as crazy as zombies. His heart was a little heavy. He activated his innate ability, fire control. He immediately turned the vast spiritual energy stored in his body into a blazing rain of fire sprinkling down along the city wall. Most of the strange beasts that could still move now had fur, which could be lit on fire at any time. They died in the pain of being burned by the fire. Glory City was in a sea of fire in just a few minutes. The fire spread quickly and scared away the strange beasts that wanted to attack Glory City. Glory City also had time to breathe. However, this safety must be very short-lived. They had to do as much as possible during this time. He Chuan returned to the city lord's manor. Su Ku and Lin Cheng came one after another to report the loss of various supplies and personnel in the city. The casualties caused by the beast onslaught were not considered large. It was just that the militia captain who was in charge of setting up the traps had fallen into the crater due to the earthquake early on. Sharp spikes had pierced his chest and lungs. The current medical practices were not enough to treat such penetrating injuries. Even though he had already become a martial cultivator, he still couldn't hold on until he Chuan's return. He became the first person in Glory City's leadership to be sacrificed. Apart from that, there was good news. When the awakened were cutting up the flesh of strange beasts, they accidentally discovered a kind of crystal that existed in their bodies. The size varied. The common point was that these crystals contained extremely powerful energy. Someone tried it and unexpectedly found that an awakened one could actually absorb this thing. Moreover, the energy conversion rate and cultivation efficiency were extremely high. It was much faster than their usual speed of using the guiding technique to absorb the spiritual energy from the outside world. Chapter, 82 This should be something like a crystal. He Chuan had some impression of this thing. Back when he was studying in school, a particular class taught him about the basic resources of the various reincarnated planes. Crystals like this, which existed in the bodies of wild beasts, were usually the source of their power. They were used to maintain their body's strength or release special abilities. The strength of this world was not high. Even if they could produce crystals, they were considered the lowest level of energy resources. The quality would not be much better. The biggest drawback was that they could not absorb too much at once. It was unrealistic to rely on this to increase one's strength. He Chuan did not think much of it. Therefore, after the awakened ones had collected the crystals, he did not leave them for his own use. Instead, he generously gave them to Su Ku. After that, he asked Su Ku to record all the awakened's contributions on the battlefield and convert them into merit points. In the future, if everyone wanted to receive additional resources and crystals, they would have to rely on merit points to exchange for them. There were many ways to obtain merit points. Saving people, setting up traps, providing crucial military intelligence, attracting the strange beasts that were out on their own to surround and kill them, and so on were all included. If someone could kill the strange beasts alone, not only would they be rewarded with merit points, but the corpses of the exotic beasts would also belong to the person who killed them. One thousand pounds of flesh and blood could be exchanged for a small-sized beast crystal. As soon as these words were said, all the awakened ones were stunned. I didn't expect the city lord to be so selfless. He even gave away such a precious crystal. This is a good treasure that can raise one's strength. It's much rarer than any rare treasures. It's too easy to get merit points aren't we supposed to do these things? Yeah, it's everyone's responsibility to protect Glory City. It's not the city lord's responsibility alone. What the city lord does is no different from giving it away for free. It's so that we can accept it with peace of mind. He clearly killed these strange beasts with his own hands. It has nothing to do with us, but we're the ones who took the best things instead. The city lord is truly worried sick for us. Damn it, with such a city lord, so what if I risk my life? Can the new legion's 27th squad brothers lend me some merit points? I want to exchange them for spirit crystals to break through my realm. If it works, I'll go and fight the strange beasts one on one. All the gains will be sent to the storehouse, and everyone will level up together. Brother, wait a moment. I can finish repairing the traps over there tonight. 
The merit points will be given to you when you get them. Mine is a little lacking, too. I'll go get them now. And me. Once Yi Chuan's new reward system was introduced, it immediately roused everyone's enthusiasm. They began to fight sincerely for their team. They worked even harder than before. Many of the teams in the New Legion imitated the methods of Unit 27 and gathered everyone's merit points to exchange for crystals. Through this method, they tried to break through to level 2. Only level 2 awakened ones had the ability to kill strange beasts. In the previous battle, the awakened ones had all experienced the feeling of helplessness when facing gigantic strange beasts. Seeing their comrades, civilians, children, and even their relatives die before their eyes, they couldn't do anything about it. They didn't want to experience this feeling a second time. They desperately wanted to increase their strength. Now, with Yi Chuan's seemingly standardized collection of resources, but in fact, his selfless dedication, they were able to increase their strength rapidly. That night, many people had already broken through to the level 2 awakened. After their strength had skyrocketed, they went out in groups to hunt down the strange beasts scattered in the forest. This kind of action directly changed Glory City's previous situation of being passively beaten. It could be said to be a milestone level action. And as everyone cooperated more and more frequently, everyone's collective sense of honor was also revealed. Many teams began to compete in the number of strange beasts killed. Sigh. Whoever killed the most was awesome. Many people made a bet with each other. Can you kill that bear type strange beast? You can kill it. Then I'll consider you awesome. I'll consider you the best. Yes, that's right. They didn't gamble on money or resources. It was a very simple bet of verbal approval. A man's happiness is that simple. Such a gentleman's bet, yet it made many people flock to it. No matter how strong the strange beast was, they all held back their indomitable spirit and charged forward. They were the ones who weren't afraid of death. This kind of situation made He Chuan a little confused. After asking Lin Cheng, only then did he know that the internal affairs of the new legion were special. Out of nowhere, there was a competition of which squad killed the most strange beasts. Later, they would be the ace squad. Everyone would have to call them big brothers were the rules. For this honor, a bunch of people hunted exotic beasts with loud roars. So much so that they couldn't hear the roars of the strange beasts in Glory City anymore. Not only that, but these people also did what they had said previously. All the strange beasts they killed were handed over. They didn't even want beast crystals. This also caused before that day reached midnight. The city lord's manor's resources didn't decrease but increased instead. The number of beast crystals even tripled. He Chuan was surprised but also somewhat gratified. At first, he had planned to hunt strange beasts to fill the gap. But he didn't expect that there was no need at all. Could this be considered a rebate as well? He Chuan wasn't sure. He felt that the possibility was very high. If that were the case, the merit points exchange reward system would become a perpetual motion machine that could trigger the rebate indefinitely. As long as someone made an exchange, it would be equivalent to He Chuan giving away his wealth. Then, after these people increased their strength, they would obtain more things and return them to him. TSK. Invincible. In time, Glory City's material reserves would definitely reach a terrifying level. Perhaps raising an army of more than 100, 00 awakened ones wouldn't even be a problem. However, these were all matters for the future. Now, they needed to deal with the potential threat brought by this natural disaster. For the time being, there was no way to make the magic cannons. The production cycle of this thing was definitely not short, and they were pressed for time at the moment, so they could only shelve it. The role of the New Legion's Awakened Ones was very significant. They could do more things in this aspect. If I can get my hands on the blacksmithing technique and equip every member of the New Legion with new equipment, I should be able to deal with those large-scale strange beasts, right? He Chuan calmed himself down, however I don't have time to go to Freedom City, and it's impossible for blacksmiths to come from the outside world. This road is also impassable, and Glory City is still not easy to defend. What could he rely on? 
he couldn't return the prophets these things were all dead objects, so it was impossible for him to give them to a living person. Moreover, the randomness was too strong, so that he couldn't use them. As for the deduction system. He needed information to be able to make a directional deduction. How would he know where there was a blacksmith? Where was the forging technique? This didn't make sense either. Wait a minute. Suddenly, He Chuan had an idea. Who said I have to deduce the direction? Chapter, 83. Was there a limit to the system's deduction ability? It could be said that there was, but it could also be said that there wasn't. What was the limit of the system's deduction ability? It was nothing more than the lack of computational power in the brain, which would result in a tremendous amount of data requiring an extremely long time to be calculated before the answer could be obtained. He Chuan could enter the information that he knew and perform a directional deduction, but this did not mean that the deduction did not require more information. What did this mean? This meant that the deduction system itself was an existence that possessed any information in the world. In other words, as long as the computational power was sufficient. Not to mention deducing one thing. Even if it was deducing a person's future. A family's future. A city's future. Even the future of a continent, a world, was not a problem. Was he that one with his syndrome in his first life? Obviously, he was not. His strength was now close to level 3 of the awakened one. His physical fitness was thousands of times better than before. Before, he could not deduce anything, but now, he could get the answer in less than a second. He Chuan suddenly felt like he had found a new world. His mind was instantly clear. It was time to use a different method to use the deduction system. Although he could not be as great as deducing the future of the entire world, with the current information, he might be able to deduce a small part of it. He Chuan sat cross-legged. He calmed his mind and concentrated on the deduction. In an instant, He Chuan felt as if he was in a vacuum. Then, he felt weightlessness. With a jolt of his consciousness, he felt dizzy. His figure strangely appeared in a wilderness. Here, he saw many corpses of strange beasts and humans. It seemed that this was a battlefield. On the battlefield, only a few people were laboriously moving the corpses of their companions and throwing them into the pit for mass burial. During the process, these people didn't seem to see him at all. They didn't even look at him. The occasional conversation revealed a bit of information. Sigh, I wonder where the city lord and marshal are now. Let's hope they can escape from the beast tide area. Don't think too much about it. Hurry up and clean up Xiao Wu's and the others' corpses. There might be more strange beasts coming later. The smell of blood is too strong. Am I in a state of invisibility? He Chuan thought for a moment. I should be in the world of deduction. I'm just a spiritual body now. Just as He Chuan was thinking about this, a notification sounded in his mind. Start deduction. Please choose self-exploration or free deduction. Is there any difference? This was the first time He Chuan had spoken to the deduction system. It was full of novelty. Self-exploration, you can enter the deduction process and cast directional commands in the process of any event happening, changing the deduction trajectory. Free deduction, the direction of the world, there are countless possibilities every minute and every second. Here, the system can only create parallel spacetime, solidify the information of the existing world, and provide the most likely one, but there are still errors possible. The development and outcome of every deductive world are related to your own interests. Please keep this in mind. When facing these possible futures, try to be thoughtful. His creating a parallel world, leading the direction of changing the world. He Chuan took a deep breath. He was shocked. Why didn't he realize that the deductive system was so awesome before? Free deduction. He felt that it was better to be conservative for the first time. After all, he didn't know anything now. He just wanted to explore. Deducer, do you want to save at this deduction node? Save. He Chuan hesitated for a moment but eventually nodded. Save successful, please name it. He Chuan chose the simplest method. After naming it, the deduction system began to operate. 
After a world-class supernatural disaster descended, various regions underwent abnormal changes. Your glory city welcomed a beast tide that was hard to come by in ten years. In this crisis, you stood up and led tens of thousands of awakened to resist, fighting for your territory and future. Unfortunately, you failed. Glory City was destroyed, and the awakened army suffered heavy losses. Failed? He Chuan frowned slightly and couldn't help but look to the side. There was an awakened corpse on the ground. There was a deep dent in his armor. It was not completely broken, but the lower abdomen that was not covered by the armor had been cut off by an unknown sharp claw. Only half of his body was left, and he died a miserable death. He Chuan noticed that the armor this person was wearing was not made of black scale essence. It was made of another material. Black iron refined gold. This was what happened. It seemed that he had solved this problem in this parallel world. However, the strength of the new awakened army had increased so much. Why did they still fail to defend Glory City? Just as you were feeling puzzled, an accident happened. As soon as the system's voice fell, a roar resounded through the sky and was heard from the nearby forest. A few awakened ones who were still dealing with the corpses in the field couldn't help but look nervous when they heard this voice. Oh no! Someone cried out in alarm. In the next moment, the thick and sturdy trees in the forest fell into pieces. Along with the sound of branches being snapped, a fiery red ape-like exotic beast rushed into the field. He Chuan relied on his body of consciousness to get closer and observe. Its eyes were blood-red, and its pupils showed an unnatural state of convergence, as small as the tip of a needle. It had completely lost its rationality in its actions. After discovering the few awakened ones, it roared and rushed over, catching up to one of them at an extremely fast speed and trampling it under its feet. This awakened one was also wearing battle armor made of black iron and fine gold. Its extremely tough strength had helped it block this powerful blow. However, it was obvious that the aura of this ape-like strange beast had soared a few notches because of this. It seemed to have become even angrier. With a loud roar, it exerted strength with its legs once more. Crack! The armor could no longer withstand such pressure. It was directly crushed into mud along with the ribs and flesh of the awakened. He Chuan keenly saw that when it exerted strength, its eyes seemed to light up for a moment, as if there was some light emerging. This strength was too exaggerated. Even if it was an ape-type strange beast, it couldn't be so ridiculous. However, what happened next was even more exaggerated. The remaining three awakened ones in the field knew that they couldn't beat the strange beast, and their speed wasn't as fast as the strange beast, so they decided to scatter and escape. In the end, the ape-type strange beast immediately stopped its pursuit and turned to use its fists to roar and hammer its chest. Its body then lit up, as if something was brewing in its body. Then, with a swoosh, a few fireballs were spat out from its mouth. The powerful attack unexpectedly melted the two awakened ones who were only focused on running for their lives. Holy SHT! Wasn't this the innate ability of the awakened ones? How could the strange beast use it as well? He Chuan was shocked. Just as he was about to find out what was going on. The world of deduction suddenly became blurry, as if it was going to fall apart at any moment. Warning! Warning! The main body lacks energy. Continuing the deduction will cause damage to consciousness. Suggested to stop immediately. Chapter, 84 Oh no! He Chuan did not have time to think about it. The discomfort from his body in reality can already be felt on his body in the deduction world, forcing him to stop this deduction. He returned to reality accompanied by a severe feeling of exhaustion, and another wave of intense dizziness hit him. Phew! He Chuan lay sprawled on the bed and relaxed his body to alleviate the side effects of the deduction. In the end, in just a few breaths, he fell into a deep sleep while he was reviewing all the details from the deduction world. By the time he regained consciousness, it was already noon the next day. Recalling all the things that happened yesterday, he could not help but sigh. Looks like my physical fitness isn't strong enough. I couldn't hold on for more than a few minutes while deducting. If I could hold on for a while longer, I might be able to find the reason why I couldn't hold off the beast tide. 
however, there were still some gains from the deduction this time. For example, letting him know that black iron refined gold couldn't change battle's outcome. Apart from that, they would find an even greater challenge from the strange beasts. Those strange beasts with elemental abilities were truly too terrifying. Even if Ichuan were to go up personally, he might not be able to defeat them easily. Looks like I can't put my energy into creating new equipment. I have to prioritize guarding against stronger strange beasts. The new army of awakened ones already had the means to continuously increase their strength. The only thing missing was an expert who could oversee the entire battlefield. As long as they helped them get rid of those strange beasts that they couldn't deal with, it wouldn't be impossible to guard against the beast tide. He Chuan was the perfect candidate. The cultivation speed of the tyrannical true cultivation manual was much faster than the guiding technique. With the knowledge he had learned in his previous life, he had rapid progress. Almost every day, he could make his strength increase in stages. As long as he had two more days, it wouldn't be a problem for him to break through to level 3. However, Glory City might not be able to enjoy two more days of peace. Time I have to buy more time. He Chuan closed his eyes and felt carefully. The earth seemed to be wailing under the trampling of the beasts. It seemed that some of the mutated beasts that had escaped their homeland in the Gobi Desert due to the avalanche had already rushed to the border of Glory City. He didn't know how many of them there were. No scouts could bring him any specific information. He could only rely on the sharp senses of the awakened ones to judge all of this. Although the error was immense, this was the only method he could rely on. The beast tide was about to arrive. It wouldn't be later than in the afternoon. The beast tide that was more than ten days ahead of schedule gave him almost no time to develop. It was said that plans could not keep up with changes, it now seemed that this was indeed the case. With his current strength, he could barely resist the beast tide. However, it was not completely hopeless. He Chuan was not discouraged because of this. Although the result of the deduction was the destruction of Glory City. But that was only one of the tendencies of the future. Now, as long as he did not continue the research of black iron refined gold to make equipment, it was very likely that he could change that outcome. He had to hurry up and cultivate. He Chuan took a deep breath and continued to read the contents of the tyrannical true cultivation manual. He was about to cultivate. However, someone knocked on the door. Your Highness, something has happened. It was Su Ku's voice. He Chuan pushed open the door and looked at the heavy expression on Su Ku's face. With a thought, he asked. Is the Azure Dragon Legion back? Su Ku was startled. Your Highness, how did you know? I guessed. He Chuan chuckled. Bring me there. Yes, Your Highness. Su Ku brought He Chuan to the west gate of Glory City. As soon as they stepped onto the city tower, they saw a large group of people kneeling outside the city. Lin Cheng was confronting the Azure Dragon Marshal with a sullen expression. You still have the face to come and beg the city lord. Back then, when you instigated the entire army, did you think that we didn't know what you were thinking? Now that you're being chased by the beast tide, you want to advance and retreat together with Glory City. You really are shameless. Below, the Azure Dragon Marshal snorted coldly. Lin Cheng, who are you? How dare you talk to me like that? How dare you offend your superiors do you know which military law you violated? At this moment, He Chuan and Su Ku walked to Lin Cheng's side one after the other. Lin Cheng hurriedly saluted. Even ignoring the Azure Dragon Marshal. Although the Azure Dragon Marshal was very unhappy, he still saluted him. The guilty marshal greets the city lord. He Chuan looked at him calmly. You are no longer a marshal of Glory City. Don't you feel embarrassed to call yourself that? The Azure Dragon Marshal knew that He Chuan would say this, so he explained the situation directly. Your Highness, you should know that the Crown Prince currently sees you as a thorn in his flesh. What he fears the most is that you will rise again. One day, when you return to the capital, you will snatch back the position of heir to the throne. As early as a month ago, I received a secret letter. The crown prince asked me to use the power in my hands to infiltrate the higher-ups of the officials. 
When you arrive, when the beast tide arrives, think of a way to take away the resources and the main army. I'm just a border general. How would I dare to go against the crown prince? Betraying you, betraying Glory City, is also a helpless act. After finishing his words, many people present frowned. Lin Cheng and Lin Ye kept silent. This was a fight for the imperial power. They simply could not interrupt and did not dare to interrupt. Su Ku's gaze became unusually deep. It was as if he was analyzing the reliability of the Azure Dragon Martial Swords. A few seconds later, he moved closer to He Chuan and reminded him. Your Highness, this person cannot be trusted. If the Crown Prince requests it, then he must have prepared a way out of Glory City. Why would he be forced to come to us by the Beast Tide? He Chuan looked at him with appreciation. This Chief of Staff was quite skilled. However, after the Azure Dragon Marshal heard this, he still answered calmly. To tell you the truth, I am now the Crown Prince's abandoned chess. In order to silence me, he accused the entire Azure Dragon Legion of being a rebel army. Now, we really no way out. The Azure Dragon Marshal's face was full of sincerity. Your Highness, I know that I deserve to die for my sins and am willing to accept all punishment. However, the 20 soldiers of the Azure Dragon Legion are innocent. Please show mercy and give them a way out. Oh! Hearing this, He Chuan was immediately amused. This Azure Dragon Marshal was really not stupid. He even knew how to employ immoral blackmail. Chapter 85 The Azure Dragon Marshal's words were very interesting. On the surface, it seemed like he was taking all the blame and asking He Chuan to forgive the others. But in reality, it was a disguised threat. Everyone knew that since He Chuan came to Glory City, he did most the things to care for the people and think for everyone. In Su Ku's eyes, this city lord was wise, strategic, farsighted, and knew the big picture. In Lin Cheng's eyes, this city lord was generous, capable, and powerful. In the eyes of the people, this prince of the royal family was their savior, the light of hope to save them. When people looked at him from different angles, their final impression would be different. However, he never put on airs in a high position. His kindness and integrity were the only consensuses in everyone's hearts. The Azure Dragon Marshal was using this point to borrow the opinions of the people to force He Chuan to nod his head and agree to let them take refuge in the city. You are a good city lord. You can't just watch as the tens of thousands of soldiers of Glory City were swallowed up by the beast tide, right? Do you still want your character set up? If you do, let us enter the city. This move wasn't very brilliant. The Azure Dragon Marshal believed that most of the higher-ups of Glory City could see through it. In fact, they could even guess what he would do next. Plead for the Azure Dragon Legion and stop the City Lord from punishing him. But what could he do even if they knew? What could the City Lord do then? In order to prevent the morale of the army from being unstable, he had to put it on hold for now and let him continue to be the Azure Dragon Commander. This was a dilemma between advance and retreat. It was a pure conspiracy. Even if they knew his plan, they still had to step on it. Glory City's defense was currently empty, and they lacked a workforce. No matter the reason, it was impossible for them to remain unmoved in the face of 20 reinforcements. Azure Dragon Marshal couldn't help but feel a little smug when he thought of this. He felt that the plan this time was flawless. Not only did he consider Glory City's city defense strength, but he also thoroughly analyzed He Chuan's character and used such a statement that he couldn't reject. But who would have thought? The scene of He Chuan frowning did not appear in his imagination. This youth still maintained his originally calm smile. In fact, there was even a hint of playfulness in the gaze he was looking at him with. What did this mean? The Azure Dragon Marshal could not understand. In the next moment, He Chuan cleared his doubts. The city lord waved his hand. Instantly, countless figures flew out from behind the city wall and landed on the city wall. They only stood there for a brief moment, but the murderous aura emanating from their bodies already made everyone feel an extremely terrifying pressure. This temperament could only be honed after a life and death battle. Moreover, it was linked to strength. 
If one was randomly picked, the entire Azure Dragon Legion wouldn't be able to find anyone who could contend against them. Not even the Azure Dragon Marshal himself. Awakened? He was dumbfounded. That's impossible. How could there be Awakened in Glory City? Even if they're pseudo-awakened, there can be so many of them. Then I have to thank you. He Chuan smiled. If you hadn't gone to the Wuji Dojo to stir up trouble, I wouldn't have gained so much. As He Chuan spoke, his voice paused, and his gaze suddenly became sharp, the Azure Dragon Legion, from the Marshal to the soldiers, have committed many crimes in Glory City? If I let you in, not to mention that I won't agree, but the people in the city won't agree. The Azure Dragon Marshal's face suddenly became somewhat embarrassed. City Lord, don't blame me for not warning you. The Beast Tide is about to arrive. If you don't accept the Azure Dragon Legion, will you be able to defend Glory City? If 10 Awakened Ones can't defend the city, what's the use of having 20 Ordinary Soldiers? He Chuan was expressionless. If you want to live, answer my question honestly. The Marshal of the Azure Dragon Legion gritted his teeth. After thinking about it, he felt that his life was more important. In the end, he swallowed his anger. All right, go ahead. How many methods did the Crown Prince use to kill me? I don't know. You better tell me the truth. He Chuan narrowed his eyes. The deductive system told him that the expression on the Azure Dragon Marshal's face was unnatural. There was a high chance that he was lying. Then you have to promise me that the Azure Dragon Legion and I can enter the city to recuperate. The Azure Dragon Marshal blurted out. He Chuan snorted coldly. You don't have the right to make demands on me, much less teach me how to do things. If you don't want to tell me, then just get lost. Don't be a hindrance here. The Azure Dragon Marshal couldn't help but fall silent. The sudden change had caught him by surprise. He didn't expect that the scheme he was so proud of would actually be so fragile. He didn't expect that this young lad, He Chuan, would actually be able to hold the power of speech with just a few words. Not only did he expose the loopholes in his scheme, he even easily controlled him. This meticulous observation and judgment were genuinely terrifying. Only then did Green Dragon Marshal realize what a terrifying opponent he was facing. In the blink of an eye, the table had been turned and he had to make a tough decision. Should he say it or not? Actually, whether he said it or not, it wouldn't cause any more trouble for him. The Crown Prince wouldn't take revenge on him at this time. But if he told him everything, wouldn't he be of no more use to He Chuan? Then how could he enter the city? But he didn't have any more choices. The Azure Dragon Marshal decided to take a gamble in the end. He bet that He Chuan was a kind person. He couldn't bear to see twenty zero zero people drowned in the beast tide and exposed to the wilderness. At that moment, he told him everything he knew. He Chuan listened carefully, using the deductive system to judge every word. After confirming what the other party said was true, he could not help but complain. Your heart is truly black. The Azure Dragon Marshal urged at this time. City Lord, can you let us into the city now? Unexpectedly, He Chuan shook his head gently. The Azure Dragon Marshal was instantly furious. FCK, I've already told you everything you want to know. Now you want to go back on your word. Su Ko could not help but retort, His Highness did not say that he would let you enter the city. Can you stop imagining things? The Azure Dragon Marshal clenched his fists. His anger had already gone to his head. He had already forgotten about the Beast Tide and his life. His only thought was to attack the city. Ten thousand Awakened Ones, right? I have twenty thousand soldiers. Even if all of them die, I will still bite off a piece of your flesh. Soldiers! The Azure Dragon Marshal shouted, even if you die, you will still held your heads up. Today, you are being bullied to such an extent. Can you bear it? Kill. 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 The battle cries shook the sky. This wave of morale raising was very effective. Right at this moment, the cries of beasts rang out. The sounds here startled the approaching beasts. The members of the Azure Dragon Legion immediately became nervous. The soldiers at the back turned around one after another, 
looking at the dark forest in panic. He Chuan suddenly raised his hand. Majestic spiritual energy circled and condensed above his head, becoming denser and denser, so much so that it turned from transparent to a water-green gas with substance. In an instant. With a bang, it burned into a blazing red color again. The fire clouds burned in the sky above the city, covering the sky and outshining the sun. All of a sudden, everyone present was shocked. Green Dragon Marshall's eyes were filled with shock. How could this kid be so powerful? He Chuan stood in the air with an indifferent expression. The beast tide is coming. Everyone, get ready to fight. Green Dragon Marshal, if you want to live, let your subordinates fight together. If you want to escape, go ahead. Green Dragon Marshal gritted his teeth. Damn it. The beast tide had already rushed up to his butt, how could he escape? Chapter, 86 No matter how unwilling the Azure Dragon Marshal was. He could only order all the soldiers to get into formation and maintain full vigilance in order to deal with the next beast tide. Soon, the sounds from the forest got closer and closer. After five heavy breaths. The first wave of the beast tide appeared before everyone's eyes. It was a group of well-built canine-type strange beasts, similar to hyenas in some ways. There were several hundred of them. He Chuan narrowed his eyes and observed. It seemed that the beast tide that was affected by the natural disaster had also arrived in batches. The relatively fast low-level strange beasts were too close to the front, so they were the first to arrive here. In that case, it wouldn't be so difficult to deal with them. But this was only for the new army of the Awakened Ones. The Azure Dragon Legion, which was leaning against the city wall, was miserable beyond words. In an instant, a hole was torn open. Even as a low-level strange beast, the hyena's sharp claws, with the addition of powerful strength, could easily break the armor and shields of the soldiers of the Azure Dragon Legion. Those basic weapons, which were even inferior to the black-scaled element, had no deterrent force in front of them at all. Using the body of an ordinary person to resist the beast tide. And without the protection of the city walls, they would only become cannon fodder in this battle. If it weren't for a part of the spirit cultivators who had awakened their innate abilities to rush to the battlefield, the first wave of strange beasts might have been able to wipe out these twenty zero zero soldiers. The fire clouds above their heads kept raining down deadly flames, crazily harvesting the lives of the hyenas. Although He Chuan was only a level two awakened, his performance was more dazzling than all the other spiritual cultivators combined. The tyrannical true cultivation manual was too powerful. In this world of beginner entry spiritual energy recovery, this cultivation technique blessed by the heavenly Tao was the best. In addition, He Chuan's control and use of inner qi were very meticulous. If it was changed into spiritual energy, it would not be much different. Therefore, among the second level awakened, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that he was the strongest. Sir is so strong. Su Ku stood at the side and could only stare. He had also taken the Hanshi powder, but he was just an ordinary martial cultivator, which greatly disappointed him who wanted to become a spirit cultivator. Facing this kind of battlefield, he could only be a salted fish who knew how to cheer others. He didn't do anything. Lin Cheng was the same. As the higher-ups of the army, they could not go down and charge into battle. Otherwise, if anything happened to them, it would be an irreversible blow to their morale. On the other hand, military advisor Lin Yith seemed to be blessed by the heavens. She stood out among the tens of thousands of people and became one of the spiritual cultivators. The innate ability was plant affinity. She could use spiritual energy to increase the growth rate of plants. At first, she was a little disappointed. She felt that this was a useless ability. However, He Chuan told her very clearly that there were no trash abilities. There were only awakened ones who didn't know how to use their abilities. In his opinion, as long as one cultivated plant affinity to a certain level, they could control plants and let them fight for themselves. It was somewhat similar to a beast tamer. In the future, when he became a level 6 or 7 awakened, wouldn't it be amazing and interesting to directly scatter beans into soldiers and command a group of small plants to charge into battle? Only then did Lin Ya's worry turn into joy. She could do one more thing every day and cultivate diligently. 
However, right now, she was unable to help. She could only sit in the center of the city and analyze the battle situation. On the side of the new army of the Awakened Ones, quite a number of martial cultivators rushed out of the city through the small gates, killing the enemies outside. They forcibly helped the Azure Dragon Legion, which was about to collapse stabilize the situation. Under the dual efforts of the spirit cultivators controlling the battlefield and the martial cultivators killing the enemies, the first wave of the beast tide was cleaned up not long after, and they managed to defend the city safely. The Azure Dragon Marshal hurriedly took this opportunity to get people to count the casualties. Not long after, He Chuan heard a terrifying number. 5,000. The Azure Dragon Marshal had lost a quarter of his men just to face less than a thousand small sized strange beasts. It was hard to imagine what would have happened if Glory City had no awakened ones now. So many people had died. The smell of blood would definitely stimulate more strange beasts to attack. Now, they had to clean up the battlefield as soon as possible and collect the beasts' meat and crystals. The Azure Dragon Marshal also made a request at this time. Co-defense was fine, but they had to move into Glory City. Otherwise, the losses would be too great. When the second wave arrived, they would all be wiped out. He Chuan directly ignored them. He had originally wanted to take care of the Azure Dragon Legion. These people hadn't done anything good when they were in Glory City. Moreover, Azure Dragon Marshal had harmed him first. No matter what, he wouldn't let them off. Seeing He Chuan's attitude, Azure Dragon Marshal immediately understood that he had really come to the end of the road. If he wanted to survive, he had to rely on himself. At that moment, he didn't hesitate anymore. He directly gave the order to abandon the wounded. Everyone took off their blood-stained clothes and went around Glory City, intending to leave from the other side. This was the right choice. The smell of blood continued to attract the attention of the strange beasts, leaving Glory City's people with no time to care about anything else. They had no way of splitting up their troops to chase after them. You're really ruthless. You're even willing to give up on your own subordinates now. Lin Cheng clenched his fists. Abandoning a chariot to protect the commander was something that he absolutely couldn't do. Humph. Azure Dragon Marshal shouted across the air. Don't make sarcastic remarks here. If it weren't for you guys forcing me, I wouldn't have gone to this extent. If I can't stand it anymore, I can just leave them. Despicable scoundrel. Su Ku couldn't help but curse. The Azure Dragon Marshal still didn't forget to set a trap for them. If Glory City didn't take in these injured soldiers at this time. If word got out in the future, everyone in the world would definitely think that City Lord He Chuan was a cold-blooded and heartless person. If that happened, he would lose the hearts of the people, and he would never be able to become the heir to the throne. As he watched the Azure Dragon Legion gradually move further and further away, Lin Qing couldn't help but feel a little anxious. Sir, what should we do? Should we chase after them? There's no need. I suddenly thought of a way to save Glory City. He Chuan only smiled slightly. Let the bait go further away. As he spoke, he raised his hands high. A rain of fire rained down from the sky. All the corpses and blood were turned into ashes under the high temperature and finally turned into a charred stench that even the strange beasts loathed. Chapter 87 Outside the city, the wounded soldiers of the Azure Dragon Legion looked at the flames on the ground from afar, not daring to approach. He Chuan had given them sufficient time to react when he attacked. If they wanted to live, they had to leave the hundred-meter radius of Glory City. Hearing the continuous sounds of strange beasts in the mountain forest. These people really had no choice but to flee in all directions. Seeing this scene, Lin Cheng sighed softly. Strange beasts are bloodthirsty. I'm afraid these people won't be able to run far. Su Ku looked at him. Michelle Lin, you're not going to start being sentimental again, are you? After all, they're all soldiers of the Empire. Although the Azure Dragon Marshal and I don't get along, but... Lin Qing gradually came to a realization. Having a compassionate heart wasn't bad, but it wasn't necessarily a good thing in this chaotic world. Thus, he shook his head and said, Sigh, forget it. It's good as long as we can survive the beast tide. 
Su Ku thought for a moment and said, these scents disperse very quickly. They can only delay the arrival of the second wave of the beast tide. Your Highness, what should we do? Take the opportunity to kill the Azure Dragon Legion Marshal. He Chuan looked into the distance. Once he dies, the Azure Dragon Legion will become headless flies. When that time comes, the target of the beast tide will not be just us. Su Ku was startled. Your Highness, you want the entire Azure Dragon Legion to use their lives to delay time for us? Yes. He Chuan's gaze was firm. Choose 300 awakened new soldiers. I will personally pursue and kill them. Lin Cheng and Su Ku looked at each other in surprise. This was the first time they had seen He Chuan use such a ruthless method. It was very different from his usual gentle and refined appearance. It made them very uncomfortable. However, there was nothing that couldn't be done. The crimes that the Azure Dragon Marshal had committed in the past few years, both in the open and in the dark, were enough to make him die a few times. Very soon, the chasing troops were assembled. Each of them was the best among the second level awakened of the new army. However, the Azure Dragon Legion still had more than 10 00 people. It was still a little challenging to assassinate Azure Dragon Marshal. In order to reduce casualties and avoid being discovered by the other party first, all of them changed into night clothes. They chased out first and waited until nighttime before attacking together. The speed of the awakened ones was far faster than ordinary people. Moreover, the Azure Dragon Legion was afraid of being scattered by the Beast Tide, so they didn't dare to split into small groups and chose to march in a group. This way, it was effortless to find them. He Chuan brought 300 awakened ones and used the foresight of the deductive system to avoid the increasingly dense area of exotic beasts. But the Azure Dragon Legion wasn't so lucky. There were too many of them. After setting up a defensive formation, every step they took would send a flock of birds flying. Many strange beasts were already watching them in the dark. In the evening, they launched a wave of attacks in tacit understanding. The battle cries shook the sky for a moment, so much so that even the strange beasts in the distance were attracted over. All the heavy shield 100 man regiments, go and block the strange beasts that are charging at us. The hatchet men, cooperate with us to kill them. Let's get rid of them first. Azure Dragon Marshal gave the order from the center of the battlefield. Archers, prepare the rockets. Burn down the forest on the west side. Don't let those strange beasts come over. A few troops moved quickly. Soon, the strange beasts that were surrounded by the heavy shield soldiers could no longer kill as fiercely as they had when they first entered the battlefield. Although the shields the Azure Dragon Legion provided couldn't block a few attacks from the strange beasts, they had the advantage in numbers. If one of them couldn't hold on any longer, their teammates would immediately replace them. While exhausting the exotic beast's stamina, there were also hatchet men attacking from the flanks. Not long after, the strange beasts actually became riddled with wounds under this kind of tactical system. However, it was still a little difficult to kill them truly. Looks like the Azure Dragon Legion's luck today is a little bad. Just as the battle situation was tense. He Chuan moved. He brought a few hundred awakened ones and turned into a sharp arrow, piercing straight into the Azure Dragon Legion's defense gap. In just a few seconds, they had rushed to the center of the battlefield and destroyed more than 1,000 man regiments in a row. They didn't even have time to warn the others. Just as the Azure Dragon Legion Marshal sensed that something was wrong, he turned his head and saw a figure shrouded in flames. The next moment, he lost consciousness. His head separated from his body and fell to the ground with a bang. The adjutants around him were all dumbfounded. Before they could react, they saw the assailant quickly retreat and run out of the battlefield. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. There's an assassin. Sir is dead. The marshal is dead. Panicked shouts rang out one after another. It immediately caused the originally orderly battlefield to become chaotic. He Chuan secretly observed for a while. Not long after the news of Azure Dragon Marshal's death spread. Deserters appeared. Moreover, the situation was getting worse and worse. In just a few minutes, the number of people present had been reduced by half. 
apart from those who were entangled by the strange beasts, almost all of them had left this place. Many of them are injured. They should be able to attract the beast tide over. He Chuan achieved his goal. He did not stay in the wilderness any longer and immediately brought his subordinates back to Glory City. That night, the scout sent news. A large group of beast hordes was going around Glory City. They were heading southeast from the forest at the side. That was the direction where the Azure Dragon Legion was fleeing. After hearing this news, everyone in Glory City smiled as if they had been relieved of a heavy burden. The city lord saved their lives again. Chapter 88 Glory City could not withstand the storm. He Chuan had made a good plan this time, bringing Glory City a precious buffer time. The beast tide that was triggered more than ten days earlier by the natural disaster had caught everyone by surprise. If they did not do something, Glory City would definitely fall into this disaster. However, this strategy could only be used once. No second Azure Dragon Legion could share the pressure for him again. If he wanted to avoid the outcome of Glory City's destruction in the deduction, increasing his strength was undoubtedly the most crucial step. Thus, in the next few days, he Chuan directly went into seclusion to cultivate. The tyrannical true cultivation manual was fully circulated, and the efficiency increased tremendously under the Heavenly Tao's blessing. So much so that on the third day, He Chuan successfully broke through to the third stage awakened. It wasn't just him. The awakened ones in the city also began to practice the guiding technique diligently, all working hard to become stronger. Although the final result wasn't as abnormal as He Chuan breaking through to the third stage, many had made significant progress after absorbing the spiritual crystals. They believed that as long as they were given another half a month, there would be people who could advance to a higher realm. However, time did not wait for them. Glory City had not been peaceful these few days. A few strange beasts would still attack them on a daily basis. The number of attacks increased as time passed, making them extremely annoying. It was obvious that the Azure Dragon Legion, which had been used as bait, was about to be wiped out. It was estimated that the beast tide would pounce on them soon. At this moment, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. He felt the abnormally abundant spiritual energy in his body, and his heart calmed down a little. Now, with his strength, he might be able to deal with the strange beasts that had appeared in the deduction. But it wasn't certain. After all, he hadn't actually met them before, and it was hard to say who was stronger or weaker. He had two ways to prove this conjecture. The first way was to go out of the city and try to find two strange beasts. This was the simplest and most straightforward way. The second way was to use the ability to deduce the future. This, great deduction technique, could help him find the most likely outcome. It could save a lot of time. But He Chuan thought it over carefully and decided to go out of the city. The energy required for the free deduction technique was too excessive. After the deduction, he might be unconscious for another one or two days. Moreover, the effect was minimal. The last deduction lasted only a few minutes. Now that he had broken through to the third stage, it would at most double the time. What was the use of this? The information he obtained was too little. He only knew the ending of the destruction of Glory City. To him, there was no other use other than increasing the pressure. He might as well forget about this ability and put it aside. When he cultivated to the seventh stage or the eighth stage of the Awakened, or even the ninth stage, he could use it to deduce the world and obtain a higher score. Using it to save Glory City was an overkill. He Chuan felt he could do it without using the free deduction technique. Then, he found Su Ku and described the scene he saw in the deduction world. He wanted to see if the other party knew the exact location. Unfortunately, without a landmark as a reference, Su Ku did not even know the general direction. He Chuan had no choice but to go out and look for it himself. In his impression, that ape-like strange beast was especially fierce. So far, he had not encountered an existence more potent than it. As long as he could get rid of it, he could also prove his strength from the side. When Su Ku, Lin Cheng, and the others heard that the city lord was going out, they were a little worried. After all, there were more and more strange beasts hiding outside the glory city. One person's strength was limited. 
Now, not to mention finding high-level strange beasts, even getting out of the forest outside the city was a problem. Don't worry. I'm not stupid. Why would I take the risk of dying? As he spoke, He Chuan decisively showed them the power of a spirit cultivator. He stood on the city wall and simply spread out his five fingers. Instantly, spirit energy swept out like a gale, and as it circulated, it burned with a bang, turning into a massive fireball. Under the influence of He Chuan's outstanding fire control ability, countless flaming arrows were condensed and shot toward the strange beasts in the dense forest. For a time, the wails continued without end. None of the strange beasts could withstand this casual attack. Everyone was dumbfounded. The city lord had only been in closed-door cultivation for a few days. How did he become so fierce? Su Ko scratched his head in disbelief and asked in puzzlement, Your Highness, have you broken through to the fifth stage awakened? How can it be that fast? He Chuan chuckled, It's only the third stage. Didn't I teach you guys how to differentiate the stages before? The standard for a third stage awakened is to kill a medium-sized strange beast that's six to nine meters long one-on-one -on -one Lin Cheng was stunned as well. You're too outstanding. Not only did you kill more than one beast, but you're also a few hundred meters away. One day, when you're successful in your cultivation, you'll be able to do it too. I'll look for the strange beasts first. After you clean up those corpses, be on guard. If you encounter a beast tide, shout with your spiritual energy. I'll rush back when I hear you. With that, He Chuan tapped his right foot lightly and leaped into the sky with the help of the rebound force. Spiritual energy gushed out from his body, turning into a streak of blue light and shooting into the distant horizon. Seeing this scene. Everyone was stunned again. Spirit Cultivator. Were they really that handsome? Chapter 89. In the forest, the cries of beasts were incessant. He Chuan flew over the seemingly endless forest, his speed increasing to the maximum. Unfortunately, even though he had roughly checked all the strange beasts within a radius of tens of miles around Glory City within a few minutes, the result was still nothing. Not to mention those strange beasts that could control the power of elements, he didn't even see one that was more than ten meters long. After flying for a while more, He Chuan couldn't hold on any longer. He returned to the ground to recuperate. Although this search was very efficient, it consumed a lot of spiritual energy. In just a short while, nearly 30% of his spiritual energy in had been consumed, which greatly affected his combat power. He had no choice. In order to avoid any unexpected situations, he could only use his tyrannical true cultivation manual to recover his condition. When the spiritual chi in his body was almost full, He Chuan resumed his search. In the end, he found the corpse of a strange beast not too far away. He walked up and saw the beast's body was covered with mottled weapon wounds. The fatal wound was the penetrating wound on its heart, and frost surrounded its fur. It seemed to be the work of a spirit cultivator who could control ice. He Chuan frowned slightly. With the beast tide flooding in, how could there still be awakened ones adventuring outside? It would have been fine if it had been under normal circumstances. Most of the strange beasts were defending their territory and wouldn't run around. No matter how loud the fight between you and the strange beasts was, it wouldn't cause other strange beasts to come and join in. But it was different now. The strange beasts had long gone into a frenzy. Unless you killed them instantly, the nearby strange beasts would definitely come and attack them in groups upon hearing the sound. Judging from the traces left at the scene, it was definitely not the former. There were quite a number of giant strange beasts running trails on the ground. It was evident that this awakened was in trouble. Should I go and take a look? He Chuan pondered for a while in his heart, but in the end, he decided to follow the tracks. There were a few footprints on the ground that were unusually large. It might be the target he was looking for. Judging from the unmelted frost, the battle should not be over for long. With his speed, it would be effortless for him to catch up with the beasts. He Chuan circulated his spiritual energy and rose into the air again. Not long after, he saw a large group of beasts gathering at the foot of a cliff. Taking a closer look, the scene was too horrible to look at. 
In the center, there was a beautiful girl who was covered in ice crystals. She was covered in blood, and there were a few wounds on her thighs and chest caused by being pierced by sharp teeth. It seemed that she had died from her serious injuries. However, the ice crystals were exceptionally tough. The beasts couldn't leave any deep marks even after chewing on them repeatedly, so her corpse could still be preserved for the time being. The strength of this kind of spiritual energy was probably close to the peak third stage awakened. Apart from that, there was also a large pile of mutilated corpses being devoured by dozens of small-sized strange beasts. All of them were beyond recognition, and none were spared. Judging from the weapons scattered on the side, this team of awakened ones should have more than thirty people. Even they had died here, so the strength of the strange beasts could be clearly seen. He Chuan then turned his gaze to the strange beasts around him. As expected, he saw a few existences with abnormally strong auras. There was actually that ape-type strange beast he had met in the deduction back then among them. Let me see how powerful you are. He immediately made his move without saying a word. Flames lit up, and the high temperature instantly ignited the entire mountain forest. Raging flames raged along with it. Countless strange beasts died upon contact, and even the ice crystals wrapped around the young girl melted bit by bit under the terrifying temperature. In an instant, only a few strange beasts that could control elements were left. They roared at the sky in unison, using their respective abilities trying to knock He Chuan down from the sky. He Chuan was prepared for the battle. First, he used the flame barrier to protect his entire body. Then, he took out the demonic Buddhist monk knife he had never used before. The knife's was shrouded in black chi. Just by holding it in his hand, he could feel the evil power retained within. He felt it would be a challenging battle for him, so he attacked with his strongest skill. In the end, the blade slashed down. The strong wind swept over. Not only did it disperse the attacks of those strange beasts, but the extended blade energy also easily cut through their bodies. What was going on? The unrivaled existence in the deductive world was as useless as a piece of paper in front of him. Am I too strong? He Chuan was greatly surprised. He lowered his head to look at the weapon in his hand. Or is this demonic knife too powerful? Roar! Below him, the ape-like strange beast with its arms and legs chopped off let out an indignant roar. He Chuan kept away the demonic knife and fought with it, but the result was still the same. All the strange beasts, including the giant ape, were killed in one move by him. They had no room to fight back at all. They were ridiculously weak. Could this be the reason for the destruction of Glory City? Could it be that he had guessed wrong? He Chuan felt that it wasn't that simple. He felt he had overlooked some details but couldn't figure out what they were at the moment. Forget it. Let's not dwell on this. He Chuan felt that the core issue was still his strength. If he was now a ninth stage awakened and had reached the peak of the world, would he still be worried about the beast tide? There was no need for that. He immediately burned all the corpses of the beasts and collected all the spirit crystals, preparing to bring them back to Glory City. After that, there was only the corpse of a young lady whose ice crystals mainly had melted. H.M. Wait a minute. She didn't seem to be dead yet. When He Chuan got closer, he realized that the young lady's body was still emitting spiritual energy fluctuations. The ice elemental energy was even healing the wound bit by bit. However, it seemed to be very slow. It seemed the girl had used a large amount of spiritual energy to resist the invasion caused by his fire ability in order to maintain the existence of the ice crystals. Otherwise, if he let her heal herself like this, she might still be able to survive. This made He Chuan feel a little embarrassed. If it weren't for him, she wouldn't have died if the beasts lost their patience and dispersed. Chapter, 90 In that case, I better make up for it. Out of guilt, He Chuan planned to bring the girl back to Glory City. On the way, he kept using spirit crystals to replenish her spiritual energy, so it didn't worsen the situation. When he arrived at Glory City, the ice crystals had already recovered to their original thickness. Very good. Just as he had expected. This way, he wouldn't have to bear the psychological burden of harming a human life for nothing. He Chuan heaved a sigh of relief. 
Although he had killed countless people, the ones he had killed were all bad people. He had a sense of justice and responsibility to back him up. He had a clear conscience. Facing such a situation suddenly, he felt a little pressured. When Su Ku, Lin Cheng, and the others saw He Chuan had returned so quickly, they were somewhat delighted. However, when they saw the beautiful girl he had brought with him, their gazes became strange again. Your Highness, why did you bring the princess of the neighboring country here? What? I'm not understand. He Chuan put down the ice crystal casually. I met her on the way when looking for the strange beast. I almost killed her, so I brought her back to let her recuperate. Su Ko looked at the wounds on the girl's body and scratched his head. How could you do this to such a beautiful girl? She was already like this when I went there. He Chuan explained, then said, no matter who she is, we'll talk about it after the beast tide is over. Now, find someone to bring her to my residence's guest room to settle her down. You'll go with me to the storehouse. Yes, sir. Although the girl's identity was exceptional, He Chuan didn't pay much attention to her. He was more interested in the statistical report of the storehouse. After checking, he found that the current stock of resources was mostly beast meat and spirit crystals. It was increasing every day and couldn't be used up. If we don't use it, it'll be a bit of a waste. He Chuan turned to look at Su Ku. Is there any way to contact the merchants of Freedom City now? It's very difficult. Su Ko frowned, there are too many strange beasts on the road. If we send too few people, it will be impossible to break through. If we send too many people, it will attract a group of beasts. Unless everyone can fly like your highness, otherwise, there is no way to spread the news. Then there was no other way. He Chuan shook his head secretly. To fly, one must have very precise control over one's strength. And this was the benefit of the tyrannical true cultivation manual. No one else could learn it just because they wanted to. Unless they were strong or experienced enough. As for asking the awakened ones to give up the guiding technique and practice the tyrannical true cultivation manual. This thought has only just appeared when he rejected it. These people didn't even understand the guiding technique. How could they possibly learn the tyrannical true cultivation manual? It wasn't that He Chuan looked down on these people. Geniuses were truly rare. There might not even be one in the entire glory city. If it couldn't be mass-produced, the idea of delivering goods by air wouldn't be feasible. It was better to develop steadily. During the beast tide period, there wasn't much chance for them to spread their wealth. They could talk about it after they got through it. In any case, the city didn't lack resources for the time being and didn't lack that little bit of extra improvement. He Chuan then sorted out the spirit crystals he had harvested from this trip and kept the few from the bodies of strange beasts with elemental energy. He brought them back to his mansion to cultivate in seclusion. He wanted to see what was different about these spirit crystals, so he immediately absorbed them. He held one in each hand. Immediately, Boundless spiritual energy flowed into his arms through the meridians. In just a moment, his body felt full. Eh. He Chuan was astonished. It can be absorbed and fused directly. That was strange. Didn't the spirit crystals have to be absorbed slowly? And they couldn't absorb too much at one time. Otherwise, the violent foreign spiritual energy would go out of control and wreak havoc inside his body. At that time, he would be injured at most, and at worst, he would die. Previously, there were already quite a number of awakened ones in the city who wanted to quickly increase their strength to verify this point. This caused everyone to be cautious when cultivating. But now, could it be that the spiritual energy of this kind of high-grade spirit crystal is gentler? He Chuan couldn't figure out the specific reason. However, this was very good news for him. As long as the quantity was sufficient, advancing to level 4 or even level 5 awakened ones in a short period of time wasn't a problem. Looks like I'll have to leave the city frequently. In the following days, He Chuan's daily tasks were very dull. He left the city during the day to look for strange beasts, and returned to the city at night to cultivate. During this period, the beast tide also attacked the city once. However, the pressure was very normal. 
Currently, the number of awakened ones in Glory City has already exceeded 20 0, 0. Most of them had cultivated to level 2. Their strength was very secure. They could still fight back and forth against medium-sized strange beasts in groups of 3 or 5. Defending the city wasn't a problem at all. However, there were still casualties. Although martial arts cultivators walked the path of strengthening their bodies and their wounds recovered quickly, they couldn't resist fighting and guarding for resources every day. If there were too many injuries, they couldn't hold on. The number of casualties increased. In the blink of an eye, it had become a problem that He Chuan couldn't ignore. There were not enough medicinal herbs in the city. It's really like a house that leaks when it rains. He Chuan had long expected that the beast tide would bring many problems, but he did not expect it to come so quickly. The roads between the cities were not open, making it impossible to do business. Where would he get the medicinal herbs that 20 00 people needed? He once again felt the deep malice of the reincarnated world towards the reincarnators. No wonder it was said the higher the difficulty of the world, the harder it was to obtain a high score. He was still in the initial stage of reincarnation, yet he was unable to deal with such a difficult situation even with deduction system and the rebate as a buff. He could completely imagine how desperate other people would be in such a situation. What should he do? He Chuan leaned back in his chair, his index finger slowly tapping on the table surface, continuously deducing in his mind. Suddenly, an idea flashed through his mind, and he thought of something. Medicinal cuisine. Medicinal ingredients might not be the only ones with medicinal value. Food could also be used. There were so many strange beast meat in the storehouse, and their attributes differed. Why couldn't he make use of them? At that moment, He Chuan directly devoted his entire body and mind to researching medicinal cuisine. Beast meat number one has a bitter and sour taste, has a cold nature, and eating them too much may cause diarrhea. Beast meat number two has a spicy taste, has a hot nature, and eating too much of it has the effect of strengthening the meridians. Beast meat number three. He could analyze it. What he needed to do next was to mix the unique characteristics of the strange beast meat of various attributes through a unique cooking method to achieve a better effect. What He Chuan didn't expect was that his way of thinking was actually incredibly correct, to the point that he had found a way that afternoon. When he sent his subordinates to the military camp with a large pot of soup made from all kinds of strange beast meat, and supplemented by a small number of herbs and crystals. Many people looked at him in surprise. What is wrong with the city lord today? Why is he in such a good mood? Is he cooking for them personally? Chapter, 91 The meat of strange beasts was still too unfamiliar to them. After all, this world of the recovery of spiritual essence was still in its initial stage of development. For more than ten years, the awakened ones had not even figured out the cultivation method, and their overall strength was still at the middle and low level. It was already very good that they could defend this small area of the human race. They simply did not have the ability to explore other things. Not to mention this group of newly awakened ones in front of them. All the knowledge was taught by He Chuan, the little newbie. The concept of medicinal cuisine directly impacted their poor sea of knowledge. When He Chuan explained the effects of medicinal cuisine to them. Although there was the word medicinal in the name of this thing, its effects weren't as simple as treating illnesses and injuries. Tempering the body consolidating the foundation relaxing and expanding the meridians. As long as it was related to cultivation, it included everything. The only thing that needed to be done was to modify the cooking materials. Combining different strange beast meat together. Using a special cooking method to deal with it. Everyone was extremely surprised. Strange beast meat could also increase one's strength. Becoming stronger just by eating. The city lord isn't joking with us, right? Although He Chuan's prestige in Glory City was increasing day by day and had already reached a point where no one could compare to him. But this kind of unheard of effect still made many people suspicious. But when they saw with their own eyes that each and every one of the martial cultivators whose wounds were more than 10 centimeters long recovered within a short few days after taking the medicinal cuisine, leaving only a small scar. This kind of doubt was completely gone. For a moment, everyone was discussing this. 
the city lord is too amazing, right? He has only been in Glory City for a short period of time. Not only did he tidy up the internal affairs of the city, he even trained all of us to become awakened ones. Within a few days, he even developed a medicinal cuisine. Why do I feel that the things he did, if it were me, I might not even be able to do it in ten years? That's not nonsense. His Highness is so talented. How can you and I compare? I really don't understand. His Highness also only had one head and two hands. How can he think of all these? Geniuses are always misunderstood by the world. If His Highness is as bright as the sun and moon, then we are not even considered grass. We are not even on the same level. How can we think of it? You're right. Most people in the city agreed with this statement. They gradually realized the gap between themselves and geniuses. However, this feeling did not make them depressed. His Highness was helping them. They were not enemies. The more powerful His Highness was, the more powerful Glory City would be. Driven by this thought, their belief in defending Glory City became firmer and firmer. It was also because of this that He Chuan unexpectedly received a notification from the Reincarnation Seal. The character settings has been slightly reversed. Has stunning talent of controlling the hearts of the people in a city. The number of followers has exceeded to 99%. The life achievements of the first generation genius and controlling a region have been unlocked. The final rating has been increased significantly. Finally, there was a wave of relatively substantial gains. However, He Chuan was not satisfied with this. He wanted to speed up the process and try to break through himself in this reincarnation, and completely control the application of the great deduction technique. And the realm and strength were the most crucial part. After dealing with the aftermath of the wounded in the city, and handing all the medicinal cuisine recipes to Lin Cheng and Su Ko for safekeeping, he once again went into seclusion. Gradually, the number of beast tides increased day by day. From a few hundred to thousands of medium-sized and small-sized beasts to attack. From the back, tens of thousands of medium-sized beasts attacked the city at the same time. The scene of ten thousand beasts attacking the city was magnificent. The martial arts cultivators used their own flesh and blood to defend the city, and people died in the chaotic battle every second. The beasts were stimulated by the smell of blood and became even more frantic. Occasionally, there were a few large-scale beasts with special abilities that swept across the battlefield, bringing tremendous pressure to the awakened ones who were defending. Such existences were difficult to deal with even for the few spirit cultivators in the new army. Fortunately, He Chuan wasn't in a closed-door cultivation and could help at any time. Otherwise, Glory City would have been destroyed in the face of such a threat. Still a little weak. He Chuan wasn't too satisfied. With the double acceleration of the crystal and the medicinal diet, the strength of the newly awakened legion still couldn't increase quickly. Almost half a month had passed. Not even a level 3 awakened appeared. It was indeed a little ridiculous. He didn't know whether it was because it was more difficult to break through in the high dimensional world or because these people were too lacking in talent. However, after thinking about it carefully, there was no way to be too harsh on them. This year was different from the past. The difficulty of the beast tide this time could be said to be unprecedented. The natural disaster had driven all the strange beasts in the snow mountain range over. Even if they had developed for more than ten years, the Freedom City, which was known as an iron wall, might not be able to withstand this crisis. Not to mention that their glory city, which had already declined and had just developed not long ago, was already in decline. If it's a group battle, the magic cannon should be very useful. He Chuan suddenly remembered the three strategies Lin Ya had set up. However, the magic cannon had been aborted because of the beast tide, so it couldn't be produced. However, it was different now. He was already a level 3 awakened. He could easily fly very far. He could go wherever he wanted. As long as he brought a few precious resources, he could go to other cities to exchange for the blueprint. The closest one was Freedom City. It just so happened that He Chuan wanted to meet the dojo master of the Wuji Dojo and talk about training issues. After Lin Cheng and the others learned about it, they didn't have any objections. They now had full confidence in He Chuan's strength. 
they weren't afraid of him encountering any dangers if he went out. On the contrary. What they had to worry about was whether or not Glory City could be defended when Hichuan left. Lin Ye stepped forward at the right time and started to talk about a detail. The beast tide wasn't endless. After every wave of the beast tide, there would be a period of buffer time. As long as they waited for the next wave of the beast tide to end and sent out scouts to investigate, once they encountered a large number of strange beasts and used the smell of blood to lure them to other places, they should be able to ensure a few days of peace in Glory City. This suggestion was accepted by He Chuan. Thus, after waiting for two days, He Chuan directly took action and annihilated a wave of over 10, 0, 0 medium sized strange beasts. Flames blotted out the sky and covered the earth. Spirit energy turbulence swept through the entire area. Under his unparalleled strength, there was no strange beast that could resist at all. The people in Glory City were all stunned. Even though it wasn't the first time they had seen He Chuan take action. But every time they saw such a scene, they would still be deeply shocked. Too strong. So strong that it was exaggerated. They even felt that if the city lord were to compete with them, he would be able to destroy the entire Glory City with the same casual move. After that, he Chuan packed up his luggage. He brought all the high-grade spirit crystals with him. Just as he was about to leave, he heard the city lord Manners made rushing over to report that the girl who had been frozen in the ice had awoken. He thought about it and decided to turn back to take a look. He planned to ask the girl if she wanted to stay in Glory City for a few days. Not to mention anything else, he could feel much more at ease with such a third-stage spiritual cultivator guarding the city. In the end, when He Chuan saw her, the girl's remarks were astonishing. The first sentence stunned him. The ninth princess of the Su Kingdom, Su Wan, greets husband. Chapter 92 This girl called Su Wan had already changed into a light colored long dress. She was extremely beautiful, and her temperament was gentle and pure. She was like a lotus flower that was untainted by mud. Coupled with the sickly pallor on her face, one could not help but want to take good care of her. Such a beautiful woman introduced herself in such a gentle voice and even called him husband. Most men would not be able to withstand it. But what kind of storm had He Chuan not seen before? He just felt that it was a little strange and asked bluntly, Miss, you have mistaken me for someone else, right? Su Wan shook her head gently, I heard from others that it was you, this gentleman, who saved me. As the old saying goes, a life-saving grace should be repaid with one's body. One heir has no way to repay it. She is willing to serve young master by his side in the future, accompanying him until the black hair turn white. These words sounded reasonable, but the tone was not right. It was light and emotionless. It was obvious that it was done on purpose. As expected of a princess. Her words are quite artistic. He Chuan chuckled. He had already seen through the other party's thoughts. He said, I don't need you to repay me with your body, nor do I need you to repay me. I just need you to make a deal with me. Su Wan's eyes were as clear as water, young master, please speak. Help me defend the city for a few days. After the beast tide passes, I'll send you back to Su country. How about it? Hearing this, a hint of surprise appeared on Su Wan's face. That's it. Of course. He Chuan glanced at her, what else if not this? Su Wan was silent. Although she had just woken up, she was not completely unaware of the time she had been frozen. From the beginning when He Chuan appeared on the cliff, he displayed his might and destroyed the beast tide. Then, he hugged her and sized her up she knew everything when he brought her back to the mansion in the city. Su Wan originally thought that the young man in front of her had taken a fancy to her looks, so he sent someone to take good care of her. He even spent a big amount of rare spirit crystals to nourish her lost spirit energy. Since she was in a foreign country, a strong dragon could not suppress a local snake, so she took the initiative to cater to him on the surface. She was prepared to take the opportunity to escape when the time was right. In the end, this youth had let her go just like this. To be honest, she was somewhat unable to fathom He Chuan's thoughts. She did not know if this youth was playing hard to get, or if he was sincere. 
He Chuan's expression was natural, and he knew what she was thinking. Don't worry, I have no feelings for you. No matter what, I was once a crown prince. If I want to get you, there's no need for such a trick. Su Wan was stunned, crown prince. You are He Chuan. Yes. Hearing the affirmative answer, Su Wan's heart was finally relieved. She had long heard that there was a crown prince called He Chuan in the Wu Kingdom. He was wise, kind, and loved by the people. But how did he end up guarding such a small border town? Out of curiosity, she asked. He Chuan answered simply. When she learned that He Chuan had been demoted, Su Wan let out a soft sigh. Her expression was complicated, and no one knew what she was thinking. How did you come to the Wu Kingdom? And you were surrounded by so many beasts? He Chuan asked. I went to get betrothed. It was just that I happened to run into a beast tide riot. In order to avoid the beast tide, we got lost in the forest. We ran for a long time but couldn't find the main road. Betrothed? He Chuan couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. With the Wu Kingdom? No. Su Wan was a little depressed. The Su Kingdom was fighting with the enemy kingdom. A natural disaster suddenly occurred, which led to 800 00 soldiers being trapped in the valley. The enemy kingdom took the opportunity to kill them. The main forces of the Su Kingdom were exhausted, so they could only choose to cut off their land and make peace to avoid the war. At this point, she smiled self deprecatingly, who would be willing to be the sacrifice of politics? But among my emperor father's seventeen daughters, my concubine mother died a long time ago, and I'm the only one who has no maternal family to protect me. So what if I'm unwilling? He Chuan understood now. It seemed that the impact of this natural disaster was very great. Perhaps it would change the world structure to a certain extent. Recalling what happened to Jiang Wenyue, he felt that he had to be on guard. He turned his gaze and looked at the girl in front of him again. In that case, are you unable to return to the Su Kingdom? Yes. Su Wan buried her head and two clear tears fell at her feet. She felt indescribably sad. If you don't have any ideas and don't have anywhere to go, for the time being, you can stay in Glory City for a while. You can leave whenever you want, and Freedom City isn't far from here. He Chuan's gaze was deep. He had a bold idea in his heart. If you feel indignant and want to take revenge on your emperor father and Su country, I can help you. This time, He Chuan's words were even more shocking, directly stunned Su Wan. Do you know what you're talking about? There was a look of disbelief on her face, as if she had never expected He Chuan to say such a thing. Of course, I know. Why? You don't believe me? He Chuan raised one hand, and the flame rose immediately. The terrifying high temperature swept through the entire room, and many wooden things emitted a burning smell. He looked down at Su Wan and said word by word, Maybe one day, I will do the same thing. In this world, the strong prey on the weak. If you want to control your own future, you have to control the future of others first. Su Wan's heart was a little flustered, but no matter what, that's my emperor father. I didn't ask you to kill him. He Chuan smiled faintly. There are many ways to subvert the regime, and there are many ways to protect yourself. However, it depends on whether you want to live on your knees or not. Su Wan bit her red lips. I will think about it for a while more. You're free to do so. He Chuan walked out of the room, I want to make a trip to the Freedom City. It's okay as long as you can make a choice before I return. Su Wan did not say anything. Oh, that's right. Before he left, He Chuan turned around and threw the tyrannical true cultivation manual to her. It is not enough to help me defend Glory City with your current level. You need to improve yourself. Su Wan took it and watched He Chuan leave in confusion. Then, she flipped to the first page. The contents made her eyes widen. How could there be such a perfect cultivation technique? Chapter 93 He Chuan left Glory City without bumping into anyone else. According to his plan, Su Wan should be able to comprehend the profound mysteries of the tyrannical true cultivation manual soon after she obtained it. 
After all a person like her who could break through to level 3 of the Awakened One at such a young age must be quite talented. She would be entrusted with the responsibility of protecting Glory City for the time being. As for whether the other party would secretly take away the tyrannical True Cultivation Manual and spread it in Sioux Country. He Chuan did not have such concerns at all. Anyway, with the rebate buff, all losses would bring him even greater gains. You want to run away with it? I would be more than happy to. However, after such a short encounter, He Chuan felt that Su Wan was not such a person. He could see that this girl was very opinionated. She was meticulous and knew when to advance and retreat. She should be able to imagine that the best outcome of bringing the tyrannical true cultivation manual back to Sioux country would only be to get rid of the betrothal. However, she will still live under the control of the imperial power. If such a thing happened again one day, she would still become a political victim without any background. Smart people knew how to change. Now that the opportunity was right in front of them, who would ignore it? He Chuan smiled confidently. He had revealed his trump card in front of Su Wan to convince her that he had the ability. As long as Su Wan agreed, he would support her and step by step reach the peak of Su State's power. At that time, he would be in control of the resources in her hands. By then, it would be much more convenient for him to do anything. Especially the rebellion. With the help of other countries' forces, the success rate would be much higher. To be honest, He Chuan did not want to waste his energy on this aspect. However, the crown prince in the imperial court who always wanted him dead was really annoying. If he did not get the words out of the Azure Dragon Marshal's mouth, he did not know that this big brother would actually set up several schemes to frame him before instigating the Azure Dragon Legion to leave Glory City. The most vicious one was to have the Azure Dragon Marshal treat him to a meal under the guise of building a relationship with him, and then secretly put aphrodisiacs in the wine. This was to let his bestiality flare up and have sex with the beautiful woman arranged later. After the dead of night, the Azure Dragon Marshal would send people to kill the woman and frame him. In this way, although he, the 18th prince, was not sentenced to death because of his noble status, it was inevitable that he would have to bear the blame. The people will not not tolerate him. The military camp will look down on him. He will lose all prestige and become a loner. At that time, no matter how capable he was, he would not be able to lead Glory City to prosperity, let alone resist the beast tide. However, for some unknown reason, this method was abandoned by the crown prince and he chose another method. Even so, He Chuan still held a grudge against him. You've given me so many gifts. Don't even think about becoming the crown prince anymore. He Chuan narrowed his eyes and flew up into the sky. It was snowing heavily in the mountains again, and the cries of beasts were incessant. Before he had gone far, he could see a few high-level strange beasts wandering around. It was estimated that they would become part of the siege soon. The beast horde charging at them was getting stronger and stronger. Along the way, they saw no less than a hundred large-scale strange beasts. Compared to the previous beast tide, the number had increased by more than three times. He didn't act rashly. If he burned them all, it might cause the beast tide to become restless. If the beast time attacked earlier than expected, it might not be worth it. Thus, he ran all the way and soon arrived above Freedom City. At first glance, He Chuan only had one impression in his mind. Big. Just the size of Freedom City was enough to crush Glory City. Moreover, the city walls were filled with heavy cannons and arrow towers. Even the city walls were made of unknown black metal. It looked like a steel city. This city's defense was more than ten times stronger than Glory City. The battle cries from below shook the sky. Unfortunately, they encountered a beast tide. The abilities of countless awakened ones interweaved with the radiance of the cannonballs, forming an inviolable line of defense. Medium and small-sized strange beasts would die upon contact. Only large-sized strange beasts could withstand the torrent of energy and charge into an area ten meters away from the city wall with great difficulty. They're a little fierce. They're all spirit cultivators. He Chuan didn't show his face in the air. He silently observed the strength of the city defense of Freedom City. 
most of them were third stage awakened, accounting for about seven tenths of the total. The rest were mostly second level awakened. Only a very small number of them had the strength of a fourth stage. They were the core of the stabilizing battle line. Once a super large strange beast with special abilities broke through the defense line, they would immediately make a move. However, what made He Chuan more puzzled was that these special strange beasts, which he had killed in an instant, were actually fighting back and forth with these fourth stage spirit cultivators. Was this a joke? The quality of the spirit cultivators in Freedom City was so low. With a thought, He Chuan stealthily stuck to the back of a flying strange beast. When the spirit cultivator below launched an attack, under the cover of the light, the flames lit up in an instant, enveloping it and the strange beast at the same time. The people below only saw a black shadow that looked like a shooting star falling straight into the city. Boom! A private house was destroyed. A few spiritual cultivators who had hurried over gathered their spirit energy in their hands at the same time, preparing to strike again. In the end, they saw a youth stand up from the ruins. With one hand, he extinguished the flames on his body while stepping on the charred corpse of the strange beast, muttering something. How dare you attack me? Do you not want to live anymore? Those people were all shocked. One of them went forward to take a look. After confirming that the strange beast was dead, he looked at He Chuan and said with a smile, Little brother, you're so fierce. You're still fine even after falling from such a high height. He Chuan casually waved his hand. I'm lucky. This beast became my meat cushion. You're being modest now, aren't you? That person laughed. The battle on the city wall is very urgent. Do you want to go back with us? Or do you want to recuperate your spirit energy first? I can still fight, He Chuan replied. Good. Young man, you are indeed energetic. The man immediately led the way. Let's go. The magic cannons at the east gate don't have enough shells. Let's go and reinforce the defense first. Magic cannons. He Chuan's eyes instantly lit up. It seemed that his trip had not been in vain. Following the footsteps of these awakened ones, he quickly arrived at the city wall and blended into the defensive camp. The magic cannon was right next to him. Its entire body was dark purple as if it was made of some kind of crystal. The cannonballs that were filled were also very strange. They were small, round balls of different colors, and their power was also different. The deduction system operated in a timely manner. Soon, a part of the target's data was deduced. Magic cannon, made of magic crystals. After being filled with energy crystal cores, it can release powerful force. Chapter, 94 So that was the so-called magic cannon. He Chuan was slightly disappointed. He had thought that it was something that relied on magic to drive in a magical world, where one could control power with a single incantation. In the end, it was just a crystal launcher, and its function was similar to a pistol. This wasn't interesting anymore. As long as he had enough time, he could find materials that could bear the explosion of spiritual power, and he could still make it. Boring. He Chuan wasn't interested in being unable to fuse new things into his trianical true cultivation manual. He turned his gaze back to the battlefield. He wanted to test if the strength of the strange beasts here had grown. Coincidentally, the beast tide was surging outside Freedom City. Without the artillery support from the East Gate, the deterrence on the battlefield was reduced a lot, so it became a breakthrough point for the strange beasts. The beasts from the North and South Gates swarmed over. The pressure on the defense doubled. In less than three minutes, the beast tide had reached the foot of the city. The four awakened ones attacked one after another, but they still couldn't stabilize the situation. It wasn't just the small and medium-sized strange beasts that came over. There were also large strange beasts and special strange beasts. It was already very difficult for them to deal with a dozen special strange beasts one-on-one, -on -one, not to mention dealing with so many other strange beasts. The city wall immediately turned into a pot of porridge. Mist, explosions, thorns, exposure, metalization. All kinds of innate abilities were unleashed at the same time, but the effect was minimal. In a short period of time, a gap was broken in the city wall. 
If not for the huge scale of Freedom City, where the city wall alone was dozens of meters thick, the strange beasts would have long charged into the city and slaughtered the civilians. A small leak may sink a great ship. Don't the guards of Freedom City understand such a simple logic? He Chuan shook his head, I really don't know what they're thinking when they cut off the supply of the magic cannons. He swept his gaze across the city. There didn't seem to be any generals of the Wu Kingdom on the city wall. He didn't know where they had gone. Logically speaking, even if Freedom City was an outlaw land, it still belonged to the Wu Kingdom on the surface and was under the jurisdiction of the generals of the Wu Kingdom. At this moment, you're not here to supervise the battle personally. This is too abnormal. Could it be that the crown prince is causing trouble again? He Chuan couldn't make up his mind, so he decided to investigate it later. However, the most urgent matter now was to test the strength of the strange beast first. Thus, in the midst of the chaos, He Chuan secretly made a move and exchanged a move with a special strange beast. In the end, despite using 50% of his strength, the other party was unharmed. He was only forced back a few steps. It has really become stronger, huh? He Chuan was astonished. The size of this beast could only be considered average among the special beasts. Logically speaking, he should be able to kill it in an instant with 20% of his strength. How could it possibly stop him? Forget it. If 50% of my strength isn't enough, I'll try 80%. He struck again. Boom! Flames burst forth, and with a series of explosions, this special strange beast died on the spot. Not even a speck of dust remained. This move directly shocked the nearby awakened ones, and they couldn't stop exclaiming. Holy shit, which big brother is so fierce that he can kill a fourth stage strange beast in an instant? What did the people of the Wuji Dojo say awakened ones are divided into spirit cultivators and martial cultivators their strength is divided into nine stages according to this, the strongest among us is only at the fourth stage. It's impossible for us to kill it so cleanly. Could it be that one of our big brothers has broken through to stage five? Stop joking, okay? There are only a few stage five awakened in the entire continent. How can they break through so easily? Could it be because of their innate ability? How rare is the fire attribute? It's possible, but have any of you seen such a big brother before? Is there such person in the city? Nonsense, since when did everyone in our freedom city have to reveal their identities? Can't that person not report it? FCK, stop chatting. The strange beasts are pressing on us again. Focus on the battle. FCK, with Big Brother Duan controlling the field, what's there to be afraid of? Charge. Kill these bastards. The awakened ones who were supposed to be on the defensive side suddenly became excited. They howled and fought bravely against the enemy. After they were certain that their big brother was backing them up, the group of people began to fight in a more open and loose manner. Facing some of the strange beasts that had charged up the city wall, they actually dared to engage in close combat without any worries. However, the big brother they spoke of, He Chuan, had long left the city wall without anyone noticing. So the strange beasts are divided according to their levels of strength. Walking on the streets of Freedom City, He Chuan's thoughts were somewhat heavy. According to what those spirit cultivators had said, if a special strange beast of this level was only at the fourth stage, then it meant that there was an even more powerful existence above this level. If this strange beast came to Glory City, would he be able to stop it? I have to think of a way to increase my strength why don't I go and chat with the dojo master of the Wuji Dojo about my cultivation experience. Maybe I can find an opportunity to break through to the fifth stage. He Chuan made up his mind and walked around the various city walls. In the end, he didn't see a single person from the El Wuji Dojo. This was a little strange. Didn't they say that they had come to Freedom City to seek refuge? Why wasn't there anyone there? He had no choice but to pull a random spirit cultivator over to inquire about the situation. He only found out after understanding the situation. It turned out that not long ago, the Wuji Dojo master had left the Freedom City with his disciples and returned to the main dojo. He had been a step late. However, he hadn't been able to find the dojo master. Instead, he had been able to find the city lord of Freedom City. 
This person was currently in a meeting with the high-ranking officials and generals in the city. After listening for a while, he realized that they were actually discussing the reason for this earthquake. They hadn't mentioned the crown prince. The city lord believed Freedom City had never experienced an earthquake before. Such a terrifying disaster that could disrupt the entire mountain range wouldn't appear for no reason at all. A general felt that it was now the time when the spiritual essence was recovering. Even the most unbelievable thing could happen. Perhaps this was an earth-shattering phenomenon caused by some kind of precious treasure about to be born. This statement was unanimously agreed upon by the others. So much so that at the time when the city was besieged by the beast tide, they actually began to plan when they would leave the city to explore. This had nothing to do with him. He Chuan did not have an interest to understand what this group of people wanted to do. He immediately planned to look for the merchants who had come here from Glory City to see if they had any ways to get the blueprint to make the magic cannon. In the end, he had only taken two steps when he heard the people in the meeting room speak his name. Since we are going to take a detour to the Snow Mountain Range, why don't we go through Glory City? We can also take a look at the situation there. If he Chuan dies, we can also report to the Crown Prince. Yo! As expected, there was something. He Chuan narrowed his eyes slightly and stomped on the door of the conference room. A cold wind poured into the room. Along with the fierce spirit energy that had turned into flames on his body, it continuously surged. The more than ten people present were all shocked by this powerful pressure and could not move. They could only turn their gazes. When they saw He Chuan's appearance clearly, everyone was shocked. The Eighteenth Prince. Why is it you? Chapter 95. In your eyes, I'm still the eighteenth prince. He Chuan smiled faintly as he walked into the room. The oppressive aura on his body continued to rise, making it increasingly difficult for everyone present to breathe. Among the dozens of people, the strongest was the city lord, who was already in the fourth stage. However, he was horrified to discover that. He was unable to resist in front of He Chuan, who was only a third stage awakened. Not to mention struggling, he couldn't even use the spiritual energy in his body. How is this possible? The city lord looked at He Chuan, who was getting closer and closer in disbelief. Didn't the eighteenth prince not awaken? How could he have such majestic spiritual energy? This motherfucker. Could it be that he only awakened after he went to take up his post in Glory City? That's not right. It's only been a month or so. Where did he get such powerful cultivation? This question puzzled everyone present. No one could answer it for them. He Chuan naturally wouldn't either. He stood still in the room, his gaze sweeping over everyone as he spoke slowly. Just now, who said they wanted to visit Glory City to visit me? Hearing this, the CTY Lord's gaze flickered, but he did not say a word. Looks like it's you, City Lord. He Chuan had a gentle smile on his face as he looked at him. I'll ask, and you'll answer. Do you agree? Your Highness, if you have any questions, just ask me. It's just that what you've done is a little too much, right? The city lord also laughed, threatening the CTY lord is a serious crime, not to mention there are other high-ranking officials and colleagues present. Even if you're a prince, you can't act so recklessly, right? I'm not interested in playing these roundabout games with you. He Chuan's expression suddenly became abnormally cold, daring to collude with the crown prince to harm the royal descendant. Even if I kill you now, no one will be able to convict me of the crime. As he spoke, flames erupted in the room, and a scorching power instantly swept across the entire area, tightly enveloping them. Do you want to live, or do you want to die? It was as if a voice from the depths of hell had fallen. Several people present could not help but shudder. One of them felt that after looking at the city lord and he chuan back and forth, he would have to rely on himself if he wanted to live. He could not help but shout out loud. Your Highness. I'll speak. Very good. He chuan's gaze shifted, what did the crown prince ask you to do? That person took a deep breath and was about to speak when he was interrupted by the city lord's loud shout. Shut up. The city lord glared at him. If you want to die, don't drag us into it. You have to understand the crown prince's and he Chuan's identity. 
Hearing what he said, the man began to hesitate again. That's right, who is the crown prince? The heir to the throne of the martial kingdom, high officials from all over the world, have to go up and fawn over him. If he were to expose him, wouldn't his entire family be implicated if he was found out? After hesitating for a while, he decided to keep his mouth shut. Seeing this, the city lord also heaved a sigh of relief. He looked at He Chuan with a smile. Your Highness, what do you think? Fight or kill, we will not have any complaints. Then you can go to hell. He Chuan condensed the spiritual energy in his palm and was about to kill the chicken to warn the monkeys when suddenly, he heard a series of hurried footsteps outside the meeting room. His heart moved, and he circulated the spiritual energy to make the door automatically close. The voice of the other party reported from outside very quickly. My lord. Something bad has happened. He Chuan asked calmly, what's wrong? The east city wall has fallen. Hearing this, the city lord's expression changed drastically. He asked anxiously, how is that possible? Didn't I arrange for six fourth stage spirit cultivators to guard it? There are also hundreds of magic cannons to cover the attack. How could it be broken through so quickly? There's a problem with the logistics. The supply of cannonballs has been cut off, resulting in a gap in the battle line. All the strange beasts nearby have attacked. The awakened ones in the city have suffered heavy casualties. They've all retreated to defend the inner city now. You motherfucker. The city lord cursed, how could there be a problem with the logistics? I've just received the reserve resources from the imperial court, and 300,000 crystals are gone just like that? Sir it's because rat-type mutated beasts are attacking from underground, and there are no awakened ones guarding the warehouse. Even the quartermaster was wiped out. FCK, why didn't you report this earlier? You were the one who said that you wanted to hold a secret meeting and that no one was allowed to get close. Then why didn't you let the awakened ones investigate? Why did you wait until now to tell me? You didn't allow these external forces to get close to the storehouse, so we didn't dare decide on our own. How's the battle situation now? All the fourth stage spirit cultivators have managed to escape. As for the rest more than half of them died. It was over. It was all over. The city lord took a deep breath, feeling as if the world had turned dark. Freedom City was most proud of the indestructible defensive facilities in the outer city. Now without the protection of this expensive equipment, how could the walls in the inner city, which were only made of stone, withstand the attack of the beast tide? It was all He Chuan's fault. He would have taken charge of the overall situation if he had not come here. How could such a big mistake happen? The more the city lord thought about it, the angrier he got. He could not help but look at He Chuan with a hateful gaze. Look at what you've done. He he, now no one can think of living anymore. Let's die together. Noisy. He Chuan snorted coldly. The flames on his hand condensed and quickly transformed into a long sharp arrow. It shot forward and went through the city lord's head. The latter fell straight down as if he had been electrocuted. The ten or so people beside him could not help but feel a chill down their spine when they saw this scene. The eighteenth prince was not as gentle and refined as the rumor said. He killed as he pleased without giving the other party a chance to struggle. Then, the next moment, they saw He Chuan's gaze slowly turn and look over. Do you want to live? The corners of his mouth lifted slightly, like a smiling demon. Live? How? Someone sneered, now that the beast tide has broken through the city, we are like turtles in a jar. No one can think of leaving. Is that so? He Chuan suddenly stomped on the ground with one foot and then used the rebound force to fly into the air. He flies. When he used this move, it immediately caused everyone present to turn pale. Do you still think that I can't leave? No one said anything, and everyone was silent. Looks like you all don't want to live anymore. He Chuan shrugged indifferently, originally, I thought that you all still had some value and that it wasn't impossible to bring you to Glory City to interrogate you for two days. But now, it seems that you don't cherish this opportunity. At this moment, the expressions of several people changed. The person who wanted to give up the crown prince immediately responded. 
If your highness can protect my family, feel free to ask me anything. I will definitely do my best. Very good. From now on, follow my orders, understand? Understand. All right. He Chuan snapped his fingers. Instantly, the pressure on this person disappeared without a trace. Go, drag out those who had participated in the Crown Prince's plot. The other party immediately took action, directly pushing the three people to the ground. Your Highness, it's them. I only know the surface information of the matter between the Crown Prince and the City Lord. These few know more. Chapter, 96 You dog, you betrayed me. Damn it, you're going to die a horrible death. When I get out of here, I'm going to teach you a lesson. The three people who had been pointed out cursed loudly without caring about their image. However, when they saw He Chuan's slightly furrowed brows, they immediately shut their mouths. The city lord's death was still fresh in their minds. No one dared to be the unlucky one at this moment. Don't scold him so quickly. I didn't say that I wanted to kill you. He Chuan chuckled. If you want to live, you must work harder, understand? The three of them were stunned. What did the 18th prince mean by this? He Chuan did not explain further. He made them listen to his orders and began mobilizing the city's soldiers and civilians. Although these people all had ulterior motives, they had reached a short-term consensus on the matter of survival. In the face of such a huge crisis like the Beast Tide, even if they wanted to resist, they did not have the ability, let alone the opportunity. Therefore, in the face of He Chuan's orders, they did not dare to make any changes and worked exceptionally hard to implement them. It took them less than three minutes to collect the magic cannon blueprints and find the blacksmiths. He Chuan, who had achieved his goal, began thinking about bringing these people out of the city. He did not expect that the Heavenly Dao rebate buff would be triggered. Defend the city against the beast tide, you can activate the law of karma, thousands miles of dead souls. Reward, compensation from the imperial court. Give up on defending and lead the citizens to flee the city. Successfully defend the city against the beast tide in Glory City, you can activate the law of karma, number one in the world. Reward, massive rewards. He Chuan's eyes immediately lit up. Could it be that after he killed the city lord, he could control the people in the city, causing the heavenly Dao rebates buff to think that the freedom city was his property? Good heavens, there was such a good thing. Moreover, regardless of whether it was defended or not, there would be rewards. The second reward was even more enticing. What was a massive reward mean? This meant that there was more than one reward. There might be something that could allow him to break through quickly. It was just that it was challenging to complete. Not only did he have to lead the citizens to flee the city, he also had to lead Glory City to survive the entire Beast Tide in the future. This difficulty was even greater than him overturning the Wu Kingdom and declaring himself king. However, there was nothing he could do. The conditions were set. There was no place to change them, even if he wanted to. It just so happened that he couldn't stay in Freedom City. He just had to take the opportunity. It was just that countless strange beasts had already filled the area between the inner and outer cities. He couldn't break through directly under the situation where all the fourth stage awakened ones had fled. It wasn't realistic to kill the beast tide alone. What should I do? Standing at the highest point of the inner city and looking at the dense magic cannons on the outer city wall, He Chuan's heart skipped a beat. Got it. He still had ten high-grade spirit crystals, which were the energy source of the fourth stage strange beast. He had just asked the generals in the city. Currently, no one could kill the fourth stage strange beast, so there wasn't even a single fourth tier spirit crystal stored in the storehouse. Under such circumstances, if the magic cannon could resist the beast tide with ordinary spiritual crystals, what would the effect be if it was a fourth tier spiritual crystal? He immediately works on it. He Chuan immediately flew to the East City Wall and used his innate ability to sweep away a large number of small strange beasts that were eating corpses. Then, he found a magic cannon that could still be used, and tried to put in a fourth-tier spirit crystal before activating it with spiritual energy. Instantly, the body of the cannon lit up with a dazzling white light. No one knew what had happened. 
After a loud boom that shook heaven and earth, the mountains trembled, and the world shook. When the light dissipated, they looked at the field again. There was already a vast bottomless pit in the city. The tens of thousands of strange beasts surrounding the area were directly reduced by one-tenth. Among them, there was also a fourth-stage strange beast. However, because it had been greatly strengthened, it did not die. However, most of its body had already been destroyed by the endless radiance of energy. They believed that it wasn't far from death. How terrifying! He Chuan himself didn't expect it either. Logically speaking, the fourth-tier spirit crystals he had were all obtained in the past. In terms of strength, they were far inferior to the fourth-stage strange beasts here in Freedom City, so they shouldn't have such oppressive effects. What's the reason? He was careful and decided to explore it in the future when he had time. Right now, it was more important to save the people here. There were still nine spirit crystals left, and he used them all. Boom! 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 Amidst the explosions, deep pits appeared one after another on the ground. The pits connected and became an insurmountable ravine. There was one on each side, and the middle road became relatively safe. As long as the remaining strange beasts were eliminated, the people in the inner city would naturally be able to head to the outer city and leave under his protection. After that, it was time for the awakened ones to shine. They wanted to live too. No one was willing to feed their own flesh and blood to the strange beasts as food. They were all fighting with their lives on the line at such a critical moment. After that, He Chuan personally stepped in to protect them, and no fourth stage strange beasts could get close. Soon, a troop of nearly 100 000 people marched out of the city. The strange beasts were extremely furious. They let out terrifying roars, but there was nothing they could do. He Chuan had adjusted the landing point of the cannonball so that the holes created by the explosions were slanted. There was no way for them to climb up the walkway through the soft soil. They could only stand by the moat's edge and watch the large group of food left. In order to prevent them from pursuing him, he even set a fire at the gap of the east city wall. The fire spread quickly through his spirit energy, directly sealing the strange beasts within the city. Those who dared to touch it were all turned into ashes. The small strange beasts scattered outside were even less of a concern. A third stage awakened could quickly deal with them, so he didn't need to deal with them at all. Half of the operation to escape the city had been completed. Now, they had to think of a way to safely bring such a huge team to Glory City. Chapter, 97 It was peaceful outside of Freedom City. He actually escaped. Several generals who were subordinate to Freedom City felt that it was unbelievable. This was the siege of hundreds of thousands of beasts. If it was changed to an ordinary fourth stage awakened, forget about saving people, even protecting themselves would be a problem. In the end, you, a third stage spiritual cultivator, single handedly fished 100 000 people out of the sea of beasts. Ridiculous. Unreasonable. If such a feat were to be spread out, perhaps no one would believe it. Apart from being surprised, their impression of He Chuan also changed quite a bit. If there was still hostility before, now there was only respect for his strength. Because they knew. They were not qualified to be He Chuan's enemy. Under this psychological influence, all the higher-ups of Freedom City began to restrain their troops, making them obey He Chuan's orders entirely and treat him as the highest entity. Needless to say, the ordinary people. They were rootless duckweed to begin with, only knowing how to drift with the tide. Only some merchants and family members with a bit of fame could have a say in some small matters. On the other hand, the awakened ones were a bit dishonest and wanted to leave one by one. They all felt Glory City was not a good place to go and planned to leave the team and fly alone. He Chuan did not stop them. This group of people either wanted thieves or scumbags who caused trouble. Because of various reasons, they were forced to come to Freedom City to survive. To them, Freedom City was just a shelter. The little sense of belonging disappeared with the destruction of Freedom City. The lives of 100 000 people and soldiers were even less important. To bring such a person to Glory City, even if they were a spiritual cultivator, they would not be of much help. They might even cause him trouble. 
Very quickly, as the Awakened left the team one after another, the fighting strength of the entire team also decreased sharply. The people had some complaints about this, and uneasiness spread in everyone's hearts. The army was still all right. It seemed that the mental quality of the soldiers in Freedom City was pretty good. There were no riots. With their help in restraining the people, it did not cause much of a problem for Hichuan. However, the most important thing at the moment was to make preparations in advance to deal with the possible dangers that might follow. He Chuan looked down at the entire scene from midair. Looking at the vast and mighty army under his feet, he felt a little troubled. The movement caused by the marching of 10,000 people was really too big. The strange beasts were born with keen senses. He believed that they would be besieged by them very soon. Now that the main force had entered the dense forest, fighting in such an environment was very disadvantageous to them. The most significant limitation was that He Chuan couldn't abuse his innate ability. Otherwise, once a forest of fire was triggered, the civilians and the army wouldn't be able to move in time. What should he do? He Chuan looked at the army. As they had fled from Freedom City in a hurry, they didn't have enough supplies. He didn't bring any spirit crystals or heavy armor or shields. They even had only brought a small portion of inscription arrows that Freedom City had spent a lot of money to buy, which could easily penetrate the fur of a second-stage strange beast. In order to leave Freedom City as quickly as possible, all the soldiers had to travel light. In the eyes of the unawakened strange beasts, they were just a pile of meat that could move. Well. There were only four magic cannons left. He had personally moved them down from the city tower. It was just that he had acted too hastily back then and hadn't noticed three of them had been destroyed. As a result, only one of them was of use now. Could he do something about it? He Chuan closed his eyes and started deducing. His brain was working rapidly. Very soon, the deducing system gave him an interesting answer. The success rate of using the magic cannon to resist beast tide is 0.006%. The success rate of utilizing the magic cannon to resist the beast tide is 73.81%. What does it mean? Was the deduction system broken? He Chuan frowned slightly, but soon, the corner of his mouth curled up into a smile. As expected of the deduction system, it helped him find the key to solving the problem so quickly. In fact, Facing the potential danger of the beast tide attacking, he should not have thought about how to face them. To be honest, if he wanted to ensure the safety of 100 people and soldiers in the wild, it would be impossible without the protection of more than twice the number of awakened ones. However, as long as he simply changed his train of thought and prevented the beast tide from attacking, the problem would be solved. It was not difficult to do this. He just needed to create a bigger commotion in the distance to cover up the noise of the army's movement, and attract the attention of the beast tide. The magic cannon was the best choice. However, he didn't have any spirit crystals on hand, so he could only hunt on the spot. He Chuan immediately took action. He directly hunted dozens of strange beasts nearby as reserves. He brought the magic cannon high up in the sky and fired at the area thousands of meters away from both sides of the team. Boom. 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 The deafening sound continued without end. With the spread of a highly terrifying energy shock, he attracted the attention of many strange beasts at once. He Chuan could clearly see that all the strange beasts within a few hundred meters from where the cannonball had landed were rushing over. Not bad. The effect was excellent. He had only used a second-tier spiritual crystal just now. It should have been more effective if it had been a third-tier spiritual crystal. However, he still had to pay attention to the shockwave range. If he had missed, the casualties caused would definitely be much greater than the beast tide's attack. Apart from that, they also had to pay attention to the strange beasts in the blind spots. They had already sneaked close to the team, ready to attack at any time. He Chuan had no time to split himself up, so it was difficult for him to react at the first moment. Fortunately, there were still a dozen or so third-stage awakened generals in the army. With their help and the few inscription arrows the soldiers carried, they could stabilize the situation as long as they didn't encounter a fourth-stage strange beast. With the help of many people, the team advanced steadily. 
After two days and two nights of arduous travel, they finally arrived at the deserted Gobi Desert. Chapter, 98 The team had no place to hide in the endless yellow sand region. They were constantly exposed to the vision of the strange beasts. The awakened ones and the soldiers were guarding the outer perimeter. They were on full alert while the civilians were protected in the center. After traveling for the past few days, everyone was exhausted and needed proper rest. He Chuan stood mid-air and looked into the distance, ready to deal with unusual situations. After a few days of migration, the civilians and soldiers of Freedom City gradually changed their initial views of Yichuan. Unlike the other princes and nobles who were indifferent to the lives of the civilians, the 18th prince was willing to charge at the forefront at the crucial moment and fight with the strange beasts. The yellow sand was blown by a gentle breeze, causing ripples. He Chuan's gaze suddenly turned sharp because the ripples caused by the yellow sand weren't caused by the wind but by the strange beasts hidden under the yellow sand. They were heading towards their resting place. Everyone, be on alert. There are strange beasts beneath the desert. He Chuan quickly gave the order, and at the same time, his mind began to deduce the results rapidly. The system quickly gave the results of the deduction. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King in the desert led the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion group to attack. You chose to lead all the soldiers and awakened ones to stay behind to resist. However, the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions broke through the defensive circle, and the battle caused a large number of casualties. You suffered heavy losses, and your reputation fell. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions seemed very difficult to defend against. If the main force stayed behind to resist, it would instead cause casualties. It would be better to cover the rear and buy time. He Chuan immediately gave the order, escort the people to continue advancing towards Glory City. There must be no mistakes. He did not have time to make any further deductions. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions were moving extremely fast in the desert. It would be difficult for ordinary soldiers and people to escape if they were surrounded. Your Highness, what about you? We will never abandon Your Highness. Your Highness, you and the people should leave first. Let us stay behind to cover the rear. The eyes of a few brave soldiers turned red. They knew He Chuan's intention. In such a dangerous situation as the 18th Prince, he was actually willing to stay behind and cover the rear. Military orders are as heavy as a mountain. I will be fine. Move quickly. He Chuan took out the magic cannon and inserted the few remaining magic crystals into it. He flew high into the sky and fired a shot at the dense area of the Crimson Sand Scorpions. He wanted first to disrupt the sight and route of the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions and, at the same time, to buy time for the retreating troops. The awakened soldiers accepted He Chuan's order and quickly left with the panicked troops. Everyone's fatigue disappeared in fear, and their instincts drove them to run for their lives. Boom! The magic crystal cannon's energy exploded in the desert's depths with a loud bang. Blood-stained yellow sand flew in the air, mixed with minced meat and green juice, scattering in all directions. The death of its kin angered the crimson sand demon scorpion king. It rolled out from under the yellow sand. Its body was nearly five meters long, and it looked like it was wearing a white ghostly mask on its back. The creepy face was the size of a basketball and looked terrifying. The scorpions were each more than one meter long, and they were even bigger than adult wild dogs. They all jumped up high and used the poisonous hooks on their tails to attack He Chuan, who was in the air. He Chuan, who was in the air, immediately rose to a higher altitude. The Scarlet Sand Scorpion's jumping ability was terrific, and a few of them almost pierced the surface of his feet. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King shot out a stream of dark poison toward He Chuan, who was in the air. He Chuan did not dare to take it head on. He used his speed to dodge it. The poison did not hit the target, and it floated down from the air, making a sizzling sound of corrosion. Fortunately, he had the advantage in the air. Otherwise, he would be in a dangerous situation when facing the Scarlet Sand Demon Scorpion group. The Scarlet Sand Demon Scorpion King angrily opened its bloody mouth and let out a low and hoarse roar. The scorpions received the order and moved on the surface of the yellow sand like surging waves. 
After getting into formation, they shot out dark green venom at He Chuan, who was in the air. The venom that filled the sky was even fiercer than the Gatling machine gun and surrounded He Chuan. At this moment, the marshal who had led the troops away turned around and saw this terrifying and unforgettable scene. The experienced marshal could not help but sigh. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions were well coordinated in team battles, advancing and retreating freely. They were able to carry out their orders and even reach the level of the human army. They were the most difficult opponents to deal with. The marshal could only silently pray for good luck for He Chuan. He Chuan activated his tyrannical true cultivation manual to protect his body, while carefully avoiding the venom. The magic cannon fired two more shots at the dense area of the crimson sand scorpions. The magic cannon mercilessly harvested the lives of the scorpions, fresh blood dyed the yellow sand, and the bloody smell was even more pungent under the sunlight. Unfortunately, there were not many spiritual crystals left. Otherwise, the magic cannon alone would be enough to make the crimson sand scorpion suffer. He Chuan needed to buy enough time for his troops to escape. He took out the demonic Buddhist monk knife and landed on the ground, launching an attack on the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King. The two-meter-long poisonous hook of the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King was as agile as a spear, stabbing straight at He Chuan, who was charging at him. The sharp poisonous hook emitted a strange black light as if it was going to tear the air apart. He Chuan narrowly avoided it. The poisonous hook brushed past his cheek. If his skin and flesh were cut open, the strong poison would flow through his blood and enter his heart, killing him instantly. The two unlucky crimson sand demon scorpions could not dodge in time. Like candied haws, they were easily penetrated by the sharp poison hook. They struggled in pain a few times and lost their lives. The crimson sand demon scorpion king shook off the corpse on the poison hook. It wanted to continue attacking but found that it had lost its target. He Chuan took advantage of the opponent's missed attack and used his agility to circle around the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King's broad back armor. The demonic Buddhist monk knife in his hand slashed downwards diagonally. Sensing the danger behind its head, the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King instinctively swayed its body, trying to dodge the fatal attack. However, it was still a step too late. The demonic Buddhist monk knife brushed past the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King's head, and a wound as long as a thin line appeared on its head, slowly oozing blood. Half of its black head flew up. Red, white, and green juices mixed together, and the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King fell onto the yellow sand. The Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion group lost its command and temporarily fell into a state of chaos. Seeing this, He Chuan immediately turned around and flew in the direction where the main group had left. He Chuan, who had left, did not notice that there was a violent vibration coming from below the yellow sand. A scorpion that was even bigger than the dead crimson sand demon scorpion king slowly emerged from under the yellow sand. Its body was eight meters long, and the surrounding crimson sand demon scorpion group was as small as ants. On its huge head stood a scorpion that was dark gold in color. It was about one seven meters tall, and its body stood upright like a human. Its carapace covered its face, and two pieces of golden chest armor wrapped around its bulging chest. The scorpion didn't have a single bit of fat on its waist, but its lower body was the crimson sand scorpion's unique four pairs of legs. Just looking at its upper body, it was impossible for it to be one entity with the strange beasts. The giant scorpion looked at the countless corpses around it and roared at He Chuan's back. It wanted to take revenge for the deaths of its kind. Hiss. Hiss. The golden half-human half-scorpion on top of the giant scorpion's head let out a hoarse low-frequency sound. Its scarlet eyes emitted light of wisdom. The giant scorpion seemed to have been reprimanded. It immediately lowered its huge head and submitted to the noble queen. Chapter, 99. Congratulations on successfully leading the people to escape and safely arrive at Glory City. The law of karma wise general has been rewarded. Successfully leading Glory City to resist the onslaught of all the beast tide. The law of karma number one in the world has been rewarded. He Chuan's face immediately revealed a look of joy. He did not expect the mission to be a two-stage reward. He once again used his deductive ability. 
distributing resources, able to activate the law of karma, thousands of gold are gone. Obtained rewards for distribution of wealth, happy rebate. If you do not distribute resources, no notable changes in the world plot. Please wait for the beast tide to arrive. The rest was still the same. Previously, he was still thinking about how to improve his overall strength. He did not expect to receive such a generous reward, which solved the urgent matter at hand. According to the law of karma, the more he distributed his wealth, the more generous the reward would be. When he returned to Glory City, Su Ku, Lin Cheng, Lin Ya, and Su Wan came to welcome him. When they heard He Chuan was facing the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion King alone to buy time for the large group to escape, they felt even more admiration in their hearts. Everyone firmly believed that under He Chuan's leadership, they would be able to tide over the difficult situation of the Beast Tide. After returning to the City Lord's mansion, He Chuan asked Lin Cheng to gather the soldiers and military officers according to the list of names. He wanted to give out the sacred pills and enchanted weapons. When everyone heard that they would be rewarded with the sacred pill, they were shocked that they went speechless. This kind of thing was enough to increase the strength of an awakened one. No matter who it was, as long as they consumed the sacred pill, they would be able to surpass the awakened ones of the same period. He Chuan was looking for loyalty. Regardless of their strength, they had to be loyal to him, not the emperor of the Wu kingdom. I wonder if the ninth princess has thought of my proposal. Seeing that Su Wan did not leave, he actually understood her choice and asked symbolically. You can call me Su Wan. I'm willing to stay and help Glory City tide over the difficulties. Su Wan lowered her head. Over the many days of recuperation, the paleness on her face had disappeared and was replaced by two red and healthy cheeks. She was dressed in a silvery white and beautiful snow white robe, looking graceful and elegant. Her eyelashes lightly fluttered, and her eyes were as clear as water. She was beautiful beyond compare. Very good. You won't regret your choice today. Take the three sacred pills. He Chuan nodded in satisfaction. He would follow the plan and help Su Wan ascend the throne. The rise of the queen plan. That sounded good. The military camp was already bustling with noise. Because they heard that the city lord would give out enchanted weapons and sacred pills. There was no need to say more about the sacred pills awakened ones dreamed of. There were also enchanted weapons. Even the lowest tier 1 weapons were much better than the broken weapons in their hands. Not to mention tier 2 and tier 3 weapons. All the soldiers and officers were beaming with joy. This was the first time such a reward had ever been given. Who wouldn't be tempted? As there weren't many people who were rewarded, He Chuan called them over and personally gave them the equipment and pills. In fact, it could be considered buying the hearts of the people. He wanted the soldiers to know who was good to them and whose order they should listen to. They were even more excited when the city lord personally handed out the reward. After all, He Chuan's current reputation was well known. Many soldiers took him as a role model. In the future, when I go to the battlefield, I will definitely kill a few strange beasts until they are so scared and piss on their pants. A soldier fantasized about his heroic appearance on the battlefield while clutching the sacred pill tightly in his hand. You'd better forget about it. You can't even raise a shield, a colleague beside him mercilessly ridiculed. You know SHT. If I succeed in breaking through, you will fall to the last place. This soldier didn't dare to show weakness and was full of hope for the future. The adjutant beside him couldn't help but glare at them when he heard the discussion. Don't be arrogant here. If you follow the city lord, never mind a mere beast. You can even kill a mutated beast king. After being reprimanded by the adjutant, they quickly lowered their heads obediently. However, they were even more yearning for the future. The future was just around the corner. Of course, it wasn't just the two of them who were in this state. All the new soldiers were filled with anticipation. After becoming awakened, if they were lucky, they would be able to leap to become a second stage or third stage awakened. At that time, a mere strange beast would be nothing. He Chuan quickly distributed the rewards and then encouraged the soldiers. Those who haven't been promoted, don't be anxious. The resources are limited for the time being, 
but as long as all of you perform meritorious deeds and remain loyal to this prince, you will be rewarded next time. Pacifying and words of enticement were necessary things to do. The soldiers who had taken the sacred pill were all gathered together, and He Chuan personally added the enhanced guiding technique. The first stage, second stage. The soldiers who had taken the sacred pill began to increase in spiritual energy and soon began to break through. Some of the awakened came to a standstill, while some of the awakened were lucky enough to be promoted. One of the most talented ones directly rose from the first to the third stage, jumping two whole levels in a row. If it weren't for the crown prince secretly hindering He Chuan and transferring all the talented soldiers away in advance, there might have been even more people jumping levels. However, He Chuan was confident that with the support of the deduction system, he would be able to survive the beast tide attack this time. Next, it was the turn of the officers who had contributed to the defense of the beast tide last time. Officers at the rank of sergeants were rewarded with a tier 2 weapon and two sacred pills. Officers at the rank of centurions were rewarded with a tier 3 weapon and three sacred pills. Su Ku slowly announced. The officers couldn't believe their ears as if they were in a dream. As usual, He Chuan went up to personally hand out the rewards and said some encouraging words. Military advisor Lin Ye will be rewarded with three sacred pills, two enlightenment pills, one tier three magic robe, one tier three weapon, and one tier four necklace for leading Glory City to defend against the strange beasts. The heaven-defying rewards attracted the envious gazes of the people around Lin Ye. Lin Ye did not expect He Chuan's reward to be so generous. Military advisor Lin Ye, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and thank the city lord for his kindness, Su Ku quickly reminded her. I am willing to follow the 18th prince to death and will not have other purposes. Lin Ye's eyes were dark, and she was destined to stay where she was. Over the years, she had tried many methods and consumed all kinds of pills, but none were effective. Two enlightenment pills would allow her eyes to recover, and no longer have to worry about her blindness. How could Linya not be happy that she had welcomed a new life? After spending so much time together, she knew she could follow He Chuan without worry because he was not someone who would burn the bridge after crossing the river. The competition for imperial power was cruel. Linya was willing to help He Chuan, so she chose to stand by the side of the 18th prince. He Chuan personally helped Linya up. This girl did not disappoint him. She was his best right hand man. Glory City could not do without her. Your Highness. The soldier's fighting spirit is heightened now. No matter what the difficulties are, they can be easily solved. Su Ko looked at the soldiers who were still upgrading. Glory City's overall strength had increased once again. Their chances of dealing with the beast tide had become more significant. Chapter 100 he Chuan sized up the soldiers and officers under his command and nodded his head in satisfaction. The future guarantee of Glory City was also part of his team. The spiritual energy in the hall continued to fluctuate, and everyone had basically completed the increase in strength. Some of the soldiers couldn't help but feel their hands itch. They provoked their colleagues around them, wanting to have a good fight. The second beast tide was about to arrive. The increase in their overall strength allowed He Chuan to heave a long sigh of relief. When the time came, they would have to face sixth or even seventh stage strange beasts, and their numbers would increase by several times. The pressure of defending the city would come from one to ten, which meant that the soldiers of Glory City would have to face ten of them alone. The pressure and danger they faced would increase exponentially. Unknowingly, the officers had also finished absorbing the sacred pill. As far as He Chuan's eyes could see, there was only one person left who was still absorbing the sacred pill. Su Wan. Su Kingdom's ninth princess, Su Wan, was actually still absorbing the medicinal efficacy. She was so talented. He Chuan could not believe it. Just as he was having some doubts, Su Wan slowly opened her beautiful eyes. The corners of her mouth rose slightly and revealed a gentle smile. In fact, Su Wan was also a little surprised. She did not expect the medicinal pills provided by He Chuan to have such sufficient medicinal efficacy, unlike the medicinal pills the Su Kingdom had before. What panacea! In fact, the medicinal efficacy was pitifully low. 
it was difficult to break through a stage. And now, her cultivation had already broken through from the third stage to the fourth stage. She was only one step away from the fifth stage. It was incredible. Su Wan had envisioned what ordinary people thought was impossible, but her beautiful face showed no emotion. He Chuan gave her a look, indicating that they should talk somewhere else. The two came to He Chuan's room. Thank you for your reward, city lord, Su Wan expressed her gratitude. After all, she was still working hard, but He Chuan took the initiative to give her three sacred pills. As expected of the ninth princess of Su Kingdom. The energy you emitted when you broke through seems different from others. If you don't mind, can you share it with me? He Chuan was very interested in her way of breaking through. Three sacred pills allowed her to break through a whole level. It should be known that the further she went, the more difficult it became. It was not uncommon for a person to break through to the second stage. It was even acceptable for a person to break through from the second stage to the third stage. However, when one reached the third stage to the fourth stage, it was a threshold that countless people would never be able to cross in their lifetime. Even if the system rewarded good things, it was still somewhat inconceivable. Therefore, he really wanted to find out what secret this ninth princess of the Su kingdom was hiding. In fact, it's just as you think. Due to the special bloodline of the Su kingdom's royal family, as long as there is a suitable elixir, the Su kingdom's royal family can cross the stage. Su Wan did not intend to hide it. However, the higher the level of the elixirs, the harder it was to get them. Otherwise, Su Kingdom would have already unified the world. If there are high-level elixirs, wouldn't you be invincible? He Chuan teased with a smile. This is also the restriction of the royal family of Su Kingdom. In the early stage, there are suitable elixirs, so of course, it's very fast to cross over the realms however, if there are no corresponding elixirs, then the cultivation will stagnate, or even regress. Su Wan sighed helplessly. If she could really be invincible, there would not need to be in a friendly relationship, let alone run away. He Chuan actually understood the reason. Taking elixirs to advance, if coupled with the alchemy technique, Su Wan's future was simply unimaginable. These two pieces of equipment are given to you. I hope you can help Glory City tide over the difficulties. He took out a tier 3 enchanted armor and a tier 3 enchanted long saber and handed them to Su Wan. Su Wan gently stroked the two pieces of equipment. The streamlined and slim purple armor could cover the upper half of her body very well. The lower half of it was a skirt armor, which matched her figure perfectly. Moreover, it had a sense of beauty to it. The pure black hilt of the sword was carved with roses. The three-foot-long body of the sword and the black hair fell down, instantly splitting into two. I won't be rewarded for doing nothing. I haven't made any contributions to Glory City. The three sacred pills from before were already a great favor. If I take another weapon now, I'm afraid it will cause dissatisfaction. Su Wan was in the royal family, so she was very clear on some things. No matter. I'm the city lord. How to distribute the resources is up to me. And I'm appointing you as the vice marshal of Glory City to assist me in protecting Glory City. He Chuan's tone was decisive. He did not care what others thought. Who dared to gossip behind his back? He did not mind letting the other party know of his methods. Thank you, city lord. It's better to follow your orders. Su Wan saw that she could not refuse, so she could only accept it. All right, you can leave first. He Chuan sighed helplessly. He had to beg even if he wanted to give something. This woman did not know what was good for her. Either that, or she was deliberately playing hard to get. Sooner or later, he would have to teach her a good lesson. He did not know how Lin Ye was doing. He rushed to the Lin family mansion. When Lin Cheng saw He Chuan had come, he hurriedly went out to welcome him. Greetings, city lord. Cut the crap. Where is Lin Ye? How is she? He Chuan was very concerned about this military advisor. I'm not sure yet. Ever since Xiaoya entered the room, there has been no movement. Perhaps because she was born with an eye disease, she has been unable to Lin Cheng did not finish his sentence. He was afraid that the enlightened pill would not work. 
unable to recover. Could it be that the Lin family also had a special constitution? The Enlightenment pill was a pill that specialized in treating eye diseases. Moreover, it was produced by the system, so it had to be of high quality. No matter how awesome you were, his system was more awesome. At that time, the system had mentioned that the probability of recovering from an eye disease was 80%. How could it not work? Did you understand the power of a cheat? Moreover, Linya had yet to make any movements. Perhaps she had already recovered from her eye disease, so she was in a state of shock. If it was really so special that even the system's medicinal pills could not cure it, then it proved that Linya's special bloodline was even more powerful. So, why not? Linya sat cross-legged in the room. After she took the enlightenment pill, she could feel the medicinal efficacy surging up through her dantian, along with her limbs and bones, and into her eyes. The burning sensation assaulted her eyes. Now was the critical moment to repair her eyes. She did not dare to open her eyes and gritted her teeth to support herself. She was afraid that all her previous efforts would be in vain. If she failed this time, she might never be able to see the beautiful world, and she would never be able to know what He Chuan looked like. She absolutely could not let her benefactor down. It was He Chuan who disregarded the rumors and made a woman become the military advisor of Glory City. She made her brother Lin Ching the marshal, and it was difficult for her to repay the favor he had done to the Lin family. The medicinal effect was still continuing to repair her eyes, and there was a faint sense of coolness. She understood that the medicinal effect had already taken effect, and it began to repair her eye disease. The coolness and burning sensation struck her eyes at the same time, and she felt as if her eyeballs were about to explode. There seemed to be an inexplicable power that was constantly tugging on the nerves in her eyes, preventing her from recovering. Her eyeballs trembled slightly, as if she was struggling against fate, wanting to break through the shackles. The ineffable strength once again wraps the medicinal effect. Has it failed? Chapter 101 Lin Ye's heart was as white as paper. She could not help but feel sorry for herself. She had let down He Chuan's kindness and wasted two enlightenment pills. Just as she was about to give up, the medicinal effects started to take effect again. The medicinal effects that had been locked in began to break through the encirclement and gather towards her eyes. Under the continuous impact, the burning sensation in her eyes disappeared. The power that had wrapped the medicinal effects also disappeared completely. The cool sensation continued to flow around her eyes, almost making Linya cry out in comfort. The life force in her body seemed to be drawn and gathered in her eyes. It was as if a thousand years had passed, also as if an instant had passed. Linya slowly opened her eyes. The mahogany furniture, cabinets, and beds. She could see. She could really see. No longer having to live in the darkness every day, Linya was utterly immersed in the joy of her sight returning. However, she did not know that the moment she regained her sight, an unforgettable phenomenon appeared in the sky above Glory City. A dark green pillar of light shot up into the sky, breaking through the clouds in the sky, and was dispersed by the pillar light. The vitality of Glory City was restored, and the plants began to grow wildly, filling the whole place with vitality. He Chuan and Lin Cheng raised their heads and looked at the huge shadow in the sky. Like a gentle and beautiful woman. She was waving the vines, praying for the people in the city. Some people knelt on the ground devoutly and prayed to the shadow in the sky. That was the power brought by the gods. Suddenly, a vast golden hand tore through the space and grabbed the green shadow into powder. An ant dares to pry into the power of the gods. You don't know what you're doing. Death is where you belong. As the voice disappeared, Glory City regained its calm once again. The plants stopped growing. However, no one could detect the voice just now. He Chuan frowned. He felt a terrifying existence just now, which made his heart palpitate. However, it only appeared for a moment, making him think it was an illusion. Linya pushed open the door and walked out. Behind her was a faint aura of the revival of all living things, as well as a green light. What's going on? Has it happened in your Lin family before? He Chuan asked, somewhat puzzled. It seems to be the light of some kind of plant. 
Lin Cheng's gaze was fixed on the top of his sister, Lin Ya's, head. He did not answer his question. He Chuan was very speechless. He was asking what the green light looked like. He wanted to understand the power behind it. There was a record in the Lin family that when a phenomenon appeared in the era of the awakened, they would receive the blessing of the gods. Lin Cheng came back to his senses and continued to answer. The blessing of the gods. He Chuan stroked his smooth chin and recalled the records about the gods. The gods belonged to the high and mighty beings, and Lin Ya had the hope of becoming a god in the future just by awakening her bloodline. Wasn't that a bit too far-fetched? How could the power of the gods appear in the bodies of mortals? It is indeed so in the records. The books once recorded that five people had awakened the phenomenon, but without exception, none of them became gods, Lin Qing said seriously. Since they didn't become gods, could it be that the books of the Lin family have made a mistake? He Chuan was stunned. Since they didn't become gods, why did they say that visions could become gods? The key problem is that these five people died very early. One of them even died when he was eight years old. Lin Qing sighed, and the expression on his face became more and more serious. Could it be that there are some secrets in it? Can you finish it all in one go? He Chuan was very speechless. This guy was panting laboriously when he spoke, and he always paused at the critical moment. The reason why the five people died so young was not because of birth, old age, illness, or death, nor was it an accident. Instead, it was because the high and mighty God attacked and killed them all. Lin Cheng was afraid that his sister would follow in the footsteps of this group of people. Now that he thought about it, it was not necessarily bad to be blind. After hearing it, He Chuan also realized the seriousness of the matter. Why did God attack and kill them? Could it be that new gods were not allowed to appear, afraid of replacing the gods? Other than that, there was probably no further explanation. At least He Chuan could not think of any other reason for the time being. The strange phenomenon behind Lin Ya still had not disappeared. The aura of the revival of all living things made people feel as if they were bathed in the spring breeze. Suddenly, He Chuan remembered something essential. Back when he became awakened, was there a strange phenomenon accompanying him? If there was, would the gods find a chance to kill him? However, he was not liked back then. When he awakened, there was no one to protect him. Naturally, no one knew what happened before then. The key was that compared to Lin Ya and Su Wan's bloodlines, he was no different from a piece of trash. There was probably no strange phenomenon accompanying him. Did his cheek count? Lin Ya will never forget the kindness of the city lord. If it weren't for your help, I would never have seen the light of day in my life. Lin Ya knelt on the ground in excitement and kept kowtowing to He Chuan. A man should know how to be kind to a woman. What if a beauty's forehead was damaged by kowtowing? The key was not to harm her brain. Many things in Glory City needed her help to deal with. Get up quickly. As the military advisor by my side, I naturally have to think of you. It's just my duty. There's no need for such a big ceremony. He Chuan held Lin Ya's arms and did not let her kneel. How can I not thank you for your great kindness? Lin Ya said as she wanted to kneel to thank him again. Why was she more stubborn than a donkey? Could this be something that the Lin family inherited? As the military advisor, how can you be so excited? You have to keep calm at all times so that you can help me come up with strategies and defend Glory City together. He Chuan rubbed Lin Ya's head. Lin Ya wiped away the tears at the corner of her eyes, and a bright smile appeared on her pretty face. City Lord, don't worry. I will do my best to help you complete your great undertaking. Her tone was very determined. I will give you three more sacred pills to increase your strength as soon as possible. We don't have much time left. When He Chuan saw that she finally stopped kneeling, he heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. If she continued kneeling, He Chuan would consider going to the bathroom to escape. Who could bear this? He was not an old man who liked to make others kneel. After returning to the city lord's residence, He Chuan sat in front of the window and admired the stars in the sky. He had wasted some time in Freedom City. As the time for the beast tide approached, 
almost all the rewards in his hands were distributed. He was once again poor. He did not know if he could lead Glory City to resist the beast tide. It was all the fault of this lousy system. It had been telling him to spread his wealth every day. How was he supposed to break through now? Just as he was venting his dissatisfaction, a joyful voice sounded beside his ears. Congratulations, host, for completing the act of spreading your wealth without leaving a single cent. The rewards are being sorted out. The rewards have been sorted. You can now draw and return the reward double. Do you want to draw? The sudden system notification made him confused. What was going on? Chapter 102 He Chuan did not expect that the rewards given to his subordinates would conform to the system's definition of wealth distribution. According to this deduction, as long as he rewarded it to one of his subordinates, would it be enough to fulfill the system standard and conform to the definition of wealth distribution? However, receiving a rebate from the system was definitely a good thing. It was better than nothing at all. System, draw a prize for me. The translucent Russian roulette started to spin and finally stopped at 0, 5x. He Chuan did not know whether it was good luck or bad luck, but he could not accept it. He cursed at the system to vent his anger. On the other side, the Lin siblings did not sleep late at night. Lin Cheng paced back and forth in the hall and sighed from time to time. Why are you sighing, big brother? Isn't it a good thing that I can see again? Lin Yit sipped her tea, and her big brother paced back and forth, swaying her a little. Of course, it's a good thing that you can see the light again. Big brother couldn't be happier. What stage are you now after taking the sacred pill? Lin Cheng squeezed out a smile and asked his sister, Lin Ya, with concern. Lin Ya raised her hand, and a dark green light appeared. It was the strength of a third stage awakened. After treating her eye disease and taking the sacred pill, her strength increased like a rocket and had already surpassed most of the awakened in Glory City. My sister is also a powerful person, Lin Cheng couldn't help but mutter to himself. He was worried about the gods and was indeed happy for his sister. Ever since he read the books about curses in the Lin family, he had never thought about her sister recovering from the eye disease because he was afraid of losing his sister, who was dependent on him. The gods were so powerful that they did not allow mortals to touch this power. Therefore, Lin Qing only gave Lin Ya some tonics. However, Lin Qing did not know that Lin Ya had always known about this matter. How could tonics be compared to pills to treat eye disease? However, Lin Ya did not point it out. Actually, brother, never think about the choice I wanted to make. That's right. Lin Qing always acted from the perspective of protecting his sister. He did not think about his sister's choice at all. This was indeed a mistake. Since his sister was able to break the curse, did that mean she had a chance to escape the pursuit of the gods? It's my fault. I shouldn't have arranged your future life for you. Lin Cheng said very apologetically. Big brother is doing this for my good. Don't blame yourself. Besides, there's always a way out. I believe there's always a way out. Lin Ya smiled indifferently. She had never blamed Lin Cheng before. The moon hung high in the sky. He Chuan was soaking in the bathtub. After fighting with the strange beasts for so many days, he was a little tired, both physically and mentally. Therefore, he took a hot bath and relaxed. He had reaped a bountiful harvest this time. Although it was only zero, five times after he had distributed all his money, it was enough to allow some loyal soldiers to increase their strength and their chances to withstand the beast tide. Creak. Just as He Chuan was looking forward to the future, the door was suddenly pushed open. He hurriedly turned his head and saw that Su Wan was wearing Da's silk pajamas. Under the candlelight, he could vaguely see beautiful and alluring scenery. He Chuan instantly felt his nose bleed from the fresh strawberries planted on Chapter 103. Just as Su Wan was about to make her next move, He Chuan suddenly pushed her away. City Lord, don't you fancy me? Su Wan pretended to be sad. Seductive vixen. He Chuan thought to himself. He Chuan suddenly stood up from the bathtub and used spiritual energy to dry the water droplets on his body. His gaze became fierce. Su Wan did not have the time to be shy. 
Her expression also became solemn. The sirens of Glory City sounded. Isn't there still a few days before the second wave of the beast tide invades? Su Wan helped Yi Chuan put on his clothes and asked with some confusion. There's no time to analyze now. Quickly go back and change into your armor. Follow me to resist the beast tide. He Chuan waved his hand and said. After a world-class supernatural disaster descended, various regions underwent abnormal changes. Your glory city welcomed a beast tide that was hard to come by in ten years. You decided to command from behind the scenes during the second beast tide. The soldiers fought according to the plan, but in the end, they failed. Glory City suffered heavy losses, and you were forced to flee. He Chuan frowned. During the last deduction, he had led his army into a bloody battle and failed. This time, the ending of commanding from behind the scenes was still a failure? Was there really no solution? That wasn't right. Last time, Glory City's overall strength was weak, which was why the deduction result failed. But now, everyone's overall strength has increased by a large margin. It wasn't necessarily impossible for him to go to the front line and fight. It was better to rely on himself to feel at ease than others. If one wanted to stand at the peak of the world, one had to take the initiative to face a life and death battle and raise their strength in a cruel war. He Chuan's gaze gradually became firm as he took out his demonic knife. The soldiers on the city wall were doing their best to fight. Everyone's overall strength had increased, so facing the second strange beast's attack wasn't as strenuous as they had imagined. The system's reward was a timely rain. Otherwise, He Chuan might face a scene of corpses strewn all over the ground. City Lord, why are you here? Military advisor Linya is waiting for you to discuss military strategy. Two personal guards saw He Chuan's arrival and hurriedly became vigilant, afraid there would be a sneak attack from the strange beasts. Military advisor Linya can handle it on her own. Everyone, follow me and kill all these beasts. He Chuan had already made his choice. Marshal Lin Cheng commanded his soldiers to fight against the second wave of beasts. He felt a little depressed when facing the ferocious beasts. Howling Sky Wolf, Sky Bat, and the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpion that He Chuan had encountered before. The weakest among the beasts was equivalent to a human of second stage awakened this time. The most powerful one was no less than a human of fourth stage awakened. In fact, they had already made an assessment of the strength of the second wave of strange beasts, but the addition of the Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions had significantly increased the number of strange beasts. It was almost one-third more than what was recorded in the history books. The second wave actually had an amount of 100, 0, 0. It was simply unheard of. Glory City was facing a huge challenge. Moreover, this group of strange beasts seemed to be commanded by high-level creatures, which actually attacked separately. They attacked from the east, south, west, and north gates at the same time, and different strange beasts coordinated with each other. Could it be that strange beasts could really have consciousness? The four city gates faced the pressure of strange beasts' attacks at the same time, and Lin Cheng became the busiest person because he had to make the most appropriate decision. The number of strange beasts was indeed terrifying. They were like huge waves set off by a monstrous flood, wanting to submerge the entire glory city. But Lin Cheng firmly believed that they would win. Because that person was there. Archers, get ready. The magic arrows will be knocked. Shoot without discrimination. Fire. The rain of arrows rained down from all directions. There was no need to aim deliberately because there were too many strange beasts. Some magic arrows could even kill two to three strange beasts. Lin Cheng commanded methodically, his voice a little hoarse. At this moment, He Chuan also flew to the top of the city wall. Looking at the peculiar beast tide in the distance, he frowned deeply. City Lord, your identity is incomparably noble. How can you come to such a place? Hurry back to the City Lord's manor. I will be in charge here. If anything happens to you, Lin Cheng hurriedly ran to He Chuan's side to persuade him. He Chuan was the backbone of everyone. If anything happened, no one could bear the responsibility. It would also cause the morale of the citizens to drop. That's right, City Lord. 
Please listen to Marshal Lin's words and follow us back to the city lord's manor. The personal guard continued to persuade him, afraid that something might happen to He Chuan. How's the situation? He Chuan didn't seem to hear their persuasion and asked about the strange beasts. The number is one third higher than recorded. This wave of strange beasts is about a thousand beasts. The crimson sand demon scorpions that city lord encountered in the Gobi Desert have also joined the siege team. Although Lin Cheng was anxious, he still answered the question dutifully. Crimson Sand Demon Scorpions He Chuan was also puzzled. The Crimson Sand Scorpion King had been killed, so the scorpions should have dispersed and only gathered when the new king appeared. Why did they follow him from the Gobi Desert all the way to Glory City? Why did they have such a strong desire for revenge? City Lord, please listen to me. Go back to the City Lord's mansion and take command from the back. This place is under Lin Cheng tried to persuade him again. Brothers. I will advance and retreat with you. Everyone, follow me and kill. He Chuan didn't wait for Lin Cheng to finish his words and shouted at the soldiers who were fighting bloody battles. His roar instantly spread throughout the entire glory city. It's actually the city lord. The city lord is willing to fight with us. FCK those mutated beasts. Come and exchange a few moves with me. Kill those motherfucking strange beasts. Brothers, the city lord is watching. We must kill more of them. He Chuan's words were more effective than drinking chicken blood. The soldiers and officers felt their blood boil. However, Lin Cheng felt a little uneasy. He knew He Chuan was a third stage awakened, and it was perilous to fight with strange beasts. Strange beasts wouldn't show mercy. If anything detrimental happened, Lin Cheng wanted to continue persuading him, but He Chuan didn't give him the chance. He Chuan gripped his demonic Buddhist monk knife tightly with both hands and rushed toward the strange beasts climbing up the city wall. The knife's shadow flashed past, drawing a black streak of light. The surrounding soldiers felt their eyes blur. The strange beast in front of them was directly cut in half. Before it could even roar, its corpse fell to the bottom of the city wall. So powerful. Everyone looked at the scene before them and felt their hearts skip a beat. They didn't expect the city lord to be so mighty. He killed the howling sky wolf with just one strike. This was an existence equivalent to a human of third stage awakened. The city lord is awesome. Long live the city lord. The city lord is invincible. The soldiers cheered without care of the world. It was as if they saw the dawn of victory. However, he Chuan was very calm. This was just the forefront. There was still a fierce battle waiting for them. If they were too complacent now, it would be very easy for them to fail. Everyone, put on 120% of your energy. Follow me and continue to kill. He Chuan leaped to the front. The demonic Buddhist monk knife was like the blade of the Grim Reaper in the dark night as he charged toward the hundreds of strange beasts that had just climbed to the top of the city wall. The sky bat still wanted to resist, but its head was separated from its body. It was also killed in one strike. The earth bear, known as the strange beast with the most robust defense, was still killed in one strike. As expected, his old friend, the crimson sand demon scorpion, was also killed in one strike. The strange beasts would fall every time he brandished the demonic knife in his hand. In the span of a few breaths, more than ten strange beasts had fallen beside him. Chapter, 104 He Chuan was like a merciless god of death, with countless corpses of strange beasts lying around him. Fresh blood converged into a meandering river, and the smell of blood permeated the sky. Seeing how brave he was, the strange beasts all took the initiative to dodge. They weren't stupid either. The human in front of them was killing the strange beasts as easily as drinking water. None wanted to die for no reason. The valiant He Chuan infected the soldiers. Kill. 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 The angry shouts of the soldiers shook the sky. The morale of their own camp was rising steadily. The soldiers charged at the strange beasts fearlessly. Both sides fought fiercely. A dark green light enveloped He Chuan's body. 
He had felt an inexhaustible strength all over his body, and this kind of strength could even heal his injuries. The Aura of Life The person who came was none other than military advisor Linya. She didn't stay in the city lord's manor. Instead, she chose to go to the front line to help. She commanded a few special support type awakened ones to help each one increase his strength, agility, and all sorts of status halos. With the support of the halos, he Chuan's spiritual energy soared. The knife in his hand instantly slashed out, and the howling sky wolf, which was equivalent to the third stage of human, was instantly split into two. However, there were simply too many strange beasts. Even though he Chuan had the support of the halos, he was still a single person, and the number of strange beasts he could kill was limited. A large number of strange beasts came one after another. Under the orders of their respective kings, they continued to attack Glory City. The city walls were filled with densely packed strange beasts. The time has come. Lin Ye shouted at her brother, Lin Cheng. Set up the formation. Following Lin Cheng's order, the awakened ones standing at the formation's core simultaneously activated their spiritual energy and injected it into the formation's core beneath their feet. A sky blue light flickered and the hexagram formation appeared beneath the feet of the soldiers and strange beasts. Sky blue arrows shot into the sky. As long as the arrows hit the strange beasts, they would definitely be injured and lose their ability to move. However, humans would be fine if they touched the arrows. This was a formation specially set up to deal with strange beasts. With the support of the formation, the soldiers began to counterattack. They quickly waved their weapons at the strange beasts climbing up the city wall, trying to harvest as many of their lives as possible. The materials needed for the magic array were too precious, and they also needed the support of the awakened ones. Moreover, the coverage of the magic array was limited. It was fine to use it once out of the blue, but if the strange beasts were on guard, they would move around the magic array. He Chuan and the soldiers didn't stop killing, and the beast tide didn't stop either. Under the assault of the monstrous waves of strange beasts, Glory City was like a lone boat in the sea, about to be destroyed at any time. They had to unite as one to resist the attack of the beast tide. Die! He Chuan couldn't remember how many beasts he had killed. A vacuum zone appeared beside him. As long as the beasts entered the attack range, they wouldn't be able to escape from his fatal slash. The blood flowing under his feet also changed from the initial meandering river to the vast river. The dark red blood solidified, and was then fused with the new hot blood. It repeated over and over again. The black demonic Buddhist monk knife had already been dyed red and black by the blood. Whoosh! 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 He Chuan raised his hand and slashed down. The knife once again harvested a few strange beasts, and he took the opportunity to catch his breath. He wasn't one of those tireless war machines. After killing so many strange beasts, his arms were already a little sore. Even with the halo boost, his physical pressure had been greatly exhausted. Fortunately, he still had a few pills that could restore his stamina. He swallowed two pills and prepared to continue fighting with the strange beasts. An earth bear climbed up the city wall. Relying on its astonishing defensive power, its huge paws instantly killed two soldiers. Go to hell. He Chuan saw this scene and the fury in his heart soared rapidly. He stomped his feet on the ground, and cracks appeared on the green stone bricks. His entire body was like a cannonball, leaving afterimages on the spot. He arrived in front of the enormous yellow earth bear in an instant, and the demonic knife slashed down at lightning speed. Roar. Before dying, the earth bear let out a painful howl. He Chuan could be considered to have avenged the two dead soldiers. War was just so cruel. Death could come at any time. While he was feeling angry in his heart, a powerful force erupted from his dantian, traveling along his limbs and bones. This was the rhythm of a breakthrough. From the third stage to the fourth stage was the most difficult threshold for an awakened one to cross, he Chuan had finally succeeded in breaking through. All aspects of his body had also recovered, and the abundant energy once again filled his body. I can use you guys to test my blade. 
He Chuan's ghostly speed instantly arrived beside the sky bat, and another dead soul was harvested under his blade. The speed at which he brandished his blade was extremely fast, and the surrounding soldiers couldn't see the trajectory clearly at all. The battle continued. He Chuan, who had broken through to the fourth stage, was exceptionally excited. He had reached an unprecedented state. Whether it was his control over his strength or his body, he had already reached the limits. The movements of the strange beasts within ten meters could be clearly seen in his mind. He slowly stabbed his demonic knife upwards without injecting any strength into it. At that moment, a howling sky wolf pounced at him. Its abdomen just so happened to hit the tip of the knife, and its heart was pierced through. Like a sophisticated computer, it quickly killed the howling sky wolf. He Chuan's lips curled into a smile. He immediately changed his fighting style, no longer using brute force to kill strange beasts. Instead, he began to kill at the smallest cost. He was like a newbie who had just come out of the rudimentary stage, turning into a grandmaster. His steps were light, and the knife he brandished seemed to be very slow. However, he was able to hit the weak points of the strange beasts every time, easily killing them. The exhaustion of his physical strength had also become negligible. A soldier was resisting the Scarlet Sand Demon Scorpion. He was careless for a moment, and the weapon in his hand was sent flying by the poisonous hook. The soldier closed his eyes in despair. Be careful. He Chuan was like a lightning in the night, drawing out a streak of silver light, leaving a few afterimages on the road ahead. The air was silent. The demonic knife in his hand didn't even make a sound, and the scarlet sand demon scorpion and its poisonous hook were split into two. Live on, there are still family members waiting for you. He Chuan picked up the soldier's weapon and used his strength to send it back to the soldier's hand. City Lord. I the soldier was so excited that he couldn't speak. He could only clench the weapon in his hand and charge into the beast tide once more. He didn't know the soldier's final fate. He would try his best to keep everyone alive. The rest was left to the heavens. He Chuan raised the knife in his hand once more. He exerted his speed and strength to the maximum. The earth bear charged forward. He Chuan flashed in front of the other party. Looking at the bloody mouth in front of him, he could clearly cut its sharp fangs. The earth bear's legs were cut off and it lay on the ground wailing. The knife in He Chuan's hand stabbed into its head effortlessly. The life of the strange beast ended. Everything happened in a flash. The surrounding soldiers didn't see when he made his move, and the earth bear with the strongest defense fell. It was ridiculously fast. City Lord is too powerful. That's right. He is as powerful as a god. We have to work hard too. If we kill one more strange beast, Glory City will have a better chance. The soldiers have fired up again. Chapter 105 he Chuan was like a tireless machine. Wherever there was a crisis, he would appear. While saving the soldiers' lives, he would also harvest the lives of a few strange beasts. This group of soldiers was a living force. To be able to withstand the attacks of this beast tide, every soldier's life was critical because a living force meant hope. He Chuan's strength was still increasing in the midst of the battle. He was only one step away from breaking through to the fifth stage awakened. As expected, continuous battles were the best way to increase one's strength. Large-scale battles could temper one's willpower even more. It was a pity that he wasn't a special awakened. He didn't have any large-scale offensive skills, so he basically killed the beasts individually. Otherwise, the speed at which he killed the mutated beasts would be faster, and the chances of victory would be higher. His cultivation might increase several times, but that was just his beautiful fantasy. He Chuan could only rely on the knife in his hand to continuously harvest lives. The mutated earth bear stood upright with a height of more than three meters. Its entire body seemed to be wearing golden armor as it rampaged on the city wall. Faced with this huge threat, the soldiers seemed to be at a loss. The huge bear paw slapped down at the two soldiers closest to it. The surrounding comrades could not help but close their eyes, unwilling to see this cruel scene. Clang. The sound of metal clashing rang out. 
Everyone opened their eyes and saw He Chuan blocking the mutated earth bear's attack with his knife. You guys go and defend the other places. I'll deal with it. As he spoke, he exerted strength with both of his arms, pushing the mutated earth bear several steps back. The soldiers knew they couldn't help, and staying would only cause more trouble. They left behind the words be careful, city lord and quickly rushed to other places to fight. Roar. The mutated earth bear let out an angry roar because a lowly human dared to block it, hating that it couldn't tear Hichuan into pieces. Damn thing, you still dare to curse. Although Hichuan didn't understand the meaning of its roar, he could clearly understand the meaning of the other party's gaze. The mutated earth bear's body was indeed very tough. It was difficult for the demonic Buddhist monk knife to cause any damage. Let's try this move. He channeled his spiritual energy into the demonic knife, and the black fog on it became even denser. The elongated black shadows shaped like a giant python soared into the sky as he Chuan swung his knife at the mutated earth bear that was coming at him. The demonic knife created an illusion and slashed down at the earth bear from top to bottom. A half-meter deep ravine appeared on the bluestone bricks. The earth bear maintained its charging posture. When it ran in front of He Chuan, it fell heavily and became a dead soul under the knife. The number of beasts in this wave was more than 100, 0, 0. Lin Ye and Lin Cheng were in charge of commanding, while Su Wan was helping defend the other city gates. The combat strength of Glory City soldiers had increased significantly. With enchanted weapons in their hands and under He Chuan's leadership, the strange beasts weren't able to break through the defense line. The strange beast's eyes were red as they continued to attack Glory City. He Chuan's fighting spirit was high as he led the soldiers who weren't afraid of death to continue fighting. Fresh blood dyed the city walls red. The battle continued from night to dawn. It was hard to remember exactly how long the battle had been going on, from dawn to dusk. The strange beasts continued to attack Glory City, and began to retreat on a small scale. He Chuan chopped down the last howling sky wolf that wanted to flee for its life. Stepping on its massive head, he looked at the retreating strange beasts in the distance and clenched his fists. The soldiers began to cheer to their heart's content. Some of the soldiers lay in a pool of blood, listening to the cheers of their colleagues, revealing satisfied smiles. Lin Ye and Lin Cheng looked at each other and smiled, then cheered along with the soldiers. Su Wan lifted the bangs on her forehead revealing a smile. Victory. Glory City had withstood the beast tide. They had been so sullen before. No one thought they could win, but they had really won. Moreover, it was even more extensive than the beast tide recorded in the history books. This was the result of everyone's hard work. When the citizens in the city heard the cheers of the soldiers, they knew that Glory City had been saved from the beast tide. Everyone ran around to tell each other, sharing the joy of victory. The corpses of strange beasts were everywhere and became a trophy for Glory City, a trophy that belonged to everyone. The dead strange beasts had witnessed the miracle of Glory City. A strong sense of pride rose in He Chuan's heart. He had finally accomplished it. A mission that seemed impossible to complete. But he knew that the matter was far from over. What belonged to him had to be taken back with his own hands. After the last wave of the beast tide was over, he would return to the capital and let those people witness the birth of a new emperor. But before that, he needed to help Su Wan ascend to the throne first. This wave of gains had been quite substantial. The various types of spirit crystals in the city had been gathered together, which would definitely be astonishing. In addition to the meat of the strange beasts, the soldier's strength would also increase. City Lord, the losses in this battle have been counted. El Inya walked in front of He Chuan and interrupted his thoughts. He Chuan nodded, his heart somewhat heavy. He knew that the losses this time should not be small. We killed a total of 83,600 strange beasts and obtained 79,462 spirit crystals. Lin Ye reported softly. It was indeed a considerable amount. How are the losses of our people? He Chuan asked again. 1,024 people died in battle, and 3,756 were injured. Lin Ye looked at the data in the notebook, her excitement gradually cooling down. 
comfort their families, and distribute the pension as soon as possible. They are all good people and did not disgrace Glory City. He Chuan's heart was in great pain, but he could not change the outcome. Where there was war, there was death. It was an eternal principle that he could only take good care of the dead soldiers' families so they would not shed blood and tears. City Lord, there is no need to be sad. The soldiers fought for City Lord and for Glory City. They fought for their families behind them, and they died well. Lin Cheng tried to persuade him. Big Brother is right. The soldiers are shining with glory. They don't have any regrets. Besides, we have defended the beast tide. The people who died will be able to rest in peace. Lin Ye was afraid that He Chuan would not be able to recover, she quickly followed Lin Cheng to persuade him. I'm not that weak. You don't have to persuade me. He Chuan shook his head. He was not a three-year-old child. He had long known about the cruelty of war. However, he felt sorry for their family. He took a deep breath and said, Bury our heroes well. We'll gather at the city lord's manor later. Lin Cheng and Lin Ye saw that He Chuan was not discouraged by the dead soldiers. They immediately heaved a sigh of relief and began to command the soldiers in the city to handle the follow-up matters. The civilians came spontaneously with cleaning tools in their hands. Glory City was their route. If they lost Glory City, they would be rootless refugees. So they use actual actions to give support to He Chuan and this army. Chapter 106 He Chuan sat in the main seat of the hall and looked calmly at Su Ku, Lin Ye, Lin Cheng, and Su Wan. All of you have been following me for quite some time. You should have heard about things related to me. The few of them looked at each other. Of course, they had heard about He Chuan's deeds. It mainly involved the fight for the imperial power, so no one dared to say anything in the past. However, after following He Chuan through so many storms, they all stood firmly on He Chuan's side because He Chuan's succession was the blessing of the Wu Kingdom. City Lord, if you have something to say, feel free to say it. Whether it's to cross a mountain of knives or a sea of fire, Lin Cheng will not hesitate. Even if it's an assassination. Forget about the assassination. Since I called you here, of course I believe in your loyalty. But now I'm thinking about the ninth princess, Su Wan. He Chuan knew that the time had come. With the strength of Glory City alone, it was difficult to resist the third wave of the beast tide. With the help of the Su Kingdom, it would be much easier. He Chuan rarely mentioned the name of the ninth princess, but this time he deliberately mentioned it in front of everyone. Everyone could not help but guess in their hearts. Su Wan revealed a smile on her face. She thought the matter of the shower last time made He Chuan change his decision. Little did they know that when He Chuan heard Su Wan's identity for the first time, he already had a plan in his heart. Although Su Kingdom is greatly weakened, it is not something Glory City can resist. Moreover, if we ask everyone to help Su Kingdom's ninth princess restore her kingdom, I'm afraid Su Ku did not think that Glory City had the ability to help Su Wan ascend to the throne. If this matter troubled everyone, it would be treated as if it never happened, Su Wan said. Give up on helping Su Wan ascend to the throne and keep her in Glory City, activate Beauty's resentment and receive a small amount of financial rewards. Help Su Wan ascend to the throne successfully, activate the law of karma, the queen's favor, and obtain a large amount of money reward. The system's reminder was extremely obvious. It was definitely more worth it to help Su Wan ascend to the throne. As for the favor, he did not dare to easily accept it. Her horns were gradually revealed. She was not a simple woman. Actually, it made sense when he thought about it. Those who came from the royal family were not simple people. No matter how difficult it is, how can it be more difficult than today? We should not force this matter. I have a plan here. Everyone, please hear it He Chuan slowly explained the plan. The five of them gathered together and discussed the possibility of helping Su Wan ascend the throne. The city lord's analysis is reasonable. Helping the ninth princess regain her kingdom has more benefits than disadvantages. However, this trip is dangerous and needs to be carefully considered. The plan still needs to be adjusted. 
Lin Ye was the military advisor and was good at strategizing. Lin Ye's words gave everyone a shot in the arm. The happiest person was none other than Su Wan. She could finally control her own life and become a high and mighty queen. Then let's let military advisor Lin Ye perfect the plan. We don't have much time. We'll set off for Su Kingdom tomorrow. He Chuan drummed his fingers rhythmically on the table. After two hours of analysis, the others left the city lord's manor one after another. Only He Chuan and Su Wan were left in the room. Thank you, 18th Prince, for being willing to help me, the princess in distress. Su Wan's tone was a little charming. He Chuan waved his hand. He only needed to listen to these words. He was just a prince who had lost his power. His father didn't dote on him and his brother didn't love him. I will go back and watch your performance this time. If you act well, I have a reward for you, He Chuan said. Reward. I wonder what reward your highness has. Su Wan was full of anticipation. Could it be that the other party had already learned his lesson? An Oscar statuette. The number one award in the acting world. You should be secretly happy when the time comes. He Chuan smiled and said to Su Wan. Su Wan. She kept feeling that there was something wrong with his head. After sending Su Wan away, He Chuan sat in his room, thinking about how to deal with the last wave of beast tide. Suddenly, a violent explosion came from outside. He was so frightened that he almost threw his teacup away. He quickly ran out to check the situation. It was the movement from the governor's office. What was the explosion? Are there any casualties? He Chuan quickly walked into the governor's office. He thought that there was a problem with the experiment, causing a violent explosion. City Lord, it wasn't an explosion. It was the magic cannon that you retrieved from Freedom City last time. Our governor's office followed the template and improved this magicite cannon. At least we didn't let you down. The head of the governor's office turned as he reported excitedly. He Chuan recalled for a moment. There was indeed such a thing. The magic cannon that he retrieved from Freedom City was obviously better than the one from Glory City. Thus, with an experimental attitude, he asked the governor's office to think of a way to improve this magic crystal cannon. He did not expect it to succeed. This was truly a pleasant surprise. I have sinned. Please punish me, city lord. The person in charge trembled as he knelt down, kowtowing to He Chuan to apologize. This caused He Chuan to be a little confused. Wasn't it successfully manufactured? Why did this old man still say that he had sinned? Get up and speak first. The governor's office is obviously doing a meritorious deed. Why do you still want to plead guilty? This is absolutely not allowed. He Chuan's hands were exhausted, and he used his spiritual energy to help the old man up. If we could create it two days ago, then the beast tide wouldn't have had so many people die. That's why I'm guilty. The person in charge reached out his hand to wipe away the tears at the corners of his eyes. So that was what was going on. He Chuan thought that this old man had committed a crime in the past. How can you be blamed for this? No one knew that the Beast Tide would attack Glory City in advance. Moreover, it's not something that can be accomplished overnight. He Chuan dispelled his doubts, and then he couldn't suppress his joy, he finally had a weapon that could deal with strange beasts. Although this improved magic crystal cannon was very difficult to control the battle situation, it could increase the chances of victory. Moreover, there were as many crystals as needed. I, the city lord, will clearly reward and punish those who have done meritoriously. He Chuan immediately announced that he would reward everyone in the governor's office. The person in charge felt guilty and wanted to decline, but when He Chuan took out the forging manual, his hands could not help but tremble. The cover of the yellowed book was already blurred. The person in charge opened the first page, and shockingly, there were pictures and notes of enchanted weapons. He Chuan did not have the time to work on them, so it was most appropriate for him to give this book to this old man. As the saying went, make the most of everything, and you won't have to worry about enchanted weapons in the future. The more the old man read, the more shocked he became. There was actually a detailed introduction of the second stage enchanted weapons here. 
The last stage was the third stage. This this old man will not be able to repay the city lord's kindness even if I die. I don't need you to die. Forge more enchanted weapons is the greatest repayment to me. He Chuan patted the old man's shoulder. Sometimes, the heart of a person was that simple. As long as you could make him realize his value, he would become more and more loyal to you. Chapter, 107 Sioux Kingdom It was originally a powerful country, but because the current emperor, Su Guangming, was incompetent and unqualified, it caused the treacherous officials to take over and the loyal officials in the imperial court to be run over. When fighting with the surrounding Yan Kingdom, they used incompetent generals to take command, resulting in 800-00 soldiers being killed and the kingdom's strength considerably declining. Su Guangming made the ninth princess, Su Wan, marry the Yan Emperor and cut off some land, hoping to avoid the calamity of the country's fall. Who knew that Su Wan had disappeared halfway through the journey? When the Yan Kingdom's emperor heard about it, he was greatly enraged and ordered the Su Kingdom emperor, Su Guangming, to submit to him. Otherwise, he would attack the capital of Su Kingdom. However, they were at loggerheads as to who was the ruler of the imperial court and the country. Some generals believed that if the Su Kingdom were to pull together another team and let a wise general command, they would definitely be able to destroy the Yan Kingdom until they were terrified. However, the treacherous officials around Su Guangming kept instilling the concept of the ruler and preserving peace. They first pretended to surrender, conserving their strength and waiting for an opportunity to resist. In actual fact it was just an excuse to cower in fear of death. Su Guangming was also afraid of being thrashed. He had been greedy for pleasure all day, and his spirit had long been worn out. He did not care if he had to bow down to the ruler or anything else as long as he could keep his life. Meanwhile, Su Guangming's sons were also not up to par and felt that surrendering was reasonable. This caused many loyal officials to feel a chill in their hearts. They felt that the emperor and the few princes were just a bunch of worms, like mud that could not support the wall. It would be difficult for them to lead the Su kingdom back to the position of a strong country. It was said that in the morning court today, Su Guangming would announce that he would bow before the emperor. All the civil and military officials gathered in the main hall. Some of the officials' hearts were filled with despair. They prepared to retire and return to their birthplaces. Finding a quiet place to live out the rest of their lives was better than watching the country fall before their eyes. And some of the officials had already been bribed by the Yen Kingdom. They were waiting for the Su Kingdom to collapse completely to go to the Yen Kingdom to enjoy the glory and riches. There were still some officials who did not understand the reason. They consider how the Su Kingdom would recuperate and survive in the crevices. Your Majesty, if the Yen Kingdom does not give up on its desire to destroy us, even if we submit to them, the Yan's Emperor will not let Your Majesty off. The loyal officials made their final struggle, hoping that Su Guangming would change his mind. How dare you! You actually dare to curse his majesty to die. The Yan's emperor is a man of his. Why would he do such a thing? Immediately, some of the officials who Yan kingdom had bribed jumped out. It was the crucial moment when they announced that they would bow down to the emperor. They would not allow anyone to come out and ruin it. As long as the matter was successful, countless riches and prosperity would be waiting for them. Humph! I think you have been bribed by the Yen Kingdom. Why do you always speak up for the Yen Kingdom? Bullshit, I think you are the one who has not given up on destroying our Su Kingdom. Why are you always thinking of using war to solve the problem? The bodies of the 800,000 soldiers in front of us are not even cold yet, and you dare to say such words. Su Guangming held his forehead, his head aching from the noisy officials. No matter what, the importance of submitting to the emperor had already been decided, and it would definitely not change. Just as Su Guangming was about to announce the matter, his personal bodyguard ran over and whispered a few words into his ear. This unfilial daughter, Su Kingdom falling into such a situation is all her fault, and she still has the face to come back. Hearing the news about Su Wan, Su Guangming wished he could kill her with his own hands. Get her the hell in here. His personal guard accepted the order and left. The officials below saw that Su Guangming was furious, and they all began to guess what had happened. His majesty has changed his mind. 
It's possible. Perhaps something has happened in the Yen Kingdom. In any case, this old man will retire and return home immediately. The life and death of the Su Kingdom have nothing to do with me. Su Wan brought the disguised He Chuan into the main hall. The sinner greets father. You cursed, unfilial daughter. You still have the face to come back. Su Guangming slapped the chair hard and cursed loudly at Su Wan. It was as if he wanted to vent all the grievances in his heart. The destruction of the country was all on Su Wan. Father, what do you mean? When the escort team encountered the Beast Tide, we had no choice but to avoid the Beast Tide. Ultimately, we lost our way in the forest, and daughter was severely injured. As Su Wan said that, two tears flowed from the corners of her eyes. He Chuan applauded Su Wan's acting skills in his heart. Su Wan had told him this before, and He Chuan was very doubtful of the authenticity of her words. Coincidentally, they encountered the beast tide coincidentally, she was the only one left. However, this matter had nothing to do with He Chuan. You are spouting nonsense. Su Guangming had always thought that Su Wan was avoiding marriage, but he did not expect that she had encountered the beast tide. The charges that he had prepared were all swallowed back into his stomach. After all, regardless of whether the words were true or false, there was no evidence. Even if Su Guangming really wanted to kill Su Wan, he could not show it in front of all the officials. Otherwise, how would the people of the world view him? You are twisting words and logic. This crown prince sees that you are doing this on purpose, treating the safety of the entire Su kingdom as a joke. If you had arrived at the Yen kingdom on time, how could such a thing have happened? The crown prince rebuked Su Wan angrily. If Su Wan had not disappeared midway, how could things have turned out like this? How could this crown prince have become the crown prince of a fallen kingdom? Hence, it was all Su Wan's fault. Su Wan felt her heart bleed. As expected, she did not have any kinship at all. Huh, what a great joke. A bunch of useless trash, forcefully pinning the blame for the rise and fall of the kingdom on a weak woman. Where are your faces? Su Wan raised her head and laughed loudly, her eyes filled with ridicule. It was not known whether it was a performance or if it was from her heart. How dare you? Su Guangming was struck in a sore spot, and he could not help but stomp his feet. Everyone should understand in their hearts that even if I were to marry into the Yen Kingdom, even if you were to surrender the land and compensate them, would the Yen Kingdom just let it go? Su Wan's gaze swept over everyone in the main hall. The ministers did not dare to meet her gaze. It was just as Su Wan had said, even if the Su kingdom were to surrender all the land and marry all the princesses, the Yen kingdom would still want to destroy the Su kingdom. Peace. It was just a beautiful dream of Su Guangming and the princes. Peace was within the scope of the canons, and dignity was only as high as the tip of the sword. Relying on a woman to exchange for peace, how laughable was that? Treacherous officials are in power, and the emperor is muddle-headed. In order to protect them, our sons of the Su kingdom were buried on the battlefield. Weren't they die unjustly? If we do not overthrow the dog emperor's regime, the Su kingdom will disappear into the dust of history. Su Wan questioned loudly. It's the other way around. Guards, take down the unfilial daughter for me. Su Guangming was so angry that he almost turned his back on her. I think everyone should know that this dog emperor is about to issue a decree. Today, he will announce that he will bow down to the Yen kingdom. All of you will have to live on your knees, your wives and children will be wantonly humiliated by the people of the Yen kingdom, and all of you will have to humble yourselves and force a smile. Su Wan said to the guards who were about to charge over. That's right. They had wives and children in the Su kingdom. If they were to really bow their heads to the Yen kingdom, what kind of situation would they face? It would not be too much to describe it as hell on earth. The guards hesitated. He Chuan nodded his head secretly. Su Wan was like a natural-born speaker, not wasting the draft he had spent the entire night writing. Things had not been so smooth initially. But who knew that Su Guangming was courting death and had insisted on bowing his head to the Yen kingdom? I order you all to kill her immediately. When Su Guangming saw that the guards did not make a move, he pressed loudly. 
I swear on my identity as the ninth princess of the Su Kingdom that I will lead you all to resist. I will lead you all to victory over the Yen Kingdom and let the people of the Su Kingdom live with dignity. Kill the Dog Emperor and avenge the 800,000 men who died in vain. Su Wan stepped forward and snatched the guard's weapons, taking the lead to charge toward Su Guangming. I've long thought the same thing. Ninth Princess, let me help you. The Marshal of the Third Legion, Huang Hu, was the first to stand out and respond to Su Wan. Su Guangming listened to slander and took away Marshal Huang Hu's military power, which led to a war loss. Su Wan was probably the first person to rebel in the main hall directly. Chapter 108 Su Guangming had never thought that the situation would turn around in an instant. Even the guards were not willing to help him. But he had never thought that once the people's hearts had been lost, they would naturally end up betraying their own kin and leaving the scene. When the crown prince of the Su kingdom saw this, he immediately stood up and went forward to defend himself against Su Wan's attack. The officials who had been bribed by the Yen kingdom did not want Su Guangming to die so quickly. They had to wait for the decree of submission to be issued before Su Guangming could die. A few figures quickly leaped to Su Guangming's side, protecting him in the middle. Kill this bunch of traitors for me. I will definitely execute them by cutting them into pieces. When Su Guangming saw that there were officials willing to protect him, his confidence was instantly boosted, shouting that he wanted to kill Su Wan and the others. Huang Hu, Su Wan, and a few loyal officials who wanted to make things right were suddenly caught in a bitter battle. All of a sudden, He Chuan, who was watching the show, moved. He was like a bolt of silver lightning as he slammed his palm toward the official who was standing right in front of Su Guangming. Before the official could react, his entire body was sent flying like a sandbag before he landed heavily on the ground, bleeding from all seven orifices. Protect the Emperor. Quickly protect the Emperor. When Su Guangming saw how powerful He Chuan was, his face was filled with obvious panic and he almost fell off his throne. The other officials who had been bribed by the Yen Kingdom had also not expected that He Chuan, dressed up as a guard, would be so ferocious, killing a second stage awakened with just one move. If they could not stop He Chuan, they would die. If they could stop He Chuan, they would still have a chance of survival. The group of traitorous officials had no choice but to muster up all their strength and prepare to kill He Chuan. Those who block me, die. He Chuan struck out five palm strikes in midair, and the wind from his palms hurts people's faces. The power of these five palm strikes converged, merged, and evolved in the air. They instantly turned into palm shadows that filled the sky. Bang! 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 The treasonous ministers who were blocking in front of Su Guangming were all sent flying dozens of meters. The stronger ones were seriously injured, and the weaker ones died on the spot. He Chuan landed on the ground. With a mocking gaze, he slowly walked toward the Emperor of Su Kingdom, Su Guangming. One step. Two steps. Every step he took would bring great pressure to Su Guangming. You you don't come over I'm sorry. Spare my life. Su Guangming, who was suffering from great fear, knelt on the ground and begged He Chuan to spare his life. This is your emperor. He doesn't even have the least bit of dignity. What can you expect him to do? He Chuan kicked Su Guangming's shoulder. Su Guangming, who was as fat as a ball, rolled twice and kept begging for mercy. There was no trace of the demeanor of an emperor. When the civil and military officials saw this scene, their hearts felt like they had been hit by a heavy hammer. How unbearable was the emperor they were protecting? Su Kingdom's dignity was utterly lost. Su Wan cut off the crown prince's right arm and flew directly to Su Guangming, who was kneeling on the ground. Father, please issue an imperial edict to pass the throne to me. Su Guangming stared at the shining weapon in front of him. The crown prince's blood was still flowing on it and he slowly closed his eyes. At that moment, he could only compromise. The process of passing the throne was extremely simplified, and an imperial edict was announced to the world. Su Wan sat on the highest throne and became the first queen of the Su Kingdom. She first gave the order to investigate the Yen Kingdom spies thoroughly. As long as there were people who had dealings with the Yen Kingdom in the dark, exterminate their three generations. 
the officials who were recommended would be strictly investigated. Su Guangming and the princes would be imprisoned. Restored Huang Hu position as the Marshal of the Third Legion. The Su Kingdom and Glory City would form an alliance. The country's focus would be shrunk, and all their efforts would be spent defending against the Yen Kingdom. And He Chuan was not stingy. He handed over the elixirs that the system had rebated him the last time to Su Wan. Although the quantity was not much, it was enough for the Su country's strength to rise by a notch. He was also more confident in fighting against Yen Kingdom. In Su Wan's bedroom. Congratulations, Your Majesty. You have successfully gotten what you wanted, He Chuan said. This time, thanks to you and military advisor Lin Ye's help that the plan succeeded. Su Kingdom will have to defend against the Yen Kingdom's attack, and they will not be able to send many troops at that time. Su Wan was dressed in a golden dragon robe. The collar revealed her snow white and tender skin, highlighting her voluptuous and mature body. She looked at He Chuan charmingly. As long as Her Majesty the Queen remembers the agreement, it's fine. I hate people who break their promises the most. He Chuan ignored Su Wan's temptation. It was very tempting to push the Queen down, but He Chuan did not want to be tied down. Su Wan was very shrewd. From the way she ascended the throne and issued a series of orders, it seemed that she had a plan in her heart. City Lord, why don't you stay? We can discuss the plan to help Glory City all night long. Su Wan's jade-like hands skillfully grasped He Chuan's weakness. This man was different from the rest. If she could tie him to her side, she might even become the queen who could unify the whole world. Her ambition was not limited to the small Wu Kingdom. Glory City is still waiting for me to return and resist the last wave of Beast Tide. Remember what I said. He Chuan pushed Su Wan away and turned to leave the bedroom. This man was different from the rest. Su Wan looked at He Chuan's back. Unfortunately, he could not be used by her. On the way back to Glory City, He Chuan looked at the white clouds in the sky and sighed. How could he not want to be drunk on beauty and rest under the service of Queen Su Wan every day? However, he could not stop moving forward. If he stopped, it meant that death would come at any time. He had to stand at the top of the world in order to have the right to look back and enjoy the scenery. At this time, the news of Glory City resisting the second wave of the Beast Tide had already spread throughout the Wu Kingdom. Damn it! He's really lucky to be able to resist the Beast Tide of 100 00. The Crown Prince held the letter in his hand and slammed the teacup onto the ground. The maids were trembling as they picked up the pieces. They did not dare to shout out even when their fingers were accidentally cut, afraid that the temperamental crown prince would do something out of line. It is indeed incredible that Glory City was able to withstand two waves of the beast tide. Was it because of the help of outsiders? Or did the 18th prince have some kind of trump card? The military advisor beside the crown prince analyzed. You bunch of good-for-nothings. Previously, you swore that this bastard would die in Glory City. Now, not only did he not die, but he also withstood two waves of the beast tide. The crown prince became angrier as he spoke. He threw the letter in his hand at the military advisor's face. The military advisor couldn't care less about the pain on his face. He opened the letter with both hands and looked at it. Without any reinforcements, Glory City had killed more than seventy zero zero strange beasts. Hiss. Without reinforcements, they could actually do this. There was only one possibility, and that was He Quan. Your Highness, I believe the plan must be adjusted to ensure that the 18 prince dies in the last wave of the beast tide. The military advisor kept the letter properly and made a decision. I'll give you one more chance. No matter what you do, you must keep He Quan in Glory City forever. Otherwise, I'll rip your head off. The crown prince flung his sleeves and said in dissatisfaction. At the same time, the neighboring cities of Glory City also received news that the crumbling Glory City had created a miracle and withstood the beast tide of 100 00 people. The ones who regretted the most were the awakened ones who had left Freedom City. They had the chance to join the glorious war but missed it because they were timid and afraid, cherishing their lives. 
After all, when the war ended, Glory City's spirit crystals and beast meat could benefit the Awakened Ones a lot. However, there was only one chance, and missing it was missing it. Chapter, 109 Glory City The faces of the people were filled with joy and yearning. The corpses of exotic beasts almost covered the entire Glory City. When the meat of these strange beasts dried up, it would improve their lives. Everyone was filled with hope for the future. It was a sense of glory and pride. Under the leadership of the wise city lord, Glory City accomplished a feat that was recorded in the history books. Since both waves of the beast tide had been successfully withstood, there was still a chance for the last wave. As long as they completely resisted the beast tide, Glory City's reputation would definitely spread throughout the entire martial nation and even the world. He Chuan sat on the main seat in the main hall. Below him sat Su Ku and Lin Ya. Lin Chengha had to command the soldiers to defend the line gradually and he was busy all day. City Lord, you can't trust her completely. Su Wan is very shrewd and cunning. Now that she has become the queen of Su Kingdom, she must be thinking for Glory City wholeheartedly. Su Ku stroked the goatee on his chin. Although his strength was not high, he was still very accurate in judging people. Since I can help Su Wan ascend to the throne, I can help other people. She is a smart person who knows the pros and cons. Of course, He Chuan would not wholly trust Su Wan. The relationship between the two was purely beneficial. He supported Su Wan in becoming the queen. Su Wan helped Glory City. This was what He Chuan asked for. Now is not the time to care about Su Kingdom. Glory Sight has resisted two waves of beast tides consecutively. The crown prince will definitely not be able to sit still. The city lord has to be on guard. Lin Ya and He Chuan shared the same view. They felt that Su Wan would definitely help Glory City under the consideration of pros and cons. The key was whether the last wave of beast tides would be a trick by the crown prince. He Chuan nodded. The crown prince must be on guard. The other party would not just watch Glory City succeed. The enemy of the enemy is a friend. The Wu Kingdom is not all filled with Crown Prince's people. Glory City is now in the limelight. Some people hope I will lose, and naturally, others hope I will win. He Chuan did not believe that the other princes had no thoughts. When he was the Crown Prince, he blocked others' path. The current Crown Prince was the same. If he could rope in a few allies, with the help of Su Kingdom's army, the chances of resisting the third wave of the beast tide would increase significantly. Su Ku and Lin Ya were smart people. They instantly understood the meaning of He Chuan's words. After a simple discussion, Su Ku was sent to secretly contact the other princes who were demoted to city lords. Under the surging undercurrents, the last wave of beast tide rolled over. The beasts that had experienced the first two waves had made a comeback. There were even higher level beasts. The Cerberus. The Earth Dragon Turtle. The Demoness Eagle. At the very least, it was equivalent to a third stage of Awakened and was many times stronger than the previous wave. Perhaps it was because of the bad luck from last time. The last wave of the Beast Tide was so densely packed that one could not see the end of it. It was definitely more than any other time recorded in the history books. Under the command of their respective kings, the strange beasts sent out the advance troops. At the same time, they besieged the four city gates. Lin Qing roughly estimated that there were about 7,000 people at each city gate, adding up to nearly 30,000. And this was only the advance troops of the strange beasts. If the defensive line had broken through, Glory City would never have another chance. They had to defend it to death. Motherfucker, are these strange beasts crazy? Lin Cheng could not help but curse. Because of the second wave of mutated beasts' attacks, he had already silently estimated in his heart that the last wave of mutated beasts would definitely not be small. However, there were too many of them, and it was enough to be recorded in the annals of history. He didn't know what kind of madness these mutated beasts had gone through. Lin Cheng paced back and forth on the city wall. No matter how calm he was, facing such a huge mutated beast tide, his heart couldn't help but feel a little flustered. Glory City's strength had indeed improved quite a bit, 
but facing a powerful exotic beast was too difficult. The surrounding soldiers didn't receive the order for a long time. They turned their heads to look at Lin Cheng in astonishment. In the past, Lin Cheng had been calm and collected. No matter what difficulties he encountered, he would be able to deal with them very well. But now, why didn't he respond at all? Could it be that he was thinking of a countermeasure? But now that the strange beasts were already at the city gates, he didn't have the time to think too much. Marshal Lin, now is not the time to think of a countermeasure. Hurry up and give the order. A personal guard reminded him anxiously. Slap. Lin Cheng gave himself a vicious slap. Being afraid before the battle began was a big taboo. As the commander, if he started to be afraid, how could he continue to fight this battle? Was he worthy of the city lord's trust? How was he worthy of the soldiers who were fighting bloody battles? As long as he was still alive, he would fight the strange beasts to the end. Archers, get ready. Shoot ruthlessly for me. Don't be stingy with your arrows. Prepare the magic crystal cannons. Fire at the spot where the strange beasts are densest. Gunslinger. Lin Cheng came back to his senses and began to give orders methodically. His tone was ruthless and resolute. As he Chuan's most trusted marshal, he would repay his trust with strength. Even if he had to die here. The modified magic crystal cannon of Freedom City was pulled out by more than ten soldiers. The bottomless muzzle of the cannon was covered with incantations, making people look forward to its power. Magic arrows scattered toward the crowd of strange beasts, and many of them were instantly shot into hedgehogs. Lin Cheng stood beside the magic crystal cannon and couldn't help but feel a little nervous. He had heard that the results of the experiment were pretty good. But this was the first time it was officially used on the battlefield. No one knew whether it would work or not. Magic arrows couldn't stop the footsteps of strange beasts. Some high-level strange beasts even directly used their bodies to block the magic arrows. Dust and smoke rose from outside the city, and the exotic beasts were getting closer and closer to the city walls. In fact, the people who were the most nervous at the moment were none other than the people sent by the governor's office because the power of the modified magic crystal cannon still needed to be tested on the strange beasts. He was also the first to see such a large-scale beast tied up close. His legs were trembling. Such a terrifying scene was like purgatory on earth. Compared to the beast tied, he was as weak as an ant. The modified magic crystal cannon was a part of his hope, a part of the governor's office's hope, and a part of everyone's hope. He gritted his teeth and forced himself not to tremble. Insert the highest level of spiritual crystals. Aim in the northwest direction where the beast tide is densest. Fire. Following his order, the soldiers in charge of operating the magic crystal cannon quickly got busy. Lin Cheng narrowed his eyes and looked in the direction the person in charge had mentioned, hoping to see what kind of result the magic crystal cannon would produce. As dozens of high-level spiritual crystals were inserted, the huge cannon's body emitted a golden light, illuminating the faces of the nearby soldiers and Lin Cheng. Boom! The entire city wall began to shake. In the northwest direction of the beast tide, the energy ball landed at the center, and a dazzling light burst out instantly. The airwaves swept outwards. The pillar of light soared into the sky. Sand and rocks flew everywhere, and dust filled the sky. The light and dust gradually dispersed. Lin Cheng stretched out his head and looked over. The place where the explosion had occurred had left a deep pit dozens of meters deep, and the ground had turned into charcoal. At the edge of the bottomless pit, there were also scattered beast parts. Looking further into the distance, there were also strange beasts that had been affected by the airwaves, lying on the ground and wailing in pain. Lin Chang's mouth opened into an O shape. He hadn't expected the improved magic crystal cannon would be so terrifying. In just an instant, Hundreds of strange beasts had probably been turned into corpses. There wasn't even a residue left in the center. That's great. Seeing this scene, the soldiers burst out in excited shouts. The powerful strange beast actually died so easily. Chapter, 110 The power of the magic crystal cannon was so terrifying. If the magic crystal cannon could continue to fire, 
the chances of successfully resisting the beast tide would significantly increase. However, Lin Cheng's face was still gloomy. No one knew what he was thinking. After He Chuan heard the explosion, he knew that the battle had already begun and immediately rushed to the city gate. He quickly came to Lin Cheng's side. Just as he was about to ask how the battle was going, he saw a group of demoness eagles swooping down from the sky, heading toward the magic crystal cannon. There were exceptionally intelligent existences among the strange beasts. They could see that the magic crystal cannon posed a considerable threat to the beast's side, so they ordered the demoness eagles, who had powerful flying abilities, to destroy the magic crystal cannon first. Lin Cheng was obviously worried about this problem. Although the magic crystal cannon was powerful, its operation was relatively slow and somewhat difficult to move. As long as the strange beasts rushed up, the magic crystal cannon would be the first target to be destroyed. Swoosh! He Chuan didn't have time to greet Lin Cheng. He held the demonic knife in his hand and instantly crossed more than 10 meters. He had to resolve the crisis regarding the magic crystal cannon first. Kill! A black beam streaked across the sky, and the demoness eagle's head flew up high, blood splattering everywhere. He Chuan didn't stop. He worked with Lin Cheng to kill all the demoness eagles. If He Chuan had not rushed over in time, the magic crystal cannons would have been in danger. When the soldiers saw the city lord appear, their morale was instantly boosted. During the second wave of the beast tide, He Chuan's invincible heroic bearing was deeply imprinted in their minds. The city lord is mighty. The city lord is finally here. Damn it, let's see who can kill more. Lin Cheng wiped the sweat off his forehead. When he saw He Chuan appear, he knew his persuasion had failed again. However, compared to the last time, Lin Cheng was more willing to accept the fact that He Chuan had personally stepped into the battle. After all, no one could change his decision. Moreover, not only could He Chuan boost the morale of the troops, but he could also increase their combat power. However, he was afraid that something would happen to He Chuan, the city lord, because the beast tide this time was too frightening. No one dared to guarantee that they would win. However, his worry was quickly replaced by the beast's tide. He continued to command the awakened ones to activate the city protection array. However, after the lesson from the last time, the beasts seemed to be on guard. When the hexagram of the array flashed, the beasts fled in all directions, evading the range of the magic array. When He Chuan saw this scene, he also secretly frowned. The creatures in charge of commanding the beasts were highly intelligent. They had suffered a loss from the magic array last time, and they learned how to avoid it this time. As expected, they couldn't be careless. Fortunately, they didn't use the improved magic crystal cannon last time. Otherwise, if they lost the surprise effect, they would definitely be evaded by the strange beasts. Although the magic array wasn't as effective as last time, the light blue magic arrow rain could very well protect the magic crystal cannon. The second wave of the demoness eagles was all blocked outside. They could not break through the dense arrow rain and could only wait anxiously at the edge. At this time, the magic crystal cannon was again fully charged, instantly shooting out a second wave of attack. Even though the strange beasts were on guard, hundreds of strange beasts were still blown to death. Broken limbs and blood splattered everywhere. Roar. Accompanied by a roar. Over a hundred griffins flew toward the magic crystal cannon. They passed through the arrow rain in the magic array, and the magic arrows didn't cause any damage to them. It seemed that this group of griffins was stronger than the demoness eagles. If they were to charge over, the magic crystal cannon would be in danger. He Chuan's gaze turned cold, and he took the initiative to charge toward the group of griffins. Kill as many as you can. Otherwise, if this group of griffins was to come over, even He Chuan, who was strong in single combat, would find it hard to guard against them. Every time he swung his knife, griffin's life would be taken away. At the same time, the strange beasts on the ground discovered that the city gates of Glory City had actually opened on their own accord. Could it be that humans had surrendered on their own accord? The strange beasts wouldn't waste their brains thinking. They rushed forward one after another towards the opening, wanting to tear apart the humans inside. 
There were even strange beasts who were squeezed to death by the giant strange beasts beside them due to the limited width of the city gates when they rushed in. Blood and death weren't able to stop the strange beasts' footsteps. However, after charging into the city, what they faced wasn't a human. Instead, it was a massive brick wall that was specially made. The brick walls were arranged in several rows, blocking the front of the beast tide. Lin Ye stood at the highest point, looking at the strange beasts running around in all directions below. Close the city gates and activate the formation. Lin Ye quickly gave the order. The awakened ones activated the formation, and golden rays of light attached to the wall. No matter how the strange beasts charged, they were unable to break through the formation. The brainless strange beasts paid the price for their greediness. The soldiers looked down from above, facing the bared fangs and brandished claws. The furious strange beasts began to strangle them mercilessly. Kill! 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 The enchanted spears fell from above, easily piercing through the strange beasts. Faced with such an attack, the strange beasts that couldn't fly had no way of retaliating. The strange beasts wanted to leap up and counterattack, but with the suppression of the magic array, the height of their leap was minimal, and they couldn't pose a threat at all. Set fire. Linyet continued to command calmly. Kerosene fell from the sky and poured on the strange beasts' bodies. The pungent smell made the strange beasts anxious and restless. They could only roar at the humans on the high walls. The useless roars didn't scare the soldiers at all. Instead, they aroused the soldiers' blood to boil. I wonder if this bunch of dogs will taste good when roasted. The meat of strange beasts is a great tonic. We even have some leftovers. Huh, we can finally make them feel pain. Countless fire showers fell from the sky. The oil was instantly ignited. The scorching flames mercilessly devoured the life of the strange beasts. Thick smoke rose into the sky. The smell of burnt fur and roasted meat mixed together. The cruel scene was vividly displayed in front of all the humans and strange beasts. No matter how savage the strange beasts were and how irrational they were, when faced with the burning flames, they instinctively felt fear. Yes, they finally knew fear. The city gates had been closed, and the strange beasts that had rushed in had no way to retreat. They could only watch helplessly as the flames came towards them and then died in pain. Linya was expressionless, and her eyes didn't show any mercy. The number of humans who had died at the hands of the strange beasts was like the hair of a cow. Some strange beasts liked to crush people alive and let them die in extreme pain. Compared to the cruelty of the strange beasts, these counterattacks were nothing. The soldiers beside her even raised their weapons and cheered, showing no mercy at all. The strange beasts that were unable to charge into the city stopped charging at the city gate when they heard their companions' wails. For some reason, when they looked at the city gate in front of them again, it seemed like an endless abyss. As long as they charged in, they would be devoured. He Chuan, who was still fighting with the griffins, looked at the billowing smoke on Lin Ya's side and instantly felt much more relaxed. Because he knew that the strategy of inviting the king into the trap had succeeded, it should be able to eliminate quite a number of strange beasts. The strange beasts' advance troops had suffered heavy losses, and the pressure on the other city gates had significantly lessened. As expected of his military advisor Lin Ya, the right-hand man had indeed saved each one a lot of energy. The beast tide continued, and the soldiers kept fighting, falling one after another. The cruel side of the war was displayed to the fullest. Chapter, 11 He Chuan watched the soldiers under his command die one after another and even had to drag a strange beast along with them before they died. He felt a great pain in his heart. A feeling of powerlessness welled up in his heart. But there was nothing he could do. There were too many strange beasts. He had to protect the magic crystal cannon first and had no time to help the soldiers who were in danger. This was the choice he had to make. For Glory City, for the City Lord. A soldier's chest was bitten through by the Cerberus, but there was no pain shown on his face. Blood flowed out from his chest. He raised his enchanted spear and used all the strength in his body to stab it into its chest. The Cerberus, who didn't have time to react, had its throat pierced by the spear. 
It whimpered a few times and fell to the ground with the soldier. Until the moment of death, the soldier still had a smile on his face. That was because he killed another strange beast in the end, and Glory City's victory had increased a bit. It was unknown whether it was tears or blood, but it slid down from the corner of Hichuan's eyes. Die! He roared toward the sky, and the demonic knife in his hand slashed toward the head of the griffin at the front. Just as Hichuan was about to retract his saber, a chill suddenly came from the back of his head. A sense of danger enveloped his heart, and he broke out in a cold sweat. Three feathers shot towards his back in a zigzag pattern. So it was the leader of the griffins who took the opportunity when Hichuan was not paying attention to launch a sneak attack from behind. Spurt. The pain that he imagined did not come. A soldier did not care about his own safety, and just as the feathers were about to hit Hichuan, he used his body to block the attack. No. Hichuan turned around and looked at the leader of the griffins angrily. He wished that he could tear the other party into pieces. It is my greatest honor to die for the city lord. Please lead lead glory city to victory. The soldier slowly closed his eyes and ultimately lost his breath. I promise you. I will lead glory city to victory. You can leave in peace. He Chuan adjusted his breathing. He could not let his anger get to his head. He had almost lost his lost his calm just now. If it were not for the soldiers who had risked their lives to save him, he would have died or been injured. Whoosh! The black saber light streaked across the sky. He Chuan poured his spiritual energy into the demonic Buddhist monk knife. The huge knife shadow traversed a hundred meters in the sky, splitting the leader of the griffins who was trying to escape into two. You want to escape? Have you asked my knife? How could He Chuan let his enemy go? Even though the saber had consumed a lot of spiritual energy, he did not regret it. He Chuan didn't have time to rest. He continued to fly into the sky because there were so many strange beasts that he couldn't kill them all. The war was still going on. The number of deaths of both humans and strange beasts was continuously increasing. The earth dragon turtle pressed down a soldier and opened its bloody mouth to swallow him. The soldier's neck was severely mutilated, and his vital signs gradually disappeared. Before he died, his long sword had pierced through the earth dragon turtle's eyes. He Chuan could only kill more strange beasts to pay tribute to the dead soldier. Because he wanted to lead Glory City to continue on, this was an opportunity that countless people had exchanged their life with. He clenched the demonic knife in his hand even tighter, and his gaze became more and more determined. At this moment it was useless to blame himself. He couldn't bring the dead back to life. The knife in his hand slashed down, and blood splattered everywhere. Another strange beast's life was harvested. He Chuan was like a machine that didn't know fatigue, continuously harvesting the lives of strange beasts. The more strange beasts he killed, the more his soldiers would avoid the fate of death. The reality was always very cruel. No matter how strong He Chuan was, he was still a single person. The number of beasts he could kill was limited. At this time, the next wave of strange beasts also began to attack. They stepped on the corpses of their companions and charged angrily toward Glory City. The tall city walls were piled with the corpses of exotic beasts, becoming the stepping stones for the next wave of strange beasts to attack the city. Huffed. A soldier used his enchanted spear to throw the corpses of strange beasts to the side, breathing in the air that reeked of blood. Then, a Cerberus pounced at him once more. Its sharp claws glowed with a faint blue light. The continuous battle made him physically and mentally exhausted. His arms seemed to weight it tons, making it extremely difficult for him to lift them up again. He lowered his head and looked at the corpse of his companion beside him. The power of anger swept through his entire body in an instant. The fatigue and pain disappeared. He didn't know whether he would live or die after the spear was thrust out. There was no difference between sitting and waiting for death and being a coward. If he didn't try, how would he know that he couldn't do it? Only by retreating could he have a chance of survival. But what if he couldn't retreat? The city lord was still slaughtering, and his comrades were fighting with all their might to prevent the strange beasts from breaking through the defense line. Die for me. 
the soldier quickly thrust out his enchanted spear. The Cerebarus's body was pierced through. Everyone was fighting with all their might. No matter how high the rank of the officer was, no matter how low the rank of the soldier was. Everyone had only one goal at this moment, to protect Glory City. The continuous drizzle fell at an unknown time. However, it could not cover up the smell of blood. When the civilians in the city heard the shouting outside, their eyes were filled with tears. The soldiers were all heroes of Glory City. Without their sacrifice, Glory City would not be what it is now. Everyone was a good person. Even if they died, they would not regret it. Some people knelt on the ground, begging for the help of the gods. Some people kept repeating the names of the soldiers. They were their children. The soldiers had the same thought in their hearts. Behind them were their wives and children, old and young. There was no retreat. The beast tide was like a wave, and the soldiers were a school of unyielding fish. The school of fish sought a place to survive in the waves. The waves could not destroy them. The demonic knife in He Chuan's hand had been soaked in blood, and his forehead was covered in sweat. The strange beasts continued to charge at the city walls, trying to break through this steel line of defense. Brothers. Victory is not far away. Everyone, follow me and continue to kill. He Chuan wiped the sweat off his forehead and took the lead to charge forward. Hearing the city lord's shout, the soldiers advanced fearlessly. One side would fall today. Either Glory City would be destroyed, or they would push back this wave of mutated beasts. Glory City, which was bathed in blood, became the focus of attention of all parties. The crown prince sat in front of the magic mirror and watched the scene of the beast tide attacking. I used the beast soul grass from two years ago on this beast tide. It can anger the nerves of the mutated beasts and make them even crazier. No matter how powerful He Chuan is, Glory City will not be able to withstand it. The military advisor stood beside the crown prince, his tone full of confidence. The crown prince was very satisfied with the tragic state of Glory City. A city in exchange for a stable throne, no matter how one looked at it, it was very worth it. He did not care about the lives of the commoners at all. As long as he could keep his position as the crown prince, sooner or later, he would be the one in charge of the Wu kingdom. Ha, huh, you did well this time. When I ascend to the throne, I will guarantee that you will become the imperial advisor. The crown prince stroked his chin, enjoying the attack of the beast tide with interest. The military advisor revealed a look of joy. He supported the crown prince for the sake of glory and wealth. His majesty is already old and decrepit. The Wu kingdom will belong to you sooner or later. However, to prevent any unforeseen changes, I have another suggestion. I don't know if I should speak of it. The military advisor said carefully. Speak. The crown prince was clearly in a good mood. He waved his hand and said. There is a colorless and tasteless yellow swallow grass. It nourishes the body and is colorless and tasteless. Ordinary people eat it to strengthen their bodies. However, it is a life-threatening allure for those who are plagued by diseases, the military advisor whispered into the crown prince's ear. It was the same when one could not receive nourishment. If the tonic was used properly, it could become a poison. The crown prince's face was as dark as water. In the end, he said sternly, find a death warrior to do it. Remember to erase all traces. Chapter, 112 The crown prince was not the only one observing the situation in Glory City. The surrounding cities were also monitoring Glory City's every move. If there were any movements, they would immediately know. The once unpopular 18th prince might very well change the situation of the Wu kingdom. The forces on the crown prince's side did not want Glory City to win, while the other forces prayed that Glory City would hold on. As time passed, Glory City's fighting strength continued to decline. It seemed that they were about to lose. From the start of the beast tide until now, Glory City had already held on for more than three hours. In the eyes of everyone, this could already be considered a miracle. Even though they lost, it was still glorious. At the same time, they had to admit that He Chuan was outstanding enough. If they were the city lord, 
Glory City would no longer exist after the second wave, let alone the last three hours of resistance. Now that Glory City was about to be broken through, the Crown Prince's forces heaved a sigh of relief. The other forces felt pity for Glory City. The third wave was too terrifying. If Glory City could really withstand it, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say it was a miracle. The various forces thought that the dust had settled. Suddenly, smoke and dust rose from behind the beast tide. A group of elite soldiers dressed in red armor with a skull mask on their faces appeared. There were a total of 30,000 of them, and they were all awakened. The red and white flags fluttered in the wind, with the big Sioux character written on them. All troops, listen up. Charge. Huang Hu was dressed in golden armor, and the sword in his hand slashed down toward the void. Su Wan did not forget the agreement. After repelling the invading Yan kingdom, she sent Huang Hu, the marshal, to bring the elites of the Su kingdom to assist in the battle. The strength of the entire country was indeed extraordinary. With the addition of the elite troops, the battle situation was instantly reversed. Brothers. The reinforcements have arrived. He Chuan's face broke into a smile. Although there were not many soldiers around him, the defensive line had already been secured. Before anyone could react, a few unknown powers appeared not too far away. The soldiers were dressed in armor, but they did not have any flags or emblems. They were the reinforcements that Su Ku had invited with his silver tongue. These forces did not dare to offend the crown prince in public, so they could only appear in private. Regardless of whether Glory City won or lost, the crown prince would not be able to find any evidence. What shocked everyone was still to come. A group of people dressed in hemp clothes rushed out from Glory City, holding all kinds of strange weapons. They brandished hoes, iron rods, and some people picked up the blood-stained weapons on the ground. Their identities were also revealed. They were the citizens of Glory City. Facing the crazy beast tide, the ordinary citizens actually came to participate. Was this a battle that they could participate in? The young people all responded to the call and became soldiers of Glory City, fighting for the city's defense. The remaining people were mostly the old, weak, and disabled. This group of people came out with hoes and iron rods to kill strange beasts. Had they gone mad? It was an extremely irrational move. It was better to stay behind obediently. It was better than giving up their lives for nothing. The soldiers at the front line saw the civilians coming out to fight for their lives. They couldn't remember anything else, so they quickly persuaded them to return. The civilians who climbed up the city wall looked at the corpses of strange beasts all over the ground, with the corpses of soldiers in the middle. Arms and legs were everywhere, and blood flowed like a river. Seeing such a bloody scene, some people directly vomited. But they didn't retreat. Instead, they were filled with anger. Charge. Kill these beasts. No one knew who was leading the charge, but the civilians charged at the strange beasts. The hose and iron rods couldn't break through the defense, so they surrounded one of them. They dug its eyes out and bit its throat, using all sorts of methods to attack. The strange beasts might be able to kill one or two civilians, but facing the continuous stream of civilians, they could only die on the spot. Humans were the ancestors of the wave attack strategy. The tragic scene shocked all the factions. These civilians were even more violent and bloodthirsty than strange beasts. What a terrifying madman! Taking the initiative to fight with mutated beasts with a mortal body was simply unheard of. He Chuan retreated from the front. He knew that he couldn't persuade these commoners, so he could only try his best to protect them. When the reinforcements broke through the beast tide, Glory City would win. Seeing the reinforcements arrive, a smile appeared on Lin Cheng's face. At the same time, his entire body was filled with strength. Everyone, listen up. Activate the magic array and cover the reinforcements. Shield soldiers, retreat and support the civilians in the city. Archers, another wave of arrows. Shoot these bastards. Prepare the next magic crystal cannon as soon as possible. All sorts of orders continued to be issued. Lynching first had to ensure that the reinforcements could successfully approach. He had to protect the crystal cores of Glory City. 
otherwise, the entire glory city would instantly turn into ruins. At that time, all efforts would be ruined. Therefore, the defensive line must not be broken through. The soldiers and the common people gathered together to resist the strange beasts. The united will form the city, and the body of flesh and blood was cast into a steel defensive line. The eyes were red. The city walls were red. The rain was red. The entire sky was dyed blood red. Glory City, which was under the assault of the strange beasts, was dyed red. He Chuan's silver moon colored clothes were dyed dark red. His arms were even trembling slightly. He couldn't remember how many times he waved the knife in his hand. He didn't even bother to look at the fallen strange beasts because he was already numb from killing them. However, he knew that this wasn't the time to rest. After winning the battle, he had plenty of time to rest. The situation didn't allow him to rest either. At the southern city gate, Su Kingdom's reinforcements had already closed in, and groups of strange beasts had fallen. Lin Ye hurriedly ordered the city gate to be opened and the magic array to be removed at the same time. When Huang Hu led 30 elite soldiers into the city and looked at the charred corpses on the ground, they could not help but be shocked. The tall city walls seemed to be in a mess, but in fact, there were hidden secrets. Huang Hu was experienced in hundreds of battles and instantly understood the intention. He raised his head and saw Lin Ye's young and weak face. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart. If only this girl was from the Su Kingdom. As a woman, she didn't lose to a man. Everyone, listen up. Climb to the top of the city wall and do your best to protect the defense line of Glory City. Don't retreat. Huang Hu didn't have time to continue being shocked because Glory City hadn't won the final victory yet. After receiving the order, the elite soldiers of the Su Kingdom quickly climbed to the top of the city wall and helped the soldiers of Glory City to fight together. The pressure on all parts of Glory City suddenly decreased. Damn it! The Su Kingdom actually showed up at the critical moment. The Crown Prince's face was even gloomier than the weather. The victory of the Beast Tide was just in sight, and it was about to break through the defense line of Glory City. The matter had already been settled. Who knew that the appearance of the Su Kingdom and a few unknown forces could turn the tables instantly? Your Highness, regardless of whether Glory City can win, as long as my final plan can be carried out smoothly, even if the 18th Prince guards the Glory City, he won't be able to overturn the situation. The military counselor advised calmly. Since the Crown Prince had already agreed to kill his father and usurp the throne, why should he care about Glory City? You're right, quickly send someone to prepare. No. I have to make two preparations. If Father Emperor doesn't drink it, you know what to do. The Crown Prince extended his thumb and made a killing gesture at his neck. I understand. Please wait for the good news, Crown Prince. The military advisor slowly retreated from the room. He Chuan. Even if you have the ability to reach the heavens, you are still no match for me. The crown prince threw the magic mirror on the ground and stopped watching the battle in Glory City. Chapter, 113 The beast tide's attacks gradually weakened, and the strange beasts began to slowly retreat. They were afraid of facing the valiant soldiers and civilians of Glory City, as well as the powerful reinforcements. They were truly afraid. Glory City's finally attained victory. He Chuan plopped down on the ground. He was simply too tired, so tired that he didn't want to move. Leading the people to resist the onslaught of the entire beast tide successfully, congratulations, host, for activating the law of karma, number one in the world. You have received a huge reward. The reward that he had been looking forward the most was finally here. When He Chuan heard the system notification beside his ear, his gaze became extremely excited. From the moment he had first arrived at Glory City until now, when he had defeated the three beast tides, he had been walking on the edge of death almost every day. He did not like this feeling very much. He wanted to stand at the top of the world. He would soon be able to witness how abundant the rewards for number one in the world was. Ding, sending the reward now. Just as he was still excited, a golden light descended from the sky and enveloped He Chuan. 
He Chuan felt extremely comfortable as if he had returned to his mother's warm embrace. Lin Cheng was shocked. He thought that something had happened to the city lord, so he quickly ran up to check. An invisible force threw Lin Cheng, who had rushed up rashly, more than ten meters away. Big brother, don't be rash. The city lord should be undergoing a baptism. Lin Ye quickly tried to stop Lin Cheng from doing something stupid. Baptism? Lin Cheng scratched his head. Yes, it's the baptism of a god. It seems when the 18th prince awakened, there was a strange phenomenon. Huang who obviously knew the secret of the bloodline. Combined with this heart-palpitating power, he instantly understood the reason. He Chuan actually had the potential to become a god. However, according to the records in the history books, after breaking through the bloodline limit, it was very easy for him to die prematurely. However, looking at He Chuan's current situation, it was obvious that he was developing toward becoming a god. Could it be that he had the opportunity to witness the birth of a new god? The commoners looked at the sky reaching golden light and one after another knelt towards He Chuan who was wrapped within the light. That vast and boundless energy, like the stars in the nine heavens, made them unable to resist the urge to submit. It was the supreme divine power. Their city lord was actually a god. A high and mighty god. Even after a thousand years in the world, few people could see this scene. They did not expect such a miracle to appear in Glory City. Today, Glory City is destined to go down in history. Not only did they repel the most difficult beast tide in history, but they were also lucky enough to witness the birth of a new god. The people were no longer sad. There was only fanaticism in their eyes. Everyone gathered at the location. They wanted to witness a miracle. Driven by fanaticism, they ran even faster than the strange beasts. Very soon. Everyone in Glory City, including the supporting forces, gathered around He Chuan, who was bathed in the light. Feeling the ancient and solemn aura, they couldn't help but kneel down and worship him. Indeed, it was the aura of a god. He Chuan, who was in the pillar of light, had temporarily lost consciousness. His strength was constantly rising. The fifth stage, sixth stage. Breaking through had become so simple. It was as if a century had passed, and it was also as if it had happened in an instant, He Chuan opened his eyes. His irises were golden, and there seemed to be the gears of time rotating. The god said. Revive the lost souls of Glory City. He Chuan walked out from the golden pillar of light. His voice wasn't loud, but everyone could hear him clearly. The words become the law. The god descended. Heavens, this is really a miracle. The heavens have eyes, protecting our glory city from decline for a long time. Could it be that the goddess of life heard my prayer? This old man's life is worth it. No, it must be the god of light. Wrong, just now, city lord the lord god said to resurrect the lost soul. It's clearly the supreme time god. An old man heard He Chuan's words and analyzed that He Chuan's was a god of time. God of time. This made everyone freeze on the spot, unable to speak. The god of time was one of the seven main gods. Ordinary gods would have to be extremely respectful when they saw him. Ordinary gods had to follow the orders of the main gods. Between the two, it was like the city lord and his soldiers, the difference in strength and status was very big. It was very normal if ordinary people wanted to believe in ordinary gods. However, if ordinary people wanted to believe in the seven main gods, they had to be very firm in their beliefs. If there were any fluctuations in their beliefs, they would be judged as blasphemous and punished by the gods. Just as they were shocked, a golden palace appeared in the sky. A golden quartz clock hung at the top of the palace. The hands of the quartz clock began to spin counterclockwise. This power made everyone's heart palpitate, and they had no choice but to submit. Lin Cheng, Lin Ye, and Huang Hu also followed behind with grim expressions. This was a sovereign god. They had to kneel and show their respect, or else they would be blaspheming the gods. The two golden doors were carved with all kinds of strange flowers and plants, as well as all kinds of clocks and watches. Under everyone's gaze, the two golden doors slowly parted, and a dazzling seven-colored light shone from within. 
the seven colored light shone on everyone's bodies, making them feel warm and comfortable. This was the mercy of God. Everyone's faces became even more pious. He Chuan had led them to successfully resist the beast tide, and his position in everyone's hearts had already become even higher. Now that he had become the main god, they naturally had to believe in him. Everyone, there's no need to kneel anymore. Stand up. He Chuan gradually regained consciousness. He saw that everyone was sincerely kneeling on the ground as he spoke in a soft voice. His words seemed to have traveled through the endless void, like a warm spring breeze, soothing everyone's hearts. The order had been given, but no one dared to stand up. This was because He Chuan was not only the city lord, but also the god of time. They could stand and speak to the city lord, but they didn't have the guts to speak to a god like this. Seeing this scene, He Chuan was stunned. Only in the end did he realize that he was no longer a mortal. He had unlocked his gene lock and broken through to become a god. His status was no longer the same as theirs. Stand up. This is my order. He Chuan waved his hand. The god had personally given the order. How could they dare to disobey? They hurriedly supported each other as they stood up, waiting for He Chuan's next order. Everyone stood up, but their heads were lowered, not daring to look at God's face. He Chuan sighed helplessly in his heart. It seemed impossible to go back to the past. This group of people no longer treated him as the city lord or the eighteenth prince. In their eyes, He Chuan only had the status of a god. After finishing the final matters, it was time to leave. A group of people walked out from the palace behind them. They were all soldiers of Glory City who had died, as well as citizens. Under He Chuan's time manipulation, all of them were reborn and returned. This was the power of a god. If he wanted you to live, no one would be able to kill you. If he wanted you to die, no one would be able to save you. When the living saw their deceased companions, family members, and friends return, they couldn't help but cry tears of joy. They were even happier than when they had won against the beast tide. Because everyone was alive, and they could all witness the glory together. See you in the capital. He Chuan waved his hand in the air, and the magic mirrors that the various powers were observing all shattered. The eighteenth prince, He Chuan, had become a sovereign. This caused the various powers to feel terror in their hearts. Who would dare disobey an order from a god of time? However, the crown prince had shattered the magic mirrors in advance, so he hadn't been able to see the scene of sleepless nights. Chapter 114 he Chuan looked down at the various family drama and felt slightly upset. In this world, the only thing he cared about was his mother in name. He heard she had given birth to a younger brother a while ago. He wondered how he was doing now. He slowly landed on the city wall and Lin Cheng was the first to run over. City Lord, is it really you? Even now, I still can't quite believe it. Lin Cheng's eyes were filled with worship. Only he still addressed He Chuan as the city lord. What? After resisting the beast tide, you don't even think highly of me, the city lord, anymore? He Chuan's face revealed a smile that was like a spring breeze, and his tone was filled with ridicule. I know that you are the city lord. You haven't been possessed by a god. You are still you. So it turned out that Lin Cheng was worried that He Chuan had been possessed by the god of time. If that were the case, even if Lin Cheng were reduced to dust, he would still have to have God return He Chuan's body. He believed in the 18th prince, He Chuan, who had led Glory City to resist the beast tide, and not in main god or any other god. And now that He Chuan had become a god, everyone was happy. Whether I am the god of time or the 18th prince, I am the city lord who has led you through difficult times together. He Chuan patted Lin Cheng on the shoulder. Yes, esteemed city lord. Lin Cheng said with a smile on his face. It was thanks to Su Kingdom's assistance. Return and tell Su Wan the Wu Kingdom will be her ally in the future. He Chuan said to Huang Hu. Thank you, Lord God. Huang Hu was not Lin Cheng, so he did not dare to address He Chuan as city lord. He Chuan nodded and calmed his heart to check the other rewards in the system. 
The number one in the world had already given him a great surprise, so he did not know what the other reward would be. Sacred soul pills, spirit gathering pills, sacred artifacts, a pile of spirit artifacts. After you're done, come to the city lord's manor. I have the rewards and the final mission. After He Chuan finished speaking, he flew through space and directly arrived at the main hall of the city lord's manor. Everyone present felt their eyes blur, and He Chuan's figure disappeared. Was this the power of a god? It was indeed extraordinary. The resurrected gathered together with everyone else, sharing the joy of victory. After a great battle, not only had Glory City successfully repelled three waves of beast hordes, it had also unexpectedly suffered zero casualties. Everything was all thanks to the Lord God of Time. Otherwise, Glory City would have been reduced to ruins, becoming the dust of history. No matter what happened in the future. At the very least, when He Chuan became the City Lord, he knew how to care for the people and sympathize with their difficulties. He was a qualified City Lord. The soldiers were also proud of fighting alongside He Chuan. They were soldiers under the City Lord. Now that He Chuan had become the main god, they felt lucky. Just this matter alone was enough for them to brag about for the rest of their lives. Who had been a soldier under the main god? Who had fought alongside the main god? He Chuan sat on the chair and tapped the teapot with his hand. The tea in the teapot flew out from the spout and automatically filled the teacup. Lin Ye, Lin Cheng, and Su Ku watched He Chuan's actions respectfully. The crisis in Glory City has passed. Staying here won't bring much development. The three of you have been with me the longest, so I'm prepared to bring you back to the capital. He Chuan said softly. To the capital of the Wu Kingdom. What a tempting offer. Given the city lord's current status, he shouldn't care about the position of a mere emperor, right? Lin Cheng asked curiously. He Chuan had become the god of time. Could it be that he was still interested in becoming the emperor of the Wu Kingdom? I want to personally take back what I've lost. Of course, I won't be the emperor. You will assist my younger brother. The future of the Wu Kingdom is in your hands. He Chuan had already experienced what it was like to be an emperor. There was no meaning to it. However, he would only be an emperor in name for a short while. After all, everything was for evaluation. How old was he to be assisting He Chuan's younger brother? Moreover, from He Chuan's words, he should be leaving the Wu Kingdom. City Lord, you want to leave us? Lin Ye was a little reluctant. If He Chuan had not appeared, she would have been destined to be blind for the rest of her life. Her older brother Lin Cheng was destined to be unable to become the marshal. What they had now was all thanks to He Chuan. Lin Ye could not help but feel a little sad as they were about to be completely separated. All good things must come to an end. One day in the future, we might meet at the highest point. I'll wait for you. He Chuan was used to being separated, so he was not that sad. If he wanted to become a strong person, he had to have a firm heart. This was not the real world, so he could not be immersed in it. We will work hard to follow in the footsteps of the city lord until we meet again. Lin Ye nodded firmly. She understood that He Chuan could not be restricted by his identity. As long as she worked harder in her cultivation, they would meet again one day. Lin Cheng and Su Ko also nodded firmly. He Chuan waved his hand, and all kinds of pills and weapons filled the hall. All sorts of high-level pills and high-level enchanted weapons dazzled the three of them. The three of you pick first. The rest will be distributed according to merit points. You have three days to rest and reorganize. If anyone is willing to go with you to the Wu Kingdom, you can bring them with you. After saying this, He Chuan left the hall first. He was prepared to go to his own golden palace to take a look. After becoming a main god, rewards of this level would no longer be able to move his heart. The god of time's palace gave He Chuan an extremely exaggerated feeling. The palace couldn't be seen as far as the eye could see, and the sky above was the Milky Way. The gorgeous pillars that supported the palace were engraved with all sorts of mysterious and ancient runes. Further ahead was a pool of water. The pool was made of gold bricks, and there were all sorts of fish swimming inside. The fish here contained powerful spiritual energy. 
If an ordinary person took a bite, they would probably immediately become a level 3 awakened. Not far from the pool stood a golden statue that was nearly 5 meters tall. Its clothes and facial features were exactly the same as He Chuan's. The statue gave off an ancient, solemn, and dignified feeling. If an ordinary person were to stand here, they would probably immediately kneel down and worship him. He Chuan felt a strange feeling. Could it be that this palace used to belong to him? He stretched out his hand and knocked on the golden statue. It wasn't empty inside. It should be able to sell for quite a bit of money, He Chuan said to himself. He continued to walk forward. He walked to the throne, which represented the sovereign of time, then slowly sat down. The instant he sat down, the feeling of having control over the entire palace surged into his heart. From this moment on, he was the main god of time. He could control the time at will. He Chuan took out a seed out of thin air and threw it not far away. Then, he stretched out his right hand and snapped his fingers. The seed took root and sprouted at a speed visible to the naked eye. In just a few seconds, it grew into a towering tree. It bloomed and bore fruit. He took the fruit from the tree and put it to his mouth and took a bite. It was sweet and delicious, and it contained a strong spiritual energy. It was the power of God's law. Even an ordinary seed would become a treasure that mortals could never reach through the hands of God. Ordinary gods were powerful enough, not to mention He Chuan, who was a time sovereign. Interesting. It was also the first time He Chuan used the power of God of time. It felt very novel. He snapped his fingers again. The fruit on the tree disappeared and turned into a flower. The flower closed, the towering tree shrank rapidly, and finally returned to its seed form. Time was under his control. Chapter, 115 The sky was deep, the rain had passed, the sky had cleared up, the wind was calm, and the sun was bright. The colorful world tolerated the wildness of the green grass, and only then did it become lush and green. Glory City had today's achievements thanks to He Chuan's leadership. The soldiers had consumed the pills that were rewarded, and their strength had increased by a large margin. Perhaps, even if the surrounding cities added up, they wouldn't be as strong as Glory City now. If any more strange beasts dared to come here, they would be guaranteed never to return, and their lives would all be left here. However, the people who were supposed to be happy now had sad and unwilling expressions on their faces. Their most respected 18th prince, the city lord, the main god of time, was about to leave Glory City. All that was left was the legend of fighting against the beast tide. He Chuan sat in the luxurious carriage, Lin Ya and Lin Ching sat beside him, and Su Ku acted as the coachman. More than 30 young soldiers were willing to go to the capital together, held enchanted weapons in their hands, and lined up on both sides of the horses. He raised his hand to open the curtain of the carriage. Let's go. The carriage slowly moved forward. City Lord, have a safe journey. Lord Main God of Time, have a safe journey. This was probably the last image He Chuan left in their hearts. Compared to the small, desolate border cities like Glory City, the capital of the Wu Kingdom was much more prosperous. The capital was magnificent and majestic. The walls on all four sides were made of a diamond rock. They were incomparably majestic like a black mountain ridge stretched across the horizon. It gave off a powerful sense of oppression. One could vaguely see that the royal palace was magnificent. It was as if a heavenly palace had descended on the human world. It was tall and majestic. It was almost dusk. The rays of the setting sun shone on the busy and bustling city. The luxurious carriage slowly drove into the city gate. People were shouting and selling along the way, chatting and laughing with the crowd. Lin Ya lifted the curtains with curiosity and sat in the carriage. She looked at the city under the emperor's feet and slowly displayed its incomparable superiority in front of her eyes. There were buildings and shops along the road, a group of well-dressed young masters and young ladies, as well as those juggling on the street that she had never seen before everything made her originally exhausted heart suddenly feel alive. So this was the capital of the Wu Kingdom. Lin Ya sighed in her heart. Returning to the imperial city once again, He Chuan's heart was also filled with emotions. After all, 
he had once stood in the glory. He was the crown prince, but because of a single word from the emperor of the Wu kingdom, he became a prince who had lost his power. If he was not a reincarnator, he might have already died in Glory City. But because of this, he rose to become the main god of time from a difficult position. With all the people in the city added together, he could destroy them with a snap of his fingers. The once prosperous capital city couldn't even be compared to the corners of his palace. The place that attracted him no longer existed. Who are you? The forbidden area of the palace was forbidden to enter. The guards in charge of guarding the palace came forward and prepared to check the people in the carriage. The 18th prince, the city lord of Glory City, He Chuan. The two soldiers of Glory City stopped the guards. The master humiliated the subject and the subject died. As the soldiers under He Chuan's command, they naturally would not allow anyone to check the carriage casually. The people here still did not know what had happened in the distant Glory City. The Imperial Palace Guards looked at the soldiers of Glory City were filled with killing intent and showed an apparent timidity on their faces. His Majesty has decreed that He Chuan will be stripped of his identity as a prince and demoted to a commoner. He will never be allowed to return to the Wu Kingdom. The Imperial Palace Guard said. He he, the Crown Prince is really impatient. He is even capable of murdering his father and usurping the throne. He Chuan, who was in the carriage, smiled calmly. He only needed to use the current karma to deduce what the crown prince had done easily. God says. Move aside. He Chuan's cold voice sounded out. The imperial palace guard's eyes revealed a look of fear. They could not control their bodies and stepped aside one after another. What kind of demonic technique is this? I can't move. He Chuan, how dare you look down on the imperial power. The imperial guards were still clamoring. After all, this was the capital of the Wu kingdom. One hundred, zero zero imperial guards were guarding it. No matter how powerful He Chuan was, he couldn't kill one hundred, zero zero imperial guards. This was just a naive thought. As one of the seven great sovereigns, he could make the Wu kingdom disappear with a snap of his fingers. If you dare to be disrespectful to a god, I'll deprive you of twenty years of your life. He Chuan snapped his fingers. The imperial guard who had been the loudest earlier had his hair gradually turned white, and his face was covered with wrinkles. At the age of forty, he had instantly become an aged old man. Everyone immediately shut their mouths. The lesson of the past was evident here. No one wanted to lose twenty years of their life for no reason. You deserve it. You dared to be disrespectful to the god of time. You're lucky he didn't let you die right away. Su Ku revealed a mocking smile. He waved his whip and continued to drive the luxurious carriage towards the imperial palace. The power of a god is so terrifying. Linya recalled the scene just now and said in surprise. She didn't have such great feelings when he resurrected the people. However, the feeling of watching someone grow old in front of her was unforgettable. You also have a unique bloodline in your body. Sooner or later, you will become a new god. He Chuan rubbed Lin Ya's head and set a prohibition to prevent any god from attacking Lin Ya. Lin Ya felt God's power, and a happy expression appeared on her pretty face. Although she was very different from He Chuan now, she believed they would meet again someday in the future. When the time came, she would no longer hesitate and directly tell him about the love hidden in her heart. Lin Cheng looked at his sister enviously. He had been worried about her awakening her bloodline, afraid that she would touch some gods and die young. The crown prince's military advisor was leisurely drinking wine, and was holding two beautiful women in his arms. The poisoning of the emperor of the Wu kingdom had been a success. The crown prince had successfully taken the throne and became the Wu kingdom's national advisor. His real name was Wei Diji, and he was a fortune teller in the pugilistic world. Because he was on the crown prince's boat, he had achieved what he had today. National advisor, have another sip. The beautiful woman in his arms poured the wine on her white chest and moved closer to Wei Diji. Very good, stay here tonight. This imperial advisor will reward you handsomely. Wei Diji, who had become the imperial advisor, lived in a world of debauchery all day long. He was rich, powerful, and accompanied by beautiful women. 
Imperial advisor. Not good. A royal guard rushed in rashly. Wei Deji was tasting the beauty strawberries when he was interrupted by a sudden shout. He was so scared that he bit down hard. Ouch! The beauty held her plump chest, and her tears were rolling in her eyes due to the pain. If you don't give me an explanation, I will dismember your body today. Wei Deji looked at the guard who kneeled on the ground and snarled. His interest that was finally aroused was all destroyed. He had not had the time to vent the dragon tiger pill he had deliberately taken earlier. No one could remain calm when such a matter was interrupted. Imperial advisor, the 18th prince, He Chuan, is back. The guard finally managed to catch his breath. He immediately burst into tears and snot. He Chuan is back. His majesty has already decreed that he will be demoted to a commoner and will never be allowed to return to the Wu kingdom. Does he dare to lead an army to rebel? Wei Deji asked with a frown as he dismissed the two beauties. The 18th prince did not lead an army to rebel. Less than 50 people are accompanying him, but the soldier recalled the scene just now and did not dare to continue. Chapter 116 Wei Deji walked up and kicked the crying guard in disgust. What's going on? Explain it all at once. I don't know where He Chuan learned the demonic technique. He can make people grow old in an instant. We don't dare to stop him. The guard finally explained the situation clearly. Trash. There are 100 00 Imperial Guards in the capital. How can you be scared by him? Wei Deji was so angry that he blew his beard and glared. It was only an awakened but could scare the Imperial Guards in the palace. It would be embarrassing enough if it were told to others. He didn't care about continuing to enjoy himself. He quickly ordered the guards to transfer the Imperial Guards into the palace in the name of the Emperor. After that, he hurried to the palace. Like master, like servants. The crown prince had successfully ascended to the throne and become the emperor of the Wu kingdom. However, he did not think of making any progress. Instead, he spent all his time in the harem indulging in pleasure. When the ministers saw his appearance, they tried to persuade him. When he was the crown prince, he could still pretend to listen to a few sentences. However, when he became the emperor of the Wu kingdom, he did not listen to anyone's advice at all. As long as anyone made him unhappy, they would either retire or go to prison. The entire Wu kingdom became a hall of one word. The ministers were always on tenterhooks, afraid that they had said the wrong thing and made the emperor unhappy. Your Majesty. The imperial advisor requests to see you. The palace maid, dressed in cool clothes, walked to the dragon bed and said gently. Many beautiful women were lying on the dragon bed, leaning against the side of the new emperor. Bring him in. The crown prince waved his hand and ate the fresh fruit offered by the beauty. Your Majesty, He Chuan is back. He will enter the sacred royal palace soon. Wei Deji jogged in and told him in detail what the guard had told him. They are all useless. Follow me to see this 18th royal brother. I want to see what he is capable of. The crown prince put on his dragon robe and walked to the sacred royal palace first. The sacred royal palace, as its name implied, wanted every emperor to become a wise ruler. He Chuan stood in the middle of the palace with his hands behind his back and waited quietly with his eyes closed. Lin Cheng raised his head and looked around the sacred royal palace. He saw the top-grade sandalwood beam, the crystal jade wall lamp, the pearls curtain, and Fan Jin as pillars in the palace. The six-foot-wide agarwood broad bed was hung with a paolo tent. The tent was embroidered with beads and silver thread begonia flowers. The wind stirred the illusory of clouds, mountains, and seas. The emperor's throne was covered with soft silk and folded with jade ribbons. On top of the treasure in the hall hung a huge bright moon pearl. It was shining like a bright moon. The floor was covered with white jade with gold beads embedded in it. The ground was chiseled into a lotus, and each flower looked like a five-stalked lotus. The petals were fresh and exquisite, and even the stamens were delicate and delicate. It was warm and moist and was chiseled from blue fields and warm jade. It could be said that it was carved with beams and painted with pillars. It was splendid and resplendent. 
The fine threads of silver rain covered the heaven and earth like a veil. A curved green jade belt was like clear water flowing through the forest, and the shadows of the distant mountains were faintly discernible. The rain blew on the slender and thin phoenix tail bamboo, which gathered into beads and slid down the elegant and unique leaf tail. Like a broken crystal thread, it knocked on the oil paper umbrella intermittently, as clear and graceful as a lady lightly striking a chime bell. No wonder they all like to be emperors. Just the main hall of the court is a hundred times more luxurious than the entire glory city. Lin Ching smacked his lips and marveled at the magnificent main hall. It was the first time he had come to the Wu Kingdom's sacred royal palace after living for so long. From now on, you will see it every day. The Wu Kingdom will need you to govern it in the future. He Chuan still had his eyes closed. However, every move of the entire imperial palace could not escape his perception. The crown prince came to the sacred royal palace and sat on the throne that symbolized the power of the Wu Kingdom. How dare you, He Chuan! You have already been stripped of your title as a prince, and you cannot return to the Wu Kingdom in the future. Now that you have brazenly barged into the palace, you have your crime is even worse. The military advisor, as the crown prince's lackey, questioned He Chuan directly. It's hilarious. The city lord led Glory City to stop the largest beast tide in history. What right do you have to strip him of his title as a prince? Lin Cheng walked forward and pointed at the crown prince as he questioned. There was no respect at all. Who are you to talk to me like that? Guards! Kill these arrogant people on the spot! A cruel smile appeared on the crown prince's face. The fully armed imperial guards rushed in, ready to take them down. God says. Stop! He Chuan's words became the law. The time in the hall suddenly stopped. The imperial guards all stopped on the spot. What kind of demonic spell did you use? I am the emperor of the Wu Kingdom. You cannot kill me. The crown prince could not even move a finger, and could only watch as He Chuan walked in front of him. Ignorant trash, how dare you speak to a god like that? Don't think that no one knows you conspired with the imperial advisor to kill Father Emperor. He Chuan leaned forward and said in a mocking tone. How do you know? Let me go quickly. The crown prince was still struggling. Those who kill their father will be punished by God. You only have one minute left to live. After He Chuan finished speaking, the crown prince and the military advisor visibly aged. I I beg you, spare me. The crown prince fell to the ground weakly. He stretched out his wrinkled hand and begged He Chuan to let him go. He wished that every second would be as long as a year. Now you know to repent. It's too late. Go to hell and atone for your sins. He Chuan looked into the distance. He did not pity people like the crown prince and the military advisor. One minute passed in the blink of an eye. The crown prince and the military advisor had ended their sinful lives. He Chuan returned to the Wu Kingdom as a time sovereign and asked Lin Cheng to summon all the ministers and princes. In the end, he announced in front of everyone that his younger brother was the successor of the Wu Kingdom. Lin Cheng would be the commander-in-chief of the three legions of the empire, Lin Ye would be the imperial advisor, and Su Ku would be the imperial preceptor. Furthermore, the Wu Kingdom and Su Kingdom would become a comrade in hands, forever tying the eternal friendship. No one dared to disobey the orders of the God of Time, and the other princes did not dare to complain either. In the end, He Chuan left the Wu Kingdom. No one knew where he had gone. The deeds of Glory City and He Chuan were widely spread. Under the lead of Wu Kingdom and Su Kingdom, each country began to take the initiative to launch a counterattack against the strange beasts. Instead of waiting for death. Under the attack of the human coalition army, the strange beasts began to retreat one after another. In the end, both sides reached an agreement. The strange beasts lived in a specific place. And humans couldn't go and disturb them casually. Later on, the relationship between humans and strange beasts became better and better, and a newly awakened beast tamer appeared. Lin Ye's body was protected by the god of time. After a hundred years of cultivation, she smoothly became the new god of life. Lin Cheng became the commander-in-chief of the country, 
and the Lin family could enjoy wealth and glory for generations. Su Ko retired from the world and became the most prominent merchant in Wu Kingdom. All the major chambers of commerce were listed on the list. In the blink of an eye, decades passed. Someone found the Time Palace left behind by He Chuan. There were all sorts of potions in it. After an ordinary person consumed it, they could become an awakened one and they would not age. This made the entire world go crazy over it. The potion He Chuan had researched could not only make people become awakened, but it could also prolong one's life. In the long stream of history, He Chuan would leave behind a thick layer of color. At this moment, He Chuan stood on the clouds and looked at the masses below. He knew it was time to leave. All of this will become the past. Chapter 117 Calculating Score On the reincarnation platform, tens of thousands of rays of golden light converged, and He Chuan slowly walked out from the pillar of light. He slowly opened his eyes. Looking at the familiar surroundings, he could feel the power of the main god this time, and he even completed the mission perfectly. He should at least have an rating. Reincarnation Evaluation Completed Personal Achievements, 18th Prince, City Lord of Glory City, Emperor of the Wu Kingdom, Creator of Glory, Main God of Time. Rating has been greatly increased. B. S. Reward, 2500 reincarnation points and the retention of a hidden divinity. Social Contribution, People's Livelihood, Reorganization of the Wu Kingdom, Successful Resistance to the Most Difficult Beast Tide in History. Overall Rating Increased. B.A. Reward 30 zero zero reincarnation points, reward time perceiver can happen in the next half an hour. Character template reversal degree, 100% survival time of 30 years, successfully changed fate, and finally became main god of time. Unraveling the mystery of gods, famous for centuries, final rating increased by one level. Your overall evaluation will be raised by S.S. You will receive an additional 100 zero zero reincarnation points. Your current reincarnation evaluation, S. Hidden achievement has been achieved, God of Time Control. Successfully completed the most difficult mission. You have led mankind to successfully fight against the strange beasts and become the creator of a new era. You have completely changed the direction of the world. Miracles have been seen all over the world. Your final evaluation will be raised by one level. Final rating of this reincarnation, SS rank. Additional reward of SS rank reincarnation evaluation. 1. SS rank energy infusion. 2. A magic weapon, bloodsucker demon sword. 3. Obtain the time rule, able to summon the time rule to strengthen oneself, obtaining the corresponding enhancement. For colon 200 reincarnation points. SS. A 1 in 10,000 SS rating. He Chuan looked at the rating in disbelief. To achieve such an achievement, luck, strength, and courage were indispensable. The reward this time was beyond his imagination. There was also the time rule, which was something only gods could comprehend. Even if an ordinary person reincarnated ten times, they might not have such an opportunity. The rule of time, together with the tyrannical true cultivation manual, could make him invincible in the real world. The other reward was from obtaining SS grade. The previous S grade energy infusion had given him a lot of benefits. This was the SS grade, it made him look forward to it even more. The bloodsucker demon sword was dark red in color. He could feel a vibration coming from his soul when he placed his hand on it. Those injured by the bloodsucker demon sword would not only be injured physically, but they also be attacked on the soul. He Chuan did not hesitate to use the SS grade energy infusion. On the reincarnation platform, a dazzling golden light lit up and instantly enveloped He Chuan. The cells greedily absorbed the amount of nutrients. They rapidly absorbed the nutrients from the outside world. After the energy infusion ended, the light gradually dissipated. He Chuan's incomparably handsome face appeared even more otherworldly at this moment. As long as he stood there, he would be able to attract everyone's attention. The value of the deduction system was still very high. It was far higher than all the other rewards added together. 
It could be said that if the person who reincarnated this time did not have the deduction system, then he would not be able to obtain an S-rank evaluation. He Chuan walked down the reincarnation platform and took a deep breath, feeling the surging power in his body. At this moment, he had about a hundred years of cultivation strength. It was equivalent to the strength of a high-grade Xientian expert in the previous world of martial arts. It was about 70 to 80 percent of his strength when he was at his strongest. As expected of an S-rank energy infusion body, one had to know that it was very difficult to increase one's strength after the Xientian realm. Even with the deduction system, one had to cultivate for more than 100 years. Moreover, with the convenience of having the identity of an emperor, countless natural treasures could be enjoyed. Just now, the energy infusion was done in a few seconds. Is this what a reincarnator is? He Chuan muttered to himself and could not help but smile. That's right, he was a reincarnator. A reincarnator that was getting stronger and stronger. At the same time, the results of He Chuan's reincarnation once again alarmed the officials of the Reincarnation Intelligence Collection Department. When they saw the SS symbol on the screen, they looked as if they had eaten SHT. What was going on? The once in a thousand years SS evaluation was right in front of them. This was not only shocking, but they were now suspecting that there was something wrong with the machine. Hurry up and get the maintenance staff here. The person in charge looked at He Chuan on the screen and said gloomily. However, the conclusion given by the maintenance staff made them realize the reality once again. These researchers were hit hard. It was He Chuan again. When other people were reincarnated, getting an A-grade evaluation was already a blessing from the heavens. This fellow actually got a SS. Wasn't it too heaven-defying? Can't he allow others to live? This was only his third reincarnation, how could he get such a high rating again? The researchers couldn't bear to watch any longer. Was this fellow playing under their nose? When Ku Yuan heard this news, his heart had already become uncertain whether he was happy or worried. This little brother of his was truly unexpected. With a double S rating and such results, the president of the Reincarnation Academy was probably going crazy. If he Chuan reincarnated a few more times, would he be able to be promoted as well? If one were to say that people were choices, then there was no one else with such luck. Ku Yuan immediately ran over to apply for a reward. Faced with such an outstanding reincarnator, the association would not be stingy with resources. Before He Chuan could return home, he was stopped by Ku Yuan on the way home. Ku Yuan insisted on having a few drinks with him to celebrate. The SS rating was hard to come by in a thousand years. He needed to learn from it. It was good to just listen to the story. In fact, the most important thing was to gradually close the distance between the two of them. Brother Ku, why do you always come so quickly? Don't tell me you like me. He Chuan sat in the car and joked with Haim. I don't want to pay attention to you, but you don't even know that it's a once in a thousand years SS rating. I guess all the girls in the research institute want to marry you, Ku Yuan said in a speechless manner. Who wouldn't pay attention to such a big commotion every time? As long as brother Ku doesn't want to marry me, it's fine. I don't have the fortune to enjoy it. He Chuan smiled indifferently. He also knew that this time the commotion was a little big. However, in the previous world, he had narrowly escaped death, so he had to take all the rewards that he deserved. Have I really thought about it? I'm planning to fly to Thailand for a surgery, then go to Korea for a facelift, and then come back to Wu Brother He. When the time comes, don't reject me. Ku Yuan joked. Okay, Brother Ku is still the most ruthless. I'm convinced. If you finish this plan, I'm afraid that there will be many handsome men chasing you. I'm afraid that it will be my turn to die. He Chuan gave a thumbs up. There was a great beauty in his family. Was he worried that he wouldn't have a place to vent his desires? Besides, he had seen all kinds of beauty in his three reincarnations. He didn't even touch a queen like Su Wan when she was in front of him. It was better to forget about Ku Yuan. He was afraid that he would vomit out last night's meal. However, he also understood that Ku Yuan was playing along with his joke. All the hustle and bustle in the world came for benefits. 
All the hustle and bustle in the world came for benefits. No one would treat anyone for no reason. It was all related to benefits. The reason Kuyuan greeted him with a smile and took the initiative to treat him to a meal was that he had great potential and had continuously received S-rank evaluations. If he were always at the back of the queue, Kuyuan probably wouldn't even glance at him. Chapter, 118 Brother He, you must have gained a lot. Kuyuan entered the room and asked impatiently. Actually, the SS reward is the reincarnation point, which is more generous. There are also some top-grade pills and weapons. He Chuan obviously wouldn't tell Kuyuan everything. After all, a person's heart was separated from his stomach. Who knew what the other party's motives were? There were some secrets that he couldn't be told to the people closest to him. They had to be kept in the stomach. That was the best choice. He simply told him about his experience with the third reincarnation. He hid the fact that he had become the main god of time. He only said that he had become the ruler of the Wu kingdom in the end. A beast tide that is rarely seen in thousands of years. I don't know whether I should say that brother he is lucky or unlucky. Maybe it's because you resisted the beast tide that your score is so high, but the actual reward hasn't increased much. Kuyuan tried to explain his analysis. However, He Chuan was already amazing enough. He didn't see the faces of the people from the research institute. They were just short of checking all the testing machines in the base. The two of them chatted briefly for a while. Kuyuan took out his laptop and said that he wanted to check out the forum to see the situation of the other people who had reincarnated this time. Every time the reincarnation ended, the forum was very lively. Everyone would brag about themselves in it. Hot posts on the forum today. I, who had reincarnated ten times, finally got an S-rank evaluation. In it was a powerful reincarnator who talked about the various dangers and experiences of this time. However, 70% of the words were bragging about his great achievements. The following reply, what's so great about it? There's a reincarnator named He Chuan who got an S rating a long time before you, and the key point is that he has only reincarnated twice. It seems that some people have already set He Chuan as a benchmark and have to mention him from time to time. Newbie reincarnator, He Chuan isn't someone that ordinary people like us can compare to. By the way, Every time I get a CB rating, I ask for guidance from the big shots, and I ask for a strong thigh to hug. Unimportant reply, that's because you're terrifyingly stupid. Newbie reincarnator, I want to duel with you. Kuyuan and He Chuan took a quick look at the posts. There were very few S rank comments. They could even count the number of A rank comments. Most people who comment got low ranks. This could also reflect the problem. People like He Chuan could be described as monsters because there were too few of them. It could even be said that they had never seen one since the people were reincarnated. He he, brother he, do you think that if I post a story called SS rank reincarnated evaluation now, the server would explode? Ku Yuanguang was just imagining the scene. He knew that this post had instantly become a hot topic. It became the topic of conversation for everyone after dinner. SS rank evaluation belonged to the scorpion poop, the one and only. Who did not want to come in and take a look, and at the same time, learn some lessons. As for the boss who criticized SS rating, who would dare? What if he found him through the internet? Wouldn't he be so scared that he wet his pants? Actually, I'm not interested in being famous. I remember when I was reincarnated for the first time, being able to complete the mission was the greatest happiness. Until I completed the S rating and became the focus of everyone's attention. Actually, I'm not happy, but I missed the first time I completed the mission. He Chuan gulped down a mouthful of wine and said calmly. Kuyuan almost couldn't hold it in anymore. It was different when Big Shot spoke. When others were breaking their heads over the S rank evaluation, they were already disdainful of it. They couldn't even find happiness. Perhaps this was the difference between big shots and ordinary people. As a researcher, Kuyuan knew very well how difficult it was to obtain an S-rank evaluation. This was especially so in the world He Chuan reincarnated in. The beginning was a hell-level difficulty. From the 18th prince who had lost power, 
to lead the crumbling glory city to resist the three waves of beast tide. If it were any other reincarnated, they would definitely fail. And not only did he Chuan do it, he even completed the mission perfectly. This was simply unimaginable, and it was something outsiders couldn't understand. Although he did not understand the reason behind it, he Chuan must have experienced all sorts of dangers. Kuyuan continued scrolling down. One of the posts caught people's attention. Shocking. A certain big shot might have successfully surpassed the S rating. The person who posted it was called a lifetime romantic. Although he did not know whether it was true or not, he had already started a heated discussion. Big shot, please start. May I ask if big shot lacks dog licking? I can do everything. Boss, do you need a lackey? I know all kinds of positions. Everyone knew that the person who posted the post was the person who received the evaluation. A lifetime romantic, I'm not that reincarnated person, but I have a relative who works in the research institute. This is insider news. What insider news? I think it's just a scam. That's right. Getting an S-rank evaluation is as difficult as ascending to the heavens. It's even better than that. I thought it was just a post to show off. I didn't expect it to be a gossip post. I got an S rating this time. Who would believe it? This post quickly cooled down. After all, there was no evidence. Everyone thought that a lifetime romantic was out to get attention. After all, every batch of reincarnators returned with a post to get attention. A lifetime romantic, this news is absolutely true. I reckon that you will find out whether it's true or not soon. However, what I want to say is that I know how to raise the rating. Raise the rating. What kind of joke is this? If people can really raise their evaluation, wouldn't getting an S rank to be as easy as drinking water? Even if they can't get an S rank, they can still get an A rank. Some people tried to inquire about the mystery behind this. However, they all received a unified reply from a lifetime romantic, adding a private message. They needed to exchange something for it. The internal structure of your research institute isn't that strict. He Chuan rested his feet on the table and looked at this post with interest. According to He Chuan's deduction, this a lifetime romantic did know some inside information. Using information to raise one's evaluation wasn't reliable because one didn't know what kind of problems one would encounter in the next world. It was likely that a lifetime romantic wanted to use the information to earn some black-hearted money. It's very normal. We researchers are also human, so we have to think for ourselves. However, his method has risks. Kuyuan could understand the ways of a lifetime romantic. If the reincarnators found out that they were cheated, they would definitely find trouble with him. If the mission matches, it's worth it to buy information. The main thing is to see what the inside story of his information is. He Chuan had reincarnated three times. If he also sold his experience, there would probably be people who would buy it. After Ku Yuan heard it, he was also interested. Why don't we spend some money to see the inside story? Up to you. Since we have nothing to do, why don't we see if his information is valuable? He Chuan raised his wine glass. There was no harm in it anyway. Ku Yuan sent a private message to a lifetime romantic and spent 500 reincarnation points to buy a set of information. Then, Ku Yuan couldn't wait to open it. Inside were a few inside information and a lifetime romantic's reincarnation strategy. Looks pretty good. At least he's not a liar, He Chuan said. It said that he had collected information about dozens of reincarnators and had detailed analysis. If reincarnators wanted to become stronger, they had to continue to be highly rated. The reincarnation platform had a special set of ratings. If the reincarnators were highly rated each time, it would be easier to get more benefits in the reincarnation world. There will also be more hidden tasks than others. Over time, the highly rated reincarnator will be further and further away from the rest. Chapter, 119 If the reincarnator were in a state of evaluation for a long time, when they returned to the calculation, they would be much less than the newbies with the same assessment. This was because the reincarnation platform would think your value was low and would not waste more resources on you. 
It was also mentioned later that if the first evaluation was a D rank, then the next reincarnation mission, at the very least, had to maintain a D rank or higher evaluation. Otherwise, the default score would be lowered and the corresponding reward would also be reduced. If you were an A rank, the corresponding next time must be an A or an S. This was also the unique mechanism of the reincarnation platform. If the reincarnator did not have any desires or desires, they would eventually annihilate everyone. After he Chuan finished reading, his heart skipped a beat. Because he was already an S rank, that was to say, every time he returned from his simulated reincarnation, he had to maintain an S grade evaluation. If it was lower than an S rank, then he would receive much less than a reincarnator with the same rating. Brother Ku, do you think that the reincarnation platform has such a unique mechanism? He Chuan thought for a moment and asked. It's true that I'm a researcher, but there are some things that I don't know much more than you personally experience, but this information shouldn't be false. The research institute was also in the midst of exploring. This was the first time they had met a reincarnated person like He Chuan. Reincarnated people had their own secrets, so it was impossible for them to tell everyone everything. People like a lifetime romantic were probably either lacking in money or a reincarnated point. That was why he was selling information everywhere. The two of them continued to read. S rank, whether it was S, SS or SS rank, as long as the reincarnated person's evaluation was not lower than S rank, it would be fine. It seemed that S rank was the boundaries. As long as the rating was not lower than S rank, the reward would not decrease, and it would even increase. If the reincarnated person stood at the peak of one of the worlds and had the highest strength, then his rating would be at least S rank. As for the higher rating, even a lifetime romantic would not know for the time being. He Chuan stroked his chin. According to the situation in the previous world, he had led the people to resist the beast tide of Glory City, and was guaranteed to have an S grade evaluation. The most crucial point was to become a god of time, trigger a hidden mission, and the final evaluation would become double SS rank. No matter what, if he did not want to drop to an S rank, he had to become the strongest person in every reincarnated world. The reincarnated platform was indeed abnormal. Forcing reincarnators to keep moving forward, stopping or settling in the status quo would not have a good ending. The most important piece of information was provided by the A Lifetime Romantic don't think that the reincarnated platform will remain unchanged. You may become a dog. You may become a pig. You may become a woman or a man. How to face the unexpected situation. Hee <laughs> hee, it seems that he is still a veteran reincarnator. He has encountered many strange reincarnations, Ku Yuan said with a smile. He Chuan nodded and agreed with Ku Yuan. After a brief chat, He Chuan took a taxi back to his residence. He pushed open the door and startled Jiang Wenyue, who was resting. Master, you are back. Jiang Wenyue quickly walked out and was a little surprised to see He Chuan. Because He Chuan's temperament had become more otherworldly and his aura had become more imposing, it was obvious that he had gained a lot of benefits from this reincarnation. If only she could figure out He Chuan's secret. All kinds of thoughts flashed through Jiang Wenyue's mind. Help me draw the bath water. I'll change into my pajamas first. He Chuan rubbed his forehead. After facing life and death for such a long time, when he returned home, his nerves began to relax. Exhaustion surged into his heart. He Chuan only wanted to have a good rest now. Jiang Wenyue went forward to help him take off his clothes, and her delicate hands accidentally touched He Chuan's weakness. He Chuan had basically gotten used to it by now, but he still kept his guard up against Jiang Wenyue. After all, the woman in front of him needed to be taught slowly. He reached his hand into Jiang Wenyue's silk pajamas and kneaded it forcefully. Hmm the beautiful face gradually became rosy, but she had already made up her mind. If she wanted to rode He Chuan's coattails, she could only let him do whatever he wanted. Master definitely got S rating for this mission. Jiang Wenyue helped him take off his clothes and took a bath towel to wrap around him. From the beginning to the end, she was extremely loyal, just like a natural maid. During this period of time, this arrogant woman had learned a lot about serving. He Chuan naturally knew the other party's destination. The two of them came to the bathroom. He Chuan had just laid down in the bathtub, 
and Jiang Wenyue followed him in. Her plump buttocks sat beside him, and her small hands began to wipe his body. I was lucky this time. I got an SS rating. He Chuan rested his head on Jiang Wenyue's chest. This matter would be known sooner or later. He wanted to see how this woman would react. He remembered clearly the contemptuous and contemptuous gaze back then. Only after she got an S rating last time did she change. This woman was as shrewd as Su Wan back then. SS rating. Jiang Wenyue's entire body was trembling. It had been so long since the start of everyone's reincarnation, but she had never heard of anyone receiving an SS rating. Was he Chuan lucky or strong? Jiang Wenyue couldn't tell right now. Back then, when she was sent to He Chuan, she was unwilling and reluctant. However, after two reincarnations, her opinion also changed. From disdain, scorn, and all kinds of contempt, to amazement, admiration, to the disbelief right now. The pride in her heart was all shattered. She even felt that she was a little unworthy of He Chuan. When did she come up with this idea? Why aren't you talking? He Chuan pinched Jiang Wenyue's chest with force, his tone full of ridicule. As master's maid, of course I really want to reward you, but I don't know what master likes. Jiang Wenyue's hand slid down He Chuan's chest, gently sliding in the water. He Chuan narrowed his eyes and enjoyed the beauty service. Since you've been so sensible recently, I'll reward you with 500 zero, zero. A mere 500 zero, zero was a drop in the ocean for He Chuan. It was very suitable for him to slap Jiang Wenyue's face. Aren't you proud? Didn't you like to act high and mighty in the past? I'll just use money to fool you. There was a reward for good service. Jiang Wenyue would be willing to be his maid regardless of her heart or body. Money was indeed a very tempting reward for the current Jiang Wenyue. She was no longer a reincarnator. This also made her understand that He Chuan was no longer the He Chuan of the past but a powerful reincarnator. The distance between her and He Chuan was growing larger and larger. Only by lowering herself could she get what she wanted. She could only rely on He Chuan now. Plop. Her sexy red lips were imprinted on He Chuan's handsome face. The corners of He Chuan's mouth curled up slightly. He was not surprised at all because Jiang Wenyue only had her body left to trade with him. Other than that, she had nothing else. As long as you are loyal enough, I won't mistreat you. After He Chuan said that, he stood up and displayed his perfect body in front of Jiang Wenyue, looking down at her from above. Jiang Wenyue gritted her teeth, opened her sexy cherry lips, and obediently leaned on him. Hiss. He Chuan heaved a long sigh of relief, his entire body feeling extremely comfortable. A proud woman still had to lower her noble head in front of the reincarnation point. Therefore, he Chuan silently warned himself in his heart that he must not relax. Chapter, 120 The next morning. He Chuan felt something was wrong and opened his eyes in a daze. Jiang Wenyue's head crawled out from under the blanket. Master, do you like the alarm clock in the morning? You did well. Go and make breakfast. Don't make any mistakes on my parents' side. He Chuan patted her round butt and stretched lazily. Jiang Wenyue was becoming more and more obedient. This change was not bad. He would find a suitable time to eat her. He Chuan was so powerful, which made Jiang Wenyue see the hope of reincarnation again. As long as she served him sincerely, He Chuan would accept it. She didn't want to be He Chuan's woman. It was enough for her to stay by his side. During the meal, He Chuan looked at Jiang Wenyue who served him respectfully. Although you are no longer a reincarnator, your talent is still good. Practice martial arts hard and protect my parents. There will be benefits for you. This was also the reason why He Chuan did not eat Jiang Wenyue. He wanted her to maintain her Yuan Yin body first. Even if she could no longer become a reincarnator, she could at least become a martial artist in the real world. He Chuan had a large number of reincarnation points in his hands. Buying a martial art suitable for practice in the real world was a piece of cake for him. In the past, he did not even bother to look at such things. It was too low level. But now that Jiang Wenyue was so well versed in martial arts, he could make use of her. 
After all, the stronger Jiang Wenyue was, the more secure his parents' safety would be. He turned on the computer, and Jiang Wenyue stood behind him, her soft little hands massaging his shoulders. He opened the forum search page and typed in the words real-life cultivation method. All kinds of cultivation methods came into view. These things were not worth anything at all. This was because reincarnators at Hichuan's level could not care less about this, because they had the cultivation methods rewarded by reincarnation. The power of all kinds of rules was tens of thousands of times stronger than these things. Moreover, for losers like Jiang Wenyue, it was one thing that they couldn't afford, but they also couldn't get the reincarnation points. Therefore, the cultivation techniques in the real world were useless, and it would be a pity to throw them away. Taiji Sword Eight Extremes Fist Tiger Subduing Fist There were many types of cultivation techniques, but He Chuan wasn't satisfied with them. The key point was that they didn't improve much, and they weren't suitable for Jiang Wenyue either. For sale, the Mystic Yin scripture cost 300 reincarnation points. If your hands were fast, you would have them, but if your hands were slow, you wouldn't have them. Other cultivation techniques only cost a few dozen points, and the good ones only cost 100 points. This Mystic Yin scripture actually sold for 300 points. Could there be something different about it? He Chuan opened the post. Inside, there was a detailed introduction, a woman's inner strength cultivation technique could be used as a high-grade cauldron. It required one to maintain one's primordial yin virginity. When one reached the ninth level, it would be used to harmonize yin and yang. Men who cultivated with it would receive the same level of inner strength. Note, it does no harm to women who practice it. One cannot have too many top-grade cultivation techniques. However, one must first find a woman who maintains one's primordial yin virginity to cultivate the mystic yin scripture. Someone must be willing to pay for it. No wonder it was hung up for so long without being sold. The key to maintaining one's primordial yin virginity was not easy to find. This one is more suitable. He Chuan directly sent a private message to the other party, and both parties agreed on a location. This kind of cultivation method was trash to He Chuan. But to Jiang Wenyue, it was a life-saving straw. If she could cultivate her inner strength, at least among ordinary people, she would be one level higher. She would no longer be the lowest level existence. 3000 reincarnation points, isn't that a little too expensive? Jiang Wenyue actually wanted this mystic yin scripture in her heart, but she still thought for He Chuan. 300 was indeed a sky-high price. Then this one, remember your duty. He Chuan patted the other party's head after he said that. Jiang Wenyue's face lit up. She looked at He Chuan charmingly and quickly knelt down. He Chuan came to the agreed coffee shop. He ordered a cup of Blue Mountain coffee and silently waited for the seller to arrive. He was wearing a pale yellow windbreaker and a pair of toad-shaped glasses. He had a classical oval-shaped face, curved eyebrows, a straight little nose, a ruddy little mouth, and a big and full chest. She walked with her round butt, and slender and round legs. As soon as he entered the door, he attracted all the men's eyes. He Chuan was the same. He didn't expect the seller to be a beauty. Hello, are you Mr. He Chuan? The beauty walked to his side and asked politely. Yes, you must be Ms. Lu Yingying. You are even more beautiful than I thought. He Chuan stood up gentlemanly and helped Lu Yingying to open a seat. Lu Yingying sat down and took out the the mystic Yin scripture from her bosom and placed it in front of He Chuan. He Chuan was very happy and immediately transferred the 300 reincarnation points to the other party. The transaction was completed. Mr. He Chuan is really generous. He actually bought such an expensive thing for an ordinary woman. Lu Yingying was very happy when she saw the 300 reincarnation points coming in. Not really. We're just friends. He Chuan laughed in his heart. It seemed that the other party did not know him. Or rather, she thought he was someone who had the same name He Chuan. After all, he was quite famous now. When the news of the SS rating spread out, he would probably become even more famous. An ordinary friend spending 300 points for this. 
Lu Yingying obviously did not believe it, but since it involved other people's privacy, it was not good to dig deeper. She could not help but feel a little curious. Of course, she had heard of He Chuan's name. He was a fierce person with an S rating, so Lu Yingying naturally didn't think that he was the most popular person on the forum. It just so happened that he had the same name. You're quite lucky. At least you didn't do something like Taiji. He Chuan simply flipped through two pages of the Mystic Yin manual, which was far too different from the cultivation technique he had obtained previously. If he wanted to sell the tyrannical true cultivation manual, it would probably be at a sky-high price. Actually, when I heard your name, I was shocked. I thought it was the legendary He Chuan. Have you heard of him? Lu Yingying asked while holding her coffee. I've heard of him. Maybe he's just lucky. He Chuan rubbed his nose. Not only was he very familiar with him, but he could see him in the mirror every day. Hearing he can say that he was lucky. Lu Yingying was very unhappy. He Chuan was her idol, and someone actually dared to question him. If you can do it, then you can do it. I've been reincarnated so many times, why don't I have this kind of luck? Lu Yingying retorted. Hearing the words that sounded like gunpowder beside his ear, He Chuan was also stunned. It was just a modest statement, he did not expect the other party to have such a big reaction. Cough maybe he really thinks so. He Chuan did not know whether it was embarrassment or something. He did not expect the beauty in front of him to worship him so much. It was not even possible to say that he was lucky. You are destined to have low achievements. This is not a game that depends on luck. If you use points to spend money to flirt with girls, you might as well buy something to level up and save your life. Lu Yingying lectured him. In fact, in her eyes, the men who were willing to buy this mystic Yin scripture were basically doing it for the sake of flirting with girls. When they reached the ninth level, both men and women would come to harmonize the Yin and Yang. He Chuan almost spat out the coffee in his mouth. It was just buying the mystic Yin scripture. It could not be upgraded to picking up girls. Moreover, after buying it, wouldn't the beneficiary be Lu Yingying? Could it be because of her modesty? It seems that you have experienced many reincarnations. Can you tell me in detail so that I can have more assurance in my next reincarnation? He Chuan said. Lu Yingying was a little unhappy, but because He Chuan spent 300 points buying from her, it was no harm to tell some of her experience. Chapter 121 She took a sip of coffee and talked about her various reincarnation experiences. She pointed out that He Chuan bought the Mystic Yin scripture because the women around him could not become reincarnators. If he was lucky enough to get extra reincarnation rights, he should not blindly give them to someone. Because compared to picking up girls, it was more important to improve yourself. He Chuan wiped the cold sweat on his head. The other party really thought he was a pervert. Lu Yingying continued to talk about reincarnation rites. Because in the circle of reincarnators, this thing was even harder than the reincarnation point. No one would despise reincarnation rites. There were even people who secretly held two to three extra reincarnation rites in their hands. No one could predict the future. If you, unfortunately, lost the identity of a reincarnator, then the extra reincarnations would be your trump card. He Chuan nodded secretly when he heard this. He had reincarnated too smoothly these past few times and did not feel any sense of crisis. If one day he was like Jiang Wenyue, would the other party treat him like this? They would probably turn around and leave coldly. He had to grasp a few more reincarnation rites. Moreover, Lu Yingying was certain that He Chuan was a rookie and was not very strong in the real world. If He Chuan obtained additional reincarnation rites and was known by others, then he would be targeted by many people. Battles between reincarnations were not allowed at will. That was just a custom-made rule. Experienced reincarnators had many trump cards. They were very experienced and knew more people. They had many ways to get He Chuan to hand over the things. No matter where they were, they could not leave the law of the jungle. Thank you. He Chuan thanked sincerely. Although the other party was straightforward and did not know how to beat around the bush, her advice just now was definitely from the bottom of her heart. 
You paid me three zero zero reincarnation points and I gift you some information. The rarity of the reincarnation rite is definitely beyond your imagination. Lu Yingying had reincarnated many times, but she had never received any additional reincarnation rite. He Chuan naturally understood how precious it was. Getting the S and SS rank did not gain any additional reincarnation rite. This thing was very dependent on luck. However, He Chuan did not care that the reincarnator came to find him because he has strength. Lu Yingying also did not know that this He Chuan was the He Chuan who had continuously received S ranks. And he had a very strong grasp of the rules of time. As long as he received a few more S reincarnation evaluations, then he might be able to stand at the top of the world in reality. The only thing he had to worry about was his family. He planned to find some suitable cultivation techniques and let his parents practice first. At the very least, they would be able to protect themselves when facing ordinary people. If there are any real-life cultivation techniques, I will buy them according to their value. The prerequisite is that they are not those common things. He Chuan felt that Lu Yingying was not a bad person. At least she was more practical in doing business. It was not bad to get to know each other. Is it worth it for you to pay so much for a woman? Lu Yingying was a little puzzled. In the era of reincarnation, who did not improve their own strength first? They still had time to care about others. You misunderstood. I am buying it for my family. Just as you said, senior reincarnators have many ways. It is hard to guarantee that they will not pay attention to other things, He Chuan explained. When she heard that He Chuan was buying it for his family, Lu Yingying's attitude obviously softened a lot. Ding dong. Just as the two of them were chatting, Lu Yingying's phone rang. This was a notification she had especially set for that post. She would read it as soon as He Chuan came back from his reincarnation. This is the real hidden boss. He actually got a 1 in a million SS rating. The top post. It was browsed more than 10,000 times in an instant, and it continued to increase. Look, the information of the boss with the same name as you, we can learn from him. Lu Yingying placed her phone between the two of them and opened the post. A lifetime romantic. I told you that there was an SS rating last time, but you didn't believe me. You are welcome to send private messages to me to learn more insider information. Sister, please wait, what a god, I want to lick Lord He Chuan's boot. 1 slash froze 19 continents, line up, do you think it's so easy to lick Lord He Chuan's boot? What do you know? I've reincarnated six times, and all of them are above C rank. Sister, please wait, C rank is nothing. I'm an A rank, I want to be the dog that can lick the most. In the post, not only was it full of becoming a bootlicker dog, many big shots who had reincarnated many times analyzed various achievements required for an SS rating. Chicken, you're too beautiful, after reincarnating several times, I could only get an S rating at most. Back then, I was already standing at the peak of the reincarnated world, and my strength had reached its limit. Therefore, I felt that in order to get an SS rating, I needed to break through the origin power of the reincarnated world. 1 slash froze 19 continents, chicken, you're too beautiful. Saying it would be the same as not saying it. It's already difficult to complete the mission, yet you still want to break through the origin power. I'm afraid only He Chuan can do it. A lifetime romantic, He Chuan is so terrifying. Goodbye Jiang Hu, Sai. For the lowest level reincarnators like us, it is difficult to keep our identity as reincarnators, and we even have to face life-threatening danger. We cannot imagine how happy He Chuan is. Sister, please wait, the lowest level reincarnators, are they doing so badly? Goodbye Jiang Hu, beyond your imagination. But the lowest level reincarnators can at least make a living, much better than ordinary people. He Chuan silently read the post, and he had a rough understanding of the current situation in the world. Thinking back to how he had been rewarded handsomely for reincarnating, he did not know that the lower level reincarnators could only earn a pitiful amount of reincarnated points, struggling on the edge. As for the ordinary people who could not become reincarnators, they could only face the merciless exploitation of the reincarnators. Because the entire population was reincarnators, humans were already divided into different grades. 
In the end, He Chuan and Lu Yingying left their contact details with each other and agreed to contact each other again when she had suitable cultivation manuals. When he returned home, he handed the Mystic Yin scripture to Jiang Wenyue and instructed her to cultivate diligently. He was about to enter a new reincarnation world. Master, why don't you stay here for a few more days? I just learned a set of massage techniques. Jiang Wenyue leaned against He Chuan's chest with her seductive eyes, holding the Mystic Yin scripture as if she had obtained a treasure. He Chuan's hand got into Jiang Wenyue's clothes and rubbed back and forth, feeling the soft and tender skin of the beauty. Whether it was the experience of a lifetime romantic or Lu Yingying's warning, they all told him not to indulge in the S-rank evaluation. It was the best way to constantly become stronger. Jiang Wenyue did not dare to say anything more. Anyway, now that she had thought that she could cultivate the mystic Yin scripture, she could break away from the category of ordinary people. As long as she served He Chuan well, she might be able to get another chance to be reincarnated. She obediently lay between He Chuan's legs and slowly lowered her head. He Chuan leaned on the sofa, half closed his eyes to enjoy it, and at the same time, contacted the reincarnators association. Last time, the strength of the guards was on the low side. This time, he wanted more powerful guards. After all, He Chuan was the first reincarnator to complete the SS rank evaluation. The Reincarnators Association readily agreed. The security of the manor villa was temporarily handed over to Jiang Wenyue. This woman had already wholeheartedly become his maid, so there was no big problem. After greeting Ku Yuan, he packed his things and began his third reincarnation. When he arrived at the reincarnation platform, a familiar light appeared. Retrieving target's identity host He Chuan has automatically used his temporary talent to adjust the world's difficulties. Connecting with the characters of the reincarnation world, connected successfully. Chapter, 122. Tihi world you are about to descend into is the spiritual energy recovery plane early stage. Do you wish to obtain the background information? No. Use Golden Spoon Supreme Version. Item has been used. Updating the background adjustment of your birth. The adjustment is complete. You will become a eunuch of the Imperial Palace. What was going on? He had used the Supreme Golden Spoon and spent a lot of money to buy it. Should he be given the identity of a eunuch? In the previous world, he was still the 18th prince. He Chuan seriously suspected that he had bought a counterfeit. When he got back, he would definitely settle the score with the profiteers. Use the rule of random heavenly Tao. Since things had come to this, he could only continue. The rule of random heavenly Tao has been used. Congratulations, host, for activating the check-in system. It was easy to understand the check-in system. It was like checking in at work. As long as one completed the check-in, they would receive a corresponding reward. It seemed that the supreme golden spoon was somewhat useful. At the very least, the system was better than the previous two times. If he did not look at his identity. Reincarnate. As a dazzling light flashed past, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes and saw more than a dozen young eunuchs wearing grey clothes and red hats standing beside him. Everyone stood neatly with their heads lowered. No one dared to speak. He Chuan had a rough guess as to what era the eunuchs could be from. It was an ancient feudal dynasty. Obtain the background information. He needed to learn more information. The next second, the reincarnation seal responded. A translucent panel appeared in his mind. The information of this world was recorded on it. It was different from the previous world. There were no awakened ones here. There were countless experts in the martial arts world. They used cold weapons, but they were all used to perfection. A centralized emperor ruled the world. The fights between experts all used true energy. Whether it was television dramas or novels, He Chuan had read many of them. When he was young, he had even compared them to the Wuxia world. It was the purest Wuxia world. More information appeared. Great Zhou Dynasty. Background information, you came from a humble background and are the youngest boy in your family. However, disasters happened year after year, causing people to live in poverty. 
Your parents sold you into the royal palace last year for the sake of your family's survival, and you became an honorable eunuch. Because you have no power and influence, you are bullied by other eunuchs all day long. Today, the blue-robed old eunuch is assigning people, but you have no money to give gifts. After reading the information in the reincarnation seal, He Chuan felt a little emotional. At least the beginning was not hell level, but as a man, he lacked the most important thing. This made He Chuan very unhappy. Needless to say, a man must have this thing in order to be complete. In the imperial palace, the color of the clothes represented identity. The eunuch in the blue robe had a middle class identity and belonged to the management department. The grey robe belonged to the lowest class and was easily controlled by the people at the top. And every year at this time, the internal affairs office would assign the grey-robed eunuchs work, which was related to the future of the grey-robed eunuchs. If they were assigned to a deserted department, they would never be able to make a name for themselves in this lifetime. He was destined to die of old age in the imperial palace. This was because in a place like the internal affairs department, there was basically not much mobility. The route of promotion was always fixed. Every year before the distribution, the young eunuchs in grey robes would display their abilities and think of ways to get positions. Those with money would make use of their money. Those with connections would use their connections. If it really did not work out, they would pinch their noses to acknowledge a godfather and become a qualified bootlicker. He Chuan. Hearing his name called out, he Chuan quickly learned from the others and lowered his head to step forward. The library. You are responsible for the daily cleaning. Remember. The library is a very important place. You must do your best, or else be careful of your head. The blue-robed eunuch held the name list in both hands and said to He Chuan. Everyone's eyes instantly focused on He Chuan. Everyone looked at this delicate-looking young eunuch and all showed pity. Sweeping the floor of the library was the most unpopular job. It was the place with the darkest future. There was basically no hope of entering it. However, He Chuan acted as if he did not hear them. He quickly made a deduction in his heart. Reject the assignment of the blue-robed eunuch, 92% chance of death, 18% chance of getting the favor of the blue-robed eunuch. Accept the assignment of the blue-robed eunuch, you can activate the check-in system, get the reward of the check-in gift bag. Was there even a need to choose in such a situation? He definitely had to accept the assignment. As for the 18% chance of being favored, it was as if it was joking. Under everyone's sympathetic gazes, he was sent into the library. Among the grey-robed eunuchs assigned this time, he was the only one who came over. Little Chuan, right? Since you're here, you should take things as they come. Finish the cleaning work peacefully every day. Don't aim too high. Although the library doesn't have many opportunities, it's quiet. No one will disturb you. The gray-haired old eunuch led He Chuan into the library pavilion. The eunuch in charge was wearing a white robe. While introducing the situation here while telling He Chuan what he needed to pay attention to. May I ask your name and how many people are here? Why don't I see anyone else? He Chuan looked around and found that there was no one else besides them. This one surname is Chui. There are only three people here except you and me, eunuch Chui said with a smile. He Chuan was stunned when he heard that there were only three people. The vast library was too deserted. They might not see each other for a few days if they lived further away. Judging from your silly look, you probably didn't give gifts to the people of the Internal Affairs Department. That's why you were assigned here. It saved us a lot of effort. Eunuch Chui saw He Chuan's confusion. As long as the young eunuchs gave some gifts and pulled some strings, they wouldn't be sent to the library to work. Actually, He Chuan didn't care. He just wanted to complete the task perfectly. Wouldn't it be better if no one disturbed him? I actually think this place is not bad. The best thing is the quietness. Don't worry, eunuch Chui. I will definitely finish the cleaning work, He Chuan said. Well, although your brain is not bright, it is better to have the ability to comprehend. From now on, I will leave all the cleaning work here to you. You can read the books in the outer pavilion as long as you don't damage them. Don't read the books in the inner pavilion, or you will lose your head. 
Eunuch Chui reminded him. Thank you for your guidance, Eunuch Chui. I understand. He Chuan replied softly. After giving a brief explanation, He Chuan left the place. He Chuan pushed the door open and entered the library. The space here was huge, not any less than a modern library. The bookshelves were neatly arranged with all kinds of books. Ding! Congratulations, host, for successfully activating the check-in system. Would the host like to set up a long-term check-in location? After activation, you can sign in for an extended period of time. Notes, the higher the probability of obtaining a reward in unique locations. In addition, you can set up a long-term check-in point. You can check in repeatedly and obtain a reward. Once you set up a long-term check-in point, it cannot be changed for a short period. He Chuan instantly understood the characteristics of the check-in system. He had been staying in the library pavilion recently, so it was an excellent time to set up a long-term check-in location. Set a long-term check-in location. Check-in. Ding. Congratulations on a successful check-in. The reward for activating the gift bag. You have received a copy of the Sunflower Bible. Sunflower Bible. He Chuan was stunned. Chapter, 123. He Chuan looked at the ancient yellow book in his hand. On it, there were four large words written by brush in red cinnabar color, Sunflower Bible. He had read many wuxia novels in the past. This was a top-notch martial arts technique created by eunuchs in the palace. However, no one knew why such an expert would become a eunuch in the palace. He only had a superficial understanding of this world. He knew he was in the Great Zhou Dynasty, which was different from the historical era he had heard of. It was an empty reincarnation world. Although he had no roots for the time being and life was less fun, it was a blessing in disguise to be able to obtain the Sunflower Bible. He could not wait to open the secret manual. There were some words at the beginning of the book. If he wanted to practice the divine technique, he would draw the blade to castrate himself. If he did not, the technique would start to burn his life essence. He did not have to go through the phase of self-castration. Heat rose from the body, and from the bottom up, it was chaotic. Even if the heat stopped, the injuries did not stop after the self-castration. The true energy would grow and flow into the Dantian without hindrance. The method of energy generation was to think of the suffering. If one were detached from suffering, he would be willing to part with it in order to achieve sexual tranquility. After the tranquility, put your hand in the flower shape. The energy circulates around Ren meridian points and converges into the Dantian. When you successfully generate the energy, it feels terrific, like being reborn. Then paired with living a vegetarian life and eating things such as wood ear mushrooms, straw mushroom, winter melon, potatoes, some pills, etc. Once you cultivate this technique successfully, your attack will be like thunder. The ordinary move is useless against you. The enemy can't defend against your casual move. That is the killer move. After achieving tranquility, when your hand becomes the flower, the energy will circulate in the Ren Meridian point and converge into Dantian. After generating the energy, you would feel wonderful and incomparable. He Chuan sat cross-legged. A warm current flowed through his Dantian as if it was changing his entire body. After an unknown period of time, He Chuan opened his eyes. It was as if two bolts of lightning had shot out from his eyes. He opened his mouth and exhaled a mouthful of turbid energy. The true energy in his Dantian circulated endlessly within his body. This was the manifestation of the initial success of one's internal energy. The energy would be born from within one's body. As expected, the products produced by the system must be of high quality. If he wanted to become an expert, he had to use the heavenly materials and earthly treasures mentioned in the secret manual, or swallow pills. The current He Chuan did not have this condition. However, he was not in a hurry. He could sign in every day anyway, and maybe he could get the heavenly materials and earthly treasures needed for cultivation. Anyway, this mission was relatively easy. He Chuan planned to stay in the library and cultivate first so that he could improve his strength as soon as possible. He Chuan picked up the cleaning tools and started to clean the dust in the corner. Since it was his job, 
he would do it well and try not to be caught by others to avoid trouble. He quickly finished the cleaning work. Since he was bored, he started to read the books in the outer pavilion, wanting to understand more about this world. He was attracted by the books on the shelves about the history of the great Cho. He reached out for the book and started to read it carefully. The martial arts in this world were flourishing, and there were as many martial artists as there were hairs on an ox. He Chuan did not expect that there would be so many people practicing martial arts in this world. He thought that the people practicing martial arts were as rare as phoenix feathers and horns. Moreover, this world had its own martial arts system. Martial arts were divided into two systems, body refinement and energy refinement. Body refinement was mainly to temper the muscles and bones, making the body stronger. It was a martial art that belonged to martial arts training, and the threshold was relatively low. The energy refinement was internal training, which belonged to internal martial arts. It was mainly to strengthen the true energy. Whether it was body refinement or energy refinement, there were nine levels of martial arts. From the first to the third level, the body refinement had an absolute advantage, and above the fourth level, the energy refinement had an absolute advantage. Moreover, the ninth level of body refinement was already the limit, but the energy refinement had not continued to improve. The inner energy of the energy refinement realm was also converted into true energy. Furthermore, Xientian cultivators were known to be martial grandmasters. It was not a problem for them to fight against an army alone, and their strength was extremely terrifying. After reaching the Xientian realm there were also nine grades, and each grade was extremely difficult to pass. The Xientian realm was not the limit of this world. According to the records in the books, there were even more terrifying saint cultivators above the Xientian realm. They could fly in the air and ride their swords to kill enemies from thousands of miles away. They could control the power of nature. Of course, this was only recorded in the books. As for how powerful those saint cultivators were, it was basically just hearsay. But it could not be denied that saint cultivators existed in this world. According to He Chuan's calculations, he had broken through to the first level of the Ho Tian realm and entered the ranks of cultivators. He had been curious about the martial arts world since he was young. This reincarnation could fulfill his dream. In any case, this reincarnation was not too difficult a task. He already had a goal in mind, which was to survive until he reached the level of a saint cultivator before leaving. In the past, he had watched television dramas or novels. The main characters had just stepped into the ranks of cultivation when they started showing off and going out. In reality, this kind of person would usually die very quickly. As a reincarnator, he had to keep a low profile and level up. Following that, He Chuan continued to flip through the books, looking for the history related to the Great Zhou Dynasty. This place was indeed as Eunuch Chui had said, very quiet. He Chuan read the books for an entire afternoon, but no one came here. Early the next morning, He Chuan picked up his cleaning tools and went to the library to check in. Ding! Congratulations to host for successfully signing in. You are rewarded with a bottle of energy refining pills. Just as he finished signing in, the system's notification immediately sounded. He Chuan immediately took out the energy refining pills from the system space. The pills were completely red and were about the size of a peanut. He placed them at the tip of his nose and took a whiff. A rich medicinal fragrance spread out. Energy refining pills, as the name implied, were used to assist in the cultivation of a cultivator's internal strength. If one's internal strength was consumed too much, it could also restore one's internal strength. Looks like my luck is pretty good. It didn't give any random things. It's just right to use it to cultivate inner strength. He Chuan only lacked the resources to cultivate inner strength. Signing into the system reward solved the urgent problem. It was said that poor scholars were powerful in martial arts. Cultivators needed to eat a large amount of fish and meat to replenish the consumption of the body. And here, there was only clear soup and some water for three meals. There were two vegetable leaves floating in the soup, which could be considered to improve the food. It was already good that he did not starve to death. It was impossible for a cultivator to rely on this to replenish his energy. There were ten energy refining pills in the porcelain bottle, 
which was enough to increase his strength by one stage. After returning to his home, He Chuan swallowed an energy refining pill and sat cross legged with his five fingers facing up. He silently chanted the Sunflower Bible in his heart and circulated his internal energy. The energy refining pill entered his stomach and turned into a stream of heat that flowed along his limbs and bones. As time passed, He Chuan's head began to emit hot steam. It was as if he was in a sauna, and his entire body was shrouded in mist. The energy refining pill produced by the system was indeed useful. As he ran the cultivation method of the Sunflower Bible, the energy refining pill turned into threads of internal force that flowed between his eight channels and meridians, finally merging in his dantian. It repeated itself over and over again. When the medicinal effect of the energy refining pill completely dissolved, He Chuan suddenly opened his eyes and exhaled a breath full of vitality. The white energy was like lightning. This was the so-called breath of an inner practitioner, it was condensed but not dispersed. After the transformation from the pills, he found that he was no longer hungry. There were still nine energy refining pills left. He Chuan was ready to go all out. Strive to break through as soon as possible. The effects of the system's pills were pretty good. After taking all ten pills, He Chuan successfully broke through to the third stage of the Ho Tian realm. One had to admit that having golden fingers was very comfortable. If one only relied on years of practice, it was unknown when one would reach the third stage of the Ho Tian realm. Chapter, 124 Dina Om Eunuch Chui stood in the distance and watched for a while. He was very satisfied with He Chuan's seriousness. In fact, He Chuan had already noticed Eunuch Chui's aura and pretended not to know. Little Chuan, tomorrow there will be a noble coming to our library to read books. You must clean up every corner and not let a single speck of dust. Tomorrow you need to be by their side. You don't need to care about other places for the time being. Remember the rules of the Imperial Palace. Otherwise, I won't be able to protect your head. Eunuch Chui walked forward and touched the bookshelf with his hands. He was very satisfied when he saw that the bookshelf was very clean. Thank you for your reminder, Eunuch Chui. I understand the rules. He Chuan understood the rules of the Imperial Palace. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Speak less and do more. As for who would come tomorrow, he presumably had a basic guess. For Eunuch Chui to come and tell him personally, it must be a certain prince. As for the emperor, it was not He Chuan's turn to serve him. However, he did not care who would come when the time came. He did not want to curry favor with anyone, and he was not interested in wealth and honor. It was his wish to be able to sign in here to cultivate peacefully. After Eunuch Chui finished his instructions, he left. He Chuan did not dare to be negligent. He spent the whole day cleaning up the library and cleaning up all the dead spots. If he wanted to stay here, he could not let the people who came tomorrow find fault with him. The sky went dark. He Chuan, who was sitting cross-legged, was called out of his room by Eunuch Chui to prepare for the arrival of the nobles. In fact, it was impossible for the nobles to come at this time, but the rules had always been like this. If you arrived after the nobles, your head would definitely fall to the ground. It had to be said that the customs of the feudal dynasty were so harsh. If they served the emperor or the noble consort, they probably wouldn't be able to sleep for more than a few hours every day. The library pavilion had its benefits. Little Chuan, you mustn't make a mistake. Did you check yesterday Eunuch Chui kept nagging, afraid that he Chuan would make a mistake. When the noble was angry, he would also be implicated. By the way, didn't Eunuch Chui say that there are three people in our library? Why haven't I seen them before? He Chuan almost fell asleep listening to Eunuch Chui's nagging. He suddenly remembered that there was a eunuch whom he had never met before. You shouldn't ask about this. Eunuch Chui gave an excuse. From before the rooster crowed until noon. A group of palace maids and eunuchs led the way and escorted a young man in embroidered clothes into the library. He Chuan and Eunuch Chui quickly bowed. The great Zhou dynasty did not have the custom to kneel and worship, which made He Chuan feel relieved. Regardless of whether the other party was a prince or an emperor, he was not willing to kneel. 
There were palace maids and eunuchs serving the nobles, so it was not He Chuan's turn to step forward. However, from the looks of it, it confirmed his guess that it should be a certain prince. Otherwise, there would not be such ostentation. Among them were a few eunuchs and palace maids. There was a faint aura on their bodies. It was obvious that they were martial artists. With his current strength, he was probably not a match for them. Seeing that he was not involved in anything, he Chuan began to sign in today. Ding! Congratulations on successfully signing in. You are rewarded with Divine Ghostly Steps Part 1. After signing in, the system notification sounded again. He Chuan carefully checked the introduction of the cultivation method in the system. Divine Ghostly Steps was a Qingong type cultivation method. When mastered to a minor level, one's body would have lightning speed and be hard to point out like a ghost. After completion, the movement method could bring special effects. A maximum of nine phantoms could appear, making the enemy unable to determine the location of the real body. Not long after, the noble left the library with a group of eunuchs and palace maids. During this time, he did not even look at He Chuan, this young eunuch. He Chuan entered the inner room to do the cleaning. The room was still lit with high-grade sandalwood incense. Two plates of freshly cut fruits had not been touched at all. It could be seen that this noble was usually pampered to death. He picked up a piece of fresh fruit and put it into his mouth. The taste was not bad. During the time he spent in the library, his mouth was almost empty. It was good to eat some fruit to supplement his nutrition. After eating the fruit, he cleaned up cleanly. He returned to his room and began to practice the divine ghost steps. This Qinggong skill was very powerful. When he moved within a small area, there was no sound. Moreover, there were afterimages wherever he moved. This Qinggong skill was indeed powerful, but it also consumed a lot of internal energy. He had to have a vast amount of internal energy. He Chuan lived a monotonous life. He cultivated in his room, signed in at the library, and cleaned up. During this period of time, he received a lot of rewards. Not only did he receive pills and cultivation techniques, but he also received a treasured sword that could cut off hairs. Unknowingly, He Chuan had already broken through to Ho Tian fourth stage after consuming pills, and he was only one step away from Ho Tian fifth stage. Breaking through at the speed of a rocket would probably make many people find it hard to believe in themselves. Recently, he had chatted with eunuch Chui about some topics in the palace. He knew that whether it was eunuchs or palace maids, they all had specialized martial artists. In the imperial palace, there were martial arts palace and martial arts supervisors who specialized in training cultivators. Martial arts palace was in charge of training palace maids, while martial arts supervisor was in charge of training eunuchs. The inner courtyard of the imperial palace was filled with hidden dragons and crouching tigers. No one knew who was the hidden expert. Moreover, if one wanted to be placed in an important position by the imperial family, one had to have a certain amount of strength. Actually, this was very normal. The Great Zhou Dynasty was a martial arts world, so the imperial palace definitely needed to have a powerful martial arts force to support it. Otherwise, wouldn't the emperor be just a decoration? However, it was precisely because of this that He Chuan made up his mind to temporarily stay in the library pavilion. After all, everywhere was filled with danger. Before he became a saint cultivator, it was best to keep a low profile. In comparison, the library pavilion was much safer. Time flew by. In the blink of an eye, a year had passed. During this year, He Chuan fully grasped the essence of Gogo -Go Dao. Every day, apart from cultivating inner strength, he would read books in the outer pavilion to relieve his boredom. He had a very good understanding of the entire great Zhou dynasty. In the past, many nobles from the palace had come to read books. The emperor had even come twice. However, the one who came the most often was the one he had seen for the first time. This was because every time this noble came, He Chuan would be able to eat pastries and fruits. He did not expect that the other nobles would leave nothing behind, like a starving ghost. There was also the third eunuch. After a year, he had not seen what he looked like. However, He Chuan did not mind. They were all eunuchs now, so there was nothing to be curious about. 
In any case, they were missing the most important part. Eunuch Chui was already very old. Other than the time when there were dignitaries coming over, he would not usually come over to see him. He Chuan felt very comfortable living like this. It was rare for him to have peace and quiet. And now, He Chuan had already broken through to Ho Tian ninth stage, so he could prepare for breaking through to Xientian. According to the records in the books, the breakthrough into Xientian realm was extremely dangerous, and it was very easy for one to go into energy deviation. At the very least, one's meridians would be severed, and at the very most, one would die on the spot. After a period of time, Eunuch Chui's body became worse and worse. He Chuan also decided to make the breakthrough. He prepared all kinds of pills needed for the breakthrough which were all produced by the system. Everything was ready, except what was crucial. He Chuan began to break through. He originally thought that it would be like what was recorded in the books, extremely dangerous, but in reality, it was very easy. It was probably because the effects of the pills that the system rewarded were too good, and that was why it was so easy. And now that he had become a Xientian cultivator, fighting ten Hotian cultivators was very easy. Chapter 125 The sky was covered with dark clouds, and it was drizzling. Eunuch Chuez called He Chuan to his bed. Little Chuan, I've come to the end of my journey. I'll leave this library to you to manage in the future. Remember the two rules. You're not allowed to read books in the inner room, and you're not allowed to go to the back mountain either. That's the forbidden area of the Imperial Palace. Only by following the rules can you live a long life. Eunuch Chuez's breathing became weaker and weaker. After giving these instructions, it was as if all the strength in his body had been drained. He Chuan knew that his time was coming. After spending so much time with Eunuch Chui, although they didn't usually see each other, at least there was someone to talk to. After he leaves, he will be the only one left in the huge library. It was really a bit deserted. Don't worry, Eunuch Chui. I'll remember your words. He Chuan patted Eunuch Chui's withered palm on his shoulder. Cough, cough there are dozens of tails of silver under the tenth tile under my bed. It's all my savings. Help me find the steward of the internal affairs department and ask them to help me find a beautiful place to bury me. Eunuch Chui had spent his whole life in the imperial palace. He had no one to rely on and no power. His biggest wish was to find an excellent place to bury him after he died. I will fulfill your wish. He Chuan nodded solemnly. After hearing this, Eunuch Chui closed his eyes in relief, and his palms drooped weakly. He Chuan followed the instructions, took a cloth bag from the stone bricks under the bed, and poured it on the table. It was all broken silver. It was probably saved from the gaps between his teeth. He had only saved so little money in most of his life. However, it was already not easy for a eunuch without power or influence to save so much money. He Chuan informed the Department of Internal Affairs, was in charge of funeral arrangements. The old eunuchs who had a slight relationship with him would leave the imperial palace on their deathbeds and find family members who could get close to their relatives to arrange funeral arrangements. The money brought out of the palace would naturally be inherited by the relatives. He Chuan gave all the money to the person in charge of the steward. He didn't leave a single cent. He just wanted them to bury eunuch Chui better. Don't worry, little eunuch he. We'll do as much as we take. The person in charge weighed the money bag and said with great satisfaction. At the same time, he looked at He Chuan in a different light. After all, a person dying was like a lamp going out. Even if He Chuan took all the money, no one would know. And Eunuch Chui's body would be thrown into the mass grave, not even leaving a complete corpse behind. Having been used to indifference and selfishness, the person in charge admired He Chuan. At least, he still had a good heart. The few people who handled the funeral took away Eunuch Chui's body. Looking at the huge place, the library seemed to be particularly deserted. Now only He Chuan was left, and there was still a eunuch who did not know whether he was alive or dead. Was there a secret behind the mountain? For the time being, he did not have the intention to investigate it. The important thing was to cultivate diligently. He had just entered the Xientian realm, and there was still a long way to go. 
Now that the entire library was under his control, life became even quieter and more relaxed. Young eunuch He, the fifth prince is coming to read tomorrow. You must be prepared. The eunuch in charge of delivering the message hurried over and left. So he was the fifth prince. Seeing the eunuch just now, he immediately recalled that he was the eunuch of the prince who came to the library the most frequently. After working here for a long time, He Chuan had already studied the routine. He started to prepare according to his previous experience. The next day. It was still the same as usual. The fifth prince brought a mighty group of people to the library to read. After breaking through to the Xientian realm, He Chuan was already able to see through the cultivation of the eunuchs and palace maids. They were all in the Ho Tian realm. The strongest among them was an old eunuch with white hair, almost at the Ho Tian Ninth realm. H.M. Why are you alone? The fifth prince didn't directly enter the inner room to read. Instead, he stopped and asked He Chuan who was standing at the side. Replying to your highness, eunuch Chui passed away a few days ago. I'm the only one left, He Chuan replied. The fifth prince only nodded and did not ask further. The life and death of an ordinary old eunuch did not attract his attention. After the time it takes for half an incense stick to burn, a palace maid walks over. Follow me in. The fifth prince has something to ask. He Chuan followed the palace maid to the inner room of the library. Your Highness, he has arrived. After the palace maid finished speaking, she respectfully left the inner room. I want to read the historical records of the state of Qin, but I've been looking for a long time and still haven't seen it. Can you find it? The fifth prince asked. Your Highness, please wait for a moment. He Chuan had already memorized the book's location after more than a year. As long as you said the book's name, he could immediately find it. He Chuan swiftly presented the historical records of the state of Qin. Not bad, reward him. The fifth prince nodded and said. The eunuch immediately took out a golden leaf and stuffed it into his hand. As expected of a member of the royal family. He was generous, and the reward was a golden leaf. After that, whatever book the fifth prince wanted to read, He Chuan was asked to wait on him by the side. Whatever book he wanted to find, he would directly ask him to help him find it. After a while, the fifth prince became familiar with this young eunuch who was very flexible in doing things. From time to time, he would also give him some rewards. However, these rewards were useless to him because He Chuan did not want wealth and glory. Money was just a worldly possession. His cultivation also increased as time passed, and he had already reached the sixth stage of Xientian realm. However, as his cultivation became higher and higher, the speed of his cultivation also became slower and slower. Where is little Eunuch He? A eunuch held a white morning robe in his hand and hurriedly looked for He Chuan's figure. He Chuan used the divine ghostly steps and instantly appeared in front of the eunuch, this eunuch, what happened? The eunuch only felt his vision blur, and the other party appeared in front of him. But he did not have time to think about these things now. The emperor has passed away. Everyone has to wear mourning clothes. The emperor had actually died. No wonder the fifth prince had not come to the library recently. It turned out that the old emperor was dying. The time for a change of dynasty was coming again. He did not know which prince would win in the end. All of this had nothing to do with Yi Chuan. Anyway, it did not matter who became the emperor. As long as it did not interfere with his recent cultivation. After the eunuch left, Yi Chuan threw the white morning clothes to the side. Dress the emperor in morning clothes? What a joke. No one else was in the library, so who would know if he wore it or not? The entire palace was busy. He Chuan could vaguely hear the wailing. He just didn't know how sincere the wailing was. The saddest one was probably the old emperor's concubines. In the imperial palace, mothers relied on their children. Some concubines with no children had to be buried with the emperor to continue serving him. This was the worst. There were also some concubines who weren't powerful enough to be sent to guard the mausoleum. Many young and beautiful concubines could only stay in the mausoleum for their entire lives until they died. The best outcome for the concubines was to give birth to a son. 
They then could follow their son to the fiefdom to rest in peace. It was different for Empress Dowager, who could live in peace and honor, and no one would dare to touch her. Therefore, it was not so easy to be a woman of the royal family. It would be very difficult to live if one did not have some skill in the inner courtyard of the deep palace. He Chuan shook his head and continued to close his eyes to cultivate. Chapter, 126 In the dead of night, when all things are lonely. He Chuan was cultivating the Sunflower Bible in his room. There were four realms in the Sunflower Bible. The first realm corresponded to the Ho Tian realm, the second realm corresponded to the Xientian realm, and the third realm. Each realm corresponded to the realm of martial arts. He Chuan was now in the Xientian realm, so he could cultivate the second realm of the Sunflower Bible. He Chuan had also signed up for other martial arts, but they were all more feminine. It must have something to do with his identity as a eunuch, so the martial arts that the system gave him were basically all suitable for his current identity to practice. As a man who stood tall and strong, He Chuan naturally hoped to become a normal person. Even as a reincarnated person, he did not want to lose the symbol of a man. If his cultivation could break through to become a saint cultivator, would it be able to grow back? Just as his thoughts were running wild, an undetectable aura was caught by him. He Chuan suddenly opened his eyes. Even in the dark night, he could see very clearly. As a Xientian sixth grade expert, his five senses were different from ordinary people's. Any movement within a radius of tens of meters couldn't escape his senses. He used the divine ghostly steps and left an afterimage on the spot, and moved more than ten meters away. The use of his qinggong had reached a level that ordinary people could not catch. He Chuan followed the aura and arrived at the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. What entered his eyes was a dilapidated palace. Weeds grew everywhere, and it looked like no one had taken care of it for a long time. It was as desolate as a cold palace. I heard that this great eunuch has been trying to break through to the peak of martial arts for nearly twenty years, but I don't know if he succeeded or is already dead. The masked man said to his companion. Who knows? Let's go in and take a look first. Besides, how can the realm of a saint's cultivation be so easy to break through? Maybe the old fellow has already become a cup of yellow dirt, and in the end, it will benefit us, brothers. The other black-clothed man's tone was full of disdain because, in his opinion, this great eunuch should have failed, but the news was just sealed. The two of them looked at each other and were about to sneak in to find out what was going on. How dare you barge into the Imperial Palace's library at night? This is a capital crime. Do the two of you not put me in your eyes at all? After He Chuan heard the conversation between the two of them, he had a rough idea of what was going on. He suddenly emerged from the darkness. The two of them were about to make a move, but when they turned their heads in surprise, they saw a young eunuch in a grey robe. They were both experts in the Xientian fifth stage, but did someone actually sneaks on their back? However, as such a young eunuch, even if he started cultivating right after he was born, he probably wouldn't be able to reach the Xientian fifth stage. Perhaps it was because he used some special technique that his perception was better than theirs. The two comforted themselves in their hearts. He he, he's just a low-level eunuch in a grey robe. You dare to meddle in other people's business. Did he think he had lived long enough? One of the men in black said coldly. This is a forbidden area. I advise you to leave, or else he Chuan said with his hands behind his back and in an unfriendly tone. Although he did not say anything on the phone, the meaning of his words was very obvious. The two of them were not weak, but he Chuan practiced the highest grade martial art, the Sunflower Bible. It was able to restrain his aura, making it impossible for the opponent to see his true strength. Two Xientian experts were actually threatened by a grey-robed eunuch. If this were to be spread out, wouldn't the people of the pugilistic world laugh their heads off? Moreover, the secret of the great eunuch was right in front of them, so how could they give up? You're courting death. One of them exploded on the spot, came in front of He Chuan, and instantly struck out six palms. The palm shadows danced in the sky, enveloping He Chuan's entire body. First, killed the reckless little eunuch, then went in to investigate his secret. Heavenly Mountain Six Yang Palm. That's all you have. 
He Chuan stood on the spot with a calm expression. At the same time, he circulated his inner energy in his body. Powerful inner energy condensed into the shape of a needle and quickly shot toward the other party. Swoosh! A strong sound of air being torn apart was heard. Since the other party refused to choose the easy way, but the hard way instead, he naturally would not be polite. If the two of them knew what was good for them and retreated, he Chuan would not make things difficult for them. Hearing the sound of the air being torn apart, the pupils of the black-robed man who used the heavenly mountain six yang palm instantly contracted. It was already too late for him to retreat. The silver needles formed from true energy instantly pierced through his palm. Immediately, blood flowed like a river. And you. He Chuan saw that the other person was holding a treasured sword and wanted to step forward to help, so he immediately used the divine ghostly steps. A few afterimages were left in the air. The person had already arrived at the other person's back. So fast. The black-clothed person holding the sword did not have time to react and had already lost track of He Chuan. Bang! He Chuan's palm was imprinted on the other person's back. Go! The black-clothed person holding the sword spat out a mouthful of blood. Borrowing the force to grab the shoulder of his companion, the two of them fled into the distance. You overestimate yourself. He Chuan had his hands behind his back and did not chase after them. He knew very well that one should not chase after the enemy. Moreover, he hated trouble. His gaze turned to the dilapidated room at the back of the mountain. He heard from the conversation between the two that there was a famous eunuch inside. Could it be the third eunuch of the library pavilion that eunuch Chui had mentioned? No wonder he had never seen it before. It turned out that he had broken through here. Why was this place a forbidden area? What secrets were there? He Chuan felt like a kitten was scratching his heart, and felt a little itchy. It would have been fine if he didn't know before, he didn't have any desire to investigate. But now, two unknown men dressed in black had aroused his interest. If he didn't go and take a look, he would probably have trouble sleeping tonight. Who cares what secrets were inside? Let's go in and take a look first. In any case, his strength had already reached Xientian's sixth stage, and it was enough to deal with unexpected situations. After making up his mind, he walked toward the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. In fact, the back of the mountain was just a man-made rockery. It wasn't as tall as one would imagine. It wasn't allowed to appear in the imperial palace either. The heavy stone door was in front of him, so it should be the entrance. However, this forbidden area looked very shabby. It wasn't like what Wuxia novels said, where there were all kinds of restrictions outside. It would take a lot of effort to find it. Such a forbidden area made people not know whether to laugh or cry. He Chuan walked to the stone door. According to his previous experience from TV dramas and novels, he fumbled around on the rockery. Sure enough, there was a stone that could not be moved. He placed his hand on it and tried to rotate it. The stone rotated clockwise. The heavy stone door began to shake and then slowly rose. After a moment, the stone revealed a pitch-black passage that stretched as far as the eye could see. As a Xientian sixth-stage expert, He Chuan naturally wouldn't be frightened by such a situation. He observed his surroundings for a bit and then walked into the passage. It was like the structure of a basement, constructed by layers of stone steps. He Chuan walked down the steps. No more, no less, it was exactly 101 steps. When he reached the deepest part of the basement, He Chuan was surrounded by a large number of people. It was no different from a basement. There were ventilation vents around him to keep the air flowing. Otherwise, people would suffocate due to the lack of air when they came down. The walls were carved with sculptures. There were all kinds of flowers, birds, insects, and animals. Right in front of him was a wooden room made of golden silkwood. The person should be inside. He Chuan first sensed for a moment to make sure that there was no breath of life inside. Then he walked toward the wooden room. Chapter, 127 Whoosh! 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 He Chuan stepped on a bluestone brick, and his expression changed instantly. The bluestone brick sank slightly, 
and this brick was exactly where the machine expansion was buried. A row of arrows shot out consecutively as if they could turn Hichuan into a hedgehog in the next moment. However, he was a Xientian sixth stage expert, so how could he be injured by a hidden arrow? Moreover, when he activated the mechanism just now, he had already sensed it. He waved his long sleeve, instantly rolling up dozens of arrows, and then threw them back with a strong movement. He threw out the arrows and flew back at an extremely fast speed. Halfway through, the arrows shot out by the mechanism shattered one after another. Buzz! Half of the arrows were inserted into the wall, and the tail feathers were still trembling slightly. It was clear how strong his internal force was. Small tricks. He Chuan patted the dust off his sleeves. He had already considered whether there were any traps here. However, he was a bold person with great skills. With the protection of the Sunflower Bible, he would not be afraid of any traps at all. He Chuan continued to walk in the direction of the wooden room. Other than the arrow, there were no other traps here. He reached out and pushed open two rotten wooden doors. They creaked. The things inside were very simple. A table, a chair, and a bed. There was a skeleton sitting cross-legged on the bed. It was estimated that the person had been dead for a long time. The deceased was wearing a light yellow robe. After careful observation, He Chuan discovered that it was actually a eunuch's outfit. In that case, this great eunuch was indeed powerful. How could an ordinary person have the chance to wear a yellow robe that was bestowed by the emperor? This great eunuch should be the third person in the library whom he had never had the chance to meet. He Chuan walked towards the window and discovered that there were many sword marks beside the bed of the wooden house. Only when he took a closer look did he understand that this great eunuch had used his fingers as a sword and carved the words with true energy before he died. On it was written the life of this great eunuch. With the body of a mortal, he had touched the barrier of a saint cultivator, but his body had become an obstacle. Could this be a joke played by the heavens? I entered the palace at the age of eight and practiced martial arts at the age of ten. Because I was recognized by great master Li Lianfeng, I followed Li Lianfeng everywhere and became a Xientian expert at the age of eighteen. At the age of thirty, I became the number one person in the great Zhou Imperial Palace. No one could rival me. Back then, the seven great sects of the Jianghu were interested in the imperial power. The seven sects secretly formed an alliance, recruiting troops and buying horses. They hoarded grain and were prepared to launch a rebellion. When the emperor received the news, he was extremely furious. However, the sect leaders of the seven great sects were all famous experts. Ordinary people might not be a match for them. Grand Duke Li Lianfeng advised the emperor and recommended I to complete the mission. After I received the order in the face of danger and defeated the seven martial arts experts of Jianghu, I announced on the spot that if anyone dared to rebel again, I would kill them without mercy. No one in the martial arts world dared to disobey. No one dared to offend the great imperial court anymore. His Majesty rewarded me with a yellow robe because of my outstanding battle achievements. He made me nine thousand years old. With me in the imperial palace, the world was safe and sound. It wasn't until I was sixty-five years old that the hidden illness I had when I fought with the seven martial arts experts flared up. I felt that my lifespan was about to run out. If I wanted to increase my lifespan and preserve my life, I had to break through to become a saint cultivator. Thus, I chose to enter seclusion and breakthrough. More than ten years passed in a hurry. Unfortunately, it was all for naught in the end. This was because I was an incomplete person and was unable to break through the barrier of a saint cultivator. I refuse to accept this. Nine thousand years old Wei Jingchuan's final work. After He Chuan finished reading Wei Jingchuan's life, he felt that this person had finally touched upon the feeling of hope and despair. Originally, he was already half a step cultivator saint, but unfortunately, because of his incomplete body, he was unable to advance to a martial saint. In the end, he died in such a way with intense unwillingness. FCK, I'm also a eunuch now. He Chuan was lamenting Wei Jingchuan's life when he suddenly thought of a very serious problem. Wasn't he also a eunuch? If an incomplete person stopped at the Xientian ninth stage realm and couldn't take the step forward to be a cultivator saint, 
how could he be willing? If he wanted his reincarnation evaluation not to be lower than an S-grade evaluation, then he had to first reach the peak of martial arts in this world. If he stopped halfway, he would have wasted his chance to reincarnate. If he could not break through the barrier with his incomplete body, then why was there a fourth level in the Sunflower Bible? Logically, the second level should have disappeared. According to the secret manual, the Sunflower Bible corresponded to the Martial Saint realm. There was no record of the last level, but there must be an unknown realm. So there was definitely a chance to break through to the realm of a martial saint. He Chuan would definitely not give up easily. The most important thing now was to find a way to recover his body. He had the help of the signing-in system, so he would definitely be able to find a way to break through. Right, the system had mentioned before that the more you sign in at a special place, the better the reward you would receive. This place was within the scope of the library, but it was also a forbidden area. I wonder who designated this forbidden area. If I sign in here, would there be a special reward? It would be useless to think about it, might as well try it out. He Chuan immediately chose to sign in. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully signing in. You are rewarded with one pure yang technique. The system's notification sounded in his mind. He Chuan hurriedly looked at the introduction of the pure yang technique. After mastering the pure yang technique, one's muscles and marrow would be changed, and dense purple energy would be produced. The internal energy would be generated at an extremely fast speed, and it was endless. Ordinary punches and kicks would also be able to unleash a tremendous amount of attack power. The defensive power was unrivaled. It automatically protected the body and rebounded against external attacks, forming the indestructible body of Vitra. The speed of the cultivation would be greatly increased, and it was also the healing scripture. One would not be born with any illness, and all poisons would not be able to invade. When the pure yang energy was used at full strength, it could burn a person into charcoal and specifically break all the cold and poisonous internal forces. When trained to a certain extent, one could break off a limb and weigh it heavily. When he was sleepy, someone sent him a pillow. Just now, he was still troubled by his incomplete body. Now, he suddenly saw hope. If he wanted to master the pure yang technique, he still had to rely on time accumulation. In a short time, he might not be able to escape the fate of being a eunuch. However, He Chuan was very calm. Because he had already seen hope, he did not care about this little bit of time. What made him the happiest was that the pure yang technique was also a top-grade cultivation technique. Its various characteristics were simply heaven-defying. This trip to the Forbidden Land was not in vain. He Chuan bowed to Wei Jing Chen thrice. Thank you for the handwriting that Senior left for me to answer my questions. I will break through the barrier and become a saint cultivator. May your spirit in heaven rest in peace now. If it wasn't for luck and coincidence, he probably wouldn't have been able to obtain the pure yang technique. There were also some secrets that no one knew. The great Zhou dynasty had many hidden experts. The sect leaders of the seven great sects in the Jianghu were all experts and grandmasters. Moreover, no one knew what realm they had entered. Perhaps there were people like the dead Wei Jingchun who were exploring the barrier of a saint cultivator. Once they broke the barrier, they would be able to stand alone in the world. There was a long way to go in the path of martial arts. His current strength was still not enough. He turned around and left the forbidden area. He Chuan put down the stone door and used his internal energy to destroy the mechanism. In this way, no one could enter the forbidden area, and Wei Jing Chun could rest in peace. After returning to his room, He Chuan began to cultivate the pure yang technique, preparing for the regeneration of his severed limbs. While he was practicing, the undercurrent of the entire imperial city surged. Chapter 128 Great Zhou Dynasty Floating Jade Mountain, Green Spirit Temple The sound of monks chanting sutras could be heard from the solemn treasure hall. Shaolin still has a great reputation in the martial arts world. Even the imperial court had to give him some face. In a room in the backyard. The red-robed abbot and a few people from the martial arts world were sitting together. Two of them were bandaging the wound to stop the bleeding. 
This true energy is gentle yet overbearing. If it weren't for the few of you working together to force it out of my body, I'm afraid this hand of mine would have been crippled. The man in black who spoke was the one who used the Heavenly Mountain Six Yang Palm to fight He Chuan. He was injured by the condensation energy needle of the Sunflower Bible. The Sunflower Bible was a top-grade cultivation technique. When the true energy entered the human body, it would destroy the meridians. Amitba. This person's cultivation is very strong. He was actually able to break He Yoguang's Heavenly Mountain Six Yang Palm. In addition, Chen Quan's heart-splitting sword was no match for him. Will it affect the plan? Shen Quan who used heart-splitting sword had just taken a pill and was sitting cross-legged at the side. He had just been hit by He Chuan's palm, so he had to use the pill to recover. Speaking of which, Master Shi Yuan might not believe it. The two of us were injured by a grey-robed eunuch. It looks like he's not even twenty years old. He Yo Guang sighed lightly. Being injured by a little eunuch who had just come out of the Green Spirit Temple made him feel a little embarrassed. Master Xiuan, the abbot of the Green Spirit Temple, twirled the Buddhist beads and thought carefully for a while. Not necessarily. I think that Wei Jing Chun, who is 9,000 years old, has broken through to the realm of a saint cultivator. Those who have broken through this stage will be able to return to their youth. It was impossible for a young eunuch of the lowest level to hurt two experts. If he was so powerful, why was he wearing a grey robe? There must be something fishy about this. No. My master once fought with 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchen. If it weren't for the seven grandmasters, it would be difficult for them to survive in his hands. Back then, killing people was as easy as drinking water for him. If it was really this eunuch, the two of them would already be a corpse. The person who spoke was about 30 years old. He wore a Taoist robe and held a three-foot-long sword. The scabbard was inlaid with nine gemstones. He looked extremely gorgeous. If according to Song Linyuan said, he was not Wei Jing Chun, then isn't it too terrifying for a young eunuch to be able to hurt Shen Quan and me? Moreover, the Qinggong he used is first-rate, he was so fast that Shen Quan didn't even have time to react. He Yoguang touched his wound. If the inner court of the palace was so terrifying, then wouldn't the plan be impossible to carry out? There were so many eunuchs and palace maids in the palace, who knew if there were still such experts? I still don't believe it. Maybe this person is proficient in the art of retaining youth, or maybe he is wearing a mask and doesn't want others to know his true identity. Master Xiuan shook his head. I think what Master Xiuan said makes sense. There are many experts in the palace. It is also expected that there are experts in Xientian's 8th or ninth stage. The key is that we haven't found out if Wei Jingchun is still alive. If the mysterious expert and Wei Jingchun are added together, I'm afraid it will be difficult for us to deal with them. This is the biggest threat. Song Linyuan narrowed his eyes. The sudden death of the emperor this time was supposed to put on a show of the nine princes fighting for the throne. Unfortunately, the plan could not keep up with the changes. The two people who were investigating Wei Jingchun were injured. He did not know if they could continue the plan. It doesn't matter. We have been suppressed by Wei Jingchun for so many years. It won't be too late for us to go after that master comes out of seclusion, He Yoguang said in a deep voice. Then that's it for the time being. Shen Quan and He Yoguang will stay in the temple to recuperate for the time being. I'll send a pigeon to inform the base of what happened, Master Xiuan suggested. It was better to keep quiet than to make a move. It was better not to act rashly under circumstances where the enemy and the friend were unknown. That's the only way. I'm going back to Mount Hua. Song Linyuan didn't plan to stay any longer and went back to discuss countermeasures first. How far the nine princes would develop in the fight for the throne would depend on the situation in the palace. He Chuan sat cross-legged on the bed and continued to meditate. Cultivators basically did not need to sleep. Every night, they would sit cross-legged and meditate to cultivate. It was no different from resting. He looked at the pure yang technique in front of him and began to cultivate according to the records on it. True energy started to flow through his internal organs. He is strong by his own strength, and the breeze blew over the mountain. 
he is at his mercy, and the bright moon overlooks the river. He is cruel, and he is evil, and I was full of true energy. Ju Yuan recited the essence of the pure yang technique at the top of Mount Hua, and his energy sinks into the abyss. When one tried to condense luck at the root of the mountain, one had to have the energy in self-luck. One did not have to care about where the external force came from. One had to be clear about what was real and what was not. There was a void in one place and a void in the other. There was always a void in one place and a void in the other. The energy had to be gathered, and the spirit should be restrained. There were no flaws in the energy, no bumps in the energy, and no interminate in the energy. His entire body was like a huge furnace, and hot steam was rising from the top of his head. The man belonged to Yang, but he Chuan had his roots cut off, so he belonged to the category of incomplete people. It was difficult for the heat to condense in his lower abdomen. However, he felt that his lower abdomen was a little itchy. The pure Yang technique began to repair the damaged tissue, and his entire body had undergone a great transformation. It made He Chuan, who originally looked a little feminine, look a little more masculine now. Four hours later, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. His temples became even more bulging, and his body was oozing a layer of fine sweat. His pale face was slightly red. It was as if a patient who had been bedridden all year was starting to get better. Especially between his legs, there was a warm current lingering. The pure yang technique was also divided into four parts. The pure yang energy circulates within the body, and the energy circulation led to a small circulatory cycle, nourishing the first layer of the dantian. The first layer was to reconstruct the internal organs. The energy circulates in a small circulatory cycle, the hearts facing the dantian gate, gathering the snow in the dantian without melting it, and expanding into the second layer of the fog ring body. The second layer was to reconstruct the body. No matter how much damage you suffered, it could be healed, and even the severed limbs could be regenerated. Yin unites with Yin, and it cultivated vitality, the ultimate method of static flow, using Yin to cultivate the fourth layer of true Yin. The third layer was to reconstruct the essence, energy, and spirit. The fourth layer of energy was not in the energy. Close the mouth and open the eyes, the mystery was in the eyes, and the spiritual energy was gathered at the fourth layer of Qian Ding point. As for this fourth layer, it was too mysterious, and there were no changes to it. He Chuan couldn't figure it out for the time being. But the good news was that if he practiced to the second level, he would be able to regrow his limbs. My body is still damaged, and practicing the pure yang technique is too slow. I don't know when I'll reach the second level. He Chuan rubbed his nose and muttered to himself. Looks like he'll have to find some heavenly treasures to help. If he's lucky, he'll be able to get some supplementary medicine when signing in. As expected of the Supreme Golden Spoon, the system was very powerful. The basic rewards were all the things he needed. The next morning, He Chuan signed in again. Ding! You have successfully signed in. You will be rewarded with a mysterious young pill. The system notification sounded in his mind. From the name, he knew it was related to pure yang. He Chuan couldn't wait to check the information. It was made from nine pure yang grass. It could assist in pure yang cultivation methods. Huh, as expected, the system understands me. Here comes the pillow. He Chuan swallowed the pill and began to cultivate. Three days later. Ding! Congratulations to the host for obtaining a pure yang futon. Host can sit on it to cultivate, and quickly condense yang energy. Chapter, 129 PND No 1 O. Oh. Coupled with the occasional pure yang pills that were rewarded by the system, the yang energy in his body increased more and more. Of course, the cultivation of the Sunflower Bible Manual did not fall behind either. After all, these two secret manuals indicated that yin and yang had to be reconciled in the end. Yang didn't leave Yin, Yin didn't leave Yang, the realm of ten thousand laws of nature. He also smoothly broke through to Xintian's seventh stage. Relying on the Sunflower Bible, pure Yang true technique, and the divine ghostly steps, no one of the same level was his match. When he had nothing to do, 
he could still read some idle books in the library to kill time, and his days were carefree and happy. Today, he was bored. He was teasing a little bird, making it unable to flap its wings and fly high in his hand. This was also a sign that he could use his true energy freely. Suddenly, there was a slight tremor on the ground. He Chuan retracted his aura, and the little bird flew into the blue sky. The two palace maids had just pushed open the door of the library when they saw He Chuan standing in front of them with a kind face. Little eunuch He, His Majesty the Emperor is coming to the library. Hurry up and get ready, the palace maid said seriously. He Chuan basically had a photographic memory. He had seen this palace maid a few times. She was the personal palace maid of the fifth prince, around Xientian fourth stage. The emperor? Could it be that the fifth prince had successfully ascended to the throne and become the new emperor? The fifth prince usually looked like he would not fight for anything, and was kind to everyone. He liked to read and write calligraphy and did not look like he would be able to ascend to the throne. Could it be that this was the so-called unfathomable shrewdness? He had many thoughts in his mind but did not show them on his face. Understood, I'll go prepare now. Who became the emperor had nothing to do with him. He had already experienced the feeling of being an emperor. It was very boring. It was not as comfortable as being carefree. He Chuan cleaned up the inner room where the fifth prince often read books at. If it were not for the fact that there were people watching him, he would only need to circulate his inner energy and the dust would disappear. After waiting for a short while, a few yellow-clothed experts opened the way, followed by a large group of eunuchs and palace maids. The group was much larger than before. It was obviously an emperor-level trip. Moreover, the strength of this group of eunuchs and palace maids was even stronger than the ones usually beside the fifth prince. On the golden-yellow dragon carriage, the fifth prince could be vaguely seen sitting upright through the curtain. The dragon carriage slowly descended, and the old eunuch who was close to him personally supported him down. The yellow dragon robe had nine five-clawed golden dragons embroidered on it, symbolizing the highest position. He wore a crown on his head and twelve pieces of five-colored jade, arranged according to the order of Zhu, Bai, Tsang, Huang, and Xian. Each bead was twelve inches long. The majestic aura of an emperor assaulted one's face, making one not dare to meet his gaze. Where is little Chuan? The original fifth prince was now the new emperor of Great Zhou. Your Majesty, this minister is here. He Chuan walked out from the crowd. The eunuchs of the Great Zhou dynasty were not like the Great Qing dynasty, who called themselves slaves and servants. They all called themselves ministers. He Chuan restrained his aura because he felt that not only were there inner guards around him but there were also many experts protecting the emperor in the dark. However, after he carefully sensed them, the people in the dark were all about the same strength as him. However, when they fought, they were definitely not his match. There were not many threats in the inner courtyard of the imperial palace. However, he still had to keep a low profile and act subtly. He did not want to be involved in unnecessary trouble. The new emperor of the great Zhou dynasty looked each one up and down. I need to make a trip to the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. Although it was the new king who ascended the throne, his position was not stable. His brothers were not easy to deal with. Therefore, the emperor of the Zhou dynasty wanted to look for the 900-year-old Wei Jing Chen. If he could get the support of this great eunuch, the throne would be even more stable. Now that eunuch Chui was gone, He Chuan was the only one left. It was unknown if he knew the secret. After thinking about it, Emperor Zhou decided to take He Chuan to the forbidden area and meet the 900-year-old Wei Jing Chen. Emperor Zhou had heard two rumors. The 900-year-old Wei Jing Chen was cultivating in the library and did not want to participate in the struggle for the throne. There were also many rumors outside that Wei Jing Chen had not successfully broken through to become a saint cultivator and had already fallen. No matter which one it was, he had to personally check it out. Only with this 9,000-year-old eunuch holding down the fort could the great Zhou dynasty be stabilized. The seven great sects also did not dare to act rashly because of this expert. In the past few years, because Wei Jing Chen had not come out of seclusion, the various great sects faintly showed signs of shaking the imperial power once again. 
Especially after his father passed away, the nine princes fought for the throne, and the entire world paid attention to it. These forces also had their own princes who supported them. Luckily, his father had already sensed it and secretly arranged everything, successfully allowing the fifth prince to succeed. However, how could the other princes be willing? They would definitely fight for the throne. The imperial family was ruthless. On the surface, they all seemed to love each other, but in reality, they were fighting each other in secret. If they could not hold on to the throne, then the Zhou dynasty might fall apart. Hence, Emperor Zhou had personally come to look for 900-year-old Wei Jingchen. His goal was to use his name to suppress those who dared to do so. He Chuan naturally understood the reason behind this. I will lead the way. After waving off the others, Emperor Zhou led He Chuan toward the forbidden area of the library. Do you know about 900-year-old Wei Jingchen? Emperor Zhou suddenly asked with his hands behind his back. Your Majesty, Eunuch Chui once told me about the 900-year-old master before he died, but it was all very simple, He Chuan answered unhurriedly. The Emperor of Zhou nodded. In his opinion, Eunuch Chui really would not speak too deeply to avoid violating taboos. He came to the heavy stone door. The Emperor of Zhou paced back and forth with his hands behind his back. Should he enter or not? If he was 9,000 years old, wouldn't he have sensed his aura and come out of his own accord? But now, there was no movement at all. Did this prove that it was as the rumor said? The former number one expert of the imperial palace had already fallen. If he forced his way in, it would be fine if he could see Wei Jingchen. If he really became a skeleton, would the Zhou dynasty be in danger? No one in the martial arts world would be able to suppress him. Let's go back. In the end, Zhou Huang did not go in. He Chuan followed behind. Looking at the back of the new emperor, he knew that the other party must have encountered a difficult problem. It had nothing to do with him. After all, it was all about the struggle for imperial power. It was better to stay in the scripture pavilion and be free and comfortable. Emperor Zhou could not calm down to read today. Frowning, he sat on the dragon carriage and returned with his entourage. He finally leave now I don't have to suffer as well. He Chuan stretched. He was already used to a quiet and carefree life. He was only happy for one day when Emperor Zhou came to the library the next day. He Chuan had thought that Emperor Zhou would enter the forbidden area of the library, but he did not expect him to read in the inner room. It was as if he had already forgotten about Wei Jingchen. However, He Chuan had suffered a lot recently. This new emperor often have no reservations and would confide in him whenever there was something troubling him. He Chuan was like a trash can, and could only listen from the side. It was not easy to discuss such matters, and he might even lose his head. More importantly, he did not want to discuss it, much less listen to it. What is there to argue about these two concubines? I have so many women, how can I stay at their place every day? Emperor Zhou held his forehead, he had enough things to do, and when the concubines in the harem saw that he had not visited them for a long time, they would be scheming all day. Your Majesty, for the sake of fairness, you can flip the sign, and whoever you flip will be the one. He Chuan was really a little annoyed when he heard this, so he helped out. Very good. Here's your reward. Emperor Zhou threw a bag of golden leaves to He Chuan. Chapter, 130 he Chuan was still the same as before. He spent most of his time sitting on the pure yang futon practicing the pure yang technique. He spent a small portion of his time practicing the sunflower bible. Due to his physical condition, he was able to practice the sunflower bible very quickly, so the pure yang technique cultivation was slightly slower. Ha! He Chuan condensed a few silver needles with his true energy and threw them forward. Pine. 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 The silver needles sank into the pillar and penetrated through it, disappearing into the wall. The needles of the Sunflower Bible were indeed powerful. If it were to enter the enemy's body, they would either die or be injured. He Chuan walked to the outer perimeter of the forbidden area with his hands behind his back. Sign in. Ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully signing in. You are rewarded with a Saint Realm Breakthrough Pill. 
the system notification sounded. He checked the attributes of the pill. It could increase the chances of breaking through to become a saint cultivator. I can try to break through once I regrow my severed limbs. He Chuan kept the Saint Realm breakthrough pill away, feeling very satisfied. The system was sensible. After cleaning up the library, He Chuan did not continue to cultivate the pure Yang technique today. That was because he wanted to break through to Xientian Ninth Stage directly. Actually, he could have broken through to this level a long time ago, but he was afraid that he would go berserk when he broke through. While improving his rank, he was also improving his state of mind. He wanted to increase his strength thoroughly. This way, every time he broke through, the probability of him going berserk would become extremely low. In fact, he didn't even have this kind of trouble. To break through to Xientian Ninth Stage, he had to be very careful. He first took out the jade that he had gotten from the system. He arranged it according to the position of the eight trigrams of the mystical sect. This array could wrap him in it, and it would not cause any strange phenomena when he broke through. Moreover, if someone were to break in forcefully, they would first have to crack the array in order to hurt him. Every time he broke through, he would be meticulous. He would keep a low profile, and it was best if he did not let others know when he broke through. Otherwise, if the experts in the palace were to discover it, it would be pretty troublesome. Staying put was the way of the king. With the array covering his aura, the other experts in the palace would find it difficult to notice his breakthrough. After He Chuan set up the breath concealment array, he sat cross-legged in the middle, took a supplementary pill, and began circulating his inner strength cultivation method. The golden light enveloped He Chuan, making it so that he could not open his eyes. After the light spread to a certain extent, it was blocked by the breath concealing array. Within the entire array, the true energy visible to the naked eye kept flowing into He Chuan's body. And a white flower gradually formed above his head. Immediately after that, a second flower appeared. Then the third flower. Without desire, one would enter true tranquility. The three flowers would naturally gather at the top, and the five energy would naturally flow towards the entrance. After breaking through to the Xientian ninth grade, it would naturally take place. The three flowers had already gathered at the top. Human flower, refine essence into energy. Humans are born from spirit. Thus, the essence is the seed of reincarnation. The cultivator's heart will be empty and scorched, abstaining from lust, and the essence will not be unrestrained. Thus, one must abstain from lust, and the essence will not be filled with lust. Earth flower, refine the energy and turn it into spirit. Human beings depend on energy for survival. The heart must be empty and scorched, without fear, without anger, and resentment. Then the energy will flow smoothly, the path will be unobstructed, and the energy will be sufficient without the need of food. Heaven flower, refine the spirit and return to emptiness. Although the essence is sufficient, those without spirit will have no light in their body, and they will have no life. Therefore, God is the master. Now, the heart is empty and scorched, and one cannot cling to it. God is content and does not think about sleep but will always be clear and awake. Then, he will leave his shell and return to emptiness, and return to the realm of emptiness. When the golden flower is born, his entire person has already returned to its original state. He is like an ordinary little eunuch. But if you look carefully, you can see that his eyes are as deep as the starry sky, his face has become even more handsome, and his hair is abnormally soft. If he did not move, you might not be able to sense that he was already a Xientian ninth stage expert. He Chuan released his five senses, and almost the entire imperial palace was within his perception range. He could easily sense the little bugs that were jumping around outside. He could even clearly see the trajectories of their jumps. To think that Xientian's ninth stage was so powerful. If he could break through to the Saint Cultivator realm, how powerful would he be? An endless yearning rose in his heart. The Saint realm was close at hand. Just as he was secretly happy, Emperor Zhou once again came to the library. He Chuan looked at the worried Emperor Zhou and was a little puzzled. Didn't he already help him solve the problem of concubines fighting for favor? Why did he still look like a bitter enemy? Could it be that he couldn't do it in a certain aspect? 
did the concubines were unhappy. In this huge library, there's only you. How does it feel? Emperor Zhou asked as he read. I think it's quite good. I can flip through books in the outer pavilion every day and have peace and quiet. He Chuan was also quite emotional. He had been here for a few years and wandered around the library every day. Sometimes, he even forgot his identity as a reincarnated person. His heart also calmed down with a peaceful life. Peace and quiet. Emperor Zhou put down the book in his hand and was very surprised by He Chuan's answer. He was in his twenties, but he spoke like an old man who had experienced many vicissitudes of life. He was in the prime of his life, wandering around the scripture pavilion all day long. He did not have any ambition and did not fight for them. Was he not curious about the outside world? Did he not want to be a eunuch with power and influence? Or perhaps he would consider taking in an adopted son so he could still have someone to rely on in his later years. However, the current He Chuan did not seem to care about these things. Every time he came to read, the two of them chatted, and he did not hear any yearning for the outside world. Was there really such a person in the world? Back then, he did not fight for it. That was for his father, his brother, and his younger brother to see. He did not really have no desires or passions. The young eunuch in front of him truly did not have them. He was not faking it. This was because as long as He Chuan showed some intention, Emperor Zhou would be able to transfer him away. It was a matter of one sentence. However, the other party had never expressed such emotions or intentions. That's right. Being able to swim freely in the sea of books is many people's wish. I have already fulfilled it ahead of time. He Chuan was not willing to serve any emperor or concubine. Freedom was what he desired. Sigh, if only I could be like you, reading and writing all day long. I wouldn't have to deal with so many trivial matters. It would be great if I could be a leisurely prince. Emperor Zhou somewhat missed his previous life. When he was still a prince, he could do as he pleased. After becoming the mighty emperor, he had to deal with all kinds of political affairs. The forces of the martial arts world were stirring, and brothers were fighting among themselves. There were too many troublesome things. Faced with Emperor Zhou's complaints, He Chuan did not reply. Everyone made different choices. If he gave the other party another chance, he believed the person in front of him would still choose to ascend the throne. Although he was emotional, it did not indicate his choices. Water can carry a boat, or it can overturn a boat. Your Majesty, as long as you can win the hearts of the people, even if there are prying eyes of the villains, it will be difficult them to succeed. He Chuan thought for a moment and seeing the other party's conflicted look, he could not help but remind him. Water can carry a boat, or it can overturn a boat. The Emperor of Zhou kept repeating this sentence. That's right. The way to rule a country is first to enrich the people. If the people are prosperous, it will be easy to rule. If the people are poor, then it will be difficult to rule. I was born poor, so I understand this very well. As long as my family could support me at that time, I would not enter the palace. As a reincarnated person, He Chuan was naturally familiar with history. Though the dynasties, it was the poor people who led to the collapse of the dynasty. Emperor Zhou wants He Chuan to stay with him. But was politely rejected. The emperor did not insist and left in a hurry after rewarded him with a bar of gold. Chapter 131 The Fifth Year Calendar of Emperor Xuanzong The Fifth Year of the New Emperor Zhou's Succession He Chuan knew Emperor Zhou's name, Zhou Shimin. In recent years, Zhou Shimin had not come to the library as often. As the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty, he had to deal with political affairs every day, so the number of times he could come here to read books gradually decreased. In these few years, He Chuan had already half-stepped into the Saint Cultivator realm. Just like the 900-year-old Wei Zhongxian, he had touched the barrier at the top. As long as he broke through this barrier, he could become a true Saint Cultivator. Actually, three years ago, He Chuan had already become a half-step martial saint. With the example of 900-year-old Wei Zhongxian, he chose a more stable method. His mental state and strength had both improved. His strength had accumulated to a certain extent. 
his confidence was also higher. Other than the two people who came to the forbidden area that time, he had almost never made a move. He was well versed in the way of keeping a low profile. Play safe and don't be reckless. It was late at night again. He Chuan began to set up in his room. All these years, he had signed in at the library and almost all the things he had been rewarded were used in his room to rest. Apart from the strange door array, there was also a silent talisman. The windows were affixed with talismans that hid one's aura. The roof was full of vitra talismans that could withstand a full-strength attack from a saint cultivator. It was even sturdier than a castle. Zhou Shiming's bedroom was probably not as tight as He Chuan's. He Chuan did not know what it would look like to break through to a saint cultivator, or what kind of phenomenon it would cause. He had to make all the preparations. He carefully checked the array formation and talismans. After making sure that there were no mistakes, he began to cross his legs and break through. After swallowing all the supplementary pills that the system had rewarded him with, he circulated the true energy in his body. Fifteen minutes later, the three flowers hovered above his head, and true energy continuously surged into his body. From a distance, he looked as if he had been burned red by the fire. His skin was frighteningly hot. He reckoned that if you cracked an egg and put it on his forehead, it would immediately be cooked. His entire body was emitting golden light. It was sacred and solemn, and it made one's soul palpitate. Flames rose from He Chuan's body, and he was immediately drenched in sweat. In just a few breaths, it was as if he had been fished out of water. Steam rose from his body, and multicolored light overflowed everywhere. His skin was crystal clear, and his bones were cracking. The process of breaking through was extremely dangerous, and he could not stop halfway. Because once he stopped, it meant that he had failed the breakthrough. If he failed, he would never have a second chance. He Chuan closed his eyes and continued to break through. With the help of the system's pills, it was still considered smooth so far. Under his crystal clear skin, one could vaguely see the flow of true energy. The eight extraordinary meridians were all under the impact of true energy. All of a sudden, He Chuan was like a deflated rubber ball. For some unknown reason, he had instantly become a dried corpse. If not for the fact that his heart was still beating, he would be no different from a dead person. The three flowers on top of his head were faintly showing signs of auspicious clouds. Countless true energy gathered once more, nourishing his physical body and healing his body. The true energy was like a river, flowing in the air and pouring into He Chuan's physical body. This was a virtuous cycle, and everything was developing in a positive direction. The potential in his body surged, and he was fully revived. He was like a dry land of death, full of tender shoots, vigorous and long, with a kind of nascent energy. His tattered body was nourished, and it was like a desert being watered by sweet dew. He was no longer like a dry corpse. His skin was as soft as a newborn baby's. To become a saint cultivator, he had to go through the process of putting himself in a dead place before he could be reborn. After the true energy had nourished his body, it began to gather in his dantian. In the Xientian stage, his Dantian was like a small river, but now it was like a vast ocean. Even with his eyes closed, he could feel everything in the library. He had reached the level of letting out his mind. His essence, energy, and spirit had reached an unprecedented height. Threads of true energy gathered in his Dantian and formed a purple ball. All the true energy revolved around the purple ball. Rise! He Chuan opened his eyes and floated in midair. It was not Qingdong. It was truly walking in the void. Relying on the consumption of vital essence in his body, a saint cultivator could stand in the void. He returned to the ground. Feeling the powerful strength in his body, He Chuan could not help but smile. He had finally become the saint cultivator that everyone envied. But as a reincarnated person, He Chuan knew that he could not underestimate any world. This world was definitely not as simple as reaching the saint cultivator realm. There must be a higher existence. There were also common martial arts novels and TV dramas. There were many reclusive sects in the martial arts world. Those were the true experts. Low-key development was the way of the king. Saints cultivators could continue to improve their strength. 
the library was a good place for him to continue improving. There was no such thing as the worst, only worse. He Chuan was leisurely basking in the sun. Zhou Shiming had not appeared for a long time. He brought a pair of children with him. They looked four or five years old. They were like pink porcelain dolls, adorable. The two children looked extremely similar. They were probably a pair of twins. Little Chuan, you've been in the library for so many years. You have the great Tao in your heart, so I want to hand them over to you to teach them, Zhou Shimin said as he led his children to He Chuan. This minister is terrified. Anyone can read books in the library. Your Majesty, it's better to look for those knowledgeable masters and grand preceptors. We can't delay the future of the princess and the prince. He Chuan was most afraid of trouble. But these two little ancestors have been sent here. Will there be any peaceful days in the library? Moreover, he did not have any experience in raising children. Wasn't this nonsense? Seeing that He Chuan did not respond, Zhou Shiming smiled slightly. He brought his children to the inner room and silently flipped through the books. When did he become so easy to talk to? He Chuan was somewhat puzzled. It was not like Zhou Shimin's style. No matter what, it was fine as long as he did not bring the children. I like to read quietly. Little Chuan, take Changning and Chengen out for a walk, Zhou Shimin said with a wave of his hand. Unable to refuse, He Chuan could only take Princess Changning and Prince Chengen out for a walk. Eunuch, what is this? Eunuch, help me catch the lucky butterfly. Eunuch, I want to drink water. After all these years of training in the library, his temperament had already become very stable. In the face of the somewhat mischievous Changning and Chengen, he was also able to patiently bring the two of them to play. He sucked at the flowers, and the butterfly obediently flew into his hands. Wow! Eunuch is so amazing! Princess Changning clapped her small hands and said happily. Facing such a cute child, He Chuan revealed a knowing smile. He he, looks like little Chuan Zi has the talent to take care of children. No one else can coax this pair of my children. Zhou Shiming clasped his hands behind his back, his eyes shining with the light of success. As the emperor, he naturally had his own methods. Princess Changning and Prince Chengen are both very cute. Of course, I also like them very much, He Chuan said truthfully. That's all for today. Follow me back to the palace. Zhou Shiming directly left with his children. Princess Changning turned her head reluctantly, her beautiful eyes filled with an expression that she wanted to leave behind. He Chuan did not know why, but he also felt a faint reluctance to leave them. Then, he shook his head and thought to himself, is it because the palace is too lonely? Chapter, 132 Zhou Shimin did not come to the library again. However, Princess Changning and Prince Chengen often came to play. As time passed, He Chuan gradually began to adapt he would miss them even after not seeing them for a long time. Could it be the so-called, scumbag? Spring passed, and autumn came. In the blink of an eye, half a year passed. During this period of time, his cultivation progress was somewhat slow. In such a long period, his cultivation as a saint cultivator had only advanced one level, reaching the second grade. From this, it could be seen that after breaking through to a martial saint, every advancement was challenging, and the time it took would be longer. Even with the help of the system, it was impossible to break through in a short period of time. He rubbed the space between his brows with his thumb, knowing he could not be anxious. Little eunuch he. A familiar voice sounded. Princess Changning and Prince Chengen had arrived. He Chuan had already noticed them when they stepped into the library's main entrance. As a saint cultivator, no matter what happened in the library couldn't be hidden from him. He walked out of the room to welcome them. Little eunuch he, the story about the seven dwarfs and Snow White is only halfway through. Hurry up and tell us the rest. Prince Chengen could also raise his head. He liked the story he Chuan told very much. I won't tell you a story today. I'll play something interesting with you guys first. He Chuan held the hands of the two people and said with a smile. What interesting thing. Princess Changning blinked her eyes and asked with curiosity on her baby fat face. 
He Chuan brought them to the room. There was a chessboard on the table. Beside it was a jar of black stones and a jar of white stones. Those who knew how to play Go understood one thing. Go was the number one game in the world. It was a metaphor for philosophy, values, connotation, and profound culture. In the past, He Chuan liked playing Go. He would play a few games with his friends from time to time. Although black and white were not the most beautiful colors, they gave birth to many colorful and beautiful things in the world of black and white. The Go pieces landed on the chessboard. On the surface, they seemed to be still. The connection between the pieces allowed the blood to be connected. However, once it became active, thousands of horses would gallop, and a thousand miles would be lost. The small chessboard contained the principles of the Great Tao. It was a pity that there was no go in this world. Under He Chuan's guidance, Princess Changning and Prince Chengen could understand the rules quickly. He was in charge of being the referee, and the two children were playing against each other. Remember to place your index on the side and middle fingers on top of the stone. It would be best if you used your fingertips to clamp the stone and put the stone silently. This will show your self restraint. Life is like chess. There is no regret in placing the pieces. You need to be careful with every step you take. There are gains and losses when playing chess. There are offense and defense, block and retreat, connect and break. He kept teaching them, hoping the two children would understand the principles of life in chess. It could not just be entertainment. Chengen might inherit the Zhou dynasty in the future. As the eldest princess, Changning also needed to have great wisdom. He could finally relax for a while so that they would not wander around him and their eyes would not easily blur. The unsatisfied Changning and Chengen play the go in a dignified manner. He Chuan smiled at this. When they returned to Jingyang Palace, neither Changning nor Chengen was convinced by the other. They started playing chess again. Their biological mother, Qin Lihua, was conferred the title of Empress. Every time Qin Lihua returned to her bedroom, the two children would pester her. However, it was unusually quiet today, which puzzled her. She walked to the table curiously and found that they were taking a black and white stone and placing them on the square chessboard. To be able to enter the inner palace, a woman had to be proficient in all kinds of arts. However, she had never seen the chess the two children played before. Aya, I made a mistake just now. Changning saw that his younger brother Chengen wanted to seal off the path of retreat, so she quickly used a shameless move. Little eunuch he said that life is like chess. There is no regret when placing a piece. Moreover, you have to be silent when placing the pieces in order to reflect the restraint of the royalties. Let's not talk about how loud you put your pieces were. Why would you regret it? Chengen looked like he was about to win. How could he let his sister regret her move? Humph. Eunuch he said that a man has to give way to a woman. Chining continued to act shamelessly. I'm still a child. Who isn't? What kind of chess are you playing? Why haven't I seen it before? Qin Lihua asked. Mother, eunuch he said that this is Go. Initially, we wanted to hear the story of how the seven calabashes saved the grandfather, but who knew that he would take out Go Changning explained in detail. Qin Lihua knew a little about He Chuan telling stories to her children. Every time they came back, they would discuss the story and sometimes they would look for her to reason with them. But she didn't expect that a eunuch could invent a new game of chess. And there were many other philosophies. Life was like chess. There was no regret in making a move. Could a eunuch really say that? Princess Changming rolled her eyes. Mother, why don't you play a game with me? Since she was no match for Chengen, then she would bully the new bee. What a little brat. How could Qin Lihua not know her daughter's thoughts? However, she was indeed a little curious. She slowly sat in the seat in front of Chengen. Chengen was in charge of explaining while Qin Lihua and Changning began to play Go. After a game, as a newbie, Qin Lihua was naturally no match for her. However, a trace of curiosity rose in her heart toward He Chuan. No wonder the emperor liked this little eunuch so much. He still had some tricks up his sleeve. When Zhou Shiming came to Jingyang Palace to spend the night, 
Qin Li Hua told him about Go. When Zhou Shiming heard about this, he pulled the Empress to play a game of Go. From then on, he was out of control and gradually became obsessed with Go. The Emperor liked Go, so the officials naturally had to learn from him. He Chuan did not expect Go to become a hot topic suddenly, especially for students. They liked it very much. Gradually, Go became one of the six arts the great Zhou dynasty had to learn. Time was hard to keep up. In the blink of an eye, it was the twelfth year calendar of the Xuanzong sect. He Chuan had already been in the library for more than ten years. He had also started to approach the third year of the best age of youth. After days and nights of bitter cultivation, his strength had risen to the fifth stage of the saint cultivator. Actually, this speed was already very shocking. One had to know that He Chuan had signed in with the system, and with the help of the reward pills, he had only managed to rise to the fifth level after seven years. Princess Changning and Prince Chengen were already over ten years old. The descendants of the royal family had too many things to face, and the time they spent playing with him was gradually decreasing. He Chuan could not help but feel myriad emotions in his heart. While he was feeling emotional, Zhou Shimin, in the imperial study, had a helpless expression on his face. Opposite him was the current prime minister, Fang Yuanqing. He was Zhou Shimin's trusted aide. At the same time, he was also a vassal minister left behind by the late emperor. His loyalty and ability were impeccable. Withdrawing from the vassal states is not child's play. The benefits involved are huge. Furthermore, the vassal kings have been in contact with various major sects over the years. If the vassal kings join forces to rebel, the Zhou dynasty will definitely experience unprecedented turmoil. Fang Yuanqing advised earnestly. The vassal kings held military power and guarded the borders. Although the disadvantages were huge, withdrawing from the vassal states was undoubtedly courting death. Additionally, the barbarians outside the borders were eyeing the Middle Kingdom with covetous eyes. If withdrawing from the vassal states failed, the great Zhou dynasty would truly be finished. It was even more dangerous than the nine princes fighting for the throne. Chapter 133 Hearing the objections of his confidant made Zhou Shiming feel extremely furious. Ever since I took over the position of the late emperor, I have been thinking about great Zhou all the time. Every day, I sleep thinking about the common people, but those vassal kings are doing all sorts of actions behind my back. They are trying to subvert great Zhou. Zhou Shiming smashed the table hard. No one knew how depressed he was. As the supreme emperor, he was restricted in every way. It seemed like everything was calm, but in reality, there were many undercurrents. The vassal kings were secretly looking for an opportunity to pull Zhou Shiming down from the throne. If they continued to let him go, what difference would it make if he, the emperor, did or did not do it? The critical point was that 9,000-year-old Wei Zhongxian had not appeared. The imperial court's pressure on the seven great sects was getting weaker and weaker. If they did not make any changes, the great Zhou dynasty would be no different from a slow death. Zhou Shiming was a sinner for all eternity. It was better to take a gamble and have a chance of survival. Sai, the other princes have been blinded by power and do not care about the life and death of the great Zhou dynasty. If your majesty insists, I am willing to advance or retreat with the great Zhou dynasty. Fang Yuanqing saw that Zhou Shiming had made up his mind, and he probably could not change it. No matter how significant the risk was, he had to do it. Ha, huh, as expected of the pillar of strength left to me by the late emperor. The unstable great Zhou dynasty, I am here to quell this storm. Zhou Shimin laughed loudly. With Fang Yuanqing's support, he gained some confidence. That night, the emperor and ministers began to plan for the withdrawal of the vassal. He Chuan, who was in the library, continued to cultivate. He was completely unaware of what was about to happen in the world. In any case, he was happy to be free, as long as it did not affect his cultivation in the library. Every day, he would clean up, check in with the system, and cultivate the sunflower bible and pure yang technique. Right now, he was in a state where he had no desires. He was like the monk who sweeps the floor in novels. He did not see my catching, but in fact, his strength was extraordinary. 
Looking at the fallen leaves in the courtyard, He Chuan thought of how the aunts and uncles practiced Tai Chi in the park. When bored, he started practicing a set of Tai Chi movement. The fallen leaves gradually gathered together with his dance, forming a ball that attached to He Chuan's hand and did not disperse. However, his fist did not stop the Tai Chi movement. He continued to practice as he played with the ball formed by the fallen leaves. If anyone else saw this, they would definitely be shocked. Because He Chuan seemed to be returning to the basics. All of a sudden, he pushed the ball made of fallen leaves into the air above the rubbish pile. The ball made of the fallen leaf was out of the vital essence's control and fell into the rubbish pile. Little eunuch he. Princess Changning's familiar voice sounded. The current Changning already looked like a beauty. She would be a beauty that could topple kingdoms and cities in time. Your subject greets your highness the eldest princess. Why isn't Prince Ching in here? He Chuan had a warm smile on his face. Changning and Cheng in basically came to the library together. This time, they came alone. Could it be that something had happened? Father said that as the eldest son of the emperor, he might be the future crown prince. He needs to learn more about government affairs. He can't always think about playing, Princess Changning said. So it was about learning about government affairs. He Chuan's worried heart also relaxed. The two children had been with him for so many years, and they always had feelings for each other. Little eunuch he, when I was practicing recently, I always felt something was wrong. My breathing was unstable. Princess Changning and Chengen's martial arts were taught by He Chuan. If anything was wrong, they would come to him and ask about it. Her Highness the Eldest Princess is exercising now. Let me help you see what the problem is. He Chuan put his hands behind his back. For such a small matter, it was still easy to handle. Princess Changning began to circulate her energy according to his instructions. He Chuan released his consciousness and followed the other party's movements to carefully observe. All right, there's a deviation in the way you circulate your energy. It's different from what I told Her Highness the Eldest Princess. Are you slacking off again? He Chuan said dotingly. Princess Changning stuck out her tongue in embarrassment. After He Chuan's correction, Princess Changning's problem was solved. Little eunuch he is still the best. I think Her Highness the Eldest Princess is the best. She didn't understand the essence of the energy circulation clearly and dared to try it herself. I can't even compare to her, He Chuan said snappily. Princess Changning saw that he was angry and quickly admitted her mistake. He naturally wouldn't really be angry at the eldest princess when she put on that look. After a few words of education, the two took out Go and began to play. Recently, the people in the palace were in a state of panic. Chengen and Changning also didn't come to the library anymore. He Chuan was a little curious about this. Just what kind of major event could make the inner court of the imperial palace panic? He released his consciousness and listened to the conversation in the palace. It turned out that Zhou Shimin had summoned eight vassal kings back to the capital in the name of the Empress Dowager's birthday banquet. However, how could the vassal kings not know that the capital was a dragon's and a tiger's den? How could they come back to court death? Not to mention the Empress Dowager's birthday banquet, even if the late emperor were to come out of his coffin, they would never come back. All sorts of reasons were presented to Zhou Shimin, making the emperor fly into a rage. It made sense to say that he was sick. The ninth prince actually said that the capital was a little cold and did not want to return to suffer the cold. He was obviously slapping the emperor in the face. Now that he had an excuse, Zhou Shimin immediately issued the order to withdraw. As for the eight vessel kings, how could they simply sit there and wait for death? Using the excuse of cleaning up the monarch, they led their troops straight to the capital. The imperial court soldiers saw that they had rarely experienced the flames of war. As the eight vessel kings guarded the border all year round, the soldiers under them were stronger in both battle and discipline than the imperial court. After the two armies met in a fierce battle, the vessel king's alliance army won. The imperial court army retreated in defeat. The marshal of the three armies was even killed by a mysterious expert sent by the alliance army in front of the two armies. The moral of the imperial court army without a leader fell to rock bottom. 
seeing the Zhou dynasty lose, many people fell to the Eight Vessel Kings. There were rumors in the pugilistic world that 900-year-old Wei Jingchan had died, and there were no experts in the Zhou dynasty. Shaolin, Wudong, Amei, Kong Tong, Hua Shan, Qingcheng, and Kunlun had spread the word that they would support the Eight Vassal Kings. The Zhou Emperor was already muddle-headed, and it was time for someone else to take his position. When they broke through the capital, they would use the head of the muddle-headed Zhou Shimin to worship the heavens. In any case, all sorts of unfavorable rumors were spreading like wildfire. Some eunuchs and palace maids even sneaked out of the palace. They weren't willing to die with Zhou Shimin. In the entire palace, He Chuan was probably the only one who didn't know about this matter. He had to admit that he was really big hearted. After He Chuan learned the whole story, he had a headache. Originally, the fight for imperial power had nothing to do with him, so he didn't want to interfere. However, the victory of the Alliance Army of the Vassal Kings would definitely wipe out all the trusted aides of the previous emperor. With his strength, he naturally wouldn't be afraid, but he couldn't continue to stay in the library pavilion. Furthermore, the eldest prince Chengyun and the eldest princess Changming would probably die along with Zhou Shimin. This was a scene he didn't want to see. These bastards really know how to cause trouble. They're living a good life, yet they have to rebel. It looks like if I can't just stay and don't make a move. I'll help as much as I can, He Chuan thought to himself. The key was that he did not want his stable life to be disrupted. He also did not want the two children to suffer such an unexpected disaster. Chapter, 134 How to deal with Zhou Shimin was the main topic of discussion among the seven great sects. Although the imperial court army was retreating, they still had the strength to resist. Forcefully attacking the capital would mean that Zhou Shimin, as the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty, would not be willing to die. If the emperor personally fought, the morale of the soldiers would be raised. Finally, even if the alliance army took down the capital, the losses would definitely be very heavy. Amitba, sacrificing emperor Zhou alone can reduce the suffering of the world. I think the plan is feasible. The person who spoke was dressed in a yellow monk robe and a red kasaya draped over his shoulders. He held a nine-ringed staff in his hand. Abbot Huitong is right. Our Kunlun sect has a colorless and tasteless heart-devouring pill. Those who consume it for less than three days will definitely die. Immortals below the level of saint's cultivator will not be able to save them. Taoist Teeling of the Kunlun sect stood up, he also hoped to use poison to solve the problem. After saying this, the sect masters looked at him worriedly. It wasn't because of how vicious the scheme was. The key point was that the heart-devouring pill was too overbearing. Even those below the saint cultivator level wouldn't be able to resist it. Who knew if the heart-devouring pill would be used on them when they became enemies with the Kunlun sect one day? Although the Kunlun sect was far away in the western regions and rarely visited the central plains, they were still a reputable sect. How could they research such a vicious pill? This made the other six sect masters secretly wary. Since the teeling master has such a poison, we don't need to worry too much. Arrange for someone to enter the imperial palace and use this poison to kill Emperor Zhou. However, is the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun still alive? Asked Sui Qinxiu. The heart-devouring pill is extremely overbearing. If Wei Jingchun is still alive, he will definitely use his vital essence to forcefully save Emperor Zhou. When that time comes, we can take advantage of the fact that he has used up too much of his internal energy to get rid of them together. Wouldn't the world be at peace? Taoist Teeling revealed a sinister smile. If 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun did not die, he would always been a threat to the martial arts world of the Central Plains. This was the perfect opportunity to get rid of this old eunuch. How are we going to divide the world? Wudong sect master Zhang Junbao asked. No matter what, we definitely cannot continue to have the surname Zhou. Why don't we make it a rule that whoever enters the capital first will be the ruler of the new dynasty, Abbot Huitong said. The martial arts world of the Central Plains had been suppressed by the great Zhou dynasty for too many years, and they could not raise their heads. Working together with the eight vassal kings, both sides had their own ulterior motives. The emperor did not want to have any power that surpassed the imperial power. 
and the martial arts world of the Central Plains did not want to be restricted by the imperial power. That's good. Let's do it like this for now. The rest will have to see if Teeling sect master can succeed. Zhang Junbao stroked his white beard and looked at the others. In the martial arts world, Shaolin and Wudong were the two sect masters of Mount Tai. With these two masters setting the rules, the others could only agree. Amitba, then everyone can leave first. Abbot Huitong stood up and took the lead to walk outside. The entire imperial palace became like ants on a hot pan. The eight vassal kings had defeated the imperial court's army and were now approaching the capital. If they were to be defeated again, they would probably have to defend the imperial gate to death. This was the outcome that Zhou Shimin did not want to see. The situation was obviously disadvantageous to the imperial court. All the officials and Zhou Shimin did not sleep all night, thinking about how to deal with it. As the sky brightened, the officials scattered with worry on their faces. Great Zhou was in danger. Zhou Shimin slumped weakly against the back of his chair. His face was worn, and because he had not rested well for a few days in a row. In addition to the immense pressure he was facing, his spirit was on the verge of breaking down. The eight vassal kings ignored the great Zhou dynasty's worries and forcefully pulled him down from the throne. Most importantly, the seven great sects were eyeing him from behind. In the end, the eight vassal kings being able to sit on the throne was the best outcome. After all, they all had the surname Zhou, and their blood flowed through their veins. If the seven great sects killed all of these vassal kings, then the great Zhou dynasty would have to change. This was something he did not want to see the most. These brothers could not see the danger and were blinded by power. They were bound to seize the throne. I hope that our ancestor's spirit in heaven blesses me to protect the foundation of the great Zhou dynasty. Zhou Shiming closed his eyes and muttered to the ceiling. Your Majesty, this is the Tremella porridge cooked by the kitchen. The palace maid carried the porridge and carefully placed it on the table. The worries of the past few days made it difficult for him to swallow. However, Zhou Shiming knew that he could not fall. He picked up the white fungus porridge and drank it while thinking about how to solve the problem. Crash! The bowl fell to the ground and instantly shattered into pieces. Just as Zhou Shiming was thinking about the problem, he suddenly felt a piercing pain. His entire body instantly collapsed to the ground, and his heart felt as if it was being eaten by ten thousand ants. The guards, palace maids, and eunuchs outside heard the sound and hurriedly ran in. But the palace maids who had just delivered the porridge had already disappeared. Quickly send the imperial physicians. Quickly. The entire imperial palace suddenly became busy. The news that Emperor Zhou had been poisoned was instantly spread. The imperial physicians and the hidden experts of the imperial palace quickly rushed over. An old eunuch shakily walked forward, and everyone immediately made a path for him. Kunlun Sex Heart Devouring Pill The old eunuch's voice was very hoarse, but his eyes revealed a murderous aura that made people unable to look directly at him. Heart Devouring Pill The hearts of the people present instantly sank to the bottom of the valley. Regardless of whether it was the imperial physician or the experts within the sect, everyone had basically heard of the power of the heart-devouring pill. In the absence of an antidote, those who were poisoned would undoubtedly die, unless it was a saint cultivator who cure them. However, after two hours, even the gods might not be able to save them. Quickly go to the forbidden area and invite 900-year-old Wei Jing Chun. A eunuch said. This group of eunuch experts had always followed 900-year-old Wei Jingchun. In their eyes, only Wei Jingchun could save Zhou Shimin. Although they wanted to save him, their strength did not allow it. Moreover, this group of eunuchs believed that 900-year-old Wei Jingchun was still alive. Perhaps he had already broken through the barrier of a saint cultivator. The key was that Zhou Shimin was the pillar of the great Zhou dynasty. Once he died, the imperial court would be leaderless. Crown Prince Chengen was only 13 years old and could not control the situation at all. At that time, the great Zhou dynasty would really be finished. The only chance was to invite 900-year-old Wei Jingchun. He could save Zhou Shimin and stabilize the current chaotic situation. 
a Sientian 7th rank eunuch quickly flew toward the library. He definitely knew 900 year old Wei Jing Chun. He Chuan held the freshly brewed tea in his hand and leisurely sipped the tea. He did not like drinking alcohol now but preferred to drink tea to preserve his health. As for the poisoning of Emperor Zhou, he did not know, because he did not pay attention to the matter there. He did not know if it was because he had signed at the library for too long that the things given to him did not have much effect on him. Should he try somewhere else? He Chuan thought to himself. Perhaps he would be able to gain more if he went to another place. For example, the harem, the throne room, the imperial study, and other hidden places could all be tried. These places were all contaminated with dragon energy and the fate of the country. Perhaps the system would give him a better reward if he signed in. He made up his mind. He planned to try it secretly tomorrow. Anyway, with his current strength, he probably would not be able to discover it. A small sound reached his ears. Someone has come to the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. Chapter, 135 He Chuan left the room like a ghost. Within a few breaths, he had already arrived at the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. He quietly observed the person from the shadows and saw that the person was a eunuch from the palace. Moreover, the other party's strength was not low. He was an expert on Sientian seventh stage. In addition to the other party's attire, it was evident that he was a eunuch of a higher status. This eunuch had brazenly come to the rear welding forbidden area. He should have had some matters approved by the imperial authority. Moreover, looking at his ugly expression, he had already used his Qingdong skill to the limit. It is evident that he had urgent matters to attend to. Although this eunuch's strength was very high, he was unable to discover He Chuan, who hid in the dark. The dance saint restrained his aura. Unless it were an expert of the same level, it would be not easy to detect his tracks. Nine thousand years old lord, his majesty has been poisoned by the heart-devouring pill. We are helpless. Please come out and help us. Otherwise, the great Zhou dynasty will perish. The Xientian seventh rank eunuch knelt on the ground and kowtowed to the stone door. He wanted to use his sincerity to move nine thousand years old Wei Jingchen. He Chuan frowned. He did not expect someone to sneak into the imperial palace and poison Zhou Shimin, using such a despicable method. If Zhou Shimin died suddenly, then just as the eunuch had said, the great Zhou dynasty would perish. However, nine thousand year old Wei Jingchen could not come out because he was already dead. In the end, he still had to lend a hand. He Chuan sighed in his heart and instantly disappeared from where he was. This seventh rank eunuch did not sense anything wrong at all. He just knelt on the ground and begged the dead person to come out and help. Zhou Shimin's resting palace was in complete chaos. The emperor had been poisoned on purpose. The news must have spread by now. If the soldiers in the army found out, they would not have the mood to continue fighting. Once Zhou Shimin died, the imperial court would have no chance to turn the tables. Moreover, the murderer came and went freely. It was likely that the imperial palace had already been infiltrated. A few loyal eunuchs and officials secretly set up a plan to find the murderer who had poisoned him. It would be best if they could get the antidote. However, the idea was excellent, but it did not go smoothly. They could not find any information about the murderer. Even if they did, the murderer probably would not have the antidote. It was just a bit more comfort in their hearts. Empress Qin Lihua sat anxiously by the bed and looked at the unconscious Zhou Shimin. Her heart was already a mess. Her once elegant and pretty face was replaced by paleness and worry. She seemed to have aged a few years in an instant. As the empress of the Zhou dynasty, Qin Lihua naturally knew how dangerous the situation was. If she were really unable to save Zhou Shimin's life, then no matter how many tricks she had, it would be challenging for her to help crown Prince Chengen ascend to the throne. Furthermore, the great Zhou dynasty that would collapse instantly was not something that she and crown Prince Chengen could manage. Qin Lihua held Zhou Shimin's hand tightly, and tears flowed down her face like broken pearls. She turned around and wiped her tears dry, regaining her dignified appearance. As the empress of the Zhou dynasty, 
she had the duty and responsibility to try her best to stabilize the situation and not let the Zhou dynasty collapse. At the critical moment, if she also collapsed, it would be the real collapse. Haven't the imperial physicians come up with a plan yet? Has there been any news from 9,000 years old? Have you found the murderer? Qin Li Hua's tone was cold as she glared at the group of people besides her. This. Everyone present was intimidated by her aura and did not dare to make a sound. They feared they would offend the Empress and have their heads fall to the ground. Reporting to the Empress, His Majesty's condition is awful. If it weren't for the several eunuchs who only used their true energy, I'm afraid His Majesty would already be dying. The poison of the heart-devouring pill is very strong. I'm afraid the most senior imperial physician said, he was also very anxious, but there was nothing they could do. This was because there were already 49 kinds of poison in this kind of poison. It would be difficult to distinguish the toxicity of the poison in a short time. Even if they were given a year or so, it would still be very difficult to produce an antidote. Either 9,000 years old Wei Jing Chun would appear, or they would find the antidote to the heart devouring pill. It would be tough to solve the problem by relying on a few experts' input of true energy unless they broke through to become martial saints on the spot. The detestable seven great sects actually used underhanded methods. They should have been exterminated in the first place. The most powerful old eunuch revealed a fierce look in his eyes. He was very disdainful of such methods. There were many tricks in the martial arts world. They could not be blamed for this. Suddenly, a figure flew into the royal palace without any scruples. How dare you barge into the emperor's bedroom? Who is it? Catch the assassin. The imperial guards around the emperor's bedroom drew their sabers one after another. They rushed towards the black figure that barged in. The mysterious black figure was surrounded by vitality energy, so the sabers and swords could not cut through it. The imperial guards were no match for him. The mysterious black figure flicked his sleeves, and the imperial guards were pushed away by an invisible force. Now, they placed their hopes on the hidden experts in the bedroom. How dare you trespass into His Majesty's sleeping chamber? Hurry up and leave. The experts in the sleeping palace thought the enemy had come, so they stepped forward to stop him. With so many grandmasters at his side, even the leaders of the seven major sects didn't dare to barge in. Unexpectedly, the black figure didn't care and directly flew into the sleeping palace. He had no intention of stopping. This kind of action angered the group of grandmasters, and they all pulled out their weapons. Among them, the strongest one was already at Xientian Ninth Stage. Get out of the way. The person who came was He Chuan. He wore a silver mask on his face and mobilized his body's vital essence. In an instant, countless true energy condensed into silver needles scattered like rain in the sky. The faces of the experts in the imperial palace changed drastically. They did not expect that the person who came was so terrifying. Just one move was already so powerful. The silver needles that filled the sky were like sharp divine weapons. Even if they used all their strength, they could not withstand it. This was also because He Chuan had shown mercy. Otherwise, under the full force attack of a saint cultivator, those who were weaker would have died on the spot. Those whose strength was around Xintian's ninth stage might barely be able to survive. Behind them was Zhou Shimin. The experts knew that they were no match for him, so they could only brace themselves and continue to go forward to stop him. Therefore, they raised the 120% true energy in their bodies and used their unique techniques. In an instant, the true energy in the sky was like a raging wave trying to bury He Chuan. Humph! He Chuan snorted in disdain. He slightly mobilized the vital essence in his body and used pure yang technique. The golden protective energy instantly expanded two times. The incoming true energy hit the golden protective energy and dissipated into nothingness. The vitality energy around his body did not even ripple. It was clear how powerful he was. He pushed both of his palms outward, and the vital essence inside his body kept spreading out. The air within a hundred feet radius seemed to have been sucked dry, and all the experts felt it was difficult to breathe. Even moving a finger was very difficult. One had to know that the weakest among them was at Xientian fifth stage. 
Although it was a bit difficult to traverse the martial world of the Central Plains, they were still Grandmaster experts. It was not so difficult that they could not even resist. However, the reality was that they could not even resist. This person was really too terrifying. Just what kind of expert was he? They could only watch as he Chuan entered an uninhabited land and easily passed through everyone's defensive line. He came to Zhou Shiming's side and saw an old eunuch with white hair expending his strength and true energy. He Chuan pushed the other party away. He Chuan placed his hand on Zhou Shiming's body and began to treat the emperor in front of everyone's shocked and angry eyes. Chapter 136 After confirming that He Chuan had no ill intentions, everyone silently watched from the side. A massive amount of vital essence instantly circulated throughout Zhou Shiming's body and he began to examine the other party's internal organs. Vital essence followed his meridians to his heart, and He Chuan used it to wrap around his heart. He activated the pure yang technique and began to repair his damaged heart. The poisonous gas was gradually forced out of his heart. This scene instantly stunned everyone. This mysterious person was so powerful. They could not do anything about it, but the other party quickly dealt with the situation. Could the person in front of them be 9,000 years old Wei Jingchen? It was not important. As long as this mysterious person made a move, Emperor Zhou Shiming would be saved. Empress Qin Lihua stood by the side. She initially thought He Chuan was here to take Zhou Shiming's life. She did not expect the situation to be reversed and He Chuan was here to treat him. She had myriad thoughts in her mind, but the stone in her heart gradually fell to the ground. Time passed slowly. After repairing the damaged heart, the vital essence wrapped around the poison and was extracted from his body. The dark green blood came to his throat. He lightly patted his chest with his palm, and the poisonous blood instantly spurted out of Zhou Shiming's mouth. He Chuan opened his hand, wrapped the dark green poisonous blood, and then threw it all into the spittoon on the side. Not a single drop of blood was spilled during the entire process. This was a sign that he had perfected his control over his true energy. Gasps of surprise rang out in the surroundings. It seemed that the Emperor of Great Zhou was already fine. As the poisonous blood in his body was forced out, Zhou Shiming's face became ruddy, and his breathing returned to normal. He looked no different from an ordinary person. The imperial physician quickly went forward to help check. He discovered that the Emperor's pulse was beating even more vigorously than before. It made sense. This mysterious expert had used his inner energy to circulate in Zhou Shimin's body. It was definitely beneficial to him. Reporting to the Empress, the heavens have blessed our great Zhou. His Majesty the Emperor is fine. He will probably wake up very soon, the Imperial Physician said happily. After hearing this, Empress Qin Lihua was so happy that she cried. She finally did not have to put on an act anymore. The middle guard experts in the Great Zhou Empire also revealed smiles on their faces. Some eunuchs were even confident that this mysterious person was the 9,000 years old lord. Furthermore, the 9,000 years old lord had definitely broken through to become a saint cultivator. Even a poison like the heart devouring pill could be easily cured. They were so excited. They thought the Great Zhou dynasty was on the verge of collapse, but with a saint cultivator holding down the fort, they would undoubtedly be able to set things right. When that time came, they would see if the Alliance Army and the seven great sects still dared to act so arrogantly. At this moment, He Chuan did not know what they were thinking. Even if he did, he would definitely not be bothered by it. He had carefully examined Zhou Shiming's body and found that there were no major problems. This time, he had acted to treat Zhou Shiming so that he could live a carefree life and not be disturbed. In truth, he had already given him a lot of faces. After about 15 minutes, the unconscious Zhou Shiming slowly opened his eyes. He saw a familiar figure standing before him and recalled what had happened before. He remembered that he had just drunk the porridge served by the palace maid and had passed out. Your Majesty, you are fine. This is great. Empress Qin Lihua sat by the bed and said happily. I remember now. Someone poisoned me. Zhou Shiming sat up and said angrily. It's all thanks to 9,000 years old Wei Jingchen. 
How about the old eunuch who had been pushed away earlier was very excited. 9,000 years old Wei Xingchen. Hearing this name, Zhou Shiming felt his entire body filled with power. The world-shaking Wei Xingchen who had defeated seven martial grandmasters in a row had come. If this expert came out of seclusion, wouldn't there be hope for the great Zhou dynasty? Quick, take me to see Wei Xingchen. Zhou Shiming struggled to get up and prepare to meet the legendary figure in the palace. As the emperor of Great Zhou, he naturally knew the role of the 9,000-year-old Wei Xingchen. If the other party made a move, what could not be settled? As early as a few decades ago, the 9,000-year-old Wei Xingchen was invincible in the world. Later, he went into seclusion and broke through to become a saint cultivator. It seemed that he had already succeeded in breaking through. I am not the 9,000-year-old Wei Xingchen, he Chuan said helplessly. This senior had already passed away. Wasn't it a little disrespectful to keep mentioning other people's names? Moreover, he wasn't willing to be someone else. He Chuan was he Chuan, not some 900-year-old, nor was he someone else. Not Wei Xingchen. Zhou Shiming was dumbfounded. He Chuan wore a mask and restrained his aura. No one could see through his true identity. Zhou Shiming understood in his heart that the strength of this mysterious person in front of him wasn't worth lying about. Then the other party was indeed not 900-year-old Wei Xingchen. Who was he? All the experts in the martial arts world should be eager for him to die. And besides 900-year-old Wei Xingchen in the palace, who else had such strength? The others present revealed disappointed expressions. It was actually not the person they admired in their hearts. Especially the few old eunuchs. They hoped that He Chuan was 900-year-old Wei Xingchen. They would be satisfied even if they died. You were injured by the poison. Although I helped you remove the poison, it still affected your body. You need to rest in the future, or else you will lose your life, He Chuan said with his hands behind his back. Thank you for saving my life, senior. To be able to keep my life is already a joyous occasion. I cannot repay such a favor. After I defeat the eight vassal kings, you can choose from the treasury, Zhou Shimin said gratefully. As long as he was alive, there was hope. If he died, the great Zhou dynasty would probably fall apart. At that time, no one knew how miserable the people would be. What would happen to his family members? He Chuan nodded his head slightly and turned around to walk out of the bedroom. Everyone made a path for him. He Chuan, who was halfway there, suddenly wanted to sign in. The system had already set up a long-term check-in point. Sign in, he muttered in his heart. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully signing in. You are rewarded with the Divine Eye. The Divine Eye sounded very powerful. There were a lot of people at the moment, so he did not have the time to look carefully. He planned to return to the library first. He flew through the air. His figure left an afterimage on the spot, and he had already disappeared. The experts in the Great Hall were filled with mixed feelings. He was indeed a reclusive expert. Just this movement technique alone could not be captured by anyone present. What a pity, what a pity. Such an expert is actually not someone from the great Zhou imperial family. Zhou Shimin's eyes were filled with disappointment. However, as the emperor of the Zhou dynasty, he quickly adjusted his emotions and ordered the guards to summon all the civil and military officials over. First, he had to stabilize the current situation. He Chuan returned to the library. He could not wait to check the basic information of the divine eye of the heavens. The divine eye could be implanted into the left or right eye. There were seven layers of restrictions inside. With each layer removed, one would obtain a unique ability. The first layer of the divine eye, one could see through the nature of things. Be it enemies or formation. One could discover their weaknesses. The second layer of the divine eye, one could use both eyes to carry out special attacks. The third layer of the divine eye, one could see through illusions and sense impending danger. The fourth layer of the divine eye, its functions have become even more terrifying. It can even enter the cycle of reincarnation and see through past lives. Its powerful ability even shocked the unperturbed Hichuan once again. It was simply unbelievable. 
It was not an exaggeration to say that it was heaven defying. However, the last three layers did not have any introduction. One needed to unravel the first three layers before one could see the third layer of information behind the divine eye. From this, one could see how terrifying the ability of the divine eye of the last three layers was. Or rather, it was more appropriate to say that it was terrifying. Chapter, 137 In order to break the restriction of the divine eyes, one needed to use some vital essence to cultivate. Only saint cultivators could do that. Fortunately, He Chuan had already become a saint cultivator. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to even cultivate the divine eye. Merge. He could not wait to speak to the system. Since choosing either eye was the same, he did not make a choice. The system had tacitly merged it into his right eye. The burning sensation continued to assault his right eye. He could feel a powerful force fusing into his right eye. His eyeball felt like it was about to explode. Although it didn't feel good, it was strange as he didn't feel any pain. This was all thanks to the powerful system. After an unknown amount of time, the divine eye finally finished fusing. He slowly exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. His right eye had undergone an obvious change, as if he could see through everything. He did not even need to walk out of the door to know what happened outside. However, it was a little blurry. He had yet to break through the first layer of restrictions. He Chuan took a deep breath and circulated the vital essence in his body. The vital essence was continuously injected into his right eye. As expected of the divine eye, the amount of vital essence used was extremely huge. Compared to the treatment of Zhou Shiming, it was like the difference between heaven and earth. After using up more than half of his vital essence, the first layer of restriction was finally broken. He opened his eyes and looked at the pillar next to him. The veins of the gold thread Phoebe tree appeared clearly. He had seen through the weakest part of it. With just a little bit of true energy, he could instantly destroy the pillar in front of him. If there was someone standing in front of him, it would probably be the same, as he could see the weakest point. And this was only the first layer. If it was the second layer. He Chuan immediately started to break through the second layer. However, things did not go smoothly. He had used 80% of his vital essence, but the second layer did not even change. With his current strength, there was no way for him to break through. He could only try to break through his own strength as soon as possible and then turn around to cultivate the divine eye. Signing at a special place was indeed will get a better reward. He Chuan was prepared to find more special places to sign in. At this moment in the imperial study, a few important officials rushed over. Because the seven great sects had deliberately spread the news of Zhou Shimin being poisoned, these important officials more or less knew some news. At that time, they felt that the sky had fallen and that the fate of the great Zhou dynasty had come to an end. However, when they saw Zhou Shimin sitting on a chair and waiting for them, they could not believe their eyes. Zhou Shimin simply told them what had happened. These important officials also felt relieved. Now that the army is at the city gates and the seven major sects have used such despicable methods to poison us, what should we do next? Zhou Shimin looked at them and asked. The seven great sects cannot wait. This can only mean that they have their own plans. Cooperating with the eight vassal kings is all driven by profit, Fang Yuanqing said. That's right. This minister think what Lord Fang said makes sense. The seven great sects want to subvert the great Zhou dynasty. They will use all kinds of methods next. Therefore, I think we can beat them at their own game. First, we can block the news that His Majesty has already been detoxified. Then, we can prevent the seven great sects from secretly make a move. Second, we can observe if there are any spy in the palace. Only by eliminating them can we deal with the following battle. The Minister of War, Lu Yongfang, stood out and said. Was it too risky to continue pretending to be poisoned? What if he could not control the situation? However, Zhou Shiming, who had been poisoned once, still had lingering fear. If he were to do it again, he might really lose his life. Let's do it according to Lord Lu's plan. We'll have to rely on the few of you to continue acting for the rest of the show. 
Zhou Shiming definitely could not appear in front of the officials, so he could only count on the help of these officials. Please rest assured, Your Majesty. We will definitely do our best for Your Majesty and the Great Zhou Dynasty. We will not give up until death. The next day, shocking news spread out. The Great Zhou Emperor had been poisoned and was lying unconscious in his bed. When this news spread out, the entire Great Zhou Dynasty was shaken. Some people immediately jumped out to refute, but this stance made people even more suspicious. If Zhou Shiming was fine, why did he not personally come out to explain, and a few important officials came out to help explain? Time seemed to confirm the news, because for three consecutive days of the morning court, the officials did not see Zhou Shiming appear. For him to not come out to preside over the court at such a critical moment, it meant that he was really poisoned. The entire capital was in chaos. The officials of the court wanted to escape overnight, but they were all caught by the imperial guards. They were locked up as the death row prisoners. The capital city entered an even stricter state of alert. Qin Ling. In the Alliance Army's commander-in-chief's tent. The eight vassal kings were all gathered here, ready to discuss the matter of attacking the capital city. Humph. It looks like Zhou Shimin is indeed deeply poisoned and will not live long. The sixth prince, who was dressed in a four-clawed python robe, said with a smile. After hearing this news, he specially ate three big bowls of food to celebrate. Since fourth brother is not going to live long, isn't the capital within our grasp? Who will be the last to sit on the throne? The second prince held the Buddha bead in his hand and swept his gaze across the other brothers. What's the rush? We haven't broken through the capital yet. It's not too late to sit down and study it after we succeed. The seventh prince knew what was on everyone's minds. It was very likely that they would shed all pretense of cordiality to snatch the throne. Among this group of people, who did not want to take that position. Who was willing to continue being a vassal king. However, before entering the capital, they absolutely could not have internal strife. Otherwise, it would be very easy for the imperial court to seize the opportunity. When the second prince heard the seventh prince's words, he narrowed his eyes and did not have any intention of continuing to dwell on this topic. Do you guys think it's Zhou Shiming's trick? Is he actually not poisoned? The ninth prince, who was the most cautious in doing things, suddenly said. Ninth prince, you definitely overthinking. We are about to attack the capital. Who else is Zhou Shiming going to put on an act for? He can't wait to go to court every day and solve the problem in front of him, so it can't be fake news, the sixth prince mocked. He usually didn't like the ninth prince, so he would definitely jump out to refute him at this time. What sixth prince said makes sense. The Kunlun sect has already informed us in advance about this matter. The Taizhong sect said that the heart-devouring pill could not be saved by immortals unless 9,000-year-old Wei Xing Chun makes a move. However, after so many years, I'm afraid this great eunuch has already passed away, the second prince analyzed calmly. That's right. The Kunlun sect has indeed mentioned this matter in advance. I think it's about right. Zhou Shiming's life is not long. Let's fight our way to the capital in one go. In the future, we won't have to suffer the wrath of the imperial court, the fifth prince said with a cheeky smile. It was a typical smile that hit a knife. Who would believe that Zhou Shiming would play along in such a situation? The capital was now in chaos. If he was really not poisoned, he would have already appeared to clean up the mess. Why would he wait until now? If it were him, he would have come out to stabilize the morale of the army. The court would still have a chance of survival. The ninth prince sat back in his chair resentfully. He felt a little uneasy. The heart-devouring pill of the Kunlun sect was indeed powerful, but what if the 9,000-year-old Wei Jing Chun was still alive? Wouldn't it be digging a hole for them to jump into? However, it was indeed as the other princes had said. The chances of this happening were slim. Perhaps he was overthinking things, the ninth prince shook his head and comforted himself. Feeling that victory was in their grasp, the eight princes continued their heated discussion on how to break into the capital. Chapter, 138 The world was in turmoil. The imperial palace was covered in dark clouds, making it hard for people to breathe. 
However, the library was not affected at all because He Chuan was there. He sat in front of the Go board at the square table and played chess with himself. Recently, Princess Changning and Prince Chengyan had not come to the library. The rebellion of the eight vassal kings greatly affected his life. I wonder how the two little fellows are doing. He Chuan muttered to himself. Although he did not want to interfere with the matters of the imperial court and the alliance army of the vassal kings, he was still a little worried. He still could not let go of the matter. Normal conflicts between the factions would not occur on a large scale. The struggle for imperial power was different. If Zhou Shimin had failed, all of his children would not have a good ending. Troublesome. He Chuan sighed helplessly. He had previously warned himself not to get involved, but he was unable to do so at the last minute. It was a contradictory problem. He had always pursued the path of cultivation and state of mind at the same time so that he would not go crazy when he broke through. Recently, his state of mind seemed to have fluctuated slightly. It was obvious that he had been disturbed by matters in the outside world. The fluctuation in the state of mind of a saint cultivator was not a small matter. It seemed that he needed to resolve this matter and continue his cultivation to prevent problems from occurring during the breakthrough. He Chuan made up his mind. He knew that he did not want anything to happen to the two little fellows. If the current situation continued to develop, there was a high possibility that the imperial army would be defeated. At that time, the eight vassal kings would definitely fight for imperial power, and it would affect the library. He would not have any peaceful days anymore. The best way was to solve the problem from the root. Little eunuch he. An order came from the palace. Everyone must gather at the martial arts bureau immediately, or they will lose their head. The young eunuch who delivered the message ran over breathlessly. It was evident that the matter was very urgent. He Chuan has always stayed in the library and never showed his face. However, Zhou Shimin valued him very much. Every time he came here to study, he had to accompany him. Princess Changning and Prince Chengyan were very close to He Chuan, so the eunuchs and maids in the palace didn't dare to yell at him. Do you know what this is about? With He Chuan's strength, he naturally didn't care about the threat. Since he decided to interfere in this matter, he would first ask about it. No matter who he spoke to, he would speak in a gentle voice. Even if you were the lowest of the palace maids and eunuchs, he wouldn't look down on them in the slightest. When talking to the emperor, he would also not lower his voice. The palace maids and eunuchs felt comfortable getting along with He Chuan. His philosophy was very simple. Is there anyone who is born to be a king, a duke, a general or a minister? No one was born to be superior to others, and no one was born to be inferior to others. Recently, he had no interest in listening to the situation in the palace, so he did not know much about what had happened recently. Quietly reading books and cultivating in the library was his favorite thing to do recently. Sai, eunuch he, you don't know. Right now, there are rumors in the palace and outside of the palace that his majesty has been poisoned and is unconscious. In addition, the alliance army of the eight vassal kings will attack the capital. The martial arts bureau will arrange for us all to undergo systematic training and go to the battlefield to fight against the alliance army. The young eunuch who passed the message explained with a frown. In his opinion, going to the battlefield was no different from sending himself to death. If it weren't for the severe martial law in the capital recently, he would have even wanted to find an opportunity to escape. Little eunuch he, you should also make preparations. After all, swords and knives have no eyes on the battlefield. After delivering the message, the eunuch turned around and rushed to the next place to inform. He Chuan was a little surprised. He didn't expect Zhou Shimin to be willing to take such a huge risk and come up with such a plan. He didn't know if the plan would succeed. Of course, this little trick could not be hidden from He Chuan. He wanted to see what tricks the emperor could play first. If he really could not change the situation, then it would not be too late for him to help. As for the matter of going to the Martial Arts Bureau, he was not in a hurry. He had only read half of the book in his hand. He wanted to finish reading first. Martial Arts Bureau In the martial arts practice field, there were about 2,000 eunuchs. The eunuchs who were assigned here basically had no power or connections. 
That was why they were sent to the battlefield. In the current situation, it was definitely not suitable to send money. He Chuan. The blue-robed eunuch held the name list in his hand and shouted at the team. He Chuan. There was still no response. Eunuch Lu, it's little eunuch he from the library pavilion. He is usually very close to the eldest princess and the crown prince, the eunuch in charge of managing the affairs said in a low voice. Eunuch Lu frowned. Although He Chuan was the lowest level of the grey-robed eunuch, he did not dare to interfere if he could gain the favor of the eldest princess and the crown prince. In any case, one more was not much, and one less was not much. It was fine to pretend not to know. Now that the emperor had been poisoned and was unconscious, the crown prince would probably propose to take charge of the court affairs. Then He Chuan's status would definitely rise with the tide, and it was not impossible for him to become an important person. In time, he might even have to turn around and flatter him. However, he was definitely a little jealous in his heart. He Chuan was still leisurely reading in the library, and he did not know what the blue-robed eunuch was thinking. Even if he knew, he would not care. With his current strength, no one in the palace was his match. In the entire world, he probably did not have many opponents. The eight vassal kings' alliance army continued to break through like a hot knife through butter. They broke through several cities. They were now less than 500 miles away from the capital. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers surrounded the entire capital. However, the Alliance army did not attack. The capital walls of the great Zhou dynasty had been strengthened for several generations. They were tens of meters tall and were easy to defend but hard to attack. Normal catapults and siege weapons would not be able to cause any damage. Furthermore, the 100,000 Imperial Guards were not just for show. As the last line of defense to protect the emperors, they were all elites that had been chosen. It would be very difficult to break through. The Alliance Army had used all sorts of strategies and methods, but the capital was as solid as an iron bucket. It would be difficult to break down from the inside. The only thing left was to attack. Just as the Alliance Army was about to attack, the rumored unconscious Zhou Shimin suddenly appeared. The emperor of the Zhou dynasty stood on the city wall, his face solemn as he personally came to command the battle. The emperor personally led the troops, and the soldiers' fighting spirit was immediately mobilized. Cheers resounded throughout the capital. Because the pillar of support had arrived. When the eight vassal kings, who were filled with confidence just a moment ago, saw Zhou Shimin suddenly appear, their hearts skipped a beat. Didn't they say that Zhou Shimin was poisoned and unconscious? Why would he appear here? Facing the imperial court's army, whose morale was high, the morale of the alliance army suddenly dropped. We can only use the second plan. Abbot Huitong squinted his eyes and said. This abbot of the Shaolin Temple had the strength of Xientian Ninth Stage. It was rumored that he was just one step away from becoming a saint cultivator. Moreover, as one of the great forces from Mount Tai in the martial arts world, his words carried a lot of weight. It seems that this is the only way. Daoist Teeling was unwilling. He did not expect that the heart-devouring pill could not even take Zhou Shimin's life. Disciples of the seven major sects, gather together and prepare to help the alliance force the city. Abbot Huitong did not look like a monk at all. Faced with the impending massacre, he did not feel any fluctuations in his heart. He Chuan sat in the scripture pavilion, but his consciousness could cover the entire capital. It turned out that the Zhou dynasty's capital had a very secret formation. If one did not investigate, one would not be able to sense it. Chapter, 139 He Chuan carefully observed the formation and could not help but sigh in his heart. The person who set up this formation regardless of whether it was his cultivation or his attainments about formation, was definitely not bad. If he were not a saint cultivator, he definitely would not be able to sense the fluctuations of the formation. It seemed that he really should not underestimate the people in this world. Even the 9,000 years old Wei Jing Chun probably did not have this ability. If he didn't reach the level of a saint cultivator, he definitely wouldn't be able to set this formation. He used the divine eye to continue observing the situation around the capital. All of a sudden, he felt a powerful aura. It seemed to be from the direction outside the city. 
the divine eye continued to observe. A group of experts gathered outside the city. The small-scale army formed by experts was very fierce. Tens of thousands of troops were wiped out just like that. Of course, regardless of whether it was the imperial court's experts or the martial arts world experts, they were all judged based on their strength. There were strong and weak people. However, to assemble a talented army, they would definitely be composed of experts above Xientian third stage. In addition, there would be a small number of Hotian eighth to ninth stage martial artists. The army with bigger power was all composed of Xientian experts. They would undoubtedly be the nightmare of an ordinary army. If they were all Xientian fifth stage and above experts, they would be invincible. They would indeed be everyone's nightmare. At the peak of the great Zhou dynasty, there were all Xientian fifth stage expert teams. Because of this powerful talented army, the great Zhou dynasty successfully unified the world. In these few years, the 9,000-year-old Wei Zhongchuan announced that he was in closed-door cultivation. Only then did the factions in the martial arts world raise their heads again and secretly accumulate their strength to form a talented army. A single or two sex group of experts would not be able to contend with the imperial court. However, when the seven great sects were added together, their strength was already above that of the current great Zhou dynasty. A starving camel was bigger than a horse. In the past few years, the great Zhou dynasty had fought openly and secretly. It was already not easy for them to maintain their current situation. The group of experts that the imperial court had formed were mostly eunuchs from the palace. They had benefited from the group of people that 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun had nurtured back then. This could be considered indirectly laying the foundation for the Great Zhou Dynasty. Back then, Wei Jingchun defeated the seven great sect masters by himself. He had relied on his strength and the powerful evolved Jing masters. The Alliance army in and outside the capital continued to gather, and a great battle was about to break out. Zhou Shimin stood on the city wall, wearing bright armor, looking at the Alliance army in the distance. A few Xientian ninth stage experts protected him. The 100 Imperial Guards could still put enough pressure to the outside world. After all, they were the elite troops that the Imperial family selected. No matter how powerful the experts' army were, it was impossible to kill them all. Hence, the current war still needed soldiers to participate. With hundreds of thousands of troops fighting head-on, even the Grandmaster troops would not be able to win. When Zhou Shimin saw the elite army that the seven major sects were gathering outside the city, his gaze did not change. Generals, receive my order. I will defend the capital with you. The city is where the people are. When the soldiers heard these words, their morale rose once again. A few powerful old eunuchs protected Zhou Shimin tightly. This was because, in the upcoming battle, Xientian realm experts were joining in. They had to protect the emperor well. Everyone, listen up and attack. Take the stupid king's head. The alliance army gave the order to attack. Instantly, the sound of war drums shook the sky. The vanguard army raised their shield array and slowly moved towards the meridian gate. Like a huge wave, they wanted to overturn the capital. The commander of the imperial army, Qin Yintian, stood beside Zhou Shimin. He was also a Xiantian cultivator and was unquestionably loyal to the imperial family. At the same time, he was an important aide to Zhou Shimin. Your Majesty, swords and sabers have no eyes. I think you should retreat to the back. No one could bear the consequences if anything were to happen to you. Qin Yintian held his spear and stared at the moving alliance army with a determined gaze. The distance was still quite far, so there was no need to waste energy. Once they were within the range of the archer's attacks, he would give them a vicious blow. I am the chosen one. Why would I be afraid of the might of swords and sabers? Furthermore, the soldiers of the three armies are fighting their lives on the front lines. How can I retreat? Zhou Shimin's tone was very firm. It was impossible for him to retreat. If not, the imperial court's army would lose their backbone and morale. They would definitely lose this battle. Qin Yintian knew that persuasion was useless. He could only let the few eunuchs protect Zhou Shimin. Commander Qin, don't worry. 
Whoever wants to hurt his majesty will have to step on my corpse. An old eunuch ninth grade eunuch said with an imposing manner. Since ancient times, eunuchs had always been the most loyal. Whether they were greedy for wealth or power, they relied on the foundation of imperial power. If the emperor fell, they, the eunuchs, would have no one to rely on. They were originally rootless people, so it was even more impossible for them to become the emperor. No one in the world would agree. Therefore, no matter how powerful the eunuchs were, they would at most have the position of 9,000-year-old Wei Jing Chen. Moreover, every time the dynasty changed, the eunuchs in the palace would basically be changed. The eunuchs of the previous dynasty would either flee or accompany the emperor to his death. They had no other choice. As the Alliance Vanguard army began to attack the city, the experts formed by the seven major sects held all sorts of weapons and were prepared to charge into the battlefield at any time to help the Alliance army take down the city wall. Archers, get ready! Qin Yintian pointed his spear diagonally into the sky. Tens of thousands of archers drew their bows and knocked their arrows in unison. The scene was extremely shocking. Release the arrows. As Qin Yintian's spear slid down fiercely, a rain of arrows whistled through the sky and instantly arrived above the coalition army. Clang! 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 Most of the arrows were blocked by the shields. However, the rain of arrows was too dense. A small number of arrows penetrated the gaps and landed on the Alliance army soldiers. As the Alliance army soldiers fell, his position immediately revealed a flaw. Before the others could fill in, the dense rain of arrows pierced through the flaw. The Alliance army soldier who fell first was immediately shot like a hedgehog. He didn't even have the time to make a sound. War was always very bitter, and victory was achieved by countless skeletons facing each other. No matter how powerful the rain of arrows was, it's still unable to stop the Alliance army from advancing. At this time, the elite team formed by the seven major sects took advantage of the gap and started to move. They bent their backs and ran on the ground. They were as fast as arrows leaving the bow, making it difficult for them to track their movements. Even if occasional arrows were shot to their sides, they would still be easily repelled by them. This was the effect of grandmasters on the battle situation. Humph. An old eunuch's gaze turned cold. He grabbed the bow and arrow of a soldier beside him and shoot. Whoosh! The arrows shot out like shooting stars, shooting toward the Xientian realm warriors of the seven great sects at the front. This move was called striking the mountain and shaking the tiger. When the warriors of the seven great sects who were running wildly on the battlefield heard the sound of the air being torn apart, their faces immediately changed, and they hurriedly dodged to the side. Unfortunately, they were still one step too late. The arrows shot out by the Xientian realm ninth stage experts instantly pierced through his shoulder. Although his life was not in danger, he had already lost his fighting strength. Unable to take his opponent's life, Zhou Shiming waved his fist. Unfortunately, this group of Xientian ninth stage experts couldn't expand their true energy on archery because they still had to prevent the other party from attacking the city. The group of elites formed by the seven major sects moved faster and faster, and soon surpassed the soldiers of the Alliance army. They carried a cold killing intent as they headed toward the city wall. The real battle was about to begin. Chapter, 140 The group of experts from the seven great sects arrived at the foot of the city wall at an extremely fast speed. A sturdy city wall that was dozens of meters tall might be a little difficult for ordinary soldiers, but it was completely useless for these experts. They all displayed their qinggong and easily leaped onto the city wall after using the city wall as support. When they reached the top of the city wall, what waiting for them was the expert army of the imperial court. The Xientian realm experts from both sides instantly started fighting. True energy raged around them and the sounds of weapons clashing could be heard. In this life and death battle, everyone used 120% of their strength and didn't hold back. It was either you die or I live. This battle was even more intense than normal battles. Countless Xientian experts had fallen. Amidst the intense fighting among the experts, the vanguard army of the alliance rushed to the foot of the city wall. They climbed up the ladder and began climbing up the city wall. 
From time to time, they would shoot arrows at the imperial court soldiers on the city wall. Rolling stones. Hot oil. Qin Yintian's spear pierced through an expert from one of the seven great sects as he continued giving orders to the imperial army. The imperial army on the city wall raised a huge stone and threw it down. Hot oil also being poured down. The side that attacked the city was naturally at a disadvantage. This was something that could not be done. The soldiers of the Alliance army let out wails that intertwined with the sounds of battle. I never expected the imperial court to have a trump card. These experts are all very powerful. Wudong sect master, Zhang Junbao held his treasured sword as he watched the battle on the city wall. Our seven great sects are attacking at the same time. No matter how powerful the imperial court's experts are, they can't resist for long. As long as 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun doesn't appear, victory will come sooner or later, Huashan sect master, Yu Yangfeng said disdainfully. Amitbao. Sec Master Yu is right. Without Wei Jing Chun, the imperial court will definitely lose. Hui Tong Abbot said with half-closed eyes. The seven sec masters of Shaolin, Wudong, Ame, Kong Tong, Hua Shan, Qingqing, and Kunlun were all waiting. If the 9,000-year-old Wei Jing Chun did not appear, then they would join the battle. They still had lingering fear from the battle back then. After the 9,000-year-old Wei Jing Chun defeated them, he forced the seven sects to submit to the imperial court. Several sect masters of Amei, Kong Tong, and Qingqing had passed away a few years ago due to injuries. The sect masters of the three major sects were all chosen later. They were most worried about Wei Jingchun now. If the other party showed up, it meant that this great eunuch had already broken through to become a saint cultivator. The rebellion of the seven major sects and the eight great fan kings was very likely to fail. It was estimated that before Wei Jingchun was 900 years old, the possibility of the seven major sects making a comeback was something they didn't want to see. It was not only the sect masters who were worried. On the other side, the vassals' kings were also worried about this problem. Do you think the 900 year old Wei Jingchun will appear? The ninth prince was still a little worried and asked. The vassals' kings had heard of the legendary figure in the imperial palace since they were young. In the past, they admired him. Now that he had become a rebel army, they were naturally fearful. Even if they had never seen the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun before, there was still an invisible pressure that shrouded their hearts. Wei Jingchun has yet to appear. It is very likely that he has already fallen. The Imperial Palace Treasury has many medicinal pills and treasures. It is possible that there is an antidote for the heart-devouring pill, Abbot Huitong said with a smile. Daoist Teeling from the Kunlun sect gnashed his teeth. He could have won great merit, but who knew that Zhou Shimin was so lucky that he did not die? He even let the Alliance army and the seven great sects fall into his trap. It was indeed a little inappropriate. Everyone, there's no need to rush. Wudong and Shaolins were half step saint cultivators and were already on their way. When they arrive, the outcome will be decided. Wudong sect master, Zhang Junbao said. Under Qin Yintian's command, the 100 Imperial Guards methodically carried out orders to defend the city. With Zhou Shimin personally leading the expedition, it was extremely difficult to rely on the Alliance Army to break through the capital. In the end, it was still up to the experts to decide the outcome. What they did not expect the most was that the Zhou Dynasty's capital had a huge array formations hidden, making it increasingly difficult to attack the city. Shaolin and Wudang are worthy of being the great experts of Mount Tai. If half-step saints cultivator from two sects were to fight on the battlefield, I believe the capital would be able to be broken. The second prince twirled the Buddhist beads in his hands. It seemed like he had a close relationship with Abbot Huitong. The ninth prince, who was naturally cautious, frowned. Shaolin and Wudang had been suppressed by the imperial court for so many years, yet so many half-step saints cultivators had appeared in secret. This was not a good thing. The five sects of Amei, Kong Tong, Hua Shan, Qingqing, and Kunlun might be weaker, but who knew if they had other trump cards? If the capital was broken, who would make the decision? The ninth prince even hoped that a few more half-step saint cultivators from the seven major sects would die later. 
Otherwise, with the Allied army's strength, they might not be able to control the situation. The other vassal kings did not seem to realize the seriousness of the problem. It seemed that there was a reason why the late emperor did not pass the position to this group of stupid pigs. The ninth prince had many thoughts in his mind, but his expression was very calm. Retreat, let's wait for a few half-step saint cultivators to arrive. Seeing that they had not been able to take down the city for a long time, the vassal kings announced that they would temporarily retreat. They could not waste all of their remaining strength on attacking the city. When the Alliance army heard the sound of metal clashing, they retreated in an orderly manner, leaving behind countless corpses. The battlefield left behind on the city wall was even more tragic. There were traces of true energy raging everywhere. The power of a battle between innate experts was too terrifying. If ordinary soldiers were to accidentally charge into the area of battle, they would instantly turn into a pile of minced meat. Qin Yintian carefully counted the losses of this battle. The experts' losses were not small. Most of them were injured and had lost about 40% of their combat strength. The imperial court's losses were actually not that bad. With the advantage of the city walls being strong and tall, they had almost blocked the alliance army below the city walls. Qin Yintian reported the loss to Zhou Shimin. The loss of the experts is too great. I didn't expect the seven major sects to secretly accumulate so much strength over the years. My good brothers can't see the truth clearly. Zhou Shimin was furious. This battle was actually dependent on the experts. At the beginning, they had lost nearly half of their combat strength. What should they do next? Luckily, the imperial court experts were all eunuchs and imperial guards, and they were extremely loyal to the great Zhou dynasty. Take the pills and treasures from the palace treasury and distribute them to them. Leave the defense of the city wall to Commander Qin. Zhou Shimin said. The alliance army's attack would not stop there. They needed to prepare for a long battle. Zhou Shimin needed to go back and discuss what to do next. The barbarian land was starting to move again, and the great Zhou dynasty was facing internal and external problems. He Chuan continued to cultivate in the library pavilion, wanting to increase his strength as soon as possible. It was still far off for the divine eye to unlock the second layer. Judging from the hidden array formation in the capital, there was still a hidden expert behind it. Suddenly, He Chuan felt four powerful presences rushing toward the vicinity of the capital. The four of them were not weak, and they were all half-step saint cultivators. Since the other party always wanted to cause trouble and make him restless, he had to have a talk with this group of people. Chapter 141 in the imperial study. Zhou Shimin and the ministers discussed the situation of the deployment. A spy reported that four half-step saint cultivators from Shaolin and Wudang sects have arrived outside the capital. Zhou Shimin said with some worry in his eyes. Hearing that four half-step saint cultivators had come, all the ministers' faces became solemn. It was not an exaggeration to say that a half-step saint cultivator would have no problem fighting ten Xientian ninth stage experts. Even if they did not break through that barrier, there was an insurmountable gap between them and Xientian ninth stage experts. Every half-step saint cultivator had their own unique domain. This was the difference between them and ninth stage Xientian experts. If one did not comprehend the power of the domain, then one would not be able to break through to become a martial saint. In the domain, a cultivator's strength would increase, and when others entered the domain, they would be suppressed. Back then, the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun was able to suppress the sect masters of the seven great sects because he was able to comprehend the domain. It was clear how important it was to comprehend the domain. They have half step saint cultivators, we have the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun. A minister said. Although this sentence had some prestige, up until now, this legendary eunuch had not appeared, or the probability was very slim. After all, the great Zhou dynasty was at its moment of life and death. If the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun was really alive, how could he let the seven sects and the eight vassal kings be arrogant and despotic? He would have long come out to deal with this group of little rascals. The seven sects dared to summon four half-step saint cultivators. They were basically certain that the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun was not alive, so they did things like this. 
After they showed up, 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun still did not show up. Then, they could completely confirm that the great eunuch of the past had died. The imperial court's biggest weakness was that there was no half-step saint cultivator protecting them. Zhou Shimin actually knew very well that when he was poisoned to the point of death, the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun did not show up to help. He did not know if that mysterious expert would appear again to help the imperial court through the difficult times. From his actions that day, it seemed that the mysterious expert did things as he pleased and did not care about the emperor of the Zhou dynasty. As such, he could only rely on the will of heaven to help. They still had not used their last resort, but if they failed, they would not be able to turn things around. For the great Zhou dynasty, they had to do their best and die without regrets. In the Alliance army camp outside the city. The eight vassal kings had gathered in the main camp and specially came to welcome the four half-step martial saints. Facing such experts, the vassal kings did not dare to be arrogant. They spoke carefully, afraid of angering these experts. Otherwise, if they were unhappy, they could instantly take the lives of the eight vassal kings. Even with the protection of Xientian Ninth Zero stage experts, it was difficult to resist. This was the power of half-step saint cultivators. Unless they had the help of four experts of the same level. However, the eight vassal kings wanted half-step saint cultivators behind them, so there was no need for them to cooperate with the seven sects. In the entire world, there were only a few half-step saint cultivators. Only the likes of Shaolin and Wudang sects had such a deep foundation. The few half-step saint cultivators were very arrogant and treated the vassal king as if they were an ordinary people. They did not even put them in the eyes. As half-step saint cultivators, they had lost interest in power, money, and beauty. If it was not necessary, they would not appear in front of others. They were all cultivating in seclusion in their respective sects. Breaking through to a saint cultivator was what they wanted in their lives. Just as everyone was chatting happily, a powerful aura enveloped their location. This caused everyone to be stunned. It was not that they were frightened, but they felt that the other party had overestimated himself. For half-step saint cultivators were in charge, yet the imperial court still dared to send people over to attack the camp. Could it be that the old man had eaten arsenic and felt that he had lived too long? Did Zhou Shimin's brain get poisoned, and now he still dares to send people? I think he was scared silly, that's why he did such a funny thing. The vassal kings and the seven sect leaders didn't care at all. With four half-step saint cultivators around, who could stir up waves. As the aura got closer and closer, the four half-step saint cultivators frowned. Because the other party was very fast, in just a few breaths, he had already arrived outside the commander-in-chief's tent. Such fast speed. Could he be the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun? A half-step saint cultivator dressed in black said. It's not the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun. It should be another powerhouse hidden in the imperial court. It seems that we have underestimated the imperial court. Another monk dressed in green robe said. There was no point in talking more. The four saint cultivators were prepared to go out and see the other party's strength. The other party was also half-step saint cultivators, but they had four on their side. Their conversation made the eight vassal kings feel a little shocked. They had lived in the capital for many years and had never known about the half-step saint cultivator other than the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun. As the great Zhou prince, they definitely knew a lot of secrets. Now that a half-step saint cultivator had suddenly appeared, how could they not be surprised? If they knew that there was another half-step saint cultivator, they would not rebel no matter what. Wouldn't it be better for them to obediently stay in their fiefdoms and enjoy the rest of their lives? I didn't expect Zhou Shiming to be so deeply hidden. There is such a person in the imperial court, but he hid the news. The sixth prince wiped the sweat off his forehead. Could it be that father deliberately hid it? Only when you becomes the next emperor can you know about such a secret. The ninth prince was smarter and made a deduction. I'm not sure. It's possible that Zhou Shiming's life was saved by this half-step saint cultivator hidden by the imperial court. The second prince was not in the mood to fiddle with the Buddhist beads. If it were not for their side's cooperation with the seven major sects, this rebellion would have failed completely. 
No one had expected Zhou Shiming to have such a trump card. What are you afraid of? We have four half-step saint cultivators on our side. Even if the imperial court does have them, so what? The seventh prince stood out. His words were full of confidence in this war. However, thinking about it, it made sense. Now that it was four against one, they had an absolute advantage. As long as 9,000 years old Wei Jing Chun did not appear, the imperial court would not be able to turn the tables. We have underestimated this brother. It is not because of luck that he can sit on the throne. The ninth prince shook his head and said. Among the nine brothers, Zhou Shiming is the most insidious. On the surface, he does not fight for it and was treading on thin ice every day. In reality, he is secretly plotting for the throne. The sixth prince was still brooding over the matter of Zhou Shiming sitting on the throne. The other vassal kings shook their heads. The sixth prince was as stupid as a pig. He only knew how to eat, drink, and have fun all day long. Even if the throne was not Zhou Shiming's, it will not be the sixth prince's. The fight for the throne was based on one's own abilities. Who would put their truest side in front of others? The eight vassal kings all had their own plans. This was the royal family. Let's go out too. Let's see what tricks Zhou Shiming has up his sleeves. The second prince did not want to chat with the stupid pig. When the capital was breached, the sixth prince would definitely die a terrible death. Because he had no brains at all. If he was willing to be a carefree prince, he could still live. If he wanted to fight for the throne, he would definitely be the first to die. Chapter, 142 The person who came was actually not a half-step saint cultivator. It was He Chuan who wanted to solve the problem. He was prepared to persuade the other party to stop and not disturb his peaceful life. He put on the silver mask again and walked directly toward the Alliance Army's camp. Who dares to break into the camp? Quickly retreat, or else we will kill without mercy. A few soldiers on sentry duty unsheathed their swords and shouted sternly. Not far away, there were soldiers armed with bows and arrows as long as He Chuan dared to move forward. He would be attacked from all directions. But did he care? He Chuan acted as if he did not hear the warning and continued to swagger forward. He did not care about the danger at all. Kill without mercy. A sergeant gave the order. The archer immediately aimed at He Chuan and released his fingers. Whoosh! Countless arrows shot toward He Chuan. Faced with such a dense rain of arrows, even a Xientian realm expert had to retreat. Interesting. He Chuan did not stop and directly walked forward. The rain of arrows was about three feet away from him, but it was as if they had hit a barrier and were all repelled. When the soldiers of the Allied army saw this unbelievable scene, they all retreated in unison. He's actually Xientian ninth stage. Hurry up and go back and report. The sergeant had some experience and knew that He Chuan was not someone they could resist. They had to get the experts of the seven major sects to help. This kind of protective energy was definitely a Xientian ninth stage expert. Otherwise, it would not be so powerful that it could deflect all the arrows. The person in front of them was definitely not one of their own, so he must be an expert sent by the imperial court. A cloud-piercing arrow exploded in the night sky. The soldiers of the Alliance army were fully armed and charged toward He Chuan with weapons in their hands. In the battle between the two armies, be it the Alliance Army or the Imperial Court Army, they would not let down their guard and basically maintained their combat state. Their weapons and armor would not leave their bodies easily. Hence, the Alliance Army moved very quickly. In less than 15 minutes, they had surrounded He Chuan. Faced with such a situation, He Chuan's expression did not change at all. He had already swaggered forward. No matter how many arrows came at him, they were all useless. They were all deflected back. The deflected arrows even injured some unlucky peoples. Everyone listen up. Kill. The left commander of the Alliance Army rushed over and gave the order. When the Alliance Army soldiers heard the order, they waved their weapons and attacked He Chuan crazily. Regardless of whether He Chuan was a grandmaster or a half-step saint cultivator, the military order was as heavy as a mountain. The soldiers carried out orders as their duty, 
and they had to face He Chuan head on. He Chuan put his hands behind his back, and the protective barrier gradually expanded. All the soldiers could not get close. It was as if an invisible force pushed them away. They could not get close, let alone hurt the other party. He Chuan walked forward while the surrounding soldiers retreated. He was at ease as if he was strolling in his own yard. From start to finish, he had his hands behind his back, treating the thousands of soldiers and horses as if they were nothing. The left Sima in the army was also a Xientian level expert. When he saw the mysterious person pass through the encirclement so easily, he was so shocked that his jaw almost dropped to the ground. With such strength, he was definitely not at Xientian ninth stage expert. He was probably already a half step saint cultivator. It was not something they could deal with. Not only did the cloud piercing arrow inform the Alliance army, but even the Imperial Court's army realized that something was wrong. At first, they thought it was a night attack. Zhou Shimin and a few eunuchs rushed to the city wall to help, but the Alliance army did not attack. Zhou Shimin was a little confused. The fire on the Alliance army's side soared into the sky, and he could vaguely see the enemy moving. However, they were in the Alliance army's headquarters. What exactly is going on? Zhou Shimin was somewhat confused. I'm not sure either. However, I have already sent out scouts to investigate. There should be news soon. Qin Yintian was a qualified general. He was very decisive when encountering trouble. Soon, the scouts brought back news. The news shocked Zhou Shimin greatly. A mysterious expert barged into the Alliance Army's camp alone. Furthermore, the Alliance Army's soldiers are completely unable to stop him. Someone gave him a pillow when he was dozing off. A mysterious expert suddenly went to cause trouble for the Alliance Army. Hundreds of thousands of Alliance soldiers, experts from the seven major sects, and four half-step martial saints were present. Who would dare to barge in so easily? Unless it was the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun. Zhou Shiming was very clear in his heart that this great eunuch had already fallen. Then who was it? Your Majesty, do you think it was the mysterious expert from last time? An old eunuch suddenly recalled the expert who had suddenly appeared on the day Zhou Shiming was poisoned. The old eunuch was at the scene at that time. If there was a possibility, it would be that person. After being reminded, Zhou Shiming also suddenly recalled what had happened a while ago. However, whether that mysterious expert could deal with four half-step saint cultivators was still unknown. General Qin, immediately reorganize the army and wait for my orders. Zhou Shimin said. Qin Yintian was familiar with military tactics. He naturally knew that the current situation was advantageous to the imperial court. They could take advantage of the chaos in the alliance army to suddenly attack the enemy's camp. Is the item ready? Whether it can deal with a half-step saint cultivator depends on that item. Zhou Shimin stood on the city wall and looked at the chaotic camp of the Alliance Army. Your Majesty, it's ready over there. We're just waiting for your order. You can use it at any time, the old eunuch said respectfully. The great Zhou dynasty had a weapon that could counter a half-step saint cultivator. It was very powerful. Zhou Shimin did not want to use it unless it was a critical moment. He had no choice but to use it now. However, it was just an item. Whether or not it could succeed was still unknown. There was a chance of failure. Zhou Shimin had never used it before, so he did not have the confidence. Moreover, this thing required a very powerful energy, and it required the lives of dozens of Xientian ninth stage experts to activate. In other words, even if it succeeded, the imperial court would have to pay a huge price. That was why Zhou Shimin was so cautious. If he could use the lives of these Xientian ninth stage experts to exchange for the lives of four half-step saint cultivators, it would definitely be worth it. It's been tough on all of you. You are so loyal to the great Zhou dynasty, but in the end, you have to sacrifice your lives. I can't bear it. Zhou Shimin wiped the tears from the corners of his eyes. As a qualified emperor, he naturally knew how to buy people's hearts. If one wanted Xientian ninth stage expert to willingly die, they had to put on a bitter act. 
I have followed the late emperor for decades and followed his majesty for so many years. It's time for me to continue serving the late emperor. The most senior eunuch suddenly knelt on the ground. He was already prepared to die. To be able to make the emperor shed tears for them, this life was worth it. Eunuch Wang, quickly get up. You have accompanied me for so many years. How can I not know your loyalty? Please rest assured. I will order people to find a few dolls to pass on to you. It will not be to the extent of cutting off the incense. Zhou Shimin immediately went with the flow. He knew what these eunuchs' greatest wish was. It was definitely impossible for them to birth a grandchild, but as the emperor, there was no problem for him to help the deceased eunuchs pass on their adopted children to the genealogy. Thank you, your majesty, for your grace. Thank you, your majesty. When the eunuchs who were ready to die heard that there was hope, they immediately became fearless of life and death. The family had a descendant, so they would have the face to meet their ancestors when they went down. Chapter, 143 he Chuan leisurely arrived in front of the Alliance Army's commander-in-chief's tent. The Alliance Army's soldiers formed a massive encirclement, but no one could get close enough to him. They could only stand outside and clamor, but He Chuan was too lazy to care. Or it could be said that the Alliance Army's level was too low, and they did not have the qualifications to make him move. For half-step Saint Cultivator's aura locked onto him firmly. If there were any unusual movements, they would surround and attack him. Although you are powerful, you are not our match. It is best that you do not participate in the battle between the imperial court and the vassal kings. Leave as soon as possible, so you do not lose your life. Timunkonk in green walked out and said to Hichuan. In their opinion, even if Hichuan were a half-step saint cultivator, it would be difficult for him to fight against the four of them. However, at their level, if they made a move that could shake the heavens a earth, earth who knew if this mysterious expert would drag one of them down with him? The four of them didn't want to take this risk, so it was best to subdue the enemy without fighting. If the mysterious expert retreated tactfully, it would save them a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, the other party wasn't moved. Humph! The unknown green rob Munkonk snorted coldly, and his aura immediately suppressed He Chuan. The other four also released their auras, suppressing He Chuan together. The might of half-step saint cultivators pushed the surrounding soldiers hundreds of feet away. Just the pressure alone was enough to make the others unable to breathe, let alone resist. This was a true supreme power. The power of a Xientian ninth stage cultivator is still a thousand miles away. All of you are half-step saint cultivators, so you shouldn't be interested in the rights of the secular world. Why don't we all take a step back and shake hands? Wouldn't that be a happy ending for everyone? He Chuan didn't think of making a move. It would be best if it could be resolved peacefully, it would save him a lot of trouble. He hated trouble the most. Countless people died in this battle. Whether it was the ordinary soldiers or Xientian experts. They were all living creatures. Now, because of the selfish interests of the eight vassal kings and the seven great sects, their corpses piled up into mountains, and rivers of blood flowed. It was really not commendable. Don't sacrifice yourself for meaningless wars. Just look at this scene, it's like hell on earth. How can you bear it? He Chuan's voice wasn't loud, but it could reach the ears of every soldier present clearly. It was like the sound of nature, intoxicating everyone and instantly making sense of his words. The soldiers of the Alliance Army with swords in their hands were all deep in thought. They were reflecting on whether their actions were right or not and whether it was worth it. They had doubts about this war. The four half-step saint cultivators saw He Chuan could actually use the enchanted voice to fill their ears and only use his words to shake the soldiers' hearts. This made their hearts sink. Preposterous. As the emperor, Zhou Shimin listened to the treacherous officials. He is muddle-headed and ignorant. We are doing justice for the heavens. Timunkonk in green immediately used the Buddhist lion roar technique to disperse the enchanted voice. The four of them would not be affected by the enchanted voice, but if they let it go, the allied soldiers would no longer have the heart to fight. The golden lion's shadow pounced toward He Chuan's position. 
the Buddhist lion roar technique could penetrate the enemy's five senses and cause them to bleed to death. This move of the Cyan Rob Monkonk was not only to break He Chuan's enchanted voice but also to test his strength. Do you want to do this the easy way or the hard way? I originally wanted to settle this peacefully, but why did you insist on forcing me to make a move? He Chuan did not move at all. The golden lion's shadow reached within thirty feet of his body and immediately dissipated into nothingness. A mere half-step saint cultivator dared to show his might in front of him. The performance of this group of people was actually within his expectations. Among those who practiced martial arts, no one relied on their mouths to speak. Whoever's fist was harder will have their words be the rule. With his current strength, it would be too easy for him to deal with four half-step saint cultivators in front of him. It was even a little bullying. He was already a saint cultivator fifth stage. The four of them were all experts from Shaolin and Wudang sects. Not to mention their status in the martial arts world, their strength was also displayed here. At this moment, how could they feel comfortable being mocked for refusing the easy way and choosing the hard way? Let this poor monk test your strength. The half-step saint cultivator from Wudang sect was the first to make a move. He leaped into the air and unsheathed his three-foot-long blade. In an instant, two streaks of silver sword light shot out. The sword intent pierced through the rainbow, and light and shadows filled the sky. It was like a giant python opening its huge mouth, wanting to devour someone. The dazzling sword light expanded in the wind, and even the mask on He Chuan's face was clearly visible. The power of this sword was evident. As expected of an expert of the Wudong sect. This sword is probably something that even 9,000-year-old Wei Jing Chun wouldn't dare to face head-on. That's right. Even if he wanted to attack, he still had to avoid its sharp edge. Now, let's see what this arrogant person will do. The other three half-step saint cultivators felt that He Chuan definitely had to retreat. So that's it. I thought that the Wudang sect had some great secret techniques. Then I'll play with you. He Chuan smiled indifferently. He rarely fought with others, so this was an excellent opportunity to test his strength. He suppressed his cultivation to the half-step saint cultivator realm of the same level. Devil Sweeper. He Chuan swung one of his hands, and he held a soldier's iron sword the next second. Then, like a ghost, he quickly swung eighteen swords. The seventy-two evil warding sword techniques were all about speed. Without the gorgeous sword light, even the people present couldn't see the iron sword clearly. Because his sword techniques were really too fast. The evil warding sword technique seemed ordinary. But in fact, there was a hidden killing intent. The powerful sword intent of a half-step saint cultivator from the Wudang sect was immediately destroyed when it was struck at its weak point. The sword technique was easily broken, and the half-step saint cultivator of the Wudang sect was both shocked and angry. He had absolute confidence in the Wudang sword technique, but he didn't expect his technique to be so fast. However, the Wudang sword technique's outstanding feature was its continuous momentum. The half-step saint cultivator from Wudang sect continued to attack, and the sword shadow was like a net, enveloping He Chuan. Come on! Take this! No matter how strong the opponent's sword move was, He Chuan could easily block it. In the blink of an eye, they had exchanged dozens of moves. He Chuan's gaze focused slightly, and he activated his divine eye. The iron sword in his hand was like a spirit snake, instantly sweeping away the sword of the half-step saint cultivator from Wudang sect and then stabbing into the opponent's arm without losing its momentum. The pain came, and the half-step saint cultivator from the Wudang sect hurriedly retreated a distance. He lowered his head and looked again. A wound appeared on his arm. He Chuan stood on the spot with the iron sword in his hand pointing diagonally at the ground. He had no intention of pursuing victory. When the remaining three half-step saint cultivators saw this scene, their faces became unsightly. The mysterious expert in front of them was more terrifying than they had imagined. They could easily injure the other party within dozens of moves. If it were them, they definitely wouldn't be able to do so. Amitba. I didn't expect the benefactor to be so strong. This Pamunkonk isn't talented, so I've come to learn from your outstanding move. 
the green cloth monk Eske's entire body emitted a golden light. It was the golden bell cover, an upper-grade Buddhist cultivation technique. The green cloth monk stretched out his hand to take the Khmer staff. His right foot suddenly stomped on the ground. With his foot as the center, the ground cracked inch by inch, leaving behind cracks like a spider web. Swoosh! The Cyan Rob Mungkonk rushed in front of He Chuan and waved his hands down. The Chi Mei staff turned into a crescent moon in the air. Flower Blossoming Buddha He Chuan moved slightly and dodged the attack of the Chi Mei staff. At the same time, he stabbed his iron sword into the Cyan Rob Mungkeske's arm and ignored the golden bell shield. Even the position of the wound was the same as the half-step saint cultivator from the Wudang sect. Chapter 144 PND No One O. Oh. We must join forces. This person's strength is not something we can deal with alone. Another half-step saint cultivator from Wudang sect said. The strength that He Chuan displayed caused them to be extremely shocked. At the same time, they understood the gap between them. If the four of them worked together, there was a chance of victory. A considerable amount of true energy swept toward He Chuan, who was holding an iron sword. The four of them stood side by side, and their aura reached its peak. However, He Chuan was calm and had a smile on his face. He stood still, facing the combined attack of the four of them. No matter how strong he was, just his calm demeanor was enough to make everyone present admire him. A strong wind was gradually blowing in the field, and the sandstorm made it hard for people to open their eyes. The Alliance army soldiers protected the eight vassal kings and retreated. The battle in a while would be earth-shattering. It was better for ordinary people to stay away from the battlefield. Not to mention ordinary people, even Sientian cultivators didn't dare to come close. Otherwise, just the aftermath of the leak could seriously injure them. The seven sect leaders' faces were solemn. They retreated ten miles away, but their eyes were fixed on the changes in the field. This man is definitely not that 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun. He is a famous half step saint cultivator in the martial arts world. I have heard of Wei Jingchun but have never heard of this person, said Zhou Ganming, the sect master of the Kong Tong sect. It was true that they had never heard of the mysterious evil warding sword technique. Such a powerful cultivator must be well known in the martial arts world, but neither the sect master of the Kong Tong sect nor the other six major sects had heard of him. Is this man really an expert of the imperial palace? The Wudang sect leader, Zhang Junbao, gripped the hilt of his sword nervously. He had seen the strength of the two half-step saint cultivators of the Wudang sect before, and with their exquisite Wudang sword technique, hardly anyone in the same realm could rival them. But now, they had been defeated so cleanly, which refreshed their worldview. Huh, you guys should have attacked together a long time ago. In this way, you were only giving me a little fun. He Chuan felt a little unsatisfied when facing a one-on-one -on -one attack. Before he could exert any strength, his opponent had already fallen. The four half-step saint cultivators quickly spread out and surrounded He Chuan from all directions. A terrifying aura spread out and enveloped He Chuan within. Everyone raised 12% of their true energy and did not dare to hold back. The mysterious expert in front of them was too powerful, and they had to use all of their strength. Would keeping this person alive be a huge threat in the future? The four of them felt that He Chuan would likely break through to become a saint cultivator. Little did they know that He Chuan was suppressing his strength to play with them. If he had used his full force, they would have long been crippled. Nine thousand years old Wei Jingchun had already suppressed the seven great sects for a long time. If another one appeared, wouldn't the seven great sects be unable to raise their heads? This mysterious expert must die. Killing intent soared into the sky. Initially, he wanted to play a little. He didn't think these people didn't know what was good for them and wanted to kill him. It seemed that he had to teach the four of them a lesson. His eyes suddenly became extremely sharp. The metal sword in his hand buzzed as if it had a life of its own. Violet energy of the east. He Chuan was like a rising sun, surrounded by violet energy. He swung his sword forward lightly. Time seemed to stop at this moment, and the sword intent seemed to pierce through the sky. 
the sword intent traversed 30 zero zero miles, and its light could freeze 19 continents. The powerful sword's intent made people unable to resist. The four half-step saint cultivators were terrified and quickly used their strongest moves to resist. First, the Wudong cultivator was sent flying by the sword intent. His clothes were torn like rags, and he spat a mouthful of blood. Then, the sword intent streaked across the sky. The other Wudong cultivator was also unable to resist. The sword in his hand shattered, and a deep wound appeared on his chest. Amitba. Senior brother, resist together with me. The two prominent Shaolin monks were quite shrewd. They knew that it was very difficult to resist the sword intent alone. There was still a chance if they attacked together. Wishful thinking. He Chuan sneered. His sword intent had already reached its peak. Even if the four of them attacked at the same time, they still wouldn't have the chance. Not to mention the two people just now. In front of the sword intent, the protective energy was as fragile as a thin piece of paper. It was easily cut open. The golden bell shield, which the Shaolin sect was proud of, was extremely weak. The sword intent injured the two half-step saint cultivators of the Shaolin sect. Their chests were filled with crisscrossed wounds. This result shocked everyone present. The half-step saint cultivators of Wudang and Shaolin sects hadn't even taken a single move from Hichuan. Just what kind of mysterious background did this expert have? Back then, even the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun might not have been this strong. It was too terrifying. Could it be that the martial arts world no longer had a chance to resist? He Chuan threw away the iron sword in his hand. In his hands, even flowers, plants, and trees could become divine weapons. He had just wanted to test the power of the evil warding sword technique on a whim and did not use the system's reward sword. Otherwise, these people just now would probably be dead by now. Swoosh! A poisonous needle secretly attacked He Chuan. However, it directly melted half a meter in front of him. So it's you. He turned his eyes to Dawa's Teeling, the sect master of Kunlun sect, and suddenly remembered that Zhou Shimin had been poisoned. Daoist Tai Leng initially thought that although He Chuan had defeated four half step saint cultivators with one sword, his breath was definitely unstable now. If he took the opportunity to hurt the other party with the poisonous needle, he could turn the defeat into victory. However, things didn't go as planned. He Chuan's strength was far beyond his imagination. When Daoist Teeling saw his fierce gaze, he turned around and wanted to escape. That's right, as the sect master of Kunlun sect, he was scared out of his wits under just one gaze. You still dare to run? He Chuan said disdainfully. He stretched out his hand and grabbed at the air. Daoist Teeling, who had just flown into the air, seemed to be controlled by an invisible force. He couldn't even move his fingers. He Chuan slowly walked in front of Daoist Teeling, and his gaze landed on his Dantian. No. Senior, spare me. As a Xientian ninth stage expert, once his sea of energy was crippled, he would no longer be able to practice martial arts. He would be a complete cripple for the rest of his life. This was worse than death. You have to pay the price for doing something wrong. He Chuan slowly stretched out his index finger and pointed at Daoist Teeling's Dantian. A shrill scream rang out. Daoist Teeling's sea of energy was like a deflated rubber ball. His true energy kept dissipating until he became an ordinary person. The Kunlun sect leader was crippled, and the others were so scared that they did not dare to move. What if this mysterious expert was unhappy and crippled them all? Seeing that everyone had become more obedient, He Chuan nodded his head in satisfaction. If you dare to take another half a step into the ordinary people's dispute, I will cripple all of you. Stay in the mountain gate and cultivate. Don't meddle in worldly affairs all day long. If there is a next time, don't blame me for being merciless. He Chuan waved his sleeve, and he threw Daoist Teeling to the feet of the other six sect masters. Seeing the miserable state of the Kunlun sect master, they could only nod their heads obediently. A breeze blew past, and He Chuan's figure had already disappeared. The people at the scene felt as if their acupoints had been pressed, and they were unable to regain their senses for a long time. Chapter, 145 
15 minutes after He Chuan left, the Wudang and Shaolin sect masters quickly went to see the conditions of their half-step saint cultivators. Luckily, the Kunlun sect master, Daoist Teeling, was there to block the attack. Otherwise, if the half-step saint cultivators were crippled, Shaolin and Wudang sect's positions would be unstable. After a simple discussion, the seven major sects were ready to withdraw from the war. Back then, the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun had already made them go through a tough time, and the seven great sects really didn't want to repeat the same mistake. They decided to follow the warning of the mysterious expert and return to their mountain gates to seclude themselves and not interfere in worldly matters. This way, the sects could still keep their incense sticks and not be wiped out. The strength of the mysterious expert was obvious, and he was even comparable to the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun. Luckily, the other party was not a bloodthirsty person. Otherwise, the Alliance Army and the seven major sects would have been covered in blood today. The seven major sects recalled the experts from their respective sects and left one after another. The speed at which they left was shocking. This was because they did not know if the mysterious expert would suddenly return. It was better to leave as soon as possible. The faster the better. The eight vassal kings looked at each other and stood rooted to the ground. They were all became a mess in the wind. This force was their greatest reliance, and now, in the blink of an eye, it had completely retreated. How could they continue to fight against the imperial court? Even if the mysterious expert did not continue to attack, the imperial court and the Xientian cultivators team were not something they could fight against. It was all over. How could they fight now? The seven great sects retreated faster than anyone else. They brought their own assets over, and their troops were all in the capital. If they escaped alone now, they would have lost everything when they returned. They could only retreat with their army. The rebellion was a serious crime deserving of eradication of the whole family line. Although they cannot kill the whole royal family, the vassal kings would definitely have their whole family buried. Zhou Shiming obviously would not give the vassal kings a chance. The imperial court's guards took the initiative to charge out of the city. The battle cries shook the sky. The imperial court was paying close attention to what happened in the alliance army camp. Originally, Zhou Shiming had planned to use his hidden massacre weapon to kill the four half-step saint cultivators. However, before they could make a move, news came from the other side. The four half-step saint cultivators had all been defeated. Furthermore, the mysterious expert used his sword intent to defeat four people in one move. This result made everyone unable to believe it. Ha! Huh, God bless the great Zhou. Another half-step saint cultivator has appeared. Zhou Shiming did not care about how many moves he had to make to defeat the enemy. The best opportunity was to do nothing. Now that the experts of the seven great sects had all left, the alliance army of the eight great vassal kings was nothing to worry about. With the help of the Xientian cultivators, the imperial court army killed the alliance army until they had no strength to resist. The eight great vassal kings were all captured and sent as death row prisoners to be interrogated. The rebellion that almost toppled the great Zhou dynasty ended so easily under He Chuan's attack. No one had expected such an outcome. Under He Chuan's warning, the seven great sects declared that they would not leave their residences and would not interfere in worldly matters. A mysterious half-step saint cultivator appeared with an invincible appearance and forcefully crushed the Shaolin and Wudang sect half-step saint cultivators. This made everyone talk about it and it became a topic of conversation after dinner. Some people guessed that it was 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun. However, it was quickly overthrown. If it really was 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun, there was no need to hide it. Moreover, the mysterious expert used a sword technique, and 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun did not know any sword techniques. Everyone was guessing the identity of the mysterious expert. And with the help of this mysterious expert, the unstable Great Zhou Dynasty stabilized its foundation. For the time being, no one dared to wake the sleeping tiger. The mysterious expert did not come out to make a statement, and the imperial court fell silent as well as if the mysterious expert was someone from the palace. Zhou Shiming could not help but sigh in his heart. He really hoped that this mysterious expert would have some sort of relationship with the great Zhou dynasty. 
He was even willing to give the other party the title of the new 9,000 years old, a position where one person was truly above 10,000 people. Unfortunately, after the battle, the mysterious expert seemed to have disappeared into thin air. No one knew who he was. No matter how much the story of the mysterious expert was spread in the outside world, He Chuan continued to live a carefree life in the library. Every day, all he did was clean up, read books, and cultivate. He did not take such a simple task to heart at all. The reason why he took action was that he wanted to maintain a quiet cultivation environment and ignore the disturbances in the outside world. He held a Taoist scripture in his hand. Right now, he preferred to read books that could calm his mind. Little eunuch he. A familiar voice sounded. It was Princess Changning and Crown Prince Chengen, whom he had not seen for a long time. Before they arrived, the voice had already reached He Chuan's ears. When they met again, Changning was much more stable than before, and Crown Prince Chengen was even more brand new. During this period of time, Zhou Shimin had tried to get him to handle political affairs. As the future crown prince, he had to be able to hide his emotions from others. But when they arrived at the library, Crown Prince Chengen revealed a smile that came from the bottom of his heart. Greetings, Your Highness Crown Prince, greetings, Eldest Princess. He Chuan's tone was always so calm, making people feel as if they were bathed in the spring breeze. Princess Chengning had just met him and began to tell him about the recent events, especially about that mysterious expert. Her tone was filled with admiration. Father said that that mysterious expert is already invincible in this world. It would be great if I could be as powerful as him. Princess Chengning rolled her eyes and said to He Chuan. Invincible in this world? I'm afraid it's a bit of an exaggeration. You have to know that the world is so big, and there are as many experts as sands. Half-step saint cultivators are indeed very powerful, but there are still more powerful experts. Therefore, I'll teach you to never be satisfied with your current achievements. He Chuan said. Little eunuch he, I also want to be as strong as him. Help me think of a way. Princess Changning said coquettishly. You are a princess who has no worries about food and clothes. Why do you have to go on the path of cultivation? Peace is the most important thing. How could He Chuan not know what Changning was thinking? It's meaningless to be a princess, and I can't help Emperor Father. Last time, I heard that Father was poisoned, I secretly cried for a long time in the bedroom. Princess Changming was not young, so of course, she knew what death meant. If it wasn't for the appearance of the mysterious expert, she and Chengen would probably have died together with their Emperor Father. Being a strong person requires a firm and unwavering heart. You work by fits and starts. You also have to endure suffering that ordinary people can't endure. He Chuan tried to persuade her. It wasn't that easy to be a strong person. I can definitely do it. I'm not afraid of suffering. Little eunuch he, could it be that the mysterious expert is you? Princess Changning asked in a mysterious and low voice. A woman's sixth sense was indeed terrifying. However, He Chuan denied it calmly. Little eunuch he is so powerful, he can definitely help me become a powerful cultivator. Help me. Princess Changning did not give up until she achieved her goal. Crown Prince Chengen did not say anything. He hoped that Changning could control her own fate, and not be like the other princesses of the royal family. In the end, they could only become a tool for marriage. You have to do what I say first. Otherwise, everything will be empty talk. He Chuan also thought that if Princess Changning was only doing it on a whim, she might give up after a while. That's great. In the future, you can also become a respected cultivator. No one can bully my emperor father, empress mother, Chengen, and little eunuch he. Princess Changning clapped her small hands happily, it was as if she could already see the scene of becoming a powerful cultivator. Chapter, 146 He Chuan didn't take it seriously. But Princess Changning took it to heart. The next day, she came to the library pavilion with her big and small bags as if she was moving house. What is your highness doing this time? He Chuan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Why did it seem like she was running away from famine? From now on, I will live in the library pavilion. 
I will train with little eunuch he every day. Princess Changning said very seriously. He Chuan was dumbfounded when faced with such a situation. Live in the library? Your Highness, please don't joke around. The environment here is simple and crude. You're a royal family member. What if something happens to you? What kind of joke was this? He didn't want this princess to live here. Didn't little eunuch say that if I want to become a strong person, I must be able to endure hardship and hard work? If I can't even endure this little bit of hardship, how can I talk about becoming a strong person? Princess Changning said confidently. He Chuan now had a deep understanding of what it meant to throw a stone at his own feet. He didn't think that the other party would take it seriously. Your Highness, you must be joking. This place is really not suitable for you. He hurriedly tried to persuade her. No, eunuch he promised me yesterday. You can't go back on your words. Princess Changning began to play the fool, saying that she would stay behind to practice martial arts no matter what. He Chuan could easily defeat the four half-step saint cultivators. However, facing this person in front of him, he could neither hit nor scold her. After all, she was a child he had watched growing up. How could he not have feelings for her? Has the emperor and the empress agreed? At this point in time, he would definitely be unable to persuade them, so he could only ask Zhou Shiming and Qin Lihua for their opinions. Little eunuch he, don't worry. Father Emperor and Mother Empress have already agreed to my request to learn martial arts from you. Princess Changning was very determined. In that case, the princess will stay here to learn martial arts for the time being. But let me say this first. If you feel that it's too hard and tiring, you can end it right away. He Chuan first set the rules so that she would not come to trouble him every few days. He Chuan specially arranged the best room for Princess Changning to stay in. No matter how hard and tiring the training was, he could not really mistreat the princess. After a period of time, Princess Changning actually gritted her teeth and persevered. She had no intention of leaving. He Chuan was not the only one who was surprised. Zhou Shiming and Qin Lihua were both very surprised. They did not expect that Changning would be able to persevere under such tiring circumstances. They were also very helpless about this. After all, it was actually a good thing that Changning was able to persevere through one task. Recently, Crown Prince Chengen had also grown quite a bit. He looked like a future wise ruler. This also made Zhou Shiming feel much more at ease. Because of the poisoning incident last time, his body was deteriorating day by day. As the Emperor of Great Zhou, it was impossible for him to stop to rest, let alone take care of his body. Empress Qin Lihua was slightly worried about Changning's actions. As a woman, she would marry sooner or later. She couldn't possibly practice martial arts for the rest of her life. Being in the royal family, there were many things that she couldn't control. Your Majesty, when you have time, go visit this child, Changning. She can't forget to eat and sleep. There needs to be a specific standard for what she should and shouldn't do. Qin Lihua gently rubbed Zhou Shiming's shoulders. I happen to be going to the library pavilion in two days. I will have a talk with Changning. Zhou Shiming closed his eyes. No one knew what he was thinking. Inside the library pavilion. He Chuan had his hands behind his back as he looked at Princess Changning, who was cultivating. He couldn't help but nod his head. It was indeed beyond his expectations. This person was more persistent than he had imagined. When cultivating, you must be calm. He warned. At this moment, Zhou Shiming arrived at the library on the dragon carriage. He Chuan had actually heard it long ago. He went up to welcome him unhurriedly. This minister greets your majesty, He Chuan said. There's no need to go too far. I heard that Changning is practicing martial arts at your place. What do you think? Zhou Shiming asked straightforwardly. In reply to your majesty's words, Her Highness the eldest princess tenacity is beyond my expectations. I originally thought that she wouldn't be able to last three days. Who would have thought that she would be able to last for so long, He Chuan said honestly. He wouldn't lie because of the emperor. Oh, there's such a thing. I have to take a good look. 
Zhou Shiming knew very well what his daughter was like. In the past, no matter what she did, she had no patience. Now that she was able to last for so long, it was indeed not a small change. When he walked into the inner room and found that Chang was indeed still persevering in her cultivation, Zhou Shiming revealed a gratified look. He didn't stand at the door and observe for a long time, nor did he go forward to disturb her. He went to the other inner room to read some books, but he could not find the feeling he had before. He could not help but feel melancholy. His body was getting worse and worse. The sequelae from the last time were not small. He did not know when his soul would return to the ground. Although he was very satisfied with the current crown prince Chengen, his age was still there. When he ascended to the throne, he would probably encounter many obstacles. In his limited life, he should remove as many obstacles as possible for his son. In the blink of an eye, five years passed. Zhou Shimin's body continued to deteriorate, and he was basically bedridden. He had even paved the way for the new Emperor Chengen, and Crown Prince Chengen smoothly presided over the court affairs. Qin Li Hua ate vegetarian and prayed in the back palace every day and would not interfere in court affairs. Only when Chengen ran into difficulties would he come forward to resolve them. Many ministers proposed Princess Changning's marriage, thinking that the royal family's face was important and that they should find a suitable son-in-law. But Princess Changning did not marry at all. As time passed, no one mentioned her marriage anymore. He Chuan's cultivation had also improved a lot, and he had already reached Saint Cultivator's seventh stage. He had basically signed in every special place in the Imperial Palace. A Saint Cultivator could maintain his appearance. After so many years, He Chuan still looked like he was twenty years old. Under He Chuan's guidance and medicinal pills, Princess Changning had already become a Xientian ninth stage expert. She was only one step away from becoming a saint cultivator. He had stayed in the imperial palace long enough, and suddenly had a yearning for life outside. He didn't know if it was because he had stayed in the library long enough. Or perhaps he was tired of it. All in all, He Chuan wanted to go outside the imperial palace and see the great rivers and mountains of the central plains. Perhaps he could improve his current cultivation. It wasn't good for people to live too comfortably. Master, take this. Princess Changning held the autumn water sword in her hand and suddenly launched a sneak attack on He Chuan from behind. He Chuan didn't even turn his head. He stretched out two fingers, and the autumn water sword was obediently clamped as if it was being pulled. No matter how much strength Princess Changning exerted, the sword did not budge an inch. Master is too powerful. I'm no match for you. After a few years of practice, Princess Changning no longer addressed him as little eunuch he. Instead, she addressed him as master. He Chuan did not care about this. It was just a form of address. She could call him whatever she wanted. When are we going to explore the martial arts world? What's the point of being cooped up in the palace all the time? Changning withdrew the autumn water sword. She was in the prime of her life and yearned for the outside world very much. The inner courtyard of the Imperial Palace was too boring. With your mediocre martial arts level, you still want to explore the pugilistic world. Speaking of which, you're not afraid of being laughed at all. Chapter, 147 No matter how hard Princess Changning tried to persuade him, He Chuan refused. While the two were in a stalemate, a palace maid came to report that the emperor was in critical condition and wanted to see Changning for the last time. After the palace maid left, Princess Changning suddenly wanted to kneel down. As her personal teacher, it was not a problem for Princess Changning to kneel down. However, He Chuan did not like to kneel down so easily, not to mention that the other party was a princess. He quickly released his true energy to prevent Princess Changning from kneeling down. Life and death are determined by fate, and wealth and honor are determined by heaven. Life and death are normal things. Princess, you need to be more open-minded, He Chuan advised. But I can't bear to part with Emperor Father. I beg Master to think of a way. Princess Changning still did not give up. She hoped that Zhou Shiming could live a few more years. He Chuan could only express his helplessness in this regard. Seeing that he was unmoved, Changning stopped asking for help. 
Instead, she worked even harder every day, wishing that she could immediately break through to become a saint cultivator. This was because this was the only way to save Emperor Father's life. It was as if she had grown mature in one night. In the Emperor's bedroom. The Emperor of the Great Zhou, Zhou Shiming, lay weakly on his sickbed. Compared to five years ago, he was now like an old man on the verge of death. The imperial physician had already left, and other than the two Xientian experts guarding outside the room, there was no one else. He Chuan quietly avoided everyone and arrived before the bed. Your Majesty. His voice was like magic, and the already powerless Zhou Shimin slowly opened his eyes. Little Chuan Zi. Zhou Shiming's voice was a little harsh, and it was extremely hoarse. A few experts outside heard the commotion in the bedroom and wanted to go in to check, but they found that their bodies could not move at all. This made them extremely surprised. I heard that His Majesty is unwell, so I specially came to take a look. He Chuan's voice was very calm. It did not matter even if he revealed his identity. In any case, he was prepared to go around and see the local customs. Before coming here, he had already thought of the current situation. The first time I asked you to help me find a book, I knew that you were not an ordinary person. Zhou Shiming revealed a smile. Great Zhou had an expert overseeing it, so there would be no worries in the future. I only want to cultivate in peace, and I do not want to care about the disturbances. That is why I did not tell His Majesty the truth. He Chuan placed his hand on Zhou Shiming's wrist and examined the situation. I understand that an expert like you has no interest in power or money. Zhou Shiming felt a warm current flowing through his limbs and bones. It seems that Your Majesty is a wise ruler and did not neglect the court because of his health. This minister feel that it is the good fortune of the people of the Zhou dynasty to have you live for a few more years. He Chuan took out the pill that the system had rewarded and wrapped it with true energy, he sent them into Zhou Shiming's mouth. I have let down the world, but I have let down my family. I have not been able to accompany them properly. Chengen and Changning grew up under your care. I only hope that after I leave, you can help Chengen more, and I will be satisfied. When Zhou Shiming sent his children to the library, he had seen that He Chuan was different from the rest. Furthermore, Changning's martial arts were progressing rapidly, and she did not know how to hide. The experts around him had already realized that something was wrong. However, he had pretended not to see it. He Chuan wanted peace and quiet, and he wanted to stay in the library. As the emperor, he was satisfied. He wanted to keep this expert for the great Zhou dynasty. It is still better for your majesty to personally teach your highness the crown prince. I do not understand the path of becoming an emperor at all. Teaching him martial arts was all right, but He Chuan did not want to care about other things. He was about to leave the imperial palace, so he didn't have the time to supervise Crown Prince Chengen. As soon as he finished speaking, the medicinal effect in Zhou Shiming's stomach began to take effect, and a powerful life force began to emanate from his body. His pale face gradually flushed red, and he became energetic. It was impossible to see any signs of illness. This pill could restore life force and increase one's lifespan by eight years. For saint cultivators, a mere eight years of lifespan was completely useless, so He Chuan had always kept the pill on his body. He did not expect it to come in handy. Zhou Shiming felt his entire body filled with energy, and his previously dispirited appearance was swept away. He even found it hard to believe, because even if He Chuan was a half-step saint cultivator, he would not be able to extend his life. He did not expect that a pill could bring back the dead. It was simply unbelievable. He had never heard of such a thing before. I'm fine now. Zhou Shiming asked. It can add about eight years to your life. I'm planning to travel around the Central Plains recently, and I've come to ask for your majesty's resignation, He Chuan said. Since the emperor was fine now, Princess Changning didn't need to be sad. Crown Prince Chengen could grow under his protection. He could be considered to have cleared his mind, and he could go out and take a walk in peace. These words made Zhou Shiming, who was still ecstatic, calm down. A half-step saint cultivator was going to leave. What if something went wrong in the great Zhou dynasty? Young eunuch He, do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? Feel free to bring it up. 
I will do my best to satisfy you. Zhou Shiming had to keep this expert here, so he immediately lowered his stance. Your Majesty, what's the point? It's already fate for the ruler and the subject to meet. Besides, I'm just going out for a tour. Who knows when? I might return to the library. He Chuan would not change his mind just because of someone's request. If it weren't for Princess Changning being so heartbroken, he definitely wouldn't have meddled in other people's business. He wasn't interested in being 9,000 years old. Zhou Shimin could hear He Chuan's determination. Whether a half step saint cultivator left or stayed, it wasn't something he could control. I understand now. It might not be convenient for little eunuch he to go out. If you're willing to bring a palace maid or eunuch, you can choose as you like. Since he could no longer keep him, he might as well give him a favor. At the very least, He Chuan could not loathe the imperial court. Perhaps he would be bored after a round of sightseeing and might even return to the imperial palace. As a qualified emperor, he had to know how to maximize the benefits. Forcing him to stay would only cause dissatisfaction. That's fine. He Chuan thought about it for a moment. It was indeed inconvenient to go out. If he brought someone with him, at least he would not have to do the cooking and washing. After He Chuan finished speaking, he had already disappeared from the spot. Empress Qin Lihua arrived and personally carried the ginseng soup with a worried expression. This was something that she had to do every day. Zhou Shiming didn't have much time left. There wasn't much that she could do. She pushed open the bedroom door. Crash! The ginseng soup in her hand wasn't held properly. It fell to the ground and shattered into pieces. Your Majesty! Qin Lihua shouted in surprise. Was I so scary that the Empress was so scared and even threw away the soup? Zhou Shiming said with a memorial in his hand. I was too happy. Your Majesty is really fine now. Qin Lihua immediately went forward to hold Zhou Shiming's palm and put it on her face to feel the warmth. Zhou Shiming briefly told her about He Chuan's treatment. He also did not hide the fact that he was about to leave. I didn't expect little eunuch He to be a mysterious expert. It seems that it was a wise choice for Ning'e to become his disciple, Qin Lihua said. She had been very opposed to this matter before, but now it seemed that she was short-sighted. Chapter, 148 Qin Lihua was very happy that Zhou Shiming's body could recover. She immediately made some nourishing supper from the kitchen and sent it over. The news of Zhou Shiming's recovery quickly spread throughout the imperial palace, and everyone was pleasantly surprised. It's a pity that little eunuch he has to leave temporarily. Otherwise, with a half-step saint cultivator overseeing things, the seven great sects would definitely not dare to invade, Qin Lihua said with great pity. Everyone knew very clearly what a half-step saint cultivator meant to the great Zhou dynasty. This is already the best result. The eight great clan kings have all been captured, and the seven great sects have temporarily closed their mountain gates. For the time being, the imperial court will not have any worries. Moreover, don't forget that Ning'e is little eunuch He's disciple. Zhou Shiming reminded. Hiss. Qin Lihua sucked in a breath of cold air. She had almost forgotten about this. As the disciple of a half-step saint cultivator, her future achievements would definitely not be bad, and she would even have the status of master and disciple. Presumably, when she encountered difficulties, He Chuan would not just stand by and watch. Your majesty is more thoughtful. I can't see that far ahead. If Princess Changning had failed to acknowledge him as her master because of her objection back then, wouldn't she regret it to death? You don't have to blame yourself. If I had not come into contact with Eunuch He, I would have made the same decision, Zhou Shiming consoled. When he heard that Zhou Shiming was fine, Crown Prince Chengen rushed over from the Eastern Palace. It's great that Emperor Father is fine. Crown Prince Chengen shed tears of excitement. He was not ready to be emperor yet. It was not that easy to be an emperor. There were too many things to face. When the emperor saw that Zhou Shiming was fine, he felt a weight lift off his heart. A faint sense of disappointment was quickly suppressed. The news that the emperor's condition had suddenly improved spread like wings. 
When the officials saw Zhou Shiming personally preside over the morning court, they were also in disbelief. He did not hide the fact that there were many soldiers. Zhou Shiming had secretly met many civil and military officials, hoping that they could help Crown Prince Chang'an take care of the country. A while ago, the Crown Prince had taken over the morning court. At this moment, Zhou Shiming was full of vigor and vitality. He did not look like he was seriously ill. Some were happy while others were sad. A portion of the officials were disappointed when they saw that Zhou Shiming was fine. This was because the officials of the Crown Prince's party were destined not to be placed in important positions for the time being. As for how the Emperor's health had improved, apart from certain people, no one knew. Knowing that He Chuan liked peace and quiet, Zhou Shimin purposely suppressed the news. Bah! What is this? He doesn't even know the rules of the martial arts palace. A few more experienced palace maids in yellow were pushing a thin and weak palace maid in green. I've only been here for two days and don't know the rules, the thin and weak palace maid said with an aggrieved face while holding a comb in her hand. Oh, you still dare to play dumb. Don't you know to give some money? The yellow-clothed palace maid slapped the thin and weak green-clothed palace maid's nest hair away and stepped on it with force. I don't have money. It's my meal. The thin and weak green-clothed palace maid left two lines of tears. She had just been sold to the palace by her family. She had no money on her and had been eating steamed cornbread all day. She had thought that she would be better off if she was assigned to the martial arts practice palace, but who knew that it would become even worse? Every time the meat was snatched away by the experienced palace maids in yellow clothes, she could only drink vegetable soup and nibble on her steamed cornbread. It was a problem to eat her fill every day, not to mention practicing martial arts. In the future, you will clean the latrines in the imperial palace. If you don't clean them properly, don't even think about eating. No matter where they were, there would always be such small groups. They bullied the weak and feared the strong. They specialized in bullying newbies. Eunuch He, the emperor has issued an order. You can choose whoever you want. When the yellow-clothed palace maids saw the steward, the blue-robed old eunuch, come over, they quickly lowered their heads and stood in a row. At the same time, they were very curious. The eunuchs and stewards here were respectful to a grey-robed eunuch. It was really a little ridiculous. The blue-robed old eunuch had a flattering smile on his face. It was not surprising that the library pavilion had chosen eunuchs. The main point was that the other party had chosen palace maids, which were approved by the emperor. It was simply out of this world. Who asked him to be a favored person? Not only did the emperor look at him differently, even the crown prince and eldest princess liked to go to the library pavilion. If nothing unexpected happened, this young eunuch he would definitely be a prevalent person in the palace in the future. It was definitely not wrong to build a good relationship with him. Before he entered the martial arts practice palace, He Chuan had already heard the movements inside. He carefully observed the thin and weak palace maid in green and discovered that the palace maid was a young seedling who practiced martial arts. Moreover, the encounter was very similar to his own. She was also sold into the palace by his family. She had no power, no backing, no money, and was bullied every day. Fortunately, he was a reincarnated person and had the system by his side. But this thin and weak palace maid in green did not have it. Perhaps the same experience had touched his heart, or perhaps he did not want to bury her potential as a cultivator, He Chuan extended his hand and pointed. It's her. Come with me to the library. Hurry up and come over to greet little eunuch He. What are you waiting for? The blue-robed old eunuch hurriedly waved at the thin and weak green-clothed palace maid. The thin and weak green-clothed palace maid did not know what was going on, but the blue-robed old eunuch was in charge here, so she could not disobey him. Greetings, young eunuch He. Pack your things and follow me to the library. He Chuan said softly with his hands behind his back. I have nothing. The thin and weak palace maid shook her head. She slept on a straw mat at night, and the yellow-robed palace maid snatched away all the bedding. Send a set of bedding to the library, and two sets of clothes to change into. He Chuan turned and left, and the thin and weak palace maid quickly followed. 
Don't worry, young eunuch he. I'll send it over later. The blue-robed old eunuch sent He Chuan away with a smile. He turned around and began to reprimand the yellow-robed palace maids. Perhaps this was the true situation in the palace. Cold and cruel. Without strength and status, there would never be a day when they could make a name for themselves. What's your name? He Chuan asked. Kai Lian, the thin and weak palace maid said softly. She looked at He Chuan curiously. The grey-robed eunuch and the green-robed palace maid were the lowest servants in the palace. She didn't know how this grey-robed eunuch was able to make the managing eunuchs lower themselves. Moreover, she heard that the library pavilion only assigned eunuchs and there was no precedent for palace maids to go there. Do more work in the library pavilion and speak less. You can read the books on the outer room. You can't flip through the books in the inner room and you can't go to the forbidden area at the back of the mountain. Do you understand? He Chuan suddenly recalled eunuch Chui from back then, he had taught him the same lesson back then. I understand. Kai Lian quickly said respectfully. At least He Chuan was pleasant when he spoke, and they got along very well. He didn't look overbearing, nor did he scold or beat her up. It was hundreds of times better than in the martial arts palace. Growl. Her stomach started to growl at an inappropriate time. Your room is the outermost room. The library must be cleaned thoroughly. No matter what you see, you must keep it in your heart. There's food in the dining hall in front, don't waste it. After He Chuan finished his instructions, he stopped caring about her, they would stay together for a long time, so he decided to observe her temperament first. Chapter, 149 The little palace maid, Kai Lian, was very diligent. She cleaned the library and arranged the books in an orderly manner every day. She felt delighted to be able to eat her fill and wear warm clothes. And there was meat for every meal. Thus, she worked even harder. He Chuan, who was happy to be free, immersed himself in cultivation every day. However, Crown Prince Chengen had been coming more frequently these days. He would always bring it up intentionally or unintentionally, wanting to become a disciple like Princess Changning. How could this little bit of thought be hidden from He Chuan? This crown prince wanted to pave the way for the future. His Highness the Crown Prince needs to help His Majesty deal with court affairs, and you also need to learn how to govern the country. Your accomplishments in martial arts are destined to be not high. It's only good enough to strengthen your body. Crown Prince Chengen was rejected once again, so he did not continue to request. After playing a game of Go, he left with his servants. He Chuan stood in the courtyard, looking at the falling leaves flying in the sky. He could not help but sigh in his heart. Time passed quickly. People change with time. Back then, Crown Prince Chengen was carefree and only knew how to follow him to practice martial arts. But now, he already knew how to use tactics. Changning wanted to use martial arts to change his fate and break free from the royal family's shackles. She was unwilling to marry. Everyone had their own thoughts. You've been in the library for so long. Have you been used to it? He Chuan slowly stretched out his hand and caught a falling leaf just right. Kai Lian's martial arts was not high, only Ho Tian third stage. She could not see the subtlety of his technique. Other than being a little cold in the library, it's much better than working in other places. As long as she finished the cleaning work every day, no one would bother her, and there would be no bullying. What else could she not be satisfied with? Occasionally, Kai Lian would practice martial arts. She also had a dream to be a martial arts cultivator in her heart. To become a heroine who punished evil, promoted good, and stole from the rich to help the poor. If you have the chance to go outside, would you be willing? He Chuan asked. He had signed in at almost every corner of the palace. It was time to go out and see the outside world. See the outside world? Kai Lian had never thought about it. Because she had been a poor child since she was young, she had to help her family with farm work every day. However, she still could not ease the burden on her family, so she was sent to the palace to work. She had heard the more experienced palace maids talk about it. The palace maids were all women from the families of the current criminals or female criminals. There were also captives captured from other countries. 
because their status was relatively low, they would not resist being recruited as palace maids. Except for these people, most of them were like Kai Lian, the daughters of the poor people. They could not afford to raise children, so they sent their girls to the palace to work, so they could earn a living. They lost their freedom for life. As long as they entered the palace, the palace maids would be born to be a member of the royal family, and die to be a ghost of the royal family. They were surrounded by the tall palace wall every day and did not have any contact with the outside world. Similarly, they were not allowed to go out to visit their relatives. Even on a big day of celebration, they needed the permission of their master before they could leave the palace for a moment. A small number of palace maids were taken in by the emperor because of their beauty and were taken into the harem. However, because of their low status, they often did not end up well. Dying of old age in the palace was their final fate. Of course, I want to, but I can't. Kai Lien knew the current situation. If there were no accidents, she would work in the library pavilion for the rest of her life. He Chuan did not say anything. During this period of time, he had observed Kai Lien. She was hardworking and did not have any hidden thoughts. This made him more satisfied, and in the end, he decided to take her out to travel. Little Yuna Qi. Chunning appeared on time. Over the years, she had been getting closer and closer to breaking through to the half-step saint cultivator realm, and she could take on the responsibility of protecting the Zhou dynasty. However, she lacked actual combat experience. He Chuan could rest assured after leaving. Your Highness, do not cultivate from today onwards. First, read the outer pavilion books daily to increase your knowledge. It would be best if you read more meditation books. He waved his hand, indicating that he should stop cultivating first. This made Chang somewhat puzzled. She was just one step away from becoming the saint cultivator that everyone envied. Why should she stop? Wouldn't it be better just to get ready? I got it. Chang was somewhat unwilling. Breaking through to become a saint cultivator is extremely dangerous. If one state of mind can't keep up, it's easy for one to go mad. When that time comes, it would be difficult for even the great Luo Golden Immortal to save you. Back then, I waited for three whole years. He Chuan earnestly instructed. Hearing this, Chang stuck out her tongue in embarrassment. Only then did she realize that she was too impatient. Kai Lien, who was not far away, was so shocked that she could not close her mouth. She thought that she had just heard an illusion. Her Highness the Eldest Princess, had wanted to break through to become a saint cultivator. Was this a joke? When she had entered the martial arts palace, the old eunuch she had taught had once said that breaking through to be saint cultivators was as difficult as ascending to the heavens. Back then, 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun was only a half-step saint cultivator. But he was already invincible in the world, suppressing the seven great sects and making them unable to raise their heads. Now, the two people in front of him were actually talking about breaking through to the saint cultivator realm. And it sounds effortless. At least, it was easier than breaking through to the innate realm. However, Kai Lien remembered He Chuan's teachings. Do more things and speak less. Whatever she heard would rot in her stomach. I will protect you after you break through, then leave, He Chuan looked at this disciple who was also his master and friend, and said gently. What? What does master mean? Changning was initially very happy, but when she heard the word leave, her heart instantly sank to the bottom of the valley. The world is so big just guarding the inner courtyard of the imperial palace is like looking at the sky from a well. He Chuan had recently flipped through many books in the inner room. With his current strength, no one would be able to control him, even if he flipped through the imperial secret manual. Records of the Secret History Three hundred years ago, the White Lotus Saint cult was wreaking havoc in the Central Plains. The cult master, Zhu Wutian, was invincible with his evil techniques. The masters of the Central Plains were like ants in front of him. Seeing this situation, the seven great sects couldn't sit still and sent out several half-step saint cultivators. They thought they could defeat the cult master, Zhu Wutian, but they didn't expect that he was already a saint cultivator. Facing the attacks of the seven great sects half-step saint cultivators, he killed all of them. 
Seeing that Zhu Wutian was going to unify the martial arts world of the Central Plains, the hidden experts of the sex took action, and the heavily injured Zhu Wutian temporarily withdrew from the Central Plains. Moreover, there were many hidden places that He Chuan wanted to know about. From this, it could be seen that the outside world was full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. A half step saint cultivator was not enough. A saint cultivator was just the beginning. I want to go too. Chengning had long wanted to explore the martial art world, and this one an excellent opportunity. The great Zhou dynasty needs you to take charge, and as the eldest princess of the imperial family, his majesty and the empress will not agree. He Chuan directly refused. What a joke. It was not easy to go out and have some peace, so how could he bring Princess Chengning along? Moreover, a saint cultivator was not enough in front of absolute strength so he definitely could not bring her along. No matter how Princess Chongming begged, He Chuan was determined not to change his mind. After interacting with each other for many years, both master and disciple knew each other's temperament. The things He Chuan decided would basically not change. Chongming kept her head down and followed his instructions. She went to the library to select books to improve her state of mind. Chapter 150 the scene just now once again refreshed Kai Lien's worldview. No wonder the eunuch in charge still had to treat little eunuch he with respect. So he was so strong. Combined with the trip to the palace earlier, Kai Lien could not help but feel a trace of anticipation in her heart. If you want to travel with me, how can you do it without strength? After He Chuan finished speaking, he wrapped his true energy around the sunflower Bible and two bottles of pills and slowly flew into Kai Lien's hands. The Sunflower Bible could not be cultivated by men, so there should not be any problems with women. As for the pills of Ho Tian level, he would sometimes use them to feed the koi fish in the pond, it would be useless to keep them. Bang bang! Kai Lian hurriedly knelt down and kowtowed several times to He Chuan's back. Receiving the favor of a saint cultivator was something that she did not dare to dream of. Don't tell anyone. He Chuan did not turn back and his figure had already disappeared. Kai Lien returned to her resting room and opened the first page of the Sunflower Bible with a trembling hand. She was deeply attracted by the contents. He Chuan sat in the pavilion and threw a handful of fish food into the pond. Your medicinal pills have been taken by the little palace maid to cultivate, so you won't be able to eat them in the future. I came to see you one last time, and the next time we meet, it might be your descendants. He specially came over to bid farewell to this group of fish. Every night when it was quiet, He Chuan would sit here and chat with the fish, speaking from the bottom of his heart. The fish did not understand so much, nor did they understand human language. Instead, it could calm his heart. As for the others, they might never hear He Chuan's heartfelt words, because he was destined to be a traveler in this world. Every koi was at least two meters long, and this was also thanks to the feeding of pills. Young eunuch He, are you here to personally feed the fish again? The blue-robed eunuch who was in charge of watching the koi walked over and said respectfully. Before He Chuan came to feed the fish, this group of koi was only half a palm long. After He Chuan fed them, they had grown at an astonishing speed. The blue-robed eunuch who was in charge of the koi thought that there was some secret. He had never heard of it before. I'll have to trouble eunuch Yang to take care of it in the future. I might not be able to come over for a period of time. He Chuan stood up and looked at the surrounding plants. He felt a faint reluctance to part with them. He had lived in the imperial palace for so long, especially in the library and the koi fish pond. Eunuch Yang thought that He Chuan was going home to visit his family. After all, he was the crown prince and the eldest princess' favorite person. It was easy for him to go back. Don't worry, little eunuch he. I promise to raise them until they are white and fat. He Chuan nodded. He took one last look at the koi fish in the pond and walked out. In the imperial study. When Zhou Shiming became the emperor, he came here most often. After the morning court session, as the emperor, he had to deal with the memorials that were presented to him. He had to personally see the livelihood of the people everywhere. The space rippled and He Chuan's figure seemed to appear out of thin air. Young eunuch He, this is your first time coming to the imperial study. 
Take a seat. Zhou Shiming was shocked. When he saw that it was He Chuan, a smile immediately appeared on his face. I have nothing better to do in the library. I want to play Go with His Majesty. He Chuan slowly sat opposite Zhou Shiming and said calmly. As for the imperial study, he had been there countless times. He had even gone up to the beam and signed in to receive many good things. I won't hide it from young eunuch he. I have wanted to play go with you for a long time. That girl, Chiming always cheats, and Cheng In did not give his all. Zhou Shiming could not help but sigh. Actually, the change in Crown Prince's Cheng In was a good thing. This was the way of a ruler, but he couldn't enjoy himself every time he played go. He Chuan slowly placed the black piece on the chessboard, not making a single sound. Although Zhou Shiming's go skills were not bad, he was not a match for He Chuan. In the middle of the game, he was already showing signs of weakness, unable to turn the tables. Yuniki's go skills are outstanding. I'm not a match for you, but I didn't enjoy myself as much as I imagined. Zhou Shiming generously admitted that he had lost. Because his majesty doesn't like the feeling of losing. It's just like life. There will always be a time for victory and defeat. There will always be fireworks. No one can guarantee a constant victory, including me, He Chuan said with a smile. So, little eunuch he has decided to leave the palace? Zhou Shiming could hear the meaning of his words. I'm sure His Majesty knows that this world isn't simple. Not only are there reclusive sects, but there are also even legendary gods and demons. I'm very interested. He Chuan had flipped through a book called Anecdotes of Chizhou, there were records of gods and demons in it. However, he definitely needed to see the specific situation personally because he knew that the gods and demons of this world only had supernatural powers. There were some ignorant people who passed it from mouth to mouth, describing unknown things as gods and demons. Those with supernatural powers were definitely very powerful, and they also existed in a certain place. There was no doubt about this. I have also read about gods and demons, but it is very likely to be something made up. I also want to know what it looks like. At that time, eunuch he and I had tried to describe it, I also want to know the wonders of the world in my lifetime. Zhou Shiming hoped that He Chuan would stay. Your Majesty, don't worry too much. I will wait until Chiming breaks through to become a saint cultivator before leaving. He Chuan came to see Zhou Shiming to say a simple farewell. Both of them knew what was going on in their hearts, but they had never mentioned it. The moon had its ups and downs, and people too had their ups and downs. Perhaps they would meet again one day, so he did not feel the slightest ripple in his heart. Young eunuch he means. Chang Changning will become a saint cultivator. Zhou Shiming's eyes widened in disbelief. He was even more shocked than when he knew He Chuan's identity. If Changning successfully became a saint cultivator, she would be able to protect the great Zhou dynasty for a long time. What a great thing! What was even more shocking was that Changning's master had nurtured a saint cultivator. Just how strong was he? That is indeed the case. Even if I leave, the great Zhou dynasty will remain stable. The crown prince is obsessed with politics, and it will be difficult for him to make any progress in his cultivation. He Chuan naturally would not be biased. However, if one made different choices, the result would be different. Zhou Shiming nodded his head. Chingen had chosen to become a qualified emperor, so he could not continue to study martial arts. One could not have both fish and bears paws, and everyone knew the reason. Please accept my bow. Zhou Shiming stood up, his left hand resting on his right hand as he bowed. As the ruler of a country, to be able to lower his status and bow to a eunuch was enough to show his wisdom. If it weren't for He Chuan, Zhou Shimin would have died a few years ago and the great Zhou dynasty would have collapsed. And now, he had nurtured a martial saint for the great Zhou dynasty. He Chuan deserves this bow. It's nothing. I just don't want people to disturb my peaceful life. He Chuan helped Zhou Shimin up. This emperor of the great Zhou dynasty was indeed extraordinary. He was willing to bow to him. If I have the chance, I will return and tell His Majesty what I have seen and heard. He Chuan had just finished speaking when he disappeared. It was as if everything had just been a dream. 
However, Zhou Shimin, who was standing in the same spot, knew that it was not a dream. Pass down my orders. Call all the ministers to the imperial study. Hearing the emperor's orders, the experts within the imperial study began to move. Chapter 151 What? Make the grey-robed eunuch of the library as the 9,000-year-old and temporarily cancel Changning's marriage. A few important officials stood rooted to the ground. Zhou Shimin had specially called them into the imperial study to announce such a ridiculous matter. Could it be that the emperor had suffered from the side effects of being poisoned? Otherwise, he would not have given such an order. They would definitely not agree. Back then, the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun did a great service for the great Zhou dynasty. Moreover, the princess marriage is a matter of the royal family's face. The emperor needs to consider this carefully. Fang Yuanqing hurriedly went forward to dissuade him. If this were to spread, wouldn't the great Zhou dynasty become a laughing stock? The prime minister is right. His Majesty, this matter cannot be trifled with. That's right. Princess Changning is already come of age. She should find a prince consort. There were a few officials waiting to introduce their sons to Princess Changning, and at the same time, get a status as a relative of the emperor. Now that Zhou Shiming wanted to block the road, how could they agree? Furthermore, the 9,000 years old Wei Jingchun was a person who had once controlled the world. What ability did the young eunuch of the library have? They had made up their minds. No matter what the emperor said, they could not agree. Zhou Shiming had originally wanted to follow Empress Qin Lihua's wishes and find a good husband to marry Princess Changning out. But plans could not keep up with the rapid changes. Princess Changning was about to break through to become a saint cultivator. He definitely could not send the saint cultivator out. I know all of your plans, but Ningyur has already become a half-step saint cultivator, so the marriage is temporarily cancelled. He Chuan had already left, and he stayed in the library every day, so very few people had seen him. As the emperor, Zhou Shimin naturally had to consider the country. Princess Changning was a half-step saint cultivator. The ministers were even more surprised than Zhou Shimin. The sudden appearance of 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun, they could still accept it. This news was really hard for everyone to digest, but Zhou Shimin definitely would not lie to them on such a matter. Fang Yuanqing suddenly had an idea, combining it with the previous rebellion of the eight vassal kings. Could it be that the grey-robed eunuch in the library was the mysterious expert from back then? Otherwise, why would Zhou Shimin give him the title of 9,000 years old? As for why Princess Changning could become a half-step saint cultivator, he owed it to the countless treasures in the royal palace treasury, and Princess Changning's high talent. Because he had become a eunuch, Qin Lihua felt that it was not very good to spread the news, so he kept it a secret. In addition, Princess Changning and He Chuan kept their mouths shut, so not many people knew. Since His Majesty has already made a decision, we have no objections, Fang Yuanqing said. Only then did the other officials react. They hurriedly said, His Majesty is wise, while secretly cursing Fang Yuanqing for being an old fox. He Chuan did not care about the reward of the 9,000 years old title, because Zhou Shimin was a very good person. He directly said that he was the new 9,000 years old and did not mention his name. Other than Empress Qin Lihua, Crown Prince Chengen, Princess Changning, and a few other important officials, no one else knew. Kai Lian held a golden brocade robe embroidered with lotus flowers and koi. She was still a little confused. This eunuch was too amazing. He actually became the emperor's 9,000 years old. He Chuan lay in the wooden barrel, thinking about the route he should take. A small hand reached out to his back and gently helped him rub his back. Compared to Jiang Wenyue and Su Wan, Kai Lian's thoughts were very simple. She had no other thoughts in her mind. The key point was that although He Chuan was handsome, he was still an incomplete person. She could not feel anything in her heart. Liener, how's your cultivation going recently? He Chuan asked with his eyes closed. I still don't understand some parts of it, but I can see the power of the Sunflower Bible. I can't repay Yuknach for your kindness. Kai Lien's had tears in her eyes. Many people envied her for being able to stay by He Chuan's side. 
Even the palace maids in yellow robes in the past were all flattering Kai Lian when they met her. She didn't even dare to speak loudly. Kai Lan didn't use her power to bully others and let bygones be bygones. This was also what He Chuan liked about her. She was kind hearted and would take good care of injured small animals. Why are you crying for? People who practice martial arts must have a firm mind. If some small things can move you. Once you encounter danger, you will be scared out of your wits, He Chuan said. Kai Lian was good in all aspects, but her heart was a little soft. She would definitely be at a disadvantage if she walked the martial arts world. In the future, she had to be taught well and understand the evil of the human heart. Kai Lian hurriedly wiped her tears and continued to help He Chuan take a bath. Her small hand slid down her chest. This. As a palace maid, she naturally knew what it signified. The little eunuch he in front of her was actually fake. If this news were to spread, it would definitely cause a huge wave. There are some things that can be changed on the path of martial arts. There's no need to make a fuss. With He Chuan's current strength, he did not fear any danger at all. Even if this matter were to spread, Zhou Shiming would only think of ways to suppress it. He might even confer him the title of duke and would not pursue any responsibility. Lienner doesn't know anything. Lienner only knows that little eunuch he is my benefactor. You truly treat me well. Kai Lien's pretty face was flushed red as she continued to help He Chuan wash his body. You're a little smart. He Chuan smiled slightly. After taking a shower, under Kai Lien's service, He Chuan wore a golden brocade robe and looked completely new. His facial features were delicate and pretty. His head of black and thick hair was unbound and draped behind his back. It was smooth and soft like top quality silk. Under the delicate and feminine brow, a pair of soul stirring deep eyes were filled with affection. If one was not careful, one would fall for it. The corners of his eyes were slightly raised, adding to his flirtatious charm. Little eunuch, he is really beautiful, Kai Lien praised sincerely. Today was Changning's breakthrough day. Whether it was her state of mind or her strength, she could no longer suppress it. If she did not break through, it would not be of any benefit to her. He Chuan had set up the array. After all, breaking through to become a saint cultivator was very dangerous, so he had to be fully prepared. With him personally overseeing it, she would be more confident. He was not stingy with the pills for the breakthrough. He took them all out for Princess Changning to use. Emperor Zhou Shiming, Empress Qin Lihua, and Crown Prince Chengen were all waiting anxiously outside. Kai Lien was even more careful in serving them. She had never seen so many important figures in her life. Although she followed He Chuan, she was still inferior in her bones. She was unable to achieve equality in her heart. Ning'e should succeed, right? Qin Lihua held Zhou Shiming's hand and said worriedly. The 9,000 years old is a saint cultivator. There shouldn't be any accidents with him as a protector. Zhou Shiming was not confident. However, as an emperor, he could not reveal a worried expression. Crown Prince Chengen clenched his fists nervously. If Princess Changning succeeded in breaking through, he would have the most benefits. The two were dragon and phoenix twins of the same mother, and they were the closest to each other. If something happened, Changning would definitely not sit idly by. In the secret room where the array was set up, Princess Changning sat cross-legged and swallowed the pill with a determined gaze. Beside her, He Chuan activated his divine eye and observed Princess Changning's situation. If anything went wrong, he would immediately make a move. It was obviously unnecessary to worry. With all the preparations, the breakthrough went exceptionally smoothly. Chapter 152 Princess Changning's eyes shot out a ray of divine light, and there were three golden flowers on top of her head. Another saint cultivator had been born. No one knew what the hidden geniuses of the sex were like, but in the history of the great Zhou dynasty, becoming a saint cultivator in twenty years was not recorded yet. Congratulations to Her Highness the Eldest Princess for becoming a saint cultivator. The great Zhou dynasty will definitely prosper along with you. He Chuan removed the array. Of course, He Chuan could not be included. 
With the system support, it would not be an exaggeration to say that he had been able to flatten the entire journey. It's still because of Master's help. Otherwise, it would have been difficult for me to even become a Xientian ninth stage expert. Princess Changning was not very happy. Her success in breaking through meant He Chuan was going to leave, and feelings of reluctance grew in her heart. Her request to explore the pugilistic world was mercilessly rejected by her emperor father and empress mother. As a princess of the royal family, how could she run around? After He Chuan left, someone had to be in charge of the capital. Only then would they be able to intimidate the younger generation. Aren't you happy that you've broken through to become a saint cultivator? He Chuan asked. Master is about to leave the capital, but he's not willing to bring me along. Princess Changning felt wronged. She did not have the appearance of a saint cultivator at all. Perhaps this was her true side. After all, she was still a twenty-year-old girl and was at the age of innocence. Being born into the royal family made her more mature and knowledgeable. Saints cultivators can live much longer. Are you afraid that we won't be able to reunite? His Majesty and the Empress are probably anxious from waiting. He Chuan patted Princess Changning on the shoulder. When Zhou Shiming and the others saw Princess Changning appear, they quickly surrounded her and asked all sorts of questions. Now that a saint cultivator had appeared, they felt much more at ease. What exactly was the martial arts world like? As long as there were people, there would be grudges. If there were grudges, there would be the world of martial arts. People were the world of martial arts. He Chuan did not inform anyone. He brought along Kai Lien, who was carrying a backpack. The two avoided all the guards and stepped out of the palace gates. Counting back to the time when he went to the Allied army camp, this was his first real trip outside the palace. The scene of him cleaning and cultivating in the library was still vivid in his mind, as if it had happened yesterday. Young eunuch he, you can't bear to leave. Kai Lien asked curiously when she saw him looking back at the imperial palace. She was sixteen years old, and it was at the time to yearn for beautiful things. She was very happy to be able to leave the main gate of the imperial palace. After leaving the capital, there won't be any peaceful days. When you go out, just call me young master, He Chuan said with a wave of his hand. Got it, young master, Kai Lian said. Steamed buns, freshly cooked steamed buns. Donkey burger. Fresh pears. The capital under the emperor's feet was livelier than other places, and there was an endless stream of people coming and going. It was also the first time He Chuan had seen such a scene, and he instantly felt that it was a wise decision to go out for a walk. Perhaps signing in at all the places in the country would allow him to reach a higher level and touch a realm other than the saint cultivator realm. He had thought that it would be peaceful before, but now that he was outside the imperial palace, his mood became even more relaxed. There was always a gain and a loss. This was exactly what he had said. Looking at the myriad of things in the world, the two of them did not walk very quickly. It was only when night fell that they arrived at the outskirts of the capital. With his strength, it did not matter if he was outside in the cold wind, but Kai Lien was not. The little girl was shivering, and she still insisted on not causing trouble for He Chuan, so she made a firm declaration. It's a bit cold in late autumn. We'll stay at the inn in front tonight. He Chuan walked forward. Even in the suburbs, the inn was almost full. There was only one upper room left. He Chuan didn't mind. He was just meditating and cultivating anyway, so he didn't need to sleep. Two distinguished guests, what a coincidence. Our shop just invited a zither player yesterday, and he will perform on the stage for the first time tonight, the shop assistant introduced. The inn even invited the zither player to perform. He Chuan was a little surprised. Logically speaking, the inn should not need to do such a thing. Could it be that this was a romantic place? It did not seem like it. Esteemed guests, you may not know this, but business in the capital is difficult and there is fierce competition. Our shopkeeper has no choice but to attract some literati and refined scholars. We have to find another way. The shop assistant sighed, even business in the outskirts of the capital city was so difficult. One could imagine the situation in the capital city. He Chuan nodded to show that he understood. 
he did not care. He was just curious. Kai Lien neatly packed the luggage. Then, she began to lay a straw mat on the ground. Liener, what are you doing? He Chuan sat by the bed to enjoy the scenery in the suburbs. Suddenly, he saw Kai Lien lay the mat. Young master, you sleep on the bed while I sleep on the ground. If you don't mind my appearance, Liener is willing to serve you. Kai Lien's voice was like a mosquito. There was a hint of shyness on her pretty face as if water was about to drip out. You can sleep on the bed. I meditate and cultivate every day. I don't need to sleep. It will be the same when you break through to the Xientian realm. He Chuan was almost amused by this kind little palace maid. Even though he had returned to his male form, he was still not very enthusiastic about having sex. Perhaps it had something to do with his own state of mind. He had stayed in the library for too long. Oh. Kai Lien was finally relieved, but a faint feeling of disappointment spread in her heart. At this moment, some discussions came from downstairs. He Chuan released his consciousness to cover the entire inn and found that everyone was discussing the performance of the zither player. His interest was piqued for a moment. Let's go down and listen to what's so special about this zither player. The two of them came to the hall on the first floor of the inn and casually found an empty seat in a corner to sit down. Half an hour later. A figure slowly walked down the stairs. Everyone saw the woman in front of them with a head full of green silk beads and jade rings. There was a jade hairpin at the side of her temples. She was wearing a hundred flower shirt and a pleated skirt. Her appearance was like a peach, her eyebrows were curved and her face was covered with a light veil. It made people feel as if they were hugging a pipa and half covering their faces. The zither player carried the seven-string zither in her arms and came to the temporary stage in the middle of the hall. She slowly sat down and placed the zither on her legs. Everyone in the hall waited quietly for the zither player's performance. They did not dare to make a sound, afraid that they would disturb her artistic conception. He Chuan also felt some anticipation. He held a cup of tea in his hand and tasted it. The sound of the zither slowly rang out. It was slight and long. The beat was like a language, and it could be spoken. The moment was like the mood of a person. It was ethereal and changeable. The overtone was like the sky, and the sound was like a person. Although He Chuan did not know the name of the song, it did not stop him from following the beat with his hands. This zither player was indeed very skilled. The scholars around him closed their eyes and shook their heads as they listened. It was as if they had entered some kind of mysterious world. The song ended. Everyone in the hall clapped hard. A guest dressed like a student said, The zither is indeed the virtue of a gentleman. With Lady Lu's zither skills, the impetuous feeling in my heart slowly calmed down. It's simply wonderful. The music of the zither seems to have cleansed my soul. That's right, it's indeed the sound of everyone. The wealthy merchant sitting next to him also nodded in agreement. Me too. Chapter, 153 The two returned to their room. Kai Lien was still intoxicated. Liener, how do you feel about the music? He Chuan asked. Ah. What did the young master say? Kai Lien was pulled back to reality, she didn't hear what he said at all. He Chuan repeated what he said again. It is indeed very nice as if it can resonate with people, but I keep feeling that something is not right. Kai Lien pursed her cherry lips, feeling a little strange. The zither player just now was not simple. She injected her true energy into the zither and used the heavenly demon note to bring all of you into it. Heavenly demon note? Kai Lien had never heard of it. It is the cultivation technique of the White Lotus Saint cult. It seems that the martial arts world of the Central Plains is not going to be peaceful anymore. He Chuan did not have the intention of meddling in other people's business. He had always liked to be quiet nature and did not want to interfere with the troubles in the martial arts world. However, if the other party had carelessly bumped into his hands, then don't blame him for being merciless. He did not expect the people of the White Lotus Saint sect to be so bold. They dared to come to the vicinity of the capital and even used the heavenly demon note in front of everyone. He just did not know what their purpose was. 
The Imperial Palace. The Throne Room. Your Majesty, recently, there have been reports from various provinces and counties that a large number of children have gone missing, but there have been no clues, Fang Yuanqing stepped forward and reported. Zhou Ximin's brows were tightly furrowed. One had to know that successive dynasties placed great importance on population. Especially children, they represented whether the dynasty was prosperous or not. As a result, the punishment for human trafficking in the Great Zhou Laws was very severe. Those who trafficked their beloved into slavery would be hanged. Those who trafficked people into slavery would be exiled for 3,000 miles. Those who trafficked their beloved to be sold as wives, concubines, children, grandchildren, brothers, and nephews will have to do hard labor for three years. In the process of trafficking, those who killed or injured the victims because of the resistance of the victims would be subject to the same law as the law of bandits the law of bandits would kill those who injured others, that is, beheading them. In the face of such a strict law, the traffickers would be cautious and discreet, they did not dare to rashly wake the sleeping tiger of the imperial court. Now, there was actually a large-scale trafficking situation. Tell me the specific situation, Zhou Shimin said with a cold face. According to the reports from various places, the Ministry of Justice has done a case integration and found that there are the most cases in Yangzhou. Because it is close to the coast and foreign countries, it is somewhat difficult to investigate. There are also a few experts who are being pursued. After they left, they did not send back any news. They may have already been killed, Fang Yuanqing said in detail. This is too arrogant. This group of human traffickers actually dared to kill our great Zhou constables. That's right, we should kill the human traffickers' families. When the ministers heard that the human traffickers were so arrogant, they could not sit still. The other party clearly did not care about the imperial court. To be so arrogant and even dare to kill the imperial court's constables was an additional crime. Moreover, from what Fang Yuanqing said, it was not only Yang Zhou that had similar incidents, but the people in Yangzhou were more arrogant. Reporting to your majesty, the Lantian County Magistrate is waiting outside the Imperial Palace. He says that he has something urgent to report. The Imperial Guards reported. Lantian County wasn't far from the capital. It only took an hour to ride over. Announce. A bad feeling rose in Zhou Shimin's heart. If the Lantian County Magistrate had something to report, he would write a memorial to report it. Why did he come personally this time? He even specially came to the morning court. Something big must have happened in Lantian County. At this moment, Lantian County Magistrate rushed in and knelt on the ground. Your Majesty, Lantian County has received 18 cases today. All of them are missing person cases. I really have no choice. Lantian County was too close to the capital. This Lantian County Magistrate did not dare to hide anything. Otherwise, if someone went to the capital, it would be a small matter if he could not keep his job. Even his head would be in danger. He might as well come to the courtroom and complain. He could even ask the Imperial Court for help. Someone, drag him out and beat him up forty times. Beat him up. Zhou Shimin was extremely angry. How did Lantian County manage public security? Eighteen people went missing in one night. It was already a blessing that he did not ask and kill him directly. This minister doesn't blame Lantian County Magistrate. The human traffickers this time are obviously different. They should be made up of experts. The specific goal is unknown. Fang Yuanqing secretly sighed at Lantian County Magistrate's bad luck. They were still discussing this case just now, however, he directly hit the gun. Zhou Shimin recovered from his thoughts and pondered for a moment. I will send an experts to help the Ministry of Justice investigate this case thoroughly. We must investigate to the end. The group behind the scenes was really too arrogant. Lantian County was so close to the capital, yet they dared to commit a crime. Not only were they bold and reckless, but they were also provoking the Imperial Court. Old friend bids farewell to me at Yellow Crane Tower. In scenic third month, he heads down to Yangzhou. The lone sail vanishes at the end of faraway blue sky. Only surging Yangtze merging with horizon is seen. 
Yangzhou City could be said to be one of the more famous cities of the Great Zhou Dynasty. It was bordered by the surging Yangtze River in the south and the Grand Canal between the capital and Hangzhou in the east. It had always been a scenic city with beautiful scenery. He Chuan brought his little palace maid, Kai Lian, and slowly continued to tour the Great Zhou River and mountains. On the way, he would occasionally give Kai Lian some pointers on her cultivation. Although Kai Lian had a kind heart, she was very intelligent. Recently, her progress in cultivation was very fast. With the help of He Chuan System's medicinal pills, she had already become an expert in Xiantian's fifth stage. In addition, her progress in the Sunflower Bible was also very fast. She could easily condense energy into needles. Who are you? Show your identity. The soldiers in Yangzhou City were very strict. No matter if you were an ordinary person or an aristocrat, you had to show your identity. Otherwise, you could not enter the city. He Chuan showed the gold medal with a five-clawed golden dragon carved on it. This was given to him by Zhou Shiming. If he knew it was so troublesome, He Chuan would have simply taken Kai Lian to avoid the interrogation. The soldier obviously didn't recognize the gold medal, so he asked the sergeant to check it. Soon, the sergeant trotted over and respectfully returned the medal to He Chuan. I didn't know the Lord was here. Please forgive me. Those who do not know are not guilty. The matter of me coming to Yangzhou must be kept a secret. He Chuan would not argue with the other party. Moreover, he did not want others to know his whereabouts. If the matter was not sudden, he would not have chosen to show the gold medal. The commander respectfully sent the two of them into the city. Boss, why is the lord of the capital coming to Yangzhou? Are you really not going to tell our magistrate? A soldier asked in a low voice. What do you know? Can't you see that the entire Yangzhou city is under martial law? This lord from the capital might be secretly visiting. If we dare to make a ruckus everywhere, no one will be able to keep their heads. So keep your mouths shut. The sergeant kicked the soldier in a bad mood. How could Yangzhou magistrate be as powerful as the officials of the capital? Moreover, He Chuan had a gold medal. He was obviously a person by the emperor's side. He could clearly distinguish who was more important. Boss, what exactly is the matter? The martial law has already been in effect for so long. When will it end? The soldier said somewhat helplessly. Lower your voice. I heard that it's about the disappearance of people. The imperial court attaches great importance to it. The sergeant shook his head. Of course, he also wanted to end it as soon as possible. Who would be willing to stand outside in the cold to investigate? However, the magistrate had already ordered that everyone must be thoroughly investigated. Not even a fly could be spared. Otherwise, the worst-case scenario would be imprisonment, and the worst-case scenario would be losing one's head. It could be seen that the matter was really very serious. No one dared to have any other thoughts. Kai Lian was already a Xientian expert, so she could naturally hear what the surgeon said. Young master. Along the way, it seems that many places are very strict. The imperial court will naturally send people to deal with it. We don't need to worry, He Chuan said. Chapter, 154. Yangzhou City, Magistrate Residence. Magistrate Wei Qiancheng was about fifty years old and sat on the main seat. Looking at the couple holding the memorial tablets in their arms, he felt extremely helpless. You can be considered my family. Why are you still making trouble like other ignorant people? If I had the ability, I would have caught the murderer and brought him to justice long ago. Wei Qianqing's hair had been turning white recently. Although the imperial court had sent a few Xientian experts to assist in the investigation, they had never been solved. He still wanted to catch the murderer immediately so that he could give the imperial court an explanation. Magistrate Wei, your nephew is only seven years old. He has been missing for seven days and there isn't even a single letter. He must have been killed. The woman said as she wiped away her tears. Looking at the woman's appearance, Wei Qianqing did not feel good. He had seen his nephew once before and he looked extremely cute. However, he really had no other choice. According to the imperial court, 
these criminals should be Xientian experts. He only knew a few tricks and he would die if he went. Furthermore, as the governor, he had to take charge of the situation. It was so tiring that Wei Qiancheng had to resign from his position. It wasn't easy to send off these two nominal relatives. Before he could breathe a sigh of relief, he heard that two Xientian Realm Ninth Stage experts had arrived. He hurriedly went out to welcome them. The two lords have come from afar. Today, you must drink a few cups. This magistrate has already prepared a welcoming banquet for you, Wei Qiancheng said very politely. The person in front of him was a Xientian expert from the capital. He could not afford to be negligent. There is no need for the welcoming banquet. It is better to understand the situation. The magistrate should also send a few investigative experts to accompany us, the white-robed Xientian expert said. They were not here to eat or drink, but to complete the mission given by the emperor. I do not dare to hide it from you, my lord. This magistrate also knows some experts in the pugilistic world. Back then, I especially spent money to ask them for help, but Wei Qianqing sighed. Back then, he had looked for martial artists, and among them, there was no lack of Xientian 7th and 8th stage experts. However, all of them did not return. Now, with only two Xientian 9th stage experts, it was likely that they would not be able to complete the mission. Not to mention that they would not be able to complete the mission if these two were to be involved, how would they report it to the imperial court? The two of us have the highest Qingdong skills, and there will be more than a dozen experts following us. Thus, you need not worry, magistrate. We are only conducting an investigation, the white-robed expert said. Hearing this, Wei Qianqing finally relaxed. There would definitely be no problem with more than a dozen of them. He sent two bailiffs who specialized in investigating cases. They were both Xientian fourth stage experts and were in charge of investigating the news first. The four of them came to the latest missing family and began to carefully investigate the clues, hoping to find something. Suddenly, a figure flashed by. The white-robed experts were very alert and chased after it. The other three followed closely behind. About an hour later, the white-robed grandmaster followed them to a temple in the suburbs. The target had disappeared. It seemed that they had to go in and investigate. The other three followed and asked about the situation. The secret should be in this temple. The white-robed expert said. There was a lantern hanging at the main entrance. It gave off a strange green light and looked somewhat gloomy. Let's go in and take a look first. The two of you go back and report to the magistrate, said another yellow-robed expert. The bailiff knew that he could not be of much help, so he headed back toward Yangzhou City. Pushing open the heavy door, the two carefully walked in. Countless wax figures were placed in front of them. There were boys and girls, as well as monks. The two rows of monks were dressed differently from the monks of the great Zhou Empire who served them. They looked somewhat out of place. The white-robed experts went forward to take a closer look. When he saw this, he was so scared that he immediately took two steps back. This was not a wax statue. It was clearly a living person's flesh and blood that had been hollowed out and made into a wax statue to be placed here. The method was too cruel. The yellow-robed expert ran forward and casually pulled down a wax statue. As his companions had said, whether it was a boy or a girl or a monk, they were all left with their shells, which had been hollowed out from the back. The mud came from the chaos, and the white lotus appeared in a glorious era. An expert in a pure black monk robe came to the front yard at some point in time, as if he was waiting for them on purpose. How dare the heretic monks of the outer realm be so impudent! The most taboo case of disappearance was caused by you, right? The white-robed expert instantly unsheathed his sword and charged toward the outer realm monk. Mithraya Buddha is born, and a wise king is born. Put down the butcher's knife, and immediately become a Buddha. The outer realm monk chanted. The two Xientian experts immediately blocked their hearing, because the life-reaping chant could mess up people's minds. Demon monk, die. The yellow-robed grandmaster roared loudly, drew his waist knife, and quickly charged toward the outer realm monk from the other side. The killing voice from his mouth instantly dispersed the life-reaping chant. 
looks like I'll have to make you into wax statues before you will be obedient. The outer realm monk suddenly opened his eyes, and the vital essence in his body exploded, instantly enveloping them within his domain. Half-Step Saint Cultivator The hearts of the two Xientian experts of the imperial court sank. They hadn't thought that the other party was actually a half-step saint cultivator. It seemed like they had fallen into this person's trap who purposely lured them over. They didn't know if those two bailiffs would be able to successfully return and report back. He Chuan sat in his room with a frown. Because he felt that there seemed to be an evil aura lingering in the sky above Yangzhou City. It was a bit like the records in the anecdotes of Qizhou. Could it be that this case wasn't as simple as they had imagined? There were even gods and demons involved. If the White Lotus cult really had a relationship with gods and demons, then the martial arts world of the Central Plains and the Great Zhou Dynasty would most likely be in trouble. It was rare for them to come out to tour the mountains and rivers, but a group of gods and demons had jumped out. It was truly a headache. According to the records of the Anecdotes of Qizhou, gods and demons loved to eat the hearts of young boys and girls, using them to cultivate sinister evil techniques. Young master, are you alright? Kai Lian saw He Chuan's expression was not too good and asked with concern. I'm fine. I just thought of the records of gods and demons. I feel that this case is inseparable from the gods and demons. He Chuan shook his head. He didn't want to get involved in this matter, but gods and demons went against the natural order of things. They even used living people to practice their martial arts. Their methods were outrageous. Are they the monsters that eat people? Kai Lian had also seen the anecdotes of Qizhou. However, she didn't think that those things were gods and demons. It was more appropriate to describe them as monsters. Liener is right. These sad and crazy things are monsters. I just don't know how they are related to the White Lotus cult. He Chuan suddenly remembered that when they had just left the capital, when they were resting in and in near Lantian County, he had met that female Zither player. The reason why he had not made a move back then was purely because he thought that she was from the Outer Realm sect and would not be able to cause much trouble in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. He had simply ignored her. But now it seemed that he had been a little careless. That day, the female Zither player used the heavenly demon note to charm the audience. Her goal was not money at all, but to use them to kidnap boys and girls. Does young master want to interfere? The kind Kai Lian could not bear to see the people in trouble. She knew that only with Yichuan's help could they calm the storm. Chapter 155 He Chuan did not want to care about it at first, but the appearance of the monster aroused his interest. How powerful were the so-called gods and demons? He really wanted to see it. The purpose of this trip was to see all kinds of experts, as well as the gods and demons recorded in books. This young master wants to see if the legendary thing is really that powerful. At the White Lotus Cult Central Plains Stronghold The White Lotus Cult in the past had been quiet for a period of time after they were chased out of the Central Plains. After the White Lotus Cult lost its backbone, Zhu Wutian, the various elders of the sect were not satisfied with each other and all of them wanted to fight for the position of cult leader. A few elders fought each other and went their own ways. The White Lotus cult began to fall apart. Zhu Lingxin was Zhu Wutian's eldest son. After he went out to train, his temperament changed greatly, but his cultivation was abnormally high. A few years later, Zhu Lingxin returned with a group of mysterious experts. He defeated all the elders in a sweeping manner and said ruthlessly, either submit or die. Those who refused to submit were subjected to the punishment of having their hearts and livers dug out. The members of the White Lotus cult were forced by Zhu Lingxin's tyrannical power and could only submit obediently. After Zhu Lingxin became the new cult leader, he issued all kinds of new orders, requiring the various elders to contribute nine boys and girls every month. Those who could not complete the task were killed. The White Lotus cult's desire to unify the martial arts world of the Central Plains did not die. Over the years, they had been secretly plotting their development. Zhu Lingxin led the White Lotus cult to kill all the major sects in the outer realm and crazily recruit disciples. Within three years, the White Lotus cult had become the number one sect in the outer realm. If there were any that did not submit, 
they would kill them. If they resisted, they would kill them. If they acted in defiance, they would kill them. In the eyes of the other members of the White Lotus cult, Zhu Lengxin was even more terrifying than demons and ghosts. This was because he had no humanity at all. Killing people was as easy as drinking water, and he had to drink a cup of fresh blood every morning. There were some who resisted in the dark, but Zhu Lengxin was too powerful, so they were all suppressed. This made the others secretly guess whether the new cult leader had already become a half-step saint cultivator. There was also a group of mysterious experts that he brought back. Each of them was ridiculously powerful and abnormally bloodthirsty. Every once in a while, Zhu Lengxin would pick a few loyal subordinates and send them into the secret chamber to cultivate. Those who could survive would all become Xientian Ninth Stage or Half-Step Saints cultivators. However, those who came out alive would have a huge change in temperament. But, the temptation of strength was still very prominent. Therefore, there was no lack of licking dogs on Zhu Lengxin's side. They wanted to enter the mysterious secret chamber to increase their strength. In the Great Hall of the White Lotus Cult, Zhu Lengxin was wearing a golden dragon robe and sitting on the throne which symbolized the position of the cult leader. The chairs he used were all made of gold. There were nine five-clawed golden dragons coiled around the sound of the chairs, symbolizing the position of the mighty emperor. His ambition was self-evident. Unifying the martial arts world of the Central Plains was the goal of his father, Zhu Wutian. Zhu Lengxin wanted to be the emperor that unifies the five lakes and four seas. Have you finished the preparation? Zhu Lengxin was shrouded in a black mist. His tone was lifeless and cold as if it could freeze the air. The aura he emitted was extremely terrifying, and it pressed down on the four elders and the disciples, making them unable to breathe. Reporting to cult leader, the Central Plain cities are all under martial law, and we are doing a lot of things. This month, we are still short of sixteen virgin young girls and boys. We hope that cult leader can forgive us. Before this Xientian ninth stage expert disciple could finish his words, a terrifying aura swept over him. Before anyone could see clearly, Zhu Lengxin had already arrived in front of this Xientian ninth stage disciple and pressed his palm on his head. A shrill scream resounded throughout the main hall. Very quickly, this Xientian ninth stage disciple became a dried corpse, his flesh and blood completely sucked dry. Zhu Lengxin once again returned to the golden dragon chair. The entire process took less than ten seconds. What's the point of keeping trash who can't complete the mission? Zhu Lengxin said. Cult leader, a large number of experts have appeared in various parts of the Central Plains, and they are all investigating cases of missing people, the great elder Yang Wenquan stood out and said. Because of the mission that Zhu Lengxin had given, they had to do everything they could to complete it. However, now that they had already attracted the great Zhou Empire's attention, it was too difficult to accomplish the task. Yang Wenquan had also entered the secret chamber that Zhu Lengxin had created. Although it was called a secret chamber, it was actually no different from the nine layers of hell. His entire body and mind were feeling endless pain and torture. At that time, Yang Wenquan had thought of dying. Fortunately, he had withstood it head-on, and his entire person had also broken through from a Xientian ninth stage to a half-step saint cultivator. Most of them died in the secret chamber and became nourishment for the secret chamber. Originally, there were nine elders of the White Lotus cult, but only four survived. One could not help but sigh. The other three elders who survived also became half-step saints cultivators. The great Zhou imperial court is nothing. Even if 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun comes, I will make him become nourishment for the secret chamber. Zhu Wuxin was very confident in his strength. Even if all the experts of the great Zhou Empire gathered together, they would not be able to do anything to him. The only thing he had to worry about was the mysterious sect that had defeated his father. I heard that the imperial court has invited a half-step saint cultivator to join the investigation. Last time, that mad monk from the western regions accidentally exposed the location of the headquarters in Yangzhou City. I am afraid that something might go wrong, Yang Wenquan said. He maintained a sliver of clarity in his heart. He always wanted to escape from the White Lotus cult, and then leave this troublesome place. However, he was unable to break free and gradually fell into the hands of Zhu Lengxin. 
A half-step saint cultivator. Very good. At that time, I will personally meet him and suck all the energy from his body dry. It will be more useful than a virgin boy and girl. Zhu Lengxin took two intakes of air, it was as if he had thought of something wonderful. Yang Wenquan had goosebumps all over his body. He was afraid that this cult leader would come over and suck his body dry. Where was the lesson from just now? You don't have to worry. When I complete the ceremony, I will become a true saint cultivator. Zhu Lengxin's laughter echoed in the entire hall. The cult leader is invincible. The leader of the sacred sect is a man of great virtue. He will rule the world of martial arts world for thousands of years. Everyone quickly knelt down and respectfully flattered him. Yangzhou City Wei Qianqing listened to his subordinate's report and felt as if he had been hit by a frost. The two experts from the imperial court had not returned. It was likely that they were doomed. But now, they finally had a clue. Who would have thought that this group of people would use the temple as a cover? The two bailiffs also felt a lingering fear in their hearts. If they had not returned earlier, they would probably have lost their lives. However, they have no one now. They could only wait for reinforcements to arrive. Now we can only wait for the half-step saint cultivator of the Gumu sect to arrive. I'm afraid that the imperial court's experts aren't a match for them. He had a scale in his heart. The two experts from before were both outstanding in Qinggong. Unless the gap between them and the enemy was too big, they would definitely be able to escape. The gap between a half-step saint cultivator and a Xientian expert was too big. It wasn't something that could be exchanged for an advantage in numbers. The half-step saint cultivator from the Gumu sect is on his way here, but I am afraid of the temple in Yangzhou city is just one of the enemy's strongholds, said one of the bailiffs. Chapter 156 Wei Qianqing's heart skipped a beat when he heard his subordinates' words. They had not figured out the truth of the mysterious organization at all. It would be fine if there was only one stronghold, but the strength behind it would be terrifying. I want to write a letter to the imperial court. Wei Qianqing did not have time to think about the problem of his official position. If he continued to hide it and did not report it, it would be difficult for him to keep his head. He quickly wrote a secret scroll, inserted three feathers, and sped to the capital. Now, he could only rely on the Gumu sex experts to defeat the other party. On the outskirts of Yangzhou. Spiritual God's Temple. There was an endless stream of guests offering incense. It was said that this place was very effective. Some people prayed for money, and the next morning they went out and tripped over a stone. They just happened to pick up an ingot of gold. There were countless similar incidents. In the backyard of the temple. The demonic monk who defeated the two experts of the imperial court was shirtless, and he was doing dirty things to the woman lying on the table. The woman's eyes were listless, and her face was abnormally pale. She seemed to have lost her mind. Akalanatha. Senior brother Daman deliberately let the two bailiffs of the imperial court go last time, you have such a big confidence. However, if you delay the cult leader's important matter, the punishment will not be small. The black-robed monk at the side put his hand in a Buddhist etiquette. He turned a blind eye to the filthy scene in front of him as if he was already used to it. Huh, junior brother Dharmaraja, don't worry. I have long mastered the joy scripture. It is only a matter of time before I break through to become a saint cultivator. When that time comes, regardless of whether it is the White Lotus cult or the martial arts world of the Central Plains, everyone will have to bow down to me. Daman's large hand was kneading the woman's voluptuous area with a very wild smile on his face. The joyful Zen sect could also be considered a large sect in the outer realm, but Zhu Lingxin's strength was too strong, so they had no choice but to temporarily submit to the White Lotus cult. Senior brother Daman, you'd better be careful. Zhu Lingxin might have already become a saint cultivator. Dharmaraja was still worried. Moreover, Dharmaraja had not broken through yet so it was not wise to provoke the imperial court. After we've captured all the experts of the imperial court, I'll absorb their power, and then I'll be able to break through to a saint cultivator. When Dharmaraja reached the point of excitement, his large hand forcefully grabbed the woman's delicate neck. 
In a short moment, the woman was completely lifeless. Daman threw the corpse to the side in disappointment. He had always remembered his hatred of Zhu Lingxin injuring him in the past. Even in his dreams, he wanted to take revenge. He endured the loath and was sent to Yangzhou city of the great Zhou dynasty. On the surface, he sent boys and girls to the White Lotus cult, but behind his back, he wantonly plundered beauties and experts for him to cultivate the joy scripture. He did this so that one day, he would defeat Zhu Lingxin. The pilgrims knelt in the great hall to pray, completely unaware of the ugliness hidden behind them. In the dungeon. This was the place where Daman had captured the boys and girls. All kinds of women were locked up here. The miserable cries of women and the children were like hell, making one's hair stand on end. In the innermost secret room made of steel, countless cultivator experts were locked up here. When Daman was free, he would sacrifice them to become nourishment for his path to becoming a saint cultivator. All the experts were forcibly subdued and their tendons were scattered. In addition, their acupoints were restrained. They were now no different from ordinary people. Some were experts of the imperial court, some were vagabonds, and there were also a few experts of the seven great sects. They were all captured here because they were no match for the demon monk of the western region. I didn't expect that demon monk to be a half-step saint cultivator. No wonder all of you disappeared before. The imperial court thought that you were already dead. The white-robed expert leaned against the wall weakly, and a bitter smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. That night, he thought he would definitely die, but that demon monk only locked them up. When he entered the secret room, he realized that there were a few colleagues he knew. What's the difference between being trapped here and dying? A Sientian ninth stage in a Huashan sect robe stared at the ceiling with a dull gaze. He had been locked up here for almost two months. He was used to seeing death every day, and his heart was almost numb. Everyone, don't lose confidence. The Imperial Court already knows the location of this stronghold. Experts will be arriving soon, and the Imperial Court has half-step saint cultivators as well. The white-robed expert recalled the time when the eight vassal kings rebelled, the mysterious expert could win against four of them by himself. Getting rid of the foreign demon monk was definitely not a problem. His words were like a shot in the arm. The eyes of some of the experts who had lost hope suddenly lit up. Yes, there were also half-step saint cultivators in the imperial court. Now, they were only afraid that they might not be able to hold on until then. Who knew when the demon monks of the outer realm would sacrifice them? But having hope was better than having no hope at all. The Gumu sect followed the teachings of their grandmasters. They cultivated in the mountains and hid in seclusion. They did not care about worldly affairs. But when the martial arts world of the central plains encountered a crisis, they would take action to resolve it. Wei Qianqing's wife had once entered the Gumu sect to practice martial arts, so Wei Qianqing was able to contact the Gumu sex experts. The Gumu sex experts wore green robes and looked very ordinary. They were about forty years old and had square faces. They looked somewhat dignified. The black iron heavy sword in their hands was about five feet long and half a palm wide. Their entire body was dark and extremely heavy. It was exactly as the saying went, the heavy sword has no edge. It was a great skill that did not work. You must be heavy sword Yu Zhuang, the eldest senior brother of the Gumu sect. Please have a seat. Wei Qianqing hurriedly came out to welcome him. With a half-step saint cultivator in charge, he felt a lot more at ease. Yu Zhuang nodded lightly and followed Wei Qianqing into the living room. The maid served the fragrant tea and then left. I think Master Yu Zhuang also knows that this group of people is definitely not as simple as ordinary human traffickers. Two Xientian experts from the imperial court have been killed. The motive behind this is not to be trifled with. Wei Qianqing tried his best to describe the matter more seriously. Do you have any specific clues? Yu Zhuang did not speak much and asked important questions. A few days ago, I sent some spies who do not know martial arts to check the spiritual god temple on the outskirts of Yangzhou city. There were less than ten people, but they did not enter the backyard. However, there should be less than twenty people. Wei Qianqing was able to become the governor of Yangzhou city, so he was naturally not an ordinary person. 
He knew that sending experts into the spiritual god temple would alert the enemy, so he specially sent a few spies to disguise themselves as pilgrims and roughly investigate. There should only be one half-step saint cultivator. I'll go and see him tonight. Yu Zhuang was confident in his own strength. The barbarians from the outer realms were definitely not his match. The imperial court's reinforcement experts are about to arrive. Master Yu Zhuang, are you going to wait for a few days? Wei Qiancheng was really afraid. So many people had already died. If this Gumu sect expert also died, he did not know that they would be able to solve the problem in Yangzhou city. It was always right to be cautious. However, Yu Zhuang didn't care. He felt that even if he went alone, he could solve it. It doesn't matter. The imperial court won't send a half-step saint cultivator. No matter how many people there are, it's useless. Instead, they'll become a burden to me. The Ju Wutian in the past wasn't a match for the Gumu sect now. If he solved the problem earlier, he could return to the Gumu sect earlier. Wei Qianqing saw that he was so insistent, so he stopped persuading him. Because he knew that it was useless to persuade him. The other party was a half-step saint cultivator and would not listen to him at all. Chapter 157 He Chuan leisurely drank the porridge in his bowl and sent out his spiritual sense to cover the entire Yangzhou city. Kai Lian quickly finished the steamed bun in her hand. What is young master looking for? With her current strength, she could faintly sense the aura he Chuan sent out. This was because she was particularly close to him. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to sense He Chuan's spiritual sense. Looking for a show. This young master is going to bring Lienner to watch a big show. He Chuan put down the empty bowl, and the corners of his mouth rose slightly. I like watching Beijing opera. Unfortunately, I only watched it once on the street, so I didn't have time to listen carefully. The kind-hearted Kai Lien did not hear the hidden meaning behind it. She naively thought that He Chuan was really going to take her to watch a show. If you have time, you can watch Beijing Opera again. Tonight, we'll watch a new martial arts show. He Chuan reached out his hand and rubbed Kai Lien's head. Kai Lien immediately realized that it wasn't an opera but a murder. He Chuan was delighted with her talent, even higher than Princess Changning. He believed it wouldn't be long before she broke through to the realm of a saint cultivator. However, this kind-hearted little palace maid didn't even dare to kill a chicken, let alone kill a person. Despite having a lifetime of skills, she had never engaged in actual combat. Kai Lien was no match for an expert of the same realm. Even someone of a lower realm could defeat her. Kindness could be kept, but it couldn't be displayed. There was once a ninth-stage expert in the martial arts world. During a battle, you let go of an enemy who was begging for mercy. Unexpectedly, the enemy killed your entire family and used a scheme to kill you. In a world where the strong preyed on the weak, being fearless and kind would only cause one's own death. Therefore, he needed to help Kai Lien understand the cruelty of the world. Wei Qianqing contacted the garrison and surrounded the spiritual god temple. No one was allowed to enter or leave. The commoners were so scared that they did not dare to go forward. They all guessed what had happened. Yu Xuan carried the heavy black iron sword on his back and looked at the temple in front of him with a deep gaze. There was a faint evil aura lingering in the sky. It was not the orthodox Buddhist sect at all. It is indeed a demon monk from the outer realm. Today, I will carry out justice on behalf of the heavens and return the great Zhou to its glorious day. After he finished muttering to himself, he strode towards the temple. The front yard was frighteningly quiet. Even the sound of insects had disappeared. Without the candlelight illumination, looking at the Buddha statue in the main hall, it seemed like a demon that had chosen to devour people. There was not the slightest bit of mercy. I've long heard that the joyful Zen sect in the outer realm is an evil and unorthodox sect. It seems that this is indeed the case today. Yu Xuang's voice was not loud, but it could clearly be heard throughout the entire temple. Akalanatha Benefactor, you may not know this, but no matter what Zen you practice, you will eventually be able to reincarnate into bliss. Daman slowly walked out with a benevolent smile on his face. 
In my opinion, it's better to send this demon monk of yours to hell so that he won't bewitch people here. Yu Xuan pulled out his black iron heavy sword, and his figure instantly burst out. The iron sword immediately slashed out blue sword energy. The sword whistling sound was intense, and a kind of soul stealing magic was contained within it. The sword intent shot out, and the sword's shadow danced in the air. However, in this short instant, Yu Zhuang's figure was like a ghost, floating lightly without a trace. His body instantly blurred, and the oppressive sword's low sword whistling sound suddenly disappeared. As if Yu Zhuang's figure has vanished out of thin air. Daman temporarily lost the trace of Yu Zhuang's energy. The strange scene made people feel extremely sad. Akalanatha, this poor monk can only send you to the paradise of the afterlife. Daman's eyes suddenly widened, and two beams of light seemed to shoot out from between his eyes. No matter how strange Yu Zhuang's movement technique was, he could capture it. Yu Zhuang's phantom image suddenly burst out, and his body swayed non-stop like a ghost. His sword style was as long as autumn water, and he instantly locked Daman's figure in front of him with his own sword energy. Great joy technique. Daman's entire body suddenly turned into two people, shooting in two different directions. His palm was imbued with black energy, and it let out an intense whistling sound, making it impossible to see which was the actual body. Sword Piercing Rainbow The sword light suddenly expanded in the darkness, giving off an extremely strange sword intent. The air flowed on the sword, making a gurgling sound, and a refreshing feeling of returning to the wilderness arose. Daman's body couldn't help but pause slightly. At this time, Yu Xuan's body instantly soared into the air, and the iron sword in his hand automatically left his hand as if he had completely lost control. Although he did not quite understand, Yu Xuan's actions were tantamount to suicide. Daman could not help but be overjoyed. The two figures sped up and rushed toward Yu Xuan at lightning speed. The black iron heavy sword in Yu Xuan's hand suddenly shot out. The sword hummed non-stop and locked Daman's true and false body firmly within the sword form. At the same time, Daman's palm, which was imbued with black energy, charged toward Yu Zhuang like a thunderbolt. It all happened in a flash. Yu Zhuang extended his right hand in the air, and his two fingers formed a sword. His body rotated continuously along with the sword form. A blood-red sword radiance interweaved with gold and red suddenly enveloped Daman's body. The sword radiance whistled, it let out a mournful hum of the sword. Blood splattered. Dalman then realized that the other party had already seen through the true and false body and used the black iron heavy sword to break the false body. His sword fingers clashed head on with the real body. It was a very wise choice. Dalman's attack was entirely blocked by the blood colored sword light surrounding Yu Xuang's body, and the fake body turned into dust. At the same time, the blood-colored sword intent that condensed rapidly expanded outward like a surging tide, charging in all directions. Daman could not dodge in time, and his arm was slashed open. Die. Daman was like a ghost, and an illusory shadow suddenly appeared. The illusory shadow was like a complete entity. This change surprised Yu Zhuang because Daman was emitting a sinister aura. It was very strange. Daman's body suddenly separated, and he once again flew toward Yu Zhuang from two different directions. Two Daman held two short blades that were one foot long in his hands. The blades gave off a chilling light, connecting to form a knife net, attacking Yu Zhuang from all directions. It's just a small trick. Yu Zhuang snorted coldly. The dark iron heavy sword in his hand vibrated rapidly and let out a crisp sword whistle. It was like the sound of a drum at dusk and the sound of a bell at dawn. It could not help but clear one's mind. Looking at Dharma, who was flying towards him, he took a sideways step and slipped. His body flashed non-stop like a ghost, and the iron sword in his hand swung out nine times in an instant. Almost at the same time, Yu Zhuang's iron sword hacked forcefully onto the blade of Dharma's short blades. The two Dhammans were struck by lightning and quickly retreated. In the blink of an eye, they overlapped again. Hee hee, I didn't expect you to have some skills. Daman wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. He did not care about his injuries at all. Yu Zhuang frowned. He did not seem to be happy that he had the upper hand. 
because the other party's injuries were not serious. They were only minor injuries. What followed was a battle of life and death. If you surrender and abolish your cultivation, I will spare your life. If you continue to be stubborn, don't blame me for being merciless. Yu Zhuang said coldly. Cut the crap. This poor monk wants to break every inch of your bones. Daman charged at Yu Zhuang once again. Chapter, 158 Yu Zhuang did not dare to slack off in the slightest. He completely eliminated his breathing, and his true energy circulated perfectly within his body. His eyes flickered with a cold light. The entire courtyard was now silent. Not a single sound could be heard. Yu Zhuang and Daman did not dare to make a single sound. They were all waiting for the opportunity to attack. For a moment, both sides started the battle of patience. A gentle breeze blew past, and a few fallen leaves fell. The withered leaves brushed past Yu Zhuang's face. Daman's figure flashed strangely, and he pounced in the direction of Yu Zhuang. Right now, he was relying solely on his senses. A cold light flashed. Yu Zhuang's figure shot out explosively with a flash of cold light. He locked onto Daman's true body. He dared to use the same move twice, so of course, he could see the flaw. Hiss. The broken white silk flew in the air like snowflakes. The situation was very strange. Within the flash of light, Daman felt that the short blade in his hand had hit a piece of clothing, and he immediately cried out in his heart. His body was about to flash out again, but it was already too late. A huge, uncast blood-red sword energy, suddenly exploded from the thick fog like the rising sun, and the cold killing intent did not carry any emotion. Daman's heart trembled, and his four limbs trembled lightly as if they were out of control. Hee hee, I've said that it's an ordinary move. It's completely unseen before. Yu Xuan's cold voice sounded in the thick fog. I know who you are, Gumu sect. White Lotus cult leader, Zhu Wutian was injured by Gumu sect back then. Daman's face finally revealed a fearful expression. Back then, White Lotus cult leader, Zhu Wutian dominated the martial arts world of the Central Plains. Later on, he was defeated by a mysterious expert. It was the Gumu sect. It's too late to know now. You have committed all kinds of crimes. Even if you die, Buddha will not be able to save you. Daman called out his origins, but Yu Zhuang did not panic. His figure flashed and the iron sword in his hand made a cold light and swept Daman's attack into the sword shadow. Ten Thousand Swords Origin Daman suddenly jumped three inches off the ground and flew toward Yu Zhuang. The short blades in his hands give off a cold light. Yu Zhuang felt the shadows of the short blades in front and behind him and he was secretly shocked. The opponent's double blades attacked his entire body. In one move, there were countless exquisite moves, and at the same time, he pointed out all thirty-six weaknesses of his body. The demon monk of the western region was indeed capable. Yu Zhuang's black iron heavy sword changed its stance again and was thrown forward. However, with a clang, the metal shook violently. He used 120% of his strength in this move, causing Daman to jump and take two steps back. Daman was startled. He had never heard of the Gumu sect using sword techniques before. In the martial arts world, it was said that the Gumu sect was good at spells, spear techniques, and fist techniques. He did not expect the sword techniques to be so sharp. Yu Zhuang waved the sword in his right hand again and used the 36 forms of the tiger racing sword technique. He used the little tackle dragon of the Bajiquan to grab Daman's shoulder. The tiger racing sword technique was a sword technique that evolved from the military. It was open and wide, mysterious and unpredictable, and it did not lose its balance. His left hand, on the other hand, used the hand-to-hand -hand technique to grab. Not only did he grab the joints, but he also grabbed the enemy's weapon. Daman did not dare to be negligent. He immediately displayed his strengths, and the sword light immediately interweaved with each other, causing the entire courtyard to dance. As someone who had joined forces to fight Yu Zhuang to a draw, he felt a little embarrassed. Yu Zhuang's iron sword seemed to be stuck to the giant K sword. As the two swords intersected, 
Yu Zhuang felt that the true energy that was injected into the sword had disappeared, and he quickly drew his sword and retreated. However, it was still too late. Yu Zhuang felt a strong and overbearing energy coming from the other party's sword. It passed through his giant K sword and quickly seeped into his wrist from his palm. In an instant, all the strength in his entire arm was lost. Then, Yu Zhuang raised the tip of his sword, and Daman's entire arm shot up into the sky with the giant K sword. At the same time, Wei Qianqing personally led countless soldiers and surrounded the spiritual god temple. Everyone, listen up. Launch the rockets. Wei Qianqing ordered. There was a saying, the wind aided the fire, and the fire borrowed the might of the wind. As the cold wind blew, the rockets landed on the roofs or other buildings, instantly turning into a prairie fire. It quickly spread to the surroundings, and the flames burned fiercely, it devoured the spiritual god temple. The northern wind was fierce, and the fire was fiercer. It forced the disciples of the spiritual god temple to have nowhere to hide. The entire spiritual god temple was in chaos, and all the disciples were rushing to put out the fire. No one had the time to care about Yu Zhuang and the others in the hall. Some disciples even took advantage of the chaos to escape from the spiritual god temple. However, what the disciples of the spiritual god temple did not expect was that when they escaped from the mountain gate of the spiritual god temple, they would see the well-armored Yangzhou soldiers in front of them. The surroundings of spiritual god temple had long been surrounded by soldiers and horses. The sabers on their waists were unsheathed, and the crossbows were knocked, waiting for them to come out. Release the arrows. With Wei Qianqing's order, tens of thousands of arrows shot out in an instant. The disciples of the spiritual god temple who had fled in front were instantly shot into hedgehogs, and miserable screams rang out one after another. The disciples of the spiritual god temple didn't expect to be surrounded. They hurriedly waved the weapons in their hands and pulled out the arrows that were shooting at them. Now, they were in a dilemma. Because not only were there soldiers, but dozens of grandmaster experts were waiting for them. The disciples of the spiritual god temple were skilled cultivators. They set up four formations of the spiritual god temple. They waved their weapons to block the arrows and retreated into the spiritual god temple. In just a short while, the front gate of the spiritual god temple was already covered with corpses. The disciples of the spiritual god temple who were in the front were killed and injured countless times. The arrows whistled like rain. No matter how powerful the twenty-four formations of the spiritual god temple were, they could not block the arrows that flew like locusts. A few disciples of the spiritual god temple were not paying attention and were hit by a few arrows. They hurriedly dragged their injured fellow disciples and helplessly retreated back to the spiritual god temple. Lord Magistrate, do you want to continue firing the arrows? The soldier beside him asked. The spiritual god temple is on fire. If they retreat back to the mountain gate again, they will only be courting death. It won't be long before they rush out. We just need to surround the spiritual god temple. When they lose the confidence to fight, we will persuade them to surrender. Wei Qianqing was very experienced. He had grandmasters and the Yangzhou army by his side, so he was not in a hurry to kill them all. He would try to win with the smallest sacrifice possible. Subduing the enemy without fighting was the most powerful way. Daman stopped the bleeding on his broken arm. He turned his head to look at the spiritual god temple that was covered by the raging fire, and his eyes shot out monstrous killing intent. However, Daman, who had lost an arm, already lost the chance to turn the tables. The people in the dungeon also heard the shouting outside. They could not help but become excited. There's a raging fire burning outside. It must be the imperial court's army that has suppressed this group of demon monks. We're saved. The white-robed grandmaster stuck his ear to the wall and listened to the voices outside. When I get out, I'll definitely kill a few demonic monks to vent my anger. They tortured me until I wasn't even human. That's right. I'll definitely kill all of them. I'll let them know how powerful the martial arts world of the Central Plains is. With hope in front of them, they were eager to leave immediately. Once the poison on their bodies was removed, they would kill to their heart's content. Hehe, he, the Gumu sect has finally appeared. 
I'll personally take revenge for my father back then. The black figure flashed past with monstrous killing intent. Countless figures followed behind the black figure, all heading towards the spiritual god temple that was on fire. Chapter 159 Wei Qianqing was leading his soldiers to surround the spiritual god temple when he suddenly noticed a group of black shadows heading toward the spiritual god temple. Who is it? Release the arrows. Countless arrows flew toward the black shadows in the sky. You're courting death. One of the black shadows pushed the arrows with both hands and the arrows flew back in a strange manner. The soldiers screamed one after another. A Xientian ninth stage expert in the imperial court wanted to teach the other party a lesson when he saw how brazen this person was. The Xientian ninth stage expert jumped up and entered the surroundings of a group of black shadows. However, this expert of the imperial court ended up in a very miserable state. He was sucked into a dried corpse by some unknown cultivation technique. Wei Qianqing looked at the corpse on the ground and understood that this wasn't a battle that they could interfere in. He quickly ordered the retreat to avoid increasing the losses. Now, he could only pray that Yu Zhuang could withstand the attacks of these people. In the temple. Yu Zhuang was just about to get rid of the western region demon monk Daman in front of him. Suddenly, his ears moved and his body shot backward, instantly pushing him back more than ten meters. Che, the Gumu sect has finally appeared. I have been waiting for you for a long time. I will personally take revenge for fathers back then. Zhu Lengxin stood beside Daman with a crazy smile on his face. Sect leader, save me. Daman clutched his broken arm. He knew that Zhu Lingxin had a way to regrow his broken arm. Zhu Lingxin nodded and pressed his palm on Daman's head. Daman immediately revealed a terrified expression. The true energy in his body was continuously flowing out. Do you think that I really don't know about the little tricks you did behind my back? Zhu Lingxin threw Daman's body to the side. Actually, he knew all about Daman privately detaining martial arts experts and recruiting women to practice the joyful Zen. He just didn't want to touch Daman. This time, he had specially come to deal with Yu Zhuang and kill Daman at the same time. Yu Zhuang frowned. The aura emitted by the other party was very powerful. It had already surpassed him. This battle was probably impossible to win. Zhu Wutian's son. Yu Zhuang tightened the black iron heavy sword in his hand and said softly. Back then, when the Gumu sect had eliminated Zhu Wutian, the White Lotus cult didn't dare to move into the Central Plains for decades. Unfortunately, the former Grandmaster hadn't become a saint cultivator and had fallen ten years ago. As the most outstanding disciple of the Gumu sect, Yu Zhuang had only recently broken through to become a half-step saint cultivator. That's right. But today, I have led the White Lotus cult to make a comeback. Not only do I want to dominate the martial arts world of the Central Plains, I also want to sit on the throne of the great Zhou's emperor. Zhu Lingxin did not conceal his ambition at all. He was now confident in his own strength, and there was no one in the world who could deal with him. You're boasting shamelessly. You don't think that the martial arts world of the Central Plains only has the Guma sect, right? Even if I fall today, there will still be others who will come to deal with you. Yu Zhuang knew that he would not be able to walk out of here alive today. However, he was not afraid. Death was not scary. He was afraid that Zhu Lingxin had the intention of poisoning the martial arts world of the Central Plains. When that time came, it would be another bloody storm. Kill everyone. Including the ants outside. He had no intention of leaving anyone alive, be it the monks of the spiritual god temple or the imperial court army. The few experts of the White Lotus cult received the order and left. He Chuan slowly walked up the mountain with his hands behind his back. Young master, if we don't go over quickly, will there be any accidents? As a Xientian expert, Kai Lian could vaguely sense the powerful aura in the direction of the spiritual god temple. That evil and powerful aura made people's hearts palpitate. If He Chuan wasn't there, Kai Lian didn't know if she would have the courage to go up the mountain and take a look. The scenery along the way is so beautiful. Liener needs to learn to appreciate it. He Chuan wasn't in a hurry. As a saint cultivator, everything was under his observation. 
Kai Lian nodded her head as if she didn't understand. She felt He Chuan's words were always full of profound truths. The battle cries in front of the spiritual god temple shook the sky. Wei Qianqin was escorted down the mountain by the army and grandmaster experts. The White Lotus cult's experts were simply too powerful, and there was no lack of half-step saints cultivators among them. The imperial court side suffered a crushing defeat, and there was no way they could resist. Who's in front? There's a White Lotus cult evildoer causing trouble ahead. All of you, retreat quickly. Wei Qianqing fled on horseback and discovered a man and a woman walking toward him. No matter how much Wei Qianqing shouted, the man and woman seemed to not hear him as they continued forward. Yangzhou Magistrate, Wei Qianqing, today is the day you die. You dare to meddle in the affairs of our White Lotus cult. A Xientian ninth stage expert from the White Lotus cult chased after him, wanting to kill Wei Qianqing with his palm. Arrows were completely unable to stop the White Lotus cult's expert. And the Imperial Court's expert was trapped, unable to extricate himself and save Wei Qianqing. He could only watch helplessly as Wei Qianqing died. The foreign heretic cult doesn't know how to repent. He Chuan mobilized the vital essence in his body and struck out toward the White Lotus cult's expert. Under everyone's shocked gazes, a bull-sized transparent hole appeared in the heart of the White Lotus cult's expert. He fell to the ground without a sound. The seemingly light palm actually had such power. No one present had expected it. Wei Qianqing, who was the closest, was even more incredulous. Just now, he had thought that he was dead for sure. He had not expected that he would be saved by He Chuan. The key point was that the palm was full of power, but it did not injure Wei Qianqing. One had to know that the White Lotus cult's expert was very close to him just now. He Chuan had probably controlled his power to the limit. The sudden attack of the mysterious expert gave the people of the White Lotus cult a fright. That was a ninth stage expert. How could he be killed so easily? It was very difficult for the half step saint cultivators on their side to be so relaxed. Those who dare to act as the servants of the White Lotus cult have to die. When the two half step saint cultivators of the White Lotus cult saw the mysterious expert's astonishing methods, they did not dare to be negligent. The two of them attacked together. In an instant, the surrounding wind blew in all directions, and an overwhelming pressure surged toward He Chuan. Puchi. Under the pressure, someone actually spat out blood, which showed how powerful it was. However, He Chuan's gaze faintly flickered with a cold light, and his expression didn't change in the face of the two half step saint cultivators' attacks. He waved his hand to signal Kai Lien to retreat and circulated the vital essence in his body. His palms were like a furnace, turning completely red. The black fog that came from the sky enveloped He Chuan, and the attacks of the two half step saint cultivators of the White Lotus cult arrived with the wind. The people of the imperial court couldn't help but sweat for him. This was the attack of two half-step saint cultivators, and their bodies were full of evil energy. Their attacks seemed to be very powerful. They were much stronger than the six great sects. He Chuan's palms seemed to have a suction force, guiding the two half-step saint cultivators of the White Lotus cult to fight head-on with him. A scorching light flashed past. The arrogant half-step saint cultivators of the White Lotus cult had turned into two puddles of flesh and blood. There was no mercy. Not even a complete corpse was left behind. There was actually such an expert in the Central Plains. Regardless of whether it was the White Lotus cult or the Imperial Court, they were all shocked by He Chuan's strength in killing two half-step saint cultivators in one move. Ridiculously strong. This young man was probably already a saint cultivator. Kill. The Imperial Court Xientian Grandmasters were the first to come back to their senses. Without the suppression of half-step saint cultivators, they could finally counterattack. The depressed mood from before was swept away. Chapter, 160 He Chuan acted as if he had just done something insignificant. He didn't even look at the battle between the Xientian masters and continued walking towards the spiritual god temple with his hands behind his back. Kai Lien tried her best not to vomit. The two lumps of minced meat were at her feet, and she could feel her stomach churning. Of course, He Chuan had done this on purpose. 
Otherwise, the two Khanate experts of the White Lotus cult would not even be left with ashes. He needed to let the palace maid know that some battles were between life and death. It wasn't something that could be solved with kindness. Even if Yichuan let the White Lotus cult off, they would not turn over a new leaf. Killing them would be the best choice. In the front yard of Spiritual God Temple, Yuxuang half knelt on the ground, and the black iron heavy sword in his hand fell to the ground. He was gasping for breath, and cold sweat kept dripping from his forehead. The Ju Lingxin in front of him was too strong. He could not even retaliate. If it wasn't for the fact that the other party wanted to play a game of cat and mouse, Yu Zhuang would have been dead long ago. Tell me the location of Gumu's sect and I will spare your life. Zhu Lengxin was actually still a little afraid of Gumu's sect. He wanted to take the opportunity to uproot Gumu's sect to solve his worries. No comment. The foreign cults will be defeated by the Chinese world's cultivator once again. Yu Zhuang wasn't someone who was afraid of death. Moreover, it was best not to believe a single word of a person like Zhu Lengxin. Credibility and oaths were worthless to Zhu Lengxin. Even if Yu Zhuang told them the location of Gumu's sect, he would still die. Very good. This lord admires tough bones like you the most. There were some people who were as tough as you before, but they still obediently submitted under my means. You'll experience what it's like to be unable to live or die later. Zhu Lengxin licked his ink black lips. He wanted to crush Yu Zhuang's bones inch by inch and then slowly torture him. Just as Zhu Lingxin was about to make a move, Spiritual God Temple's door was slowly pushed open. He Chuan walked into the front yard with Kai Lian. Zhu Lingxin's eyes were half opened, and he couldn't help but be shocked. As a saint cultivator, nothing within dozens of miles could escape his five senses. The two people in front of him had actually evaded his detection and walked in openly. It could be seen how strong they were. Ha, huh, today is a good day. I can catch all the cultivators experts of the central plains in one fell swoop. Then, no one will be able to stop me. Zhu Lengxin didn't care how He Chuan and Kai Lian had entered. As a saint cultivator, he was very confident. You're too noisy. The White Lotus cult's leader is just so-so, and you said you'd make him wish he was dead. I'll return the favor. He Chuan realized that Zhu Lingxin wasn't simple. Not only did she have the true essence of a saint cultivator, but he also had an extremely evil aura. Zhu Lingxin must have relied on evil techniques to break through to the saint cultivator level. Ever since Zhu Wuxin had unified the White Lotus cult, no one dared to speak to him like this for many years. He Chuan, who was in front of him, made him angry. Even if his opponent was a saint cultivator, he was still no match for him, because he still had a trump card. Ah! Zhu Lingxin howled to the sky and his entire body began to expand. In the blink of an eye, he turned into a small giant that was close to three meters tall. His eyes turned from black to scarlet, and his face was extremely ferocious. His aura also rose steadily. A terrifying evil aura filled the air and shot up into the clouds. So you're a lackey of the gods. No wonder you can break through to the saint cultivator realm. He Chuan recalled the images of the gods and demons recorded in Anecdote of Chizhou, which were very similar to Zhu Wuxin. However, his heart did not waver. Whether the other party was a human or a demon, they were destined to not live through the night. It was a good opportunity to observe what the gods looked like up close. This is a monster. You too, leave quickly. I'll stop him. Yu Zhuang struggled to stand up. He had read about gods and devils in the Gumu sect. The ancestors of the Gumu sect had once fought with them, so they classified the gods and demons recorded in the Anecdotes of Chizhou as monsters. None of you can leave I will slowly torture you. A scarlet mist rose from Zhu Wuxin's palm as she used the blood-devouring Heavenly Devil Sutra. Instantly, a powerful suction force attacked He Chuan, trying to suck all of his blood. The blood-devouring Heavenly Devil Sutra was a cultivation technique created by an evil demon god, and it could drain the blood of its enemies from a distance. You, trash with a sharp tongue. I thought you had some tricks up your sleeve. What a disappointment. He Chuan was very disappointed by Zhu Lingxin's attack. 
He had thought that he would be able to witness the legendary power of gods and devils, but he did not expect that Zhu Lingxin was pitifully weak. As expected, it was better to rely on oneself to break through than to rely on external forces. He Chuan's face was emotionless as he casually mobilized his vital essence. After a few transformations in his body, a mass of green true essence gushed out and transformed into a vine whip. The vine whip seemed to have a life of its own under his control, and it slashed toward Zhu Lingxin like a spiritual snake. The vine whip broke through the air, its force was so strong that it not only easily pierced through Zhu Lingxin's protective energy field, but the violent force also exploded in all directions, expanding to a radius of a hundred feet. Under the backlash of this powerful explosion, the vital essence in Zhu Lingxin's body suffered a strong shock, and a mouthful of black blood spurted out of his mouth. You have some ability. He Chuan's praise was the greatest insult to Zhu Lingxin. Anyone with eyes could see that his attack was done very casually, but Zhu Lingxin had already used all his strength. Yu Xuan's hand that was holding the steel heavy sword was trembling. As a reclusive Gumu's sect successor, he had heard of how powerful a saint cultivator was. The young man in front of him looked to be about the same age as him and had already become a saint cultivator. Or could it be that this mysterious expert was an expert cultivated by a hidden sect? Countless thoughts flashed through Yu Zhuang's mind. No. I don't believe it. Zhu Lingxin clutched his chest. He had just advanced to a saint cultivator, and had the god and devil's power, so how could he be defeated so easily? The key was, it was just a casual attack. This was like someone who had just learned a peerless divine technique and thought that he was invincible, but who knew that he would be defeated the moment he came out of the mountain. No one would be able to accept this. The power of gods and devils shouldn't be limited to this, right? Let me taste some of it. He Chuan crossed his arms and had no intention of pursuing the victory. He Chuan didn't believe that Zhu Lingxin was so weak. He was prepared to give him a chance until Zhu Lingxin was at the end of his rope. You actually dare to insult this lord. Zhu Lingxin roared in anger. This was even worse than killing Zhu Lingxin. There's actually such a strong person in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. If these are your last words, then I'll send you to hell to repent for your sins to the dead Central Plainsman. He Chuan's eyes suddenly turned sharp. His aura instantly rose crazily. Wei Qiancheng, who was at the foot of the mountain, looked at the sky above spiritual god temple. His powerful aura actually blew away the dark clouds in the sky. Was this the power of a saint cultivator? He was too strong. Gulp. Wei Qianqing couldn't help but swallow. Who do you think will win? I'm not sure, but judging from the aura emanating from the top of the mountain, they're at least evenly matched. The White Lotus cult can be defeated. The Imperial Court's experts didn't know who had the upper hand, but they had beautiful wishes.